I awakened the SSS level spirit contract talent, but was called a waste by everyone, because in this world, women can awaken various spirit forms after they come of age. Some women awaken as the unparalleled rift splitting long spear, and wherever the long spear sweeps, it is burned by flames. Some women awaken as a mountain splitting giant axe, and anything in front of the giant axe will be split open by its powerful force. Meanwhile, males awaken as spirit contractors, and the mutual contract between the two can unleash even stronger power. And the first thing I did after awakening was to contract with the worst E-rank contract spirit. As a transmigrator, I discovered that those low-level awakened contract spirits were all famous ancient divine weapons on the ancient ranking list, such as the Divine Farmer's Cauldron, the Kunlun Mirror, and the Nuwa Stone. They were considered trash with no attack power. So, at the first moment of awakening my talent, I set my sights on the school beauty, Xia Yue, who awakened as an E-rank contract spirit, and her transformed form is the Fushichin, one of the ten great ancient divine weapons. Xiao Mei, who had just awakened as an S-rank talent, looked at me with an incredulous expression. She couldn't believe that I would choose a broken sheen with only an E-rank contract spirit instead of an S-rank contract spirit. Xiao Mei couldn't understand why. She was just an E-level contract spirit, while I am an S-level. I am the silver spear of the blue blood, and she is just a broken zither. I didn't even pay attention to Xiao Mei behind me. My gaze was fixed on Xia Yue, waiting for her decision. Xia Yue opened her mouth, but before she could speak, a voice came from the crowd. No, I disagree. The crowd made way, and Chen Guangpu, the principal of Qingting Academy, came running. He wiped the sweat off his forehead and said to me, Young man, contracting a contract spirit is not something to be taken lightly. You have awakened an SSS level contract spirit talent, which is the future of Disya. Your mission is to defeat the insect race and reclaim lost territory. Han Zhan, Principal Chen is right. I am touched that you still want to form a contract with me after I awaken as an E-rank spirit. But you cannot form a contract with me. It will only harm you. Xia Yue's head slowly lowered as she spoke, hiding her sadness and disappointment from others. Just as I was about to explain, a cold snort suddenly sounded, and I saw a middle-aged man with a serious expression walking onto the playground surrounded by a few people. Godfather. Xiao Mei in the field exclaimed in surprise, Why are you here? The Qingting Academy has caused such a big disturbance. How could I, as the guardian of Shenlong City, not come? Also, I heard that someone is bullying my precious goddaughter, relying on their good talent. Is this true? Deputy Captain Zhao. There is no such thing. Chen Guangpu came out to mediate with a smile, while using his eyes to hint at me standing aside to speak up and show support. After all, the person who came is the deputy captain of the guardian of Shenlong City. Zhao Hu, I remain silent, and this attitude made Zhao Hu frown unhappily. Young man, do you think that awakening an SSS level talent means you can really soar to the sky? As long as I want, the entire deep blue city will not have a contract with you and the Qiling. At that time, even if you have an SSS level talent, what does it matter if you can't make a contract with a spirit? Xiao Mei also followed closely and said, that's right, hurry up and come over to apologize, and then make a contract with me. Otherwise, I will directly ban you. Looking at their ugly faces, my disgust in my heart grew stronger. I still stared at Xiao Mei and said, You are also worthy. Zhao Hu's eyes widened in anger, and he directly waved his hand to come and teach me a lesson. Chen Guangpu stepped forward and stood in front of me. Deputy Captain Zhao, calm down. He is an SSS level talent, and I have already filed it with the higher-ups. If you continue like this, it might be difficult to explain when Captain Yi returns from the front line. Are you threatening me? Zhao Hu stared at Chen Guangpu with eyes that seemed to devour people. I can promise not to harm him, but he must form a contract with this E-level contract spirit. He doesn't like my daughter, right? Then let him contract with this useless contract spirit. It's his own choice. Even if there are any consequences, it shouldn't be blamed on me. Zhao Hu's thoughts. Chen Guangpu also guessed. I learned from Zhao Hu's cold laugh. Okay, I will contract Xia Yue. No matter who comes today, it cannot change my decision. Hearing my voice. Xia Yue looked at me with a complicated look. Zhao Hu saw this and laughed in anger. Tomorrow is the assessment for spiritual contract masters. Those who fail the assessment will be forcibly exiled to the lower district along with their contracted spirits. Director Chen, I will personally bring people to see tomorrow. I hope you can still protect him by then. After saying that, Xiao Mei, who had an unwilling expression, left. Chen Guangpu looked at me and then at Xia Yue, and finally sighed deeply, shook his head, and left. I looked at Xia Yue and said, let's go, Xia, the school beauty, let's sign the contract, Xia Yue's eyes instantly became moist, Han Zhan, I'm sorry, no need to apologize, because you deserve it, 
Then I took Xia Yue's hand and came to the contract room. I sat across from Xia Yue and said, Let's begin. Xia Yue blushed and replied, Okay. Then I started to perform the contract ritual according to the memory of the spirit contract master. I formed hand seals with both hands, and a faint golden contract formation began to appear under my feet. Within the golden contract formation, golden chains intertwined me and Xia Yue together. Just at this moment, I suddenly shouted again, with my hands clasped together. Xin Zhao. As I uttered the word Xin Zhao, a seemingly ethereal sound of a qin resonated from the sky. Xia Yue uncontrollably transformed into an ancient qin, the divine weapon, the Fushi qin. At this moment, when I looked at Xia Yue's information again, earth-shattering changes had already occurred. Xia Yue, SSS grade contract spirit, transformed form, ancient divine weapon, Fushi qin, divinity, sword courage, qin heart. I have completed the contract with Xia Yue, and we have also gained a lot of information in our minds. I truly understand the power of the sword heart and qin heart. Three pieces of music that can be played at different stages appeared in my mind, the main offensive breaking formation, the main healing clear mind, and the main support dragon soaring. With these three pieces of music, I will surely shock everyone in tomorrow's spirit contract master assessment. Xia Yue also recovered from the state of transforming into the Fushi Qin, with an incredulous expression on her face. It seems that she herself can't believe that the E-grade contract spirit has turned into an SSS grade. Thank you, Han Zhan. I heard a sound and felt a gentle touch on my cheek as if a dragonfly had lightly touched the water. Then I saw Xia Yue blushing and running away without looking back. In just one night, I awakened as an SSS level talent, but I only formed a contract with an E-level spirit. This news quickly spread throughout the entire deep blue city. Someone scolded me as a fool, saying that I wasted my talent and the cultivation of the academy. I apologize to all the people of Dixia. There are also people who say that Xia Yue is a fox spirit seducing men and deserves to be exposed. When I came to Qingting Academy again, People around me pointed and talked about me. Soon, Xia Yue also appeared at the school gate. Her little face was a bit pale, as if she hadn't slept well. When she saw me, she hurried over and apologized. Xia Yue lowered her head and whispered, If it weren't for her, I wouldn't have received so much criticism and slander. She felt guilty, and I laughed heartlessly a few times. Don't apologize all the time for no reason. You are the school bell. Be more confident. As for those clowns, let them have a good look at who is the waste who is the fool, and give them a hard slap on their faces. The assessment of spirit contract masters is divided into three stages, combat, healing, and decision making. Each assessment is scored separately. If a spirit contract master and their spirit cannot meet the standards in all three areas, they will be banished to the lower district. Survival of the fittest, natural selection. Xia Yue and I arrived at the place where the spirit contract master assessment was held. There were already many people gathered here to participate in the assessment. Are you Han Zhan? Suddenly, a voice sounded from behind, and I saw a proud-looking boy walking towards me. Who are you? I am Xiao Mei's spiritual contract master, Dai Lu Mao. But, I almost choked on my own saliva. Dai Lu Mao's face turned a bit cold. What are you laughing at? Sorry, I just suddenly thought of something really funny. Ha, huh? a clown trying to win popularity. Han Zhan, not choosing Meyer will be your biggest regret. If I really chose her, then you won't have any role left. Where will you be then? Hiding in the bed and shedding little pearls? I also retorted without hesitation. Dai Lima heard my words and instinctively clenched his fist. Don't stoop to his level. He's just a waste about to be exiled to the lower district. Xiaomei also walked over from the crowd. Xiaomei stared at me and Xia Yue, then walked hand in hand with Dai Luo Mao. The assessment has begun. The first level is a battle level. The spiritual contract master and the contract spirit will enter a special battle space and the difficulty will gradually increase according to the test intensity. Test difficulty level 1, a first order strange insect, a black beetle. As the voice of the assessor sounded, a small calf-sized bug was released. Black mantis, a first order exotic insect known for its brute force, low intelligence, and tough skin. Dai Luo Mao shouted. A green light radiated from his body and gradually gathered above his head, forming a dewdrop. S level talent, arm like morning dew. Xiao Mei simultaneously transformed into a spear form. With the blessing of arm like morning dew, the spear body was surrounded by immortal energy. Quite extraordinary. Break. Facing the black downer worm that rushed head on, Wang Lumo held the gun with both hands and violently poked it forward. The sharp tip of the gun pierced into it, and the black downer worm let out a mournful roar. However, the black downer worm's thick skin and flesh allowed it to continue to charge forward by brute force even if it was stabbed in the fatal part. Wang Lumo clenched his teeth and sank his blue blood washed silver lance. In the next second, white immortal spirit chi stirred, piercing it through with a single shot. 
first ranked black downer bug, dead. Again. He raised the tip of his spear not without complacency, his battle spirit soaring. At the sight of this scene, a burst of exclamations came from the onlookers. He's so handsome. Is this a spirit contractor with S-class talent? It's also too strong. The S-rank spirit fellowship spirit Bijin Wash Silver Lance can even stab through a thick-skinned black downer worm. Where's Han Jun? That punk who contracted an E-rank deed spirit, I just want to see the expression on his face right now, ha ha ha. Don't worry, he's up next, come over and watch, soon the clowns will start performing. Inside the general command room, a long oval table was currently filled with people. Chin Spectrum, the dean of the Green Vine Academy, and Zhao Hu, the vice captain of the city protector of Deep Blue City, were also among them. However, they were both seated at the end. Sitting further ahead than them were the heads of the various regions. In all the years of the spirit contractor examination, the military region had attached extreme importance to it, and the heads of the various regions were personally present, just to prevent any mistakes in the examination process. But this year, it was especially special. Because at the very front of the oval long table, there sat an old man. With him sitting there, the heads of the various regions sat obediently one by one, like quails, not daring to utter a single breath. In the huge broadcast screen, the image of Wang Lumo poking through the black worm with a single shot was being played. It was only at this time that the old man slowly opened his mouth and said, fair enough. The middle-aged man sitting in the first place on his left-hand side grunted out of his nostrils. S-rank talent, killing a first-order alien beast is still so laborious, teacher, it's far worse than the batch of laborers back then. The speaker, the head of the first region, Wei Ching. The first region was mainly responsible for fighting head-on with the main force of the insect alien beasts on the battlefield, which could be called a terror meat grinder. To be able to survive that kind of battlefield and still become the person in charge in general, as soon as Wei Ching opened his mouth, he felt the entire inside of the room was filled with a rich aura of sullen blood. Snap. Then, the back of the head of the first region's head was slapped hard. Everyone watched with their eyes and noses. The old man that Wei Ching had called teacher slowly withdrew his hand. Motherfucker, how many times have I told you, don't say labor when you speak, you want to be my labor? No, I don't dare. Wei Ching, who was not even the slightest bit afraid of an eighth order insect emperor in the battlefield, hurriedly lowered his head. The old man moved his gaze and looked to the other side. Lin Jingxian, tell us what you think. Yes. A thin man wearing black framed glasses, habitually holding up his glasses, opened his mouth to respond. Lin Jingxian, the head of the second region. The second region was mainly responsible for the all-powerful unification warfare, and the unification warfare bureau was under his command, if Wei Qing was an absolute martial artist, Lin Jingxian was an absolute intellectual general. As an S-rank spirit contractor, his development of his talent is still at the most rudimentary stage. It's rusty to use. As an S-rank spirit contractor, her power seems to be 20% weaker than expected, otherwise, without having to wait until the triggering of the trait, Immortal Spirit Qi, she should be able to directly penetrate the body of a first-ranked black downer worm to achieve a one-strike kill. It's probably the leakage of spirit source caused by a lack of moderation in lifestyle. In a few short sentences, Lin Jingxian had stripped Wan Lumo and Xiao Mei of their bottoms. How many times have I told you to tell half of what you know, you said it all, do you think you're not dying fast enough? Lin Jingxian subconsciously clasped his head with both hands and looked to block that cerebral crash in advance, and then he was forced to withdraw his hands with extremely fast reflexes and took a hit. After lecturing the heads of the first and second regions, the old man then resumed his seat. The other regional leaders who were not questioned, were all relieved in their hearts, and had a kind of afterlife of not being questioned by the teacher in class. Combat Assessment Area Wang Lumo and Xiao Mei finally succeeded in breaking through the seventh difficulty level of the combat test, breaking the previous record of 6th difficulty level of Qingting Academy, attracting a round of applause. Next up were Han Zhan and Xia Yuwei. When they stepped into the combat space, 1, 2, 3, whole 10 first order black downer bugs fish out from the opposite gate cage. At the same time, the examiner's voice rang out, test difficulty 1, first order alien bug black downer bugs, 10, 10. I didn't read it wrong, wasn't there only one in difficulty 1? Just now, when Wang Lumo and the others reached difficulty 7, they only had to deal with 7. Is this official targeting? Ha, huh, this is interesting. Serves him right, let him do it. Picking an E-rank waste spirit, don't you like to swing? Let you swing. Facing many people's doubts, the examiner also gave an answer. The difficulty of the test varies from person to person. It's to screen the elites, SSS grade talent. It's only right to elevate the difficulty 10 times more than others in order to convince the public. That's right. Well said. Support. A group of people who were watching the fun shouted, and the broadcast camera even fixed the image on Han Zhan's face, gradually zooming in. Han Zhan's face, however, did not show angry and unequal emotions as expected. The examination rules, it seems, are not like this. In the general command room, the old man spoke for the second time. Zhao Wu, who was sitting at the end of the line, could only stand up stiffly and replied, this was added temporarily by our deep blue city protectors, 
and we believe that this young man has wasted his talent and set a very bad example, so, I don't see the problem. We had this difficulty back in the day, and over the years, we've let them little guys rest easy for too long. How many spirit contractor warriors died on the front line every day before we created such a relatively peaceful environment for them? One like this who wastes his talent should be allowed to be exiled to the lower city, he doesn't deserve to be here. Wei Cheng stood out and spoke for Zhao Hu. This time, he didn't say labor, and the old man just gave a hum and didn't say anything else. Everyone in the general command room, they didn't think that Han Zhan, who was a first order spirit contractor, would be able to deal with 10 black downer worms at once. On the screen, Xia Yue, who was beside Han Zhan, had transformed into the form of a pale pink Fushi Guchin. Han Zhan held it horizontally in front of his body, and with the wind blowing, his clothes hunted, quite a bit of immortal demeanor. Come on. Han Zhan looked at the 10 black downer worms in front of him and gently opened his mouth. As if they understood his words, or were angered by his careless attitude, the 10 black downer worms swarmed up and pounced towards Han. In the face of these 10 black downer insects, Han Zhan did not even look at them, but only placed his right hand lightly on the Fushi Zither. He snapped the strings. Clang! The strings of the Fushi Zither were plucked, and in the trembling strings, accompanied by the sound of cracking, a huge blade of chi visible to the naked eye coalesced in front of Han Zhan in the blink of an eye. The blade instantly took shape, and as Han Zhan waved his hand and stroked the strings, it was pushed out horizontally at a horizontal angle, with the force of a bamboo. The black downer bugs didn't even have time to react before they were run through by the blade. The sound of ten heads falling to the ground rang out, the ten black downer insects, dead. The crows were silent. It was as if everyone in the originally noisy examination ground had their throats strangled, unable to make a single sound. Seconds. Real seconds. From Han Zhan's strike to the black downer bug's collapse, the process was so fast that it was mind-boggling. Was that really just an E-class deed spirit? You're telling me that it's an E-rank waste deed spirit? Then what are the others, even worse than trash? At this moment, whether it was the scene, or watching the broadcast, everyone was shocked, shocked into silence. In the silence, they all heard Han Zhan's come as water but incomparably pretentious voice. This song, break the formation. Crap, that's so damn awesome. Inside the general command room, Wei Ching saw this scene and slammed the table, standing up from his seat and subconsciously shouting. Rauch's eye dried up 10 black downer worms back then, and it still took at least 30 seconds, this kid, it only took 1 second? This person, will take the first district. Wei Ching said, about to turn around and walk out of the general command room, going to the scene to grab the person. Before he could leave his seat, his shoulders were pressed by one left and one right. Old Wei, your first district that's all daredevil teams, isn't a newcomer spirit contractor going over there no different from sending someone to their death? It's better to come to our third district and grow up first. The one who opened his mouth to speak was the head of the third district, Yi Chiu, who pressed one hand on Wei Qing's shoulder, and the latter surprisingly failed to get up for a moment. Old Ji, are you coming with me for real? Wei Qing felt the pressure coming from his shoulder, his eyes narrowed slightly, and some crazy scarlet overflowed out. Hmph, sister-in-law isn't here today, just by you alone, I'm not afraid. Hey you kid, it's been a long time since I fought you, I have to clean up today. Sister-in-law isn't here either, beating the snot out of you won't be too ugly. Brother Wei, Brother Yi, you two districts a main battlefield a position to attack, are not a good place to go. In my opinion, it's better to come to my 4th district and start with Ruins Exploration. Shinjichi, the head of the 4th district, pressed Wei Qing's other shoulder. You get the hell out of here, the other two said in unison. The 1st, 3rd, and 4th districts that were the most fiercely contested, that is, the three major districts that had the most combat spirit contractors assigned to them, corresponded to frontal battlefields, positional assaults, and Ruins Exploration, respectively. The three people over here were in a stalemate. Chen Spectrum and Zhao Hu, who were sitting at the back, had rich expressions to follow. Chen Spectrum was happy, surprised and pleasantly surprised. He originally thought that Han Zhan had been ruined, but he didn't expect that not only was he not ruined, but he was also so awesome. Zhao Hu's face was going to be much uglier, like he had eaten a whole defense. But he couldn't and didn't dare to have a seizure, and could only hold it in hard. On the screen, the assessment was still continuing. In fact, even the examiner in charge of the test didn't even think that Han Zhan could pass difficulty 1, so he could only continue with a stiff upper lip. Test difficulty 2, first order black downer bugs, 20 of them. When 20 black downer worms appeared together in the battle space, the entire space became much more crowded. Each black downer bug was comparable to a small calf, and with 20 of them in black, it looked quite spectacular. The audience had also been dumbfounded. After so many years, they had never seen a first rank spirit contractor challenge 20 black downer worms in one go. This had completely exceeded the normal difficulty level and had reached an outrageous level. Han Zhan stood still and stroked his zither. In one fell swoop. It was still a second kill. It's useless to come with more of these, increase the difficulty. Suddenly, Han Zhan in the arena opened his mouth. And increased the difficulty? I'll go, so crazy. 
This is hitting the official face ah, didn't you give me difficulty 1 on 10 black downer bugs, now I'm telling you, still have to continue to increase the difficulty. He's too crazy. Doesn't the official government have a say in this? Just let him pretend to be a bully? Officials, officials are busy right now. Inside the general command room. In order to fight for the Korean War, Wei Ching, Yi Chiu, and Shinjichi had literally fought to one place, and as they fought within the special space opened up by Lin Jingxin, they could completely let go of their hands and didn't have to worry about anything. The heads of the other regions were all watching with interest. This kind of spectacle hadn't been seen since they graduated and went their separate ways. Anyway, what Han Zhan was doing was a combat test, so it had nothing to do with them, and they couldn't be in a hurry. Hearing Han War's voice on the screen, the old man sitting at the front, suddenly laughed freely twice. Interesting. What he said is indeed good, such an examination is meaningless. Lin Jingxian held up the black-framed glasses on the bridge of his nose and took over. The First Order Black Downer insects rely on their thick skin and numbers to win, and are simply powerless in the face of a zither sound chi blade like his. Even if the number of Black Downer bugs is raised to dozens, hundreds, the result won't change, it's still a second death. Unless, it's a true tide of Black Downer insects. A true Black Downer bug tide could easily be tens of millions of First Order Black Downer bugs, which were densely packed like a black tide, going forward and backward. But that was no longer a first rank spirit fellowship master test, and with the insect plague, using an insect plague as a test wasn't that big of a deal. Jing Xian, what do you suggest? It was still the old man who asked the question, and Lin Jing Xian answered. Enable the highest standards from our combat assessment back then. Lin Jing Xian also gave an answer. The combat examination back then. It was a completely different kind of assessment from the current weakened version that was countless times weaker. Because the purpose of the assessment was also different. For Lin Jingxian to be able to say that he used the same set of standards that he had used to assess himself, in his heart, he had actually recognized Han Zhan's strength. Hmm, that's fine. Then let them prepare, I didn't expect that this time, when I went to Deep Blue on a whim, I was just saving my family, but I had an unexpected gain. As soon as the old man's words were uttered, the staff member in charge of the standby had already jogged all the way and conveyed it down. Soon, the staff member assessing the battlefield also received a notification from above. When he saw the page of new battle assessment contents, he couldn't help but subconsciously gulp. Was this really an assessment? Sure that it wasn't to put people to death? Could it be that the leaders above were also enraged and wanted to give this young man a bit of color? Ahem, at your request, the official has made a new adjustment. Combat test examination, difficulty 3, second order giant armored lizard, 10, second rank thunderbird, 10. Once the new test difficulty 3 was announced, the entire room boiled. Second rank? You're a first order spirit contractor and you ended up using second order foreign beasts to conduct the examination? Officially this is really a case of not even having a face? Second order giant armored lizard, comparable to the pro max version of the black downer bug, with a huge increase in strength and defense, each head is comparable to a heavy tank. Second order thunderbird, an alienated bird that was able to emit ear piercing sounds from its throat while thunderbolts shot out. Because it was a flying unit, it was extremely difficult to deal with. With such a combination of a tank and an assassin, not to mention a first order spirit contractor, even a second order one would have a headache. Yes, come on. Unexpectedly, Han Zhan accepted the challenge openly. As far as he was concerned, the combat test itself was no longer meaningful, and what Han Zhan wanted to do more was to challenge the limits. He wanted to challenge where his limits were, and challenge where Xia Yue Fuxikin's limits were. Then with the results, he would ruthlessly go and punch those people in the face, telling them that Xia Yue was not a waste. Oomph, arrogant and conceited. At this time, untimely voices rang out among the onlookers. Both Wang Lumo and Xiao Mei, who had exited the examination, hadn't left yet, and seeing Han Zhan put on a great show was even harder than if they had passed the examination themselves. As soon as Wang Lumo's words were finished, the people around him cast strange gazes. Those gazes seemed to be filled with words like idiot, retard, and clown. Wang Lumo stuck his neck out and said, Why are you looking at me? If he, Han Zhan, can pass this difficulty, I'll stand upside down and eat Xiang. Battle space. 20 giant armored lizards lined up like a thick wall of oppression, slowly approaching. The other 20 thunderbirds swept up high and flew out in all directions, each looking for a suitable attack position to strike. Han Zhan picked up the Fushi zither with one hand and aimed it at the center of the battlefield. Another zither sound rang out, and the crescent-shaped power blade swung out once again, beheading at the giant armored lizard. Rumble! The Qin's chi blade slammed into a thick layer of scale armor, and the impact directly knocked the giant armored lizard back by half a meter. However, on the body of the giant armored lizard, other than a deep white scar, there was no more wound. It was blocked. For some reason, everyone who saw this scene was slightly relieved. It was really because they had watched the black downer bug being killed in seconds so much, they were really afraid that if even the giant armored lizard couldn't block the damage from this zither sanchi blade, how would it end up then? Seeing the giant armored lizard block the damage, Han Zhang's eyes were also slightly condensed. Right at this moment, the thunderclap bird that was waiting for an opportunity struck. Newt. 
Newt, Newt. Sharp cries rang out in the surroundings, and a path of azure lightning surged out from their mouths, attacking and killing. Thunder plasma and electricity surged, connecting into pieces, and from a distance, it was like a skywide power grid connecting, falling towards the top of Han's head. The test is over? No, it's just begun. Clang clang clang. Han Zhan's right hand, which was wiping the strings in his hand, changed from wiping to picking, and the sound of the fushi zither became much higher all of a sudden. In a flash, he actually withdrew from the overwhelming grid attack with unimaginable speed. The battle continued. Gathering, twisting, wiping, picking, sweeping. Different fingerings, different zither sounds, intertwined and interlaced to form a song. For the first time, the crisscrossing qin sound and qi blades were completely displayed in front of the crowd, and at the same time, there was also the qin song break formation in Han Zhan's mouth. Although the defense of the giant armored lizard was terrifying, it would still be mercilessly killed after hitting three zither sound blades in a row. The thunder sound birds, which were known for their agility and flexibility, couldn't even capture Han Zhan's figure. The balance of victory in the battle gradually began to tilt. Five minutes later, Han Zhan successfully completed combat examination difficulty 3. When he heard the examiner shout out these words, Wan Lumao, who was spectating from the sidelines, immediately turned green in the face. Where's the person who just said he would eat Shang upside down? These days, even though the insect race has occupied most of the blue star, there are still as many things like Xiang as there are to eat. Day in and day out, all you know is to cheat and eat. Can't eat Xiang, to find more from their own reasons, these years have not tried to think about how to cheat Xiang to eat, look at others. There were more and more conspiratorial voices, making Wang Lumao's face a few points greener. In addition to that brother three who were still fighting frantically, two more people stood up from their seats. To be exact, they stood up when they saw Han Zhan make a retreat to dodge that grid attack. The old man, and Lin Jingxian. The sound of the zither has changed. Lin Jingxian still had the same face that was unperturbed by the change, but from the frequency with which he held his glasses, it was clear that his heart was not as calm. It's two zither tunes. One of them, should be the broken formation that he's talking about, while the other, a new zither tune, is appearing for the first time. Breaking formations possesses an extremely strong killing power, capable of projecting zither chi blades. And the other zither tune's function should be to increase itself. After this tune was played, his speed increased at least 10 times from before. Lin Jingxian could tell at a glance that there was something fishy in Han Zhan's maneuver, but that didn't make him belittle the other party. On the contrary, his shock was much greater than when he had just seen Han Zhan kill 10 first order black downer worms in seconds. The old man had obviously also already seen something before he stood up in general with Lin Jingxian. There's more than one zither song, which means that he has more than one means of attack for this deed spirit. Breaking formations represents killing, an unknown zither tune represents increasing oneself. Then isn't there other zither tunes that have other different effects? Is this really just an E-grade gene spirit? This is by no means possible. As the few people who stood in the highest position in the entire Grand Xia, their eyesight was enough to crush a crowd of spirit contractors, which was why they were so shocked, and even out of their minds. With their insights, a spirit fellow with this kind of talent strength was at least S-class, no, SS-class, or even SSS-class. Ah Fu, take a look. As soon as the old man's words fell, a silhouette walked out from his shadow. Ah Fu was his bodyguard and his butler. The contracted spirit he contracted possessed an extremely special ability, which was, discerning truth, able to discern the grade of the contracted spirit, comparable to a humanoid awakening stone, no, quite a bit stronger than an awakening stone. Because of this ability, he was able to identify the assassins who approached disguised as ordinary people time and time again, protecting the old man safely. When Afu heard the old man's words, he nodded and reappeared invisible. After a while, Afu once again returned to the general command room, but he shook his head and said, I want to identify and check, the grade of the other party's deeded spirit is something that I am unable to identify. Unable to identify? The old man's tone rose slightly. Afu's deed spirit was SS grade, if even he was unable to identify it, then there would only be SSS grade deed spirits. But how to explain that Xia Yue was only identified by the Awakening Stone as an earring talent at the Awakening Conference? Perhaps, this girl's situation is the same as Miss. You're saying that she's the same as Ling Jin, who was identified by the Awakening Stone as an earring talent, and that you can't identify your talent to come to the same conclusion. She was able to become powerful because that young man named Han Zhan signed a contract with her? Don't rule out that possibility. The old man fell silent once again after hearing the butler Afu's words. The purpose of his special trip to Deep Blue City this time was that his granddaughter, Ling Jin, had only awakened an earring talent, something that was never possible from the perspective of family genetics. But in the same way, Afu had failed to identify his granddaughter's contracted spirit talent. It was clearly only an E-rank talent, but it had a level of mystery comparable to an SSS rank talent, and even an SS rank chevalier spirit was unable to discern the truth. The old man had been at his wit's end about this matter. He had seen all sorts of spirit contractors and deed spirits, he didn't know how many there were, but those in a situation like his granddaughter's were still. But now, he had seen his second deeded spirit in the same situation, 
and she was now in the examination space, so powerful that it was mind-blowing. It seems that it's time to find an opportunity to let Ling Jin meet with this young man called Han Zhan, perhaps, he has some way. By the way, at that time, Ling Jin said, what was the name of the spirit-fitting talent after she awakened from the awakening stone that? Butler Rafu pondered slightly before speaking. It's an e-ranked spirit contractor, the divine Nong Ding. How would an SSS-ranked spirit contractor, coupled with an SSS-ranked deed spirit, perform in a combat test? The answer was overwhelming. Although it was the first time Han Zhan had cooperated with Xia Yue, the two of them had such a high degree of fit that it made the battlefield dull without any sense of obtuseness. Although the difficulty of the later combat tests increased by levels, Han Zhan still overcame them time and time again and completed the tests. Difficulty 4, Difficulty 5, Difficulty 6, 7, 8, 9. The further back, the more difficult it became, and Han Zhan also felt the heavier pressure. After the end of Difficulty 9, he had begun to pant heavily, sweating profusely, no longer as calm as before. But not a single person dared to laugh at him anymore, and even less dared to say that Xia Yue was a waste of Chevalier spirit. They used their absolute strength to ruthlessly punch everyone in the face. It's almost time, it's already the limit. In this set of combat test back then, the old way with the best score was only up to difficulty 9. Mard, if I was given a little more time to recover at that time, difficulty 10 isn't impossible to try. Inside the general command room, Wei Qing, who was named, immediately set in defiance. The battle between the first, third, and fourth districts to grab people seemed to be over. Wei Qing's right eye had been punched into a panda eye, but he was still standing. The other two had already been punched down and were receiving treatment. Wei Qing's words were directly disliked back by Lin Jingxian. Examinations can be given, but the insects won't give you time for a second adjustment to recover. Durability and battles of attrition are also the top priority of the combat assessment content. Hearing Lin Jingxuan's words, Wei Qing obediently shut up. In terms of arguing, ten of him couldn't beat one Lin Jingxian. Let's go, let's go meet this little guy. I'll go drag him back to the first district now. Wait, you guys, look. Everyone's movement suddenly stopped, and at Lin Jingxuan's reminder, they looked up at the screen. Han Zhan had gone through nine battles, especially the high-intensity battles and the latter ones, causing both him and Xia Yue to experience tremendous physical exertion. Student Han Zhan, do you still want to continue with the Difficulty 10 challenge? The examiner opened his mouth to inquire. Difficulty 10 serves as the final level of this battle challenge, and it will be a true third-ranked alien beast. You don't have to kill to defeat it, the examination only requires you to hold on and survive in its hands for three minutes. He revealed this information to Han Zhan in advance, and also saw that Han Zhan state at this point, might have already reached its limit, and kindly reminded him. Allow me to slow down. Han Zhan gasped for air and barely managed to stand still, saying. Combat examinations are all conducted continuously, and each examination can't be separated by more than five minutes according to the regulations. You. Give me time for one song. After Han Zhan finished speaking, he directly sat on the ground with his legs crossed. The Fushi Zither was placed back flat on his lap, and he held his breath to regulate his breathing before raising his hand and snapping the strings. The sound of the Zither rose again. This time, there was no Qin Shi blade, nor was there any increase in the dragon's roar. The sound of the Qin was a gurgling brook, beads of jade were clear and crisp, and it ding-tonged. As the Fushi Zither was played, behind Han Zhan, a cyclone that was almost as tall as him began to rotate crazily. When spirit contractors and deeded spirits fought, they all needed to consume spiritual energy, which existed in the air and would be slowly drawn upon to recover. But now, all the spiritual energy around Han Zhan's body was crazily swept into that vortex, even forming a tens of meters of spiritual energy vacuum. Han Zhan and Xia Yue's spiritual energy was recovering at an unimaginable speed. The third of the Fushi Zither compositions, clearing the heart. Crap there's a hang? It can still be played like this? Not loaded is it? Able to attack and destroy, aiding and strengthening, and recovering, and healing? What else wouldn't it be? This is a full talent spirit. A heaven-defying spirit, terrifying as it is. The general command room, which had already settled down, exploded for the second time. The head of the fifth region directly threw both Yichio and Shinjichi to the side without curing them. Today, this young man called Han War, he must come with me to the fifth district. Must. Old Lu Yu also come to snatch people from me? Wei Qing's terrifying aura reappeared, and across from him, Lu Jingchun was not moved at all. You few reckless people, every day you have to drag a spirit contractor to the battlefield. Don't you guys know that this spirit contractor talent of his, if placed in the rear, just how useful can he be? A group recovery type means that can draw spiritual energy and heal injuries, what does that mean? It means that as long as he is cultivated, the mortality rate of our combat spirit contractors will drop by at least 30%. It's 30%. You guys actually want him to go into battle to die? Lu Jingxuan's words disliked them to the point of being speechless, and from a strategic level, what he said seemed completely fine. It's better to leave it to the teacher to decide. Lin Jingxian opened his mouth to round off the conversation. There was only one Han warrior, and with every district grabbing for him, it was impossible to really split him up and use him. 
Exactly where was more suitable, in the entire general command room, only the old man sitting at the front was qualified to decide. The eight war zones of Grand Xia have made great achievements since their inception. The first war zone has won thousands of miles, the second war zone has strategized, the third war zone has opened up new territories, the fourth war zone has explored mysteries and sought the truth, the fifth war zone has saved lives and helped the wounded, the sixth war zone has guarded dangerous passes, the seventh war zone has traveled across oceans, and the eighth war zone has remained hidden behind the scenes. These eight war zones are the pillars of Dasha, holding up heaven and earth for the people of Dasha. In the history of Dixia, the number 9 is the pole, regarding the formation of the ninth war zone, I have had ideas from time to time, but I have never been able to actually take the first step. The old man's few sentences caused the people in charge of the eight war zones to have their pupils shaken. There really will be a ninth war zone? Teacher, could it be that you're planning to take in another student? Is he, indeed, competent? In the face of these questions, the old man merely waved his hand, let's see again, aren't there still two levels left to pass now? Battle space, examination difficulty 10. Han Zhan, who had been resurrected with full blood, was staring at the opposite side with a grave expression. There, the terrifying aura belonging to a third-order foreign beast came in a mountainous line. Third-ranked foreign beast, the Red Flame Beast. As a terrifying insect race that was more than three meters tall, it looked more like a primitive dinosaur with a blazing flame burning all over its body. When the Red Flame Beast appeared, the most an ordinary spirit contractor should do was to evacuate, contact the officials, and request for reinforcements. Above the third rank, the strength of the beast geometrically increased, and other than well-trained combat spirit contractors, ordinary people were simply unable to deal with it. The red flame beast opened its bloody mouth and spewed flames towards Han Zhan, who was not far in front of it. Wherever the scorching waves of flame went, everything was burnt to a crisp, and the temperature in the air skyrocketed. The red flame beast missed with a single blow, and its body flames doubled in vigor, burning the battle space into gusts of distortion, almost ready to collapse. The requirement for difficulty 10 was to survive its attacks for more than three minutes. This was difficult for Han Zhan, whose body had been strengthened, but not impossible to succeed. However, when Han Zhan looked at the huge thing in front of him, the arrogant red flame beast wreaked havoc, destroying the battle space inch by inch, just like the bugs were doing to humans. He suddenly stopped. Could it be that, as a human, one could only run away all the time, surviving in the cracks like this? Why isn't he hiding anymore? Crazy, run. What are you waiting for if you don't run? You can't possibly defeat it. Hurry up and dodge, stupid. What are you doing? Han Zhan listened to the cries of the onlookers. He didn't answer, but only asked in his heart, Yu Wei, are you ready? Aha! Xia Yue's firm voice resounded in his heart. No matter what decision you make, I will support you unconditionally. Fine, let's do it then. There was a fire in Han Zhan's heart. My name is Han Zhan, and I'm a spirit contractor. I came here for more than just staying alive. Kill. Han Zhan's words were not only spoken to himself. All the spirit fellowship masters on the scene, all the viewers who were watching through the broadcast, and the people in charge of the various regions sitting in the general command room, they had all heard the words. Everyone had a different demeanor. Some were baffled, some were indifferent, some were deafened, and some were warlike. But Han War was Han War, and there was just this stubborn streak in him. Practicing martial arts first raised three evil chi, now this evil chi in the chest, also was not spit out. Han Zhan's hand once again pressed on top of the strings of the Fushi Zither. At this time, outside the battle space, a piece of white paper was blown off for no apparent reason and floated to the ground. The leaves on a tree were blown to rustle and sway. A female student's short skirt was blown up, causing gusts of screams. More and more abnormalities appeared. It was all wind. It was many, many winds invisible to the naked eye, which were summoned by some kind of call and converged from all directions. They rose up for no reason, appeared out of nowhere, and were pervasive, all of them drilling into the battle space. Inside, they formed a tornado that carried out heaven and earth. It just happened to encompass the entire red flame beast. A little bit of vast chi, a thousand miles of quick wind. Han Zhan's spiritual energy surged outward like a flood leaking out of a dike, and this wasn't a zither song that could be played at the first rank. But right now, he couldn't care less about that. Pardon. Han Zhan's eyes, ears, mouth, and nose, coincidentally oozed blood, which dripped down onto the strings of the zither. The dragon scroll that had originally converged into a dragon scroll quickly rotated around the red flame beast, and very quickly, the flames that wrapped around its entire body were swept away and sucked up. The bare red flame beast seemed like a chicken that had been plucked, somewhat comical. No one had the heart to laugh. Because they saw that Han Zhan's right hand, which was raised high, pressed heavily on the strings of the zither, and the fushi zither seemed to emit an almost mournful zither sound due to the depletion of its spiritual energy. Immediately afterward, the mass of wild wind that was about to go out of control drilled into the red flame beast's body as much as it could. Click. A crisp cracking sound rang out, and a pale green light scar appeared on the red flame beast's shell, and it spread out all at once, cracking more and more, like a piece of broken porcelain. In the next second, with a boom, the originally tall third-ranked red flame beast went up in smoke amidst an explosion. He did it. He had won. 
The crowd that saw this scene had become completely numb, killing a first order black downer bug in seconds, they were able to accept it, defeating a second order foreign beast, they could agree with it, but this was a third order red inferno beast. Could it be any more outrageous? It was too strong without any boundaries. At this moment, everyone remembered the name Han Zhan, as well as his self-introduction that seemed like a declaration just now. My name is Han Zhan, I'm a spirit contractor. I didn't come here just to stay alive. Clap. I don't know who was the first to applaud, only to see more and more applause ringing out, densely packed applause resounding throughout the entire examination site. This applause was for Han Zhan, and for all of humanity. Wang Lumao and Xiao Mei, who were wrapped up in the crowd, were somewhat embarrassed at this time. If they applauded, they had the feeling that they were slapping themselves, if they didn't applaud, they had the feeling that they were going to be slapped by the people next to them in the next second. Wang Lumao's teeth were about to be clenched as he looked at Han Zhan, who had made a splash in the battle space. Obviously these glories, these halos, could have all been his own, and as a result, he was intercepted halfway by Han Zhan, who had killed his way out. Xiao Mei's face was also ugly, she had worked so hard yesterday, and those words that Zhao Wu had sworn to guarantee had all become a joke in the present. Han War, Combat Examination, Difficulty 10, Pass. Han War, Healing Examination, Difficulty 10, Pass. Announcing the passing of two assessments at once was considered a special care given by the officials to Han Zhan, and of course, he deserved it. When they heard the examiner's announcement, even though the crowd had already been numbed by the shock, they were still inevitably shaken once more. This is something that no one has ever done before or since, right? Passing the double examination difficulty 10, there is no second person who can break this record. I'm more concerned about where the officials will send him, such a genius level seedling, I'm afraid he'll be snatched head to head. Whether it will be snatched up or not, Han Zhan didn't know, he only knew that he had just heard the announcement that the examination had passed, and the scene of the battle space in front of his eyes changed abruptly, turning into a pure white space. A man wearing black framed glasses stood not far across from himself. Faster Wind, a very good name. My name is Lin Jingxian, head of the second war zone. Congratulations, and welcome to the third examination space. Lin Jingxian looked at Han Zhan without a smile and spoke. At the same time, one could only see a piece of paper glowing with a faint golden light float down from above Han Zhan's head before hovering right in front of him. There were only three questions on the paper. The first question, what would you do if you and the ten spirit contractors on your team were suddenly attacked by a hundred cockroach nesting insects in the countryside? Cockroach nesting bugs were first order alien bugs, and with ten spirit fellowship masters, it was possible to crush this insect force if the battle was distributed properly. Han strategized and gave his answer once he thought about it. Let the remaining nine spirit contractors hold on to defend against it, and leave alone to go to the nearest large city. This answer of yours surprises me a little. When Lin Jingxian heard Han Zhan's answer, he didn't say right or wrong at first, but instead asked a rhetorical question, why did you choose to do this? The reason is simple. When you see one cockroach, there may already be a hundred cockroaches in your home. Therefore, when a hundred cockroach nesting insects appear, it is highly likely that it is only the vanguard, and the true number of insects in the swarm has long exceeded ten million, or even hundreds of millions. Letting the other nine hold on is to keep the bugs from realizing that I've already reacted, and going to the nearest large city is to warn and reinforce to deal with this large-scale insect plague. Han Zhan's thoughts were clear, Lin Jingxian held his glasses and nodded. Second question, in your opinion, the insect race and the humans, who will gain the ultimate victory? I think that the insect race will ultimately win, but humans will not fail. An interesting answer. Lin Jingxian continued to ask. Third question, after you became a spirit contractor, for what purpose? For what? When he heard this, in Han Zhan's mind, he couldn't help but conjure up those images he had once seen. He said from the bottom of his heart, I became a spirit contractor in order for the bugs to stop ravaging my home, in order for the people to be able to live and work in peace and happiness, and in order to be able to see smiles on everyone's faces. It's in order to, let the flag of the Grand Xia be planted all over all the plundered territories. It is incumbent upon my generation to recast the glory of the Grand Xia. Good, well said. In the distance, someone stroked his palm and walked over. It was a hale and hearty old man, who had a head of white hair, but his body was robust and his eyes were shining. Kid, are you willing to worship me as your teacher? When a mysterious old man appeared in a mysterious space and asked if you were willing to worship him as a teacher, how do you choose? Of course it's to say yes to him. Han Zhan wasn't stupid, Lin Jingxian was the head of the second war zone, an old man who could appear here must be at least one level higher than him. Without saying a word, he knelt on the ground and performed a teacher worshipping salute. Teacher, Han Zhan said respectfully. His dry and crisp appearance caused the two people on the opposite side to first stare blankly, before Lin Jingxian revealed a rather emotional smile. Han Zhan, no, I should address you as junior teacher now, you're a smart person. Teacher's surname is Li, his name is Shutong, the meaning of a different path. With Lin Jingxuan's introduction, Han Zhan then looked at Li Shutong who was standing in front of him, and in the few memories he had of this world, there was actually a memory of this name. Li Shutong, the Li family. The most powerful family in the entire Grand Xia. 
A hundred years ago, the three insect emperors joined forces, wanting to overthrow Dasha, even broke the twelve lines of defense, the insect army is like a bamboo, Dasha life and death on the line. At that time, it was the Li family that came forward. A person named Li Shutong, to save the great summer will fall, alone into the dragon pool, one against three killed three big bug emperor, the insect race routed. It was hard to connect that fierce man of divine might descending into the world with the kindly faced old man in front of him. In Han Zhan's memories, the Li family, after becoming the number one family in Dasha, founded the Li Academy to screen genius seeds from the world for cultivation, establishing a hundred years of roots for Dasya. If Han Zhan said those words before, they were still just a slogan to himself. Then for Li Shutong, he was completely worthy of the words and deserved the honor. Han War's side was still rambling, but Li Shutong had already helped him up with a big smile. You're very good. More to my liking than all of them. As Lin Jingxian watched this scene, the adjective intergenerational kin inexplicably surfaced in his mind. Han Zhan and Li Shutong were more than a hundred years apart, and it was indeed as if they were separated by a generation. While Li Shutong was talking, he touched something from his pocket and handed it over to Han Zhan. Han Zhan looked down and saw that it was a pitch black colored ring, polished to a very jade like finish, with an ice cold touch. On the ring's inner ring, the word 9 was engraved. This ring was built with the Ninth Order Bug Emperor skeleton core that I killed back then, a total of 9 pieces were built, and it contains the Sumeru space, which can store things, and is considered a small plaything. When he heard Li Shutong's words, Lin Jingxian, whose face didn't change even when Tarzan collapsed in front of him, couldn't help but twitch the corners of his mouth. Master Worship Gift Han Zhan looked at the inconspicuous pitch black ring in his hand in surprise, not realizing that it was actually crafted from the skeletal core of a ninth ranked insect emperor. This kind of handiwork could only be done by Li Shutong himself. Li Shutong continued, this ring is tainted with the ninth order bug emperor's aura, and has a not insignificant deterrent effect when you face the lower order bug race. But when facing those more powerful bug races, they may show a stronger desire to attack. If you're worried, you don't have to wear it normally. Han Zhan sniffed and wore it on his hand without saying a word. Classic rebellion solid. Ah, very good, very good. Li Shutong patted Han Zhan's shoulder again and laughed. This is only right, look at these goons of theirs, gave them the ring, one by one, they don't dare to wear it, all goons. Elderly said, glaring at Lin Jingxian. Lin Jingxuan's heart was bitter, but he didn't say anything. Alright, not much to say, you and that little girl just finished the test, your energy should be expended quite a bit. Let's go, I'm happy today, I'll treat you guys to hot pot, and on the way, I'll go meet your senior brothers. Deep Blue City's hot pot was mainly spicy. Don't ask why there was still such a thing as hot pot in the end of the insect plague. Even though the insect race was infested, life always went on. It was just that there were many more unheard of and strange meats within the types of hot pot ingredients. What Li Shutan took them to eat was a nine compartment hot pot. A large private room, inside a circle, filled with people. Han Zhan and Xia Yue were a bit restrained, like a newlywed couple, and were pulled to sit next to Li Shutong. Xia Yue's cheeks were flushed, like she had been drinking wine and was a bit flushed. The Nine Palace hot pot was steaming, the red oil pot was gurgling inside, and the aroma was boiling. The heads of several regions were all looking right at Han Zhan and the others, revealing satisfied eyes. Junior brother, I'm Wei Qing, the head of the first war zone. In the future, if you're free, you can come to our war zone to have some fun. First war zone, play around? Listening to these two words lightly uttered by Wei Qing, a question mark popped up in Han Zhan's heart. However, he still pulled Xia Yue, who was wandering off to the side, to stand up and lift the teacup in his hand. Eldest senior brother. Ah, good, on the road. Wei Qing smiled and nodded, turning his head and taking out a pair of crimson gloves. This is considered my meeting gift to you. When you follow your teacher in the future, you will inevitably have to practice boxing, I've used this pair of gloves for a long time, and what is stained on it, is the blood of the insect race. I won't say more, the beauty of it, you take it and feel it yourself. Wei Qing tossed the gloves over, and the latter took them. As soon as he put it in his hand, Han Zhan felt a rushing aura that gave him the creeps. It was as if he saw a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood piled up by countless insect corpses. How many insect races had Wei Qing killed with these gloves? Han Zhan retrieved the gloves back into his Sumeru space, and only then did that baleful aura ease slightly. At this time, Lin Jingxian stood up for the second time. Lin Jingxian, head of the second battle zone. We've already met once before. Lin Jingxian was one of those unsmiling, stereotypical and serious people, and after he finished speaking, he also took out the meeting gift he had prepared. This is a detailed explanation of the bug race that I have organized and summarized myself since I became a spirit contractor. Inside is research on bug race types, construction, weaknesses, population characteristics, material values, and so on. It basically encompasses more than 90% of the bug race species, you can take a look at it more in your spare time. Thank you, second senior brother. Han Zhan reached out and accepted the meet and greet gift. Then there was the head of the third war zone, third senior brother Yi Chou, whose meet and greet gift was a set of crimson battle robes with amazing defense. 
The head of the fourth war zone, fourth senior brother Shinjichi, sent a pair of concentric jade pendants found in the ruins, which were handed over to Han Zhan and Xiao Yue respectively. The person in charge of the fifth war zone, fifth senior brother Lu Jingchun, sent a gift pack of herbs that boosted the realm to aid in spiritual energy absorption. Old Six is guarding at the border and can't get away, so you should be able to meet him sometime in the future. Old Seven is still overseas, so I won't be able to see him for a short time. As for Old Eight, Old Eight come out. As Li Shudong shouted loudly, a human figure gradually manifested from transparency, but it was still cloudy and foggy, and could not be seen clearly. The Eighth War Zone, also the most mysterious war zone, the person in charge didn't have a name, only a code name, Nun. The Eighth Brother, Nun, gave Han Zhan a meeting gift of a note with a phone number recorded on it. When in danger, dial this number. Remember, only once. Han War listened to the fuzzy neutral voice that he couldn't even distinguish between male and female genders, and he nodded discreetly, putting the note away. By this point, Li Shudon and the senior brothers that he could see face to face had all met. Han Zhan also officially joined them, becoming Li Shutong's ninth disciple. Just as they were about to kick off and start eating the hot pot, a discordant, snarky voice suddenly sounded outside the door. Yo, coming out to eat hot pot behind our backs, you're not afraid of retribution either. Hearing this voice, Xia Yue's face changed. As the snarky voice rang out, a middle-aged woman with a bloated figure walked in with a little girl with great fanfare. Auntie. Xia Yue hurriedly stood up. The woman she called Auntie, however, waved her hand. Shut up. Fine, Xia Yue, you white-eyed wolf, you usually eat from my house and use my house, but in the end, after hearing that you're a little bit successful, you're avoiding us to come out and eat good food, right? No, you. I would I, I tell you Xia Yue, your cheap mom and dad died early, it is our heart good to take in you, if not us, you have long starved to death. What are you waiting for? Hurry to get me two seats out ah? Can't you see that your sister is still waiting to eat hot pot? This series of words were like popping sesame seeds. Even the heads of the various regions present didn't react. The scene was quiet. What are you looking at? You must all be relatives of the man's family. What? You want to trick our family you way with one meal? Let me tell you, no way. Your name is Han War, right? You're on fire now. But you have to know that you can have today, all because of our Yowei's awakened deed spirit, you. Enough. Xia Yue, who had always given off a soft and sticky temper, suddenly interrupted angrily. It was fine to talk about her, but to talk about Han Zhan, absolutely not. Xia Yue clenched her fists and stared furiously at her aunt, Xia Yin, like an angry little doe. You dare to yell at me? Xia Yue you can ah, your wings are hardened. You think you're lawless after passing that laborious test, right? Let me tell you, Nyo Nyo her uncle is the head of the 4th district, if you dare to yell at me, do you believe I'll make it impossible for you to mix within the spirit contractors? As soon as her words fell, the gazes of everyone here coincidentally landed on Shinjichi. No, I didn't. Before Shinjichi could finish his words, he was directly interrupted by Xia Yin. What's the matter with you? Who are you? Xia Yin said and paused. And then she dropped her gaze on Li Shudong, who hadn't opened his mouth and was sitting in the main seat. She sneered smugly. You're Han War's grandfather, aren't you, old thing? Hearing this last title, all the heads of the various regions couldn't help but twitch their mouths and gulp. This was truly a ruthless person nah. The three great insect emperors didn't even dare to shout like this, but as a result, she shouted, a real fierce warrior. I'll leave my words here today, Xia Yue has awakened her contractual spirit, and although she signed a contract with your family, Han Zhan, it hasn't gone through our consent yet. The three golds, the dowry, the house, the car, the things that should be there, none of them should be missing. Also, for so many years, what Xia Yue ate and lived in our house, all of it has to be counted as money, roughly, about 3 million, this money you guys have to pay as well. Xia Yan said while her eyes glared, with an appearance of wanting to eat someone. I'll tell you guys. There are people above my family. Nyo Nyo her uncle is from the 4th war zone, her uncle is from the 3rd war zone, and there's a cousin that's from the 5th war zone. If you dare to mess with me, you'll have to think for yourselves. Xia Yan said this openly. In order to deter such a large family, she had already used her few brain capacities to try her best to report all the connections of her own mother's family. After she finished, she sat down boldly. It was only fitting that she should be rich today. If it were normal, she wouldn't care about that wild girl at all, rewarding her with a meal every day, or for the sake of her parents entrusting all their assets to her before they died. But today, Nyo Nyo had been clamoring to watch TV, and had no choice but to turn on the TV, just in time to see the spirit contractor examination live broadcast. Xia Yan's mind immediately came alive. This can be all money ah, Xia Yue all of a sudden from the dead parents of the wild girl, shifted into a money tree. If you guys can't come up with this money, I'll immediately let her break the contract with Han Zhan. Wouldn't it be nice to find another golden son-in-law? She finally shut up. But what should have been said that shouldn't have been said was pretty much finished. Li Shudong put down his chopsticks, his lips pursing slightly. What are you still waiting for? People are calling me an old thing. Why don't you hurry up and call? As soon as his words fell, Yi Chiu from the third war zone, Shinjichi from the fourth war zone, and Lu Jingchun from the fifth war zone, 
all hurriedly pull out their cell phones, their faces turning blue. Marred, why was it their own war zone that had this mess? In their hearts, this thought flashed by unanimously. Only then did Li Shuan look at Xia Yan, who was sitting directly across from him, crossing her legs. You said you have someone above you, but there's no one above me anymore. Xia Yan hadn't yet reacted to what Li Shuan meant when he said this, when suddenly her cell phone rang. She immediately answered the phone as if she had changed her face and answered it with a spring in her step. Hello? Child her uncle ah, why are you free to call? Today. Labor fight Nima's ah. You dead bitch, you are trying to kill our family aren't you? I'm telling you, from now on, our two families are severed. The smile on Xia Yan's face froze there. Soon, the second call came back. Uncle Nyo Nyo, you. Xia Yan you seek death yourself, don't drag us into this, the phone is blacked out, no more dealings in the future. One last reminder, don't mess with Han Zhan and Xia Yue, immediately followed by the third call. Xiao Jiang. Xia Yin you old thing, don't let me see you in the future, once I see you, I'll beat you up, get lost. Da da da. The three phone calls in a row confused the originally victorious Xia Yin. You, you guys. Xia Yan suddenly turned white and directly laid down on the ground before bursting into tears. Everyone, come and see, the spirit contractor Han Zhan, he's teaming up with his family to bully us ordinary people. Their family is connected to the heavens, we ordinary people can't fight, they're forcing me to die. Splashing, rolling, and playing the scoundrel. The three major routines were all used for her. But Xia Yan flailed on the ground for half a day, and didn't see a single onlooker come over. Alright, let's hurry up and end the farce. The dishes in the hot pot are already hot, you can start eating. Li Shutong waved his hand. Lin Jingxian nodded, and then in the next second, the two of them, mother and daughter Xia Yan, were teleported by him 10,000 meters away. Teacher. I'm sorry. Xia Yue stood there, guiltily putting her head down, because Xia Yan was her aunt, and the initial point of this farce was on herself. Li Shutong clipped a chopstick of beef and put it into her bowl, while relieving her. Yu Wei Ah, this matter is not your fault. You don't have your parents anymore, but you still have Han War, these senior brothers, and me now. In the future, we, will all be your family. It's just as well, you guys will be studying under me for a while afterward, so that aunt's house of yours, don't go and stay there anymore. Come, eat the food. There's something to be said about eating this nine palace hot pot. Li Shutong opened his mouth while shabu shabuing the meat. The mood was not affected in the slightest by the little episode just now. The centermost compartment is for shabu shabu, shabu shabu, and eat. The other four large square compartments are boiled vegetables, the food needs to be boiled for a while, but not for too long. The four small compartments by the corners are simmered dishes, suitable for long cooking. It was obvious that Li Shutong was very knowledgeable about the nine compartments hot pot culture. Han Zhan stared thoughtfully at the nine cell hot pot in front of him and suddenly asked, Teacher, what about me? Do I belong to Shabu Shabu, boiled, or simmered? Han Zhan was no fool. The eight students who followed Li Shutong were now being divided into the eight war zones. Now that he himself had become that ninth student, to say that there wasn't half a meaning to it, he himself wouldn't believe it. Hearing Han War take the initiative to ask a question, Li Shutong laughed out loud. You? I don't know. Everyone has a path that belongs to everyone, and one's own path should be chosen by oneself. No one can be sure of a person's future, including me, can't. One's own path. Han Zhan murmured and repeated, pondering. Crap, where's the tripe I cooked? Where's my beef? Li Shutong asked in exasperation as he stared at the empty nine-cell grid. Xia Yue somewhat sheepishly placed her bowl in front of Han Zhan, then kept her eyes and nose in a good sitting position. Han Zhan's heart thumped as he looked at the extra tripe and beef that had suddenly appeared in his bowl. He covered the bowl with his hand without a trace and pretended to look like he was meditating with his head propped up. At this time, Han Zhan noticed that several other senior brothers were also in the same position as him, seemingly enlightened as they covered their bowls and propped up their heads. Han Zhan, honoring the master. Eldest senior brother, why didn't your covenant spirits, uh, sister-in-laws, show up with you? In order to ease the embarrassment, Han Zhan changed the topic and said. In fact, this question was also something he had been very curious about and wanted to inquire about from the very beginning. Whether it was Li Shutong or the eight senior brothers of the eight war zones, none of them had a deity spirit by their side. However, judging from the hands that second senior brother Lin Jingxian had just shown, it didn't seem ordinary. How had this been done? Regarding this question, let me answer you. Lin Jingxian took over the conversation, and without moving, he pressed the bowl in his hand harder. Just now, when he clamped the dishes, he had clamped the most, and it was a bit close to being full out. He could only use the topic to conceal his other hand movements. You too, you shouldn't have shared a room yet. Once Lin Jingxian said this, Han Zhan hadn't had much of a reaction yet, Xia Yue was already so shy that her little face was red, and just as she was tense and flustered, a large warm hand wrapped around her hand. Han Zhan is not moving on the surface, but behind the scenes, he is doing all these small actions. Xia Yue's heart was sweet, and her original nervousness and panic also disappeared without a trace. After cohabitation, the spirit contractor will be able to replicate the ability of the contracted spirit to a certain extent. 
Lin Jingxian pretended not to see it and continued, but the ability to replicate is always inferior to the deed spirit's own exertion, and will be weakened. As for how much it is diminished, it depends on how well the spirit deed master and the deed spirit are attuned to each other. Since it's all said and done, I'll say a few more words. The reason why our fitting spirits didn't come with us is because they all have more important things to do. There are two types of battle forms for the deeded spirits, one is materialized and the other is humanized. The physical form of the deeded spirits is the form they take when they fight together with a spirit contractor. Humanization, on the other hand, is the form they manifest when they fight alone. At this moment, they are all maintaining their humanized forms and are holding their positions for us, which is the fundamental reason why we are able to take time out of our busy schedules to gather here. If it weren't for them, do you think that with our statuses, we could really pull ourselves away? Lin Jingxuan's words were finally the solution to the doubts that had been plaguing Han Zhang's heart. Spirit contractors and contracted spirits could fight together as one, or they could fight individually. No wonder eldest senior brother had just given himself a pair of gloves straight away, the increase in a spirit fellow's own combat power had a huge impact on the battlefield. As for things like replica spirit fitting abilities, it's just a matter of water to water, let it be. Speaking of which, I also have a question I want to ask you. Lin Jingxian paused, what are the abilities of your SSS ranked talent divine resurrection, and is she really just an E-ranked deed spirit? Lin Jingxian wasn't the only one. Everyone else had also put down the chopsticks in their hands, having 12 points of curiosity about Han Zhan's talent as well as Xia Yue's. As they were all senior brothers, and moreover, they were also big brothers far stronger than themselves, Han Zhan didn't have anything to hide and directly told them about his and Xia Yue's talents. In fact, Han Zhan also had another purpose in telling them, which was to borrow the wider connections of these senior brothers to help himself keep an eye out for the whereabouts of other ancient divine weapons. After hearing this, even these warzone leaders, who had seen all sorts of great storms, each one of them sucked in a breath of cool air. Han Zhan's talent was simply too heaven-defying. With this kind of talent, it was simply unimaginable how high the future would be if he grew up. Even their teacher, Li Shudong, was far from being able to match it. Your talent, don't tell anyone but us. Li Shudong said, and then looked at Lin Jingxian, Jingxian, use the connections of the second war region on your side, and set all their information as top secret. See, this is the benefit of having someone to cover you. Han Zhang thought with a sigh in his heart. Lao Jio. With your talent, even though you're able to contract a deed spirit without any upper limit, I hope you can restrain yourself. In the end times of the insect plague, it's all the more important for us to guard our hearts. When Li Shudong said this, he was truly teaching Han Zhan as if he were his own child, he didn't want Han Zhan to act recklessly with his terrifying talent and end up heading towards an uncontrollable future. After Han Zhan listened carefully, he nodded. Teacher, I understand. I won't contract an ordinary contracted spirit. Because of my natural characteristics, if I encounter a contracted spirit that possesses divinity, I won't miss it. In Han Zhan's memories of his previous life, there were nine of the top ten divine weapons of the ancient times, in addition to the Fushi Zither. I didn't know how many I would eventually be able to contract. Well, it's good that you can think like this. Alright, the few of you have pretty much eaten, haven't you? After this meal, go back to your respective places. Hearing Li Shutong's words, Wei Qinglin Jingxian and the rest of this party, all stood up and respectfully bowed to Li Shutong to say goodbye. Teacher, this year, De Xia's frontal battlefield with the insect race has seen successive victories. It has already won 19 games in a row, and morale is high. Teacher, a total of 6 lost territories have been recovered this year, expanding the total area of Great Xia by 20%. Teacher, progress has also been made this year regarding the causes and speculations of the insect race outbreak. Teacher, not talking about official business while eating hot pot just now, the heads of the various regions chose to report the results one by one with their own teachers before they left. Teacher, there are still three months left before the year ends, so let's all get together again in Deep Blue City at that time. Good, good, good. Listening to this inspiring news, Li Shutong's smile grew even wider. After finishing the hot pot, it was already 9 o'clock in the evening. The heads of the various regions rushed back in the night and did not stay in Deep Blue City any longer. The only ones left behind were Li Shutong, and the disciples he had just taken in, Han Zhuan and Xia Yue. Teacher, you have a room in Deep Blue City as well? On the road, Han Zhuan asked with some surprise. Deep Blue City wasn't a big core city, it was just an ordinary seaside city, and an existence of Li Shutong's level shouldn't have chosen to settle in such a place. Hearing Han Zhan's words, Li Shutong was silent for a moment. Deep Blue City is my wife's hometown. Li Shudong uttered an answer that Han Zhan hadn't expected. Then why hasn't she gone back to her hometown with you to check it out, senior mother? It's also the same as senior brother and their wives, it's, she died in battle. Li Shudong took two steps forward alone, the moonlight stretching his shadow to a long length. Han Zhan and Xia Yue both looked stunned and looked at each other. The world only knows that Li Shudong saved the entire Grand Xia by saving the day and was the hero who killed the three great insect emperors. But who remembers her name? If there was no her, there would be no Li Shudong. 
The atmosphere suddenly became a bit heavy, and just as Han Zhan and Xia Yue didn't know what to say anymore, the suddenly, Li Shudong, who was walking in front, turned around and called out to him. Han Zhan, teacher, I'm here. Be kind to Yue, and to the contracted spirits you'll contract with in the future. They're not just contracted spirits or tools for fighting, they're equally flesh and blood human beings, your other half. Perhaps because it was a soul that had crossed over, for Xia Yue, Han Zhan himself had never treated her as a fighting tool. But Li Shudong didn't know that. Although the creation of the law of spirit contracts had alleviated the insect plague, it had likewise subconsciously affected generations of people. As Han Zhan thought of this, he nodded with serious certainty. Teacher, so what's the name of the master's wife? I want to know her name, as long as there's one person who still remembers, she's not considered forgotten by the entire world. Li Shudong froze for a moment. Immediately, he was dumbfounded. You're really different from all of them, some of your words are very much to my taste, like finely crafted language that incites the amplification of a certain emotion. Teacher, the kind you're talking about actually has a specialized term called chicken soup, Han Zhan silently added in his heart. Her name is Ling Mei. Li Shudong raised his head and said, In that battle that went down in history, I killed one bug emperor while she fought to the death of two. If she were still alive, the honor of saving the Grand Xia, she would be more qualified than me. Li Shudong was somewhat reminiscing as he said this, reminiscing about the days when he and Ling Mei fought side by side. Don't worry, teacher. Han Zhan suddenly said aloud, interrupting his thoughts. Hmm. Li Shudong didn't understand what he meant. Teacher, I have a good idea, why don't you give me the honor of being the hero of the Grand Xia, so that you will have no regrets. Han Zhan's clear-cut brain circuits caused Xia Yue to almost fail to hold back her laughter. Li Shutong's face darkened, and the few moments of sadness that had been brewing with difficulty vanished. Brat, it's against you. I'll be the master today and teach you a few moves. Deep Blue City, a single villa that covered a huge area. This was where Li Shudong and Ling Mei used to live, but after Ling Mei's death, in order to avoid seeing things, Li Shudong hadn't lived back here for a long time. All the supporting facilities in the villa were there, and there was also a person responsible for cleaning it regularly. The night was already very late. Xia Yue went back to her room alone to rest, while Han Zhan and Li Shudong, on the other hand, went to the lawn outside the villa. There were two types of spirit contractor and deeded spirit cultivation, one was single cultivation and the other was dual cultivation. It was possible that by the time Han Zhan arrived, there would be one more kind in the future, called multi-cultivation, which was again an afterthought. At this time, Li Shudong had already changed into a set of practicing clothes, and he had also prepared a set for Han Zhan. I'm sure they've more or less revealed it to you during dinner. A hundred years ago, when Xiao Mei was still around, I was invincible as a spirit contractor. But after that battle, Xiao Mei died in battle, and as a spirit contractor, I lost my contracted spirit, and my battle power was greatly reduced. So, it was also from that time that I had an epiphany. Spirit contractor, you can't just rely on the contracted spirit. Self-cultivation, firstly, is to enhance one's strength, and secondly, one can also better protect one's deed spirit. This viewpoint of Li Shudong could be said to be not quite the same as the universal concept, and was not acceptable to most people. Nor was everyone like Li Shudong, able to stand at such a high level. Most people rely on deed spirits to fight, so the battle death rate of deed spirits far exceeds that of spirit contractors. And for spirit contractors who have lost their original deed spirit, all they need to do is contract a new one, that's what most people think. When Han War heard this, he frowned. He didn't like this kind of thinking. He also understood why Li Shudong had said earlier that he shouldn't use the deed spirit as a fighting tool. What I'm teaching you today is a set of boxing techniques, it's not original to me, it's something I acquired by chance inside a ruin when I was young. I've been comprehending it for a hundred years, but I was only able to practice it to 80% effectiveness, and of your senior brothers, your eldest senior brother Wei Ching, who has the best talent in martial arts, should be at 50% today. Don't feel any pressure to practice as much as you can. This kind of thing, martial Dao, more or less depends on a little bit of talent. Your talent as a spirit contractor is already heaven-defying enough, so you might not be outstanding in terms of martial arts talent, the heavens are always fair. Li Shudong had laid out so much, but instead, it made Han Zhan a little curious. Teacher, what is the name of this fist technique? Eight urgent needs. Saying so, he mouthed the fist technique while clenching both fists together and setting up a starting stance. As Li Shudong set up his stance, around his body, a faint white chi suddenly lingered, rising and rising like an exiled immortal. Han Zhan followed suit and opened his stance along with him. Eight urgent fist techniques, there are eight locks, each corresponding to eight hidden parts of the body. The small world of the human body, every time you unlock a lock, you will be able to temporarily gain more powerful strength. Once all eight locks are unlocked, it will surpass the limit. Li Shutong's narration caused Han Zhan's face to turn odd. Sure enough, he then heard Li Shutong speak again, the first lock of this eight urgent fist techniques is the opening urgent. Boom! As soon as Li Shutong's words fell, Wai Qi enveloped his entire body in an instant, and Li Shutong, who was originally just an old man in appearance, became terrifying in his aura again at this moment. 
Mastering the opening of the urgent need also means the official introduction of the eight urgent fist method. Back then Wei Qing spent almost half a year, woke up in a life and death sharpening, unlocking the opening of the urgent need, so what you have to do is to strengthen the physical exercise every day and strive for an early. Li Xutong's words hadn't finished. Suddenly, there was another roaring wave of air churning behind him. A layer of the same white chi enveloped Han Zhan. Teacher, is that so? Looking at Han Zhan, who was identical to himself, Li Shutong almost burst out a foul mouth. Spirit contractor SSS grade talent even, learning the eight urgent fists is also a second. You kid is open to it? How did you find the open urgent position? Li Shutong was truly shocked, even he himself didn't know the location of the open urgency, only able to rely on the feeling of the underworld, seeking breakthroughs in one battle after another. But Han Zhan hadn't fought at all, and had unlocked the first lock just by listening to himself dictate the eight urgent fists over and over again? Just. Found it by feeling? Han Zhan wasn't sure. He just relied on the ones he remembered from his previous life about the eight doors of transportation to think of the open urgent location as the brain area, and then he activated the eight urgent fists. And it turned out to be true? Unlocking the first lock, Han Zhan could clearly feel that his body was filled with brand new energy, and whether it was speed, reaction, or strength, there was a considerable increase. And Fuxican's dragon soaring exercise increase has the same effect. But now Han Zhan could completely superimpose the two, which was not a simple 1 plus 1 equals 2. Han Zhan tentatively guided the internal astral energy of the eight urgent fist techniques and began to impact the second position in his memory, that is, the Hue urgent fist technique. However, all of this astral energy went into the sea with no sound. He completely gave up. Cultivation, indeed, could not be achieved overnight. Teacher, how many locks can you already unlock now? Han Zhan asked with some curiosity. Six, and I have a vague feeling that it shouldn't take long until I unlock the seventh lock. Li Shutong replied. This achievement of his was originally remarkable, but in front of this disciple in front of him who had unlocked the first lock in seconds, it paled in comparison. As Li Shutong thought of this, he clenched his fists expressionlessly. In addition to unlocking the shackles to improve oneself, the eight urgent fist technique is also equally important, or else it is useless to have an empty force with nowhere to utilize it. Next, I will properly teach you the boxing skills honed between life and death by fighting the insect race. Li Shutong's words had just fallen. Without waiting for Han Zhan to speak, he had already thrown a punch. This punch was all powerful. Early morning. When Xia Yue woke up from her sleep, she heard loud noises coming from the lawn downstairs. Walking onto the balcony, Han Zhan was sweating, throwing punches, dodging, and moving around with a few wooden stakes. It looked like he hadn't slept all night. Poof. This stupid big straight man. Looking at her carefully made double bed, Xia Yue muttered. When she saw that Han Zhan's face was beaten like a pig's head, the original grumbling in her heart instantly got better. Teacher left in the latter part of the night and didn't stay here to sleep. Let's hurry and go eat breakfast, we still have to go to the graduation ceremony today. As a student of the Green Vine Academy, after completing the spirit contractor examination, one was considered to have officially graduated from the academy, and would then proceed to report to the various war zones to start a new journey. Although they had made a splash in the examination and were accepted as disciples by Li Shutong, Han Zhan and Xia Yue's life trajectory in Qingting Academy had yet to draw to a close. After having breakfast, they arrived at the Green Tree Academy in pairs. As soon as Han Zhan and Xia Yue appeared, they were pointed out by the surrounding students. From time to time, a snort of laughter was also emitted. Han Zhan and Xia Yue both had question marks on their faces. This scene was somewhat familiar. But it was precisely because it was familiar that it gave them a feeling of absurdity. Yesterday all over again? But hadn't they already proved themselves in the combat test, so why? Yo, isn't this the Han student who shown in the spirit contractor combat examination yesterday? In the distance, Wang Lumo and Xiao Mei walked companionably. When he saw Han Zhan, he couldn't hide the springtime smugness on his face. What was he pleased about? Someone soon solved Han Zhan's confusion. I've been sent to the Deep Blue City City Protector Organization to start as a bottom level member? Yes, Han Or, I know that this decision may be unacceptable to you, but it's a decision from above, and I've already tried to fight for you. Inside the principal's office, when Chen Spectrum told Han Zhuan the news, he sighed himself. Even he couldn't understand why the above would make this decision. That was an SSS ranked spirit contractor who had scored double perfect scores on both the combat test and the healing test. How could the officials send him to the city protector organization? Wasn't this a complete overkill? Although the city protector's power in the city wasn't small, it was after all a large rear organization. Compared to those frontline organizations, the major war zones, no matter from the growth, development and future achievements, they were completely small. No, Principal Chen, I accept this arrangement. Han Zhan shook his head and said. He finally realized why Wang Lumo was so dejected and why the other students were talking. They should have thought that they had embarrassed the official by slapping him in the face during the examination. That was why the official had personally come down and sent himself to the city protector organization. But Han Zhan understood that this was his teacher's intention. 
Going to a major war zone, no matter which war zone, no matter how you develop, you would only end up becoming a shadow of others. Is this what the teacher said, finding one's own path? Han War muttered to himself. Han Zhan's falling out of favor spread instantly throughout the entire Green Ivy Academy. It was not without the push and pull of Wang Lumo in Xiao Mei. Now everyone knew that Han Zhan had gone to the most exhausting and hardest working grassroots organization because he had offended the officials. Some people felt pity, some bloated, and some were not concerned. The happiest person in here was Wang Lumo, who was finally able to take a bite out of the anger that was completely overshadowed by Han Zhan yesterday. Han Zhan, I have long said that you are inferior to me. Even if you pass the highest difficulty test, so what? You're a dead end if you offend the officials. Ha 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 ha. Wang Lumo waited outside the principal's office specifically to be the first to taunt Han Zhan, wanting to see the ironic look of his anger. At this time, Han Zhan moved. He swung his fist and slammed it towards Wang Lumo's face. Oomph, getting annoyed. Arrogant, without a deeded spirit, what qualifications do you have to punch me? Xiaomei wasn't around, Wang Lumo didn't retreat when he saw Han Zhan make a move, and as he let out a cold snort, a layer of white mist condensed in front of him. Spirit deed talent, immortal spirit breath. Wang Lumo had already impatiently tossed around with Xiao Mei yesterday. It was just that this white mist was incredibly thin, and in Han Zhan's eyes, it was as brittle as paper. He slammed his fist over, while the open urgency in his brain area was released, and his power instantly exploded at this moment. Han Zhan's fist shattered the immortal spirit chi and smashed into Wang Lumo's face immediately afterward. The latter's entire body was punched and sent flying, and without even finishing a complete expletive, he fainted before his eyes went black. That's it? Chen Spectrum heard the commotion outside and hurriedly ran out. Upon seeing Han Zhan, who had withdrawn his fists, and Wang Lumo, who had fallen unconscious and was not awake, he shouldered Wang Lumo without saying a word and gave Han Zhan a wink. Hurry up and bring someone, student Wang Lumo has fainted due to kidney loss, someone bring him to the infirmary. Chen Spectrum shouted while walking quickly in the opposite direction of Han Zhan. Principal Chen is a good man. Looking at Chen Spectrum who was walking further and further away, Han Zhan lamented. Xia Yue nodded in deep agreement. I hope he lives a long life. After the two of them finished the graduation process of the Green Ivy Academy and received their recommendation letters, they then left the place to report to the City Protector Organization in Deep Blue City. The City Protector's organization was in the center of Deep Blue City, an extremely imposing high-rise. When Han Zhan and Xia Yue walked in, the reception center was empty. There was only a young man with a childish appearance who was hiding at the side and burying his head in a video game. Hello, I'm. Han Zhan walked up to the young man, and before he could finish saying what he came for, he was interrupted by the other party with an impatient wave of his hand. First, go to the entrance and get a number, then wait in line for your number to be called. Han Zhan froze for a moment, he still patiently explained again, I'm not here to seek help, I'm here to apply for induction. Induction? The young man playing video games stopped and glanced at Han Zhan and Xiao Yue with some surprise. He made a couple of O's as if he had somewhat come to a realization and pointed a finger at them. Oh oh, it's you guys, Vice Teen John aimed to death. Oh no, the ones to take special care of, Deep Blue City's only SSS-ranked gifted spirit contractor. The young man who was self-conscious that he had spoken out of turn covered his mouth with his left hand and stretched out his right hand to shake hands with Han Zhan's initiative. Hello, my name is Xiao Bei. Your files have been entered, you are assigned to squad number 0527, you can report there directly. Xiao Bei said, and gave Han Zhan a detailed explanation of the exact location of the numbered 0527 squad. Congratulations, Team Han, you are now the official captain of squad 0527. Regarding the captain's relevant duties, powers, and appointments, there are specific descriptions inside this pamphlet, so you can take a look. From now on, you'll be a colleague, so please take care of me. Those who could be in charge of reception in the reception center were all human elites. Xiao Bei's attitude instantly reversed 360 degrees. As the saying goes, reaching out is not a good idea, so Han Zhan was not in a position to say anything more. After receiving the so-called captain's manual, Han Zhan flipped through it and roughly understood the organizational structure of the protectorate. Within the city protector organization, each city had a first squad that was responsible for overseeing all other city protectors. The other protectors were numbered according to their jurisdiction and belonged to different squads. The 0527 squad that Han Zhan was in was mainly responsible for the area of Shisha Road in Dark Blue City. Fortunately, it wasn't too far from the headquarters. After walking for another 10 minutes, Han Zhan and Xia Yue arrived at Shisha Road. It was hard to find the 0527 squad's office, but when they pushed the door and walked in, they were greeted by a strong odor of alcohol. The floor was littered with spilled bottles, some of which were already covered in dust, and some of which still had wine stains on their mouths, obviously having just been thrown away not long ago. The room full of wine bottles gave Han Zhan and Xia Yue the feeling that they had nowhere to put their feet. Walking in, Han Zhan saw a middle-aged man with disheveled hair and a stubbled face drunk on the ground. He was cradling the still half-empty bottle of wine in his arms and snoring drunkenly. It was almost 10 o'clock in the morning outside, and there was still no sign of waking up at all. 
Han Zhan looked at the drunk lying on the ground, and he frowned. It seemed that Zhao Wu had no good intentions in arranging for himself to come to the squad numbered 0527, huh? Just as he was about to wake up the drunkard, there was a sudden clanging sound from the curtains at the door. A woman with high heels and thick makeup wearing revealing clothes walked in from outside. You guys are? This woman dressed as a dancer glanced at Han Zhan and Xia Yue with some surprise. Squad 0527, the new captain, Han Zhan. Han Zhan said, pulling out the documents that proved his identity from his dossier bag. Seeing the documents, the dancer's expression was clearly stunned for a moment, somewhat unresponsive. At this time, the drunken man lying on the ground heard the commotion and barely opened his eyes, greeting the dancer standing there. Iris, money, give me the money, the money for drinking is not enough again. The dancer also heard his words. With a few indescribable flavors mixed inside her eyes, she finally pulled out a wad of money from inside her chest hood and shoved it into the drunkard's hand. Old lady danced all night yesterday, now I'm tired, I'm going to catch up on my sleep. The new captain is here, greet yourself, oh, I forgot to introduce myself, my name is Red Iris, I'm his deeded spirit, as you can see, also a dancer. After finishing her speech, Red Iris nodded with Han Zhan and Xia Yue, then stepped on her high heels, skillfully crossed over those bottles of wine, pushed open the door of the inner room and walked in. The drunkard took the money, scratched his right hand haphazardly on his head, got up and muttered, new captain, what a joke with me, and new captain, chit. He opened his eyes just in time to meet Han Zhan on all fours. Hello, my name is Han War, the new captain of squad 0527. Seeing the ID, the drunk froze for a moment. In the next second, he snorted and lifted his hand to knock Han War's hand away, his tone filled with mockery, a kid whose hair hasn't even grown back yet, how dare you want to be my captain? Kid, hurry up and get lost, stay wherever you are. How do you people talk like that? Xiao Yue's view of him was extremely poor, whether it was alcoholism or letting her deeded spirit go to work as a dancer to earn money from alcohol, this middle-aged man was disgusting. Yo, the little lady speaks with a soft voice and looks really good when she's angry. How about it? Are you interested in being my contracted spirit? I promise. Before he could finish his words, his whole person had already been smashed out by a punch and fell violently onto those glass wine bottles. The broken glass slag pierced into his skin, the smile on the middle-aged drunkard's face didn't diminish at all, as if he didn't feel any pain at all. He completely sobered up from the wine and looked at Han Zhan, who was standing on the opposite side of the room. Kid, this punch is really strong, practiced? Han Zhan didn't answer. The drunkard stood himself up, picked up a bottle of wine that hadn't been completely finished, and gulped it down as he burped contentedly. It's okay if you don't talk, but I'm advising you to leave for your own good. You must have offended someone, or else you wouldn't have been assigned to this most wasted squad that the entire deep blue city is famous for. Leave now and say that I, Ifan, was the one who blew you away by being unruly, at best, you'll lose face, it's better than you rotting here in the future. Don't you think so, Captain Han Battle? Ifan, the drunkard, shook the empty bottle in his hand towards Han War and asked meaningfully. Take a look at this. Ifan rummaged through the beer bottle for a while, finding an electronic device and lighting up the screen. On it, was a ranking of the mission points of the Deep Blue City Protector Squad. Ifan flipped to the end, and Squad 0527's name was listed, proving that he wasn't lying. There are still more than two months to go before the end of the year, and the City Protector Organization will conduct a liquidation, or layoff, of the end squads. The laid-off city protectors will be unified and head to the lower city. It was the lower city again. Zhao Hu was really determined to send himself to the lower city, wasn't he? Han Zhang took another close look at the mission points ranking table, squad 0527 was at the bottom with 0 points, and the points of the one above it was 1250, a gap of more than a thousand points. The two of them hadn't completed a single mission in more than 9 months. This was still a superb mess. Just as Fan had said, getting rid of this place as early as possible was the most correct choice for Han War right now. Scram! Fan waved his hand impatiently. Han Zhan glanced at the inner room that Red Iris had just entered and suddenly spoke, What if I insist on staying? As you wish. Fan tossed the electronic device onto the table and headed for the door without looking back. The wine was finished, and he was going to buy a new one. Looking at Fan, ignoring the nominal captain, Xia Yue said indignantly, Why is this person like this? When he was talking about layoffs to the lower city, his tone was casual and his eyes were calm. Han Zhan discovered this detail inside the brief dialogue exchange just now. This shows that he really doesn't care and has a death wish. If he wants to die himself, he can't drag the entire squad along with him, right? How can there be such a selfish person? Xia Yue's words caused Han Zhan to nod deeply. You're absolutely right. Ha! Huh? Xia Yue was a bit unresponsive. He can't drag the entire squad along with him to the lower city, so if you want to solve this matter, you can start with another member of our squad. The other team member in Han Zhan's mouth was the dancer from earlier, Red Iris. You really plan to stay in this squad? Xia Yue didn't quite understand Han Zhan's thoughts. Yue, running away from a difficult problem will only make one get used to cowardice, and only by overcoming it will one be able to grow. Even if, as he said, we leave here, go back in disgrace, and reassign a squad, will Zhao Wu let us go? 
Han Zhan's words made Xia Yue ponder. She was originally the schoolgirl of Qingting Academy, and she excelled in her studies, so she understood a little bit. After she figured it out, she nodded vigorously. Then we'll stay and make it the number one squad in Deep Blue City. Make Xiao Wu's plan go down the drain. Han Zhan looked at the confident Xia Yue. He smiled and raised his hand to gather a handful of soft hair. Well, it felt good in his hand. Collecting his smile, Han Zhan was clear that this was not an easy challenge. The problem of Team 0527 was like a wooden box that had been sealed for many years and had been cemented, using brute force would only cause it to go to ruin faster. Han Zhan needed to find a scene that could pry it open, and that scene was Red Iris. Thinking of this, he joined Xia Yue, stepped over the broken glass on the floor, and pushed open the door to the inner room. Compared to the mess outside, the inner room could simply be described as extremely clean. Red Iris, who said she wanted to catch up on her sleep, stood there, stunned. It seemed like she hadn't expected Han Zhan and the others to come in. Red Iris frowned, her face a bit icy. Go out. She gave an expulsion order. This is all the assets of the city protector organization, the office location, are you sure you want to talk to me like this? Han War's words caused Red Iris's frown to deepen, and without saying a word she picked up her belongings and headed for the door. Just as she brushed past Han Zhan, Han Zhan suddenly spoke. Must we continue to deceive ourselves like this? Red Iris? Or, White Frost? Red Iris, who was just about to walk out of the door of the inner room, suddenly shook when she heard Han Zhan's words, and her entire body froze there. Han Zhan's spirit contractor talent, divine illumination. Under his gaze, Red Iris's spirit fellowship information had long been clear. White Frost, a rank spirit fellowship spirit. Illusory form, amorous ring. Characteristics, lie. Able to truthfully change her appearance, body type, and height. Yes, her name is not Red Iris. She used, lie, on Han War, and the lie should have covered more than just them. After being exposed to the lie, White Frost's eyes became dangerous all of a sudden. What do you want? If you want to threaten me with this matter, then I advise you to give up. White Frost didn't care at all about someone poking through her lies. Because the person she wished most to be able to deceive in the past had never been deceived. She was always just a substitute. What White Frost cared about was this young man called Han Zhan, and what exactly he wanted to do to the 0527 squad that was already full of holes. Come with me to take the mission. Starting today. Han War raised the electronic screen in his hand. If Fan wants to go down and put down the urban area with a death wish, but you must not want that, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't have worked so hard to make money as a dancer, you can't use that much money if you're just buying alcohol. White Frost wanted to live, and also, she wanted Ifan to live. Her seam, pried open by Han War. Oh yeah, maintain the red iris look. Han John added. White Frost, who was wearing the red iris look, pursed her lips tightly and seemed to be thinking and hesitating. Why are you doing this? Don't get me wrong, I'm not interested in your possibly dogged bridge, I just want to be a good captain. I'm not paranoid about interfering with other people's destinies either, but I am paranoid about people or things that affect my destiny. In the context of the post-apocalyptic insect plague, a bit of coldness was always more like a normal person than passion. After hearing Han Zhan's nonchalant words, White Frost's expression calmed down a lot instead. Fine, I promise you that I can do the mission with you, but I also have a request. The proceeds from doing the mission should be shared with me in half. City protectors were paid for doing quests, and the level of earnings was related to the difficulty of completing them. No problem. Han Zhan finished speaking and handed the electronic screen to buy Frost. As a subordinate, you'll be responsible for screening the missions. White Frost wasn't ambiguous, and quickly identified three missions that were suitable for their squad. Mission 1, search for missing city protector personnel, 50 mission points. Task 2, help spirit fellowship masters and fellowship spirits mediate emotional disputes, 10 task points. Task 3, picking up and dropping off children from school for their employer, 10 task points slash day. Looking at the three tasks screened out by White Frost, Han Zhan skimmed his mouth. Low difficulty, few points, doing tasks like this, how long will it take to get the points back up? Search the one with the highest mission points. White Frost heard Han Zhan's words, and although she didn't want to blow him off, she still did as she was told. Not long after, the new mission was screened out. Mission Description Clearing out the insect race Upon life monitoring, bug race activity has been detected in the city sewers of Deep Blue City, so the city protectors are requested to carry out a purge. Mission Points 300 Possible gains such as bug race materials will be counted separately. Risk Factor High Recommended number of people, 6 to 8. Very well, that's it. Are you crazy? White Frost looked at Han War with a face like he was looking at a madman. Didn't you see the number of recommendations underneath it? 6 to 8 people, at least 2 squads working with each other to accomplish it. I know. You know? You know that you still want to pick this mission, you dash. Before White Frost could finish her sentence, she saw that Han Zhan had already selected confirm on the electronic screen. After the confirmation button was poked down, the system automatically prompted that the mission had been taken successfully. The status bar that was originally ready to be taken also changed to taken. 
You are really crazy. If the mission is abandoned or fails, it will deduct 10% of the points corresponding to the mission reward as a penalty, and you just directly took it? Let's go. I'll take the blame if something goes wrong. Han Zhang didn't explain anything more to Bai Frost, and after confirming which sewer entrance the mission location was in, he got up and walked towards the door. White Frost hesitated behind her, and in the end, she gritted her teeth and followed. The life signals were detected the day before yesterday. When it was discovered, the protectorate officials made a detection record at the first opportunity, and the threat level was level 2. The threat level was an assessment of the level of the bug invasion. When the threat level was 1 to 3, it would be released to the city protector team in the form of a point mission. Once the threat level exceeded level 3, then it would be defined as an insect scourge, and would require reinforcements to be urgently sent by the major war zones in the form of combat spirit fellowships. If the threat level exceeded 6, it would be a true bug scourge, and every bug scourge that appeared would be devastating, and would have to be defended against by legion level spirit fellowship division troops, but even then, the damage would surely be heavy. Threat level 2, which meant that the bugs that were active in the sewers would not exceed the second order. No more than second order? Then what's there to worry about? If such arrogant words were to come out of any other person's mouth, they would have been spewed all over the place. But he was Han Zhan. In just one combat test alone, he had killed more than double digits of second order bug races. It was a pity that White Frost didn't know. Not everyone would be in front of the TV, and White Frost should have just returned from the night dance floor at that time, and like today, was catching up on her sleep. So when Bai Frost saw that the two of them, Han Zhan and Xia Yue, jumped directly into the sewer through the manhole cover without any life-supporting measures, the she couldn't help but rub her hair hard. I must be crazy, that I would actually come here with these two, these two lunatics. As White Frost cursed, she also jumped down through the manhole cover opening just like them. Captain, the mission to clear the sewer bug race has been picked up. At this moment, another squad of city protectors in Deep Blue City was staring at the screen with a stunned face. The three words accepted on the status bar on the screen confused them. Someone stole our mission. Impossible, other than our two teams, 0002 and 0018 whose member strengths have reached the second rank, who else in Deep Blue City can take this mission? The man addressed as the captain frowned as he stared at the screen, incredulously saying, could it be that they want to eat alone in squad 0018? After all, this is 300 points, as long as they can take it down, it's equivalent to at least two months. Impossible, it's just that if they're a squad, it's not difficult for them to try to eat this mission, not to mention, their captain has only confirmed their cooperation with us. Sure enough, as soon as his words fell, Captain 0018's call came through. Old Xiao, someone stole our mission? When did Deep Blue City have this number one character? Let's go, let's go squat at the sewer entrance of the mission location and see which squad it is. That's right, go. By Frost had just entered the sewers, and the pungent, irritating odor made her unable to resist sneezing several times in succession. She saw Han Zhan and Xia Yue not far ahead. Be careful, the life detectors in here have detected at least eight or more second order bugs, and I'm afraid this is their lair. Let's slow dash. Whoosh. Before White Frost could finish his words, Xia Yue in front of him had already transformed into her Fushi Guchin form, and Han Zhan released his brain domain to open up urgently, his entire body wrapped in a layer of faint white chi. He fiercely exerted himself under his feet and transformed into a black thunderbolt, completely merging into the darkness of the sewers. White Frost. Han Zhan and Xia Yue's speed was too fast for her to react in time. Maybe if she slowed down a bit more, she wouldn't even be able to catch up to collect their corpses. What a newborn calf, that's a second order insect race, it's hard enough to deal with even one. I'm really still too naive and delusional, thinking that the two of them can have some kind of ability to turn the tide, but I didn't realize that they're two reckless people. White Frost had just finished sighing. She then heard a clang like a cracking zither from inside the dark and deep sewers. The sound of the zither sounded like it ripped through the entire darkness, and the sewers were instantly filled with the hissing sounds of all kinds of bugs in agony and madness, one after another. This lasted less than 30 seconds. 30 seconds later, the figures of Han Zhan and Xia Yue once again appeared in front of Bai Frost. Not only were they intact, but their hairstyles weren't even messed up a bit. You, you, guys, Bai Frost began to stutter as she spoke, finished? She asked, tentatively. She would rather believe that Han Zhan and Xia Yue were pretending to fool themselves than to believe that these two people had taken only 30 seconds to finish off 8 second order bugs? I'm doing a quest and you're playing racing? It was too magical, so magical that White Frost thought she was dreaming. So she slapped herself twice. It really hurt, it wasn't a dream. Yeah, it's done, what are you waiting for? Go and collect the materials that are worth those bug corpses, maybe you can sell them for quite a lot of money. After you're done gathering the materials, go turn in the quest by the way, also, the corpse of a protector was found deep in this sewer, it should be the one that's gone missing. Finish this quest along with it. Go. After Han Zhan finished his explanation, he patted by Frost's shoulder and left with Xia Yue through the sewers, leaving behind by Frost, who hadn't fully reacted yet. It wasn't until then that the smell of blood within the deep tunnel slowly filled the air, and White Frost smelled it and came back to his senses with a jolt. 
Half an hour later, when the two squad members, 0002 and 0018, arrived here, the smell of blood under the manhole cover was already extremely strong. They entered the sewer, only to see that the dark and deep tunnel was littered with many insect corpses that were extremely dead, causing people to suck in a breath of cool air. All dead? A total of 10 second order insect races, two more than in the known information, all dead. Checked. All killed in one hit. Captain, this mission to clear out the bug race has just shown completed. The two captains looked at each other, and from each other's eyes, they both saw the shock of their pupils suddenly shrinking. What kind of monster was this completed mission? Vice Captain Zhao, just now, Squad 0527 completed two point missions. It currently has 350 points. Okay, I understand. I'll come and call the various captains and tell them to grab the point mission starting tomorrow. Xiao Bei put down the phone and sighed as he looked at the electronic screen at Squad 0527, which was still the bottom one, and the 350 points behind it. Captain Han War, I'm sorry la, little brother I'm just following orders, no offense, no offense. Deep Blue City, Detached Villa. Han War and Xiao Yue returned here after a busy day, and Li Shudong had been waiting for a long time. Dinner had been prepared long ago, and they chatted as they ate. I've heard about your beef with Deep Blue City City Protector Vice Captain Zhao Hu. Li Shudong took the initiative to mention it and asked, do you need my help? Han Zhan shook his head. In the two days Li Shudong had been in brief contact with him, he had also become clear about what kind of character Han Zhan was. Seeing him shake his head, he no longer insisted. There are quite a few problems with this organization, the protector of the city, taking the name of protecting the city but not doing the things to protect the city. Han Zhan deliberated for a moment, but still opened his mouth. Just after going to report for a day, he had already seen empty reception halls, deserted but unsupervised regional offices for most of the year. Not to mention, there were high-ranking officers like Zhao Hu who abused their power to suppress dissidents. Others didn't have the ability to reach the heavens, but he could. Hearing Han Zhan's words, Li Shudong put down the chopsticks in his hands. The word protector city, back then, it was still taken by a few of us old guys together. Now that I think about it, it's been 70 to 80 years, how time flies. When an organization grows big, there will always be various different voices, just like the occasional lesions in human tissues that need to be removed in time. It's just a pity that if the external problems are not removed, there is even less time to take care of the internal problems. We've been busy dealing with the insect plague all these years, and the internal roots have been slowly rotting away. Listening to Li Shutong's tone, it was impossible for him to be unaware of the protectorate's internal problems. Even this problem, it seemed, was even bigger than Han Zhan had imagined. The root has completely rotted away, and removing it won't cure it, so a fire is needed to bring it back to life. That's why I picked you in the first place. Han Zhan was surprised. Teacher wants me to be that fire? Fire can burn away dead branches and dispel darkness, but fire can also be extinguished at any time. As I said, the choice of how to go about your future path is in your hands. Li Shudong picked up his chopsticks again and gave Xia Yue a piece of meat in his bowl, continuing. Talk about something happy. The big gift package that Old Five gave you earlier has already been sent to the Everlasting Company, and in about 10 days time, it will be possible to refine the spirit energy and create a realm-breaking potion. Spirit contractors and contracted spirits who wanted to raise their realms needed to constantly absorb spiritual energy. Only when the accumulation of spiritual energy reached a certain threshold could they break through to the next stage. Spiritual energy existed in the heavens and earth, but it was relatively thin, and the elevation of the realm was extremely slow. And at this time, the materials that killed the insect race, as well as those that contained even greater amounts of spiritual energy heavenly treasures, their value manifested itself. The Everlasting Company was the company that specialized in extracting these spiritual energies and making breakthrough potions. A bottle of breakthrough potion has been sold to a very high price, but also need to provide their own spiritual energy materials is no less profitable business. Because of this, the Everlasting Company had also jumped to become one of the top five companies overriding all countries. The money for refining spiritual energy this time, the Eternal Life Company will directly waive it for you for my sake. However, for the second and third order. Higher order breakthrough potions in the future, you will have to rely on yourselves to figure out how to get them. Thank you, teacher. Han Zhan and Xia Yue looked at each other and said in unison. Li Shudong waved his hand. Teacher, regarding the eight urgent fists, what would it take to break through to the next stage? Taking this opportunity, Han Zhan asked again. He had tried countless times yesterday, but every time he poured spiritual energy into it, it ended in failure. Obviously, he had been able to feel the location of the second urgent need, so why couldn't he break through? To break through the eighth urgent need, you need to remember four words. Li Shudong said, raising the four fingers of his left hand. Between life and death. Between life and death? That's right, see those qi around your body after releasing the urgent need? They are created between life and death, and only when these qi reach a certain level will they be able to punch open the next urgent lock. Li Shudong said as he spread out his left hand toward Han Zhan, and a ball of white qi began to converge on his originally empty palm. The white qi grew thicker and bigger, rising into the air, even larger than the table they were eating on. 
With such a huge amount of qi, it was hard to imagine how many times Li Shudong had experienced between life and death. I see. Han Zhang said seriously. Well, you're all tired today, so take an early rest, I don't live here, and I'll let you two do whatever you want at night. Save you guys from complaining that I, as a master, don't have any eyes? Li Shudong suddenly changed his words. Xia Yue's face swished red. After dinner, the two of them returned to their room one after the other. Listening to the sound of gurgling water coming from the shower room, they imagined the water rushing down from the towering peaks, rolling over the mountain streams, and merging into the valley. Han Zhan slapped himself on the forehead to force wakefulness. Xia Yue wrapped in her bathrobe walked out from inside, originally a school flower level face value, with the addition of the beauty out of the bath, it was even more impossible for people to move their eyes away. Seeing Han Zhan staring at himself, she blushed and buried her head into the bathrobe like an ostrich, completely forgetting that she still had her two well-proportioned and tantalizingly large white legs exposed. That, this villa is very white, uh no, it's big, and no, it's very empty. I'll go find another room. Master said that all the other rooms are already locked. Xia Yue reminded. Then I'll sleep on the floor, it's cooler on the floor, ah ha ha ha. Han Zhan, who had killed third order bugs without even blinking, was inexplicably a bit of a wimp when it came to this kind of thing. No way. You must sleep on the bed today. Xia Yue was so furious that she couldn't even care about being shy. She pointed her finger at the double bed before reacting to what she had just said. That. That's the bed sheet and quilt cover that I carefully made. You can't disrespect the fruits of my labor, eh? This lame excuse gave her a lot of backbone. I'm a person who sleeps in seconds when I touch the bed, really. Cut the crap and come over here. Han Zhan was still about to explain something when his entire body was violently pulled by Xia Yue, lying down on the soft bed. This was the second time the two of them had gotten that close. Xia Yue, who had just finished her bath, was fragrant and had the faint body odor of a young girl. Her heartbeat shot up all of a sudden, and her breathing followed suit. Many inexplicable things that she had read before out of curiosity began to flash back frantically in her mind. Xia Yue closed her eyes and her eyelashes fluttered a few times, like a budding flower waiting to be picked. Two minutes later, a very slight whine came from Han Zhan's side. Xia Yue opened her eyes in shame. Really asleep? Just as Xia Yue clenched her small fists, intending to give this unappreciative guy Bon Bon two punches, Han Zhan turned sideways and subconsciously wrapped Xia Yue in his arms. Feeling Han Zhan's even breathing, as well as the flavor that belonged solely to him, Xia Yue's dissatisfaction in her heart gradually subsided. Like this, it seems not bad. She smiled lightly and backhanded Han Zhan, the two of them embracing each other as they slept. The next day, early morning, the refreshed Han Zhan and Xia Yue arrived early at Xixia Road, the 0527 Squad Stronghold. What they didn't expect was that. The house that was dirtier than a garbage recycling station yesterday had been cleaned up, White Frost hadn't gone to work as a dancer, and Yi Fan hadn't been drinking heavily. The two were sitting in their seats as if they were waiting for them. Deep Blue City's newest SSS ranked spirit contractor, the strongest newcomer in the spirit contractor examination, killed a second order bug race in seconds, singled out a third order bug race, the most talented spirit contractor in history. The first genius of Green Vine Academy, Han War. Surprisingly, it's you. Even though White Frost had already digested it for a long time, the shock in her heart couldn't be calmed for a long time when she restated this information she had found out. The officials would even let a once-in-a-century genius like you come to the city protector organization? This is simply a waste. What on earth were those big shots thinking, under such an environment, sooner or later, people would become wasted. They recognized their identities, which was in Han War's plan. After killing the bugs with such high efficiency yesterday, any normal person with a brain would check him out when he returned. As for the information about the SSS class spirit contractors and related information, it was now all over the entire deep blue city, so it would be difficult to hide it. Appropriately showing one's muscles could avoid wasting a lot of words. It's only the mediocre that will be changed by the environment, while the genius, on the other hand, will go on to change the environment. Han Zhan displayed a powerful confidence when he said this. You're too sharp, and after offending Zhao Hu, things won't be resolved so simply. Yi Fan, who hadn't said anything, opened his mouth to remind him. In order to suppress you, he intentionally transferred you to our 0527 Most Wasted Squad, just to make you obliterate the public and exile you to the lower city. Instead, you came up with the highest points mission right off the bat. If I were Zhao Hu, from today onwards, you will not be able to receive a single mission. It's true. Today, inside Deep Blue City's quest list, all quests are in the accepted status. At this time, White Frost opened the electronic screen to take a look, and it was exactly as Fan had guessed. All of the missions were in the accepted status. Even tasks that had just been released would be immediately accepted in the next second, not giving anyone time to react at all. Zhao Hu finally revealed his fangs. What to do? Now that all the quests in Deep Blue City have been picked up, we simply can't rob them. White Frost said as she raised her head and looked towards Han Zhuan. Yi Fan shook his head and looked around, looking for where the wine he had been hiding was. It seemed that the waste team, which had just started to improve, 
was about to be knocked back to its original form again because of Xiao Wu's move. This is the lowering of the dimensional blow, the superior just slightly call a little resources, will be able to put you to death suppression. There were still more than two months to go before the end of the year, and if they couldn't earn any points, they would be eliminated as the bottom squad in exile to the lower city. Did you just say that all the missions in Deep Blue City have been taken up? Han Zhan suddenly asked. Yeah, all of them have been picked up, even those 10 point quests you couldn't see yesterday, they're all gone. No, I mean, the Deep Blue City quests are gone, what about the other cities? Han Zhan's question caused by Frost to freeze. Afraid that she didn't understand, Han Zhan asked again, when a points task like this is released, it should be released by the unified official website of the city protector, right? Because it's positioned in Deep Blue City, all the ones that are automatically refreshed are Deep Blue City's points tasks. Am I right? Right. Right? Then wouldn't it be simple? Wouldn't it be fine to switch the address city? Han Zhan said, letting White Frost change the resident address to Tsanghai City next door, and the original Deep Blue City points task list, after refreshing, instantly became Tsanghai City's points task list. It really works. It can actually be like this? Looking at the column full of unaccepted points tasks, both by Frost and Ifan were surprised by Han Zhan's tiresome maneuver. Sometimes, once a person got used to something, they would form a mindset and create a blind spot. But Han Zhan wouldn't, because as a traveler, Ordering takeout and switching the city you're in are all base manipulations, memories etched in your bones. What are you waiting for? Take the mission. The situation in Sanghai City was not much different from Deep Blue City, and the ones with higher points were all about solving the bug threat, and the threat level was 0 or 1. After taking all the missions in Sanghai City, they switched to another city under Han War's operation. E Fan. This flirty operation by Han War silenced the two of them. Although it's possible to pick up point quests across cities, it also means that we'll have to run around the neighborhoods of various cities to complete the quests. We might encounter bugs along the way. Ifan stopped himself halfway through his words. Almost forgetting, this person in front of him was an SSS rank spirit contractor, a super genius who should have been shining as a combat spirit contractor in the frontline battlefield. In a big backwater like the city, even if there were bugs infiltrating in, they would at most be of the first or second rank. When it came to Han battle, it wasn't really certain who would run. Javu's move, it seemed to have been easily neutralized by Hanjan just like that. At this time, White Frost thought of what he had said at the beginning. It was only the mediocre who would be changed by their environment, while the genius, on the other hand, would go on to change their environment. Let's go, pack up the things you're going to bring with you, it's going to take quite a bit of time on the road. Hanjan finished talking to By Frost, and then turned his head to Ifan, who was clearly not very excited. He didn't know what White Frost had said to Ifan, causing him to stop drinking for the time being but he still showed a lack of interest in his duties as a city protector. We're in a squad, you're with us too. As the captain, Han Zhan's tone was unquestionable. Fine, fine, for the sake of you being an SSS rank spirit contractor, I'll listen to you for once, however, you have to allow me to bring along a case of wine to do so. Yi Fan bargained. Deal. Failed? Zhao Hu's face gradually turned gloomy as he listened to the report from the people under his hand. Are you saying that they have now left Deep Blue City and gone to another city to do a points mission in another city? That's right. Have you complained with the headquarters? What did the headquarters side say? The headquarters said that after inquiring, Deep Blue City's missions are indeed in a saturated state, and there's no excuse for picking up points missions from other cities. Grass. With a clang, Zhao Wu smashed the cup in his hand on the ground, splashing tea and crumbs everywhere. So, do we still have to pick up point missions from other cities and continue to rob with them? The henchman looked at Zhao Wu's extremely pale face and asked tentatively, Pick up, pick up my ass. You can't pick up all the quests from a dozen or so surrounding cities. Let them be complacent for a while, and then come back later to clean them up. In the afternoon, Han Zhan and his group drove to Tsanghai City next door. The car was gotten by Yi Fan, a second-hand big black pickup truck with beastly strength. After taking care of the car, he hugged the agreed-upon case of wine and laid down on the roofless cargo box in the back. White Frost was exclusively responsible for driving. Han Zhan and Xia Yue were responsible for guarding. This was a division of labor that had been discussed in advance. After driving out from the outskirts of Deep Blue City, the scene of the end of the insect plague was shown in front of Han Zhan's eyes for the first time. A vast expanse of earthy yellow, symbolizing barren and infertile sand dunes, with the occasional splash of greenery growing half-dead along the roadside. There wasn't a single car on the spacious, dilapidated highway except for them. More than that. As Han Zhan looked far into the distance, he was also able to see a few scattered insect clans, branching out in the distant dunes and plains. This was somewhat not quite what he had imagined. Just let these insect races flourish and live in the suburbs and not bother with them? Han Zhan asked. White Frost glanced in the direction of his finger and let out an O. Oh. You mean those ah, uh, they're all first order bug races, low in harm, and Desia doesn't have the extra energy to completely clear them out. What's more, the country isn't doing charity. The best and the worst. White Frost's words made Han Zhan cognizant of this world a little more. He nodded and stopped talking. 
The large black pickup truck traveled on the desert highway where people were rare, raising a cloud of dust. While traveling, Ifan, who was lying in the rear cargo box, suddenly exclaimed I'm going and jumped up from the cargo box. He looked up at the sky not far away. In the originally clear sky, there was suddenly a dark colored tornado. The tornado covered the sky and obscured most of the front sky, looking extremely spectacular. What is that? Xia Yue subconsciously asked. A first order insect race, the deadly gray fly. Han Zhan said. A kind of insect race that operates on a colony basis, the larger the size of the colony, the more lethal and destructive it is. Capable of causing black hurricanes by flying quickly, it also has the ability to attack remotely, with weak melee capabilities and extremely weak defense. Han Zhan was reading the account from the notebook that Lin Jingxian had then given him. Deadly gray flies of this scale were not often seen in normal times, so they could be said to be lucky. Charge at them. Ha 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 ha. Charge. Yi Fan took a swig from his bottle and grabbed the edge of the cargo box with one hand. Like a mad pirate captain, he laughed uncontrollably and shouted at the top of his voice. Not far from the black tornado, a new convoy seemed to have appeared. It's Deep Blue City's merchant fleet. White Frost's grip on the steering wheel tightened. This is also part of the superiority plan? The corners of White Frost's mouth twitched, it's purely because they've been unlucky to the extreme. Captain, shall we save them? Save, why not, left rudder, full power. Before Han Zhan could say anything, Yi Fan at the back had already shouted. He raised the bottle high, flared it a few times along with his wrist, then threw it fiercely in the direction of the black tornado. Yi Fan opened his hands in a hugging gesture. Boom! His pompous expression had only just stayed on his face when White Frost jerked the steering wheel, avoiding the dune roadblock in front of him. Under the violent shaking, Yi Fan's entire head was stoned hard on the wall of the cargo box, resonating dramatically with the one he had just shouted. Traveling at high speed, the black pickup truck also turned in the direction of the tornado in a smooth manner. The car was traveling too fast to choose a direction to avoid it. White Frost quickly explained. Han Zhan no longer hesitated, and exchanged a glance with Xia Yue, who immediately transformed into his fuxican form as he opened the door of the car with a flip and leapt onto the compartment. On the outskirts of Deep Blue City, the silting merchant fleet. Three heavily armed advanced off-road vehicles were speeding along the wasteland highway at an extremely fast speed. Behind them was a black pressurized hurricane. If one were to carefully discern it, one would be able to see a thumb-sized black insect fly rapidly lifting its wings in the black hurricane, frantically fluttering around the center area. Miss, the distance is shrinking. There are still five minutes to go before we are caught up by them. Miss, the car can't increase its speed any further. Reinforcements haven't arrived yet, according to the last rule of the safety code, all hands on deck, start executing the shedding plan. Within the communication channel, the three SUVs simultaneously sounded this voice. Unexpectedly, the three SUVs that were originally driving side by side, suddenly the speeds of the vehicles on the left and right side suddenly decreased abruptly, they turned their heads and faced the black hurricane directly behind them. Come back. On the passenger seat of the main vehicle, Shang Siding shouted towards the intercom, all of you come back to me, it's not the last moment yet, you can't give up. Hiss. Hiss. Miss, our mission is to protect you, hiss. Hiss. Merchant escorts, on my command, three, two, one, fire. Boom boom boom. The two SUVs that had stopped, braced their wingspans as fast as they could, and the heavy fire weapons hanging from them began to tilt their tongues of fire towards the black hurricane. However, it was still a drop in the bucket. Cannonballs hitting mosquitoes, even if they were able to kill the dead gray flies, for such a huge base, it was still a drop in the bucket. Shang Siding looked at the two SUVs in despair, about to be engulfed by the black hurricane. At this time, a melodious and staccato zither sound suddenly came from the distance. The sound of the zither came from far and near, real but incomparably absurd, who would play the zither inside the wilderness. Soon, Shang Siding saw the answer, it was a huge chi blade that was several meters across, it cut straight across the east and west. In the next second, the Qin's chi blade didn't enter the black hurricane, and the black hurricane that was originally as powerful as a bamboozle had a short stagnation at this moment. Densely packed dead gray fly corpses fell from midair, like a black rain. The Qin sound chi blade's chi expired and dissipated, and the airwaves it turned into before dispersing blue on Shang Siding's face, sending her green silk into a tangle. A term flashed through her mind. Sound blowing silk sting. Just when she thought it was over, suddenly in her ears, there was another cracking zither sound. The sound of the zither became faster and faster, more and more urgent, continuous audiovisual accelerated drums, not only pointing at Shang Siding's heart, but also killed countless dead gray flies, and a thin layer of blackish fell on the ground, and those were the bodies of dead gray flies. She finally got a good look at the owner who was playing a zither. It was a handsome looking young man, similar to her own age, who was half leaning on the tin cargo box of a black pickup truck, with a lowered brow. Wasteland, Lutier. What an absurd combination. But this is how it really appeared in front of Shang Siding's eyes. At this time, the dead gray flies that were massacred in a big way also finally reacted, they gave up on the merchant team's SUV that was about to be engulfed, and began to turn their direction, aiming at the black pickup truck in the distance. 
the long-range attacks of the dead greyflies were instantly unleashed. Watch out! Shang Sighting subconsciously shouted, her heart clenched at this moment. Zither music, breaking the formation. It was the first time White Frost had seen someone break a tornado with a hard blow, her mouth slightly opened without making a sound. At this time, the black hurricane where the deadly grey fly was located reversed its direction and unleashed a long-range attack towards Han Zhan's place. Han Zhan had only read about the deadly grey fly's means of attack in the archives, but he had never imagined that these seemingly inconspicuous bugs would be so fast in their long-range attacks. A black needle spike as thin as a cow's hair rained down on Han Zhan. He was unable to react for a moment. Suddenly, a silhouette blocked in front of him. Ifan, who had climbed back up from the cargo box, was carrying a wine bottle in one of his two hands as he stood up shakily and stood in front of Han Zhan. In an instant, all the black needles and spikes, all of them pierced Ifan's body. You! Han Zhan was shocked, these black needles and thorns were highly poisonous, if they were not dispelled in time, they would die of poison in a few dozen seconds. Unexpectedly, Ifan didn't care about those black needles on his back, he was still pouring the liquor in one mouthful after another. Gulp, gulp. Ah, cool, addictive. Ifan's eyes were misty, his hand holding the bottle of wine raised his index finger to point at Han Zhan, he opened his mouth and just wanted to say something, when his whole body went limp all of a sudden. Ifan. Han Zhan leaned down, and saw that behind Ifan, those black needles that had originally pierced into his body were actually, one by one, being bizarrely forced out of Ifan's body again. SS grade talent, immortality. Surprised, surprised? Looking at Ifan, who had come back to life, Han Zhan was indeed surprised. His, divine illumination, was only able to see the talent of a spirit contractor clearly, but not the talent of a spirit contractor. Yi Fan would actually be an SS grade talent, and what were the characteristics of, immortality? Rapid recovery? Or perhaps, never destroying? Seemingly guessing the thoughts in Han Zhan's mind, Yi Fan exhaled a mouthful of drunken alcohol and said, you must be guessing, what are the characteristics of my SS grade talent, immortality? Beg me, beg me, I'll tell you. It's fine if you don't beg me, five cases of wine, give me five cases of wine, I. Han Ward directly ignored him. Standing back up on the cargo box, the remaining deadly gray fly had also long since lost its initial power under the fire coverage of both sides. Han Zhan saw a bright and shiny young girl come out from inside the SUV in the center across the street, waving excitedly towards his place. Yo, it's the merchant's daughter, Shang sighting. I didn't expect it to be her family's merchant team that wasn't equipped with a spirit contractor, it's really too careless. Yi Fan whistled and commented. Captain, the other party has applied to enter our private channel, agree or reject? In the driver's seat, White Frost glanced down at the application prompt on the communicator and opened his mouth to ask. Reject. Han Zhan retracted his gaze, although a beautiful woman was good, he already had a beautiful woman in his arms, and Li Xutong's advice to him at the hot pot table was still fresh in his mind. The more beautiful the woman, the more trouble. It was better to cause less trouble. Let's go, continue on our way. Han Zhan hugged Fuxican and sat back in the passenger seat, and after Xia Yue resumed her human form, the two people's posture became ambiguous all of a sudden. TSK. Bai Shuang shook his head and sighed before pressing down hard on the gas. The big black pickup truck once again raised waves of dust in a roar and drove off into the distance. Bai Frost, don't play this kind of smart in the future. Suddenly, Han Zhan spoke up, skimming the front of the car towards the dead gray fly tornado, you did that on purpose, didn't you? Captain. White Frost pursed her lips and didn't speak. Compassion was a big no-no in the end of the bug plague, and there were countless examples where an entire team could be killed because of a single saintly move. The next one will not be an example. Miss, they rejected our call request. Looking at the message that the contact signal had been interrupted, the pilot reported to Shang Sistine. Rejected? Shang Sighting was a bit stunned, since childhood, she hadn't been rejected much. Thinking that Shang Sighting, who was 100% confident in her own appearance and looks and figure, thought back to what she had just seen, the zither player sitting in the passenger seat, and a girl whose looks were not inferior to her own in the slightest. Her heart was envious. Because they were free. And what she herself lacked the most, was freedom. Butler, this time when I go to Deep Blue City, I'm going to awaken to become a deeded spirit and then sign a contract with him. Miss? The butler at the side froze, Miss, the family master has specifically ordered that you are not allowed to become a deed spirit. We merchants, we can only enslave others, we cannot be enslaved by others. If you don't become a deed spirit, relying on these escorts alone will be useful? Shang Sith asked rhetorically. If we hadn't met the Qin master, we would have already been buried in the belly of a worm. I know about all those things in the higher echelons of the merchants, I just don't want to ask about them. It's also best for the merchants not to ask about my affairs. But, this man, I'm going to settle for it. Shang Sighting said decisively. Ah Chu. On the other side, Han Zhan continuously sneezed twice. From Deep Blue City to Tsanghai City, it would take roughly 5 hours to travel at full speed. Aside from this little hiccup in the middle, the journey was quite smooth, and the occasional few uninterested bugs were casually seconded by Han Zhan. 
Five hours later, Han Zhan and the others arrived at the location recorded in the mission, found the ravaging insect race, and killed them in seconds once again. Five hours of driving, five seconds of mission. The main fight was a detailed one. After doing this mission, they rushed to the next location without stopping. For a while, several large-scale bug race purging missions were completed one after another in Sunhai City, and they also managed to attract the attention of the Sunhai City Protector Squad. I'll go, which team is doing this mission? When did we have this kind of team in Sunhai City, it's too awesome, isn't it? After removing the time spent rushing, averaging out to more than 10 seconds a mission, this is simply one-sided abuse. It couldn't be the combat spirit contractors from the front line that came back to us to fry fish, right? The commotion quickly reached the ears of the first squad leader of Sunhai City. When he utilized the first squad leader's authority to retrieve the mission completion list and saw that all the notes for the completed missions were Deep Blue City 0527 squad, he was enraged. Deep Blue City City Protector Squad came over to do my Sunhai City's point missions, is this a slap in my face? Who are you looking down on? He immediately dialed the Deep Blue City's first team's phone, to the microphone inside a greetings output, directly to the phone on the other end of the Zhao who scolded confused, containing a very high amount of mom. Because of this matter, the whole Sunhai City City Protector Squad has been actively mobilized. Sunhai City, which was originally a pool of stagnant water, instantly became in full swing when it came to picking up point assignments. The Deep Blue City 0527 squad that Han Zhan was a part of had also successfully made a name for itself in Sunhai City. They now had a brand new name. Mission Bullies. A few days later, in the outskirts of Sunhai City, Second Order Insect Race Devil Tail Snakes were coiled here, with a rough estimation of at least more than 20 of them. This was also Sunhai City's biggest problem all along. The originally unattended demon-tailed serpent clearing mission had instantly become lively after the arrival of the mission bully squad. With so many of us from Sunhai City City Protector Squad today, we'll definitely be able to take down this devil tail snake clearance mission. Let that mission bully squad from Deep Blue City see how strong we are. Good. We can't let them continue to be arrogant like this, isn't it just 20 second order insectoids, one of our squads will be responsible for one. No problem. Wrap it up on me. The morale of the 30 to 50 people was high, and they headed towards the demon-tailed serpent stronghold with great vigor. As a result, just as they arrived at the stronghold, they saw scattered corpses of devil-tailed snakes, including snake skins, snake gallbladders, and other valuable parts, all of which had been dug up. Not even a single living devil-tailed snake was left for them. As the organizer of this collective action, the first squad leader's face instantly turned green. He couldn't help but look up to the sky and angrily curse that. Mission bullies, you've bullied people too much. Don't stop me, I'm going to get a statement from them today. At this moment, someone pulled him back. Captain. They seem to have left Sunhai City after submitting this mission. Someone saw their conspicuous big black pickup truck that just left the city. Upon hearing this news, their faces immediately rejoiced and regained their smiles. Five days, five whole days. Great. The Tama's finally gone. It's about time for a few other cities to experience it. A few more days later, the City Protector Organization, Headquarters. The data department, which was responsible for monitoring the completion of the integral missions, had just put the latest data on the stage. Su Ming Xian, the third in command of the city protector organization, picked up the data and took a cursory glance at it, and suddenly let out an eek. This deep blue city, Sanghai city, and the several neighboring cities, why did the points task completion rate increase so much all of a sudden? The average increase is over 50%? Did some special event happen? Officer Su, it's like this, a squad of mission bullies came out of Deep Blue City, specializing in robbing other cities of points missions to do, leading to such a chain reaction. The underling reported truthfully. Mission bullies? Su Mingxian read the name in surprise and came to be interested. Take the information of the members of this squad and find it out for me. As the third in command of the city protector organization, his authority was second only to the first and second in command. At his request, four personnel information files were found and sent over. Deep Blue City Squad 0527, former Captain, Ifan, SS Class Spirit Covenant Master, served in the First War Zone, Combat Spirit Covenant Master, honored with the Purple Star Medal. Afterwards, due to the fall of the Spirit of Deed, he became demoralized and relegated himself to the City Protector Organization. Talent, Immortality. No form of damage can kill it, possessing the theoretical possibility of near immortality. File Level, Top Secret. Su Mingxuan's hand shook slightly, to think that the first file he read on a whim was a top secret file? He quickly flipped through the next file. Deep Blue City Squad 0527, team member, Red Iris. Class A Deeded Spirit, once attached to the first war zone with Ifan, later devolved together to the City Protector Organization. Talent, Lies. Able to change one's appearance, body type, and even name. Note, the change after the activation of this talent is a change in the true sense of the word, with the ability to make lies come true. Extremely dangerous. Another top secret file. Su Mingxuan's brows unconsciously furrowed. 
With his strength, he was even able to feel an invisible force of rules trying to invade this absolutely true file in his hands, tampering with the content inside. In the column of names, the names Red Iris and White Frost flashed back and forth like an old black and white TV. Is this the power of lies? Even the SSS grade talent, absolute truth, which is so far away, can still be affected. It's just an A-rank talent, this rating is too low. These people with graded talents are eating their words. Su Mingxian put down this file and picked up another one. Things don't come in threes, so you can't give me another top secret level dossier, right? He convexly said to himself and laughed himself. How could it be that coincidental that three top secret files were placed in an unnamed squad? This was also too comical. Thinking of this, Su Mingxian turned over the third file in his hand. Deep Blue City Squad 0527, current captain, Han War. Just graduated from Green Ivy Academy. When Su Mingxian saw this, he sighed in relief. That's right well, this is a normal beginning of a file. He continued to look down. Specific information, none. None? How can it be nil? These files are all personally written by the possessor of the, absolute truth, talent, it can't possibly be nil. The appearance of none only meant one thing, it didn't want to show itself. Su Mingxian had just thought of this when the phone in his hand rang, his gaze condensed. This was a dedicated phone line that only a very few people knew about, and every time it was dialed, it was an extremely urgent matter. He took the phone with a serious face and spoke, Hello? This is Su Mingxian. Officer Su, this is Lin Jingxian. The head of the second war zone, Lin Jingxian? What is this giant man personally looking for me for? Could it be that the Unification War Department is making some new move that requires the assistance of the city protector organization? Just as Su Mingxian was thinking wildly, Lin Jingxian on the other end of the phone continued to speak. Officer Su, that file in your hand, any information related to it, do not continue to inquire about it. It has already exceeded your authority. Lin Jingxuan's words were like a thunderbolt, almost blowing Su Mingxuan's entire being silly. This dossier in his hands, he didn't have the authority to view it? His own permissions were already so high that he could even look through top secret files. But this young man called Han Zhan, his file, was actually higher than top secret. Almost forgot, the spirit contractor writer who possessed the absolute truth, talent was none other than Lin Jingxuan's subordinate. I understand, thanks for the reminder. Hanging up the phone, Su Mingxian put down the last dossier with a complicated expression. This dossier was indeed not top secret. It was damn near a few notches higher than top secret. It's really outrageous, really, one can't be too curious. On Han Zhan's side, he still didn't know what had just happened to the top echelons of the protectorate organization. After 10 busy days, they had finally finished all the tasks of clearing the bug race from the neighboring cities. Deep Blue City Squad 0527's reputation is, mission bullies spread far and wide. 4 for 200 points, 6 for 100 points, and 8 for 50 points, totaling 1,800 points. Now, our 0527 squad shouldn't be the bottom one. White Frost smiled as she opened the electronic screen. Just after flipping to the end, her smile suddenly froze on her face. Squad 0527, 2,150 points. Ranking, penultimate. How is this possible? Zhao who messed up again? White Frost's angry exclamation caused several other people around them to come over. They saw that above the penultimate 0527 squad, the penultimate squad's points, which were just a little bit more than 2,300 points, were just a little bit more than 2,300 points. Not only that, but the original bottom 10 squad points were all tied at 2,300 points. Han Zhan and his team had worked hard to earn this many points by doing all the high point missions in the surrounding cities. These squads, what makes them so special? They couldn't all be hidden bigwigs as well, with everyone's SSS ranked talents and unlimited bug copies, could they? It's point control. Han Zhan, as an otaku in his previous life, wasn't unfamiliar with this common trope of ranking games, all the squads agree on a score and then juxtapose a score, and all the points gained from completing the mission are evenly distributed by the same person. In this way, it can be done so that a dozen or so teams with the same score appear at once. If he does this, won't the headquarters check? It won't. Han Zhan shook his head. Points missions are all done in a combined effort. Just discuss who's going to turn in this points mission, it doesn't go against the rules set by the city protector organization at all. Damn it. When White Frost heard this, she slapped the electronic screen angrily. In these 10 days, although they hadn't helped much, but at least they had all followed along as they ran east and west. After getting along for a long time, they did not say anything, but in their hearts, they also had the possibility of getting rid of the title of the most useless squad. But now, hope is once again dashed. Xiao Hu, Xiao Hu again. What a ghostly fellow. Let's go, back to Deep Blue first. Han Zhan exhaled and calmed down, we're very close to their points, it's not like there's no possibility of overtaking them. Before, even the gap of more than a thousand points, now that we've caught back up, it's only a few hundred points left, is it hard? Everyone's been tired these past 10 days, after returning to Deep Blue, relax for a few days. Han Zhan's words, Yi Fan thought deeply, as a person who was used to being disheveled, these few days were nothing short of torture for him. 
Drinking without pain, not being able to lie flat and swing, every day even if he lay on the pickup truck compartment, the bumpy highway could make his back ache. Finally, I can rest for a few days. Back in Deep Blue City, it was already evening, and Han Zhan and Xia Yue both said their goodbyes before returning to the villa again. Ten days after a farewell, the villa remained the same. Li Shudong was sitting at the open-air stone table, raising his cup to drink. Seeing Han Zhan and Xia Yue who walked in, he smiled. Back? Ah, uh, back. The short conversation made Han Zhan and Xia Yue really feel like they were home. No matter how powerful and disdainful they were outside, they still needed a home as a resting harbor, and this was a good feeling. How was the harvest of this trip? Li Shudong was like an old parent, asking questions with concern. Han Zhan and Xia Yue sat down while also starting to answer some of his questions and what they had seen on the road. That little girl from the merchant was actually saved by you, and the unintelligible fellow she spoke of turned out to be you. Li Shudong stroked his palm and laughed. No wonder she pestered me a few days ago to ask after her, what she had to do to awaken and become a powerful deeded spirit. Master, you know Shang sighting? Han Zhan asked in surprise. Her grandfather and I are considered old friends. Shang, the family behind one of the five major corporations, Samson Technology. Sen Shang Technology mainly develops high-end weapons and provides them to spirit contractors or ordinary people who don't have a spirit contractor, and she's the same age as my granddaughter, Li Lingjin, whom I've always treated as my own granddaughter. She has an outgoing personality, always wanting to go out and make a break for it, and this deadly gray fly tornado was just created by the merchants on purpose, wanting to force her to know the hard way and stop trespassing. Unexpectedly, it was intercepted halfway by your kid. With Li Shutong's explanation, the situation at that time became clear all of a sudden. No wonder why they were so lucky to encounter such a huge number of dead gray flies, and just didn't have a powerful spirit contractor with them, and even the two merchant guards rushing towards the swarm was also a bitter trick planned in advance. Coincidentally, Silk Ting came to Deep Blue City on behalf of the merchant caravan this time to deliver two things for me, Li Shudong said, and conjured up a high-tech box like a magic trick. He pressed the password, and the case was opened, two potions bubbling with white icy cold air came into view. Breakthrough Potion That's right, these two potions with an icy blue blow were precisely the breakthrough potion that had been sent to the Everlasting Company earlier to refine spiritual energy. With these two potions, Han Zhan and Xia Yue could finally break through to the second stage as well. What are you waiting for, one for each person, hurry up and swallow them. Han Zhan nodded, and no longer being polite with Li Shudong, he took the lead in picking up a breakthrough potion and tilted his head back to swallow it. In an instant, within his body, countless body cells cheered and jumped for joy. The icy blue liquid representing spiritual energy, which was condensed to the extreme into liquid form by the Eternal Life Company using advanced technology, was frantically fought over and devoured by the cells in his body, and Han Zhan could feel himself getting stronger with the naked eye. Strength, speed, reaction, defense, and even talent. This process only lasted a short time. Han Zhan felt like he had taken a painful and incomparably hot bath, and had eaten a full meal that was soothing and refreshing. Breakthrough, Second Order Spirit Contractor. Seeing Han Zhan's successful breakthrough, Xia Yue also swallowed the tube of potion that belonged to her. Soon after, she also completed her breakthrough just like Han Zhan, becoming a Second Order Spirit Contractor. Right at the moment when Xia Yue also succeeded in her breakthrough, in both of their minds, a new thing surfaced at the same time. Xia Yue, SSS Ranked Contractual Spirit. Strength, Second Order. Illusory Form, Ancient Divine Weapon, Fushi Qin. Divinity, Sword and Gallbladder, Four Elements of Heavenly Will, New. New Divinity. The Four Elephants of Divine Will. Thought to be Heaven's Will, it is actually Heaven's Elephant. Heaven has four elephants, Wind, Fire, Thunder, and Lightning. At the same time, the corresponding second rank zither songs were all unlocked at this moment. In addition to the quick wind that Han Zhan had previously used to cross the ranks, there were two other zither tunes, namely Spring Wildfire and Sixth in Thunder and Lightning. All three zither tunes were related to celestial phenomena, which also sidestepped its description. At this point, Han Zhan and Xia Yue had all completed their breakthroughs, becoming second order spirit contract masters and second order spirit contractors, and obtaining the new divinity, four elephants of heavenly will, three zither compositions, and a huge increase in strength. The duo thankfully shut on once again. Right at this moment, Han Zhan's communicator rang, and after answering it, White Frost's slightly urgent voice came from inside. Captain, look at Deep Blue City's mission list, there's a new mission refreshed. On the electronic screen, a brand new mission was placed at the top of Deep Blue City's points mission list. Mission description, red alert, an insect race, cruiser, has appeared in the vicinity of Deep Blue City, please send out manpower to clear it immediately. Mission points, 1000 points. Threat level, level 3 plus. Recommended number of people, unlimited. Picking up restrictions, none. All city protector squads can take it. Third ranked insect race, the cruisers. This was completely different from the third order red flame beast that Han Zhan had tried his best to kill before. There was also a gap between the three orders. 
Cruisers were far more powerful than Red Flame Beasts, and a full-bodied cruiser was in no way inferior to three times the number of Third Order Spirit Contractors. Giving this task to the City Protector to complete? It's not appropriate, is it? It's clearly beyond the regular difficulty, shouldn't this kind be given to the Warzone to send someone to handle? It's rumored to be a juvenile cruiser that somehow appeared here. Even a juvenile cruiser was tricky. Officially, it was out of this consideration that so many thousand points were given, as well as the limit of no quest pickup. How about this mission, shall we, squad 0527, do it? Gather at Shisha Road and talk in person. Han Zhan hung up his contact, and after explaining the situation to Li Shudong, he hurriedly headed to the squad stronghold with Xia Yue. Li Shudong looked at the courtyard of the villa, which had gone cold again, and refilled his cup. Alas, crap, this has truly become an empty nester. He let out a self-deprecating laugh. Cruisers? What an eventful time. As Li Shudong spoke, the butler Rafu came out from inside the shadows behind him. Master, Miss Lingjian has been found, but she is unwilling to come back to see you. Where is she? Songhai City. Li Shudong glanced at the direction Han Zhan and the others had left and pondered for a moment. Then go to Songhai City to see her. Shisha Road, Squad 0527 Stronghold. The four Han Zhuan had just gone their separate ways in the evening, and now not much time had passed before they met up again. Yi Fan was full of the smell of alcohol, his eyes were sleepy, and he didn't know if he had been forced over by White Frost. So, to go or not to go? My advice is not to go. White Frost was the first to speak. The cruiser's danger level is at 3+, plus, and the risk is too high even for a juvenile. My advice is to abandon this mission and wait a little longer. Go! Why not go? Definitely go! White Frost's words had just fallen, Ifan had already yelled with his hand raised high. Go to work early, get off early, why not go? Ifan still had that hangdog look, not sobering up at all. After he finished yelling, he even directly laid down on the table and continued to huff and puff. Xia Yue did not open her mouth. She also didn't need to open her mouth, everything was listened to by Han Zhan. The current vote pattern was a bit subtle, and the right to decide on a vote still came into her own hands. Indeed, if it was just for the points, a more prudent course of action would be to give up this opportunity. But Han Zhan noticed a place that none of them had mentioned. Red alert. Why did they go hunting cruisers, not for the sake of having a points mission, not for the rewards, but, rather, to guard the city? That was the original intent of the city protectors. Points missions had made the city protector squad utilitarian, even making them forget the meaning of their name. Han Zhan sighed. Although he wasn't a saint, as a traveler who had obtained an SSS class talent, who didn't have a heroic dream of saving the world. What's more, a strong man could only be sharpened through constant battles, like rowing a boat against the current. My own path. It's the hero's path? Han Zhan's heart vaguely had a glimmer of clarity, the road ahead was still like a flower in a mirror, not real enough. But at this moment, he had already made up his mind. Let's take this mission. Deep Blue City, bordering the outskirts of the city. A long cordon had been drawn up here, prohibiting entry. From a distance, it looked as if the place was shrouded in black mist, with a huge upside-down black boundary covering the entire inside. It's the cruiser's talent, the black tent. It is able to isolate all senses and distinguish itself from the outside world independently, forming its own boundary. Anything enveloped by the black tent, regardless of whether it has life characteristics or not, will be accelerated to age, decay, and move towards final extinction. The scope of the black tent is still expanding, once it invades deep blue city, the large amount of life energy being ingested will only accelerate the growth and maturation of this cruiser, causing an irreversible plague. We must stop it. Zhang Xiaobei, who had led the first squad of deep blue city and arrived here in full force, spoke. Since the officials have already sent our first squad to handle this, what's the point of releasing that mission again? A squad member asked in disbelief. Zhang Xiaobei exhaled a mouthful of turbid breath and only said three words, scapegoat. The black tent can only be destroyed internally, there's no need to say how terrifying this cruiser is under the Black Tent's enchantment even if it's in its juvenile stage, right? We need to have a large number of people to attract its attention and draw fire. This was also what Zhao Hu meant. Those who achieved great things didn't bother with small things, and by solving a single cruiser, Deep Blue City's political achievements would be taken to the next level this year. Anyway, there are so many trash joining the city protector every year that it's turning into a trash concentration camp, it's fine to get rid of some of them slightly. Another squad member retrieved the binoculars in his hand, and a few people sat back at the top of the city, concealing their figures. What needed to be done next was just waiting. There weren't many protector squads that had taken on this mission, but there were also quite a few. The reason was simple, although it was unlikely that they would be a match for a third order cruiser, but what if? In case there was a big guy carrying the damage and they sneak up and pick up the slack, wouldn't they just take off? The cruiser was covered in enough materials to make them a fortune. Thinking like this, it was not hard to understand that there were desperate squads appearing. The 0527 squad led by Han Zhan also arrived from Deep Blue City. Looking at the huge black tent in front of them that encompassed at least over a hundred kilometers of land, Han Zhan's few people didn't enter it at first. This is the cruiser's talent, black tent. 
Han Zhan, who had read Lin Jingxuan's notes, was the first to recognize what this large black circular boundary was. Are you ready? Once you enter the black tent, there's no turning back. Go! White Frost nodded. Yi Fan shrugged with a disinterested face, this thing has no effect on me, I don't care. Xia Yue was a little nervous as she slightly clenched her fists. Right at this moment, a large hand reached over and pulled her right hand that was oozing with hand sweat. Don't worry, it's fine. Aha! Xia Yue was being held by Han Zhan as she nodded, it's just that I don't know why, there's always a not so good feeling. It's like, being stared at by something evil all the time. This place is so close to the black tent, and the insect race's aura is very thick, so it might be affected by this. On the side, White Frost also came over and opened her mouth to comfort. Hearing White Frost's words, Xia Yue nodded. Since there's no problem with any of it, let's go in. Han Zhan finished speaking and walked into the black tent with Xia Yue. White Frost and Yi Fan followed along with them. Hiss. Inside the air, if anything, a sound rang out and quickly disappeared. Just as soon as he entered the black tent, it felt like there were a thousand strands of invisible threads that landed on their bodies. Immediately afterward, the spiritual energy within the body began to uncontrollably follow these invisible threads, and slowly flowed towards the outside. The process is slow, but irreversible. As long as you are inside the black tent, you will be extracted from your life all the time until you die. This was one of the abilities of the black tent, life deprivation. We only have half an hour. Within half an hour, the black tent must be shattered from the inside, or else, we will all become the nourishment for the growth of the cruisers. Han Zhan said with a grave expression on his face. Are you talking about that black orb? White Frost suddenly pointed at a black orb high in the air not far ahead and asked. Just smash it? It's not that hard. As soon as her words fell, the ground under everyone's feet suddenly twisted all of a sudden as if it had been revitalized. The flat ground instantly became uneven, and the violent bumps left the four Han warriors with no place to land and support themselves at all. The original empty space around their bodies also turned into an incomparably thick and high wall in the next second. Han made a prompt decision, letting Xia Yue transform into the form of Fushi Zither, holding it in her hands. On the other side, White Frost, who was about to fall and be engulfed by the revitalized street when his feet were empty, was pulled by Yi Fan who reached out next to him. Be careful. Han Zhan only had time to utter this sentence, and an incomparably thick and solid giant wall appeared out of nowhere between him and Yi Fan White Frost. Without saying a word, Han Zhan swung his zither strings and attacked. The unrivaled Qin sound and gas blades bombarded the top of the thick wall, knocking down a lot of rubble. However, after the debris fell, the wall was still behind it, connecting upwards to the sky, completely isolating it. This was the second ability of the cruiser's talent, Black Tent, Life Empowerment. Life can be taken away, but it can also be given. The things that were given life were not only limited to people, but could also be weapons, props, and even the ground. The large ground had been given life by the cruiser, becoming a super huge active labyrinth. Once someone intruded into the Black Tent, it would plunge them into the maze and then slowly siphon off their life spirit energy, draining them alive. At this moment, besides Han Zhan and the others, there were also many of Deep Blue City City Protector squads that were also caught in this active maze. Han Zhan was holding the Fushi Qin in his hands, and when he realized it, he frowned slightly. This cruiser, he's even more cunning than imagined. With the power of the Qin's Qi Blade, it's able to shatter the walls, but it can't penetrate them. Once it stops attacking, the activated labyrinth will repair this one wall with walls from elsewhere, and the life activation trait makes it very difficult to deal with. There are only two ways to defeat this labyrinth, the first is to consume all the activation materials it can use to mend the walls, and the second is to use an absolutely strong attack to briefly prevent the walls from recovering, creating a recovery vacuum. Han Zhan shook his head as he muttered to himself. Both of these methods were not suitable for him. It's better to walk around first, since it's a maze, there must be an exit. After thinking about it, Han Zhan chose to conserve his physical strength, he had only just entered the black tent now, and with 30 minutes to spare, it was still too early to fight for his life. He approached one side of the wall and walked quickly. The first law of the maze, as long as you stick to one wall, you will be able to get out of the maze. Han Zhan didn't walk slowly, he even slowly opened his brain area to open up the urgent need to walk faster and faster. Sigh. A tiny voice like a devil's whisper suddenly rang in his ears. Han Zhan reacted extremely quickly, turning his head sideways to avoid a silver white bug. The bug missed with a single blow and instantly drilled into the revitalized wall, disappearing once again. Upon seeing that bug for the first time, Han Zhan's entire body froze for a moment. Because it was so fast, he doubted that he had misread it. Otherwise, if it was really that thing, it would really be a lot of fun. Han Zhan pressed down his heart shocked suspicion. He couldn't help but speed up again and run towards the exit. On the other side, Deep Blue City's first squad. Let's go, it looks like there won't be any new cannon fodder going in. Hmm. Let's try to get it done quickly so I can go back to enjoying my vacation. Their conversation was filled with confidence, confidence that stemmed from absolute strength. As the number one squad in Deep Blue City, each of them was a third-rank spirit contractor or a third-rank deeded spirit, and with a group of six, 
they would be able to return unharmed and unharmed in their entirety at the very least. When they entered the black tent, they encountered the same situation as Han Zhan. The group was instantly divided and plunged into the middle of the revitalization maze. At this time, Zhang Xiaobei stayed with another team member, and as they were walking, Zhang Xiaobei felt some pain in the back of his neck. He let out a soft cry while covering his neck with his hand. When the team member in front heard Zhang Xiaobei's voice, he instinctively turned around and asked, Xiaobei, how, are you? Before he could finish his words, the, his own neck was deadlocked by Zhang Xiaobei. In his dying moments, he seemed to see, in a trance, a silver white worm, drilling out from Zhang Xiaobei's forehead, and then slowly, drilling into his own eyes. In the revitalization labyrinth, on Yifan and White Frost's side, White Frost managed to stand still with Yifan's support. Being broken down one by one ah, this cruiser, it's a bit interesting. Yifan raised his head thoughtfully and looked at the empty sky, not knowing who he was talking to. You can't feel those invisible threads? White Frost asked. Feel it, but they are destined to gain nothing from me. Yifan answered truthfully. This was one of the rare times he answered squarely, and White Frost nodded. I really envy you, to have such a talent. Even under these circumstances, you don't have to worry about your life. Envious? Isn't seeking immortality an endless life a punishment? After Efan finished the sentence, he even laughed in a kindly manner and simply lay down, swinging in place. Anyway, can't get out. What's the point of bothering? Just swing directly and be done with it. Wait for rescue. These four words are more familiar to me than anyone else. White Frost was exasperated by him, who said anything about not being able to get out? She stretched out her hand and pressed it against the revitalized wall in front of her while opening her mouth and softly reciting, Wake up, you're just a shovel full of lifeless yellow earth. Lies, gift unleashed. The effectiveness of a lie increases exponentially when a fraud is committed based on truth. The giant wall in front of him was originally yellow earth that had been given life by unscientific means, so all the things White Frost said under his breath were true. Under the guidance of White Frost's power of lies, the only a loud rumble could be heard. The wall in front of us collapsed. Sixth in Thunderbolt, the climax of the plot begins, please subscribe. The active giant wall that collapsed with a loud bang almost buried Efan, who was lying on the ground, directly alive. The latter jumped up in fright. White Frost nodded in satisfaction as he looked at the other path that suddenly emptied out in front of him. Not only that, but the power of lies, was more like a rapidly spreading plague virus, starting with this wall in front of them and spreading rapidly. Rumble. More and more active giant walls began to collapse, and smoke and dust rose in all directions in a spectacular manner. They also quickly caught sight of Han Zhan, who was rapidly moving in the distance. Captain. White Frost shouted from a great distance, and if Han Zhan hadn't activated his brain domain opening urgent state at the moment, he wouldn't have been able to hear it. He subconsciously turned around and saw a scene that shocked him. The active giant wall that had been built in a single breath was collapsing at an extremely fast speed, dust to dust, earth to earth. In the scattered smoke and dust, he also saw many of the deep blue city protectors, who had fainted to the ground, their lives and deaths uncertain. Han Zhan's gaze condensed, and he keenly saw the end of those dusty masses on the ground. He held the Fushi Zither horizontally and swung his right hand with a letter. A Qin Shi blade struck in the direction of Bifrost Frost and Efan. Boom! The Qin sound air blade smashed into the churning earth-colored smoke and dust, not knowing what it had hit, making a muffled sound. It wasn't until then, when the smoke and dust cleared slightly, that Bifrost Frost saw that behind him, at some point, there was already a clay giant about three meters tall standing. On its body, a lurid opening was fluttering and falling with dirt, but it was also being repaired at a speed visible to the naked eye. If it wasn't for Han Zhan, the two of them would probably have been smashed into mush by this clay giant. White Frost grunted angrily in anger, pointing at the clay giant and shouting, What are you looking at, you're a fake too. The clay giant's movements to repair its body suddenly stopped. Immediately after, with a loud boom, the three meter tall giant collapsed very dryly. This simple and rough scene caused Han Zhan to look stunned. But he didn't have the time to stare, because after all the collapsed active giant walls disappeared, one by one, more clay giants and the smoke and dust had come out. As far as the eye could see, initial estimates showed that there were at least a thousand of them. Even if White Frost's power of lies was no matter how buggy it was, it would be impossible to resolve these thousands of clay giants in one go. Han Zhan's hand once again pressed on the strings. The entire space within the black tent, where a thick layer of dust had originally been scattered, was blown. Countless densely packed invisible threads also suddenly swung violently. It was the wind. The fast wind. Winds were everywhere, they still existed even within the black tent, and they were summoned by Han Zhan's Fushi Zither, and they all coalesced out at once, converging into winds. These winds were extremely fast as they traveled through the entire battlefield, quickly arriving beside by Frost and Efan. The two of them only felt as if they were lightly wrapped in something, and then their entire being rose up in the air. They flew up. White Frost and Efan, who flew up, quickly broke away from the surroundings of those clay giants. Han Zhan was the same. Fengxu was able to defend himself against the wind. After quickly breaking away from the battlefield, they also quickly arrived at the square where that black orb was located. Destroy that black orb, that's the main body of the cruiser. 
After it released the black tent, its main body merged into the entire black tent world, and the only thing left of its main body is this black orb. As long as we shatter the orb, we'll be able to kill the cruiser. Han Zhan said in an extremely quick tone. White Frost and Ifan looked at each other and nodded. Don't worry about going, we'll come and help you. As soon as her words fell, suddenly the entire black tent world began to tremble violently, and the black orb acted like a black hole with powerful suction, sucking everything around it madly. The sudden change happened in an instant. Cruiser also sensed the danger, it urged all the life energy it had absorbed and infused it into these absorbed things. After activation, all the things began to merge like liquid water, and soon, they finished merging, turning into an even more terrifyingly tall mountain giant that completely wrapped the black orb. Looking at this mountain giant that stood on top of the sky and was more than 10 meters tall, White Frost gulped. How is it? Your power of lies, is it still effective? White Frost gritted his teeth and shouted at this massive giant, Fake, all of you are fake. All of you are not living things. The mountain giant's body gave a slight lurch. Effective? Before the crowd could show their joyful faces, they saw a lot of sand and dirt flopping off the mountain giant's body, but its body didn't collapse, instead, it followed the direction of the voice and swung a punch towards White Frost. This woman, her talent was extremely odd, and she had already been tagged by the cruisers and entered the priority hunting list. Don't look at the mountain giant's extremely large size, but the speed at which it swung its fist was not at all dissatisfying. Terrifying wind pressure instantly took shape, and the punch even emitted a sonic boom that broke through the air, and in front of White Frost, a figure that was no longer scattered stood out. Please grant me, immortality. A golden, faintly striated light slowly emerged from the skin of Ifan's body, wrapping his entire body. The originally disheveled figure became upright at this moment, and under the golden light, Ifan chose to take this blow head on. The mountain giant's fist smashed heavily into him. It smashed the light striped golden light to the point that it brightened up a few points, but Ifan really blocked it. Six attacks. Ifan didn't talk nonsense and directly spoke to Han Juan at the side. Han Zhan nodded in understanding. What Yi Fan meant was that his immortal state would still be able to hold out against six such attacks. Han Zhan's thumb, index finger, and middle finger changed hands and pressed on the strings of the zither. As Han Zhan strummed the strings again, a deep blue-purple color splashed down on the strings he strummed. Meanwhile, outside the black tent, the sky, which was originally covered in darkness, suddenly resounded with rumbling thunder, and a streak of silver-white lightning streaked across the sky as if it were a roaming dragon. A vague and extremely faint shadow appeared in the sky. Within Deep Blue City, the City Protector Organization building, Jawu slightly narrowed his whitish eyes as he looked at the vision that had suddenly arisen in heaven and earth, that direction, it's the location of the cruiser's black tent boundary. What a dense lightning energy, building up as that shadowy figure appears. The power of this move isn't small, but it's not enough to defeat cruiser. The center of the battlefield. Ifan had already been punched out again. Is it okay? He shouted towards Han War there. At this moment, Han Zhan had already had lightning flashes of thunder and lightning traveling around his body, but he still looked serious and shook his head gravely, saying the same thing as Jiao Hu. It's not enough. Han Zhan's finger technique changed again, snapping the strings of the Fushi Zither for the second time. Thunder and lightning surged. Then the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth time. Every time he snapped it, the lightning that covered Han Zhan's body doubled in intensity, and after six times, he was almost completely covered in lightning, unable to see his original appearance clearly. The overloaded bearing was not an easy task even for a second-ranked spirit contractor to perform. With the sixth sound of the Fushi Zither, in the sky outside the black tent, the six differently shaped god statue's virtual shadows, completely solidified. Ding Mao, Ding Si, Ding Wei, Ding Yu, Ding Hai, Ding Clown. Six Ding's heavenly gods, serving the emperor, summoned by the sound of the Zither, for driving. Amidst the lightning and thunder that made it impossible to see the silhouettes, Han Zhan's dull voice rang out, and those six god statue silhouettes simultaneously tilted their bodies forward and six terrifyingly horrifying and shocking thunderbolts fell from the sky, going straight to the black tent. Zither music, six ding thunderbolts. End of chapter. A shocking change, the worm of erosion. From extreme night to extreme day, the entire sky was illuminated. Above the black tent, a huge opening appeared, from which countless thunder poured in, pouring down on the mountain giant that topped the sky. In an instant, its massive body was split black. One by one, after being given life activation, the objects turned scorched black and peeled off layer by layer eventually revealing that one black orb once again. Click, 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 click. A crack appeared on the black orb, and along with the cracking sound, the entire black orb turned into pieces and flew away. It was only at this point that Han Zhan finally breathed a sigh of relief. 1. He looked up and saw Yi Fan's face raising a smile at the same time, but in the next second, his smile turned into dismay as his pupils looked behind Yi Fan in shock. An even more terrifying aura rose up behind Han Zhan. Han Zhan saw Yi Fan's mouth clearly, run. Han Zhuo in the state of eight urgent fists only had time to follow his instinct to sidestep before his abdomen was pierced by an attack. The huge inertial impact caused Han War to fly out backwards with his entire body holding the Fushi Qin, and he looked stunned as he tilted his head back to look at the sky. 
The black tent, it hadn't disappeared. Did the cruiser not die? No, the black orb was its essence, this could not be faked, dead was dead. Then what was the matter with the black tent? Until this time, Han Zhan only saw clearly who was sneaking up behind him. White Frost, and by her side stood in the air, an adult cruiser. Having absorbed the life force of the dead juvenile cruiser, this adult cruiser maintained a special humanoid form, with two bone wings spread out on its back, and was retrieving the right hand it had just raised. In its chest, a larger black orb was emitting a ghostly light. It was it. Han Zhan's pupils suddenly shrunk violently. Surprised? White Frost was still in her heavily made-up appearance when Han War first saw her, and she gracefully stood next to the adult cruiser. This adult cruiser, is the surprise I brought you, how about it, do you like it? Adult cruiser, a peak third order bug race, quasi fourth order strength. If Han War and the others were barely able to deal with a juvenile cruiser, then an adult cruiser, they couldn't be a match no matter what. It wasn't until then that Han Zhan reacted to the fact that this was basically a no-brainer trap. I disguised it with lies and brought it with me, then found a suitable opportunity to release it and complete this finishing blow. Yi Fan ran over with a grave expression and blocked in front of Han War. Why are you doing this? Why? Ha 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 ha, why? White Frost laughed while her tears suddenly began to slip from the corners of her eyes. She raised her hand in an attempt to cover her eyes, but her other hand grabbed the wrist of this hand as if it was out of control. Bai Lu twisted and struggled to raise her head, and across from her, Han Zhan and Ifan both saw the silvery white insect shadow that flickered in her pupils. What's that? For the second time. There's absolutely no mistake. This is the second time I've seen it. What second time? What do you know? Ifan saw Han Zhan weakly raise his hand pointing at by frost and spoke, by frost, she's being parasitized. Parasitized? That's right, the silvery white insect shadow seen in her pupils just now is the rumored worm of erosion. The eroded worm, a fourth ranked insect race. In Lin Jingxuan's notes, this kind of insect race was supposed to have been completely purged and killed by the then first war region during a large scale insect plague 32 years ago. This was also the reason why, when Han Zhan saw that silver white insect shadow for the first time, he couldn't believe it. A fourth order insect race was simply not something they could deal with at this stage. The reason why it was given the fourth rank was because of its terrifying natural ability, Eclipse Brain. When any creature was invaded by the erosion insect's brain, its natural ability, Eclipse Brain, was able to completely take over the body, completely controlling the creature and parasitizing it. Not only that, it also has the characteristics of asexual reproduction and division. Because of this, the harm of the eroded bug was far greater than that of other insect races of the same rank. Once invaded by a large number of erosion worms, human beings become puppets with only a shell, bringing unimaginable disasters. In the history of Blue Star, there was a 7th order powerhouse whose brain was invaded by the erosion worms because of a carelessness, and he slaughtered a whole city that he was originally guarding, killing people and spreading corpses all over the place. In the end, it took a lot of time and energy and siege to finally resolve it, with heavy losses. The white frost in front of him had clearly been controlled by the worm of erosion, completely becoming a puppet. Her reaction of twisting and struggling was simply a residual instinct after hearing Yi Fan's voice. You go first. Yi Fan looked complicated after hearing Han Zhuan's explanation, I have the immortal talent, I can't die, can't walk away. Han Zhan barely stood up and shook his head. The adult cruiser's, black tent, after absorbing the juvenile cruiser that just died, has expanded its range by more than 10 times again. With our current speed, before we could run to the edge of the black tent, we would have already been caught up and killed by it. Not to mention, there's also an eclipse worm that's eyeing us. This was deliberately designed by it, a certain death. As Han Zhuan said this, his original gaze suddenly calmed down. Yi Fan, you still have four more chances for, immortality, right? That's right, within today, there are four more times. Yi Fan didn't understand why Han Zhuan asked this. He saw Han Zhuan suddenly grin and laugh. In this situation, he was actually able to laugh? Can you give me time for one song? Han War asked as he covered his abdomen and slowly sat down. After receiving Yi Fan's affirmative answer, Han War no longer cared about anything else, and mentally immersed himself into the Fushi Zither, playing it once again. The sound of the Zither gurgled, like a pearl or jade, clear and crisp. The music of the Zither, clears the heart. The spiritual energy that had been greatly consumed, as well as the appalling blood hole in his body, all began to recover at a speed visible to the naked eye. Seeing this scene, White Frost and Cruiser moved. They knew Han Zhan's strength, and the blow that had just ended the juvenile Cruiser was so powerful that even they needed to weigh it up. The cruiser's hands raised, a pitch black colored energy impacted, Yi Fan rushed forward and blocked it to the death. At this time, White Frost had already bullied him and grabbed his shoulder. Your immortal body is a fake. You don't have an immortal body at all. As White Frost spoke, the silvery white insect shadows in her pupils also began to split off one by one, burrowing down the arm into Yi Fan's body. Yi Fan, who was grabbed against his face, hesitated for a moment. But immediately, he slammed a headbutt on the White Frost's face. Whether it's fake or not, it's not up to you. Yi Fan raised his hand, squeezing a silver white bug out of his body, and pinched it to death with a forceful burst of juice. 
Immortality, remaining count two, between life and death. The adult cruiser stood in the air as it raised its hand and aimed it in the direction of Han War. Dark colored energy once again converged in front of its body, and this time, what coalesced was an incomparably sharp battle spear. Life energy was taken from all things, and it could also visualize all things, and this war spear made a breaking whine as the cruiser struck. Yi Fan was startled in his heart. He subconsciously got up to block, and the war spear suddenly enlarged several times at once. Power of lies. Yi Fan received this attack hard, and the faint golden patterns on his body began to brighten and fade, but it was clear that the opposite side had no intention of giving him a chance to catch his breath. How much longer? Yi Fan asked with bloodshot eyes. At this time, the sound of the zither came to an abrupt end. A Qin Shi blade struck out, startling back the left and right. Han Zhan, finally resurrected with full blood under the treatment of clear heart scatter. The Fushi zither in his hand disappeared, turning into Xia Yue standing beside him. Facing a strong enemy, Han Zhan chose to stop hiding his strength and fight with all his might. Yue, you and Fan, take charge of dealing with the worm of erosion. This adult cruiser, let me deal with it. Even if it's a certain death, I'm going to give their eyes, a whole lot of dust. Xia Yue sniffed and immediately sat down. Compared to Han Zhan, having her play the Fushi Zither was not only not inferior in the slightest, it was even better. Yi Fan continued to hold White Frost back, preventing her from getting close to Xia Yue. As for Han Zhan, he had already unlocked the first urgent need of the eight urgent fists, and as the white air wave surged, his speed increased to the extreme, and his entire body rushed towards the cruiser. After unlocking the open urgent need, Han Zhan put on the pair of gloves that senior brother Wei Qin had given him. A rushing aura of fury enveloped his entire being. Opposite him, the adult cruiser narrowed his eyes slightly. Hiss. It opened its mouthpiece and raised its hand to pull a bone longsword as tall as it was from it, holding it in its hand. It wasn't just humans who were learning to evolve, the insect race was as well. Han Zhan snorted coldly, his battle spirit was high as he swung his gloves, his physical abilities being utilized to the extreme. The fist gloves and the bone sword collided, and the two emitted silent air shapes, and between the death-defying interludes, the cruiser suddenly opened his mouth. I've seen these gloves before. A dozen years ago, it was on the battlefield and killed a bug king of our bug race. It belongs to the strong, but you are not. As he spoke, the cruiser fiercely increased his force, and the bone sword with green sticky saliva was about to press through the gloves and slash at Han War's shoulder. Throughout the battlefield, the melodious sound of the Fushi Zither resounded once more. Dragon Soaring Exercise, Increase Boost the heart-clearing dispersion, healing recovery, the formation-breaking song, zither-sounding airblades. The Fushi zither represented by Xia Yue's role in such a melee was comparable to that of three top-tier auxiliaries. With her support, Han Zhan blocked the sword. I'm not a strong person. Aren't you also not a bug king? Han Zhan nonchalantly taunted back, and his eight urgent fists technique was instantly executed. His right hand swept over the tip of the sword, and his entire body closed in, and at an unimaginable angle, his left hand drew a fierce dragon out of a hole, blasting his fist into the cruiser's left ribcage. Click. The cruiser's left rib made a crisp breaking sound. Han Zhan was still planning to take advantage of the victory when the bone wings behind the cruiser had already surrounded him. To be able to give you this pair of gloves, it seems that the relationship between that strong man and you is quite extraordinary. Since that's the case, he will definitely be sad for a long time if he kills you. This excites me. What Cruiser didn't expect was that Han War didn't retreat at all. His back was poked through by the bone spikes on the two pairs of bone wings in the next second, and blood gurgled. But Han War remained steadfast and swung his next punch. Just you? This time, it was the right rib. Wound for wound, life for life. In the face of the bugs, I won't take a step back. The bone wings ripped open to both sides, and Han War felt like his entire back was going to be torn in half, and the intense pain made him clench his teeth. There was another reason why Han Zhan was so reckless. It was because he knew that he couldn't give this cruiser a chance to catch his breath. Absorbing the life energy of a young cruiser was not something that could be done overnight, the absorption of the massive life energy required a process. Right now, the reason why the cruiser was insta-fighting was because it couldn't use too much of that life energy. Once it was completely absorbed by it and took complete control of this, black tent, then one would have no chance of winning. All of this knowledge, written down by second senior brother Lin Jingxian in no small detail, came in handy at this time. As Han Zhan thought of this, both of his fists drew out at the same time and slammed out at the black orb in front of Cruiser's chest. Cruiser was no lightweight, either. As Han War's two fists shattered his ribs and struck at his main body, the bone sword it had been shaken away from clutched once again, flipped its wrist, and stabbed down hard from behind against Han War's heart position. If you don't retreat, you die. The chance to kill the Cruiser was only this once. Life, also only this time. Han Zhan felt that the flow of time around his body seemed to slow down at this moment. Lightning flashed in his mind, and it was too late to think more, as the words Li Shutong had once said surfaced in his mind. In a split second, Han Zhan only felt a lot of white chi surging out of his body, which rushed straight from his body to his brain, arriving at the location of Hugh's urgent need in his memory, and surging in as much as he could. Eight urgent fists second urgent lock. 
Q, open. The body that had been squeezed to the extreme was completely restored all of a sudden. Endless spiritual energy surged out from every cell of his body as if the floodgates had been opened. Han Zhan swung that punch. His figure, at a speed indiscernible to the naked eye, blurred and swayed for a moment in the blink of an eye. The bone sword that was originally supposed to pierce through his heart shifted its position, piercing his shoulder blade and being stuck dead center. Although the pain was still excruciating, Han Zhan had already snatched a step ahead of him and completed the kill. You lost. Looking at the cruiser in front of him, Han War said. Unexpectedly, Cruiser suddenly opened his mouthpiece and fell down with a wild laugh, no, it's you who lost. In the next second, the black orb that had been shattered suddenly and quickly recovered. Not only that, the Cruiser and the entire, black tent, fused into one. Han Zhan, was still a step too slow. Above the dome of the sky, the gap that had originally been broken open had completely disappeared, and the Cruiser that had regained control of the, black tent, the bone wings on its back increased to three pairs all of a sudden, and it flew upside down into the air, looking down at Han and the others. Having successfully absorbed the young cruiser, this cruiser's strength was directly among the fourth rank. White Frost, who was entangled with Ifan, also very simply disappeared directly into thin air. Possessing the talent of lies, she wanted to go, coming, and going as she pleased. The cruiser in the air opened its hands, and above its head, a huge and incomparable meteorite coalesced into shape. Beneath Han Zhan's feet and theirs, the activated soil directly transformed into an earth-colored chain, locking the three of them firmly in place, unable to move. It's over. A move of meteorite fall was about to annihilate everything. Ifan still raised his hands high without giving up, wanting to block this first wave of meteorite impact for Han Zhan and Xia Yue. However, in front of the meteorite star, a mere human was too small. His last chance, immortality, lasted less than zero. Once before shattering in response, the blood vessels of Ifan's hands and legs directly burst open, the sound of bones breaking one after another, the next second was going to be pulverized. Suddenly, the meteor stopped falling. A pale but powerful voice rang in everyone's ears. Sixth of the eight urgent needs, Jing urgent, open. A punch from beyond the heavens. With the sound of this voice, the entire meteorite star boomed and turned into a sky full of star debris. The meteorite star, shattered? No, it wasn't just the meteorite star. The cruiser in the sky, who was like a god looking down on the earth, looked incredulously at the spot on his chest. There, where the black orb should have been, only an empty gaping hole remained. This punch came from beyond the heavens. The black tent, that covered thousands of miles also continued to peel off and dissipate, revealing the sky's original appearance. An old man slowly gathered his hands in his sleeves, collected his momentum, and stood still. Fortunately, caught up. Behind him, a jet carriage was slowly folding its mechanical feathers, a combination of high technology and retro, making it look incomparably otherworldly. Looking at Li Shutong standing there, Han Zhang grinned miserably and laughed. Master, a third order bug race and a fourth order bug race, I didn't disgrace you, did I? After he finished the sentence, he very dryly blacked out before his eyes and fainted. Finally, I can, get off work. Ifan collapsed on the ground, his entire body's bones and meridians broken and heavily damaged, he looked at the sky breathlessly and muttered. This battle was the most tragic battle that Squad 0527 had experienced so far. In this battle, one person was missing and two people were seriously injured. And this, was still only the fourth order insect race, the insect scourge. It was hard to imagine what the combat spirit fellowship masters of the major battle zones were encountering and experiencing every day on the real frontline battlefields. Master, not only have the cruisers appeared here, but there are also worms of erosion. As Xia Yue watched the rescue teams come over and send one of the city protectors to the hospital for medical care, she walked over to Li Shutong and said, The worm of erosion? Li Shutong swept a glance and nodded, the aura of another kind of insect race did appear here, but the other party is very cunning and has already hidden their traces, trying to track it down through the residual aura at the scene will be very difficult. Although I am good at fighting, things like the eroded insects are extremely cunning, if I rashly strike, I will only be spooking the snakes. Therefore, the matter of finding out the eroded worm still needs you guys to do it. Li Shutong had no intention of making another move to help. Difficulties were the best nourishment for growth, and as a master, he knew very well when to let go. Xia Yue had obviously thought of this as well, so she didn't say anything else. Everything would have to wait until Han Zhan woke up, and then think long and hard about it. Five days later, Han Zhan completely recovered. Under the sound of the Fushi Zither, Han Zhan also used at least three days to completely remove those dark wounds from his body. It was evident that he had been heavily injured in this battle. However, it wasn't completely unproductive. Between life and death, Han Zhan had managed to unlock the Hue's urgency, and the eight urgent fists had gone even further, and his strength had been greatly improved. The use of the Fushi Zither's music also became more skillfully attuned. Master's meaning is for us to investigate on our own and find out the worm of erosion. Xia Yue conveyed Li Shutong's meaning to Han Zhan, who pondered for a moment after hearing it. Where's Yi Fan? Where is he now? 
Fan is in the intensive care ward, when the meteorite star pressed down in the end, he tried his best to stop it, and his entire body's bones and meridians were shattered, and if it wasn't because of the immortality, talent, he might have already died. Now, although he's not dead, he's also badly injured, however, the immortality, talent is slowly repairing those damages. Just as the two were conversing, a nurse hurried over. You guys are Fan's co-workers, right? Have you seen him? Han Zhan and Xia Yue looked at each other in disbelief. What happened to Yi Fan? He's missing. Disappeared? Han Zhan and Xia Yue hurriedly arrived at the intensive care ward where he was under the leadership of the nurse, and the nutritional fluid tubes that were originally supposed to be inserted into his body swung there, and the hospital bed was empty. Han Zhan noticed that at the bedside of Yi Fan's hospital bed, there was a chess set. All the other chess pieces were in perfect condition, but only one general piece was missing, and it was nowhere to be found. Yi Fan, what is he implying? This guy, he probably doesn't feel good in his heart about White Frost. Should have left on his own, there are no traces of fighting inside the entire ward. Han Zhan checked again and didn't find any other useful clues. With Yi Fan's talent, it was unlikely that something had happened, and they resumed the discussion of the topic, back to the eroded worm. White Frost is a breakthrough point. Fourth order eroded worms can reproduce and divide asexually, but as long as they can kill the mother worm, they will be able to take care of the other child worms at the same time. Yi Fan most likely guessed something and went off to investigate alone. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Xia Yue thought for a moment, but still spoke, the city protector organization, this time, deducted 100 points from our 0527 squad. Because the mission was ultimately completed by master, all the other squads were judged to have failed the mission and had their corresponding points deducted. Hearing this, Han Zhan was infuriated and laughed. So, we're out there fighting and killing, and the rear is still engaging in these disgusting tactics to target us? There really are such people? Xia Yue nodded and continued to add. Not only did they deduct our points, they didn't even leave the cruiser corpses behind, and all the materials were moved back to the city protector organization building. Master didn't say anything? He said that this is a matter between us and the deep blue city city protectorate organization, and that no one else would interfere. I see. Han Zhan stood up without saying a word and walked outside. Xia Yue followed from behind. Where are you going? To get back what belongs to us. Han Zhan had already understood what Li Shutong meant. When Li Shutong said, the others won't intervene, it wasn't just himself, but also those other bigwigs. This was clearly hinting at himself, giving himself a backing. Then what is there to be afraid of? Zhao Wu, the vice captain of Deep Blue City City Protectors Organization, had given himself so many trips that if he didn't give him some color, he really thought he had no temper. If this was tolerated, he, Han Zhan, would not be called Han Zhan. The two of them came out of the hospital and headed directly to the Protectorate Organization building. This was the second time Han Zhan came here. Compared to the first time he came, it seemed to be a bit more popular, with many people walking out of it with happy faces. Upon seeing Han War and Xia Yue, some other emotions were added to their eyes. Captain Zhao is really generous this time, that's a fourth-ranked insect material, and it's just been distributed to all the squads. Harm, that's not because we helped him do his job, control points. Shu, someone saw Han Zhan and the others and stopped their companion from continuing. Han Zhan's eyes narrowed slightly as he listened. Using the trophies of the bug materials that his squad had desperately killed as a reward treat for those city protector squads that had helped him control points against himself? Zhao Hu, you're really good at this. Captain Han, what brings you here? Zhang Xiaobei walked over quickly from the reception desk and asked with a smile on his face. Han Zhan looked at him, and in a tone that couldn't tell if he was happy or angry, he spoke. Have Zhao Hu, get the hell out of here. The moment these words came out, the entire room fell silent. I'm here to beat you up. Ha 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 ha, is Captain Han on gunpowder? Be careful with your words, be careful with your words. Zhang Xiaobei still had the same look of a man with a hand out, walking over and saying. Just as he was about to approach, the, the dagger hidden in his sleeve was suddenly grabbed by his hand, and Zhang Xiaobei's harmless smile still rested on his face. The sharp blade slashed towards Han Zhuo unexpectedly. He was fast, but there was someone that was even faster than him. Han Zhuo covered Zhang Xiaobei's face with a slap in his unresponsive gaze, then his whole body's force poured into his right hand, ruthlessly pressing him to the ground. With a solid blow, Zhang Xiaobei's head hit the ground, and spiderweb-like cracks began to spread out from the point of impact. Han Zhan emitted an intimidating white aura all over his body, and his Kaimuchi and Humuchi were instantly unleashed. Seeing this scene, those city protectors were dumbfounded. Zhang Xiaobei was a third-ranked spirit contractor and a member of Deep Blue City's first squad, but as a result, he had only just exchanged one round of combat before being held down on the ground? This was too outrageous, wasn't it? It was too brutal. You. Boom, 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 boom. Han Zhan expressionlessly pressed Zhang Xiaobei to the ground and rubbed him back and forth, the splattered blood coloring the entire city protector mansion with a light red color. The onlookers, one by one, swallowed their saliva. But Han Zhan, however, did not have the slightest intention of stopping. Has anyone ever told you that the way you smile, you really owe it to yourself? 
reaching out and not hitting a smiling person, that's someone else, I'm hitting a smiling cub seed like you. Zhang Xiaobei opened his mouth, wanting to speak, in Han Zhang's state of unlocking his double urgent need, he simply couldn't even resist for a single moment. Finally, Zhao Hu stepped out of the elevator in a furious manner, and he immediately opened his mouth and droned. Seeing Zhao Hu appear, in the hearts of all the city protectors, they couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Zhang Xiaobei's head was once again held down. Zhao Hu's eyelids jumped as his tone was icy cold and his face was chilled, I said enough, can't you hear me? You said enough is enough? Did I say enough? Han Zhang laughed and picked up Zhang Xiaobei as a whole. He just wanted to make Zhao Hu lose face in front of all the city protectors, he wanted to tell these city protectors that the person he, Han Zhang, wanted to beat up, even Zhao Hu couldn't protect him. Zhao Hu's hand, which was behind his back, clenched hard into a fist. By his ear, the voice of his subordinate came from inside the ear-mounted communicator. Captain, the video of Han War making a move on the city protector organization building has been uploaded to the headquarters as you ordered. But, but what? But the reply given over by the headquarters is that this is an internal matter of the city protector of our deep blue city, so you should coordinate it yourself. What did you say? Zhao Hu's entire body froze when he heard this reply. What he didn't know was that when his men sent the video of Deep Blue City to the headquarters, the Deep Blue City information that had been highlighted was sent to the third in command, Su Mingxian, at the first opportunity. The moment Su Mingxian saw Han Zhan, his entire body perked up. He zoomed in on the video and slowed down the speed. When he saw the white aura that was instantly released around Han Zhan's body as he struck out, his mouth opened wide in shock, enough to stuff down a whole egg. 8. Urgent. Fist. Su Mingxian was not Zhao Hu, nor was he one of those ordinary people with little insight. As the third in command of the city protectors, he had seen more and knew more. So when he saw Han Zhan strike, he immediately recognized the unique fist technique, and even more thunderous than the technique itself was the owner of the technique. One of those few at the highest place in all of Dasha. He was also the head of the largest family in the entire Grand Xia. The one who saved Dasha from danger with his own strength, the only one to receive the Red Sun Medal, the symbol of the highest honor. The eight urgent fists, apart from that person, were only taught to his eight students, and these eight students are the bigwigs of the various war zones today. This young man named Han Zhan in the video, he actually knows the eight urgent fists as well? Doesn't that mean that he is also one of that person's students? The ninth student. When Su Mingxian thought of this, he immediately became jittery as if he had discovered something unimaginable. Even with a status like his, he wasn't qualified to know such secret information. Everything that involved that person, he was simply not qualified to ask about. With this in mind, Su Mingxian immediately called that receiving clerk at the headquarters and told him to use a reason to casually stall back. Zhao Hu, who was far away from Deep Blue City, of course didn't know that the reason he gave was Su Mingxuan's idea. While puzzled, he then asked, what about the monitoring group that was created under the major war zones? Didn't they ask you to send a copy of the video to them synchronized as well? The monitoring group. Monitoring group side said that this young man who did it had good hands and asked if there was any interest in joining them. Grass. Zhao Hu was so angry that he threw the communicator on his ear directly to the ground, what the TMD bureaucracy. These words came out of Zhao Hu's mouth, rather like a self-introduction. But in the center of the field, Zhang Xiaobei was still being carried, motionless like a dying salted fish. The gazes of all the city protectors were looking towards themselves. Zhao Hu took a deep breath, and he actually broke his patience and asked, Han War, what exactly do you want to do when you come here? Zhao Hu's softening, in the eyes of the other city protectors, changed flavor all of a sudden again. Zhao Hu had actually compromised with Han War. What did I come here to do? I'm here to beat you up. Han Zhan's words caused Zhao Hu's face to go green for a while, he had seen Han Zhan's strength, even a third order cruiser wasn't his opponent, if he really fought, he might not be able to beat him. It was impossible to fight. Zhao Hu could only continue to hold his tongue and continued, what do you want to do to put down Xiao Bei and stop continuing to cause trouble here? It's very simple, the rover materials that our 0527 squad worked so hard to kill outside the city, I heard that they were all embezzled by you. Han Zhan said here and paused for a moment. Those city protectors who heard Han Zhan's words, one by one, subconsciously put their hands behind their backs for fear of Han Zhan noticing what materials they were carrying in their hands. Han Zhan sneered and continued, so, I want you to open the treasure trove of the city protector organization and let me represent all the members of our squad and pick until I'm satisfied. That's never going to happen. When Zhao Wu heard Han Zhan's request, he was so angry that his face turned green. The city protector organization's treasure trove was filled with carefully screened items that were expensive. Letting Han Zhan pick at random? Dream on. Zhao Hu once again took a deep breath, Han Zhan, change the condition, this is absolutely not okay. No way? I, Han Zhan, am one person with two hands, even if I take the full amount how many things can I get? If you can't even fulfill this request, Captain Zhao, I doubt your sincerity. Han Zhan's words caused Zhao Hu to be somewhat moved. Indeed, if a person went in, how many things could they get if they picked until they were satisfied? Thinking of this, he finally decided and loosely agreed, fine, then you're only allowed to go in alone, and when you come out, 
you're not allowed to hide anything anywhere other than your hands. Han Zhan snapped, releasing the half-dead Zheng Xiaobei in his hands. He spread out his right and left hands that wore pitch black rings. It's a deal. Li Lingjin, Shen Ding, Deep Blue City, City Protector Organization Treasure Trove. This place housed all sorts of precious materials and props that the Deep Blue City City Protector Organization had collected over the years. As a treasure trove, it was unguarded. This was because the one who designed and built this treasure trove was the famous Samsonite Technology. One of the five major companies, Samsonite Technology, had always been committed to the research and development of the most cutting-edge technology, and they had created this treasury with a level of defense that was sufficient to withstand the full force of a seventh-order spirit contractor or spirit contractor's attack. It is absolutely safe. Outside the treasure vault, the subordinate opened his mouth with a worried expression and asked, Team Zhao, just let him go in like this? Zhao who waved his hand with unconcern. There are tens of thousands of items in this treasure vault, some of them even I can't recognize, do you guys think that a student who just graduated from the Green Vine Academy would be able to recognize them? What's more, even if he wants to move them all, he doesn't have the ability to do so, how many things can he take with both hands stuffed full for him? Let him move it openly, how much can he move? Han Zhan entered the treasure vault and was instantly dazzled by the dense collection inside. Eternal winter flower, Lianji grass, half-sleep. Appendage of a third-order insect skeleton ant, bone wing of a fifth-order insect ghost butterfly. Walking inside the treasure trove, Han Zhan counted his treasures as if they were his own. For no other reason, all of these things had appeared inside second senior brother Lin Jingxuan's notes, including their value, origin, parts, and so on and so forth. It was thanks to this note that Han Zhan wasn't lost in this treasure trove. There were materials that were glowing with a bright golden light and looked dazzling, but in reality, they were only of extremely low value in vain. Some materials were plain and dark, looking no different from the broken tree branches that could be seen everywhere on the side of the road, but they were rare treasures of extremely high value. Eh? This is the shell of a sixth-order wall crab? Using it as the main material, it's entirely possible to create a set of defensive equipment. If one had more of this set of defensive equipment, at least when one traded wounds for wounds with the cruiser again, one wouldn't be beaten up so badly by the cruiser because the only defense was given to Xiaoyu Wei. Good stuff, take it in. As Han Zhan said, the ring on his finger flashed with pitch black colored light, and the huge crab shell, which was a full person tall, suddenly disappeared into thin air. The storage ring with the Sumeru space inside was given to him by Li Shutong. Now it finally had its use. Baoyang flower, the plant that contains the most spiritual energy inside a third order plant, use it to extract a potion for breaking through the third order with excellent results. Han Zhan continued with a big wave of his hand, a black light flashed by, and several flowers that looked about the same mold as roadside wildflowers were in his pocket. This process lasted for about an hour. Han Zhan had finally strolled through the treasure trove and put everything he could see into the Sumeru space. The city protectors of Deep Blue City were still too poor, and the highest they could see was only sixth order materials, which were still very scarce in quantity. He thought somewhat unenthusiastically. When Han Zhan walked out of the treasury, the henchman next to him, who Zhao Wu had left behind to be in charge of the inspection, only saw him carrying one thing in one hand and strutting out. The two henchmen glanced at each other, and neither stood out to stop him. When Han Zhan walked away and they walked into the treasure vault to prepare to report back to Zhao Hu, they were directly dumbfounded. Hello? After picking for so long, he's finally gone? Zhao Hu picked up the phone and raised his eyebrows. Gone. Gone. Took a few things away? Five. Five. The henchman on the other end of the phone began to stutter in his speech. Five? Five pieces? It's a little more, but it's okay, these five pieces he took away today, sooner or later I'm going to make him spit it back with interest. Zhao Hu said viciously. No, Team Zhao, it's not five pieces, it's 50%. This young man called Han Zhang, he's rated 50% of our treasure trove. Half of the treasure vault has been emptied. Another henchman, shouted at the top of his voice inside the phone. What? Zhao Hu man on this side of the phone was dumbfounded. His first reaction was that these two little Yakuza were making up a story about stealing from the guards and putting the blame on Han Zhang's head. However, lending them dozens of guts, they were afraid that they wouldn't dare to do that. So what they're saying is true? Han Zhang, all by himself, had raided half of the treasury, how did he do it? No need to panic. Zhao Hu quickly reacted. It's true that the heart is not enough to swallow the elephant. All the things in this treasure trove are the property of the city protector organization. If only one or two pieces were taken, it might still be possible to cover it up. But emptying half of the treasure trove at once, can the protectorate organization let him go now? It didn't even need Zhao Hu himself to step in. Han Zhan was wanted and searched for by the city protector organization and then exiled to the lower city. Thinking of this, a cold smile appeared on Zhao Hu's face once again. Feedback all the things that happened here back to the headquarters, the headquarters will definitely. Team Zhao, for something this big, we've already reported it to the headquarters. The henchman on the other end of the phone, suddenly interrupted Zhao Hu's words, the headquarters only came back with five words. Which five words? Zhao Hu suddenly had a bad feeling. Headquarters said, good mediation. 
Half of Deep Blue City's treasure trove was raided, and the losses were heavy. It was reported to the headquarters, and the headquarters only returned a well-mediated? Crazy, really crazy. Either the protectorate is crazy, or they're crazy, or the world is crazy. Han Zhan and Xia Yue returned to the detached villa with a full load. Li Shudong wasn't there today. Xia Yue pulled Han Zhan, then ran towards the second floor of the villa without saying a word. Changing clothes, taking a shower, all in one go. Only after doing this did Xia Yue hug Han Zhan and said in a choked tone, at the time, I almost thought that I would never see you again. She was a chevalier spirit, but likewise, she was only a girl in the throes of love. When she saw that the cruiser's bone sword was about to pierce Han Zhan's heart, that image made one's heart skip a beat even when she thought back on it. Feeling the long lost temperature of Han Zhan's body, Xia Yue slowly calmed down. Ah Zhan, you won't be able to escape today, no matter what. Han Zhan felt Xia Yue's affection, and he subconsciously responded warmly as the two embraced each other. Just then, with a creak, the door was pushed open. A childish beauty wearing a loose vacuum pajama, appeared in the doorway. All three people froze. Han Zhan was still pressed on Xia Yue at this moment, in an ambiguous position. The childlike beauty standing in the doorway suddenly sighed quietly. In my room, wearing my pajamas, sleeping in my bed, how is this not a NTR? What shocked Han Zhan even more was her character information. Li Lingjin, Class E Deed Spirit. Illusory Form, Shinong Ding. Characteristics, None. Divinity, Yes, Not Awakened, Specific Unknown. Surprisingly, it's one of the ten divine weapons of the past. Shinong Tripod. Transitional chapter ends, continue the plot of the eclipse worm, this plot has been conceived almost, there is a reversal, there is a climax, please look forward to, Li Lingjin, Shinong Ding, has finally come out, sprinkle flowers, refining the book to return the truth, Han Zhan, Li Lingjin, Xia Yue, the three people were sitting around in a group, and the atmosphere was slightly awkward, that, is it really okay not to wear it, Han Zhan moved his gaze away and kindly reminded, Li Lingjin shook her head in disbelief, this is my most comfortable state at home, and keeping it that way helps me find inspiration and create. Creation? Xia Yue repeated. Yeah, didn't my grandfather tell you guys that I'm an online best-selling author? Li Lingjin's words caused Han Zhan and Xia Yue to look sideways, unable to see that she even had this kind of talent. What's your pen name? I'll take a look. Xia Yue asked in a hurry to hold her hand. Contraband books, censored all over the net. Han Zhan and Xia Yue suddenly somewhat understood why Li Shudong had never mentioned to them that his granddaughter had written a book. What about you guys? I just disturbed you guys, do you still want to continue? Li Lingjin's words made Xia Yue's face swish red, and Han Zhan also coughed softly twice, not picking up the conversation. If you guys don't want to continue, then let's continue. Seeing their reactions, Li Lingjin nodded before saying to Han Zhan again. Ha! Huh? Han Zhan and Xia Yue raised their heads at the same time and looked at Li Lingjin with a shocked expression. It had to be said that Li Lingjin still had a lot of strength, and with her extremely beautiful childlike face, she was practically a universal killer of young and old. Han Zhan's heart jumped a little faster in a highly indisputable manner. No. Xia Yue quit, immediately standing up and objecting. You've only just met for the first time, there's no emotional foundation for any of you, how can you be so hasty? Why do you need an emotional foundation to sign a contract? Li Lingjin asked with a bewildered expression. Are you talking about signing a contract? Yeah, what else did you guys think it was? Li Lingjin deliberately blinked her eyes and asked with an innocent face, and if she wasn't a banned bestseller author, Han Zhan would have really believed it. Seeing that Li Lingjin was deliberately teasing them, Han Zhan had to step forward and pull over the topic. Your ear-ranked talent, which does have a divine nature, can be contracted with me for a second awakening with, divine illumination. Really? Li Lingjin asked with a delighted face. She was originally in Shanghai City and was not happy to meet with Li Shudong, but after Li Shudong had spoken to her about Han Zhan's SSS-ranked talent, only then did she agree to return to Deep Blue City to give it a try. Now after hearing Han Zhan himself personally admit it, Li Lingjin was still very surprised. Then let's start the contract quickly. After Li Lingjin finished speaking, she couldn't wait to unbutton her pajamas, and her hand was immediately pressed down by Han Zhan. Wait wait wait, what are you doing? Signing a contract, huh? What does signing a contract have to do with taking off your clothes? Han Zhan looked at Li Lingjin with a shocked face and asked in confusion. Eh? Inside my book, signing a contract all requires negative distance contact before it can be accomplished. Li Lingjin replied matter-of-factly. Han Zhan and Xia Yue's faces darkened when they heard this. Your book being sealed, that's really not unfair at all. Han Zhan shook his head and stopped talking nonsense with Li Lingjin, this childish beauty who looked like she was full of yellow scraps, if he continued to talk, he was worried that Li Lingjin would do something outrageous again. The familiar contract formation awnings lit up. Golden yellow chains appeared on Han Zhan and Li Lingjin at the same time, firmly tethering the two of them. At the same time, Han Zhan snapped his eyes open and lightly shouted, Divine Illumination. Li Lingjin only felt that her entire body, under Han Zhan's divine illumination, fiercely began to burn, and she subconsciously tugged off her pajamas. 
On the surface of her white skin, a complex arcane pattern loomed. These lines were also golden in color, and under the constant gaze of divine illumination, they slowly peeled off from Li Lingjin's body and converged in the air above her head. In the end, it coalesced into the shape of an ancient cauldron. Ancient divine weapon, Shinnong Ding. After completing his second awakening, Li Lingjin's information also changed drastically. Li Lingjin, SSS Great Spirit. Illusory form, ancient divine soldier, Shinnong Ding. Divinity, refine origin, and return truth. Refinement, you can put heavenly treasures or insect materials rich in spiritual energy into it, and by activating the Shinnong tripod, you can refine everything to draw out its origin, and ultimately condense and extract the spiritual energy to return it to its true form. Cow, it's awesome. After realizing what refining the essence to return it to its true form, Han Zhan was shocked. I remembered that Li Shudong had said that one of the five major companies, the Everlasting Company, had become a company above all other countries because it had the means to refine spiritual energy. Not only did it make a lot of money, but it was also swept away by all the spirit contractors and contract spirits. But now, Li Lingjin Shinnong Ding talent also possessed the same ability. Doesn't this mean that in the future, it wouldn't even be necessary to go through the Everlasting Company to obtain pure spiritual energy and enhance breakthroughs? Is this, this my talent? Li Lingjin looked at her hands with an unbelievable expression, as Li Shutong's granddaughter, she also understood what this meant. Times, they were going to change. Let's try it now. Han Zhan couldn't wait. At this time, he couldn't care less about the differences between men and women or anything else, Han Zhan directly released all the heavenly treasures that he had just scavenged from his Sumeru ring. Li Lingjin also nodded. She transformed into the appearance of the Shinnong tripod in the next second, and Han Zhan stuffed all these heavenly materials and geomantic treasures into the tripod. Wait, slow down, it's too fast, it hurts. Li Lingjin suddenly yelled, and Han Zhan's movement slightly lurched. Okay, okay, put it in. Li Lingjin adjusted the position of the Shinnong tripod and aimed the mouth of the tripod at Han Zhan. Han Zhan nodded and continued to put materials into the tripod. After another moment, Li Lingjin's voice sounded again. Stop, stop, stop. It's already filled up, stop. Hearing this, the corner of Xia Yue's mouth twitched twice, if she wasn't watching with her own eyes next to her and was only listening to the voice, I'm afraid that she would have started to strangely float around by now. Was this the strength of a banned best-selling author? Terrifying as hell. Han Zhan also stood aside with an odd face, listening to Li Lingjin's then petulant and sometimes exuberant voice, he always felt that what he was holding in his hand wasn't a heavenly treasure, but some kind of dirty prop. But at least it is finished. Shinnong Tripod, at this time has been stuffed with materials, in Li Lingjin ground under the catalyst, it bloomed bright dazzling light. These materials were being digested at a speed visible to the naked eye, turning into a tiny white point of light. These white points of light in turn continued to coalesce in the divine peasant tripod, eventually condensing into a pure white pill. After a rough count, there were a total of nine pills. After the refinement was complete, it was no longer difficult for the divine Nong Ding to maintain its divine artifact form, and it reverted back to Li Lingjin's human form as she was drenched in fragrant sweat and directly collapsed limply into Han Zhan's arms. Why is it so much, you're so powerful? Xia Yue, it's still you young people who know how to play. Han Zhan woke up from his slumber. His left arm was pillowed by Xia Yue, who was curled up in his arms like a sleepy kitten, lazily stretching her waist. The right arm was held in Li Lingjin's arms, firmly locked in place. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan suddenly developed an illusion of being a winner in life. He hurriedly pulled his hand out of Li Lingjin's arms with great difficulty and glanced at Xia Yue with a bit of a thief's heart. After another moment, the other two also woke up. Let's go, it's getting late, from today onwards, we'll officially investigate the etched worm incident. Han Zhan said, taking the lead and accelerating his pace out of the room. As soon as he left the room, he collided with Li Shudong, who was eating breakfast. Li Shudong looked at him meaningfully and said, it's still you young people who can play. Master. Father? What are you talking about? Han Zhan was dumbfounded. Don't pretend, I came back last night, the commotion in your room made so much noise, I'm not deaf. You kid, give me to be nicer to Ling Jin. Hearing this, where did Han Zhan still not understand that Li Shudong must have misunderstood what happened yesterday, he was just about to open his mouth to explain something when Xia Yue and Li Lingjin had already yawned and walked out from inside the room. Ah, so tired, tossing and turning all night last night. Yeah, never been so tired, my back is almost broken. The two of them spoke to each other, the more they described, the darker Han Zhan only felt that Li Shutong's eyes changed when he looked at himself. In the end, he patted Han Zhan's shoulder inside. Young man, pay attention to your body and be moderate. After saying that, he left without looking back. This, Han Zhan wanted to cry. Last night, they went through the tests and finally came to the conclusion that the upper limit of what the Shinnong Ding could refine per day was 30 Dan pills. After refining 30 pills, the divine Nong Ding would temporarily lose its ability to refine the origin and return the truth. It wouldn't be able to fully recover until the next day. These 30 pills were divided into 10 pills for each of Han Zhan, and after he tried to swallow and feel it himself, each pill was able to increase his spiritual energy by 1%. 
This also meant that by swallowing only 100 pills, Hanjan could attempt to break through the third stage. How long would it take for 100 pills? It only took three days. This was a speed that could not even be thought of, whether it was the refining of spiritual energy from materials or breaking through the realm, it could be said to be unprecedented. If the everlasting company knew that Li Ling was truly deeded spirit talent, they would only do two things. Lift the entire company's strength and invite Li Lingjin to join their company. Or, raise the entire company's strength to kill Li Lingjin. So the less people knew about this spirit attunement talent of Li Lingjin, the better. What should we do now? Where to investigate? Li Lingjin asked as she leaped forward. We don't know yet, all the information we know about the worm of erosion came from the missing members of our 0527 squad. Li Lingjin came over and glanced at White Frost's picture. She suddenly let out a soft eep. I think I've seen this person before, does she often go to dance halls at night? How do you know? Because I often go to this ballroom? Seeing Han Zhan and Xia Yue confused, Li Lingjin continued to explain, Breeze Ballroom, the biggest ballroom in the entire Deep Blue City, don't you guys know about it? The dance hall that all city protectors must choose for their nightlife pastimes, the girls in there one by one, TSK, TSK. Li Lingjin continuously sked a few times when he said this, that look, like an old lecture. The acting was really vivid. Then what are you doing in a place like that? Han Zhan asked in disbelief. Looking for material, novels come from life, do you guys understand? I'm an author who focuses on realistic streams, if I don't accumulate more life materials, how am I going to write an article with a sense of immersion? Li Lingjin spoke with a straight face. She didn't remember the fact that her best-selling book had been banned from the entire internet. Girl, there's nothing wrong with trying to accumulate material, but can we accumulate more positive material? Then why do you know White Frost? Ha! Huh? Is her name White Frost? I only know her as Red Iris, is that her stage name? Li Lingjin shook her head. It's also a coincidence, when I went to Bree's ballroom in March to look for inspiration for material, I just happened to see her come to work on her first day, and she was scolded by the foreman because she wasn't willing to wear two revealing clothes. Pretty young woman, working as a dancer for a living, what a great piece of material. I just wrote her down and even made her the heroine in my book. That's why I was so impressed. After listening to Li Lingjin's narration, Han Zhan and Xia Yue looked at each other. Weren't the clues coming now? Let's go, set off immediately to the Breeze Ballroom. Xia Yue was the first to stand up and said. She was just about to take a step when Han Zhan pulled her back. Wait a minute. Before we go to the Breeze Ballroom, we still need to make some preparations in advance. Han Zhan mysteriously pulled Xia Yue upstairs. When they walked down again, Li Lingjin suddenly smelled something special and wrinkled her nose. No way, you two, messing around like this in broad daylight? The smell is so heavy. You can smell it? Han Zhan asked. Of course I can, eat Jack, don't come near me. Li Lingjin avoided Han Zhan with a disgusted face, after you guys do that kind of thing, can you go take a shower first? The smell is so heavy, it's disgusting. Also, from what I've gathered, guava, maca root, dark chocolate, avocado, and blueberries increase the quantity, walnuts, beer, wine, honey, ginger, cucumber, and bell peppers may make it taste better, and green leafy vegetables such as wheat, collard greens, cilantro, and spinach help boost health and vitality. To avoid garlic, onions, broccoli, cabbage, alcohol, asparagus, meat, dairy products, coffee, and other caffeinated beverages that may make it taste bad and bitter. Li Lingjin suddenly said a long string in one breath. What kind of horrible knowledge growth is all this ah? We didn't. Xia Yue hurriedly opened her mouth to explain. It's not that. That thing. It's the heather flower flavor law. Heather flower? Li Lingjin froze for a moment. Really not that? What do you think? You think we all give you the same, full of yellow waste. Han Zhan slapped Li Lingjin's head. What was sprayed on him and Xia Yue was indeed the flavor of the juice from the crushed heather flower that was sprayed on their bodies. The reason why Han Zhan did that was also very simple. It was because the worm of erosion had a weakness, and it could also be said that it was a way to recognize whether or not the other party had been parasitized by the worm of erosion. That was, the erosion worms were very sensitive to the smell of heather flowers, and after they smelled them, their emotions would become abnormally irritable and even crazy. The breeze ballroom was where white frost worked, and heaven knows if there were still any etched worm parasites keeping watch there, which was why Han Zhan had found this one method on Lin Jingxuan's notes. After spraying Li Lingjin with heather flower juice as well, the three of them were ready. Target, breeze ballroom. Breeze Ballroom. The Breeze Ballroom was open 24 hours a day. There were daytime customers during the day and late night customers during the night, so there was no conflict. When Han Zhan and his party arrived at the Breeze Ballroom, there were still a lot of people seated sporadically, with one or two dancers in their arms, laughing in low voices. It was rare for someone like Han Zhan to come to the Breeze Ballroom with two beauties of a higher face value by his side. Even the bartender at the door stared at them a few times with surprised eyes. You come here often, order something to drink. Don't be too expensive. Han Zhan added to Li Lingjin. Although he had just looted the city protector's warehouse and his wallet was still strong, he wasn't a big spender. Two glasses of fruit wine, a cup of iced coffee, and a snack platter. Li Lingjin then said to the attendant, 
They found an inconspicuous corner card seat and sat down, surveying the surroundings. On the stage, dancers in revealing outfits were dancing, and there were quite a few city protectors under the stage who had gotten off the night shift and were watching with great interest. There were also a few roving dancers on the side who were responsible for warming up the crowd and were toasting each table. Black silk, long legs, scars, and heavy makeup. It was very much in line with Han Zhan's stereotypical image of a dance hall. They quickly arrived at Han Zhan's table, directly ignoring the two who were clearly not the target audience and were still better looking than themselves, Li Lingjin and Xia Yue, they directly stuck to Han Zhan. Coming to the ballroom alone brother. You can open your eyes and say blind again. Accompany your sisters for a drink. The smell on you, it's so tantalizing. A dancer came up to Han Zhan's neck, inhaled deeply, and said with an intoxicated look on her face. Xia Yue and Li Lingjin looked odd. Surely they were doing one line and loving another? This flavor you can say is enticing, I wasn't expecting it. But this was also side proof that none of these dancers had been parasitized by the worm of erosion. Sorry, we've already ordered drinks. At this time, Li Lingjin opened her mouth, interrupting the continuous ruse of these demonic bitches. The dancer's source of income was divided into three pieces. The basic appearance fee, tips from the guests, and the commission from selling drinks. That was why they were so hardworking to persuade the drinks. After hearing Li Lingjin's words, the faces of the several dancers instantly turned cold. Che, no fun. That's right, bringing these two pretty chicks to a dance hall? What's the point of pretending? It's just as uninteresting as that deadhead yesterday who just drank water and didn't speak. The few dancers left with a lack of interest. Not long after, what they ordered was brought up by the bartender. Fruit wine with a light golden yellow transparent liquid, and a cup of iced coffee with white mist hanging from the walls of the coffee-colored cup, and a snack platter filled with steaming fries and unknown beast meat. With just so many things, the price was actually quite expensive, a few thousand dollars, making Han Zhan stagger. But looking at the dancers dancing vigorously on the stage, he was relieved. Receiving the iced coffee, Han War casually opened his mouth and asked the young bartender, Do you have a woman named Red Iris here? Han Zhan's voice was not loud. However, when he finished his sentence, suddenly, the bartender, who was carrying his dinner plate, had his gaze fall strangely on himself. It wasn't just him. In the entire bar, I don't know if it was an illusion or not, but everyone stopped moving and turned their heads toward themselves. Their gazes, all of them, landed on Han Zhan. This bizarre scene appeared and Han Zhan subconsciously clenched his fists, his mind sinking slightly. This guest, you just said, Red Iris? The bartender had a smile at the corner of his mouth, as if to reconfirm. Han Zhan pursed his lips. Yes. Throughout the bar, the people drinking and flirting stopped drinking, the dancers accompanying them didn't move, and the dancing stopped. As Han Zhan confirmed and was ready to battle this large group of parasitized echidna, Suddenly, the bartender cried out with great excitement, Excellent, this guest said Red Iris, he will pay for everyone present and pack the place. Woohoo! The others cheered along. Just as Han Zhan was still a bit uncertain, the bartender came over again and explained to him. It's like this, this guest, there was also a guest who came here yesterday who took a large amount of alcohol on credit, and then said that someone would come over afterward, say the three words Red Iris, and cover the venue and pay off his alcohol debt for him. The bartender's words made them instantly think of someone. E Fan who had disappeared from the hospital. He had also been to the Breeze Ballroom? He really was investigating the eroded worm as well. You guys just let him take credit? Han Zhan asked in bewilderment. Eh, hey, he's a city protector, and it's not the first time he's gotten credit from us, so everyone knows. Him. Sure enough, it was undoubtedly E Fan. Han Zhan shook his head, he didn't say anything more and chose to help E Fan pay off the wine. In the past, this kind of thing was all done by by Frost. Now that Bifrost was probably gone, Efan's debt for alcohol was not sure how many more times he would be able to owe it. Efan's prank soon brought new clues to Han Zhan. Only to see another bartender carrying a wooden box, walking towards them. That man said that after the liquor debt is cleared, he'll let us give you this wooden box. We can't open this box, so you can see for yourself, guest. Taking the box left behind by Efan. It was shrouded by a faint layer of golden light. It was none other than Efan's spirit contractor talent, immortality. When Han Zhan reached out to receive it, the layer of guardian light film on the box slowly dissolved away as if it sensed something. Opening the box, inside were two pieces of paper, each recording two different pieces of information. In February of the 23rd year of the insect plague, Yi Ming, the captain of Deep Blue City City Protector Team 1, returned from successfully exploring a nearby site, and the City Protector Organization awarded him. The entire squad heads to the Breeze Ballroom to celebrate. In March of the 23rd year of the plague, Yi Ming was transferred to the frontline battlefield for special reasons, and has not been heard from since. In the same month, Vice Captain Zhao who acted as captain. The information on the first piece of paper was about Yi Ming, the captain of the first team of Deep Blue City, and Han Zhan did not know why Yi Fan had left this information to himself. He continued to look at the second piece of paper. The cycle of asexual reproduction and division of the mother worm of the erosion worm is one month, with one child worm dividing every month. 
If you kill the mother worm, all the daughter worms will die along with it. The second piece of information was about the worm of erosion. Killing the mother worm was something Han Zhan knew, but this was the first time he had heard about the first division cycle, combining the contents of the two pieces of paper. Could it be that what Yi Fan wanted to express was that it was Yi Ming who brought back the mother worm of the eroded worm from that ruins outside of Deep Blue City? In other words, the division of the mother worm started in February, so a total of seven parasitized people exist now. This information was crucial. It allowed Han Zhan to narrow down his target at once. So now, they only needed to find the seven parasitized parasites to solve the problem of the eroded worm. Bartender boy, wait a minute. As Han Zhan thought of this, he called out to the bartender and opened his mouth to ask, do you still remember, back in February, did Captain Yi Ming ever visit the Breeze Ballroom? Attack! You're talking about Captain E of the City Protector Squad, huh? Been there ah, at that time, the entirety of their first squad was there, and they even happily opened two bottles of good wine. Really came to the Breeze Ballroom. Yi Fan's information was correct. So the mother bug was on Yi Ming? No, Yi Ming had mysteriously disappeared back in March, so if the mother worm was on him, how could it continue to parasitize other people in Deep Blue City? The one who was parasitized by the mother worm was someone else. Still pondering, Han Zhan drank half a cup of coffee down his throat. Coffee was known to be diuretic, and he had some urge to use the restroom. People have three urgencies. After greeting the two girls, he headed for the ballroom's restroom. Just arrived at the door of the men's restroom, before he went in, he heard a sharp gasp coming from inside, the sound sometimes high, sometimes low. There were always some people who couldn't help themselves and liked to find excitement in the ballroom restrooms. Han Zhan shook his head. He pushed open the door and walked in, finding a random spot and settling. At this time, someone else pushed the door and walked in. He had obviously heard the sounds in the restroom as well, and had a cigarette in his mouth and a playful smile on his face. However, when he walked behind Han Zhan, he suddenly frowned and stopped. Immediately afterward, an expression of extreme disgust suddenly appeared on his face, and his eyes began to turn crimson with a frantic look. Then, he swung his fist violently and attacked Han War from the back of his head. Among the few most vulnerable moments for a male expert was when he went to the restroom. This strike came without warning. Han Zhan only felt a gust of wind behind his head. He immediately opened his locks, accelerated his emissions, and then raised his pants and swung his fist. In one fell swoop. The opponent did not seem to expect Han's reaction to be so ridiculously fast, and was hit in the abdomen by Han's punch. He was sent flying out at once, ruthlessly crashing into the third door of the restroom, directly shattering the door and revealing a pair of panicked men and women inside. A silvery white insect shadow drilled out of that body and darted toward the door to vanish. How could it be faster than Han Zhan? Han Zhan raised his foot, then stomped on it violently. Worm of erosion. It really was the worm of erosion. After detaching its shell, its defense was horribly weak. Han Zhan's side had just finished solving the trouble. The man and the pair of wild lovebirds in the restroom had also resolved the battle, and he opened his mouth with a furious curse. Grass, who dares to disturb labor's pleasure. Baby, listen to me, I just didn't play well this time, the job of a city protector is too tiring. We'll come a second time later, the second time will be better. Boss? A female voice rang out, with a hint of panic and incredulity within her tone. The boss of the Breeze Ballroom was the one who had been punched out by Han Zhan. He was already dead. He wasn't killed by Han Zhan's punch, and after he was parasitized by the erosion worm, his brain had already been eaten clean, completely turning him into a walking corpse. When the erosion worm broke away from this body, he completely lost his vitality. But the others didn't know this. They only knew that Han Zhan punched the Breeze Ballroom boss, and then, this boss lost his breath. Immediately afterward, screams rang out. Many of the city protectors in the ballroom heard the sound and ran over. By this time, Han Zhan had already left the restroom and returned to his position. What happened there? Apparently, Li Lingjin and Xia Yuwei also heard the commotion and inquired. An etched worm, parasitized by the Breeze Ballroom owner, has already been resolved by me. Let's go. Han Zhan's group left the Breeze Ballroom. The clues seem to be broken once again. The owner of the Breeze Ballroom and White Frost, as well as the missing captain of the Deep Blue City City Protector's first squad, Yi Ming. Just who else had the worm of erosion parasitized? Perhaps we should start looking into it from the first squad of City Protectors. Li Lingjin voiced her opinion. According to my habit of writing novels, the bad guys tend to be the people around the protagonist. You guys, don't those team members around Yi Ming also have a high probability of being parasitized? Li Lingjin was right. The people in the first squad all had a high probability of being parasitized. While Han Zhan was thinking about it, a person approached him head on. An acquaintance. Zhang Xiaobei. Ever since he was beaten up by Han Zhan that day, his face still hadn't fully recovered. Seeing Han Zhan, Zhang Xiaobei subconsciously wanted to avoid this killing god. However, when he smelled the odor emanating from Han Zhan, anger appeared on his face uncontrollably. Han Zhan, I'll kill you. Zhang Xiaobei threw away his two crutches and just shouted out these words before falling on his ass. Even so, he raised his head hideously and twisted his body, wanting to kill Han Zhan. 
Immediately afterward, he suddenly lost his life as if his soul had been drained. Another silver white worm of erosion appeared. Such a coincidence? Another worm of erosion. It was so coincidental that Han Zhan himself was a little less daring to believe it. Another little minion. Hearing Li Lingjin's words, suddenly, lightning flashed through Han Zhan's brain, remembering the game of chess that Yi Fan had set up in the hospital room. Pawn? General. What did the missing general chess piece mean? At this moment, Han Zhan understood at once. I see. All of the people parasitized by the worm of erosion are inextricably linked to the breeze ballroom. Yi Ming, the owner of the ballroom, by Frost, Zheng Xiaobei, and the erosion worm that was crushed to death by Yi Fan. There are still the last two left, so one of them is the mother worm. All of these people have an intersection with one person, that is, the acting leader of the first squad of Deep Blue City, Zhao Hu. Zhao Hu is Yi Ming's deputy, and has also been to the Breeze Ballroom, is Zhang Xiaobei's vice captain, and even planned the point's mission of hunting the cruisers. Zhao Hu could afford the significance of general as a chess piece. Therefore, Zhao Hu was the mother worm. Damn. After Han Zhan figured this out, he suddenly let out a cry. We figured all this out, and Yi Fan, who obtained the information and guessed the truth earlier than us, where is he now? You mean, avenging White Frost and assassinating Zhao Hu. City Protector Organization Building, inside the topmost office. Zhao Hu had just finished exercising with his female secretary, and he picked up the tissue on his desk and wiped the sweat from his forehead. I'm surprised that you didn't choose to strike when I was most engaged. He suddenly whipped his head around to look into the shadows of a corner. Out of the shadows stepped a humanoid figure. He wore a large hood that hid his entire face from view. His voice came out of it. You shouldn't have touched my woman, scum. You mean Red Iris? I'm sorry, while straddling her, I would have never imagined that she would have another man at all. What answered him was an attack of light golden light. Zhao Hu's skimmed face returned back to square. He touched the bloodstain on his face with a look of excitement. Bait. You're the one who planned all this. Yi Fan looked at Zhao Hu, who was standing on the opposite side of the room, with an indescribable flavor in his tone. You killed Yi Ming as well. You're the one who usurped his position as captain, and then used the worm of erosion to slowly erode the entire deep blue city, specializing in suppressing those outstanding gifted awakened and chevalier spirits, turning them into scorned trash. Zhao Hu, the originator of all this is you. Zhao Hu faced Yi Fan's accusation, he was not surprised. He even looked at him with some amusement, like he was looking at a fool. It's me, so what? Your name is Yi Fan, right, because a woman died on the battlefield, so you hid in your own brother's place to heal your wounds. That incompetent younger brother of Yi Ming, that's you, isn't it? Yes, all those excellent spirit contractors have been targeted by me, and all those excellent contracted spirits have been played by me. This can't be blamed on me, this can only be blamed on their stance not being firm enough and their luck not being good enough. Also, you're standing here, talking so much nonsense to me, I can only say that you're really stupid. Just as Zhao Hu's words fell, a rush of footsteps had already come from outside the door. The smile on his face gradually widened. I'm waiting for reinforcements, you, what are you waiting for? The members of the first squad, accelerated their pace and walked in, they saw Yi Fan in Zhao Hu's office, and the first thing they did was to set up a battle formation. Captain, are you alright? It's fine, this person tried to assassinate me, didn't let him succeed. Zhao Hu pointed to his face with a victimized tone. It was a different person from when he was arrogant just now. Yi Fan took two steps backward without a trace, and the first squad of city protectors pressed forward, eyeing the tiger. Suddenly, a sharp whimper rang out from the floor-to-ceiling window next to him. Immediately afterward, with a crash, the floor-to-ceiling window was shattered, and three figures leapt in from outside. Sorry, we have reinforcements too. Han Zhan craned his neck, and together with Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, he stood up. Yi Fan looked at the three people standing in front of him and was dumbfounded. You guys really came. Nonsense, if we don't come, are we going to watch you get beaten up in a group by yourself? There are more than a dozen of them, even if you guys come, you'll still be beaten up in a group. It was all at this time, Yi Fan still didn't forget to be poor. However, as he spoke, he had also walked to the front and stood side by side with Han Zhan and the others. Captain Han, are you sure you want to be in the same boat as this assassin? On the opposite side, the first squad city protector asked with a frown. Justice is always held in the hands of the few. Han Zhan replied. Get out of the way, so many of you may not be my match. Han Zhan said as he set up his eight urgent fist stance, a white gas slowly dispersing beneath his feet. On the side, Xia Yue transformed the Fushi Zither in her hand, and Li Lingjin transformed the Shin Nong Ding above her head. Yi Fan raised his hand and snapped his fingers. Only to see that on each of them, a faint layer of golden light was wrapped around them. All the city protectors of Deep Blue City had heard of Han Zhan's mighty name, a fierce man who was able to kill third order cruisers and even touch base with fourth order adult cruisers. If they could, they wouldn't want to cross paths with someone like that. However, they were now actually going to try to kill the acting captain of the first squad of Deep Blue City. This was simply an insult to the city protector organization. There was no way they could compromise one step, no matter what. Song. Han War moved first. 
His urgent locks opened wide, his feet stepped out of the depression, and his entire body had rushed out. The speed was so fast that only a blurry phantom could be seen. The first squad member on the opposite side who took the brunt of the attack was already blown away by his punch before he could react. Han Zhan's strike was like some sort of tacit command, and Xia Yue instantly played the Fushi Zither, breaking the formation of the Zither sound Qi blades erupting and sweeping across the room. The sharp Qin sound in Qi blade cut the tables, seats, and carpets in the room into pieces, and the white paper flying around in the sky was directly reduced to pieces. The Zither tune in Xia Yue's hands changed again. The dragon soaring exercise empowered the crowd, and their combat power once again increased in a straight line. Yi Fan's means of attack was even more direct, he was originally a retired combat spirit contractor from the war zone, and his skill in fighting with insects, used in fighting with the city protectors, it was simply like killing a chicken with a bullseye, he quickly resolved the few city protectors who tried to counterattack. He's going to run. Li Lingjin, who had been observing the battle, was the first to see Zhao Hu, who was planning to slip away through the back door. She opened her mouth to warn. Don't worry, he can't run away. Han Zhan's figure appeared at the back, and his voice came a second slower this time. With his five fingers slightly gathered into a claw, Han Zhan struck Zhao Hu's chest with a single blow, ruthlessly smashing it into a dent. Pooh, Zhao Hu spat out a mouthful of blood. Seeing that he couldn't escape, he suddenly laughed out loud. Han Zhan turned back to stand, although his sight had crushed the battle, Zhao Hu's smile in front of him always gave him a not-so-good feeling. At this time, Zhao Hu opened his mouth. He was already close to mass. The voice that spoke was so low that only Han Zhan alone could hear it. You thought, you guys won? Cough cough cough, am I really a mother worm? Han Zhan, in fact, I have only one purpose, from the beginning to the end, and that is, to completely, destroy you. As Zhao Wu finished this last sentence, the silver white insect shadow pulled out from within his body, and without any surprise, was stomped to death by Han Zhan. However, at the same time, Zhao Wu also instantly lost his breath. Seeing Zhao Wu's death, the first squad of city protectors who were still in the midst of the fierce battle, each and every one of them stared incredulously. You guys, really killed Zhao Wu? You guys have too much guts, you don't even know what you've done. You guys don't really think that the city protector organization is the biggest one in Deep Blue City, do you? No, the city protectors aren't, the regulatory alliance isn't, the biggest one is the city lord of Deep Blue City. Their words made Han Zhan's heart thump. So, Yi Fan's general was not Zhao Hu? Time retreated to half an hour before Zhao Hu's death. A man of letters wearing black framed glasses was knocking on a door. Inside was Kong Chuan, the recently appointed lord of Deep Blue City. The gate was opened and then slowly closed. Inside came Kong Chuan's slightly frightened and alarmed voice, Secretary General, what are you doing? Secretary General. This silver white bug, what is it? Half an hour later, Kong Chuan walked out of the office with a document and handed it to the guard officer beside him. Pass the order down, Deep Blue City City Protector Alliance, Squad Number 0527, Captain Han Zhuan, is suspected of assassinating Squad 1 Acting Captain Zhao Wu, the evidence is conclusive. The entire city's combat power will now be utilized to apprehend Han Zhan. After the order was given, Kong Chuan smiled and held his glasses. The bait has been eaten, the fish, hooked. The world was like a chess game. By the time Han Zhan understood, it was already too late. Outside the high rise of the Protectorate Organization building, the roar of warplanes rumbled. The sky over the entire city was covered in clouds. Many teams of spirit contractors that had never been seen before and had a solemn aura appeared in the streets and alleys of Deep Blue City. Such a large battle was only for the purpose of apprehending the wanted criminal, Han War. The evidence was overwhelming. Han Zhan narrowed his eyes to see that he had fallen into the other party's trap, that wasn't the most crucial thing, the most crucial thing was that Li Shudong was in Deep Blue City, how could they dare to do this? He had some sort of bad premonition in his heart. You three, quickly go. Go back to the villa area and look for master. I'll handle it here, quick. After Han Zhan finished speaking in an extremely fast tone, Yi Fan turned around and ran without saying a word. The other two girls also followed along and withdrew quickly under Han Zhan's urging. In the next second, the entire room was enveloped by a strong aura. The air instantly became sticky. Han Zhan only felt like he had been slammed by a giant hammer, and his entire body slumped to the ground at once. He raised his head, trying to see the visitor clearly. Instead, he only saw a white patch of light. Suspect Han War, apprehension completed. The indifferent and ethereal voice seemed to come from an extreme distance. Li Shudong sat on the rattan chair in the gazebo and poured two cups of tea separately, one cup for himself, and one cup on the opposite side. It seemed to be certain that someone from the opposite side would definitely come. As he expected, the next second, a blurry silhouette with a body as black as quantum mimicry appeared across from him out of thin air. Secretive, we're all old friends, and you're still hiding your head like this? The silhouette opposite him did not speak. Facing this first person of Dixia, he sat down boldly and picked up his teacup and sniffed it. You still like Qingzhou tea so much. How I wish you could not say that. The temptation began as early as the meeting. The other party knew about Qingzhou tea, and his identity had already been established as one of the few top few people today. 
Li Shudong rubbed his hands together and drank the tea from the teacup in one go. You don't seem to be in a hurry at all. Anxious? Why would I be in a hurry? Because the heir chosen by you is already behind bars and the evidence is overwhelming. He will be publicly executed tomorrow. Must you target an old friend like this? Li Shudong looked up across the room as he clenched his fist slightly. Behind him, the white mist that was thick to the extreme vaguely transformed into the shape of a fierce tiger, and even a roar came faintly. Li Shutong's calm surface could not hide his killing intent and anger. Even if you kill this quantum state doppelganger of mine, it won't help. Old Shang has prepared many such quantum state doppelgangers for each of us, hasn't he? Li Shudong suddenly let out an O and resumed his seat. Let's continue drinking tea then. He regained his composure, as if none of the anger had come from him just now. The opposite party asked in a puzzled tone, aren't you in a hurry? Anxious. Li Shudong refilled himself with Qingzhou tea. He added with a faint smile, but this life, the world is like chess, the bureau is new. Second war zone, general command headquarters. An express report was delivered to Lin Jingxian. Han War has been captured. Which war department made the move? It doesn't belong to the eight war regions, it should be the private soldiers raised by those big shots. Ha! A look of contemptuous mockery appeared on Lin Jingxuan's face. Hustling the outside world must first secure the inside, nowadays this inside is getting more and more chaotic, rights, rights, or stepping on the horse's rights. One can share the sweet and the bitter, one cannot share the rich and the noble. Those private soldiers chose to strike at this time, they already have full certainty. They took down junior master in order to give teacher a downward spiral. Some people don't want to see the teacher take another disciple. Commander Lin, do we need to go for reinforcements? Behind him, his men inquired. Reinforcements? Why reinforcements? Lin Jingxian asked rhetorically. Don't forget, he's my teacher. The world always only remembers him attacking and killing the three great insect emperors by a thousand miles, who remembers his hundred years of planning for the people of Grand Xia, a teacher who can teach someone like me, to him, this is just a game of chess. Who can guarantee that junior brother, is not that bait that the teacher put down on purpose? Such a situation also appeared in the other major war zones, and all of Li Shutong's other students, after hearing the news, only asked the same question. Did Lin Jingxian make any moves? After receiving a negative answer from their men, they all individually set their minds at ease. Even Lin Jingxian didn't make any moves, so what were they panicking about? This was from between master and brother, unconditional trust. In Deep Blue City's prison, Han Zhan's days weren't as good. His hands and feet were put on inhibitors, and he could no longer invoke the power of the Qi spirit. The person in charge of the torture slammed his fist on his abdomen, and the torture device wearing a steel hoop was stained with blood. You still refuse to confess? Ha ha. Han Zhan laughed out loud. He then received another blow to his stomach. I'm sorry, but I've been a leathery person since I was a kid, and I haven't been beaten up by my family. I have nothing to say. You guys can fight with all your might. Han Zhan's words were like mockery, enraging the opposite side, these people didn't care what his status was, here, there was only one status, prisoner. Heavier and heavier fists greeted Han Zhan. He really did as he said, not a single grunt. Suddenly, someone walked in and raised his hand. The torture of Han Zhan was temporarily halted. Han Zhan, wake up, Li shut on, his old man, may not be able to come and fish for him now. There are two choices before you today. First, join us. You don't need to bother about who we are, you just need to know that Li Shudon may represent the past, but we, can represent the future. With your talent, as long as you grow up, there will definitely be a place for you in the future. Secondly, you can continue like this. Indeed, you are a hard bone, but as long as tomorrow passes, even the hardest bone will only turn into two halves under the guillotine. With your life gone, what's the use of having a hard bone? The man who spoke was standing in the shadows across the street. Han Zhan could not see his face clearly. He let out a light breath and asked, so, the fourth-ranked insect race, the worm of erosion, was something you guys deliberately let Yiming discover and bring back to Deep Blue City? You can understand it like this. For us, the insect race is not an enemy, and as long as they are utilized properly, they will become the most unbeatable tool. Well, have you made your choice? Han Zhan took a deep breath, then exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. He nodded, and as the other party approached over with interest, a mouthful of bloody phlegm was spat out, impartially, onto the other party's face. Han War laughed out loud when he saw this scene. I choose the third, Chao Nima. They, disagreed. The next day, early morning. The daytime in Deep Blue City was quiet, as usual. Some citizens turned on the TV, and the morning city news was broadcasting the news about city rebel Han War being executed on the same day. Some people pushed open their windows and could vaguely see the blurred execution platform that was built overnight in the center of the city from the tall buildings. Others walked down the street and saw a fast-moving black vehicle, which drove out of the city lord's mansion and headed to the same location. More and more people heard the news. Even in the end times, the last thing that was still lacking was people who liked to gather information and gossip. Soon, the people of Deep Blue City arrived at the torture platform, where they saw the rumored city rebel. Han Zhan was bound with special inhibitor ropes. 
Those people chose the guillotine, the most primitive and violent execution tool, and they were going to use Han War's head, blood, to make Lee Shudong see it. On both sides of the big screen, is playing Han War's one scene of crime. Whether it was in killing the owner of the Breeze Ballroom, killing Zhang Xiaobei, or killing Zhao Wu, these images were played one by one, completely confirming that Han Zhan was a traitor to the city and a traitor to the city. The images were shown one by one, completely confirming Han Zhan's guilt of being a traitor. Your Honor, the preparations have been made. When the time comes, the execution will be carried out immediately. Aha! Khan Khan sat inside the latest Land Cruiser disguised as a car and didn't show up first. Those three people who escaped yesterday, have they been caught? Not yet, they are very cunning, most likely hiding in that villa, we. Kang Chuan waved his hand, not wanting to hear anymore. He looked at the execution platform outside with an obscure expression, not knowing what he was thinking. Why is he still able to be so calm? His bottom card, what is it? No one was able to answer this question for him. Isn't this the spirit contractor who had awakened an SSS rank talent before? Gosh, how did he become a city rebel? I heard that it's because the officials put him down to the city protector alliance and were resentful, so they killed a lot of people. TSK, such a person is too scary, fortunately he has already been arrested. It's still this newly appointed city lord of our deep blue city who is powerful. The people were murmuring. Time passed by minute by minute. There was still no movement in the villa. This made some of the backhanded moves they had prepared against Li Shutong not have a chance to be used. It's a pity, it seems that Li Shutong really doesn't intend to make a move to save him. He should have counted on our means and voluntarily gave up on this ninth student that he just recognized. What a pity. Time's up, Lord City Lord, it's time for the execution. Outside the car, a henchman ran over to remind him. Only then did Kong Chuan step out of the car. As soon as he stepped out, the people of Deep Blue City swarmed and cheered. They shouted Kong Chuan's name, spat on Han War who had committed murder, and sighed in celebration of Deep Blue City having a good city lord. Kong Chuan smiled at the crowd and waved his hand before his face returned to solemnity. He walked over to the execution platform, where a microphone had been prepared in advance. This was the day that he was precisely the last city lord of Deep Blue City, and the fact that he chose to execute on this day was more like a proclamation. Greetings, citizens of Deep Blue City, I am the new city lord of Deep Blue City, Kong Chuan. Today is a day of joy, and anger. We have lost a young genius, who should have been a top spirit contractor with an unlimited future, but because of his own personal grudge, he wantonly killed innocent people. Not only that, he also tried to collude with the bug race to disturb the peace of Deep Blue City. As the city lord, I am very disappointed. But justice, in the end, will triumph over evil. All the butcher knives that dare to reach out to our great summer's people will be ruthlessly broken, and then counterattack back, returning the favor. I will fulfill my duty as the city lord, and step in for all the citizens of Deep Blue City, and execute this unforgivable city rebel, you guys, agree or not? Kong Chuan's impassioned speech made the people under the stage hear their blood boil. They chanted Kong Chuan's name, and the sound of agree was like a wave that covered one after another. I don't agree. Suddenly, at this time, an extremely abrupt voice rang out. The crowd was separated into a path. At the end of the path, Chen Spectrum was walking towards this place step by step with a sullen face. Behind him, there was Xia Yue, as well as the other students of the Green Vine Academy, and they were like an army, marching in silence. The power of silence was powerful. Their actions even overshadowed the voices of approval. Many of the populace stopped their frenzy and looked at them with eyes that were somewhat perplexed. I am the dean of the Green Vine Academy, Chen Spectrum. Chen Spectrum, who walked at the front, spoke, not only do I represent myself personally, I also represent the entire Qingting Academy, and the students of Qingting Academy, to disagree with this title of city rebel towards fellow student Han Zhan, city rebel. As soon as his words fell, the surroundings erupted in an uproar. Chen Spectrum was not a nobody, as he had nurtured generations of spirit contractors as the president of the Green Vine Academy. Within these crowds, there were people who had once been his students. Why was Chen Spectrum standing out and sticking up for a murderer? Kang Chuan's eyes narrowed slightly, Chen Spectrum's identity was sensitive, and it wasn't good for him to be openly offended on such an occasion. He only saw him make a cryptic gesture, and the person under his hand immediately understood and pressed the descending button of the electronic guillotine. In the next second, the sharp guillotine was about to slice off Han War's entire neck. Suddenly, it stopped. Like a dead machine, it stopped. Sorry, I don't agree either. A woman with a dignified and beautiful appearance appeared above. Underneath her feet was the latest expensive single-person flying machine developed by Samsonite Technology, which had a price tag. Shang Sistine. She snapped her fingers, and not only did the electronic guillotine stop working, even the electronic heat weapons in the hands of those guards, the cars on standby, and everything else that was electronic was forced to shut down at this moment. This, this was the gold content of the Sunshang Technology. The corners of Shang Siding's mouth rose slightly as she looked at Han War on the execution platform and said, I told you, you're mine, you can't run away. 
Deadbeat Li Lingjin was on another craft, hearing Sheng Siding's words, glancing back and forth with a gossipy face, seemingly brainstorming a number of unimaginable plots. Sheng Siding? You're standing here as a merchant? Kang Chuan's face became ugly. How could he not have expected that Sheng Siding would appear here, and what was even more unexpected was that she would choose to help Han Zhan? How did they know each other? What Kang Chuan hadn't expected was that those large screens that were originally broadcasting Han War's crimes, they were suddenly cut off halfway through and then relayed another screen. That was the image of Zhao Hu, the acting leader of the first squad of city protectors in Deep Blue City, before he died. Yi Fan stood at the highest point of the execution platform, his white hood blown open as he looked at them and uttered his cry. I, too, disagree. Victory and defeat are reversed, and a certain dry end is in sight. Li Shudong had been sitting there all night. The quantum mimic across from him was the same. The other party was waiting for him to make a move and then cast a backhand, when in fact, there was no need for him to make a move at all. A disciple doesn't have to be inferior to his master. At this point, Han Zhan had done well. A teacher's role was to act as a guide, and shouldn't just be an umbrella or a backer. Han Zhan, he's already traveled a long way on the road that belongs to him, probably without even knowing it himself. At the end of the insect plague, what's the hardest thing to get, is the hearts of the people. The quantum mimic on the opposite side fell silent. Li Shudong realized that the other party had cut off the contact with this body. Rather decisive. Li Shudong shook his head, and soon, his communicator rang. Oldly, the tracking failed, it's still close to discovering who the user behind it is, unfortunately. Old Shang, it can't be you. I'll roll you. On the other side of the communicator, Shang Miyuki cursed and hung up the phone. A note appeared on Li Shutong's desktop for no apparent reason. The organization behind the scenes has found the tip. Name of the organization, Breaking Dawn. After Li Shutong read the note in his hand, the words on the paper began to slowly disappear as if they were erased by an eraser, eventually disappearing along with the note. Breaking Dawn? Li Shudong raised his head with some amusement and looked at the quantum mimicry doppelganger on the opposite side of the room. He walked forward and gently tapped on its shoulder. In the next second, it dissolved into pieces. Deep blue city, in the center of the square. The onlookers hadn't reacted from this sudden reversal of images. They only saw that the... The original electronic big screen was replaced with the original content, and a new content was replayed instead. My name is Han Battle, the Battle of Battles. I became a spirit contractor for more than just staying alive. Kill. This was the image of Han Zhan when he first faced a third order insect race in the combat examination. The terrifying insect race that caused ordinary people to shudder was able to feel its monstrous aura even through the screen, but Han Zhan took firm steps and walked up. The screen shifted again. The sound of the cracking zither raged through the roiling sand and dust, the zither's chi blades harvesting the lives of countless deadly gray insects. In the deep blue merchant team's isolation, a black pickup truck rushed across the street like a moth to a flame in the face of a black tornado that covered the sky. Han Zhan, a man and a chin, stood behind the vehicle like exiled immortals. Once again, he stood at the front. The last image was the outskirts of Deep Blue City. Powerful third-order insect cruisers, shrouding the earth with black tents, constantly nibbling and expanding, trying to set off a new round of insect scourge. It was still Han Zhan, standing in front of it. Six dings of thunder and lightning, six false images of the gods. Brilliant heavenly might, divine thunder destroying the world. The blazing white thunder crushed not only the black tent, the cruisers, but also the hearts of the deep blue cities, citizens who shouted in agreement. Is this a traitor? If this was also the rebels of the city, then what were they? Everyone was silent. Kang Chuan saw that the situation was no longer under control, and a white shadow of light appeared behind him. That mysterious expert who had suppressed Han War appeared. The air became sticky once more. This time, the area enveloped was even larger. Not only the execution platform, but even Li Lingjin and Shang Siding, who had their feet on the flying machine in the sky, as well as Yi Fan, who was behind the electronic screen, were all encompassed. Everyone felt that breathing became difficult, the air became sticky and thick, and the vision in front of them began to blur. The other party was doggedly desperate. Seeing that they were unable to completely destroy Han Zhan, they could only retreat to a less honorable method. Forced obliteration. As long as they killed Han Zhan, they hadn't lost yet. This mysterious powerhouse's entire being was shrouded in light as he unleashed his talent. Absolutely powerful. His strength, which had come to the sixth rank, had even vaguely touched the threshold of the seventh rank. Even in the Breaking Dawn organization, his strength was among the best. This mission given to him by Dawn this time, would be the first time he showed his fangs by announcing it to the world. He would use the blood of this genius spirit contractor named Han Zhan to color the deep blue with a touch of red. Invisible power spread like tentacles. It was about to envelop Han Zhan. Suddenly, a strange change occurred. This mysterious powerhouse who radiated light all over his body, his body suddenly disappeared as if it had been rubbed out by an eraser, starting from the top of his head and gradually disappearing, until his entire person disappeared. Everyone breathed heavily as if they had regained their lives, and the feeling of stagnant air disappeared. The person disappeared? 
Where's a mysterious strong man as big as me? Where did it go? Kang Chuan stared incredulously, he couldn't think of such a question, but someone was able to bring him to his senses. Han Zhang walked down from the execution platform. The suppressors on his hands and feet disappeared at the same time. Good would, indeed, triumph over evil in the end. He, who would be the one to complete the finishing blow? Han Zhang's fist smashed into Kong Chuan's face. Smashing the ladder hard into the ground, Han War stomped on Kong Chuan's head with his foot, and then with his right hand, he gripped the upright microphone that the other party had been using when he was talking loudly. My name is Han War, the War of Battle. As you can see, I'm standing here, and your new city lord, on the ground. It's not the city lord, it's a fourth order insect race, the worm of erosion, which has parasitized humans to confuse and try to subvert. You may not believe me, for I never did any of this to make you believe. I stand here because I have people I want to protect. For humanity. Han Zhang said and pushed his feet hard. A mixture of red and white pulp flowed down from the entire execution platform. The execution platform still served its proper purpose. It was just that the person being executed had changed. The crows were silent. Another sudden eruption. More fervent cheers and shouts echoed throughout the square. For humanity had triumphed. Once again, they had crushed the bug's plot. Because their city was guarded. Because this young man named Han Zhang was handsome. When that was done, Han Zhang walked towards the back without looking back. Xia Yue was the first to run past Chen Spectrum and join him. Then came Li Lingjin, Shang sighting. They landed from the flying machine and followed behind Han Zhan. There was always this group of people that. They would leave their backs to others, whether it was spitting, praising, shouting, or slandering. They don't care. They'll just keep moving forward. Always moving forward. With the conviction of completely destroying the insect race that brought about the destruction and catastrophe, Li Shudong stood further ahead of Han. He was leaning on his crutches with both hands, his tone filled with relief and laughter. How do you feel? Li Shudong asked. It certainly feels good to have a teacher wipe my ass. However, if there's a next time, I prefer to be the one who holds the chess. Han Zhan's voice was similarly tinged with laughter. He replied. Because. This is my path. Burial at sea. Breakthrough to the third order. What followed became simple. Rectify, purge, and completely resolve the aftermath of Deep Blue City. After Kong Chuan's death, the other two erosion worm subsects also died violently at the same time, one of them, the secretary general by Kong Chuan's side. The other, was someone Han Zhan and the others hadn't expected. Okay. Li Shudong hung up his communicator and told Han War an unexpected answer. The seventh echidna parasite that he hadn't been able to find even after thinking about it would be Wang Lumo. He had already been selected to become a combat spirit pact master to send to the warzone, and if he wasn't screened out this time, the consequences would be unimaginable. Although all the major war zones have strict verification mechanisms that will definitely uncover this erosion worm, if it really comes to that, this erosion worm should have already caused no small amount of damage and trouble. Just now, Shocking Xian called and specifically asked me to pass on a thank you. Thank you or something, it was too raw. The other participant who plotted this event, the mysterious, Dawnbreak, organization, dived into the shadows the first time after it lost its hand. It was like a dark ghost's claw, stealing the fire of light, and when it failed, it merged into the darkness and disappeared completely. The private soldiers who attacked Han Zhang were all trained by Kong Chuan himself. The only one who had anything to do with, Breaking Dawn, was that sixth-ranked spirit contractor, but he had died a violent death inexplicably the first time he had been captured for secret interrogation. Even Li Shudong hadn't been able to dig up any more clues to find out that mastermind behind the scenes. White Frost's body was found, as well as the city protector spirit fellowship masters and ordinary deep blue city citizens who have been constantly disappearing in recent months, and they were all found on the negative two or three floors of the city protector building, preserved in ice. They should have all been parasitized and then stored there after being molted by the worm of erosion, ready for secondary use. On the other side, Xia Yue also brought new news. She sighed as she spoke. Although she already had an answer in her heart, Xia Yue still felt a void in her heart when she knew this news. Having already spent nearly a month together, the As a member of the same 0527 squad, White Frost's death was a not-so-small blow. But, this was the end of the insect plague. How is Fan doing? Han War asked. Same as always, the officials rewarded him with a bonus, and he took it all to buy alcohol. Now the squad points are also enough, because of this month's frantic tasking, the entire Deep Blue City City Protector Squad has no tasks to take. Is this the aftermath of being a mission bully? Han Zhan raised his head and saw Fan walking not far away. His body smelled strongly of alcohol, and he stumbled as he walked. There were quite a few people around who knew about him, and their eyes revealed a hint of sympathy when they looked at Fan. Han Zhuan, I want you to help me apply for a request from the officials. I wish that I can bury by frost at sea. She said to me before that she wanted to go to the outer beach of Deep Blue City to go out to sea to have a look, I was immersed in grief at the time, and I've always ignored this wish of hers, and now that I want to make amends, it's already too late. Izzy has passed away. This is the second time I've experienced loss, and it does seem that I am not someone who deserves to be loved. 
Not knowing how to cherish when you are loved, you only regret it too late when you lose it. Ifan finished with a kind smile, his eyes filled with bitterness inside. This request of his was not excessive. Deep Blue City was originally a seaside city, close to the sea, and a sea burial was much simpler than an earth burial. After Han Zhan told the city protector organization about this request, he immediately received a positive reply. It wasn't just white frost. A total of 1,001 people lost their lives in this eclipse worm incident, which had already been classified as a class 4 worm scourge. In order to appease the residents of Deep Blue City, stabilize their emotions, and also to pay tribute to those who lost their lives in the bug scourge, the officials need to do something. A sea burial was a good suggestion. Three days later, all the people who lost their lives in the bug scourge were placed into coffins, and the city of Deep Blue City was the first to synchronize and broadcast such a large-scale sacrificial ceremony. Thousands of coffins went into the sea. They floated away with the ocean currents. Every resident of Deep Blue City silently watched this scene and silently mourned. On the sea, the coffins kept sinking and floating. In the coffin containing White Frost's body, her eyes were tightly closed and her face was peaceful. Suddenly, the appearance belonging to White Frost melted away like ice and snow. A completely unfamiliar but exceptionally beautiful appearance transformed, identical to the appearance of Red Iris recorded in the file. The next second, she opened her eyes. Red Iris had a slight smile at the corner of her mouth. She opened her mouth. A translucent worm slowly crawled out of her mouth. At the Nine Palace Hot Pot restaurant, the spicy red oil bubbled. It was still eating hot pot, but the wave of people had changed. Li Shadong, Han Zhan, Xia Yue, Li Lingjin and Shang Siding, five people were sitting around. Yi Fan did not come, compared to the hot pot, he was more happy to drink two more bottles of wine. The dead had passed away, and life went on. After October entered fall, the weather gradually turned cooler, a hot pot was essential. You have all broken through the third stage? When he heard this news, Li Shudong froze for a moment, and even the well-informed man couldn't help but TSK his tongue. How many days had it been since they broke through the second rank? Ascending in rank was comparable to riding a rocket, not to say that there was no one after them, at least in the history of Great Xia, it could already be considered unprecedented. However, this speed was only temporary. A rapid realm climb also meant a huge consumption of materials, and the many materials Han Zhan had scavenged from the City Protector Alliance had already been refined by the Divine Farmer's Cauldron. After breaking through the third rank, Han Zhan, as a spirit contractor, had improved dramatically in all aspects. However, what had improved even more were his two contracted spirits, the Fu Qin and the Shinong Ding. Now both Xia Yue and Li Lingjin's character information had changed once again. Level, Third Order. Illusory Form, Ancient Divine Soldier, Fu Qin. Divinity, Sword Heart and Sheen Guts, for elements of heavenly will, taking in spirits and driving away spirits. Zither Songs, 1st Rank, Formation Breaking Song, Clear Heart Scattering, Dragon Soaring Exercise, 2nd Rank, Quick Wind, Spring Wildfire, 6th in Thunder and Lightning, 3rd Rank, Ancient Intent of the Remnant Sun. When Xia Yue broke through the 3rd Rank, the Fushi Zither awakened a new divinity, Spirit Taking and Spirit Driving, all enemies killed by it would have their spirits detained and transformed into a battle spirit. The 3rd Stage Zither Song, Ancient Intent Remnant Sun, was to summon all the slain battle souls to fight for it again in the Ancient Intent Remnant Sun formation. Although there was only one Zither Song at the third rank, there was no doubt about its power, and with an extremely high ceiling, the future was promising. Li Lingjin changed even more. Illusionary Form, Ancient Divine Soldier, Shinong Ding, Divinity, refining the essence to restore the truth, trapping all things, and the creation of living beings. The three divine qualities belonging to the Divine Nong Ding of the Ancient Divine Warrior were unlocked, and corresponded to the words Refinement, Suppression, and Nurture respectively. Refining is to refine medicine and spiritual energy. Jin is to subdue and suppress all things. Nurture is to nourish the body, create and restore the elements. Under the Trinity, it allowed the Shinong tripod to directly pull its functionality to the fullest, even surpassing the Fushi Zither in terms of assistance. Trapping all things can be the level does not exceed their own creatures directly sucked into the tripod suppression refining, suppression strength and refining speed with the strength of the increase. The spirit creation can continuously wash the body of the spirit contractor, and it can even accumulate spiritual energy and release it at once when the spirit contractor is seriously injured, restoring him from a state of serious injury and death to his peak. All Divine Techniques Thank you all readers for your recommendations and monthly votes, and I wish you all a happy double holiday haha. The Worm of Erosion storyline has come to an end, and the next storyline is about to begin. The next chapter of the transmigration plot is the link that many of you have been longing for, as you wish. Laughs the moon is so beautiful tonight. Shang Siding looked at the Han warrior trio with an envious face. Then puffing out her cheeks, she turned her grief into an appetite. It had to be said that even if she ate as much as she did, she still had the strength to grow meat where it should be. Silting ah, the awakening stone is already on its way here, but well, you'd better be mentally prepared. As Li Shudong, who knew about Han Zhan's spirit contractor talent, spoke to Shang Siding in advance to give her a precaution. 
Shang Siding hadn't yet awakened her spirit, but Han Zhan would only contract a spirit that possessed divinity, so even if Shang Siding eventually awakened an SSS ranked ordinary spirit, they might not be able to contract it successfully. Hearing this, Shang Siding looked at her best friend Li Lingjin with a defiant face. Damn it, to think that she had gotten the jump on them. At this time, a fingernail sized quantum light point appeared in front of Shang Siding, and after being lightly touched by her, it transformed into a transparent light screen. It was the latest model of the Senator Technologies communicator. It could realize global coverage, instant communication, video communication, chip semi-implantation technology, no physical carry, and various other advanced functions, summarized into one sentence, far ahead. On the other side of the communicator, an unkempt middle-aged man appeared on the screen. Girl, has that spirit contractor been taken care of yet? No. Sean Sith returns sullenly. Why hasn't it been taken care of? Is there not enough money? I'll call you another 500 million over and smash him to death. Shang Siding actually really hesitated for a moment. She still shook her head and said, it's not a matter of money, besides, he just indentured old Li family's Li Lingjin, he's not short of money. What? The middle-aged man on the other end of the communicator, his voice doubled. It's actually Lingjin that girl who was stealing a man from you. Then this is something I can't help you with, you'll have to find your grandfather to step in and let the old two of them cut their teeth. But I can send the company's newest destructive war fortress to you all over, cheering and shouting and whatnot is still no problem. What a dear father. The corners of Shang Sistine's mouth twitched a bit, not going to pay any more attention to him, and hung up the communicator. This was just a small episode. Li Shudong spoke again after realizing that Han Zhan and the others had broken through the third rank. After the third rank, there's no longer anything worth practicing in the large rear city, do you have any plans of your own? Teacher, I want to continue getting stronger and become a truly strong person, Han Zhan said without hesitation. After seeing the fourth-ranked cruiser, and that sixth-ranked powerhouse, Han Zhan's desire to become stronger grew stronger within him. I want to walk a path that is truly my own path of being strong. Hearing Han Zhan's reply, Li Shudong nodded. Originally, in my plan, I let you guys stay in the city protector organization until the end of the year, and you'd almost be able to save up enough materials to break through to the third rank, and then I'd let you guys go out to train at that time. But the speed of your realm breakthroughs exceeded my expectations, and plans can't catch up with changes. It's good to want to become stronger. But the path of the strong is also divided into several kinds. Li Shudong said, looking toward Han Zhan. With the Li family's heritage, along with the merchants, we can give enough materials to you right now to directly ascend to the 6th rank, or even the 7th rank, and become a strong person. What do you think? It sounds tantalizing and heartwarming, but I can't choose. Han Zhan declined the offer. Medicine pot warriors who haven't gone through a thousand trials and tribulations, such a strong person is vain and meaningless. Li Shudong continued. Then, you'll have to take another path. We will not give you any help, any privileges. You must rely on yourself, one step at a time, and break out a path from this insect plague and world. Are you, sure? Senior brothers should all be taking this path, and since they can, I can't fall into your honor. Han Zhan said, having already made his choice. Li Shudong was satisfied, in that case, I'll contact Wei Qing now and pick you up by airplane tomorrow to go to the frontline battlefield. As far as I know, their first battlefield, it just so happens that they're having the last big fight with the bug race a year ago. However, since it's an experience, they, can't go with you. Li Shudong said, pointing a finger at Xia Yue and Li Lingjin. The cultivation method of a spirit contractor is different from that of a spirit contractor. I have arranged a better place for them to go, and you need to cultivate separately for a period of time. How? Han Zhan, Xia Yue, and Li Lingjin looked at each other. Everything will be arranged by teacher. Late at night, the villa. Li Shudong had already contacted Wei Qing, and tomorrow, a plane from the first war zone would arrive in Deep Blue City to pick up Han Zhan for the front line. This was the last time they would live together for a short period of time. A full moon hung in the deep night sky. The moon is so full. Han Zhan looked up at the starry sky and was quite emotional. Yeah. Xia Yue walked to her side and stood side by side with him. The two of them were a pair, a pair of lovers, and the atmosphere was a bit heavy as they would be parting ways after tonight. Tomorrow you will be going to the frontline battlefield alone. The latter words, Xia Yue didn't continue, and Han Zhan knew it. In a short period of time, this would be Han Zhan's last chance to obtain his divine talent. Without a deity spirit by his side, it was a very dangerous thing for a spirit contractor to be alone, even if he was Han Zhan. Thinking of this, Xia Yue's gaze was once again firm. At this time, Li Lingjin suddenly knocked on the door of the room and walked in as well. Don't. Don't get me wrong. As a realistic author, I'm just here to take the material, eh? The lame reason made the three people fall silent at the same time. The night is getting deeper. The moon was fuller. Han War was so tired that he lay down side by side, but he also finally managed to obtain the divine gifts of the Fushi Qin and the Shinong Ding. To Han Zhan's surprise, the divine talent he himself had acquired was actually on par with the primordial deity in terms of strength. There seemed to be a difference between divine talents and ordinary spirit talents. 
As an ancient divine warrior spirit of deity, it was only after Han Zhan's 100% divinity fit that he had achieved the current effect. Doesn't that mean that in the battles that followed, there would be two Qin masters dancing together on the battlefield? Such a picture made the heart race. I withdrew my thoughts. Looking at the soundly sleeping Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, a smile appeared on his face again. The light moonlight spilled down and shone on them. In my hometown, such bright moonlight only comes during the mid-autumn festival. Han Zhan sighed to himself, I just wonder, how are my family and friends who used to be there doing now? The moon was bright in his hometown, and having traveled to this world, he could no longer return to his hometown. Those images that he once remembered were also becoming blurred. But ah, here, I have found the people I want to guard, and the path I want to take. The place where my heart is at ease is my hometown. It seems to be not too bad. The moon is beautiful tonight. The next chapter begins a new plot, the Battle of Izanagi. The Battle of Izaoi, Happy National Day. Dashia, the frontline position. A mega barrier that could not be seen at a glance, running across the center of a mountain range with special terrain, bisecting the vast world as far as the eye could see. On one side, there were camps stationed by human spirit contractors, which were densely packed like small mountains and neatly arranged, with spirit contractors and spirit contractors constantly flocking to the barriers, and many injured spirit contractors being withdrawn from the barriers and sent back to the camps. Large troop carriers came from the rear, their reverse kinetic stabilizers spraying light blue tail flames, sending up a cloud of smoke and dust. Young spirit fellows, young in appearance but solemn in demeanor, quickly rushed out of the troop carrier after it landed, quickly adjusted, and went into combat. Seriously injured spirit fellowship masters and fellowship spirits were sent back to the troop carrier that had vacated its space and rose again, sailing back to the rear position hospital without stopping for a moment. On the mega barrier, hundreds of thousands of heavy cannons attacked intermittently, fighting in an overloaded state causing their barrels to sizzle and turn red. Energy beams of terrifying power tilted, cutting across the battlefield. There were also countless battle rays mixed together, and on this large meat grinder type battlefield, those were different battle spirit contractors and contracted spirits fiercely fighting with their enemies. On the other side, there were insect race elites that stretched for thousands of miles. The main force that fought the first battle zone this time, the Izanagi race. Izanagi, in the language of the insect race, meant snake. The main insect race on the battlefield was those huge snakes that were often hundreds of meters in size. They crawled on the earth's mountain ranges as if they were walking on the ground, and each giant Izanagi serpent had countless smaller serpents attached to it, and they quickly converged into the battlefield like a dark-colored tidal wave, battling with human spirit masters to a single point. Rivers of blood flowed, and mountains of corpses and bones were formed. This great battle had already lasted for a full two months. More than a month ago, Wei Qing, the chief leader of the first war zone, returned, and under his leadership, the long-stalled human position was pushed forward hundreds of miles. The special mountainous terrain at the moment was also made by the powerful spirit contractors of the first war zone who relied on their talents to move mountains and fill in the sea. As the first dangerous barrier to guard this place, the mega barrier was built with the most advanced materials and weapons, and a lot of effort was put into it. It is the first barrier to be guarded by the most advanced materials and weapons. Because in the historical records, this place used to belong to the Yuman Mountain area, so this mega barrier was also called Yuman Pass. This large-scale battle, which lasted several months, was eventually recorded as the Battle of Izanagi. Battle of Izanagi, Yuman Pass East-West, Camp No. 97. Because the front battlefield attracted a large number of Izanagi bug race elites, the intensity of the side battlefield was slightly less intense. However, the battle losses were equally severe. A few grey-headed squad leaders were guarding the anchor point of the mooring port reserved for the troop transport ships, waiting in anticipation. Old Zhang, your squad only lost three men, how dare you come to the mooring harbor to wait for reinforcements? One of them, cursing, opened his mouth. His face was glowing with a dark green color, as if he was poisoned, oh no, he was indeed poisoned. The Azaoi worms, as snakes, were extremely poisonous. Within the ten severely injured spirit contractors, there were at least eight who were suffering from severe poison. Put your mother's fart. There are only five people in total in the standardized squad, and three of them died in labor, so they can't come and wait for reinforcements? Zheng Zwifu was so angry that his face turned even greener. His hand trembled as he pointed at the other person standing next to him and furiously said, Your fucking squad is only missing two people, you don't also come to wait for reinforcements, you have to have some face okay? Being pointed at the nose of Xiaoya is not annoyed, straightened out and said, Can I be the same as you guys? I came here with a mission, see, elite mission. Xiaoya pointed to the blue inscription on his arm. That was the mission inscription. On the battlefield, the different color inscriptions on the arm represented the different missions carried out by the squad they were in, and according to the seriousness and urgency of the mission, they were divided into five colors, white, green, blue, red, and black. White is simple, green is average, blue is elite, red is extremely difficult, and black is ten deaths. Xiaoya's squad received a blue elite mission arranged by the Ministry of Strategy and had the privilege of one reinforcement supplement, which was the rule. Zhang Zuofu was dumbfounded by his dislike. 
He could only wave his hand in resignation and said in a rather irritated tone, then the next reinforcement troop carrier, you take it first. The other few squad leaders heard this and did not object. Xiaoya was going on a blue elite mission, which proved that his mission wasn't too difficult, and that it had a certain influence on the entire battlefield situation. The battlefield was not an officialdom. Everyone was screwed into a rope, whining to each other at most, and would not do tripping things at all. While the two were talking, the sky suddenly darkened. A small troop carrier landed from the sky. Xiaoya walked to the front of the line without fail, and couldn't wait to see the hatch open. The white smoke dispersed, and a young man with a childish appearance walked out of the troop carrier alone. The smile on Xiao Yao's face froze. A person? A spirit contractor? What about a spirit contractor? Xiao Yao waited for a while longer in disbelief, and only after confirming that no second person had come out from within the troop carrier, or even that the troop carrier had already relifted back up to return to the ship, did he completely die. You're only one person? Where's your deeded spirit? Being asked by Xiao Yao in a split second, that young man was obviously stunned as well, and he replied tentatively, at home. At home? Xiaoya almost took a breath without slowing down and directly turned his back. What is this place? The Azeoi War, a large-scale battlefield. Your spirit fellowship master came over, and then told me that the spirit fellowship spirit didn't come with him, and he's at home? You're traveling here. Xiaoya wanted to say something, but was suddenly pulled by Zhang Zuofu's sleeve. Zhang Zuofu couldn't hold back the gloating smile on his face, but he still kindly reminded Xiaoya who was about to lose his temper. Captain Xiao, you'd better calm down first, this young man is not to be messed with. Zheng Zuofu's words were said in front of everyone, and when he heard them, Han Zhan also froze. Hmm, I didn't expect my heroic deeds in Deep Blue City to reach the front line so quickly, but soon, Zheng Zuofu's next words dispelled that thought. Looking at how he's dressed, he's not even from the neighboring Combat Spirit Fellowship Division Conscript Battalion, you don't get it, do you? This is a noble son from the city. Zheng Zuofu said the word city very heavily. Xiao Ye instantly understood. Some rich and powerful people, who didn't want their heirs to continue to go to war, but wanted to get some bragging rights, so they made some connections to send them through troop carriers to non-critical recruiting points so that they could play in the sauce. There were people like this everywhere, and they were loathed by the battle spirit fellows as noble gentlemen. When he thought of this, Xiao Yao looked at Han Zhan with even more displeasure. Blue mission, severed children, and grandchildren. Old Zhang, let's talk, this noble duke will be given to your squad first, okay? In front of Han Zhan, Xiao Ya directly kicked up the ball. Zhang Zuofu shook his head like a rattle. Are you kidding me, there were already only two people left in his team, and then another drag queen, do they still want to live? No, no, absolutely not. It was said that you chose first, how can you go back on your word? Xiao Yao then looked his eyes to the other few captains around him, and they all shook their heads in unison as well. They were here to kill bugs, not to be babysitters. Grass. Xiao Ya's mouth exploded with a dirty word. No matter how unhappy he was, this was a battlefield, so he could only hold his nose and incorporate this noble son into his team. Come with me, move a bit more nimbly, by the way, what's your name? Han War, Third Order Spirit Contractor. Aha. Uh Xiao -huh. muffled his nose and answered. My name is Xiao a Fourth Order Spirit Contractor, and also your current squad leader, according to the regulations, you will be admitted into our squad. Xiao Ya said as he turned his head back toward the way he came. Han Zhan followed behind him, his footsteps not slow. The two quickly passed through a thick forest and arrived at the place where Xiao Ya had camped. This kid, just now, my speed wasn't slow at all but he was still able to follow me, a bit of strength. Xiaoya was a bit surprised as he glanced back at Han Zhan, he didn't say anything more. Beside the small bonfire, the other two people got up at the same time. These two looked like they were also just in their early twenties, but their heads were unkempt, and their clothes were tattered and torn, with quite a few scars. Han Zhan was sizing them up, and they were also sizing Han Zhan up. When they saw that Xiaoya had only led one person back, the two looked at each other. Captain, what's the situation? Only one person? Could it be that he's carrying the deity spirit transformation with him, it's very professional. These two people were the pot calling the kettle black, Xiaoya did not answer, stifled a grunt, and briefly talked about Han War's situation with the two people. After hearing Xiaoya's words, the two also looked bitter. Anyone who brought along a dragger, or was on a frontal battlefield with an extremely high mortality rate, it would be difficult for anyone. They only introduced themselves briefly with Han Zhan and walked away with a lack of interest. The man's name was Kai Shifang and the woman's name was Shi Xiaoqian, both graduates of the previous class, both third-ranked spirit contractors and chevaliers, and they had already been fighting in the frontal battlefield for a year. Han Zhan didn't get angry because of their coldness, and had only respect for these fighting spirit contractors who stood firm on the battlefield. After thinking about it, Han Zhan pulled out three pairs of defenses from within his Sumeru ring, all of which were crafted from the sixth-ranked wall crab shells he had scavenged last time. This is. Seeing the defense gear Han Zhan handed over, they were all stunned. Everyone has worked hard deep into the battlefield, these three pairs of sixth order defense gears are for you to replace to improve your safety. In the face of Han Zhan's gesture of goodwill, 
The two finally revealed a little smile, in the battlefield with defenses and without defenses, are two concepts. Xiao Ya, however, shook his head and did not take it. I won't need it, I'm a mecha manipulator, I don't need defenses. Keep this pair of defenses for yourself. As expected, he was a noble son in the city, not only did he have a space bag for storage, he also had a 6th rank defense gear, TSK. I wonder which big family is from, such a big spender. Xiaoya thought in his heart, and finally didn't give Han Zhan too much face anymore. Han Zhan barely blended into the group. Little Han, we'll be moving tonight, when the time comes, you'll follow us and watch out for yourself. Listen to old Xiao for everything. Taking someone with a soft hand. Just now, he was still being indifferent, but now he's already calling little Han. Han Zhan smiled and nodded, asking with some curiosity, Captain Xiao said he's a mecha manipulator? Well, old Zhao's spirit fellowship spirit was sacrificed in the frontal battlefield, and for them, veteran spirit fellowship spirit masters with combat experience, the war zone will arrange for secondary employment opportunities, such as piloting a mecha, or retreating to the second tier of the battlefield. Old Xiao chose to stay. He said that even if he dies, he'll die on the front line, he can't die in his lair in a lousy way. What he despises most is those big shots who are corpses. Sorry ah, I forgot that you are also. Kai Shir Fong, who was self-conscious of saying the wrong thing, hastily shut up, but Han Zhan shook his head in disbelief. At this time, Xiaoya had already come over from the distance. One person had a bag of air-dried beast meat that replenished their spiritual energy, and Han Zhan was also given a bag. Hurry up and eat, hurry up afterward. The mission requires us to arrive at the target location by 10 o'clock this evening. What exactly is our mission? Blue mission, break off the children. When Xiaoya said the name of this mission out loud, Han Zhan almost didn't choke on the dried beast meat in his mouth. As if he himself felt that the name was a bit awkward, Xiaoya continued to explain, you should all know about the Izanagi snake clan, right? The Izanagi clan's reproduction speed is extremely fast, and through data testing and comparison, the speed of their battlefield reinforcement is 10,000 times that of ours. Even if we've expanded the battle damage ratio to 100 to 1, we still can't offset the Izanagi serpent clan's explosive troop reinforcements. This is also the reason why more than a month ago, the first battle area and the Izanagi serpent race's elites were glued to each other in the frontal battlefield. However, more than a month ago, the sudden and strong return of Wei Qing, the head of the first battle area, broke this balance. Marshal Wei took the lead, punching through the eternities and directly piercing through the Izanagi serpent race's reinforcement supply line, pulling up the battle damage ratio to skyrocket to a horrifying 100,000 to 1. The Izanagi serpent race was bitten off by Marshal Wei's divine warriors with such a big bite, and only then were our positions on the frontline battlefield able to push deeper across. However, this advantage is only temporary, as long as we give the Azeoi serpent race a reprieve, its nests of up to dozens of serpents will hatch their eggs at the same time, billions of Azeoi serpent race replenish the battlefield, and by then, the Great Xiao will once again be in a bitter battle. The Azeoi serpent clan was not without strong men. Soldier against soldier, general against general. Wei Qing's sudden strike caught the Azeoi clan off guard, but soon enough, the four eighth rank snake emperors entangled him. Both sides fought soundly all the way, and had long since broken away from the battlefield to fight elsewhere. The latest mission orders were sent from the second battle zone. They had already divined the locations of these dozens of snake nests through the talent of a spirit pledge master, and had issued an urgent mission called Sever the Children. The team with the closest distance and the fastest maneuvering speed in each region would be responsible for completing the task. Xiaoya's team was also assigned to the mission because of this reason. The coordinates of the mission showed that they were less than 5,000 meters away from the nearest hidden snake nest, and if they marched through the night, they could arrive at their destination before 10 o'clock. After Xiaoya explained, he stepped on the bonfire on the ground and extinguished it. Hurry up and eat, we'll leave while it's still night. Snake malt. The night was deep. Han Zhan's four rushed along while the night was dark, they had no lighting, and they were rushing along completely in the dark. Night vision was disabled. The Azeoi snake race had a keen sense of electrical pulse disturbances, and once they detected Han Zhan and the others ahead of time, it would be a lost cause. Not only that, they had to wear the special night clothes developed by Sinchong technology to prevent being discovered by the other side's night vision. Between coming and going, the difficulty of accomplishing the mission increased dramatically. Luckily, several people were spirit contractors and deed spirits, so for such difficulty, it was still within the acceptable range. Han Zhan and the others traveled all the way over the mountains. The mission coordinates had been issued to each of them within their communicators. This was just in case. If something bad happened to one of them, then the others would have to continue walking to complete this mission. Han Zhan swept a glance at the dense forest around him, and the thick soil under his feet, it was hard to imagine that these were the masterpieces of some spirit contractor powerhouse. A spirit master who could do this, just how strong should he be? As expected, there are people outside the world, and there are heavens outside the world. Deep Blue City is still too small. As Han Zhan was thinking in his heart, suddenly, something soft and fluffy dangled onto his face. Inside the air, a rich and strange flavor began to permeate. That kind of smell was like the stench of seafood fished out from the sea in the past life 
which had rotted after being exposed to the sun for a few days. Not only Han Zhan, the other three also smelled this odor. Xiaoya, who was walking at the front, stopped in his tracks. Strengthen our guard, we're already very close to the mission objective. Is there a possibility that we've already arrived? Han Zhan suddenly spoke and pointed above their heads. The crowd looked up. A thin layer of grayish-white membrane was seen dangling there. What had just dangled and swung over Han Zhan's face was this kind of thing. It wasn't just above their heads, but as far as the eye could see, it seemed to stretch extremely far and deep into the night. What is that? Kai Shifang subconsciously asked. Xiaoya shook his head, he didn't know either. At this time, Han Zhan spoke up. It's a snake molt. Every time the Azeoi snake clan completes a rank promotion, it will undergo a molt. The molted snake skin is not only able to continue to emit an aura to deter other insect races, but it also has effects such as concealment and insulation. These cunning Azeoi snake clans, they hide their snake eggs in here. It was too late to be surprised as to why Han Zhan was so knowledgeable, and at the place where Han Zhan pointed his finger, they really saw countless densely packed transparent snake eggs. They were wrapped in white mucus and fit tightly on the snake molt above their heads. Seeing this scene, Xiaoya opened the mapper he was carrying ahead of time. Activating the device, a film of invisible light instantly spread out. On the small screen of the mapper, the images belonging to the snake molt and the snake egg began to take shape rapidly. The results are out. The snake molt is 6,730 meters long, with hundreds of millions of snake eggs clinging to it, confirming that it is undoubtedly the mission target snake nest. After reaching the conclusion, Xiaoya was about to start burning and purifying the place. The thousand meter long snake molts, coiled and stretched across, wanting to remove all of them at the first time was not a small difficulty. In particular, when Han Zhan and the others completely entered the snake nest, the snake eggs that were originally attached to it began to emit a slight rattling sound as if they had sensed something. The rattling sound of an egg was very slight, yes. But don't forget that there were hundreds of millions of eggs here. When all the snake eggs chirped at the same time, the sound became unimaginably loud, as if it was a super loud roar in the ears, almost shattering the eardrums. Kai Fong was a little dizzy from the chirping sound. He subconsciously took a step forward, wanting to alleviate it, but to his surprise, his feet suddenly felt empty, and his entire body fell down towards the diagonal front. The mountain, plowed out into a deep canyon, was covered in barren grass, and was not noticed at first. Fortunately, Shi Shaochan on the side was quick to catch him. So close. Before the two of them could catch their breath, a large mecha suddenly fell towards them. It was Xiao Ye. He had already activated his mech armament, intending to start clearing the snake nest according to the specified time, but he didn't expect that those chirping sounds seemed to have a huge impact on the mech, causing it to directly go out of control. The uncontrolled mech rolled towards Kai Shifang and Shi Xiaoqian. It was about to be smashed into the abyss along with them. At this time, the speed of the out-of-control mech dropped abruptly. Han Zhan reached out his hand and tugged on the mechanical arm Xiaoya was wearing. Xiaoya was shocked by this sudden scene, the mech he was wearing was the third-generation combat mech of the Samsonite technology with an overall weight of more than 500 kilograms. Even as a mech controller, one would need to undergo training of up to half a year or more to be able to control it freely. But Han Zhan, he actually just stretched out a hand and yanked the out-of-control mecha? How much strength did he have? Xiaoya was worthy of being Captain Xiao, and in the face of this situation, he was still able to make the most rational judgment. Han War, let go of me. The electronic voice of the mech controlled by Xiaoya sounded, mission priority, continue with the mission. I'll unload the two flame incineration guns carried on the fighter mech, you go finish the follow-up mission. Hearing Xiaoya's reply, Han Zhan subconsciously surveyed the empty cliff beneath their current feet. It was unfathomably deep. Even if they were wearing mechs, if they fell like this, they were afraid that they would be seriously injured. Not to mention, there were still two team members below, and letting the mech roll down would take them into the abyss as well. Saving people is important. Han Zhan made his judgment after sizing it up. You fart. Han Zhan, you obey my command. Give up saving people and carry out the mission. Xiaoya was so angry that he cursed, that weird chirping sound wave destroyed the mecha's central control platform, and the tail flame flight device couldn't be activated, which he could only attribute to his own negligence and carelessness. On the battlefield of the insect race, a single carelessness could usher in a deathly end. Han Zhan, listen to me, the time of the mission given by the second battle zone is the time when the snake eggs hatch, if we don't complete the purge within the stipulated time, the consequences will be unimaginable. Even if we roll down from here, there is at least a possibility of survival. But if you don't clear these snake eggs as much as possible now, once they hatch out, Xiao Yao hadn't finished his words yet. He suddenly felt his mech being slowly lifted upwards by a few points. Through the screen view, Xiao Yao could see with his naked eyes that he was being pulled back, little by little, from the edge of the cliff that was just a few moments away from the abyss. Then came Kai Shifang and Shi Xiao Qin. After they were all pulled up, they were all lying on the ground, breathing heavily. The feeling of their lives hanging in the balance was terrifying, and they didn't have time to say words of thanks to Han Zhan. Ka Ching. The crisp sound of egg shells shattering resounded clearly throughout the snake molting nest. Ten thousand snakes were heading toward the nest. 
It's finished. The young snakes of the Azaoi snake clan have been hatched. As Shaya's words were just finished, more and more eggshells shattered, and a gray-black young snake, like rain, fell down through and through. In the blink of an eye, the entire ground was covered with Izanagi young snakes. Although the Izanagi's young snakes were only at the first level of strength, the current number of them had far exceeded the range that Shaya and the others were able to solve. Not only that, these Izanagi snakelets were surging towards them the moment they were born. Looking at the Izanagi young snakes that covered the sky, Shaya's heart was cold, and he was annoyed at himself for entering the mech in the first place, delaying the best time to destroy the snake nest. He didn't blame Han Zhan, after all, it was Han Zhan who saved his life. It was just a pity that such a nobleman with a fairly good character was going to be buried in the snake's belly with himself. Kai Fang and Shi Xiaoqian's faces were solemn, they were combat spirit contractors, and it was their mission to fight until the last moment. The two of them glanced at each other, Shi Xiaoqian instantly transformed into the form of a horse beheading sword as tall as a person, Kai Fang held the hilt of the sword with both hands and looked on death as if it were his own. Han Zhan looked at the gray and black tide coming from all directions, the next second will swallow them all. Suddenly, at this moment. Suddenly, at this moment, the young Izanagi snakes that had been waiting to surge over, as if they had sensed something, all prostrated themselves on the ground. As if triggering a chain reaction, the surrounding Izanagi snakes that were still surging over, their bodies froze straight there, their heads pressed against the ground, making some sort of submissive gesture. This. Seeing this scene, Shaya froze, Kai Shifang and Shi Xiaoqian also froze. None of them knew exactly what was happening. Only Han Zhan, gently rubbed the black ring he wore on his hand. The young Azaoi snakes, which hadn't yet developed much spiritual intelligence, had obviously sensed the aura of the ninth-ranked insect emperor on the black ring, which caused them to follow their instincts completely and bow down. It was just that the scene in front of them was spectacular beyond expectation. Ten thousand snakes were heading towards the clan? No, billions of snakes facing the clan. Seeing Xiaoya, who was still dumbfounded, Han Zhan voiced out a reminder, What are you still standing there for? Burn it! Although it was too late to destroy the snake nests, these Azaoi young snakes hadn't fully grown yet, so if you don't burn them at this time, when will you do it? Hearing Han Zhan's reminder, Xiaoya then reacted. Without saying a word, he unloaded the two flame incineration strongs and threw them to Han Zhuan and Kai Fang. Then he himself activated the mecha weapon system once again, and his hands changed form into two pitch black flame spray cannons. Burn! Without having to give another order, everyone flicked the switch at the first opportunity, and the scorching flames instantly landed on those Azaoi young snakes. Snakes like darkness and humidity, and are afraid of flames. Scorched by the fire, the young Asanaji snakes curled up and twisted in pain until they turned into shriveled snake trunks. But despite this, they remained on the ground, motionless. This, was the gold content of a ninth order insect emperor. Xiaoya and the others who were originally worried, when they saw that the Azaoi young snakes were actually really not moving at all, they immediately let go of their hands and feet. Constant flames, constant burning, the entire air was filled with the smell of burning flames, as well as the scent of snake meat mixed in. This burning, burned for more than an hour. The snake molt that was up to a thousand meters long was cleaned up with great difficulty. Xiaoya disarmed his mecha and transformed into a silver-colored dan pill-like shape that he took back into his hands. Kai Fang and Shi Xiaoqian both wiped the sweat from their foreheads as well. This amount of work was not insignificant. However, at this time, their eyes were all in the first place, their gazes burning towards Han Zhan, who was hanging at the very back of the group. Who the hell are you? Even if Xiaoya was even more obtuse, he reacted to the fact that Han Zhan could never be a nobody. Not to mention, a third-ranked spirit contractor who was able to pick up a fighter mech with one hand couldn't just be something an ordinary talent could do. What's more, there was also the image in the back that made hundreds of millions of young snakes submit, and even thinking about it now, he felt deeply shocked. Xiaoyao had already fought on the frontal battlefield for over five years. During these five years, he had seen all sorts of dramatic and grand scenes, and had seen many images of powerful human spirit contractors striking. He could be confident that Han Zhan's hand just now, which had caused billions of young snakes to submit, was in no way inferior to theirs. As you can see, I'm really just a third order spirit contractor. Han Zhan was questioned by Xiaoya, and he helplessly spread his hands. I'm really not some big shot who hides his strength, if I really was, do you think the first war region would let me fumble around here and pretend to be a big shot? Wouldn't I have already been carried to the front battlefield to go against those Azaoi high ranking serpent clans? Han War's words were not unreasonable. However, after this incident, Xiaoya's and their attitude towards Han Zhan had changed drastically. Even if Han Zhan really wasn't some big shot hiding his strength, he must have quite a few secrets. Xiaoya had already reported the completion of the mission through the communicator and the Unification Warfare Department's mission center. When he finished the call, his face was not as joyful as he had imagined. The Severed Sun mission, the completion situation is very unsatisfactory. Together with our squad, there are less than 10 teams that have completed it in total. Hearing Xiaoya's words, Kai Shifang and Shi Xiaoqian's faces were not good either. Failure meant that the pressure on the frontal battlefield was about to increase steeply, and being all humans, this was not a situation they wished to see. 
Perhaps, we can go for an interception. Xiaoya suddenly thought of a method, and his eyes burned as he looked at Han Zhan. The Azeoi snake clan's known reinforcement points are marked on the battle map. Those young snakes that have just hatched, there are several paths they must take if they want to successfully join the battlefield. Han Zhan, you have the magical ability to subjugate billions of snake races, so as long as we hold the necessary paths, we can eliminate them all in one go, ahead of schedule. Xiaoya's words caused Kai Shifang and Shi Shaochen to light up as well. Yeah, others couldn't do anything about it, but Han Zhan could. They had just seen the wonders of Han Zhan's methods, and they were all full of confidence in him at the moment. Han Zhan looked at these three, and he was just about to say something when he suddenly furrowed his brows violently and stood up. Whether or not we can wipe out these Azeoi young snakes in one fell swoop, I'm not sure. But what I can be sure of is that if we don't run now, then in a moment, all four of us will be wiped out in one fell swoop. You guys seem to have forgotten how this pair of snake molts came to be. How did the snake molt come about? Several people were stunned. Of course, it was what the Azeoi snake clan shed after they advanced. Then where did the Azeoi snake clan that had shed its snake skin and successfully advanced go? As they thought about this question, two orange vertical pupils that were rounder and larger than the moon appeared above their heads. Fifth order, Azeoi serpent, guardian of the serpent's nest. Female Valkyrie. Run. There was no need to say anything more at all. Are you kidding me? That was a fifth rank. They weren't going to fight with their eggs, their lives mattered. You guys run first, I'll take the rear. Xiaoya only said one sentence before he dropped his speed and landed at the very back of the group. Old Xiao. With no time to say the melodramatic words, Kai Shifang and Shi Xiaoqian had already been violently pushed forward by Xiaoya. After doing so, Xiaoya turned around instead, and dozens of missiles with white trailing flames were released and flew out from the fighter mechs, blasting at the bodies of the fifth-ranked Azeoi snakes. A series of explosions rang out, and in the thick smoke, the huge snake head spat out its snake letters and lunged out. On its body, not even a trace of injury could be seen. Xiaoya did all this and ran in the completely opposite direction from Han Zhan and the others. The power of the fighter mech advanced to its maximum power, and the red flames burned completely, taking on an azure state. At full power output, the third generation fighter mech could only last for three minutes, and under Xiaoya's driving control, it had already transformed into an extremely fast meteor in the air. In the next second, a huge snake head suddenly appeared in front of him. Its bloody mouth was open, and saliva was dripping from its sharp protruding teeth. Its speed, surprisingly, was even faster than a fighter mech. Three seconds later, hearing the sound of an explosion coming from behind him, Han Zhan subconsciously turned his head to look, only to see the red flames in the Azeoi snake's mouth that hadn't completely dissipated. There was no time to grieve for old Zhao's death, the target of the Azeoi snake below immediately shifted to lock onto them. They could only do their best to make Xiaoya's sacrifice meaningful, but it was still not enough. The fifth-ranked Izanagi snake not only walked on the ground under this kind of terrain, but also traveled with the wind. Even the fourth-ranked Xiaoya's full-power mech couldn't outrun it, and the distance that had been closed in a few breaths was quickly caught up by the Azeoi snake. With its fangs, it once again bit down on Kai Shifang and Shi Xiaoqian. At the first bite, the snake's teeth almost chipped. The two watched in surprise as the snake's fangs were blocked out of the defense, and they were lucky to escape with their lives. It was the sixth-ranked defense gear given by Han Zhan, sixth-ranked, one rank higher than fifth-ranked, and the snake's teeth couldn't bite through its defense. However, before they could be too happy, the Azeoi snake spewed out a thick greenish-purple venom from its mouth, which instantly infiltrated their entire body, and in a few breaths, it completely corroded them and turned them into a puddle of blood. Two more people died. The captain and team members who were still working together on the mission were all dead. Han Zhan couldn't care less about hiding at this time, and the urgent locks were all opened. Under the white smoke, his speed instantly increased by more than ten times, but it wasn't enough. Han Zhan's right hand was slightly raised, and the silhouette of the Fushi Zither appeared in midair, and as the strings of the Zither automatically plucked, the dragon soaring exercise resounded in his ears. Physical energy increased and raised again. Under the double boost, Han Zhan's speed soared steeply, causing the Azeoi snake, which was originally about to catch up to him, to take a bite out of the air. But in a whirlwind, Han Zhan saw a wall taller and thicker than the city wall in front of him, and a thick snake phosphorus appeared. More than 6,000 meters of body, Izanagi snake's snake head behind, cunning it has used the body of the entire mountain surrounded, the man at the moment, and less able to insert wings, otherwise. Izanagi snake only just thought of this. It saw Han Zhan's feet gave birth to a wave of invisible wind, his whole person wrapped up, flew through the ordinary people simply cannot break through the snake wall. Hiss. The fifth-ranked Azeoi snake was enraged. This man in front of him had repeatedly escaped from its mouth, a slippery ant that made it lose patience. As the Azeoi snake thought of this, it hissed angrily, and the very obvious bulge on the top of its forehead suddenly cracked open. Then, a lightning bolt that was hard to detect with the naked eye came from far and near, knocking Han Zhan, who was flying in midair, out of the air. Han Zhan was knocked down and fell into midair, and his entire body was tingling. If it wasn't for the washing and boosting of his body by the divine Nongding and the Fushi Qin, he was afraid that he would have been seriously injured by now. 
However, when he got back up, intending to escape again, two orange-colored vertical pupils, larger than an adult, appeared in front of him. Hiss. Roar. The Azeoi snake roared furiously at him, and the gusty wind accompanied by the smell of blood blew Han Zhan's entire body to the point where he could barely stand. The snake's mouth opened and shone at Han Zhan, about to bite down. In the nick of time, a huge sword descended from the sky and plunged straight into the snake's head, then ruthlessly nailed the Azeoi snake's mouth, which was already open, to the ground. The huge impact lifted Han Zhan out. As he flew backwards, Han Zhan instinctively looked up into the air. In addition to the giant sword, which was even wider and taller than himself, a valiant woman in black suddenly appeared above the hilt. As she landed on the hilt, the giant sword, as if it had received a horrifying shock, violently stabbed deep into the Azeoi serpent's brain again. The defense that could not be broken by the third generation of battle mechs was as fragile as a piece of white paper under this giant sword. Han Zhan also completely saw the opponent's appearance. It was a woman with a perfect body and a stunning look, she was dressed in a black power suit that wrapped around her powerful body, her eyes had a faint red color in them, and a somewhat maniacal smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. Her long white hair fluttered in the wind, and her teeth and claws flared, causing an adjective to flash through Han Zhan's mind, the demoness. Obviously, it wasn't a female devil. The fifth order Azeoi snake was simply powerless under her giant sword, and the mysterious and powerful woman, who was only half as tall as the giant sword, casually held the hilt of the giant sword and cut the kilometer-long Azeoi snake into countless small pieces with her sword chi. After doing so, she ignored the sky of blood raining behind her and came to Han Zhan's front. The scene was crazy, and the woman was beautiful. As Han Zhan looked at the scene, he opened his mouth and finally spoke, Many thanks, senior. This one in front of him was a woman who was able to kill a fifth order Azeoi snake in seconds, and Han Zhan, a tiny third order, couldn't possibly be her opponent even if he was any stronger. Unexpectedly, after hearing Han Zhan's words, this woman suddenly smiled. With this smile of hers, the entire scene became sunny and bright, with ice and snow melting at the beginning. However, in the next second, a cracking sound came from the blade of the giant sword, which rested against Han Zhan's neck. Little brother looks really good, very much to my sister's taste. But well, I'm not one of your great Xia seniors. I come from the city of extreme evil, the land of exile that your spirit contractors often mention. Hearing her words, Han Zhan's entire pupil shrunk violently. Taking this opportunity, he also took a clear look at his opponent's character information through his divine illumination talent. Dong Yang Jin, SSS grade deed spirit. Rank, 8th order. Illusory form, broken giant blade. Characterization, Valkyrie. City of extreme evil, land of exile. Does it look good? A charming and enchanting voice rang in Han Zhan's ears. Han Zhan's neck was violently cold and hot as blood dripped down the blade. The white-haired, black-clothed beauty on the opposite side of the room still had that smiling look, but the feeling he gave Han Zhan was extremely dangerous. The aura of death enveloped him, he would, indeed, die. Don't be so nervous, if it wasn't for me, you'd already be buried in the snake's belly too, wouldn't you? Dong Yang Jin smiled lightly, removing the breaking giant blade from Han Zhan's neck. It was casually inserted on the ground. Looking at the broad-bladed sword face that was taller than an adult, the clear cold light was biting reflecting Han Ji's apparently pale face. Han Zhu still had means that he hadn't utilized, but who let Gong Yang Jin be the 8th rank? Whatever she said was right, and Han Zhu had no intention of refuting it. So handsome, the more you look, the more handsome you are. Gong Yang Jin stretched out her hand and rubbed it over Han Zhan's face, pinching it again. That tune you just played, what was the name of it? A tune? So, Gong Yang Jin was attracted by the Fushi Zither tune I just played? She had long since sensed the commotion here, but didn't strike first, choosing instead to stand by and watch, only to strike after seeing the Fushi Zither tune I played. Han Zhan's heart instantly guessed Gong Yang Jin's motives. This mannerism was indeed very much in line with the rumored style of the City of Extreme Evil. Most of the people in the City of Extreme Evil were exiles, and since they weren't accepted by the various countries, they were all sent to a large concentration camp, also known as the Lower City. Here, fish and dragons are mixed, and there are even rumors that there are insects mixed in. Their evil is that they do whatever they want, regardless of whether others live or die, and as long as it is something they want to do, they will do whatever it takes to accomplish it. Because they are exiles, they do not share the fate and honor of the human race. Fighting against the insect race was not their part, and their only belief was to live for themselves. At that time, when he first heard the description of the city of extreme evil, Han Zhan's heart actually didn't particularly reject these people. Some people put evil on the surface, others put it in their hearts, it was just such a difference. Not speaking? It's fine if you don't. Originally, I came to Dashia this time just to fight Wei Qing, but I didn't expect to find you as a windfall. That tune is able to enhance the body, I can feel the cells of my entire body being increased, and it even gives me a feeling that I can punch out the Snake Emperor. I'm going to take you back captive and use you as my exclusive combat aid. Gong Yang Jin said this with obvious malice. As long as Han Zhan dared to resist, or dare to make a gesture of resistance, the giant blade of destruction beside her would chop down without hesitation. 
Han Zhan came back to his senses, catching a familiar name within Gong Yang Jin's words. You're here to find the head of our first battle zone, Marshal Wei? Han Zhan deliberately revealed an incredulous expression. Wei Shuai is an eighth-ranked supreme power. What makes you able to challenge him? Saying anything else, Gong Yang Jin probably wouldn't have reacted that strongly. But her contracted spirit trait was, female Valkyrie, and at first glance, she had a particularly belligerent personality. Sure enough, after hearing Han Zhan's words and seeing his expression, the smile on Gong Yang Jin's face faded a lot. What, can't you tell? You're a tiny third-ranked spirit contractor, able to see my realm? Wei Cheng and I are at the same eighth rank, so what's wrong with me challenging him? Where's your spirit contractor, it's impossible for you to be a match for Marshal Wei if you're alone. Han Zhan argued. The way he looked right now, he was completely playing the role of a combat spirit contractor of the first battle region, with absolute unconditional admiration for Wei Qing. Gong Yang Jin snorted coldly and actually didn't refute Han Zhan's words. I don't have a spirit contractor, nor do I have a spirit contractor that is worthy of contracting with me. And who stipulates that a contracted spirit can't cultivate alone and arrive at supreme strength? No spirit covenant master? Cultivate alone. Hearing this, Han Zhan couldn't help but think highly of Gong Yang Jin. He had originally thought that Gong Yang Jin's spirit contractor was still hiding in the shadows, or that he had been severely injured in his fight with Wei Qing, which was why he hadn't shown himself in the first place. How could he not expect that Gong Yang Jin actually didn't have a spirit contractor, and that she had cultivated to the eighth rank as a contracted spirit, solo? It was a ruthless person. So, have you beaten Wei Shuai? Yat? Han Zhan thought in his heart, and the expression on his face made timely adjustments to prove that he had been shocked after hearing that Gong Yang Jin was also at the 8th rank of strength and did not have a spirit fellowship master. Gong Yang Jin was very satisfied with Han Zhan's current look. As a female wushu, even one from the city of extreme evil, enjoying the gaze of shocked admiration from others was one of the meanings of cultivation. I fought with Wei Chung, they fought two against one, I was no match for them. Gong Yang Jin answered frankly as well. Hearing this answer from Gong Yang Jin, Han Zhan's opinion of her changed quite a bit again. Why am I telling you so much? Gong Yang Jin suddenly reacted as she shook her head and pulled Han Zhan over without saying a word, turning around to retrieve the breaking giant blade and about to leave the area. Where are you taking me? Where to? To the city of extreme evil, the land of exile, of course, you're now my exclusive combat aid. No way. Han Zhan categorically said. The familiar smile from the beginning surfaced on Gong Yang Jin's face again. Men, you can't say no. Gong Yang Jin's gaze fell on Han Zhan, and Han Zhan felt like his entire body was being scraped by sharp blades, actually giving birth to a piercing pain. Han Zhan gritted his teeth and insisted, I'm a combat spirit contractor of the first battle zone, and right now, the battle between Disya and the Azeoi Snake Clan is at a critical point, so if I were to break away from the battlefield at this point in time, I'd surely be judged as a betrayer and deserter, and would not be tolerated by Disya. Oh, but what does that have to do with me? Gong Yang Jin said indifferently. Although she was a better talker than the evil people who killed for fun at every turn, she was still a person from the city of extreme evil, and she was not at all moved by what Han Zhan had said. Han Zhan, however, shook his head, no, it's relevant. I'm a Dasha native, a combat spirit contractor, and my companion just died on the battlefield from the Azeoi Serpent Clan. If I were to become a deserter at this time, I would choose to cut myself to show my loyalty to Dasya, and the academy's gift of training. Han Zhan said this with a serious and solemn face that didn't look like he was faking. If he died, naturally, there would be no such thing as a combat aid, and all Gong Yang Jin would be able to bring to the city of extreme evil would be a corpse. When she heard Han Zhan's words, Gong Yang Jin stopped laughing. She looked at Han Zhan with some surprise, as if she hadn't expected that a randomly captured Dixia spirit contractor would have this kind of realization. She hesitated for a moment and asked, Then what do you want, before you willingly travel with me to the city of extreme evil? Hooked. Understanding the weight he had in Gong Yang Jin's heart, Han Zhan no longer hesitated and stated his conditions. I want you to join me in completing a thorough purge of the newly hatched Azeoi bugs on the battlefield. These are my conditions. Nightmare. Han Zhan's request caused Gong Yang Jin's good-looking brows to furrow. I thought that you would make some very excessive request, such as, making me your contracted spirit. Disya, is it really worth it for you to go this far for it? Gong Yang Jin could not understand. This was because in her opinion, the great Xia was also a treacherous and chaotic mess internally. The fighting spirit contractors on the front line were fighting to the death but they couldn't hold up to the hooking up between the higher-ups at the back. The world's situation was one of unity and division. It was already not easy for the Li family to be able to hold this hundred-year foundation for De Xia, and the tide of the trend behind them, even if those bigwigs had the intention to resist it, I'm afraid it would be impossible for them to go against the current. In the city of extreme evil is a benefit. The melon of each country can be eaten here. However, she didn't refuse Han Zhan's request. If it were any other request, she might have had a bit of a headache, but just asking her to hunt the Asanaji snake clan? There couldn't be a simpler job than this kind of job that could be solved by just getting her hands dirty. 
The four eighth-ranked insect emperors had all been attracted by Wei Qing, and now in the entire Azeoi serpent clan, there was arguably not a single one that could fight with her. It was a complete dimensional blow. Dong Yang Jin agreed readily, and Han Zhan also displayed his mission map. On top of the map, there were a total of more than 30 quest marker points, and only 10 of them had turned green after completing the quest, while the other 20 or so had turned a bright red color. Red color meant that the mission had failed. The Izanagi young snakes in these 20 odd places would turn towards their main elite troops from all directions. The Azeoi snake clan's progression was strange and overbearing, they evolved by constantly devouring, be it animals, plants, or even dirt. As long as it could be swallowed, it was all able to be converted into spiritual energy by them, helping to break through evolution. According to records, it only took one day for an Azeoi larva to grow into an elite insect race on the battlefield. At this point, it would throw off human spirit contractors and deity spirits by a few blocks. Han Zhan's brain quickly analyzed and remarked three points on the mission map. They were the entrance to the gorge that was 5,000 kilometers away from them, the plain that was 15,000 kilometers away, and the valley that bordered the valley that was 28,000 kilometers away. These three places would be the key locations where a large number of Azeoi young snakes would converge. They were also the locations that Xiaoya and the others had previously proposed to Han Zhan. Han Zhan might not be able to accomplish this task, but if it was Gong Yang Jin, it would be absolutely fine. These three locations, snipe the Azeoi young serpent, flank in solidarity with the frontal battlefield, and cooperate with the main force of Grand Xia to complete the final decisive general attack. Dong Yang Jin nodded without hesitation. Just as she had just agreed, intending to move immediately, suddenly, the pupils of her eyes suddenly turned pitch black. A faint black aura slowly rose from her back, even outlining a horrifying and hideous pattern of a foreign beast behind her. Run! Dong Yang Jin lowered her head and held the broken giant blade in her hand in a death grip, she was speaking to Han Zhan. Han Zhan didn't know what was happening at all. Dong Yang Jin, who had been able to communicate normally a second ago, was suddenly covered in black aura all of a sudden, looking even more terrifying than an insect race. When he heard Gong Yang Jin's warning, he just wanted to lift his foot and turn around to run. Suddenly, Han Zhan stopped violently. It wasn't that he had a guilty conscience, but he suddenly reacted to the fact that it was simply impossible for him to outrun an 8th stage deed spirit. Couldn't run. What to do? Han Zhan's brain spun rapidly, and he had a bright idea. In front of him, Gong Yang Jin's appearance was obviously like he was possessed. In this world, there was no such thing as possessed, but Han Zhan had a golden finger that was particularly effective against possessed. Fushi Zither. As one of the ten great artifacts of the ancient world, the Fushi Zither is not only capable of taking in the soul, but is also capable of cleansing the mind. Thinking of this, Han Zhan no longer hesitated and sat down cross-legged. The illusory Fushi Zither was presented on Han Zhan's lap. He gritted his teeth, this is the moment of life and death, gambling. As Han Zhan's fingers plucked the strings of the Zither, the sound of the clear heart scattering echoed throughout the forest. The black chi was so thick that it was about to wrap around Gong Yang Jin, and when he heard the sound of the zither, the black chi seemed to cower in a very humane way. There is a show. When Han Zhan saw the scene, the frequency of his finger playing accelerated. At this moment, Gong Yang Jin, with her brows locked tightly and her eyes closed tightly, was in an extremely peculiar state. She called this state nightmare. It wasn't any kind of going into a demonic state, the reason why Gong Yang Jin was like this was entirely because of the injury she had on her back. That wound was inflicted by a ninth ranked insect emperor. Even as a female martial god, Gong Yang Jin was only at the 8th rank, the gap between her and the peak of the ninth rank was still huge, and with such a huge gap, she was chased by a ninth rank bug emperor, and even though she was lucky enough to escape with her life, she was also left with a dark wound on her body. That ninth ranked insect emperor was named Nightmare. Therefore, Gong Yang Jin would occasionally fall into the nightmare state, in which she would completely lose control and turn into a madman who only knew how to kill. But today, just as she was about to be controlled by the nightmare again and enter the state of killing madness, she heard a melodious voice. She heard a long and melodious zither sound. It was as if the sound of the zither rang out from the heavens, but it allowed her consciousness, which was about to collapse, to have a moment of respite at this moment. It was such a chance to catch her breath that allowed Gong Yang Jin's essence to coalesce once again. After an unknown amount of time, she violently opened her eyes, and as Gong Yang Jin opened her eyes, the black hideous insect pattern that had coalesced behind her also collapsed. A cold sweat broke out behind Gong Yang Jin. She looked at the body that had regained control, her hands that were not covered in blood for the first time since she woke up, and her wonderful eyes flashed with a bright bright light. It's you? Gong Yang Jin looked across to Han Zhan. At this point in time, Han Zhan's entire spirit was already extremely depressed, and if Gong Yang Jin didn't wake up again, he might be on the verge of not being able to hold on as well. But, fortunately, this is even more reason not to let you go. Gong Yang Jin said in a slightly frantic tone. That was the Ninth Order Insect Emperor's nightmare. It had plagued him for an unknown number of years. Gong Yang Jin had thought of countless ways, but even she, an eighth-ranked powerhouse, was at her wit's end and had no choice but to give up. 
Unless there was a ninth ranked healing spirit master or spirit, but as far as she knew, the few ninth ranked spirit masters that existed were not of the healing lineage. As a result, a tiny third ranked spirit deed master had solved this dilemma. You're so handsome and powerful, your future achievements are unlimited. How about it, do you want to consider contracting with me, with me as an 8th rank spirit contractor, you will push all the way across the board, invincible in the same rank. Facing Gong Yang Jin's seductive words, Han Zhan shook his head, and instead, he made another request. Can I take a closer look at the injury on your back? Healing wounds. Gong Yang Jin complied and ripped off her clothes, revealing her bare, white back. On the skin that was like sheep's fat and beautiful jade, the only thing that stood out was a lurid wound that was emitting a faint black gas. You don't have small guts, you even dare to take advantage of me. After you finish looking, I'm going to waste your eyes. Gong Yang Jin smiled faintly. If she was able to not open her mouth to speak, looking past her from a distance, she would definitely be a great beauty who had fallen in love with her country. Unfortunately, as soon as she opened her mouth, the picture changed drastically. The kind of crazy demoness with a smile on her face who killed people with her hands described Gong Yang Jin. Han Zhan pursed his lips and didn't speak. He didn't know which of Gong Yang Jin's words were true and which were false, so he simply ignored her. Han Zhan reached out and put his hand on Gong Yang Jin's wound, an action that caused Gong Yang Jin's entire body to tremble slightly. It wasn't because of the pain. Gong Yang Jin's eyes became dangerous since childhood, especially after awakening her spirit talent. No one had dared to do this, not even holding hands, let alone skin-to-skin -skin contact. If it wasn't Han Zhan, any other random person would have already been chopped into minced meat. Han Zhan could also feel Gong Yang Jin's constantly suppressed killing intent, and he didn't dare to be ambiguous, immediately summoning the Fushi Zither once again. The Zither's song, clear heart scattering, resounded once again. At such a close distance, the dispersing effect of the Qing Xian San Zither sound was even stronger, and the black chi lingering on his back was being dispelled at a speed visible to the naked eye. However, when Qing Xian San finished playing a song, those dispersed black chi began to recoalesce behind Gong Yang Jin's back again at a slow pace. Tried it, it can be suppressed, but it can't be dispersed. Han Zhang's conclusion wasn't too far off from what Gong Yang Jin expected, and in fact, being able to suppress her injuries was already satisfying for her. Just as Gong Yang Jin was about to put on her clothes, Han Zhang suddenly called out to her. Wait a moment. I have another way to try. As soon as Han Zhang's words fell, next to the Fushi Zither in the air, a large, ancient tripod began to manifest its true form, the Shinong Tripod. Since what was behind Gong Yang Jin was an injury, as long as it was an injury, it could definitely be cured. As the Shinong Ding was the topmost divine weapon for alchemy and healing among the ten divine weapons of the ancient times, Han Zhan planned to give it a try. Seeing the second strange weapon that Han Zhan had summoned, Gong Yang Jin's marvelous eyes flashed with luster. You really are, constantly surprising me. As a spirit contractor, how did you manage to contract two contracted spirits? Worthy of being an eighth-stage supreme powerhouse, Gong Yang Jin could tell the difference in Han Zhan's aura between these two different divine weapons with a single glance. From there, he judged that Han Zhan had contracted two contracted spirits. Hasn't your teacher taught you not to easily expose these outside, or else you'll be in danger? Han Zhan didn't say anything. In fact, he had his own plans. If he could really cure Gong Yang Jin, then his value in Gong Yang Jin's eyes would skyrocket. In the beginning, he was just a dispensable combat aide, and Gong Yang Jin dared to easily say kill if you don't agree. But when he realized that he was able to suppress his hidden disease through the Fushi Zither, even if Han Zhan stroked Gong Yang Jin's back, this 8th order strongest person could only hold back his killing intent and say blind your eyes to this degree of threat. From this, it was clear that Han Zhan's value was rising in Gong Yang Jin's eyes, and his life was more secure. Proof of value, this is a kind of disguised investment. As Han Zhan thought of this, under his urging, the Shinong tripod had already begun to swallow mountains and seas, absorbing the hundreds of millions of Azaoi snakes that Gong Yang Jin had killed into the tripod. What was absorbed into the tripod was the spiritual energy of those corpses that hadn't completely dissipated. A mosquito was still meat. Not to mention the hundreds of millions of insects, the spiritual energy contained in them had also reached a sizable number. If it was the everlasting company, it wouldn't be able to do what the Shinong Ding was doing now. Refining spiritual energy from hundreds of millions of bug materials, not to mention how low the feasibility of doing so was, and how high the time cost was, anyone in their right mind wouldn't choose to do that. However, for the Shinong Ding, it was an operation that couldn't be simpler. Gong Yang Jin was able to feel the ancient cauldron hanging high in the sky that day, sucking hundreds of millions of Azaoi young serpents flesh and blood into the cauldron. She didn't know what Han Zhan was trying to do, and she could also feel the spiritual energy gradually surging in the divine farmer's cauldron, so she didn't continue to open her mouth and disturb Han Zhan for the time being. After sucking in all the spiritual energy from the corpse of the Azaoi young serpent, Han Zhan once again activated the divine farmer's cauldron. This time, what he was going to use was the third order talent that the divine farmer tripod had just awakened, spirit creation. Han Zhan's hands quickly choked and formed seals. 
The divine peasant tripod instantly reversed from a posture with its mouth facing upwards to a posture with its mouth facing downwards. It was unbiased and just above Gong Yang Jin's head. Spirit creation. As Han Zhan let out a soft jaw, the extremely dense whiteness began to pour into Gong Yang Jin's body like a dunking column. Birth spirit creation, as the strongest recovery means of the divine peasant cauldron, caused Gong Yang Jin's eighth stage supreme body to feel a powerful restorative force. She felt this majestic restorative power, all of it surging towards her back, and not only that, but along with some age-old dark diseases and old wounds within her body, it was also being repaired at a speed visible to the naked eye. The wounds left by the Ninth Order Insect Emperor, Nightmare, were also recovering extremely slowly. Gong Yang Jin's entire body was now like being soaked in warm spring water, her entire body was warm, and an unprecedented sense of comfort swept through her entire body. After the Divine Nong Ding finished instilling the last mouthful of spiritual energy and ended the installation, Gong Yang Jin even had a feeling of disappointment. But soon, she reacted and subconsciously touched her back, the original lurid wound, under the treatment of the spirit creation, had actually shrunk by at least half from its original size. Even the speed at which the black chi regrouped was much slower. It can be healed. Dong Yang Jin stood up incredulously and turned to look at Han Zhan behind her. Han Zhan also blushed in his old face when he saw her turn directly to him. That, you should put your clothes on first. Han Zhan wasn't exactly a decent man, he was simply afraid that Gong Yang Jin would kill herself to vent her anger after she came to her senses. As it turned out, it was he who was overly concerned. After proving that he had the ability to cure Gong Yang Jin's persistent disease, Han Zhan's stature had instantly risen many orders of magnitude in Gong Yang Jin's heart. One more time, Gong Yang Jin was no longer calm and couldn't wait to urge Han Zhan. Han Zhan immediately shook his head and said, How can the spirit creation be performed so simply? Just now you also saw that I was able to obtain the spiritual energy by devouring hundreds of millions of insect blood and flesh with my talent. Now if I want to perform it again, unless I get so much more blood and flesh for me. Aren't we going to intercept the Azaoi young serpent? Let's go now. Gong Yang Jin subconsciously said. Eighth ranked beaters, isn't that what this is all about? When a man is angry, he will ambush thousands of corpses. Azaoi battlefield, the entrance to the gorge. Here, a grayish-black tide was madly pouring in. The drones that monitored this image quickly transmitted the information back to the United Frontier Department. A large number of young Izanagi snakes have entered the entrance to the gorge. A large influx of Izaoi young snakes has been monitored in the Arakami Plains. A large influx of Izanagi young snakes has been monitored in the Copper North Valley. As a series of news came back, the commanders within the Unification Ministry all frowned. It's not good, these Izanagi snake nests, they were still discovered too late. The battle losses on the front line are too great, most of the formed squads are in the frontal battlefield, there are not many squads that can spare the time to complete the mission of breaking off the children, the mission failure rate is very high. What about Guan Shan? With him and Qi Ling around, wouldn't it be fine to use the mountain shifting talent to block all three of these confluences? Admiral Guan Shan has been transferred elsewhere. His talent, as you all know, is in high demand. There are urgent needs on all fronts, and it's basically impossible to be stationed somewhere. In the Second War Region's Unification Department, Lin Jingxian had his hands behind his back, staring at a timely battle report in his hands, his brows furrowed. The Azaoi battlefield was the last large-scale battle before the year's end. It was a battle that could only be won, not lost. However, the cunning Izanagi serpent race, apparently, had also figured out the great summer humans, and not only had they poured out their forces on the front battlefield, but they had also coordinated with several other large insect races, causing tremendous pressure on the entire border. The top combatants of the 7th and 8th orders had now all been slowed down by the insect races of the same order. Most of the spirit contractors and contracted spirits of the 5th and 6th orders were also in the middle of the front battlefield and couldn't get out of the way. The 3rd and 4th order combat spirit contractors couldn't do anything to change the battle situation in the face of this level of converging snake tides. The insect race is prepared for this. Lin Jingxian finished reading the various battle reports in his hands and pondered, they're forcing us to keep sending high-ranked combatants to the front lines, this move is subtle but it already seems very obvious to me. Throwing in the towel. The more they do this, even going so far as to expand their battle damage ratio by us, the more we have to beware and watch out for, the other side's hidden tactics and underhanded moves. Have a one-time phone call with the 8th Warzone and tell them to stay put for now. Yes. The subordinate answered, somewhat eager to speak. Lin Jingxuan's approach was a judgment made from an absolutely rational standpoint, but not everyone was like him. Marshal Lin, if these three waves of Azaoi young serpents converge on the battlefield, I'm afraid that there will be great deaths and injuries to our low and middle rank spirit contractors. It's almost the end of the year, and they, too, should have the power to return alive for the new year. Lin Jingxuan's face could not be seen to change in color. He just looked at the screen, the gray-black tides that were frantically picking up speed, his gaze calm. Going to war means that people will die. Tomorrow it will be them, the day after tomorrow it will be us. If one doesn't even have this kind of realization. Wait, what's that? Lin Jingxian suddenly interrupted what he was saying as he raised his hand, 
his gaze keenly looking at one of the images. Zoom in on the image of the entrance to the gorge. The image of the entrance to the gorge was enlarged, and within it appeared a white-haired, black-clothed, powerfully dressed beauty, her feet stepping on a giant blade like a sea pin, plunging into the unstoppable tide of raging snakes. Senior Gong Yang Jin, let me go first. At the entrance to the gorge, Han Zhan stopped Gong Yang Jin, who was planning to strike directly. Hearing Han Zhan's words, Gong Yang Jin glanced at him in surprise. Are you sure? I'm sure. In front of him, countless Zoi young snakes converged into a raging tide, and for Han Zhan to actually offer to go first himself, he was absolutely crazy. Gong Yang Jin saw that Han Zhan insisted and stopped talking. With himself beside him, even if he really was crazy, he would be able to fish him out at the first opportunity and keep him alive. This was the confidence that came from an 8th order supreme powerhouse. Without saying a word, Han Zhan jumped into the vast tide of snakes with a single leap. He hadn't forgotten what he had purposely come to the frontline battlefield for this time, and in the final analysis, it was to quench himself and become stronger. In order to achieve the effect of tempering himself, Han Zhan had taken off his ring in advance. Come on. Han Zhan's battle spirit surged as he looked at the tens and tens of billions of Azaoi young serpents, and he was like a small, inconspicuous stone thrown into the raging sea without even a ripple. As soon as Han Zhan entered, the white chi currents in his body began to stir and grow, protecting several key parts of his body. The eight urgent fists then came out of his hands. Boom boom boom. Han Zhan threw out his fist with all his might, and all the Azaoi young snakes that were struck by his fist were instantly exploded into a bloody mist. More Azaoi young snakes pounced. Between life and death. Nine deaths. Han Zhan forgot everything but his instinctive punches, and the white airflow, which was faint and thin at the beginning, also became thicker and thicker as the length of the battle continued to increase. Han Zhan jumped out of the snake tight with a jolt, the desperate and ferocious energy from earlier gone. Elder Gong Yang Jin, help! Gong Yang Jin heard Han Zhan's voice, and she let out a cold snort, although she didn't like this feeling of being summoned, but after all, she still had to use Han Zhan's place. She immediately leapt forward and also jumped into the tide of snakes just like Han Zhan. At this time, it was the same scene that Lin Jingxian and the others had seen inside the Unification Department's screen. The white-haired, black-clothed, powerfully dressed beauty, Gong Yang Jin, stepped on a giant blade and plunged into the unstoppable tide of raging snakes like a divine needle in the sea. The heavens thundered and the earth moved. Under one sword, the entire tide seemed to break and was cut in half from it. Countless pieces of flesh and blood were instantly melted, and this was only the power of Gong Yang Jin's sword. As she lifted her hand and sword, she leapt up high and was about to swing her second sword at the Azaoi young snake tide, but Han Zhan, who had regained his composure, took a step ahead of her and rushed into the tide of snakes once again. The corners of Gong Yang Jin's mouth pursed slightly, and she collected her sword and stopped rather irritably. A job that could clearly be killed in seconds was delayed for a long time because of this maneuver by Han Zhan. However, he's really desperate enough. Gong Yang Jin recalled the image of Han Zhan charging into the tide of snakes without hesitation just now, and seemed to think back to the person he once was. One is not destined to become strong without experiencing the fortification between life and death. Since you want to become strong, what's the harm in me doing a favor, in the end, you won't be able to escape me anyway. The female demon from the city of extreme evil, Gong Yang Jin muttered to herself here as she licked the corner of her lips and laughed. On the other side, another six minutes had passed since Han Zhan bowed into the snake tide. This time, it was a little longer than last time, and Han Zhan jumped out of the snake tide in his usual manner, once again shouting for help. Save? It's only been six minutes, what's there to save? Don't come out so quickly. Give me a continuation. Gong Yang Jin sat on a boulder to the side, crossing her legs and watching Han Zhan fall into the snake tide once again. Men, it just has to last. Little brother, you still need to practice more before you can do that. Upgrading breakthroughs like drinking water. As Han Zhan dived into the tide of snakes for the nth time, a long lost feeling finally surged to his heart. The eight urgent fists, the third urgent, raw urgent urgent lock, was unlocked. The third layer of the urgent lock was unlocked, and the originally thin white mist was now so thick that it could even transform into an armor that wrapped around Han Zhan's entire body. Do Chi transforming into armor? Do Chi transforms into a horse. Han Zhan subconsciously spat out. However, after the raw urgent need was unlocked, the strength of Han Zhan's entire body went up another big notch. When the Shang Muchi was opened, Han Zhan's speed, strength, and defense all increased tremendously, and not only that, there was also an additional recovery power. As long as he wasn't seriously injured, he was able to recover quickly in a short period of time. This also provided Han with an extra layer of protection in close combat. After unlocking raw urgency, Han Zhan fell into the snake tide once again, and this time, he lasted for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it was Gong Yang Jin who was uneasy and fished him out from inside the snake tide. You've gotten stronger? Gong Yang Jin looked at Han Zhan, who had some woes on his body but was overall unharmed, and marveled. He was clearly still a third-ranked spirit contractor, but his aura gave off an even stronger feeling. This feeling was strange. However, as an eighth-ranked combat deed spirit, Gong Yang Jin definitely wanted to trust his judgment. 
This young man named Han Zhan was not simple. At the entrance to the gorge, the corpse of the Azaoi young serpent lay in a thick layer, and the blood that dripped out had merged into a small river that gurgled into the distance. Few dash Han Zhan completely relaxed and looked at Gong Yang Jin excitedly, all the Isanaji young snakes have been wiped out, the two of us are really powerful. Gong Yang Jin ignored him. It looked as if Han Zhan had more images, but in reality, the total number of Azaoi young snakes he had killed was probably not even 1%. In total, Gong Yang Jin made 13 swords. After 13 swords, the entire entrance to the gorge was clean and dry, with nothing more than snake corpses. Heal. Gong Yang Jin inserted the breaking giant blade beside her body and sat down cross-legged. She was just about to take off her clothes when she suddenly thought of something and raised her head to look into the sky. She let out a cold snort and casually snapped her fingers, and soon, several faint explosions rang out from high in the sky. The screen in the monitor suddenly blossomed. The members of the unification department on this side of the screen were startled. She found us. It's too terrifying, using only 13 swords, she decimated billions of Azaoi young serpents. Who is that young man next to her, he doesn't look like her contracted spirit either. You don't understand, some powerful spirits like to eat young grass, young people are more energetic in some ways. The topic got more and more skewed, Lin Jingxian did not participate in their exchange. With his brain's memory bank, he certainly wouldn't be unaware of who the woman in the picture was. The city of extreme evil, female devil, Gong Yang Jin. 8th ranked deed spirit, just a month ago she fought with Wei Qing and was defeated by Wei Qing's husband and wife, I thought that she had already left the Azaoi battlefield, but I didn't think that she hadn't traveled far, didn't leave, even so, she even got mixed up with the youngest senior brother, the latter words, Lin Jingxian did not say, Dong Yang Jin, was notoriously temperamental, she viewed human life as grass, and had a cool nature, Han Zhan was only at the third level of strength, and I'm afraid that if he fell into Gong Yang Jin's hands, he would be in for a rough ride, However, looking at them, it seems like it's not as simple as captive and captured, perhaps I'm overthinking it. Lin Jingxian lacks key information, and for the time being, he's not clear on what's happening between Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin. In any case, he will press on. In his position, he will plan his own affairs. Even if he was the teacher's newest disciple, he could not be made an exception. After a while, some other surveillance craft captured the latest footage of the duo. This time, it was the desolate seaplane. Because they arrived at the second time, at this time, the desolate seaplane had been completely flooded by the wave of snakes. With the experience of the first match, Han Zhan no longer needed to greet Gong Yang Jin and jumped into the snake tide at the first opportunity. In addition to the eight urgent fists proficiency increasing, there were two other things that were steadily improving as well. One was the realm. The divine Nong Ding had absorbed billions of young Azaoi snakes, and most of the spiritual energy had been exhausted by the spirit creation, but a small portion of the spiritual energy had still been intercepted. All of this spiritual energy was fed back to Han Zhan by the Divine Nong Tripod. Don't underestimate this small portion of spiritual energy, but it was the amount of spiritual energy that could heal the injuries of a Ninth Order Bug Emperor. Han Zhan's original Third Order Realm was also raised a little bit by this feedback. According to the current progress, with just two more times, he could definitely step into the fourth rank. The second was the third talent that Fushi Qin had just awakened, Spirit Taking and Prana Driving. Regaling spirit and driving spirit corresponded to the third rank Zither Song, Ancient Intent Remnant Sun, where any spirit spirit that was killed would be detained and become a war spirit to be driven in the Ancient Intent Remnant Sun formation. Right now, although it was Gong Yang Jin who had killed the Azaoi Young Serpent, Fushi Zither had also taken advantage of the east wind of Gong Yang Jin's formation to detain billions of Azaoi Young Serpent's spirit spirits, transforming them into battle spirits. Even a sparrow was meat. Not to mention that billions wasn't a small number. With Gong Yang Jin as a super fighter, the upper limit of spirit taking and spirit driving spirits was soaring up at an extremely fast rate. The female demon head of the city of extreme evil, at this time, didn't know that her wool was about to be gripped bald, and there didn't seem to be much she could do if she was made aware of it. Soon, the second battlefield was also cleaned up by the two of them, completely sweeping it away. The entire desolate seaplane, as far as the eye could see, was filled with grey corpses of snakes, the scene was shocking. Absorbing and refining the corpses, the living creates and heals. The militarization operation was completed in one go and then rushed to the third location without stopping. On the way, Gong Yang Jin, who hadn't said anything, suddenly opened his mouth, if I were you, I wouldn't continue to hammer and forge myself so much like the previous two times. Why? Han Zhan had always been very modest about cultivation. Facing an eighth-ranked bigwig like Gong Yang Jin, he asked from the goodness of his heart. Because of habit, when a perilous situation turns into some sort of habit, and your bodily functions have adapted to the environment, sharpening between life and death will not be meaningful. Gong Yang Jin deserved to be Gong Yang Jin, I had only just sensed that the growth rate of that white aura between life and death had become slower, and she saw this to remind me. Han Zhan was aghast in his heart. The eight urgent fists pursues sharpening the way of boxing between life and death, nurturing the unyielding intent of a desperate situation, and the unceasing vitality of life. 
But if a desperate situation is experienced repeatedly, it can no longer be called a desperate situation. Even so, it was no exaggeration to say that Han Zhan had been sufficiently able to persist in surviving for more than an hour alone in such a tide of snakes. It was indeed already pointless to continue hammering away in this. Thinking of this, he then nodded his head and said, all right, then let's settle it quickly in the next place. At the same time, Han Zhan thought of a very serious point in his heart and couldn't help but wail. How am I going to escape from the female devil's hands? It's not like I'm really going to be captured by her and taken back as a suppressive husband, is it? Fourth stage. Third place, within the Copper North Valley. The Copper North Valley was dead silent at this moment. Han Zhan was sitting cross-legged as the Shinnon cauldron manifested above his head, inhaling all the snake corpses and refining the spiritual energy. Gong Yang Jin was sitting directly in front of him, Han Zhan's hand was pressing on the wound on his shoulder, and after getting used to this move, Gong Yang Jin no longer had any killing intent surging out. So smooth, so tender. I don't know how it was maintained to be so good. Han Zhan subconsciously thought as he hastily collected his mind and concentrated. The black gas that wrapped around the wound left behind by the ninth-ranked insect emperor had disappeared as much as it could, leaving behind only the last small, pitch-black colored thorn. It was when Han Zhan touched the small thorn that charming images began to appear uncontrollably in his mind. The nightmare's attack had the effect of controlling one's mind, much like the Fushi Zither, Han Zhan immediately summoned the Fushi Zither, and the Zither sound of the clear heart scatter lingered around him, allowing him to temporarily wake up from that lustful desire. We have to pull this thorn out as soon as possible, otherwise, if I'm really controlled to do something out of the ordinary, it's an eighth-ranked chi spirit, a murderous demoness. Han Zhan's heart was in awe as he clenched his teeth and began to launch an attack on that last little pitch black thorn. Spiritual energy erupted from his right hand, and with the support of the divine farmer's cauldron, it surged into Gong Yang Jin's body, trying to force it out. After feeling threatened, it unexpectedly shifted its position, moving from the left shoulder blade to right in front of it. Han War. To pull out, or not to pull out? Gong Yang Jin's eyes were slightly cold, and the reaction of the pitch black little thorn made her feel a sharp pain that pierced her heart and bones as she gritted her teeth and said, Pull. No, you're the one who told me to pull it out, it's really not that I'm going to intentionally slight you. Han Zhan gulped, and ruthlessly scratched down. Three minutes later, he pulled out the small pitch black thorn with intent and held it in his hand. The blackened thorn was still struggling when a destruction giant blade smashed down, ruthlessly chopping it into pieces and completely dissipating it. The breaking giant blade struck, and it suddenly changed the direction of its blade and pressed against Han Zhan's throat. Big sister, you're doing it again? It was you who told me to pull it out. Han War was threatened by the breaking giant blade as he shouted. I did let you pull it, but are you addicted to pulling it? What can be solved in seconds? You pulled it for three minutes. Can you blame me for that? That's a thorn left behind by the ninth-ranked insect emperor. The deeper it's hidden in your body, how could it be possible to do it in seconds if you want to pull it out? Dong Yang Jin pursed his lips. Although she knew that the high probability of what Han Zhan said was true, but as an Eighth Order Supreme Powerhouse, if she did nothing, it would seem as if she was willingly being slighted by Han Zhan. Thinking of this, her grip on the hilt of her sword tightened again. Two choices. One, sign a contract with me right now, then go back to the city of extreme evil with me to organize a wedding, and from then on, you and I will be husband and wife, and I won't pursue you for this. Two, like those as AOI snake clan, die under my sword. I choose one. Han Zhan raised his hands high and said without hesitation. A great man can bend and bend, and he can be big or small, saving his life is important. Hearing Han Zhan's answer, Gong Yang Ji nodded with great satisfaction and put back the breaking giant blade. Then let's sign the contract now. Here? Han Zhan subconsciously asked. What, did you back out? No no no. Han Zhan hastily denied it. He was just about to say something else when suddenly there was a throbbing in his body, and something broke like a blessed heart. The divine peasant tripod's feedback had arrived. Spiritual energy broke through the upper limit of the third order, and at this moment, the water came to a head. Han Zhan's entire strength went to the next level. Only just over a month had passed since he had awakened to become a spirit contractor, and he was among the fourth rank, such a speed of cultivation could already be described as appalling. Gong Yang Jin didn't have too many feelings about Han Zhan's breakthrough. She only had one thought right now, and that was to sign a contract with Han Zhan, binding and locking him up so that he couldn't escape from her hands. Just as they were about to sign the contract, suddenly, there was a loud boom. The entire Copper North Valley was raised to the ground. A terrifying snake head, so huge that it was unimaginable, appeared above. It was an Eighth Order Snake Emperor. Wei Qing looked at the corpses of the two Eighth Order Snake Emperors in front of him and was suddenly speechless. Each of the Eighth Order Azaoi Snake Emperors was comparable to a giant mountain range, and the place where they fell was directly turned into a ruin. The other two gave a run for their money. It's not because you're useless, it didn't take long for them to shrivel up. A female mocking tone resounded from the blood-colored gloves in his hands. Stinking bitch, when the Azaoi Guild battle is over, you'll see how I'll clean you up. Wei Qing immediately retorted defiantly. 
Ch, who knows if you've been raising little goblins outside during those 10 days you went to Deep Blue City, just based on you? The two disliked each other with one sentence. But Wei Qing's speed was not slow at all. A blood-red silhouette cut through the sky like a red slamming star, chasing after the Azeoi Serpent Emperor who had disappeared far away. On Han Zhan's side, looking at the 8th Order Azeoi Serpent Emperor that had suddenly appeared, Gong Yang Jin, who had been interrupted once again, looked a bit ill at ease. Amir 8th Order Snake Emperor, how dare you come to interrupt my good deeds? Seek death. Gong Yang Jin now had the dark disease removed from her body, and her entire mental state was instantly restored to its peak. As an SSS-ranked powerfully gifted female martial god, she might not necessarily fall into a disadvantage even if she were to fight Wei Qing and his wife again now. As Gong Yang Jin's words fell, as if in response to her words, there was another loud boom. Another 8th Order Snake Emperor appeared on the other side. Without a trace, Han Zhan covered the 9th-ranked insect ring that he had put back on. There was no need to say much. Even for the powerhouses of the City of Extreme Evil, when they encountered the insect race, both sides were a picture of immortality. Gong Yang Jin drew out her sword without even a hint of hesitation. Her tiny human figure, traveling against the odds, stood in stark contrast to the Azeoi Serpent Emperor hovering 10,000 feet in the air. Clang clang clang. The indistinct sound of a zither rang out. Han Zhan didn't know when, but he had already summoned the Fushi Zither and put layer upon layer of buffs on Gong Yang Jin. Han Zhan's actions caused Gong Yang Jin's icy eyes to warm slightly. I didn't expect him to disregard his safety and give me combat assistance in this situation, so it seems that he genuinely wants to complete the contract with me and isn't just saying so casually. Han Zhan, who was planning to wait for an opportunity to escape, lurched when he felt the sudden gaze cast by Gong Yang Jin. It's all been buffed for you, so it shouldn't be so bad that you can't fight, right? As long as you guys fight a little more anxiously, I can find a chance to escape. The broken thoughts in Han Zhan's heart didn't end there. Gong Yang Jin, whose battle intent and battle power had both skyrocketed, had already used his full strength to make a sword. This sword, which traversed the entire sky, caused it to break through a huge opening. A sword that cracked the sky. Letters to the snake. Rumble. The heavens and earth were in a strange state. Gong Yang Jin's sword cut through the sky and slashed at the 8th rank snake emperor, and his sword also soared with blood. The two sides that should have been evenly matched suddenly turned into a one-sided crushing, a situation that caught the Azeoi snake emperor by surprise. If they hadn't sensed the Ninth Order Insect Emperor's aura, they wouldn't have hastily chosen such an escape direction. Unexpectedly, the Ninth Order Insect Emperor was not found, but instead they encountered a female fury whose strength was no less than Wei Qing's. The Eighth Order Snake Emperor already had a strength comparable to that of a Wei Qing. The Eighth Order Snake Emperors already had wisdom comparable to that of a human, and they immediately made a judgment after reviewing the situation. Run! It wasn't that the Eighth-ranked Azeoi Snake Emperor was inferior to Gong Yang Jin, but rather, there was a situation where both sides were outnumbered in terms of battle power. On Gong Yang Jin's side, she originally had a dark disease that affected her ability to exert her full strength, but now the dark disease has been eliminated and she is back at her peak. Now that the dark disease is completely gone, she is back to her peak, and with the increase of Han Zhan's Fushi Zither, she is like a tiger with wings. On the other hand, the 8th Order Azeoi Snake Emperors, who had fought with Wei Qing, consumed part of their strength, and fled for a long distance, were unable to utilize 50% of their strength, which was why they were suppressed by Gong Yang Jin to death. Seeing that they wanted to escape, Gong Yang Jin would not stop there. Broken giant blades light blades slashed continuously, and semicircular moonlight air blades fell from the sky, smashing into the body of Azeoi Serpent's Imperial Mountain Range, continuously emitting a loud sound. The Azeoi Snake Emperor was in pain, but there was no way he could not help his huge figure, and the opponents that were originally casually crushed due to the advantage of their body size, after encountering a flexible and strong person, they turned into a disadvantage that they could only be passively beaten. Gong Yang Jin continuous output. Han Zhan's Fushi Zither sounded continuously, helping her maintain the dragon soaring maneuver increased state and continuously recovering her spiritual energy. Although this was the first time both sides had joined forces, the cooperation was incredibly smooth. In the end, with a loud boom, the entire earth trembled a few times, and a snake head, even more gigantic than a mountain, rolled down from mid-air and ruthlessly smashed onto the ground. A gust of wind and dust was stirred up. The Eighth Order Azeoi Snake Emperor fell first, and the other one was even more difficult to support. Soon, it too fell under Gong Yang Jin's sword. He chopped the snakes with his hand. Defeating the two snake emperors, Gong Yang Jin's entire body remained in a full-blooded state, full of battle spirit, she was in a very happy mood at this time, and she looked at Han Zhan with a satisfied look in her eyes. Not a moment later, Wei Qing also arrived at the battlefield. There was no other reason, the commotion here was so great that it was hard to ignore it. How come it's you? Seeing Gong Yang Jin on the opposite side, Wei Qing was surprised. It shouldn't be, he was clear about Gong Yang Jin's strength, after all, the two had just fought a month ago, and although the Gong Yang Jin from that time was also able to kill these two Eighth Order Snake Emperors, it could never be this easy. Then, Wei Chang saw the man standing beside Gong Yang Jin. Junior brother? 
Wei Qing shouted out of breath. Hearing Wei Qing call out to himself, Han Zhan's face instantly darkened. Eldest senior brother, you're truly full of muscles and have no IQ at all ah. Sure enough, after hearing Wei Qing shout, Gong Yang Jin's expression instantly became alert, standing directly in the center of Wei Qing and Han Zhan, cutting off the possibility of them approaching. Finished. Han Zhan had been on the verge of leaning over, but it turned out to be a crossroads. What are you doing? Let go of my little master. Wei Qing still didn't understand what he had done, and with an arrow step, he rushed up and was about to forcibly take Han Zhan away. Gong Yang Jin crossed his sword and stopped in front of him. Your little senior brother? Sure enough, I told you, how could a man who can be looked upon by my Gong Yang Jin be just an ordinary spirit contractor? It's actually Li's student, looks like I've picked up a treasure this time. Facing Wei Qing, who was pressing forward step by step, Gong Yang Jin did not let up in the slightest. Even though she wasn't Wei Qing's opponent yet, she was able to ensure that she brought Han Zhan back in one piece when the two sides exchanged blows. Han Zhan, he's already my suppressive husband, and will be returning to the city of extreme evil with me soon. Gong Yang Jin's words caused Wei Qing's eyes to glaze over in shock and disbelief. He hadn't heard it wrong, had he? Gong Yang Jin, the famous female devil of the city of extreme evil, was actually going to capture her own junior brother to be her suppressive husband? What an unfolding this was. Wei Qing still had to plan to say something, but he was already grabbed by the ear by the middle-aged beauty dressed in red next to him. If you don't know how to speak you should hurry up and shut up. Gong Yang Jin, you're not a match for the two of us, hurry up and let the people go and you'll still be able to leave Da Xia peacefully. You don't know how to speak here either. Han Zhan listened with two black eyes. Gong Yang Jin had already swept him over in a tight fit. Han Zhan fell into tenderness, feeling the warm scent on the tip of his nose, and hastily pressed against his tongue to make himself firm in his will. I won't let go. What can you guys do about it? Gong Yang Jin said with a slight provocation. The two sides were at a standstill. Eldest senior brother, leave me alone for now. Han Zhan managed to lift his buried head up and said to Wei Qing. The battle of Azaoi is imminent, as the head of the first battle zone, you deserve to be on the front battlefield, so you don't need to be distracted by this little matter for me. You brat, you don't really want to go back with her. When Wei Qing heard this, his tiger's eyes glared, and he said with hatred, it's not enough to have so many little dainty wives at home, the family flower doesn't have the fragrance of wildflowers, is it? You don't care about the frontal battlefield, the fact that I'm able to stand here and talk to you guys proves that the frontal battlefield is now under control. The Azaoi snake clan has a total of just four eighth rank snake emperors, two of which were killed by me, and two more by Gong Yang Jin, plus the young snakes that hatched in the snake nests were all intercepted and killed by you guys ahead of time, so the frontal battlefield is already free of pressure. Victory is only a matter of time. Wei Qing's words made Han Zhan breathe a sigh of relief. Rounding down, it seemed as if the two of them, Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin, had solved a large portion of the difficulties on the Azaoi conference battle. Right at this moment, the entire Azaoi battlefield suddenly shook all of a sudden. Using the surveillance drones to look down on the battlefield, one could see that all the corpses of the Izanagi Serpent Clan, as well as all the corpses of all the human spirit masters and spirits on the battlefield, all sank into the ground at that moment. At this moment, they all sank into the ground and disappeared. Along with the four Eighth Order Snake Emperors, it was the same. A crimson light formation appeared under everyone's feet. This light formation cut across the east, west, south and north, encompassing the entire human battlefield and the Azaoi Snake Race battlefield. The complex and ancient crimson patterns illuminated the entire Izanagi battlefield in bright red. The Jade Gate Pass, which has been resisting for several months, suddenly cracked open with the violent shaking, and then two, three. Human Pass, broken. Under the cracked land, countless sandy soil was swallowed up. A hideous snake head that was dozens of times more massive than an Eighth Order Snake Emperor appeared at the location where the Jade Gate Pass had originally fallen. Billions of life and death sacrifice array? This aura, it's the Azaoi Snake Clan's Ninth Order Snake Emperor. Everyone, their faces were unprecedentedly grave. Billion Life and Death Sacrifice Formation The Billion Life and Death Sacrifice Grand Formation was not a skill of the insect race. Upon seeing this formation, the faces of many people who knew the inside story became extremely ugly. Humans, traitors. Wei Qing looked at his feet, those crimson rays of light that continued to rise up, his gaze tinged with anger and abhorrence. Han Zhan had once seen an introduction about the billions of life and death sacrifice formation inside Lin Jingxuan's notes. It was a special formation created by a human powerhouse. Its function was also very simple, as the name implied, it was that after the death of hundreds of millions of living beings, the spiritual energy gained from being sacrificed was all gathered into the center of the formation. The upper limit of this formation is related to the quantity and quality of the sacrifices. But no one would have thought that on the battlefield of the Battle of Izanagi, such a large formation would have been carved in advance. When was the formation laid? Who were the people who laid the formation? Did they, and the insect race, cooperate? These queries went unanswered. The Azaoi War has been fought to this day, tens of billions of Azaoi serpents have lost their lives, and tens of thousands of human spirit contractors have sacrificed their lives. And now, 
for more eighth order is AOI serpent emperors have fallen. All of these sacrifices were sacrificed to the eye of the formation. That's. In the center of the formation I was a huge snake head. It was not a living snake, but white bones. First the head, then the body, the tail, and under the manipulation of invisible forces, a complete heavenly serpent appeared in front of everyone's eyes. The heavenly serpent is the highest cultivator of the Izanagi serpent clan, the existence of the entire Izanagi serpent clan, the most powerful ninth ranked bug emperor's strength. The Izanagi serpent clan's ninth order insect emperor was beheaded by his teacher on the battlefield a hundred years ago. I didn't expect that it would be secretly transported under the Jade Gate Pass and made into the eye of a billion life and death sacrifice formation. What a great stroke! The Izanagi Serpent Clan's Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent was one of the Ninth Order Insect Emperors that Teacherly Shudong had killed back then? No wonder those Izanagi young snakes turned that way when they sensed their ring's aura. Hanjan came to a sudden realization. The power of sacrifice absorbed by this sacrifice formation is mending the flesh of that Heavenly Serpent. Once its mending is complete, even if you and I join forces, we can't possibly be its match. Gong Yang Jin tilted her head, similarly looking there, and as she said this, she gripped the breaking giant blade in her hand tightly. It's too late. Wei Qing, evacuate. In the communicator, Lin Jingxuan's voice rang out. The shocking changes in the battlefield had been projected by the unification department in the first instance. They had come to the conclusion that in 30 seconds, the Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent would be resurrected by the billions of life and death sacrifice formation and return to its peak. With 30 seconds to evacuate with full force, it was still barely possible with the strength of an 8th order spirit contractor. Can't retreat. Wei Cheng rejected Lin Jingxuan's suggestion. Wei Qing, you're the head of the first battle zone, you should be able to distinguish between the lesser and the greater. A battle that was bound to be won, because of the betrayal of certain human assholes, the situation instantly collapsed. A defense that was as solid as gold soup was actually breached from the inside, Lin Jingxian, give it to you, are you angry? Wei Qing had a cold face, the middle-aged man who was already close to 50 years old was radiating a terrifying might at this time. The ones who died in battle, can all be my first battle regions people. This group of bastards. It's impossible to let them get what they want, never. Feeling this might, Gong Yang Jin on the side slightly side-eyed. It turned out that Wei Qing hadn't been using his full strength when he had fought and sparred with himself earlier? Wei Qing threw away the communicator on his body. As a pure martial artist, he wanted to try. His deity spirit instantly manifested, and Wei Qing took a step out, his entire person suffing out a meteor, transforming into a red red flame. On his body, a white aura enveloped his entire body, not a bit denser than Han Zhan. Wei Qing had studied under Li Shudong, and also knew the eight urgent fists, and the only way to force an eighth order supreme powerhouse into a desperate situation between life and death was to fight with a ninth order. His speed could not be described as fast. Red residual shadows that were hard to catch with the naked eye, white breath traced a trailing flame in the sky. Terrifying fist power with wind pressure, monstrous flames shaking the ground, the 8th rank talon plus the supreme strike of the 8 urgent fists, a punch blasted on top of the white bones of the heavenly serpent. A shocking thunder streaked across the sky. Deep purple robber's thunder, slashing down hard in Wei Qing's direction. This strike condensed the innate aptitude of the ninth order heavenly serpent, and once it hit Wei Qing, the consequences would be unimaginable. Suddenly, a huge portal of white light appeared above Wei Qing. The deep purple robotic lightning stabbed into the light shadowed giant door and disappeared. A silhouette dressed in white appeared beside Wei Qing, the head of the second battle area, Lin Jingxian. Wei Qing, you are truly reckless. Lin Jingxian couldn't help but curse as he looked at Wei Qing, whose battle intent was burning brightly. Wei Qing grinned unconcernedly. You cover, I'll attack with all my might. Simple and crude, but effective. Wei Qing's talent focused on attacking, and with a full attack, not to mention the 8th rank, even if it was the 9th rank, the hard next would be enough to drink a pot. Now while the heavenly serpent was still fully formed, this was the right time to break the game. Wei Chung although reckless, but he is not stupid, know that cannot do things he will not do. He just liked to fight that last line of life. Because of this, he was chosen by Li Shudong to be his first disciple. Wei Qing was fighting for his life, gambling with his life. Lin Jingxuan's talent was related to space, and he stopped speaking as he condensed spell seals with both hands. Immediately, a huge white portal appeared above the heavenly serpent's head. The lightning that had disappeared just now ruthlessly struck the white bone head of the heavenly serpent. Lin Jingxian used his actions to stand in for Wei Qing. Senior Gong Yang Jin, I wanna go help them. Han Zhan couldn't help but speak as he looked at Gong Yang Jin, who had shielded himself well in front of him. After learning of Han Zhan's true identity, Gong Yang Jin couldn't stop him, but only spoke out to remind him, you can continue to play your zither, but you must hide behind me, and I will try my best to protect you. Han Zhan's Fushi zither was undoubtedly effective as a super combat aid. He immediately sat down and played the dragon soaring exercise that was used to increase it. Once he played, Han Zhan only felt his spiritual energy being sucked into the zither like a long whale drinking water. Wei Cheng and Lin Jingxian at 100% full power were truly terrifying. 
trying to increase them would be quite a challenge for Han Zhan. Luckily, he had already broken through the fourth rank and had gained another boost in endurance, barely supporting them. With Han Zhan's assistance, Wei Chang and Ling Jingxian worked together silently, and a crack began to appear on the ninth rank heavenly serpent's skull, visible to the naked eye. There were still 15 seconds to go. The crack continued to expand, almost taking over the entire skull. 10 seconds to go. The heavenly serpent absorbed the spiritual energy of the billion life and death sacrifice formation, and the flesh and blood repairs had already reached the head. 5 seconds to go. The entire head of the heavenly serpent was already shattered beyond repair, and only one punch was still needed to be able to shatter it. Last second. Heaven and earth are reversed, reclaiming the sea and moving mountains. A cold and bland voice resounded above everyone. An ancient divine weapon, the sword was named Xian Yuan, Guan Shan. Lin Jingxuan's trick seals changed in his hands, bringing Wei Qing along as they flew backward. At the moment they withdrew from a distance of a thousand miles, the original thousand miles of land near the ninth order heavenly serpent was suddenly and unexpectedly closed. Yes, closed. A huge earth ball wrapped around the ninth order heavenly serpent and stood in the sky above the earth boundary. The one who has this talent is also the great Xia Guanshan admiral. I should have thought that only you, Guanshan, would be most likely to be able to bury the bones of the ninth order heavenly serpent in the Jade Gate Pass without anyone realizing it, and to set up a billion life and death sacrifice array here. But because this answer was too shocking and unbelievable, Lin Jingxian did not push this possibility down at first. Marshal Wei, Marshal Lin, the two of you, why must you go this far? Guan Shan, who was flying in midair, wore black-framed eyes and saw no change in his countenance, more like a mute 30-year-old middle-aged man. If you guys didn't try to destroy the heavenly serpent's corpse bones, I wouldn't have to be forced to show myself, in which case I would still be able to continue to serve Dixia and build solid defenses for all the front lines, at least my apparent identity wouldn't have been poked and prodded. But now, everything is too late. Guan Shan's tone carried pity within it. But to Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian on the opposite side, they were even more shaken. Guan Shan was an admiral-level spirit contractor, second only to them, the heads of the major war zones, and even had the SSS-level talent of moving mountains and filling in the seas, and it wasn't too much of a stretch to describe him as a successor. It was such a rare talent that did this underhanded thing of betraying humanity and cooperating with the insect race. Is it you? It's me. Guan Shan's strength wasn't weak, although it wasn't as good as Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian, it was still possible to stall them for a few seconds. With the help of the mountain shifting defense, the Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent had already completed its final revival. Inside the entire air, the powerful pressure of a Ninth Order insect race filled the air. Han Zhan asked Gong Yang Jin with a grim expression. Senior, how well do you know the way of the sword? Gong Yang Jin didn't understand why Han Zhan would ask such a question at this time, she still answered, below the 8th rank, no one can compare to me. Above the 8th rank, one can compete. This answer was confident, but it was the truth. As Gong Yang Jin was a famous female villain in the City of Extreme Evil, her sword Dao was indeed one of the best. Senior, in this current situation, with the revival of the Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent, with the four of us here present, what are the chances of winning if we join forces to fight against it? Han Zhan threw out another question. Looking at Han Zhan, who was in the guise of a question baby, Gong Yang Jin could only continue to quickly answer, 0%, 10 deaths. What other questions do you have? Ask them quickly, and after you're done, let's all be understanding ghosts together. That was a Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent, the peak insect race that nearly wiped out the entirety of the Grand Xia back then, even if the three Eighth Orders were up against each other, they would have no chance of winning. Han Zhan nodded and asked the last question. Senior Gong Yang Jin, if you sign a contract with me and are able to live your life, but at the cost of a long slumber, are you willing to accept it? Gong Yang Jin was very surprised, then followed his heart and said, Contracting with you was originally what I wanted to do, the Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent descended into the world, and I can't be willing for us all to fall here. If there is a way to live, I am willing to try. Gong Yang Jin was an 8th order supreme powerhouse, and Han Zhan was only 4th order. However, Gong Yang Jin had unexplained confidence in Han Zhan. He was even able to get rid of the dark wounds left behind by the 9th ranked insect emperor, Nightmare, so it wasn't unlikely that he would do something earth shattering again. After receiving Gong Yang Jin's affirmative answer, Han Zhan didn't hesitate any longer and stomped his foot violently, the contract spell formation spreading out from under his feet. Gong Yang Jin's entire body stood inside the spell formation. A bright and dazzling light enveloped it. Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin's movements attracted the attention of the others in the arena. Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian didn't understand why Han Zhan chose to indenture Gong Yang Jin at this time in this life and death situation. Guan Shan, on the other hand, didn't care. In his opinion, unless Li Shutong was personally present at this time, otherwise, no matter how much this group tossed and turned, it would be impossible to defeat the revived Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent. This was a game. A sure kill situation. Remember our name, Breaking Dawn. As Guan Shan said this, behind him, the huge earth sphere shattered, and a full-bodied peak stage Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent was displayed in front of the crowd. Under the might of the Ninth Rank, even moving became a luxury. 
Right at this moment, Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin completed their contract. His eyes suddenly turned golden. Buzz. Within the entire space, invisible fluctuations spread out, enveloping Gong Yang Jin in a moment of heartfelt connection, and she suddenly understood why Han Zhan had asked those three questions before. Han Zhan, Fourth Order Spirit Contract Master. Abilities, Divine Illumination, Observe Me, Cosmos of the Heavenly Tao, Divine Soldier Skyfall. Divine Soldier Skyfall, forcibly awakens an ancient divine weapon that has not been awakened in this world and empowers it with a divine soul. Restriction Requirement, the person to be empowered with the divine soul must be of the same weapon and have extremely deep attainments. If the endowed person does not have deep attainments or is in a low realm, the integration of the divine soul into it will directly destroy his, her physical body, and if he, she is unable to withstand it, he, she will be annihilated. If the endowed person can bear the soul, but the spiritual master himself is not enough, then after manifesting once, he will fall into a deep sleep and seal until the spiritual master's realm is raised to the required level. If the empowered person can bear the divine soul and the spiritual master himself is of sufficient realm, then the divine soul empowerment will be completed 100%, and the divine weapon will descend from the sky. Hanjan broke through the fourth rank and finally awakened his new ability, Divine Soldier Skyfall, an ability that was very powerful and extremely restrictive. Even if Hanjan wasn't a traveler, he wouldn't even know what ancient divine weapons were available, let alone awakening and empowering the divine soul. Right now, after Gong Yang Jin completed the contract with him, the Divine Soldier Skyfall was also immediately activated by Han Zhan. The divine soul that Han Zhan wanted to summon and bestow. It was one of the ten ancient divine armaments, the Unseen Divine Sword. The name of the sword was Xian Yuan. The clouds in the sky dissipated. From a great height, an unimaginably large sword tip fell. One side of the sword was engraved with the sun, moon and stars, and the other side was engraved with mountains, rivers, grass and trees. One side of the hilt was inscribed with the art of farming and animal husbandry, and the other side was inscribed with the policy of unification of the four seas. It contains infinite power, and it is a divine sword for cutting down demons and eliminating devils. The Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent also lowered its unrivaled head under such a momentum. It was only at this point that Han Zhan's voice rang out clearly in the ears of the crowd, clearly. Remember its name, Regulus Sword. The divine soul of the Xian Yuan sword fell and was incorporated into Gong Yang Jin's body as much as possible, and the original breaking giant blade in her hand began to crumble apart inch by inch. The exterior that encased the sword body fell away, and the entire size of the sword shrunk by two-thirds in size. At this moment, it was transformed into the divine soul form of the Regulus sword seen earlier. Illusory form, Regulus sword. Divinity, sword of the holy way. The heavenly sword beheads the heavenly serpent, is AOI final chapter. Gong Yang Jin gripped the Regulus sword. Her entire aura changed abruptly. Outside of her black clothes, all of them were shrouded in golden light, a holy and inviolable stance, like the holy maiden of the nine heavens descending to earth. Having absorbed the divine soul of the Xian Yuan sword, Gong Yang Jin's powerful aura even crushed the ninth order heavenly serpent, and in the face of this human with a sword in his right hand, the ninth order heavenly serpent felt a deadly threat. After sleeping for a hundred years, it would be afraid of a tiny human, and it let out an angry roar. Sword of the Holy Tao, chop. Gong Yang Jin raised his hand and swung his sword. The blazing sword aura condensed and polarized into a point of light. There was nothing earth-shattering, just a similarly extra point of light on the head of the revived Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent. The image was frozen in that second. Guan Shan's eyes were obscure, he was just about to make a move when he saw that his hands, feet, and body were all bound by a translucent aura, as Lin Jingxian struck out, and Wei Qing silently followed suit, blasting his head with a punch. He struggled a bit and very simply passed out. At this point, the Heavenly Serpent had completely lost his ninth rank aura and fell down from the sky. Without saying a word, Lin Jingxian waved his hand, and the Heavenly Serpent's bones teleported away with him, disappearing. Only when they were done with that did they have the time to look at Han Zhan behind them. Beside Han Zhan, after wielding that sword, Gong Yang Jin looked at Han Zhan with satisfied eyes, and then, her entire person thumped into countless golden lights and merged into the Xian Yuan sword, completely falling into a deep sleep. This is. The price. Han Zhan didn't explain too much to them. Everyone didn't die, and the traitor and heavenly serpent crisis was successfully resolved. The heavenly sword beheading the heavenly serpent was already the best ending. For her to be able to do this for you, it's a bit different from the rumored female devil. Listening to Wei Qing's sentiments, Lin Jingxian silently shook his head. If it wasn't for you guys, Great Xia would have inevitably suffered a huge blow today. Han War, well done. But we still have things to continue accomplishing. With Lin Jingxuan's words, the crowd saw that below them, outside the collapsed Jade Gate Pass, a vast number of Azaoi serpent clans were frantically launching their final charge, and without the Jade Gate Pass to stop them, they were in a short battle with the Human Spirit Fellowship Masters. This was the last battle of the Izanagi War, and it was also the final chapter. Han Zhan carefully put away the Regulus sword, but realized that he couldn't put it into the Sumeru space, so he asked his senior brother to beg for a sword case and carried it on his back. Don't worry, I'll keep improving and making breakthroughs until my strength can match and wake you up. 
After he said this to Gong Yang Jin, he turned to Wei Qing again. Senior brother, let's return to the battlefield together and end this final battle. Wei Qing nodded, good. Without the wave of snakes to replenish the reinforcements, without the four heads of the eighth-ranked snake emperor that pressed the battlefield, the ninth-ranked heavenly serpent briefly revived and was again decimated by the Xian Yuan sword. On the front battlefield, the deadly charging is AOI snake clan ushered in the end of their lives. The great summer combat spirit fellowship masters grew more and more courageous. The Izanagi serpent clan was continuously defeated until they were all killed in battle. When the last Izaoi serpent was killed, the long suppressed battlefield resounded with the cheers of the great summer spirit fellowship masters and the fellowship spirits. They had won, they had won. Many people had tears in their eyes, and many people looked up to the sky. They had defeated the insect race, and on the frontal battlefield, these months of killing could not wear down their will, the humans had won. Han Zhan similarly stood on the battlefield. Feeling the roars and cries around him, painful and soothing, he somewhat understood why his teacher, Li Shutong, must have asked himself to make a trip to the battlefield. On this trip, it wasn't just the cultivation realm that gained a breakthrough, but also the heart and insight. Wei Qing, who stood at the very front, planted the Great Xia Flag, which had been prepared long ago, at the highest place of the Azaoi Snake Clan's camp. It meant that Great Xia had regained the lost land that belonged to them. Great Xia, will win. Wei Qing shouted out. Great Xia, will win. The battle of Azaoi came to its conclusion. After winning, Wei Qing brought Han Zhan to a special place. This is the burial mound for all the soldiers who died in the battle. This battle totaled the deaths of battle spirit contractors and contracted spirits, 58,320 people. 58,320 people, this was not just a number, but a heavy victory. As Han Zhan looked around, densely packed tombstones stood in a row, and on top of each of them, there were different pictures, different names. There were also different epitaphs. When I come back, I'm going to eat 10 bowls of noodles with shredded pork and snow vegetables. Mom, for New Year's Eve this year, there's no need to wait for me. Wei Qing owes me half a million credits, plus the 250,000 credits subsidized by this business trip, a total of 750,000, remember to give it to me when you come back. I'm 33, my family is urging me to get married, how can getting married be more important than fighting the bugs? I'm lucky to be in Dasha, I'm so proud of myself, I'm going to kill the enemy for 3,000 miles. One more drink. One by one, the epitaphs looked like people who were once alive and standing in front of them. Their voices and smiles, their demeanor and character, although Han Zhan had never seen them before, it was as if they were already old friends. It was an unprecedented shock. Wei Qing didn't say anything, he just lightened his footsteps and slowly walked into the place, paying silent tribute. Victory, there was a share that belonged to them. Only after leaving from here did Wei Qing pat Han Zhan's shoulder and say thank you. Without Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin, the death toll would have been raised at least 10 times over. He was genuinely grateful. What's Guan Shan's epitaph? Han Zhan suddenly remembered and asked. Wei Qing froze for a moment and answered truthfully. The world is less wise and destined to walk alone. It fit Guan Shan's mute face, and Han Zhan nodded in understanding. The Azaoi Council battle ended sooner than expected, and in two more days, I should return to Deep Blue City. Eldest senior brother, your battlefield is over, and mine, it's just beginning. Wei Qing looked at Han Zhan, you mean? Breaking Dawn. This chain of events all involved the same organization, Breaking Dawn. If Han Zhan hadn't repeatedly turned his luck around, he would have already died twice at the hands of this organization. Whether from a personal perspective or as Li Shutong's student, whichever way he looked at it, he had already stood in opposition to the Breaking Dawn organization. The battlefield with the bugs was on the front line. The battlefield with the Breaking Dawn was in the rear, deeper. It's going to be tough if you're alone. The other party is even able to pull an income from Guan Shan, and I'm afraid that the whole of Disya has been planted by them for who knows how many people. I've also heard about what happened in Deep Blue City, they have a far-reaching layout and the person behind it is most likely one of those at the top. Trying to fight them will be difficult. Han Zhan glanced back at the grave tombs behind him, his tone firm. I'm not alone. Returning to Deep Blue, a long goodbye warmth. Han Zhan still returned to Deep Blue City on the troop carrier. On the troop carrier, besides him, there were quite a few spirit contractors and deeded spirits who had returned to their hometowns. Everyone was talking happily, completely relaxing their tired bodies and minds, and enjoying the joy of their victory. From time to time, they would cast their gazes towards Han Zhan, the youngest recipient of the Purple Heart Medal, who was the one who had destroyed most of the snake tides, prevented the young snakes from converging with the main force, and made an outstanding contribution to winning the front battlefield. This was the honor Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian had arranged for Han Zhan. A big tree attracted the wind, not to mention the fact that there was the mysterious organization of Breaking Dawn watching over him. This was already the greatest honor they could give to Han Zhan. Otherwise, with Han Zhan's battle results of killing a Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent, it was enough for him to be awarded the highest honor medal in Disya, but that would cause a national sensation, which might not be good for Han Zhan. Even with the Purple Heart Medal, at Han Zhan's current age, it still caused all the frontline warriors to look sideways with respectful gazes. 
Hanwar felt the gazes of these warriors as he gently stroked the sword case behind him. All of this, it's only because of Gong Yang Jin. Don't worry, reawakening you, this day won't be long, trust me. The troop transport ships would dock at each city's port of call, and by the time they arrived at Deep Blue City, it was already late afternoon. Li Shadong, who got the news in advance, was already waiting at the mooring port. Standing with him were Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, whom he hadn't seen in half a month. When they saw Han Zhan walking down from the troop carrier, they both rushed up at once and hugged Han Zhan's arms left and right. After a long time of reunion and pacifying the two, Han Zhan walked up to Li Shudong and respectfully said, Teacher, HM, it's good to be back. Li Shudong said, his gaze falling on the sword case behind Han Zhan. Jing Xian has reported to me about what happened on the front lines. This time, it's thanks to you, and Gong Yang Jin. If there's anything you need in terms of recovery, feel free to mention it to me. You, are already at the fourth rank? Li Shudong suddenly marveled. The spiritual energy needed to go from the third to the fourth rank is not a small amount. You actually went to the front line for more than half a month and broke through the fourth rank. It wasn't that Li Shudong was making a fuss, throughout the history of the entire Grand Xia, there was absolutely no one who was able to upgrade and break through like Han Zhan like taking a plane. Spirit contractor, three orders are a hurdle. The first three stages are all basic, but from the fourth stage onwards, it will be a different landscape. Since you've stepped into the fourth rank ahead of time, you need to learn more in this area. Han Zhan nodded in agreement. Regarding this aspect, it had also already been recorded inside second senior brother Lin Jingxuan's matter-of-fact notes. Regardless of whether one was a spirit contractor or a deeded spirit, from the fourth rank was a brand new start. From the fourth stage to the fifth stage, breaking through the realm no longer only required spiritual energy, but also required a special thing, spirit skeleton. Spirit skeleton was very rare, and could only be obtained probabilistically after killing a high-ranked bug race. It was the purest part of the insect race's spiritual energy, and different spirit racks could allow the spirit contractor or contracted spirit to obtain different random increase effects. Speaking of this, a rounded and polished bead appeared in Li Shutong's hand more than once. Ninth Order, Spirit Skeleton. Ninth Order Spirit Skeleton. Hiss, would it be a little too precious, Han Zhan was somewhat flattered. Regarding taking spirit wrecks, he had considered it, and naturally, the higher the rank, the greater the benefit after taking it. However, the ninth rank, he had never thought about it. Is AOI Snake Clan, the spirit skeleton of the ninth rank Heavenly Serpent, after I killed it back then, I have kept it. Now that you have killed it once more, this is what you deserve. Although the Ninth Order Heavenly Serpent was resurrected by the Billion Life and Death Sacrifice Formation, what was resurrected was only its physical body, and all of its powerful talents were within this, spirit skeleton, and had not been able to be utilized, otherwise, the battle might not have been won so easily. So it was like this. The insect race's spirit skeleton contained the insect race's own talents within it, which was why humans were so attracted to it. Who would mind having a few more talents of their own? Teacher doesn't use it himself? This was a ninth order spirit skeleton, something that had a market but no price, something that was snatched up by many people. Li Shudong shook his head. Can't use it, unless I can break through the legendary tenth rank. It turned out that the teacher's strength had really reached the ninth rank spirit fellowship master level. Thinking about it, he could kill three third order bug emperors a hundred years ago, so how could he not be ninth order? Since this was the case, Han Zhan was not polite and reached out to take it. When he first entered the fourth rank, Han Zhan still had one more chance to take the spirit skeleton, so he didn't hesitate and directly swallowed this ninth rank spirit skeleton. The spirit skeleton melted in his mouth. Soon, he completed the fusion, and the power of the ninth rank spiritual rex galvanized within him as a brand new talent appeared. Heavenly Serpent's Body, 1. Huge increase in one's defense, speed, and strength. 2. Possesses the ability to control the elements, and elemental resistance is increased. 3. The introduction was simple, but the feeling given to Han Zhan was very uncomplicated. Speed, strength and defense, he had the eight urgent fists and the dragon soaring exercise, and already had melee strength comparable to that of the fifth rank at the fourth rank, but with the heavenly serpent's body, Han Zhan's melee strength doubled again. The elemental energy would be easy to understand. Since it was already called the heavenly serpent, it was only natural for it to be able to manipulate the four elements of earth, wind, water, and fire. Already possessing the Fushi Qin, for elements of heavenly will, enchantment, and with this one increase, Han Zhan's control of the elements would be even more perfect. A fourth order spirit skeleton is the foundation, or root, which determines the upper limit of your spirit skeleton's growth and future. With a ninth order spiritual skeleton as a fourth order foundation, your future will be unlimited. Li Shudong said. Thinking about my year, I only barely found a seventh order spiritual skeleton at the fourth order, and even if I did my best to cultivate it later, its potential was ultimately limited. The future is promising. Li Shudong smiled and patted Han Zhan's shoulder. Thank you, teacher. Han Zhan said gratefully. He was fortunate to have awakened his SSS grade talent, and to have worshipped an existence at the highest level of human spirit contractors like Li Shudong, benefiting from the experience and taking many fewer detours. 
Much ado about nothing, we've met each other after a long time, and we understand each other. I won't continue to be in your way here. Li Shudong finished speaking and simply turned around to leave, leaving time and space for Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin. I heard from teacher that you contracted a new contracted spirit on the frontline battlefield. As soon as Xia Yuwei came up, she opened her mouth with a grudging gaze. The scum with three feet. Li Lingjin added, adding another setting for the protagonist of her new book. Ahem. It's not what you guys think. Han Zhan hurriedly told the two of them in detail about what happened between himself and Gong Yang Jin. Only then did the two men stop, skipping the interrogation bridge, entering the severe torture segment. Change. When Han Zhan woke up, he realized that his side was empty. With another glance to the side, Li Lingjin was already squatting on the seat, her eyes staring at the computer screen, the fingers of her hands tapping something rapidly. Her bare white little feet were directly over Han Zhuo's clothes, barely covering the part of her thighs from the root upwards. Han Zhan's curiosity got the better of him, and he moved over to take a look, and with just one glance, he silently withdrew his gaze. Cough, Ling Jin Ah, writing a new book where? Yeah, last night gave me a burst of inspiration and realization, so I have to write it before I can do so. Li Ling Jin had a serious look on her face. Then you're too dedicated. Han Zhan's face darkened when he heard this, and he kindly reminded, but according to this content you're writing now, it should be 100% blocked. It doesn't matter, the official channels don't work, I still have black market channels, otherwise you think where I got my name as a best-selling author. Li Lingjin's barefaced appearance made Han Zhan lament the arrogance of this guy. But once he thought about her being Li Xutong's granddaughter, it didn't seem hard to understand. Why don't we build up our inspiration while it's still early? When Li Lingjin saw Han Zhan, she suddenly asked with some intention. What do you take me for? Han Zhan was furious. I have a set of witch costs and a set of angel costs inside my closet, I'll help you convince you away. Let it go, don't treat me like a human being. Han War said righteously. The bottom line, it was meant to be broken. You too, almost done, put away the flavor, I'm still here. Xia Yue, on the other side, looked at these two with a speechless face. She was holding her communicator in her hand and was also surfing the internet. Legend of the Mass Immune? Yue, why are you watching this kind of thing? In Han Zhan's memory, Xia Yue was a girl who loved to study and was studious, so how come she started indulging in ebooks after only half a month of not seeing her? Sensing Han Zhan's suspicious gazing eyes, Li Lingjin hastily raised her hands high to prove her innocence. This isn't me egging her on, Yue, she's always chanting that she'll definitely have your foot in in boats in the future, so she, as the main palace, needs to practice in advance how to deal with those warblers and swallows that come after her. She still loves learning so much. Lingjin. Xia Yue, having her mind punctured, pouted anxiously and ran over to cover Li Lingjin's mouth. Both of them didn't have much regard for getting naked in front of Han Zhan, which was cheap. After living a fast-paced life for a long time, it was quite nice to have a slow-paced life once in a while. After fooling around for a while, the three of them walked out of the room, and Li Shudong had already prepared breakfast as usual. Han Zhan looked at the table full of breakfast, and the corner of his mouth twitched slightly. Barbarian black bean soup, sea cucumber and wolfberry ginseng soup, herb and walnut soup with cistanch and black chicken, lily of the valley and turtle soup. Quick, drink it while it's hot, to get all these ingredients together, I even trusted the everlasting company. That's really hard for you. Han Zhan looked at Li Shudong with some annoyance, teacher, your students aren't vain to this extent. Oh, Li Shudong looked up at him, so are you drinking? Drink. Han Zhan readily accepted good advice. Nonsense, if you have to make up for it, it's not pure stupidity. What's more, these ingredients are not simple ingredients that can be found everywhere after the end of the insect plague, so it can't be a waste of the teacher's old man's hard work. In fact, inside these soups, I also added some spiritual energy herbs to help you harmonize it. Coming down from the insect battlefield in your realm not yet stabilized, you need to pay more attention. Li Shutong's concern made Han Zhan feel warm in his heart. What are your next plans? It was still the same question that Li Shutong had asked Han War once more than half a month ago. At that time, Han Zhan's answer was that he wanted to become stronger. Today, Han Zhan paused. I want to rest for a few days. Han Zhan glanced at the two youthful and bright young girls next to him and answered truthfully, stay with them more. Li Shutong didn't ask why, just nodded. It seems like you gain more than just your cultivation realm and the frontal battlefield, there's something else as well. Yes, after seeing Gong Yang Jin transform into a sword, and seeing those grave tombs and epitaphs, Han Zhan had a more three-dimensional pursuit of his future. The path beneath his own feet became clearer and clearer. Getting stronger is the goal, but you can't neglect the people around you just to get stronger. Otherwise, even if one really goes to the end of the road, when one looks back, there are no more people around, so what's the point of becoming stronger like this? These were Han Zhan's sincere words. When Xia Yue and Li Lingjin heard his words, their hearts felt as if they had eaten several tons of honey, so sweet that they were about to overflow. After all, from the time they met Han Zhan until now, he had always just been sullenly moving forward, and hadn't really run much of a business in the area of feelings. Seeing the serious expression on Han Zhan's face, and then looking at Xia Yue and Li Lingjin's affected faces. You brat. 
Li Shudong laughed and cursed. Han Zhan also laughed along. By the way, how come we haven't seen Miss Shang? Han Zhan asked curiously. Xia Yue and Li Lingjin immediately stopped laughing. The two stared at Han Zhan unanimously, their silver teeth clenched. Eating from the bowl, they were still looking at the pot. You're talking about Silk Ting, huh? She was hastily picked up by the merchants not too long ago after she used an awakening stone to awaken an E-ranked talent. An E-ranked talent? It couldn't be that coincidental, could it? Han Zhan stroked his chin, somewhat dismayed. What E-ranked talent? I don't know. Li Shudong shook his head, she was picked up without having time to tell us. That's so. Han Zhan didn't pursue the question any further. After eating and drinking, Han Zhan promised to take Xia Yue and Li Lingjin to take a look at the streets of Deep Blue City. Having not returned for a long time, Deep Blue City seemed to have undergone radical changes as well. Walking down the main street, everywhere you could see people in city protector uniforms helping to maintain the city security. When an old granny crossed the street, two city protectors immediately came over to help her. There were couples arguing on the street, and there were also city protectors acting as peacemakers to persuade them. At every distance, one could see the city protectors with communication headsets, watching the surroundings in high spirits, observing whether there were any special situations occurring. Is this, still the city protector organization I know? The city protector organization that Han Zhan had the impression of was clearly a group of lazy official personnel, mucking about, posing as salty fish, and not even wanting to go on point missions, so how did it suddenly turn around? Deep Blue City City Protector Organization, since Zhao Wu's death, the position of the first squad leader has been vacant. The official side wanted to take advantage of the last incident to make Deep Blue City the first pilot city, so they promoted a person out of the ordinary to take the position of the first squad leader. Who is it? Han Zhan subconsciously asked. Xia Yue and Li Lingjin looked at each other and smiled. An acquaintance of yours. E Fan. Add one more, thank you all. Try three shifts a day later to see. Melancholy poet. E Fan? This news was too shocking, even more so than seeing the city protector take the initiative to help the grandmother cross the street just now. E Fan was capable of being the captain of Deep Blue City's first squad? Confirming that it's the city protector pilot, not the wine monkey pilot? Put. Xia Yue didn't hold back an unkind laugh. I'm sure you'll be able to see him again soon. Li Lingjin followed suit and answered. As the three of them walked and chatted, they could see that the entire urban ethos of Deep Blue City was moving towards the good side. The smiles on the faces of pedestrians had become more numerous, the city protectors were doing things more actively, and as a backwater city, the fact that it was able to do so was already enough. While talking, the three of them had arrived at a familiar place. Breeze Ballroom. No, by this time, its name had already been changed to Breeze Tavern. Let's go, you'll be able to see him once you go inside. I hope you won't be too surprised when you see him. Being surprised to see Yi Fan? As for that, Han Juan had just thought of this in his heart, he pushed open the door and walked in, and his whole person was stunned there. In his line of sight, Yi Fan was sitting on a high chair in the center of the bar, his hands holding the microphone, his gaze melancholy. Who was invisible yesterday? Who was in a dream with tears present? Shallow, shallow. As far as there are no words. Yes. Ah. So handsome. Melancholy poet. The melancholy poet. Underneath the stands, most of the people sitting there were women who cheered loudly as if they were calling for Ifan. Seeing this scene, no matter how imaginative Han Zhan was, he was still viciously shocked. Here, as you can see, he has a new name, Melancholy Poet. Of course, life-writing writers like me look down on this kind. Band book writer Li Lingjin despised this kind of smooth-talking like literature. But there were a few people in Deep Blue City who liked it, and Ifan now had a certain fanbase. He plopped down the Breeze Ballroom and used the money that the officials rewarded him with to rename it the Breeze Tavern. Now basically, he doesn't worry about alcohol and drinks freely, and then I don't know which day he got the hang of it and applied for a position in the city protector organization. It just so happened that, in time, the city protector organization wanted to create a pilot project in Deep Blue City, and knowing his former archive resume, the two sides hit it off, and Ifan became the captain of the first squad of city protectors in Deep Blue City. Every day after work, he would come to the Breeze Tavern and drink and recite poetry. Gradually, the name Melancholy Poet came to be. What a lying unfolding this was. Upon hearing Li Lingjin's explanation, Han Zhan couldn't help but TSK and TSK. Across the street, Yi Fan had just received flowers handed over by many rich women, and after he hugged and thanked them one by one, he also saw the three Han Zhan standing in the doorway. Yi Fan smiled and waved to them, then amplified his voice and said, Today, we have an honorable guest to welcome the door, this tavern is offering free drinks for the entire venue, my treat. Oh, boss, great atmosphere. Long live the boss. Who wouldn't be happy to hear that there were free drinks, and the atmosphere in the tavern was instantly quite lively. Long time no see. Yi Fan walked to the door and looked at Han Zhuan. Long time no see. Seeing that Yi Fan's essence was very full, Han Zhan nodded in relief. There's no wound that time can't heal, it seems like you've completely come out of the white frost matter. Han War said with a smile. 
Yi Fan, who was standing on the opposite side of the room, froze for a moment. He looked at Han Zhan with blank eyes and asked, Who is White Frost? It wasn't just Yi Fan. Even Xia Yu Wei and Li Lingjin, who were beside him, looked at themselves with confused faces. You. Guys, Han Zhan looked at their expressions that didn't look like they were faking, and he didn't continue the topic. Yi Fan was also only briefly stunned before he laughed out loud, Come, 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 I heard that you came back from the front line and became a big hero again, today I'm treating you, let's not get drunk. The familiar card seat, Han War, and the others sat down. Between the drinks, Han Zhan also learned about Yi Fan's situation. It was roughly similar to what Li Lingjin had said. Regarding the city protector organization being a pilot in Deep Blue City, he saw a hint of ingratiation in this. Yes, currying favor. The top management of the city protector organization were not fools, their energy was not small, this level of pilot could have been implemented as early as 800 years ago if they wanted to, but why did they have to choose this time? Because Li Shutong was here. Because Han War is here. They wanted to come up with some action, like a corrective item made after a leadership inspection. In Deep Blue City, the city protector organization cancelled the original point system, and gave the city protector members a fixed salary and performance bonus, stipulated commuting time, double rest, five insurance, and one gold. It sounds almost the same as the social animals in the previous life. Han Zhan touched his chin. However, you came back at a bad time. Yi Fan's words turned, he shook the glass in his hand, and half a cup of wine was still left in it, constantly shaking. A lot of outsiders have come to the latest deep blue city. Outsiders? Han Zhan asked rhetorically. That's right, and these outsiders, they're also somewhat related to you. Yi Fan, as the leader of the first squad of city protectors in deep blue city, he was well informed. He didn't sell out to Han Zhan and continued, Three people from the younger generation of the Li family came and threatened to challenge you. Samsonite Technology wants to find you to endorse their latest generation of mechs, the battle series. The people from the Everlasting Company also want to find you, not knowing what they want to do. Good guy, a come a litter is right. Li family, it should be teacher Li Shutong's family, the younger generation of the Li family wants to challenge me? Sun Shan Technology looking for their endorsement, this is even more ridiculous, what is the battle series mecha? The Everlasting Company's people also came to join in the fun? The three major powers, all of them are the top powers, they want to find me, their purpose must not be that simple. Teacher must have known about all this news a long time ago as well. Yet he didn't tell me about it first, was he trying to give me a surprise? In an instant, Han Zhan thought a lot inside his head. While he was thinking, the door of the Breeze Tavern was pushed open again. It was November, and the whistling cold wind swished in all of a sudden, many of the guests subconsciously tightened their collars, and some of the short-tempered ones had already begun to curse. Grass, who was so unethical, hurried to close the door off. That's right, what are you doing? The silhouette at the door seemed to have not heard these shouting voices at all, and a young man's voice rang out from the doorway. I heard that the owner of the Breeze Tavern knows Han Zhan, so why don't you get your ass out here? Our Li family's first son, Li Changhao, wants to see you. Li family? Which Li family? It can't be the Jinghai Li family, right? Ha ha ha. A dash. One of the spectators who had originally laughed out loud was caught in the throat by some invisible object and the whole thing lifted out. Yi Fan silently finished the wine in his glass in one gulp and smashed the wine cup hard on the ground. I'm the owner of Breeze Tavern, keep your hands clean, or I don't care which Li family you are, I'll do the same. Jinghai Li family. Han Zhan also wanted to follow suit and stand up, but was stopped by Yi Fan with a look. The visitor is not good, I'll try the depths first. Han Zhan wanted to speak. Yi Fan's tone, however, was very relaxed. It's fine, I can handle it. As Yi Fan spoke, the golden light on his hand that pressed on Han Zhan's shoulder appeared and quickly disappeared. The brief release of his aura allowed Han Zhan to feel his realm. It was actually the fourth rank as well? Yi Fan walked towards the door with smooth footsteps. Han Zhan's card seat for them was near the window, and they could see the situation outside even through the glass. He noticed that there were three people of the same age as himself standing on the street, only that they all looked arrogant, and it was hard to hide the noble aura of superiority on their bodies. Are these three from the Li family? Han Zhan asked casually. Don't forget that there was another Li family member beside him. Three stupid fools. This was Li Lingjin's assessment of them, giving up the opportunity to sign a contract with a deed spirit and focusing on hammering and forging their own force, just like most of the group that worships Grandpa War God. The Li family was warlike. It was because the Li family had produced a god of war, Li Shadong. Spirit contractors and deeds of the spirit were not the only way out, and the very different path that Li Shadong had taken had many latecomers and followers. As more and more ancient ruins are unearthed, there are many more divergent paths on the technological tree of mankind becoming stronger. In the technology category, there is the senator company, in the alienation category, there is the everlasting life company. And only those with nothing under their belts choose to continue on the path of spirit fitter and spirit fitter. The strange knowledge grew again. Han Zhan thought to himself, this rich man relies on technology, and the rich can still mutate. The poor can't just rely on spirit fitting? 
No wonder the Green Ivy Academy was able to enroll fewer and fewer students each year, so this was the reason. What's more, if a spirit contractor dies, he's a half-wasted person, think about it, who would want to gamble their future on their other half. What's more, there are many noble class existences that don't want their female offspring to become someone else's deed spirit. T.S.K. Han Zhan felt that this was very realistic. He withdrew his thoughts and refocused his gaze on Ifan who walked outside. Are you the owner of the Breeze Tavern, the captain of the first squad of Deep Blue City, Ifan? On the opposite side, the short-haired youth standing right in the center was looking at Ifan with an arrogant and scrutinizing gaze. Ifan was wearing a white shirt with a black suit over it in the tavern, and he casually threw the black suit onto a bench to the side, and without answering, he lowered his head and unbuttoned the cuffs of his shirt and slowly rolled them up. Seeing this ignoring behavior of his, the opposite three directly angry. Ready for the stabilizer, I don't want to beat the sky out of this place. Ifan silently rolled up his shirt cuffs before looking up. The stabilizer was a high-tech product invented by the Senator Technology, capable of covering a certain range, and whatever destructive movement it caused within it could be absorbed by the stabilizer and turned into nothing. It was also often used by protectors to apprehend bugs within the city, or for gifted people to fight each other and settle their grudges. The young man in the middle with the most smelly face signaled the two sides, and they then threw four round silver balls the size of a palm in all directions, each rolling down to the distance, covering the entire Breeze Tavern. The Honorable Lee family could still afford this amount of money. The one in the center is Li Changhao, claimed to be the most talented one within the Li family's younger generation. Li Lingjin refilled Han Zhan's cup of coffee while saying. Han Zhan took the coffee while pulling Li Lingjin to sit beside him, and the two of them intimately pressed closer together. Li Lingjin was wearing a lavender dress today, with a dark lattice on top and a thin lavender lace on the edge of the skirt, wrapping around her delicate figure and only revealing two cuts of pale white calves. Pulled by Han Zhan, Li Lingjin spat and didn't struggle against it. Dimly lit tavern, unnoticed unremarkable card seat, a wonderful young girl wearing only a dress and her girlfriends and friends, and a handsome male who exuded testosterone. Picture inspiration, isn't it? I'll add more when I go back tonight. The corners of Li Lingjin's mouth couldn't help but float into an upward arc. If Han Zhan knew what was going on in Li Lingjin's head right now, he would be shocked and give Li Lingjin a high five for her professionalism. What about the other two? And who are they respectively? Han Zhan still didn't know that Li Lingjin was starting to conceptualize unpleasant images in his head with the three of them, and continued to pursue the question. Miscellaneous fish. Li Lingjin said, full of concern. At this moment in the field, stray fish number one and stray fish number two, respectively, retreated backwards, leaving the battlefield to Li Changhao and Yifan. A bit interesting, let me meet you. Yifan said, and on the surface of his skin, a thin layer of golden light began to bloom, quickly covering it completely. His entire body looked like it had been painted with a thin layer of light golden paint, and under the sunlight, it was even a bit blinding. SS grade talent, indestructible. Li Changhao hummed, and without seeing how he moved, his entire person suddenly disappeared from sight. When he reappeared, he was already above Yi Fan's head. Li Changhao's fist then swung out with stored energy. His fist was very hard, and under the full force, it ruthlessly crashed into Yi Fan's ceiling. This was a vicious hand and a killing move. Clang. The recoil transmitted back from the bone joints of his fist caused Li Changhao to feel a stabbing pain in the bones of his hand, and when he heard the sound ringing in his ears, he saw a flash of light golden light above Yi Fan's head. The collapsed golden light turned into light spots and quickly regrouped again. Li Changhao was affected by the force of this recoil, and his entire body retreated backwards, trying to pull away. How could Yi Fan, as a former combat spirit contractor, give him such an opportunity? Under the golden light, Yi Fan was like a golden man, shining brightly. The talent, immortality, is not only defense, the golden light in Yi Fan's body constantly flushing, his internal organs, meridians and veins are benefited, the power is exponentially increased. Yi Fan stomped the bottom of his foot backward, and the golden wrapped fist had already ruthlessly smashed into Li Changhao's chest. Being hit by this fist, Li Changhao only felt that his breath was stagnant, like being pushed against his chest by a super large insect savage bull. But he didn't fly backwards. Li Changhao's feet firmly stepped on the ground, and the huge impulse knocked him backward and slid several meters. The ground was plowed with two long furrows. Strong enough, Li Changhao took a hard punch from Yi Fan, but he looked like a person who was fine, only rubbing his chest, excitement showing inside his eyes. Only Yi Fan knew that the punch he had just thrown was already the maximum power that the fourth rank could erupt. His eyes were heavy, this arrogant youth who didn't look too old was not easy to deal with. A faint white gas suddenly appeared above Li Changhao's head. Again, showing one's hand was crushing. Eight urgent fists? When he saw Li Changhao striking again, Han Zhan subconsciously screamed out. Yi Fan in the battlefield only heard a buzzing sound. There was a popping sound from something that had exceeded a certain level of speed and compressed the air. Then he saw that Li Changhao appeared in front of him. It was him. Li Changhao had a slightly crazy smile on his face, being able to fight a melee hard was his favorite thing when fighting someone. Reckless. Thank you, that's an apt evaluation. Li Changhao laughed as his fist had swung out again. 
This time, the fist that was swung out was wrapped with a layer of white qi on the outside, and in the state of a much-needed unlocking, if the intensity of Li Changhao's outgoing attack just now was compared to that of a high-speed automobile, then now his attack was at least a high-speed train. With Yi Fan's full power, the immortality, talent enveloped his entire body. Li Changhao's fist smashed into his abdomen, and once again, there was a clanging, metallic crunching sound. Ha 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 ha, it hurts. Li Changhao fought faster and faster, with every punch that landed on Yi Fan's body, a layer of ripples rippled from the gold color at the point of impact, and such ripples became more and more numerous, denser than raindrops, and very soon, Yi Fan's body was peeling off of the gold color. His speed, his strength, all increased by more than ten times. What kind of ability was that white chi, a talent? While defending, Yi Fan occasionally managed to throw a couple of punches back, obviously heavy punches, hitting Li Changhao as if he hadn't hit at all. He didn't even stagnate. Under the continuous tidal wave of attacks, Yi Fan quickly fell into a disadvantage. Li Changhao was the first of the younger generation of the Li family to have practiced the eight urgent fists to the point of unlocking the second urgent fists. Yi Fan is not his opponent, you. Li Lingjin, who was paying attention to the battlefield, turned back again, and she suddenly realized that she had lost sight of Han Zhan. Yi Fan was being continuously struck in the abdomen, sparing his, immortal, talent, he was about to be hardened by this melee terror. Was this the Li family? The only thing that surfaced in Yi Fan's mind was these words. Li Shudong was the great summer god of war, and the Li family he represented even had the strength. The more Li Changhao fought, the more excited he became, the more white aura he emitted, he had never beaten someone so resistant to beating. Ha ha ha, it's really still interesting outside, compared to those punching losers in the clan, you are much stronger than them. But that's all. Next punch, send you to the sky. Li Changhao said, raising his breath fiercely, his entire body bulldozed closer, and the uppercut of his clenched fist attacked towards Yi Fan's jaw. But in the next second, his smile froze on his face. The uppercut that was originally bound for him was blocked by another hand. A young man about the same age as himself stood beside Yi Fan. When did he appear? Li Changhao's heart was shocked, and he suddenly narrowed his eyes, carefully sizing up the opposite side. I recognize you, you are Han War. That fellow who was accepted as a disciple by our Li family's god of war. No, you don't deserve to be his disciple. When Li Changhao said this, Han Zhan was able to clearly hear a few moments of jealousy from his tone. It's not up to you to say whether or not you're worthy. If you have objections, you should go talk to your war god grandfather instead of bothering with me here. Han Zhan's words caused Li Changhao to hold his breath. What's your relationship with Li Lingjin? Miscellaneous fish no. One asked with a reluctant heart. What relationship? The corner of Han Zhan's mouth rose slightly when he heard this question, were friends of the pipe bow. What did it mean to be friends of the pipe and the abalone? Miscellaneous fish no. One and no. Two looked at each other in dismay, but Li Changhao, whose brain was still quite bright, came to a realization, and then his face turned ashen. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Just based on you? Yes, just by me. Li Changhao looked at the incomparably dejected Han Zhan Zhan on the opposite side, he no longer talked nonsense with the other party and directly unlocked the second urgent need, the whole person rushed out with a bang. Behind him, white breath was stretched. The air emitted a low whimper as Li Changhao wanted to settle his opponent with a single punch, taking this breath out for himself and the rest of his peers in the Li family. I've been able to unlock the second most urgent need, with this punch of mine, how many percent of you still have a chance to live? I think, it's 10%. On the opposite side, Han Zhan stood still, and suddenly white aura began to gush out behind him as well. However, his white aura was even more numerous and thicker than Li Changhao. Li Changhao's white aura was still a bit thin, but Han Zhan's white aura was already able to completely wrap his body turning it into a ball of exquisite armor. This. When Li Changhao saw this scene, he was so shocked that he couldn't speak. But a punch had already been thrown, and it was too late to retract it. As Li Changhao was still thinking, Han Zhan, who was faster than him, turned into a residual shadow, and instead, pressed Li Changhao's head first, and then, smashed it towards the ground. Being grabbed by Han Zhan's face, Li Changhao had only one thought in his head. That was, how could he possibly be able to unlock the three urgent needs? How long has he only been worshipping the master? Three months. Or four months? What gives him the right? The only thing that answered him was the cold ground at the back of his head and the endless devouring darkness. Han War had the appearance of a god of war as he raised his head and looked at the two still standing behind him. Tell me, what is the reason for you noble young men from the capital to come to this small place in deep blue city? It's impossible to make a special trip for a little person like me. Seeing that Li Changhao was held down on the ground and unable to move in a single round, the uh, both stray fish no, one and stray fish no, two couldn't help but swallow their saliva. We, we came to find the war god and bring him a letter. Second uncle, this letter, the family elders asked me to pass it on to you. Standing behind Li Shudong was a middle-aged man who, judging from his eyebrows, bore a 6 or 7 percent resemblance to Li Shudong. Second uncle, you have left the Li family for many years, today's current situation is unpredictable, the Li family elders, want you to go back and preside over the situation for the Li family again, to tide over the difficult times. 
Li Shudong did not speak. Just being watched by him, the middle-aged man across from him was already a little fidgety. Feng Chun, your eight urgent fists, how many urgent needs have you practiced to? Three urgent needs. Li Feng Chun, who was sitting across from him, honestly replied. Have I taught the eight urgent fists to the Li family? Li Shudong asked again. Yes, and it's very detailed cultivation tips and all. How has the Li family been doing in Jinghai in these hundred years, utilizing my name? Li Shudong asked three times. Within a hundred years, the Li family has mixed well in the capital C, just like the first family of Dasha, no one dares to touch the war god's mold, they all flatter. Li Shudong finished asking the three questions, he raised his head, looked at Li Fengchun and said, I don't owe the Li family anything anymore, so why do those old guys still want me to go back and preside over the big picture? There is no long-lasting family, the future generations don't work hard, relying on the remaining shade of their ancestors, how long can they rely on it? If the Li family wants to fall, let it fall. Night Overture. Delivering a letter? Han Zhan withdrew his fist. The white mist outside his body was as active as if it was active, drilling back into his body from all sides and disappearing. Li Changhao, the genius of the Li family, who had been knocked to the ground, had actually woken up, so don't doubt a pure martial artist's ability to resist blows. Just because it was too humiliating, he felt that it would be better to get up at this time than to be dragged away by his two companions, so he simply continued to pretend to be dead. Yi Fan also contacted the immortal state from the side at this time and walked over. These few from the Li family, what to do with them? Hearing Han Zhan ask, Yi Fan shrugged. How else can I deal with it, put it away, you have someone behind you, I don't want the good pilot area of Deep Blue City to turn into a target range for the Li family. Go go go, drink drink drink. Sure enough, fighting which is not as interesting as drinking, I really don't like fighting. Yi Fan touched the slightly painful belly and thought to himself. After returning to the Breeze Tavern, the four of them drank for a while longer, and returned as much as they could. An inconspicuous alley in Deep Blue City. A few gray-haired rats drilled out from the manhole cover, their rather spiritual eyes resembling human beings, and after looking around, that's when they completely drilled out of the ground. One of the rats suddenly mouthed human words. I still don't understand, if the company wants to find that Han Zhan, why don't they just go head on and search for it? Stupidity. He's living with the great summer war god right now, so if you wanna go and deal with that one, I won't stop you. What exactly are we infiltrating Deep Blue City for this time? Why did the company give us this secret mission? The question was asked, and there was a brief silence in the alley. And only then did one of the larger greyfurred rats slowly spit out three words. Shinong Ding. That Han War has just returned from the front line, he definitely needs to recuperate for a while, so while he drops his guard, let's take advantage of the opportunity and negotiate with him alone, trying not to attract the attention of others, especially that one. They were all very jealous of Li Shudong. It was just that while they were talking, none of them noticed that on the dark grey brick wall next to them, a flower cat was bowing up, its pupils staring tightly at these few mice. Not long after, a tumultuous sound came from within the alley. Meow. Squeak. Meow meow meow. Deep blue city, offshore beach. Even though it was the end of the insect plague, there were still many people lingering around the beach, enjoying the endless sea. It was getting late, and the afterglow of the setting sun covered the entire surface of the sea with a layer of golden color. In late fall, the beach was particularly cold in the evening, and the travelers started to return to Deep Blue City. The last one who hadn't left the beach yet was a photography enthusiast. He was holding up his camera, constantly adjusting the angle, taking pictures of the shimmering waves reflected by the setting sun. Just then, he saw a small bug from the zoomed-in camera lens. It was a very small black bug. It seemed to have flown from the end of the sea, but the end of the sea was still an ocean. Where did it come from? Just as he was still pondering this question in his mind, the bug suddenly zoomed in, zoomed out, and zoomed in again in his lens. The sea, which was originally a thousand meters away, appeared in front of him in an instant. Ah! He subconsciously exclaimed. On the coast, the city protector in charge of patrolling was riding a shared bicycle and patrolling along the seawall. He heard the call and rushed to the source of the sound at the first opportunity. Hey, are you okay? He asked as he parked his bike on the seawall and ran down the beach along the seawall. The mute-looking photographer looked at him and shook his head. Really okay? Really? Nothing? The photographer across the street, a pure black light suddenly flashed in his eyes, and the protector standing across the street became slow to speak, and in only a few seconds, his pupils began to become pitch black as well. Shall we go? Yeah. In a hurry, take your bike. Han War's residence, Li Shutong's villa. Looking at Li Fengchun, who was feasting on a large piece of food, Han Zhan and Xiao Yue glanced at each other, both seeing the doubt in the eyes of both parties. Was this really someone from the Li family in Jinghai, confirming that it wasn't a wandering beggar who came? Eat ah, why aren't you eating? Hurry up and eat. Li Fengchun forked a piece of lamb chop into his dinner plate while yelling up the crowd. Mr. Li, I was on the street today, and I beat up a scion with the same surname Li. Han Zhan still wasn't quite sure how to address Li Fengchun, looking at his teacher Li Shutong's meaning, 
he didn't seem to have the intention of introducing the two sides to each other, as long as he took the lead in opening his mouth. I thought that Li Fengchun would slap the table after hearing this, but I didn't realize that he waved his hand without a care in the world. Oh, you're talking about Li Changhao, it's fine, it's fine, that kid is just arrogant and used to it in the family, he looks down on everyone. Beat, give me a hard beating, I'll be anxious with you if the beating is light. Li Fengchun muttered with food stuffed in his mouth, Han Zhan still barely heard what he said. Don't look at me like that, I'll leave after this meal. Li Fengchun struggled to swallow his food and slugged down a few more mouthfuls of water, twisting his head to look at Li Shutong on the side. Second uncle, you're sure you don't want to come back to help, right? My mind is made up. Li Fengchun wiped his mouth with a paper towel and nodded in understanding. Just as he got up, intending to leave, the villa's doorbell was rung. Is the housekeeper Afu back? Han Zhan stood up, opened the door, and there stood a stranger at the door. However, he was wearing the uniform of a city protector. Hello, here's a headquarters mission to hand over to elderly in person. The headquarters of the city protector organization? Han Zhan raised an eyebrow and stepped aside for half a body length. The city protector who walked in nodded his head at Han Zhan, then quickly walked towards the dining table. Suddenly, Li Shutong, who was originally seated, seemed to sense something, his eyes snapped open, and without saying a word, he pushed Li Lingjin and Xia Yuwei, who were beside him, out of the way at first, controlling a moderate amount of force to push them just to the side of Han Zhan. Old war god, your six senses are still so sharp. Obviously not seeing that city protector take a step, his figure approached the table, step by step, extremely quickly. Ninth ranked insect emperor, nightmare. Li Shutong looked across the table vigilantly, while he stretched out his left hand, intending to repeat his old trick and push out Li Fengchun beside him. When his hand had just pressed on Li Fengchun, Li Fengchun suddenly backhanded his left hand and violently hugged it. In the next second, with a bang, Li Fengchun's entire person instantly exploded, without the imagined blood splattering. He turned into a lump of mushy monster, starting from Li Shutong's left hand and gradually spreading to his whole body. Li Shutong's gaze turned cold as he looked across at the ninth ranked insect emperor nightmare and realized. You actually collaborated with the Li family, to kill me? Kill you? No, 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 with us, we can't kill you yet, but well, before killing everyone else, your old man, just stay well with me, in this blood and flesh boundary specially designed for you. Saying that, from the ground under his feet, endless darkness spread out. It quickly enveloped a large portion of deep blue city. Han Zhan and the others looked up and, only saw a scarlet blood moon. Alienation crisis. This was, looking at the scarlet blood moon above their heads, they then looked at Li Shutong and Nightmare who were completely wrapped in blood and flesh, at the dining table. Han Zhan's gaze was grave. That was the ninth ranked bug emperor, Nightmare's boundary. Not all insect races were frontal rushers, there were also some powerful insect races that possessed means that were even more treacherous. Nightmare, was one such insect race, and it was also a Herculean ninth ranked insect emperor. Earlier, he had only helped Gong Yang Jin recover from the dark wounds that Nightmare had left on his body, but he didn't think that he would be able to see his own body so soon. As the backbone of the team, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin both cast glances at Han Zhan. Han Zhan, save my grandfather, Li Lingjin said nervously. Naturally, let's attack that mass of flesh and blood first, if we can get teacher out of this current state, a ninth ranked insect emperor won't matter. After Han Zhan nodded, he spoke again. Yue, you used the Fushi Zither to create Zither Qi blades while increasing me. Lingjin, you summoned the Divine Farmer's tripod to guard the surroundings in case more enemies sneak up on you. Long range attack first. The flesh and blood that wrapped around Li Shutong and Nightmare just now was clearly a forbidden prop, and Han Zhan's entire skill set was in melee combat, so he didn't choose to approach first. Attacking from afar was the best option at the moment. Hearing Han Zhan's words, the two women nodded. The Fushi Zither and the Divine Peasant Tripod were summoned, emitting a faint spiritual glow at the same time. The Fushi Zither was the first to sound, and the Zither's Qi blade sliced through the air, ruthlessly cleaving onto the mass of flesh and blood. Pfft. The chi blade didn't enter the bloody flesh, emitting a dull sound. But there was no more then. The gas blade attack is ineffective, try a celestial phenomenon. Han Zhan made a snap decision. After hearing this, Xia Yue changed her technique again, but she was shocked to find that whether she played spring wildfire, quick wind, or six sting thunderbolts, there was no response at all. Han Zhan's brows knitted up as he thought of a possibility. It's the nightmare's boundary, it covers a large area of deep blue city, and the inside of the boundary is a world of its own, unless the boundary is broken, the celestial elements will not be able to be mobilized within it. Fushi Qin's great killing move was nullified. Han Zhan no longer hesitated and drew the regular sword behind his back. He'd been cramming for a while recently, and although he wasn't very skilled yet, he had learned all the basic sword moves. Split, stab, point, tease, collapse, pierce, and sweep. Even the most basic sword moves, under the enchantment of the ancient divine weapon Xian Yuan sword, exploded with incomparable terrifying power. Berserk sword Qi swung out from the Xian Yuan sword, and one by one, it struck the mass of flesh and blood. Most of the energy was similarly absorbed, but some of it was still vented out, blasting the flesh and blood. 
However, no matter how hard Han Zhan tried to slash, after he stopped, the bloody flesh continued to grow out again, reverting back to its initial appearance as a large ball of meat. It's useless, with our strength, we can't break through this blood and flesh boundary. A prop that can trap two Ninth Order props can't be trash, we're just trying, it's normal that we can't break it. What should we do now? Han Zhang glanced at the sky, apart from the red moon, the sky that was originally just evening had completely turned pitch black and shrouded in deep blue. With such a commotion, there was no way that the officials wouldn't notice it, and if they stalled for time, the other experts of the officials would support them. However, this is deep blue city, 108,000 miles away from the front line, how on earth did a ninth-ranked bug emperor sneak into here in a dignified manner? And that Li Fengchun, as a member of the Li family, actually colluded with the insect race to take action against his own old war god? Is he out of his mind, or did the bug race promise some conditions they couldn't refuse? Han Zhan only felt that there was a cloud of muddy water and spies in here, and it was simply impossible to see a true picture. Ah Zhan, don't you have that note that your second senior brother gave you, and is there a record of the ninth-ranked insect emperor nightmare in it? Xia Yue asked. Han Zhan shook his head. Second senior brother hasn't fought nightmare. In other words, if it was a normal situation to fight a nightmare, second senior brother would at least end up crippled, if not dead. Like Gong Yang Jin, Han Zhan added in his heart. Another approach failed. However, since there is bad news, there is also good news. Now, it's true that we're trapped inside Nightmare's boundary, but likewise, Nightmare is also trapped inside the flesh and blood boundary, because it probably knows that relying on a single flesh and blood boundary alone wouldn't be able to completely stifle teacher, so he has to enter the boundary as well, double insurance. In this way, Nightmare's boundary is in an automatic state, and if we are able to break his boundary, the problem will be solved. This difficulty could be much easier than going head-to-head -head with a ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare. As for the strategy, there was no strategy, so they would find one out for themselves. Han Zhan's words restored a lot of the trio's morale. Right, there's also Ifan, and what about those city protectors, they're also trapped in this boundary, we can find them and join forces, unity is strength. Li Lingjin added. Han Zhan looked at her approvingly, he was deeply gratified that this could come from the mouth of a banned book author. However, we still need to be careful, right now the situation outside is unknown, and none of us know what kind of crisis will be inside the nightmare's boundary. After we go out, all follow me closely and be careful. Inside the alley. Three people with gray heads and cat hair walked out from the alley. The one in the lead was wearing a brown plaid shirt and jeans, which was very retro from what he was wearing. He spat out several mouthfuls of cat hair and cursed under his breath. This damn feral cat. Elder, let's change into something else next time, why does it have to be a mouse? Yes Elder, the fugue is able to give us the ability to change into several creatures, changing into a rat is too much of a disadvantage, my but still hurts a bit even now. The other two responded with a word. Shut up. The everlasting company's face has been disgraced by all of you. The head elder scolded them to shut up, and only then did he continue, the fugitives can only change into elephants, owls, and toads besides mice right now, so don't demand too much from yourselves. Now that we've solved the first difficulty, we'll immediately proceed to find Han War. You too, what are you waiting for? Seeing that the two little brothers didn't listen when he spoke, he was so angry that one of them gave them a blow. Unexpectedly, the two of them remained motionless. One of them, stuttering voice came from the front. Long. Elder. Seems. Not quite right. Outside, outside, outside is full of monsters ah. Outside the alley, on the streets of Deep Blue City, one passerby who was originally walking, at this time, under the light of the red moon's radiance, one by one, they were alienated into hideous monsters with hideous faces. When that henchman shouted out a voice, the heads of all the monsters turned towards the alley here. Mirage. It's a boundary, and it's also a boundary of a high level. Mu Yan, the elder of the Eternal Life Company, looked up at the scarlet blood moon in the sky and mumbled. He was dumbfounded. Mu Yang froze, but the monsters on the opposite side of the street didn't, they turned around and charged towards here. In the middle of running, a head of alienated monsters, behind the back suddenly gave birth to fleshy wings, four feet off the ground, with extremely fast speed to attack. Mu Yang's face was fierce as he pulled out a green syringe potion and forcefully stuck it on his arm. The green liquid was pushed into the blood vessels, and along with the blood, it quickly flowed throughout the body. Plop, plop, plop. Mu Yang's original short hair grew in unison and draped over his shoulders, and from his shoulder blades, two crunching sounds of piercing came out, and two incomparably sharp bone knives extended out from his back. Madness flickered in the bottom of his eyes. This was the Everlasting Life Company's Hyperstate Type 1 potion, made by refining the fourth-rank insect race Dark Scale Blood Chelonia, and this time when they traveled to Deep Blue City, the company had equipped each of them with three of them, just in case. There's no way out, follow me and kill your way out. Han Zhan, look. Inside the villa, Xia Yue noticed the abnormality over the dining table and pulled Han Zhan. The ball of flesh that encased Li Shutong and the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare, fluttered and fluttered, and a strong and powerful heartbeat rang out at the same time as the blood and flesh that had originally stopped spreading, began to spread out to the entire villa area again. The speed was not fast, 
but it was only a matter of time before it engulfed the entire villa. Looks like we have to get out of here. You guys follow me and alert each other of any abnormalities, Han Zhan said, and was the first to push open the door and walk out. He had just awakened his heavenly serpent body, his defense was strong enough, and with the eight urgent fists protecting him, he would be able to react first to any danger he encountered. Just after he pushed open the door, the scene outside made Han Zhan stunned. Disappeared. Everything had disappeared. All that was left was a thick gray fog that shrouded all of it, making him unable to see the scene inside the fog at all. He took a step towards the door while reminding Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin behind him, stay close to me. No one responded. Han Zhan turned around, and he was horrified to find that the villa that had been right behind him had also disappeared. Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin were even nowhere to be found. When? He had clearly only taken one step. How did this happen? Han Zhan faced the unknown horror and almost instinctively released his three urgent needs as white mists were released from within his body. They slowly merged into the surrounding gray mist like a spreading net. Han Zhan borrowed the sense of the white mist to detect and be on guard. At this time, a black shadow flickered in the gray fog in front of Han Zhan's eyes. It stirred up the entire gray fog, like a gust of wind, turning the gray fog in front of him into a ball. Phew! Han Zhan's neck felt an icy chill, and the bone-chilling cold made his sweaty hair stand up. Almost without even thinking, Han Zhan twisted his body and threw out a fist, which struck the gray mist behind him. The fist, which was caught in the gray fog, did not touch any physical object or hard object at all, and returned with no success. Just when Han Zhu thought that there was no one behind him, suddenly a powerful force bombarded the front of his abdomen, the sudden impact made Han Zhu bend his entire body, arching his body, and received the blow hard. If someone was beside him at this time, he could see that the moment Han Zhan was attacked, a layer of faint transparent scales appeared on his skin all over his body. Those scales were very similar to the pattern lines of snake skin, with slight differences. When the attack from the gray mist landed on Han Zhan, the heavenly serpent body was activated at the first moment, the snake scales offset most of the impulse, and the armor made of the white mist from the eight urgent fists was even dispersed at the first moment. Despite this, Han Zhan still had a mouthful of sour water knocked out. Heavenly serpent body, eight urgent fists white mist armor, double protection, and still be hit with acid water. The most critical thing is that I didn't even see what was striking. Han warrior thought in his mind as he acted more cautiously. But in the next second, his back was still attacked a second time. This time, it was a knife. It still cut through the white mist armor and slashed at the protective scale armor of the heavenly serpent's body. Sparks of fire erupted out before the blade finally cut through the defense, leaving a bloodstain on Han Zhan's body. Han Zhan's reflexes were almost at an extremely fast level under the state of the three urgent releases. But that was it, he still couldn't react, still couldn't see the trajectory of his opponent's strike. A deep sense of powerlessness arose in Han Zhan's heart. This is, after all, a ninth-ranked insect emperor's boundary. How am I going to be able to defend myself against a ninth-ranked insect emperor's attack? No, I can't defend against it. Both Yue and Ling Jin have disappeared, and we will be broken down one by one, powerless to fight back. It's too strong, it's too strong, I can't resist, I can only take a beating, take a beating. Han Zhan's mental state quickly withered down, he couldn't even defend against the attacks with his full concentration, and after the negative emotions in his head took over, he completely gave up. More and more attacks were raining down from the gray mist. The wounds on Han Zhan's body became more and more numerous. He was barely able to support himself from closing his eyes, as a man was about to die, many images flashed through Han Zhan's mind, and it was these images that made his originally heavy brain wake up all of a sudden. It's not right. This isn't right. Why would I think that for a Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare's boundary, the attacks inside would have to be of the Ninth Order degree? You know, the attack in the gray mist didn't even break my body's defenses at the very beginning. When did it start getting stronger? The first attack, it knocked me out of the acid, I was nervous and panicked because I hadn't discovered the trajectory of its strike, plus Li Lingjin and Xia Yue got missing. So its second attack increased in intensity and managed to break my defense. After having my defense broken, my mental pressure was even greater, and I became more and more afraid of this unseen enemy in the gray mist, and it was only then that its later attacks became more and more powerful. But there was a loophole in this. I, did not trigger the eight urgent fists between life and death. Han Zhan spread out his hands, yes, even though his entire body was now covered in thousands of holes in blood, he still hadn't triggered between life and death, and the amount of white mist hadn't grown at all. What did this indicate? It showed that one's situation was simply not up to the point of between life and death. This was a judgment bug. Your attack, it's not strong at all. The first attack was able to knock me out of acid, and that was only because Li Lingjin and Xia Yue's disappearance gave me an emotional break. I heard Ramskin talk about it, and she said that the truly terrifying thing about nightmares is playing with people's hearts. In other words, what I'm seeing in front of me and what I'm experiencing are all illusions. All illusions. As Han Zhan uttered these words, his entire essence instantly climbed back up again. As a practitioner of the eight urgent fists, Han Zhan, who had experienced life and death several times, was extremely mentally tough, and how could he possibly be afraid of an illusion when he had no fear of even life and death? He thought about it and closed his eyes completely. 
Not only that, he also took the initiative to lift the three urgent states, abandoning his heavenly serpent body and placing himself completely in the gray mist. Come on, if you're capable, kill me. Nightmare beast. Han Zhang closed his eyes and frankly let go of his hands as he took a step forward. One step. The sound of the whistling wind in his ears remained, and the terrifying attack seemed to fly right by his ears. He took a second step unmoved. The sound of the wind was much smaller. Third step. The whistling sound stopped completely. At this point, Han Zhan opened his eyes, and he realized that he was still maintaining his grip on the villa's door handle, and in front of him, hanging upside down, was a ghoul-like creature with crimson eyes. The gray smooth outer skin wrapped all over its body, without a single bit of hair, looking like a huge alienated hairless cat, with crimson pupils flickering with a faint red light. It was hanging upside down on the villa's gate, its eyes just opposite Han Zhan. Han Zhan immediately blasted his fist on its head. A strange scream rang out, and its head was instantly exploded by Han, splashing blood everywhere. Behind them, Xia Yue and Li Ling, who had disappeared into thin air, were truly standing in place, their eyes staring blankly ahead, obviously having been brought into different illusions as well. Han Zhan didn't hesitate any longer, visualizing the Fushi Zither at his side, and the sound of the Zither of the clear heart scatter resounded, cleansing their spiritual world. Soon, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin regained their divine color in their eyes. Who, who? The first time Xia Yue woke up, she gasped for air, the illusionary realm she had just fallen into was an endless ocean, she tried to make herself float on the sea, but she still kept sinking to the bottom. Li Lingjin was fine, only her face was a bit odd as she looked at Han Zhan, her small face pale and her legs a bit trembling. What's wrong with you? Han Zhan noticed that Li Lingjin's state was a bit off, and he reached out his hand to comfort her, which was subconsciously dodged away. In the illusion just now, hundreds of old king next door appeared. I'm a bit turned off by males right now. Li Lingjin rubbed her face hard and explained. Han Zhan froze for a moment, then without a trace, he vigorously crushed the corpse on the ground that was already completely dead. We've been hit by an illusion, this should be the nightmare beast, the insect race that the Ninth Order Insect Emperor is rumored to have raised. There must be many of these nightmare beasts inside this boundary. As Han Zhan said, his eyes glanced at the meatball on the side, which actually did start fluttering and beating hard as it did in the illusion, and seeing this scene, Han Zhan hurriedly pulled Xia Yue and Li Lingjin's hands and left from the villa. Walking onto the streets of Deep Blue City. Not seeing the gray fog, Han Zhan breathed a sigh of relief. Just then, he saw a Deep Blue citizen sitting on a roadside bench not far away, and he was staring just as blankly ahead with empty eyes. Without waiting for Han Zhan to make a move, he suddenly reached out and snapped his neck, dead. On the other side, two couples who were kissing under the streetlight suddenly twisted and tore wildly as they nodded each other's faces until they nod each other's faces until they were a bloody mess. The illusion was like a plague that was spreading at a very fast speed. The level of the realm of those who have been struck by the illusion spell will also affect the speed at which they will go to their deaths in the illusion realm. Ordinary people will be fast, awakened people will be slightly slower, and the higher the realm, the slower it will be. It's currently unknown just how many nightmare beasts have been unleashed, if so many residents of Deep Blue City were to fall into the illusionary realm, it would cause a large number of deaths. What should we do now? Han Zhan frowned and was speechless for a moment. Deep Blue City, outside the alley. Mu Yang was panting heavily, and he looked somewhat wretched. The clothes on his body had already been scratched, and wounds in various places were stimulating the nerves and sending out sharp pains. On his arm, there were already two injection needle holes that hadn't recovered yet which also meant that Mu Yang had injected himself with a total of two injections. With two injections, he had killed these monsters on the opposite side 20 times, but no matter how many times he tore his opponent's hands apart, they were always able to regroup from a pile of shredded flesh into their original form, and became stronger. Mu Yang could feel that his body was nearing its limit. The duration of the hyperstate type 1 potion was one hour, the company had only brought him three tubes, and right now only the last one was left. Damn, damn, damn. I should have checked the yellow calendar first when I went out today. Mu Yang spat bloody phlegm onto the ground, he turned his head to look behind him, the two colleagues who came with him had already been bitten to death by the alienated monster. As if he had made up his mind about something, he took out a different tube of potion from his storage space. It was an orange-colored syringe potion that, hyperstate type 2, 50% instability potion, take with caution. This was the hyperstate potion that Mu Yang, as a junior elder, was able to assign the highest authority. If hyperstate type 1 was able to allow him to transform into a fourth order awakened, then the lower limit of hyperstate type 2 was at least 5th order at the lowest minimum. Mard, if you push me to the edge, I'll inject hyperstate type 2 and fight you. Looking at the dozens of pieces of shattered meat on the opposite side, which began to automatically reassemble themselves again, inside Mu Yang's eyes, a hint of ruthlessness was revealed. Deep Blue City, Hotel. Li Chang Hao took two of his juniors and carefully hid in a position near the window, looking out the window. On the streets illuminated by the streetlights, all the residents of Deep Blue City were in some kind of crazy and maniacal state, either committing suicide, on their way to commit suicide, or killing each other. Seeing this scene, Li Changhao let out a long breath. Fortunately, I brought quite a few things with me this time out. 
He sighed as he looked at the jade pendant on the ground, which had broken into eight pieces. This jade pendant was able to resist a spiritual attack, and it was because of it that Li Changhao's three didn't fall into the illusion in the first place. Boss, what do we do now? The miscellaneous fish junior was in shock. They were just fine in the room when the sky outside instantly darkened, then the moon turned red and they followed into the illusion. If it wasn't for Li Changhao giving one of them two solid slaps, they were afraid that they would have turned into madmen who couldn't distinguish reality from illusion just like the people outside by now. What should we do? What else can we do? Go! Li Changhao said with a face of egg pain. This time, when he came to Deep Blue City, everything really didn't go well. He wanted to find that Han Zhan to pretend to be a pussy, but he didn't realize that the other party was even fiercer than him, and the eight urgent fists could unlock three urgent needs, so he failed to pretend to be a pussy. His uncle Li Fengchun, who brought him alone, lost contact with him after he entered the villa. Now even more encountered this shit, it was really bad. Boss, this sky outside, why is it always dark, and that moon, why on earth did it turn red? It's a high-level boundary, insect talent. As a member of the Li family, Li Changhao still had this insight. The moon turning red means both that it is contaminated and that it is the position of the formation eye of the entire boundary. If you want to break the boundary, you have to get close to it. But the closer you get, the worse the contamination will be and the more intense the illusion attack will be. After making such a big commotion, it was impossible for the officials to be unresponsive, Li Changhao thought in his heart, now he could only wait for the official rescue to arrive. While he was thinking about it, outside the door of the hotel room, a rhythmic knocking sound suddenly rang out. Duck duck duck. Recommend a friend's new book, Swordsman Week? But I'm super enlightened, a sword to open the sky. Any interested reader lords can search for it. The way to break the game. Han Zhan raised his hand and knocked out a commoner who was trying to stick his hand down his throat. He had already stretched a good portion of it out, and blood was slowly seeping out of his arm. Li Lingjin and Xia Yue both consciously averted their gazes, unable to bear it. Not being an awakened, caught in an illusion, you can't even force them to wake up. Does knocking them out really help? Xia Yue asked with some concern. If it's just the nightmare beasts, it shouldn't be a problem. Han Zhan paused as he looked up at the blood moon that had been dyed bright red overhead, but if we want to save more people, we have to take a risk. Risk it how? Go there. Han Zhan pointed to the sky, where the blood moon was. Going to the blood moon, that was definitely impossible, and if he wanted to break the boundary, the primary goal was to find the eye of the formation, followed by destroying it. He had already observed, inside the entire boundary that encompassed most of Deep Blue City, the one that looked the most like the formation eye was the blood moon overhead. The tallest tower in Deep Blue City is the Deep Blue City TV tower that is now in a state of abandonment. We need to go there and then break the boundary. What Han Zhan didn't say was that the reason why he wanted to go and break the blood moon as soon as possible was because of the uneasiness he vaguely felt. Although he didn't know where the uneasiness came from, the means of a ninth-ranked insect emperor would definitely not be as simple as it was now. Let's go! Without Han Zhan's urging, Li Lingjin and Xia Yue had already followed behind, and the three of them rushed towards the TV station at a quick pace. The blood moon was high in the sky, and the illusions were eroding. Deep Blue City was in the midst of a huge crisis, and all those who were illuminated by the blood moon, or saw it, were the first to fall into an illusion. What Han Zhan and the others didn't notice was... Those corpses that had died in the illusion realm were emitting a trace of faint black gas. All of this black gas, smoldering and curling up, floated towards the blood moon that hung high in the center. The blood moon, which had absorbed this black gas, became much larger and rounder. The corpses on the ground also began to alienate, and they were no longer nightmare beasts after alienation, but a brand new kind of insect race, which were corpse beasts. These corpse beasts exuded an aura that exceeded the fourth level, and the more they gathered, the more they multiplied. Han Zhan and the others traveled all the way to the tower, and ten minutes had already passed. Just as they were about to start climbing the tower, there was a sudden agitation overhead, and a humanoid-type creature slammed down heavily on the ground. It trampled the concrete floor to pieces. It had a human-like appearance, its muscles gnarled in large chunks, its veins rippled, and its blood vessels could be clearly seen. Han Zhan noticed that at its neck, there was an empty syringe inserted upside down, not knowing if it had been injected with some kind of medicine. Feeling the terrifying aura emanating from it, everyone's hearts tightened. Fifth rank. It roared furiously and had jumped ahead of them to attack Han Zhan. Its limbs were still of human proportions, but instead of walking upright, it had changed to using all four limbs together, and its speed was faster than walking upright. The palms of its hands clawed at the ground, and every time it landed, a visibly sunken pothole appeared on the ground. Thud, thud, thud. Like the sound made by a giant hammer hitting a drum, a hypnotic note appeared in Han Zhan's ears and their ears. This foreign beast, it was human. Han Zhan could see the remaining pieces of clothing on his body, but this person had completely fallen into a state of berserkness and lost his mind. Poof. Han Zhan was not the least bit intimidated and blocked in front of the two women. With three urgent instantaneous openings, his battle power sword in a straight line, and wrapping his fist in white mist, he blasted his fist towards the opposite face. Hard to hard. 
Under the collision of forces, Han Zhan unexpectedly carried it. The opposite side was obviously stunned as well. Although he had lost his sense of self, as an instinct after berserking, he actually didn't crush his opponent under the power hedge. Without waiting for the opponent to react, Han Zhan had already swung a second punch. Then the third punch, punching to the bone. The heavenly serpent body made his body more flexible and made his moves more coherent and smooth. After unlocking the three urgent locks, Han Zhan's speed had already surpassed its limits, and his strength and the speed of his moves had increased in tandem. His current melee strength was comparable to that of a fifth-ranked berserk power monster. In the continuous bombardment of punches, the opponent retreated and withdrew from the range of the TD tower. But even so, the recovery ability of this berserk monster secretly staggered Han Zhan. Beak resistant, huge strength, and strong recovery, it was as if he saw a replica of himself. I'm afraid that it would be difficult to distinguish a winner in a short period of time, so Han Zhan could only entrust the task of cracking the formation I to the other two. Yue, Ling Jin, you guys go up and destroy the formation I, I'll be responsible for stalling him here. Han Zhan shouted. Xia Yue and Li Lingjin didn't hesitate for a second, and after hearing Han Zhan's words, they immediately rushed towards the TV tower. Deep Blue City's abandoned TV tower, which was 120 meters tall, had also been in use for almost 30 years since it was abandoned. The periphery of the tower had rusted quite a bit, and it would take quite a bit of time to walk up to the top from the bottom of the tower. Walking on the tower, looking at her feet, Li Lingjin's legs were slightly trembling. Xia Yue noticed this and stopped in her tracks. Ling Jin, are you still okay? If you really can't, you go down and help Ah Zhan, I'll go up alone. Xia Yue said with concern. Li Lingjin bit her lip, still shaking her head. No, I can't hold him back. It's only a bit of fear of heights, it's not a problem. After Li Lingjin finished speaking, she took two more steps upwards. The rusty tower made a sharp scratching sound, the baked paint on the exterior peeling off and flopping down. The slight shaking caused Li Lingjin to subconsciously grip the railing next to him. Keep going up. No need to purposely stop and wait for me. Seeing that Li Lingjin insisted, Xia Yue could only follow what she said and turned around to continue walking upwards. The two walked for almost 10 minutes, just finishing a third of the way up. Below the tower, the battle between Han Zhan and that berserk monster had already reached a fever pitch. Both sides were monsters with thick blood, high offense, and high defense, and neither side could do anything about it. In the bright red sky, a group of black figures suddenly flew out, and they were flying towards the TV tower in mid-air in groups. When Han Zhan saw this scene, his heart thumped and he said that it was not good. It was this moment of days that he was smashed in the face by the opposite monster, and his entire body violently fell to the ground on its back. It was a group of nightmare beasts. As companion beasts in the boundary, they also realized the danger and began to intercept Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, who were attempting to reach the top. The moment Han Zhan fell to the ground, he saw many different, but all strangely shaped figures appearing densely around him. They were like walking corpses, and with whimpering, hoarse, and muffled voices. They surrounded Han Zhan from all sides. An army of fourth-rank corpse beasts, also driven by nightmare beasts, arrived here. The back of the belly was surrounded by enemies. Sword, tripod, zither. Han Zhan climbed up from the ground, his face slightly sullen. From behind him, he slowly drew out the regular sword. Now that Gong Yang Jin was incarnating the Xian Yuan sword, he was unable to utilize its full power, but as an ancient divine weapon, even if it was just a general attack, it had a notable performance in itself. Shen Yuan's sword was a demon slaying sword, and right now, these inhuman and ghostly things around him were emitting black gas, no different from living corpses. Using the regular sword to deal with them couldn't be more appropriate. Han Zhan wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and raised his sword to fight again. On the high tower, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin were still climbing to the top. The higher they went, the colder the wind and the silent night became, scraping against the old and rusty traveling ladder, making teeth grinding creaking sounds. Looking down, the ground has been completely unable to see, empty, in the dark night, as if stepping in the air. Alas, if only the four elephants of heavens will could still be used. Xia Yue sighed in her heart, and at the same time spoke, Ling Jin, what was your Li family thinking internally, that you would even lay hands on your teacher? If Li Feng Chun hadn't used himself to control Li Shadong, even a ninth-ranked insect emperor nightmare wouldn't have been able to get his hands on him in the first place. Li Ling Jin knew that she was trying to use the topic to distract her nervousness. With her small hands gripping the railing next to her, Li Lingjin settled her nerves. The Li family isn't united as one either, when the family grows to a certain size, the same rice will raise a hundred kinds of people. Li Lingjin's answer made Xia Yue somewhat surprised. I didn't expect a banned book writer to be able to say such decent things. Grandpa and the current ruler of the Li family, his own brother, my great-grandfather, do not have a harmonious relationship. Li Shadong was the second oldest in the Li family, and his elder brother was Li Guangming, the current true power holder of the Li family. Li Fengchun, on the other hand, belonged to Li Guangming's lineage. After he went to assassinate the three great insect emperors back then, great-grandfather deliberately erased my grandmother's merits just to create a god for the Li family, creating a great Xiao War god to gain a hundred years of opportunity for the Li family. 
but also because of this matter, the relationship between the two brothers deteriorated drastically, and then I don't know when it started, but grandpa no longer cared about the affairs of the Li family. These were all internal matters of the Li family, and only Li Lingjin, who was the granddaughter, was able to tell a thing or two. But they still couldn't believe that the Li family would choose to collude with the insect race. What was the difference between this and taking the path of death? They couldn't figure out the affairs of the big shots, and the conversation fell silent once again. But because of the conversation, which diluted the fear of constantly climbing higher, they had already gone upward quite a bit more, and looking up, they could already vaguely see the top of the high tower. We're almost there. Being able to see the end of the line, Li Lingjin's tone also carried a bit of relief. Xia Yue sensed something and looked up to the outside of the tower, her eyes becoming grave. Be careful, they're coming over. The them in Xia Yue's mouth was a group of nightmare beasts that swept through the high sky and swooped over. Their eyes were crimson, flashing with a demonic light. The nightmare beasts were more flexible in the high altitude, and their target was also clearer, which was Xia Yue who was currently at the highest place. Yu Wei, Li Lingjin reminded. Xia Yue had already invoked the Fushi Zither in advance, and the sound of the zither of the clear heart scattering resounded in their ears like an invisible ripple against the front of the two of them. The nightmare beast's illusions needed to be seen through the pupils of the eyes, and the crimson demonic light in their eyes was blocked from the invisible ripples. Effective. Previously, Han Zhan had dispelled their illusions once with clear heart scatter, and at that time, Xia Yue knew that the sound of the Fushi Zither could counteract the illusions, but they didn't wait for them to be happy for too long. Seeing that the illusion spell couldn't work, these nightmare beasts began to charge towards the tower. They were nimble and stretched their wings, and the Fushi Zither had to defend itself against the illusionist attacks, and could no longer counterattack with the Zither's chi blades. At this time, Li Lingjin stepped forward, only to see her raise her hand, summoning the Divine Farmer's tripod. The moment the ancient and simple tripod appeared, it rose against the wind, from the original palm-sized, all of a sudden expanding to a full 3 to 5 meters, blocking the entire attack route outside of the high tower. Yue, you continue upwards to destroy the formation I. I'll figure it out here, leave it to me. Now was not the time to be coy, Xia Yue chose to trust her teammates, so she turned around and headed upwards after she used her Fushi Zither sound to envelop herself to prevent being attacked by illusions. On Li Lingjin's side, she only saw her hand gently patting on the Shinnong tripod. Soon, a faint fragrance of herbs emanated from the tripod. Those nightmare beasts that were originally still chasing after Xia Yue were all attracted at once the moment they smelled the fragrance. Their eyes revealed madness, and they desperately began to hit the godly farmer's tripod. This was the hidden function of the Shinnong tripod and it was also one of the rewards of the 20 days of special training that Li Shudong had brought the two of them. The Xin Nongding was capable of refining pills and medicines, and a lot of special medicinal properties had been deposited inside the ding, which were catalyzed to have different effects. For example, the flavor of the worm's mouth grass has a strong attraction, as long as the smell of the flavor will have a hatred for the Shinnong tripod, be firmly attracted. Li Lingjin hands against the four legs of the Shinnong tripod, nightmare beasts have lost their minds, they no longer dodge, change angle, reckless crazy impact, they can only grit their teeth, hard to resist the wave after wave of impact. If he couldn't carry it, Li Lingjin, who didn't have the protection of Fushi Zither sound, would immediately fall into the illusion. Ground battlefield. Han Zhan split a fourth rank corpse beast with his sword. Black blood spilled onto the ground, and many broken pieces were already lying on the ground, but there were more, replenishing in a steady stream. Han Zhan was alone with one sword, looking out of the corner of his eye. The completely berserked elder of the Everlasting Company, Mu Yang, also already had dozens of sword marks, large and small, on his body. These were all injuries inflicted by the regular sword, wounds so deep that they could not be recovered even with his horrendous recovery power, and they continued to destroy. Han Zhan was panting slightly, and when he took a short break, he tilted his head to look high into the sky and saw the group of nightmare beasts unable to attack for a long time, and his heart was slightly calmed. Just as he was planning to throw himself into the fight again, Mu Yang on the opposite side suddenly reverted from his crawling state back to his upright walking human state. His eyes gradually rolled over from miserable white and returned to pitch black. The expression on Mu Yang's face was somewhat struggling and seemed to be uncontrollable, his entire face twisted up strangely, and rippling black veins crawled all over his face. He seemed to be suppressing something. Quickly. Run. Quickly. Mu Yang's hoarse throat struggled to pop out these vocal words, and in a moment, he pulled out something from his storage space. It was a pitch black colored syringe potion. He no longer hesitated and viciously poked it on the other side of his neck. The pitch black colored liquid was injected into his body, and Mu Yang's entire body shook violently. There was a bang. The human outer skin that bound him completely exploded, exposing the bright red flesh inside. Mu Yang completely became a monster, a sixth rank monster. Brahma world. Mu Yang, who had completely turned into a monster, crazily devoured the corpse beasts around him. It was like an incomparably hungry abomination, the more it ate, the bigger it got, the taller it got, and its originally normal human size swelled several times in the constant biting off and chewing of the corpse beasts. The army of corpse beasts was swept away, and in return, there was a sixth-ranked monster. 
Hanjan didn't know if he should be happy or not. The monster had already rushed over. He raised his sword to block his chest, and the strength of the sixth rank exceeded the limit of what he could resist, and his entire body was smashed out. The monster didn't pursue, it took huge steps and ran as the ground shook. As it ran under the tower, it opened its bloody mouth and bit down on the base of the tower that was already rusted. The metal material couldn't resist its bite at all, and it was viciously ripped off a large chunk of debris, which it swallowed whole in a single gulp, chewing hard. Han Zhan barely stood up. He held the regular sword in one hand and covered his chest with the other, his heart palpitating at the blow he had just received. Seeing it chewing on the base of the tower, Han Zhan couldn't take a breather and raised his sword to kill again. With my current strength, it's obviously unrealistic to want to arm wrestle with a sixth rank monster. But this sixth rank monster has completely lost its mind, so it's not impossible to tangle with it and use a roundabout strategy to fly a kite. As long as he was able to stall it and allow Yue to destroy the red moon formation I, it would be a victory. Han Zhan calculated in his mind as he lowered his hand over his chest and summoned the Fushi Zither with a one-handed stranglehold, the Zither sound Chi blades firing with his hand. A Qin sound Chi blade bombarded the sixth ranked abominations carry and strewn back, and under the bombardment, black blood mixed with an explosion of yellow-brown pus and poison splattered down. The sneak attacked abomination turned around, its ferocious gaze once again falling towards Han Zhan. One hit and run. The wind hunting in Han Zhan's ears was loud as he saw the furious abomination kick violently at the base of the tower, and with the force of the recoil, it leapt high in mid-air, obscuring the red moon and pouncing on itself. This horrifying strike was something that Han Zhan could not avoid. On the high tower. Suddenly the base of the tower was unstable, and even Li Lingjin on the middle level stumbled, she didn't manage to withstand this wave of the nightmare beast's attack, and her entire body fell backwards. The divine peasant tripod was knocked out, and Li Lingjin almost fell from the tower as her entire body shook violently. She luckily grabbed the railing and barely maintained her stance. The frantic nightmare beasts saw that their defenses had been broken, they hissed and whistled shrilly as they surged into the high tower. Inside Li Lingjin's eyes, a crimson light flashed all of a sudden. She had been hit by an illusion. Xia Yue, who was at the very top, also felt the tremor from below, and this tremor became stronger the higher up she went. Not only that, she also had to maintain the clear heart scatter, which she used to resist the illusionist interference from the red moon overhead. Time, a race against time. Xia Yue took a deep breath and started her final sprint. Li Chenghao was breathing heavily. He looked at the two followers beside him who were already completely dead, and his heart was terrified. On the opposite side, at the end of the endlessly dark corridor, in that pitch black dark place, there were terrifying things that could take people's lives. Tap tap tap. Crisp footsteps sounded again once more. Li Chenghao couldn't hold back any longer and broke the window, he chose to flee to the place where he had just made the biggest commotion. I know. This is the prop of the ninth-ranked insect emperor nightmare, Brahma world. As Li Changhao ran, his mind recalled quite a bit of information all of a sudden. All of this information came from one of the Li clan seniors of their lineage, and now that that senior had passed away, the information about the ninth-ranked insect emperor nightmare was what he had brought back before he died. The Brahma world, which was not nightmare's talent, was extremely compatible with nightmare. Nightmare was able to create illusions, and in the Brahma world, these illusions were those nightmare beasts that were able to fly into the sky and enter the earth. The true ability of the Brahma world was to make things real. Nightmares were able to create illusions and erode the real world, while the prop of Brahma world was able to replace reality with the illusions created by nightmares through the spiritual energy gained from eroding the world. That was all the information Li Changhao knew, but it didn't stop him from making a judgment to come. One couldn't go and destroy the red moon above his head, one mustn't, it was definitely not the eye of the formation. Once the red moon was destroyed, all the absorbed spiritual energy was instantly released, and this illusionary world they were in would become real, replacing the original deep blue city. Although Li Changhao was a bit arrogant and domineering, he never wanted to be enemies with humans. He arrived at the bottom of the tower as fast as he could, and saw the abomination leap up and fall towards Han Zhan. He raised his hand, and a golden spiritual energy shot out from between his wrists, slamming hard into the abomination and deflecting it a bit. Han Zhan seized the opportunity to dodge the attack with a dart. Where are the people with you? Quickly stop them. Don't destroy the red moon, you can't destroy the red moon. Li Changhao said in an urgent tone. Hearing Li Changhao's words, Han Zhan slightly froze. It's too late, they are already up there. As soon as Han Zhan's words fell, they heard a clear and melodious zither sound, resounding from the top of the tower in the extreme distance. Han Zhan and Li Changhao, coincidentally, raised their heads, looking towards the high sky. There, Xia Yue released an immense and incomparable Qin sound Qi blade in the first second that the clear heart scatter disappeared. The Qi blade went against the sky and crashed into the red moon hanging high in the sky. The red moon appeared to be far away from the infinite sea of stars, but it was directly hit by the gas blade, and with a boom, it shattered. Red moon, shattered. Li Changhao subconsciously murmured. At the moment when the red moon shattered, 
the countless pitch-black spiritual energy that had been absorbed into it, like splashing ink, fell as much as it could, and they borrowed the force and floated to the four directions of the entire city. The dead corpse beasts, after being moisturized by the black aura, were resurrecting. The citizens of Deep Blue City who hadn't died yet began to undergo horrifying changes in their bodies after being dipped into the black chi. Even Han Zhan and the others were no exception. There was no way to avoid these black chi, they existed in the air, and as Han Zhan breathed them in, he only felt a nameless, manic flame start to burn from the bottom of his heart, becoming crazy. On his body, black hairs began to grow wildly, quickly crawling all over his body. The back of his neck itched and ached immensely, and as he subconsciously scratched, a bulging sarcoma appeared at the back, and inside, a human face clung to the sarcoma, seemingly about to break through. Opposite Li Changhao, his stomach became round all of a sudden, something was being conceived. It's over, it's over, it's all over. If the red moon isn't broken, we might still have a chance of survival. The red moon has been broken, the black spiritual energy is about to make the illusion shine into reality. Everything in the boundary, including us, will undergo a mutation. Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin were on the high tower, closer to the red moon, and their mutations came faster. The reunion was in this instant. Ancient intent remnant sun, breaking the formation with the formation. Survival of life and death. Han Zhan's consciousness was about to completely wear out, falling into madness. Before his consciousness was about to dissipate, he asked one last question in an urgent tone. To make a fake real, you need to consume spiritual energy, that's those black chi, right? Li Changhao on the opposite side, with a big belly and a dead look on his face, opened his mouth, no longer able to speak humanly, and could only barely nod his head. Getting an affirmative answer, Han Zhan's brain was like being poured a shot of ice water, unprecedentedly sober for a split second, he thought of a way to crack it. Put up a fight, life and death depends on this move. Fushi Zither, Ancient Intent Remnant Sun Formation, rise for me. As Han Zhan put his best foot forward with a furious shout, beneath his feet, pitch black colored formation patterns emerged, and an ancient aura spread out. The large black formation pattern covered a large area of deep blue city. Looking down from the sky, one could see an immense pitch black colored circular spell formation taking shape in an instant. Its pattern was ancient and complicated, and the outline formation pattern flickered and was hidden from view. Where is the battle spirit? Buzz buzz. The air seemed to become much thicker following the sound of a melodious horn that rang out from nowhere. In the silence of the dark night, a pale white spirit light appeared in the pitch black colored circular formation. One, two, three. A hundred channels, ten thousand channels, a billion channels. The billions of his AOI young serpents transformed into battle spirits that had been slaughtered by the combined efforts of Han Zhan and Gong Yang Jin during the AOI battle appeared in the ancient intentional remnants on formation. The appearance of such a terrifying number of battle spirits caused the originally empty boundary to be abruptly filled to the brim. Not only that, after these battle spirits were summoned, they unexpectedly began to undergo mutations as well, and one by one, they either exploded and died, or their entire body was covered in black hair, or they had several heads growing out of them. However, at the same time, Han Zhan and Li Changhao, who were originally undergoing mutation, suddenly stopped the mutation process. Li Changhao, who had originally lost hope, incredulously looked at his redeflated stomach and looked at Han Zhan in disbelief. What did you do? How did the Brahma world cancel its effect on us? This is impossible. The tingling sensation on the back of Han Zhan's neck also disappeared, and he wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, his heart palpitating. He knew that he had made the right bet. I only expanded the number of red moon black mist to be contaminated and alienated, and when the number expands to a certain degree, on average, the degree of contamination for each alienated object becomes negligible. In the ancient intentional remnant sun formation, there are billions of numbers of first order battle spirits. Assuming that the red moon black mist was a vat of pitch black ink, pouring it inside a pool of clear water would be enough to contaminate and stir up that pool of clear water. But what if it was poured into the entire sea? I'm afraid it wouldn't even have the slightest effect. Such was Han Zhan's thinking. Han Zhan's words made Li Changhao look sideways, and he once again seriously looked at this opponent who had beaten himself up. As the most talented person in the young generation of the Li family, Li Changhao had the entire family's resources tilted, as well as a specialized master teacher to guide and plan, but Han Zhan was different. Less than three months had passed since Han Zhan had awakened to become a spirit contractor, until he had successfully entered the fourth stage realm and his eight urgent fists had broken through the three urgent fists. It would have been fine if it was just cultivation talent, even if someone with strong cultivation talent grew up to be nothing more than a reckless person, not enough to worry about. But now, Han Zhan had revealed another side of himself that was eager and tough and never gave up. When these two qualities were added together, Han Zhan's future achievements would be incalculable. Li Changhao had seen many real geniuses, whether it was the monster Zero Sum, which was built by Changsheng Company with huge amount of money and manpower, or the genius inventor of Samson Technology, who was known as Samson Intelligence. These geniuses who could truly determine an era and the future all had the same traits, the same qualities as Han Zhan. He now somewhat understood why Grandpa Li Shuan had chosen Han Zhan as his ninth student. What are you staring at? 
Han Zhan reached out and waved his hand in front of Li Changhao. Although the alienation had been diluted, the abnormality in Han Zhan's body still existed in subtle ways, his face was pale, and his speech was a bit wheezy. Hey, asking you, since you know that this prop is called the Brahma world, do you know, where is its eye of the formation, and how do you break this boundary? I, Li Changhao came back to his senses, and after hearing Han Zhan's question and recalling it in his mind for a long time, he shook his head. I don't know. The prop of Brahma world, even the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare rarely uses it, and there is not much information about it. The few pieces of information were still exchanged with the lives of high-ranked awakened people. Li Changhao added another sentence in his heart. Unable to find the eye of the formation, they still couldn't get out and get rid of this boundary. More and more citizens of Deep Blue City would die sustainably, turning into black mist pollution. Han Zhan could care less about the pollution itself, but those ordinary people in Deep Blue City were innocent. There was also his teacher, Li Shadong, who was now in the same flesh and blood ceiling boundary as Nightmare, his life and death uncertain. Between the mountains and the water, the world in the mirror. Li Shadong sat cross-legged on the surface of a lake, his eyebrows slightly drooping, without joy or sorrow. Directly across from him sat another blurry silhouette dressed in a black robe and wrapped in black chi. An hour has already passed, so guess what happened to your precious student and granddaughter, now. A voice whose gender could not be heard came out from the black aura, like a scraping paper scraping hard on a rough paper surface, the hoarse and piercing sound made people listen to it and couldn't help but feel hairy in their hearts. Li Shudong slowly opened his eyes, looked across the room, and spat out two words. There is no obstacle. Oh, you're so confident in them? You know, this is the supreme treasure, Brahma world, that I obtained from the relics, do you think that with their level, they can break the boundary created by the Brahma world? Li Shutong's emotions remained unfluctuating, as if he expected all of this. If they were dead, you wouldn't be here talking so much nonsense with me. If they were dead, you wouldn't have to live either. These were two words that came out of Li Shutong's mouth, representing two layers of meaning. Across from him in the black aura, the humanoid figure that the ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare had taken on was frowning tightly. Your state of mind is like stopping water, without waves or fluctuations. It is truly worthy of the name of the great Sia god of war, I'm not as good as you. Nightmare's tone was frank, but the words changed. I don't need to beat you either, and this time strike against you is just a deal. By dragging you down, my mission will be accomplished. Li Shutong's brows furrowed slightly. Below him, on the surface of the ancient lake, a circle of faint ripples instantly spread out. A colorless and phaseless transparent chain probed out from the bottom of the lake and bound itself to Li Shutong's body. Amidst the surprise of the nightmare sitting across from him, he suddenly laughed out loud. What a travesty, what a travesty. Li Shutong, the great summer war god, wouldn't even dream of being stabbed in the back, right? Ha 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 ha. Li Shutong, your mind is in turmoil. Sealing heaven and five locks, five great companies. This special prop that Trapley shut on was named, Seal Heavenly Five Locks. Just by looking at the name, one could tell that it was powerful enough. A prop that could be used to seal a Ninth Order Supreme Powerhouse, how could it be weak? The name Seal the Sky meant that as long as the five locks were activated at the same time, even the sky could be sealed. Now on Li Shutong's body, the first chain had already appeared, and there were still four left. Sealing the heavens with five locks requires the tickling of emotions. This would have been the easiest thing for me as a ninth-ranked insect emperor and proficient in illusion, but I didn't expect that an hour had passed before the first lock was activated. On the opposite side, after Nightmare finished laughing, he collected his smile and looked across the room again. Li Shutong's emotions were only ruffled that one time, and after that one time, it was completely dead silent and returned to calm. The five locks of sealing heaven was certainly powerful, but it also had incomparably harsh conditions. If you want to activate this prop, you need to sacrifice another person while sealing the other party and this person's realm needs to be the same as the realm of the person being sealed. The two people who are sealed into the five locks of sealing heaven will enter the amber state, I, E, unable to attack each other and unable to act until the sealing is completed. Li Shu was of the ninth rank, so if he wanted to seal him, he had to be of the ninth rank as well. This was the reason why the ninth ranked bug emperor nightmare appeared here. Li Shudong no longer paid attention to the nightmare that was trying to disturb his mind, and after falling silent, he began to think about one of the most crucial questions. Who wanted to kill him? The person who had teamed up with Nightmare to design himself was Li Fengchun, a direct descendant of the Li clan and the heir of his elder brother, Li Guangming. This was something on the surface, but there was no way to prove that this was the truth. The five major companies had all been doing something, either explicitly or implicitly, over the years, and Li Shudong knew it very well in his heart. The five major companies are the five major forces of today, they are Dashia, Samsonite Technology, Eternal Life Pharmaceuticals, The Empire and The Old Covenant. Among them, Dasha and the Empire are the only two remaining human territories on the Blue Planet, and are the only two that exist in the form of countries. Samsonite technology and everlasting pharmaceuticals existed in the form of corporations. The Old Covenant is a low-profile organization, seldom revealed in front of people, the last time in the Blue Star appeared, is 12 years ago a destructive insect plague, the Old Covenant sent out two of the twelve apostles, to stop the disaster. 
The five major corporations have been in the same breath and have been working together to defend themselves against the bug invasion for over a thousand years, and have always been at peace with each other. Since the ancient relics were unearthed, the truth of the bug race's birth has become a mystery, and more and more exploratory discoveries have been made, but it has created an irreconcilable divide between the companies. Who is thinking about the life of an old man like me? Li Shudong couldn't figure it out, and he decided to change his mind. Only to see him suddenly raise his head and look at Nightmare as he asked, these two props of yours, both of them were obtained from the ancient ruins, right? What is the connection between the ancient ruins and your insect race? When Nightmare heard Li Shutong's question, he first froze, then followed with a kind smile and a cold snort. What makes you think that I will answer this question of yours? It's fine if you don't answer, because this answer of yours is actually already considered an answer. When Nightmare saw Li Shutong say this, the painless expression on his face gloomed a few more points. The insect race definitely had something to do with the ancient ruins. They were able to use props from the ancient ruins, they occupied larger territories, and developed dozens of times more ancient ruins than the humans in all of Blue Star. Li Shudong sighed while being certain in his heart. Another question lingered in his mind, why can't humans? Yes, as humans, they couldn't use these props. Like the five locks to seal the sky, like the viewed Brahma world, all of these powerful props were controlled and used by the insect race, dealing a great blow to humans. Why can't humans? As soon as he thought of this, the surface of the lake where Li Shudong was sitting, slowly began to ripple again, and from the bottom of the deep, dark lake, a second invisible, transparent chain had surfaced. Upon seeing this chain, Nightmare's eyes lit up. Li Shudong, I didn't expect that as a great Xiao war god, you would still have such an obsession. Nightmare pondered for a long while and decided to strike while the iron was hot. Not bad, there is indeed a connection between the ancient relics and the emergence of the insect race. The props found in the ancient ruins can be used by the insect race, but you, the current humans, cannot use them. This also fulfills the point that the insect race is the master of this world, and no matter how much humans struggle, they will eventually come to extinction. Do you want to know why? No, I am not going to say. Ha 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 ha. Nightmare laughed harshly for a few moments and fell silent without further words. The disagreement between the five major companies was also born here. The ancient ruins were first discovered a few decades ago, and at that time, the humans had also harvested many props, but these props could not be used, and could only be treated as old objects and antiques. When they saw that the insectoids were able to use some of the same props easily, the humans faltered. It was also from that time onwards that only Dasha was left holding on, carrying out the so-called spirit contractor awakening and deity awakening. The other four companies, all of them had already taken a very different path from the thousands of years of accumulated heritage. Samsonite technology, took the route of super end technology, they researched science, they researched spiritual energy, they researched everything, and used knowledge as a pathway to create powerful killing machines, horrific firepower, and powerful energies that possessed the power of destruction. Everlasting Pharmaceuticals, takes the mutation route, they kill different bug races, extract their DNA segments, reassemble and rearrange them, ingest the parts of them that represent evolution and special abilities, and fuse them with all kinds of materials, refining them into mutation potions, and injecting them to become biochemical warriors. The Empire and the Old Covenant, Li Shudong had less contact with them, but it was certain that they had also given up on the path of spirit fellowship masters and fellowship spirits. But no matter which path they took, humans were still unable to use these props obtained from exploring the ruins. Li Shutong's frown deepened. A third invisible and transparent chain climbed onto him. He stopped thinking and completely collected his thoughts, allowing himself to return to silence. Seeing this scene, Nightmare could not help but continue to speak out in mockery, Li Shutong, what are you still struggling for? You don't think that you can break away from the Brahma world with just those few fourth order ants, do you? Be a good boy and let me seal it up completely, this way, you can still suffer less. There are only so many ninth rank powerhouses in total, how many of them can come to your rescue? Nightmare began to continuously output words again, attempting to make the remaining two chains be born, and the five locks of sealing heaven take shape, completely sealing Li Shutong. But no matter what he said, Li Shutong closed his eyes like a stone, not listening or speaking, an old monk in meditation. Half an hour later, Nightmare see always fruitless, finally shut up. Counting the time, the red moon black mist should have already finished absorbing and started to erupt, right, and the Brahma world's mutation that was false to the real world had already begun, right? Just half an hour later, the Brahma world will finish swallowing and replacing, and the entire deep blue city will completely disappear from the great summer map. Nightmare thought as such. Half an hour passed and there was no movement. Nightmare was still full of confidence, steady as an old dog. Another half hour, silence. Nightmare's heart suddenly panicked a little. At this time, the entire heaven ceiling five blocks boundary suddenly shook violently, the mountain collapsed, as if it was going to be broken open from the outside world. What is the situation? What is happening? Nightmare was completely unable to sit still. Bodhi Treasure Tree, Divine Illumination Inheritance, Deep Blue City, Brahma World. With the billions of battle spirits and the ancient intent remnant sun formation, Han Zhan resisted the red moon black mist. 
In the sky, the red moon was shattered by the Qinxi blade, and the night color deepened. Borrowing the ethereal light that hadn't completely receded yet, Xia Yue quickly turned back and, at this time, Li Lingjin, hypnotized by the nightmare beast's illusions, was already walking towards the front with a dull gaze. In front of her, in addition to the broken and ugly guardrail, is as high as a hundred meters high in the sky of the tower, her footsteps step by step to open, the eye is about to fall from the tower. Xia Yue grabbed her wrist, at the same time, the clear heart scattered in the ear once again sounded. Her out-of-focus eyes regained their sanity, Li Lingjin was like a drowning person being rescued from the water, breathing heavily for a few moments, her heart palpitating. Did it work? Li Lingjin subconsciously asked when she saw Xia Yue appear behind her. Xia Yue nodded and shook her head again. It succeeded and failed. Red Moon is not the formation eye of this boundary, we all guessed wrong. Not only was Red Moon not the eye of the formation, but it was also triggered ahead of time to detonate the black mist that had built up inside, causing the alienation within the entire boundary to descend ahead of time. But this process was short-lived. Less than half a minute after the alienation descended, it suddenly disappeared again before allowing Xia Yue to catch her breath. After telling Li Lingjin about these circumstances, the name of a person flashed through both their minds coincidentally, Han Zhan. He must have already thought of a way. Let's go down now and rendezvous with him. The nightmare beasts were deterred by the clear heart scatter, and with the defense of the divine peasant tripod, they couldn't do anything to help the two of them. The process of going down was much smoother than climbing high, probably because they had already experienced it once, or because they had overcome the obstacles in their minds, and it only took half the time before they managed to withdraw from the tower and saw Han Zhan and Li Changhao, who were surrounded by billions of battle spirits. On Han Zhan's side, he was still maintaining the ancient intent remnant sun formation, and the hundreds of millions of battle spirits transformed into a Zhaoi young snakes were unconsciously spreading out in all directions. Just when Han Zhan and Li Changhao were both at their wits end about breaking the boundary, at a certain second, they heard a clear click. The overburdened Brahma world, because of the billions of seafaring battle spirits, exceeded the limit of what it could carry and cracked open. In the darkness of the night, above Han Zhan's head and theirs, the dome that was originally like paint and ink was the first to crack open a slit. There was light shining in through the cracked slit. Then there were more and more cracks, like an eggshell that was smashed by someone, and finally broke into countless pieces. Deep blue city was shattered. In front of everyone's eyes, the long dark night was replaced by an infinite sea of stars, and nothingness returned under their feet, and all around their heads was nothingness, except for the stars that emitted a faint light in the far distance. Where were they? The universe, or the boundless star sea? You guys, look there. Xia Yue's tone was tinged with dismay as she pointed to the distance. Everyone followed her line of sight and saw an incomparably shocking scene. It was a tree. It was rooted in the boundless sea of stars, with countless roots coiling in the depths of the sea of stars. Its crown emitted a light golden light, with stars falling to all corners of the universe. On the crown of the tree, there was one transparent and bright bubble after another, which were like fruits hanging on the branches. The tree was so large that it almost filled the endless cosmic river with at least a third of it, and as far as Han Zhan could see, all of its golden branches and leaves extended out. Is this the true face of the Brahma world? It's too spectacular. Li Changhao muttered as he looked at the scene before him. The Brahma world? Han Zhan was just about to open his mouth to say something when his eyes suddenly blazed. The divine illumination talent was automatically activated when he didn't actively release it. Han Zhan's eyes were golden, comparable to small stars. When he once again looked at the cosmic ancient tree opposite Prime Thoroughfare, he saw a scene that stirred his heart and soul. Props, Bodhi Treasure Tree. Ability, Carrying the World. Introduction, Bodhi originally has no tree, nor is a mirror a platform. There is nothing in the first place, where is the dust to be found? This, this is. Han Zhan's brain went down for a moment like he was struck by lightning. He was actually able to see the message from the opposite side. Not only that, but the content in the message surprised him. The Bodhi treasure tree, what's the connection with the ancient divine soldier? Could it be that it's that Bodhi treasure tree inside the legend I learned about? Han Zhan was a little unsure for a moment. However, the Bodhi treasure tree under Han Zhan's divine illumination, gaze had already undergone a steep and drastic change. The entire tree suddenly burst into flames, and around it, a layer of light golden flames completely enveloped it, and the horizontal branches and leaves of the tree, under such flames, all began to be incinerated, turning into bits of starlight that were left behind in the sea of stars. The Bodhi treasure tree that filled the entire screen, in the constant burning, became smaller and smaller in appearance, and was eventually condensed into the size of a normal hundred-year-old tree. Without waiting for Han Zhan to react, it actually took the initiative and approached towards Han Zhan's side. Then, it silently stopped in front of Han Zhan. Li Lingjin, Li Changhao, their gazes complexly looked toward Han Zhan, and in their hearts, they couldn't help but seek to spit out, you kid couldn't be hung up, could you? Such a large and so divine light of a prop, a whole cosmic ancient tree, also play with you to recognize the owner of that set? Han Zhan's shock was no less than theirs, because this is even more subversive of some of his inherent knowledge of this world. 
Originally thought that the ancient divine soldier was a coincidence, but when Han Zhang saw this prop that was clearly inextricably linked to the legends of the world before he crossed over, he was mistaken. Previously, the Bodhi treasure tree was too distant from them and too massive, emitting a faint golden glow that shrouded it, making it impossible to really see. When it appeared in front of him, Han Zhang saw that there were only twelve fruits hanging above the Bodhi treasure tree. One of them, which was currently in a dim state, was the Brahma world mentioned before. As for the other eleven, three of them were emitting golden light, like golden apples or ripe fruits waiting to be picked. Han Zhang tried to use his understanding of the process of recognizing the owner of a magic treasure, cutting his palm and covering the trunk of the Bodhi treasure tree with his blood-stained palm. In the next second, the entire Bodhi treasure tree lit up with a blinding light, and abruptly, it shrunk to the size of a palm and landed on Han Zhang's hand. At this moment, Han Zhang and the Bodhi treasure tree had a moment of clarity as their minds were connected. Sensing the probing gazes cast by several people around him, Han Zhang didn't explain, but instead spoke, the boundary of the Brahma world has been completely lifted, and now it's time for us, to free the teacher trapped in the seal. As he spoke, he grabbed the miniature Bodhi treasure tree and swept it gently. The world in front of everyone's eyes flowed with light and was instantly inverted. By the time they regained their vision, they themselves had reappeared in Deep Blue City. In the villa, Li Shudong and Nightmare, who had been wrapped into a meatball, had yet to come out. Without saying a word, Han Zhang copied the Bodhi treasure tree and ruthlessly smashed it onto the meatball. The conspiracy was broken, and they escaped the trap and ascended to heaven. In the five locks that sealed the heavens, the violently shaking world allowed Li Shudong to seize the opportunity. The seals loosened, a trace of power squeezed out of his body, and Li Shudong reacted at the first opportunity. White Chi mist surged out smoothly, enveloping his entire body. The surface of the lake. One side of the white mist shrouded, one side of the black mist surged, the two collided, neither of them retreated. Li Shudong. Nightmare was terrified in his heart as he maneuvered the three chains that had manifested, attempting to control Li Shudong once again. The latter's face was bland, his body clothes bulging without wind, holding the shackles on his body rigidly open. Dang Lang. The sound of the illusory chains breaking free seemed to be heard in both ears. Before Nightmare could react, a fist had already appeared in front of their eyes. The momentum was gone, and it was unbeatable. Nightmare's heart was unwilling, and in just a moment of days, the powerful ceiling prop that was the five locks of ceiling heaven was broken by Li Shudong with both fists. Outside, Han Zhan was carrying the Bodhi treasure tree in one hand, his eyes fixed on the meatball boundary that he had swept to pieces. Suddenly, with a loud boom, the meatball boundary shattered from within, and Li Shutong's figure was revealed from it. Teacher! Grandpa! Xia Yue and Li Lingjin shouted in surprise, and hearing their voices, the hostile aura on Li Shutong's brows receded slightly. Teacher, where is that ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare? He has been seriously injured by me, Nightmare's full strength is mostly in his illusions, and once his illusions are seen through, his physical body is not strong. Be careful of him possessing you guys in the dark. Don't worry teacher, he won't be able to escape. Before Li Shudong could finish his words, Han Zhan had already sacrificed the Bodhi treasure tree once again, its golden light brilliant, enveloping the entire area in an instant. The treasure tree was overflowing with gorgeous light, and the tree's branches and every leaf bloomed with dazzling and incomparable light. These rays of light covered the entire area, intertwining with each other to form a huge golden net. It wasn't long. They heard a miserable scream from above their heads. A mass of black gas manifested under the constraints of the large net, and that was clearly the ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare. Nightmare had originally planned to lurk in the shadows, waiting for an opportunity to possess one of them. However, he never expected it. This unassuming human spirit contractor in front of him had actually mastered the usage of the Bodhi treasure tree. The Bodhi treasure tree was the most restraining to illusions and spirit spirits like him, and as a treasure capable of carrying the world, it was enough to see through all illusions. A horrified look appeared on Nightmare's humanoid face, and it was too late for him to make any other moves. This can't be. He cried out in a disoriented manner. The Bodhi treasure tree was a treasure discovered by the insect race in an ancient relic. Human spirit contractors were simply unable to use it. What happened in front of him completely overturned his perception. Not to mention him, even Li Shudong was stunned as he looked behind him at his own students. Han Zhang could use the props and the relics? Without waiting for them to figure this out, the Bodhi treasure tree bloomed once again. This time, of the transparent orbs hanging from the Bodhi treasure tree, the one that had been completely dim suddenly released a huge suction force. It sucked the Ninth Order Insect Emperor into it along with his giant net wrapped in golden threads, completely devouring it and disappearing. You collected the Ninth Order Insect Emperor? He was already seriously injured, so I just did it in passing. Looking at the surprised crowd, Han Zhan explained. After the Bodhi treasure tree had recognized its owner, Han Zhan was more comfortable using this treasure, and this time, he shocked the crowd by striking out, showing off his saintliness in front of a small crowd. Teacher, the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare has been ambushed. The crisis is over. Li Shudong looked at Han Zhan, his youngest student, and he nodded in relief. If it wasn't for you this time, I'm afraid it would have been quite a bit of trouble, I wasn't wrong about you. 
Li Shudong was not shy about praising Han Zhan. Li Changhao, who was still unconvinced by Han Zhan, had also obediently shut up and kept his mouth shut about the challenge. Just kidding, the thought of fighting hundreds of millions of battle spirits had already dampened his entire being, alright? The crisis this time came suddenly, I need to talk to the old guys from the other companies, you guys have worked hard this time, go rest first. Worthy of being a ruthless person who had picked off three major bug emperors in a row, having just experienced a backstabbing, Li Shudong was still calm and composed without changing his color. The crowd nodded. Just as they were about to leave, Li Shudong called out to Han Zhuan again. Han Zhuan, you stay for a moment. Bug race territory, endless blood sea. This was the lair of the bug race, with thousands of high-grade bugs hatching and being born every moment. The sky had been dyed blood red. The air was filled with the unique odor of the bug race. An illusory silhouette slowly coalesced and was born in the sea of blood. With a clatter, the blood membrane encasing it ruptured, and the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare slowly walked out from it. There were already a few insect clans waiting outside for a long time. The ones they came with were not their original bodies. One was an illusory insect shadow that reflected the heavens, his densely packed eyes filling his entire body, each emitting an evil light. One was a 10,000 meter tall flesh and blood golem, who almost filled the entire sea of blood, his body a lump of sarcoma even bigger than a mountain, with yellowish green pus constantly flowing out, forming puddles at his feet. The last one was endless darkness, as if darkness was its very essence, polluting the surrounding space all the time. The longer he stood, the larger the darkness enveloped the area. Several other figures were secretly releasing energy to resist this erosion. Seeing them, Nightmare nodded. A ninth-ranked insect emperor, but you're in such a sorry state if it wasn't for the endless sea of blood, you might have already passed on to the next life. A mocking voice rang out. Listening to the speaker's tone there seemed to be dissatisfaction and more disdain. Nightmare glanced at the flesh and blood puppet that spoke, as well as the silent void void. Taking one last look at the endless darkness, he spoke, my mission has been completed. Did Lee Shudong kill you? No, he only seriously injured me and failed to kill me. The one who killed me was an insignificant human. Everyone below the ninth rank is a mole. How could a mole be able to kill you? An astonished voice rang out as Nightmare recalled the situation, his tone dripping with an indefinable flavor. He killed me with the Brahma world, this prop was controlled by him. What? How is a human able to use a prop? Are you not talking nonsense? What good does it do me to talk nonsense on this matter? We have mistakenly tried to find out another future enemy of the insect race, haven't we? Nightmare said coldly, very unhappy with their tone of questioning themselves. Tell me his name. I scoured Li Shutong's memories and found that he is Li Shutong's ninth student, Han War. Humans who were able to use relic props, which worried the bugs, Han Zhan had appeared on their must-kill list. This was just a windfall, gathering the four bug emperors here was obviously for something more important. In the endless darkness, an ancient voice spoke, has Li Shutong's strength been tested out yet? Had I known back then, progress or regression? After a short silence, Nightmare spoke. Not as good as back then. Hearing this reply, the four Ninth Order insect emperors within the endless blood sea fell silent. Soon, loud laughter rang out. Ha ha ha, that's good. The plan will be carried out as usual. At the end of this year, it will be the day he, Li Shudong, takes his death. Relic secrets, world truths? Li Shudong quickly finished his phone call with a few of the other old guys. Han Zhan had been standing by his side, watching the nose and the heart, at ease as a small transparent roll. After Li Shudong finished the phone call, he looked at Han Zhan, who was standing beside him. What's the name of that treasure you seized just now? The Bodhi Treasure Tree. Han Zhan replied truthfully. Bodhi Treasure Tree, Bodhi Treasure Tree. Li Shudong repeated the name, the light in his eyes shining more than brightly. Han Zhan do you remember the several war zones of the Grand Xia? Li Shudong suddenly asked in a pictorial turn. Han War was naturally clear about the mansion's several war zones. The first war zone was responsible for the frontal battlefield, the second war zone was responsible for the unification arrangements, the third war zone was responsible for attacking the city, and the fourth war zone was responsible for relic exploration. What I've left you here to talk to you about is the matter regarding the fourth war zone's relic exploration aspect. Li Shudong spoke while signaling Han Zhan to sit down, and the two sat face to face at the desk. Relic exploration, the efforts made by the human side are actually not much, not that it's not of high importance, but the risks of relic exploration are far greater than the benefits for humans. Combined with the pressure of frontal battlefields and sieges, we can't send more manpower to do this. Teacher, are you trying to say that prop treasures like the Bodhi treasure tree are obtained from relic exploration? Han Zhan understood Li Shutong's meaning at a glance. Li Shutong nodded. There are many treasures in the relics, but these treasures are always only historical collectibles for us humans, and can't become key props that decide the battle, do you know why? Han Zhan thought for a moment, recalling the shocked looks of the crowd when he used the Bodhi treasure tree. He had an answer in his mind. Could it be that humans can't use props? The answer was cruel, but it was the truth. Yes. For thousands of years, humans have dug up relics and obtained quite a few treasure props, but not a single one that can be used. On the contrary, those props obtained by the insect race, 
they were able to use them and have a decisive impact on the battle situation. Otherwise, the humans wouldn't have fought so hard. Li Shutong's reply caused Han War to fall into deep thought. If what Li Shutong said was true, then how would one explain the matter of being able to use prop treasures? Was he different from other humans? As Han Zhan thought of this, he froze for a moment. Because indeed, he was different. As a traveler himself, his soul did not belong to this world. Including the talent he had awakened in the contract with the ancient divine soldier, all of them proved this. What about the props? Looking towards the Bodhi treasure tree in his hand, this was clearly also a legendary treasure from the world before he crossed over Ah. Li Shudong didn't say anything as he watched the expression on Han Zhan's face, which changed from uncertainty to realization to contemplation. Looking at Han Zhan's tangled appearance, he waved his hand. No need to say much, everyone has their own secrets, you don't have to tell me everything. Did the teacher already see something? He had deliberately concealed it himself, and Han Zhan felt guilty in his heart. But he also knew that this matter was too metaphysical, and even if he was willing to tell Li Shudong about it, it might not be better than the current situation. Thinking of this, Han Zhan nodded. The topic continued. Teacher, then what do I need to do now? Study the usage of the prop treasures and meld them together. Then use them to defeat the bug race and win the future for humanity. The news that you are able to use the treasure props must not be leaked out. Once the matter of you being able to use prop treasures leaks out, security cannot be guaranteed. I will instruct Li Changhao on his side, and I will go back to investigate this matter of the Li family in depth. Deep Blue City, as the great backwater city of humanity, would be infiltrated by a Ninth Order Bug Emperor. This matter is even more serious than we imagined. The conversation ended. After saying goodbye to Li Shudong and returning to his bedroom, Han Zhan once again invoked the Bodhi treasure tree. Nowadays, the Bodhi treasure tree was only the size of a palm, and with its bright golden light and translucent jewels, it looked like an extraordinary treasure. The light of the Bodhi treasure tree reflected in Han Zhan's eyes, dotted with starlight, pulling his thoughts far away. Not long after, Han Zhan was pulled back to reality by a knock on the door, only to see the door pushed open. A sneaky voice felt its way in. Ling Jin, you're still up this late. Han Zhan asked more or less knowingly. The two had met after a long time, and after experiencing a life and death battle, she desperately needed another battle to appease her heart. So she found Han War. Seeing Han Zhan playing dumb, Li Ling Jin pouted in dissatisfaction. Humph, I just ran out of inspiration for my novel and came to you for inspiration. What kind of expression is that on your face? Han Zhan's side was just about to take a break when another sneaky silhouette felt its way in. Xia Yue looked furious and clenched her silver teeth. I knew it. I was robbed by that little wannabe hoof. The palace fighting drama is not enough to make up for the evil, I as the main palace, I have to subdue them before I can do so. Xia Yue said with a puff of air while pouncing on Han Zhan. Han Zhan had no choice but to repeat his old trick. The next morning, when Xia Yue and Li Lingjin woke up, there was no trace of Han Zhan around them. Coming to the dining table. Looking at the four bowls of tonic soup that had already been drank up, Li Lingjin asked Li Shudong, Grandpa, where did Han Zhan go? He was so tired yesterday, why did he get up so early again? Knowing that you two are tired you still continue to toss him around? Li Shudong glanced at Li Lingjin and said didactically, young people should pay attention to moderation, and with this energy, why don't you think about how to improve your strength? Got it, got it. Seeing that Li Shudong was about to start babbling again, Li Lingjin hastily snatched a step ahead of him and interrupted him. You still haven't said where Han Zhang went. He only told me that he was going to make a trip to the library of the city protector organization, supposedly to check the files regarding relics. Relics? Why would you want to investigate the archives on relics for a good reason? Li Lingjin and Xia Yue were puzzled in their hearts, and Li Shudong did not explain anything further. City Protector Organization, Mansion. As soon as Han Zhan entered, he saw the busy city protectors. Yi Fan was looking sadly at the accident report stacked high on his desktop and rubbed his brow. Damn, I slept too much last night, what the hell happened? Why are there so many death reports and casualty records? Could it be that Deep Blue City has been invaded by bugs again? Yi Fan was still muttering to himself when he saw Han Zhuan who walked in, he raised his hand in greeting. Why are you free to come to my place today? Something came up, borrowing your library files for a while. Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart. Last night, the Brahma world enveloped not the entire deep blue city. This was also a blessing amongst misfortunes. Because Han War had detonated the Red Moon in advance, the number of deaths under the descent of pollution plummeted, and the disaster was contained. Han War came to the deep blue style file today because he wanted to verify some of his guesses from yesterday. As an old teammate, it was impossible for Yifan to disagree with Han War's request. Soon, a large amount of archives were sent over, and because of the database commons, they not only included deep blue cities, but also some other cities and frontline battlefields. Han Zhan began to look through them one by one. Archival record, year 112 of the Insect Plague, under the leadership of the Eighth Order Insect Emperor, the insect race used the special prop, Blood Pontoon, and sacrificed ten human cities, causing super-huge killings on the territory of Dasha, with severe losses killing countless people and heavy casualties. 
file record, insect plague 159 years, 10 8th order spirit fellowship masters combined hunting large scale insect hordes, in the second war zone of the coordinated help of the surprise attack, should be a great victory in return, but the insect horde used a special treasure, star map, the entire horde into starlight, disappeared in the sea of stars, the siege fails. File record, insect plague 209 years, the old holy covenant 9th order awakened person, one of the 12 apostles Josampa, the location was leaked, the insect race plotted against assassination. The assassins were only three eighth order insect emperors, and in the case of mismatched strength, the insect race used the prop, fish intestine, to forcefully re-injure Josampa, and his whereabouts are unknown to this day. Looking at these prop treasures in the file, one familiar name after another flashed by, constantly overlapping with Han Zhan's memories. He became more and more certain that his judgment was correct. These prop treasures obtained from exploring and searching in the ancient ruins were the things that were legendary in the world before he crossed over, he was sure of it. This discovery caused Han Zhan to inexplicably feel a hint of panic. If the legends of that world were all true, then the blue star that he was in now, was it the world after traveling, or his original world? Han Zhan was puzzled in his heart, and no one could solve his confusion. He also saw a description of the Brahma world, in the archives. The Brahma world, was the supreme treasure of the Ninth Order Bug Emperor Nightmare, and was recorded as having been used a limited number of times. The only time it was used was in S.A. John State, where the Brahma world outlawed the entire S.A. John State, and the living beings in it mutated as much as they could. It took the Empire a full year to completely clean up the anomaly, but the alienated and transformed as say. John State was no longer able to adapt to humans, and had completely become an uninhabited and deserted territory. The Empire's official evaluation of the Brahma world, was, without a doubt, this is a supreme treasure. It was loaded with an incomparably terrifying world. When this world became reality from illusion and descended to Earth, it would become a disaster for the entire Blue Star. Seeing this, Han Zhan once again summoned the Bodhi treasure tree. The fruit that represented the Brahma world hung on the tree, still dull. There was only some grayish-white starlight, nowhere near as bright as the other ones. Han Zhan also noticed that of all the world fruits hanging on the Bodhi treasure tree, the three located at the top of the tree's crown were emanating a golden, radiant light. These three world fruits were also much larger than the others. When Han Zhan used his consciousness to dive into the Bodhi treasure tree, he was pleasantly surprised to obtain the names of these three world fruits. Their names were Jua Deer's Wilderness, Sacred Heart Hundred Herbs, and Qin Sir Fulai. As a person who knew about myths and legends, Han Zhan instantly understood what these three names corresponded to. Regular Sword, Shinong Ding, and Fushi Qin. Among them, the Jua Deer's Wilderness world fruit was the most massive, almost more than twice as large as the other world fruits. The golden light emanating from it was extremely strong and blinding, just like a small sun hanging on a tree. The other two are slightly inferior, but they are also flickering, extraordinary. Compared to the three of them, the other world fruits are even dimmer, only a little starlight wrapped around, glittering light cannot be compared to the white moon. Looking at this scene, Han Zhan snapped to a startling realization. After he became a spirit contractor, the three contractual spirits that he had signed the contract with were not regular sword, Shinong Ding, and Fu Qin. So, the requirement for the world fruit on the Bodhi treasure tree to be lit up was an ancient divine weapon that he had contracted? Corresponding like this, it could be explained. The Bodhi treasure tree was discovered by one's own talent, divine illumination, push, and so was the ancient divine warrior artifact spirit, and there was a commonality between them. If a fruit represented a world, did that also mean that one was able to enter these worlds? Holding such thoughts, the richly rewarded Han Zhan returned the information file and re-entered the villa. After finding his teacher, Li Shutong, Han Zhan told him his guesses one by one. After listening, Li Shutong nodded with a grave expression. It's indeed possible, but if that's really the case, then one mustn't go for the biggest fruit. The bigger the world, the more complex the structure, huge also means full of variables, with your current strength to enter, I'm afraid that you will not survive 10 deaths. Then teacher thinks, which world fruit should I choose to enter is the most appropriate? The Shinnong Tripod, or the Fushi Zither. Both of these are auxiliary types, and the world fruits they represent should have a relatively small danger factor. What about the Brahma world, does teacher think I should enter to explore it? Li Shutong shook his head. He did not recommend entering the Brahma world. It was because this world first appeared in the Empire's estate. John State. All those ghostly anomalies inside the Brahma world also fit in with the history and humanity of the Empire's side. Li Shutong had reason to suspect that the Brahma world corresponded to the historical legends of the Empire's side. As a pure Dasha person, it was more certain to explore the world he was familiar with. After Li Shutong spoke his thoughts to Han Zhan, the latter nodded in agreement. After finalizing the fruit of the world he was preparing to enter, the next thing to do was preparation. Han Zhan needed to recall the memories hidden in the depths of his mind and refresh his memory of the legend. On Li Shutong's side, he contacted the Li clan to deliver the news of the sneak attack by Li Fengchun and the ninth-ranked insect emperor, putting Dasha on alert. At the same time, he began to clear out the darkies and uproot those traitors that the insect race had ambushed within the human race. 
This process couldn't be done overnight, but as long as action was taken, it would make the insect race throw in the towel. One week later, Hanjan finished the four major tonic soups in the villa and said goodbye to his teacher as well as Xia Yue and Li Lingjin. He didn't plan to bring the two girls in. Because the dangers within the world fruit were unpredictable, even Hanjan wasn't completely sure. It would be better to let the teacher leave the two behind and bring them with him to continue their own cultivation, so that Hanjan could enter the world fruit alone to find out what was going on. Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, although the heart is reluctant, but also know that Han War is for their good, did not insist. After everything was arranged, Han Zhan called out the Bodhi treasure tree. His hands made special seals. The Bodhi treasure tree soared against the wind and transformed into a heavenly ancient tree that enveloped the entire villa. Han Zhan reached out his hand and touched the world fruit in it that shimmered with golden light, and in the next instant, his entire body transformed into countless starbursts that were sucked into the golden fruit and disappeared. The name of this world fruit was Sacred Heart Hundred Herbs. A madman? Saint Master. A starburst fell and countless points of light coalesced, transforming into Han Zhan's appearance. He opened his eyes again, and his surroundings were no longer the deep blue city villa, turning into a crude room. How crude! Straw mats, mud walls, rotten wooden windows, and the only door panel had many broken holes infested by insects, and the sunlight shone in through these holes, striking a tiny spot of light on the wall. Han Zhan was still surveying his surroundings when he heard hurried footsteps coming from outside, accompanied by a few angry shouts and exasperated shouts. Where is that outsider? Where is that outsider? Get out of the way, all of you. He's about to cure my daughter to death, I'm going to make him pay for it. Han Zhan was still listening to the gossip in his ears, when he was caught off guard, with a rumbling sound, the only door of his house, was kicked out, and embedded fiercely in the mud wall next to him, deeply integrating into it. Han War has not yet reacted, a tall figure appeared in front of him, a grabbed his clothes. Being attacked, Han Zhan couldn't think about it in detail, and his entire body had already subconsciously reacted, but when he turned on his three urgent needs, intending to pull and move with the other party with the realm of a fourth-ranked spirit contractor, he discovered a horrifying reality. He was completely suppressed. That's right, the opposite side, this brown man who looked big and thick and wrote his anger all over his face, was completely crushing his own realm. The speed of the other party was so fast that Han Zhan was grabbed without even reacting, and when he tried to break free, he was already controlled to death and could not break free. How high was this brown man's realm? Fifth rank, sixth rank, or higher? Han Zhan didn't know, he only knew that he had just turned on his three urgent needs when he was slapped to the ground by the other party. With your crude three-legged kung fu, you still want to resist, TSK, foreigner who doesn't know the heights of heaven. Jianghua, lower your fire first, don't get someone killed. Someone persuaded from the side, only Han Zhan could no longer hear it. After being knocked out by Jianghua's slap, by the time he woke up again, he was already in jail. One day later. It was only with great difficulty that Han Zhan managed to figure out the reason why he was caught in jail from the mouth of the little brother in charge of delivering the food. It turned out that the world he had been transported to by the Bodhi treasure tree was exactly the same historical legend he was familiar with in his mind without any worries, but there were slight differences. For example, the ancient people who were supposed to be weak suddenly became stronger than himself, an existence that could kill him in seconds with one hand. Another example is this strange disease. The outsider, Han Zhan, was found by the little girl's father, Jiang Hua, and imprisoned here because he claimed to be able to cure the disease, but ended up curing the problem. This is the initial setting for entering the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart Fruit World. After Han Zhan inquired about this, he gradually understood what he needed to do. Since it was a world related to the Shinnong Ding, it naturally had to do with the word cure. On this day, the relatively kind and talkative food delivery boy appeared in the prison on time again, bringing himself food, and just as he was about to turn around and leave, Han Zhan suddenly grabbed him. Feeling his arm being suddenly grabbed from behind, the food delivery boy turned around violently in shock and a skillful arm wrestling, counter tackle, and then his other hand slapped on Han Zhan's chest. Han Zhan only felt as if he had been hit by a ninth order insect, and the whole person violently spat out a mouthful of blood and flew out backwards, ruthlessly hitting the wall. Hold. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Seeing this scene, the food delivery boy, the person is also stupid, he panicked and waved his hand to explain. I didn't expect you to be that weak, you can't even carry a single blow, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Looking at the food delivery boy's expression that didn't seem fake, the corner of Han Zhan's mouth twitched slightly. Couldn't even carry a single blow? One must know that he was now a fourth-ranked spirit contractor, possessing the talent of the heavenly serpent's body and the protection of the third of the eight urgent needs. Even a sixth-ranked insect race might not be able to break his defense. But just like this, he just accidentally, by a Jiang clan's food delivery boy a light punch, he flew out, hit the wall and spit out blood. Is this reasonable? Han Zhan couldn't think clearly about this matter, and he hurriedly opened his mouth while the other party hadn't left yet, forcing himself to endure the pain. Don't leave, don't leave yet. I have a way to cure that little girl. Really, trust me. Han Zhan said with earnest words. Hearing his words, the food delivery youth glanced at him with a sympathetic gaze. 
You outsider, you really don't know where you got the confidence to open this mouth, cure a disease? Ah ha ha, cure? The rice delivery youth suddenly laughed nervously twice as he looked at Han Zhan with a somewhat odd look. What's wrong with curing a disease? What's so funny about that? Hey, I'm creeped out by you staring at me with those eyes. Han Zhan spat in his heart while accelerating his tone, that's right, it's healing. I made a mistake before and used the wrong herbs, can you help me convey a message to Jun Hua so he can give me another chance? This time, I can definitely guarantee that I can at least save her life. With the Divine Farmer's tripod, bio-spirit creation, talent in place, it was that confident. Hearing Han Zhan's words and looking at his look of conviction, the food delivery youth no longer made fun of him and his gaze grew cold. If you continue to stay here and wait enough for 30 days, you'll be able to come and go freely. If you insist on going to see Jiang Hua, his temper is fiery, if you can't save his daughter this time, you will die. You, have you thought it through? The words of the young man delivering the food were more like a reminder. This caused Han Zhan's mind to race and think of a possibility. This was a hint from the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart World Fruit, which told him that as long as he stayed here obediently for 30 days, he could go back, return to reality. If he insisted on going to see Jiang Hua, there was a possibility of death. In the face of this inquiry, which was similar to confirming to continue, Han Zhan did not hesitate and firmly nodded his head. He had come here, if he didn't decipher the secret of the Hundred Grass Sacred Heart, he would have to spend 30 days for nothing, and he didn't know how long the outside world would pass, so he couldn't afford to wait. Seeing Han Zhan nodded, the young man who delivered the food no longer insisted. His gaze returned to the honesty and woodenness of the beginning, and he first gave Han Zhan an apologetic glance before promising him, don't worry, I'll definitely pass on your words to Jiang Hua, but as for whether or not he'll come, I can't guarantee it. After the food delivery youth left, Han Zhan began to wait. That day, no one came. The next day during the day, Han Zhan heard a familiar voice in a daze as Jiang Hua cursed and walked in from outside the prison. Got it, got it, don't you ever read after me again. I'll just give that lunatic one more chance, if he can save Xiaoyu from waking up, I'll explain to the clan leader and release him. Jiang Hua was pestered by the food delivery youth for the whole night, but finally he loosely agreed and walked into the prison. There was a clang. The door to the cell holding Han War was opened. Let's go, Saint Master? A new story began, and the worldview about the book continued to unfold. I've been thinking about this part for quite a while, but I decided to give it a try, cheers. Sick. Han Zhan was carried out by Jiang Hua. In Jiang Hua's hands, Han Zhan couldn't resist at all, so he was carried all the way by him cursing and swearing. They arrived at a tribe with many houses. Many people's gazes were drawn over. Someone said snidely, Jiang Hua, why are you still unbelieving? Didn't you already send him to the prison? What's the point of carrying someone out again? I told you a long time ago that no one can cure this disease, why don't you believe me? Your daughter is a human being, we are also human beings, we all have this disease sooner or later we have to die, no one can escape. Jiang Hua listened to the windy words of the crowd around him, he angrily turned his head and yelled at them, all TND shut up for me. As he spoke, wild winds rose in all directions. The loud roar shook the houses. Han Zhua, who was carried in Jiang Hua's hand, was even dry and bleeding from his seven orifices, in a disheveled manner. Han Zhan could be sure that Jiang Hua was definitely in existence of more than the eighth rank, and even the possibility of the ninth rank could not be ruled out. Seeing how miserable Han Zhan was, Jiang Hua skimmed his mouth and muttered weakling in a low voice, then carried him into the house. Inside the room lay a little girl, looking no more than 12 or 13 years old. At this time, her eyes were closed tightly and her brows were locked, very painful. Jiang Hua threw Han Zhan towards the bedside, his tone was not good, you can start now, I give you 5 minutes, if you can't wake her up, you know what will happen. Han Zhan stood up, and as soon as he got close to the little girl, many dense black silk threads emerged from her body. These black silk threads were like tiny bugs that crawled in all directions. Some of the little worms even tried to climb onto Han Zhan's body, making one's scalp feel numb just by looking at them. This is. Han War subconsciously wanted to summon the deed spirit, but the regular sword and the fushi zither were both completely disconnected and unable to be summoned, and only the Shinnong tripod responded to his call. With the appearance of the Shinnong tripod, these black nematodes as if encountered a natural enemy, began to frantically climb toward the distance. The little girl lying on the bed was even directly foaming at the mouth and spasming. Seeing this scene, Jiang Hua subconsciously clenched his fists, as long as there was the slightest hint of something wrong, he would hammer Han Zhan into pulp. After Han Zhan summoned the godly farmer's tripod, he was able to clearly feel that these black nematodes carried some kind of strange and evil power. This evil power was fighting against the divine farmer's cauldron. A thick layer of black mist even shrouded the little girl's body. Han Zhan no longer questioned it and slapped his hands on the divine farmer's tripod. A stream of bright runes erupted from the mouth of the divine peasant tripod, and Han Zhao lightly let out a cry, living spirit creation. One by one, these runes were driven into the little girl's body, and only a wailing sound was heard as the little girl slowly opened her eyes. Awake! Seeing this scene, Zhang Hua was unusually excited. He didn't bother with Han Zhang, who was still standing next to him, and hugged the little girl into his arms. 
Little Yu, you finally woke up Little Yu. Father? Jiang Yu, who was being held by Jiang Hua, was a bit bewildered, not knowing what had happened. In any case, she was saved from waking up by Han Zhan. Jiang Hua no longer spoke ill of Han Zhan and looked at him with a grateful gaze, Saint Master, you really do have a solution. I'll apply to the clan leader to cancel your detention. In the future, as long as there's any use for me, Jiang Hua, you can just order me, you saved my daughter, I owe you my life. Listening to Jiang Hua's brash remarks, Han Zhan nodded, but his gaze lingered on Jiang Yu, who had awakened. Although Jiang Yu had woken up, her illness wasn't completely cured. Those black nematodes were just symptoms, and the black mist on Jiang Yu's body had completely integrated into her body, which couldn't be exorcised even with the use of the spirit of life creation. What kind of strange disease was this? This disease was also too strange. It was the first time Han Zhan had encountered this kind of disease that even spirit creation couldn't remove. However, when he thought that he couldn't even defeat a random young man over here, he was relieved. This world was already abnormal, and to look at it with normal people's eyes again would instead make him appear abnormal. As a healer, Han Zhan still chose to make the real situation clear with Jiang Hua. Expecting Jiang Hua to be furious again, he didn't expect him to nod his head without surprise after hearing what Han Zhan said. I know all of what you said. You know it all? It was Han Zhan's turn to be dismayed. What else can you say from a disease if you know it all? I know, but the onset of the disease was at the wrong time. Xiaoyu is still so young, she shouldn't have gotten sick at this time. In the end, I'm just being a father with an unwilling heart. Seeing Han Zhan's doubts, Zhang Hua narrated with him as an outsider. It turned out that not only Zhang Yu, but all of the people who survived here suffered from some kind of strange disease. This disease would break out at the age of 35, and countless black mists would gush out from their bodies. First the abdomen, then the heart, and finally the head and the whole body. People would be swallowed up by the black mist silently like this, without exception. No matter what they tried to do, they could not escape this doom. It was as if it was some sort of curse. To think that there is such a disease, this is the first time I've heard of it. Recalling the black nematodes he had just seen, Han Zhan had thoughts in his heart. The name of this world fruit was called the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart. The first strange thing he encountered after entering this world was this disease. Coupled with what the young man NPC had said to himself in the prison earlier. Judging by the combination, wanting to unlock the secrets of this world must be related to this disease. Thinking of this, Han Zhan took the initiative to open his mouth and inquired, Uncle Jiang, is the entire Jiang clan suffering from this disease? That's right, without exception, no matter if it's the clan leader or an ordinary person, no matter if it's a 2-year-old toddler or a 34-year-old adult, they all carry this strange disease. What are the manifestations of this strange disease? You can't see it normally, but we never go out at night, because once we do, unpredictable and horrible things happen, and no one can break the curse. Can't go out? Han Zhan froze in his heart. He quickly asked again, then this disease has been documented by you, when did it first appear? Hearing this question, Zhang Hua also froze for a moment. After a long while, he shook his head. I don't know, I'm a roughneck who just needs to live a good life. I don't even use my brain to memorize these history all whatsoever. Rather in line with Zhang Hua's persona, Han Zhan spat in his heart but I can take you to see the patriarch, who should have detailed records there. Jiang Hua added. Hearing this, Han Zhan also understood. The Jiang clan chief was a key figure, and it wasn't easy to meet him. If there wasn't this relationship with Jiang Hua, and if he chose not to save the little girl, then the trail might have been interrupted up to here. Fortunately, Han Zhan made the right choice. He then nodded and readily agreed. No problem, we'll go find the matriarch right now. At this moment, there was a circle of people outside the house, originally wanting to watch the fun and see Han Zhua get beaten to a pulp alive by Jiang Hua. Unexpectedly, the two people actually put their hands together and walked out of the house with their shoulders wrapped around each other. Looked silly a crowd. Shinnon's death and the healer's curse. The Jiang clan chief's room was in the innermost part of the clan, the largest room. When Jiang Hua led Han Zhan to the patriarch, the Jiang clan patriarch had been waiting for a long time. I heard that you woke up Jiang Yu. The Jiang clan patriarch, Jiang Huai, turned his gaze toward Han Zhan. Just a simple eye survey made Han Zhan feel like his entire being was devoid of secrets and seen through, and his body instinctively reacted by trembling. He was stronger than Jiang Hua. Han Zhan immediately had a judgment in his heart. He didn't dare to be slow, and hurriedly arched his hand in humility, there's no root cure, just a savior, a show of hands. A show of hands, outsider do you know what such a show of hands means in the Jiang clan? Zhang Huai paused and said word for word, since the death of Shinnong Saint Master, there is no one more proficient in the art of healing, and you, as an outsider, are absolutely unique. Zhang Huai's words exploded with information, causing Han Zhan to freeze on the spot. Who was the divine farmer Saint Master? It was a bit different from the legends he knew. No, I know who the divine farmer Saint Master is. It's the divine farmer who tasted all kinds of herbs. Han Zhan felt that he had grasped a certain key point, and subconsciously asked, how did the divine farmer Saint Master die? Naturally, he ate the broken intestine grass while tasting a hundred herbs and died without treatment. 
Jiang Huai's answer made Han Zhan even more convinced that Divine Nong Saint Master was the legendary Divine Nong clan. Listening to Jiang Hua said that you want to inquire about the initial time of the occurrence of this strange disease, it is just right to say the same to you. The earliest time that this strange disease occurred was on the day that Shen Nong Saint Master ate the broken intestine grass and died. According to the clan's records, after the Shinong Saint Master died, the entire world was sick. Every human was infected with a strange disease, and all those who were proficient in the art of healing even mysteriously disappeared, as if the profession of healer had never existed in this world at all. This world was sick, and very sick. But what does this have to do with the emergence of the insect race? What was the direct connection between the two? Han Zhang couldn't figure it out. Perhaps the only way to get the answer was to unlock the secrets of the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart Fruit World. Seeing Han Zhang's silence, Patriarch Zhang Huai pulled out another yellowed piece of paper from the room, let's just call it a paper. This contains an elixir formula left behind by the Divine Farmer Saint Master, and as you are an outsider and the only healer in this world, this elixir formula can only be given to you. Reaching out to take the Dan formula, Han Zhang saw the name of this Dan formula clearly, Little Returning Dan. The herbs on this are all available in our clan's warehouse, it's just that on one hand, we can't read the Dan prescription, and on the other hand, we don't have the tools to refine the Dan, so it's been sitting here collecting dust. Just from the Dan formula alone, and the name Little Returning Dan, Han Zhang couldn't tell what it actually did. But since it was an elixir formula obtained from the NPC, the Jiang clan chief, through the main quest, it must have something to do with the entire main storyline. With this thought in mind, Han Zhang decided to find out after refining this small return Dan first. He immediately spoke, please also ask the clan leader to prepare these herbs for me, I would like to open the furnace to refine the elixir. Zhang Hui and Zhang Hua glanced at each other and didn't reject this request from Han Zhang. The medicinal herbs are kept in that warehouse in the east, it will take some time to send someone to fetch them, so you can stay here for now, Zhang Hua, since this outsider is your family's savior, you and prepare a place for him to stay, and make the rules clear to him. Yes, Zhang Hua agreed. After leaving from the patriarch's residence, Jiang Hu led Han Zhan to an empty room, which was at least quite a bit more refined than the rough room he had slept in when he first entered this world. Just as Han Zhan was feeling sentimental in his heart, Jiang Hu sighed. Alas, little brother Han, you shouldn't have taken this matter, you're my family's Jiang Yu savior, yet I don't want to return the favor. How do you say that? Seeing that the expression on Jiang Hu's face didn't look like a fake, Han Zhan was a bit puzzled. As far as I know, it's not as if there are no pill masters in this world, there are many newborns born every year. So how could it be possible that there aren't so many one or two who possess the talent of a pillmaster? Indeed, Jiang Hua's words were logical, and this was also a small confusion in Han Zhang's mind, only just now, when he was facing Jiang Huai, because of the absolutely crushing strength gap, he subconsciously ignored this point. Being reminded by Jiang Hua at this time, Han Zhang nodded. They're all dead. Jiang Hua's next sentence directly triggered the emotions in Han Zhang's heart. Dead? What died? How did they die? Who died? Without Han Zhan pursuing, Jiang Hua had already spoken again, those pill masters, those who possess the talent of pill masters, they're all dead. The divine known saint master left more than one Dan formula in this world, and all those who obtained the formula and tried to study its mysteries ended up dying. We refer to these Dan formulas as the divine farmer saint master's curse. So patriarch Jiang Hua knew about the curse, yet he still gave the Dan formula to himself? Jiang Hua had told himself the truth because he couldn't bear to do so. Without Jiang Hua, he might have faced a different ending. It was only at this point that Han Zhan profoundly realized that this fruit world was more than a hundred times more terrifying than imagined. The only way I can crack the ultimate mystery is to be careful and cautious. I understand, thank you for passing it on, I'll be careful. Han Zhan did not return the Dan formula to Zhang, which already indicated his inner choice. Seeing Han Zhan so Zhang Hua, he was not in a position to say anything else. After this, Zhang Hua said to Han Zhan that he had to close the door to his room tightly and not go out after 6 o'clock in the evening before bidding farewell and leaving. Han Zhan closed the door and sat back down at the table. He placed the Dan formula on the table, lost in thought. The healers who had studied the formula were all dead. Was this really a curse? If it really was a curse, how would it be broken? These Dan formulas left in the world by Shen Nong must have some sort of clues. If one gave up these clues, how would one explore the truth? Han Zhan was internally torn, and for a moment, he couldn't think of a way to break the curse. No. No. All puzzles are left for those who come after them to solve, and if the puzzles left behind can't be solved, it would be meaningless. Thinking of this, Han Zhan had a preliminary judgment within his heart. The curse ritual should be viewed in two ways. First, there was a problem with the Dan formula, and researching the formula would result in a backlash. Second, there was a problem with the person researching it, and researchers who didn't fulfill the conditions would be subjected to a backlash. Shen Nong, as a human being, tasted all kinds of herbs in the legend and benefited the world, he shouldn't be able to curse future generations of humans. And if there really was a problem with the Dan formula, with his own strength of a mere fourth rank, it would be a completely certain death. 
After going through that Dan formula over and over again and studying it, Han Zhan still couldn't come to a conclusion, so he decided to go out and ask around about healers and Dan formulas. As he pushed open the door, Han Zhan was keenly aware of the gazes that were cast all around him to gauge surveillance, and then quickly moved away. Looking at the significantly more passers-by at the door, Han Zhan's heart thumped. Were these the people Jiang Huai had sent? What is he worried about? He's spying on me. Han Zhan's face didn't move as he quickly walked towards the crowd. Soldiers came to stop the water and water to cover the earth. He wanted to see what Jiang Huai had in mind. Little redeeming pill. The first stop Han chose was the home of the young man who delivered the food. It is not difficult to find out where he lives. When the food delivery youth saw Han Zhan appear at his door, he was also a bit surprised. Saint Master? Han Zhan waved his hand, you should just call me Han Zhan. The news that Han Zhan had saved Jiang Yu's life had already spread throughout the Jiang clan tribe. For this outsider who was proficient in the art of healing, everyone in the tribe addressed him as Saint Master as a sign of respect. Giving up on pleasantries. Han Zhan continued, Today, I obtained an elixir formula from Patriarch Zhang Huai, which is said to have been left behind by the Shinnong Saint Master. As payment for you saving me from prison, I'm willing to share it with you. The rice delivery youth stared at Han Zhan with wide eyes, incredulously. How can you, this person, be so gracious? His tone was urgent, and he shook his hand repeatedly, fearing that Han Zhan would really pull out an elixir formula. It seemed like he also knew that there was something wrong with the Dan formula. Han Zhan speculated in his heart when he saw the expression on the rice delivery youth's face. He cooperated by making a confused expression on his face and asked rhetorically, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with this Dan formula? The rice delivery youth hesitated for a moment, but still answered truthfully, I don't know, I only know that the people who studied the Dan formula ended up dying. Patriarch Jiang Huai then stopped allowing people from our clan to continue researching this Dan formula. He probably agreed to give this Dan formula to you only after seeing that you are an outsider who might not be cursed. An outsider? Yeah, that's right, I'm an outsider. That's what makes me different from those healers. I didn't belong to this world in the first place, and if I follow this understanding, this Dan formula really does have a curse, it might also have no effect on me. Han Zhan's heart was enlightened by the food delivery youth's point. The two of them said a few more words, and Han Zhan waved goodbye. For his second stop, he chose the Jiang Hua home. When he arrived at Jiang Hua's house, Jiang Hua and Jiang Yu were preparing dinner. Seeing Han Zhan arrive, Jiang Hua was a bit surprised. It's going to be dark soon, why are you still hanging around outside, didn't I instruct you never to go out after dark, something bad will happen to you. I just came out to take a look, I'll be right back, Han Zhan said, turning his gaze to Jiang Yu. He hadn't come into contact with many people now, and he might not be trustworthy with Patriarch Jiang Huai, so he can only start with the few people he knew and get information. Regarding Jiang Yu, Han Zhan also had doubts in his heart. Sister Jiang Yu, why did your disease break out early, did you visit any special places before the outbreak? Facing the inquiry, Jiang Yu first glanced at Jiang Huo and saw that he didn't react before answering. I was just playing hide and seek with the big guys, I didn't realize that I forgot the time for a moment, and by the time I came out from my hiding spot, it was already late. At that time, I knew it was bad and rushed back home as fast as I could, and I don't remember anything after that. Let me add to that. Seeing that Han Zhan had the intention to investigate this matter, Jiang Huo very cooperated and said, Xiao Yu came home late from hide and seek that day, I was so anxious at home that I could hardly wait for her to come home, and it had already exceeded the prescribed time by half an hour. Just after she returned home, a strange change occurred in her body. It was like something was trying to burrow out of her body, and the eerie feeling was creepy. But the good thing is, it didn't come out completely. As you know from the aftermath, Koyuki fell into a coma and slept for a long time until you woke her up. Can you tell me about that place you hide and hide and seek? Where is it? Han Zhan asked immediately afterward. I. I can't remember, I only know that there is a very large tree there, in the woods just outside of our clan, which is far away from the clan. I was thinking that they couldn't find me in hide and seek and deliberately hid that far away. Han Zhan nodded, indicating that he was clear. It was already getting late, so Zhang Hua didn't keep Han Zhan in his house for dinner for his safety. Han Zhan accelerated his pace and finally rushed back home within the allotted time. The night gradually deepened. Outside the tightly closed door, a whimpering wind began to sound. The doors and windows were blowing and whistling. With Han Zhan's hearing, he distinctly heard some kind of special footsteps in the whistling wind. Was there something walking at night? Han Zhan glanced at the window, where it was dark and nothing could be seen clearly. The temperature of the entire room plummeted a lot at once, and he subconsciously wrapped his entire body tightly. He didn't know how long it took for the noisy voices to drift away from him. Han Zhan's curiosity prompted him to stand up and walk close to the door, wanting to look out through the doorway. When he had just lowered his head and looked out through the doorway, the next second, he jerked back a few steps as if he had been startled. He saw something through the door crack. It was a pair of scarlet eyes. And the owner of those eyes was none other than Jiang Yu. Didn't they say you can't go out after 6 o'clock? Jiang Yu. Why was she outside? Han Zhan knew only a few people in total, 
and he definitely couldn't be wrong that it was undoubtedly Jiang Yu. It was just that her eyes were scarlet, and she was sticking to the doorway to look inside, and Han Zhan just happened to meet Han Zhan's eyes. Being suddenly startled, Han Zhan decided not to explore any further. He leaned his back against the mud wall, facing the direction of the door, and went to sleep with careful vigilance. The next morning, he was awakened by a knock on the door. The herbs that Patriarch Zhang Huai had instructed people to fetch had already been delivered to Han Battle's doorstep, seemingly with some impatience. Zhang Huai's abnormality was evident to Han Zhan, who received the herbs in silence and said nothing. The person sent by Jiang Huai, however, repeatedly urged, Say Master, these herbs are all very precious, and the Patriarch has instructed you to make sure that you refine the pills as soon as possible, or else I fear there will be a major change. Was this a threat? Han Zhan glanced at them and nodded. The other party didn't say anything else and bowed to leave. After matching the herbs with the names on the Dan formula, Han Zhan was certain that these herbs were the materials needed to refine the small return pill. Patriarch Jiang Huai had clearly prepared all of them, but never refined them, or was the refining unsuccessful? Returning to the house, after yesterday's thinking, Han Zhan decided to try refining the elixir. For one thing, the clues were broken here now, and without refining the elixir, no further clues could be obtained. Secondly, if the curse really only targeted people in this world and had no effect on outsiders, then the process of refining the elixir would be without danger. Thus, Han Zhan summoned the Shinon cauldron and began to add herbs to it according to the dosage and steps on the elixir formula. As the last of the herbs was added, the entire tripod began to glow with a light splendor. This Dan formula was extremely extraordinary, and the refined pills looked round in jade-like, white jade-like china, which seemed to be a superior product. Just when Han Zhan thought that the refining was successful, he breathed a sigh of relief. A bizarre human face suddenly appeared on top of the pill. The entire white pill was even shrouded in a layer of dense black mist. The human face on the Dan pill looked towards Han Zhan and cracked its mouth, revealing a bizarre smile. In the next second, these black mists opened their teeth and claws and lunged at Han Zhan before he could react. There really was something wrong with the Dan pill. Jiang Huai must know some information that the others didn't know, and he deliberately didn't tell himself. It was only now that Han Zhan woke up, and it was too late. The cauldron lights up and the Dan is complete, day and night. As the strange pill was about to break out of the cauldron, the entire Shinnong tripod suddenly lit up with a light golden light, enveloping the entire tripod. The weird human face seemed to be overcome by this golden light, let out a sharp scream, and within a few moments it flew away. After a while, after confirming that there was no more abnormality in the tripod, Han Zhan took out the pill. Looking at the pearlized pill in his hand, Han Zhan's eyes involuntarily burned slightly. Divine illumination was once again activated, and the information of the elixir pill came into view. Name, small return pill. Efficacy, able to resist erosion in the darkness of the night, inhibit mutations within the body, and break the rules to gain permission to travel at night for three hours. Attention, refining Zio Yuyudin carries a risk to your life, one life, one Dan, please be careful when refining it. Seeing all the introductions of the small return Dan, Han Zhan then came to his senses. It turned out that it wasn't that the Dan formula had a curse, but that refining the small return Dan required one life for one Dan. With such a pitiful setting, it was fortunate that he was using the Shinnong cauldron for refining, which, as the furnace cauldron used by Shinnong for refining pills, had a restraining effect on the Dan pill alteration, which allowed him to escape. That Jiang clan chief, Jiang Huai, must have also known the restrictions of refining the small return Dan. That's why he didn't allow his clan members to refine it, but instead surrendered the Dan formula to me, an outsider, with extremely sinister intentions. Although Han Zhan had successfully refined the small return Dan, he chose to remain inside the house and wait for night to fall. Since the small returning pill was able to grant the taker the ability to walk at night for a short period of time, according to the rules, after taking the small returning pill, Han Zhan would be able to ignore the prohibition and search for more clues at night. Intuition told him that the outside world would be more exciting at night. Refining the elixir had consumed a lot of energy, so Han Zhan decided to take a nap first and wait for the night to fall. When Han Zhan woke up again, it was already dark outside. The familiar sound of the whistling wind rang out once again. This time Han Zhan no longer hesitated and swallowed the small return pill in one gulp. After swallowing the small returning Dan, Han Zhan felt as if there was an extra special force in his body out of nowhere, which wrapped his entire body and formed a natural barrier. Han Zhan pushed open the door and walked out. The Jiang clan tribe was quiet at night, not a soul in sight, and the moment he pushed open the door, even the sound of the whistling wind came to a screeching halt, as if what he had heard before was all an illusion. There were neither scary ghosts nor scarlet eyes as imagined, but only empty streets. Han Zhan's six senses were too good, he vaguely heard footsteps coming from not far away, and hurriedly took a step ahead to hide around the houses, waiting to see what would happen. Not long after, a sneaky figure appeared at the end of the street. The silhouette seemed to expect that no one else would appear, and did not do much to cover up, just walked out in a dignified manner. When he saw the silhouette revealed from the shadows, Han Zhan was a bit surprised. Jiang Huai, he was actually able to walk at night as well. Yes, he had given him the formula for the small return pill. 
Zhang himself must have a surplus of little returning Dan. Han Zhan pondered in his heart as he held his breath and didn't move. Soon Zhang Hui arrived at the door of Han War's residence. He first pressed his side ear against the door to listen, and after not hearing a sound for a long time, he grunted and sneered twice, muttering to himself, this outsider is also considered to have died a good death, letting me get a small returning Dan for nothing. After saying that, Zhang Hui pushed the door open with force. The door opened with a squeak, and it was empty, with no sign of Han Zhan. Seeing this scene, Zhang Hui was dumbfounded when a familiar voice suddenly sounded behind him, Patriarch Zhang, are you looking for me this late? Hearing Han Zhan's voice resounding behind him, Zhang Hui turned his head unthinkingly, his dismayed gaze fixed on Han Zhan, his tone filled with suspicion, this is impossible. You, you refined the small return pill, why are you still able to remain unharmed? This is by no means possible. There's nothing impossible, Matriarch Zhang. Han Zhan said as he stepped forward and blocked Zhang Hui's path. The reason he dared to do so was because he had discovered yet another even greater secret. This Jiang Hui clan chief in front of him, the terrifying aura he had during the day had disappeared, and the current Jiang Hui gave himself the feeling of being an ordinary person with no cultivation at all. It was because of this discovery that Han Zhan had the strength to intercept the other party's path. Jiang Hui's face was unsightly. He tried to squeeze out a smile and tried to negotiate with Han Zhan, outsider, I have no intention of making things difficult for you, how about we just let this matter go? No intention to make things difficult? Deliberately shoving the small return pill formula at me and tricking me into refining it, just to use my life in exchange for the pill, is this considered unintentionally making things difficult? Ha ha. Han Zhan's sneering words caused Zhang Hui's face to turn green and white. Seeing the right moment, he took an arrow step and scurried out towards the side path, only to be slapped on the ground by the faster reacting Han Zhan. He loved the feeling of slapping someone on the ground. How he was slapped during the day, how he was going to slap back at night. What exactly do you want? Zhang Hui said viciously. Tell me all the information you know, don't play any tricks, we still have plenty of time, I can afford to spend it. Hearing Han Zhan's words, Patriarch Zhang Hui was also honorable, and very simply spilled out all the information he knew. The small return Dan was indeed the formula left behind by Shen Nong. Ever since Shen Nong's death, this formula had been left in the Jiang clan for safekeeping. Only pharmacists were able to refine the small return Dan, but because of the characteristics of the small return Dan of one life, the pharmacists of the Jiang clan could not afford to consume lives. It was only later that the Jiang clan's patriarch sealed the small return Dan formula and stopped refining it. The rule of not being allowed to go out after 6 o'clock at night was real, and it wasn't just for Han Zhan alone. The night air was filled with some kind of unknown and treacherous pollution, which accelerated the outbreak of diseases in their bodies when walking at night. This kind of weirdness plagued every generation of the Jiang clan. And then there was the secret that Han Zhan had sensed in advance. This world was odd, not only was it sick, but it was also very sick. During the day, everyone living in this world had a dramatic increase in strength and hunted those birds and beasts effortlessly. But once night came, the world outside became exceptionally dangerous. The more powerful a person was during the day, the weaker they were at night, not even as good as an ordinary person, and those originally weak flying birds and beasts would alienate and become incredibly terrifying once the night came. The reason why Jiang Hui wanted to refine the lesser returning Dan through Han Zhan was simply to think of making the best use of what he had, utilizing his identity as an outsider to stockpile an extra lesser returning Dan for the Jiang clan, just in case of emergencies. Listening to Jiang Hui's explanation, Han Zhan was half convinced. But in the end, he didn't strike out at him again and put him to death. The two were silent once again. Just then, a light and swift footstep echoed in the distant streets. A petite black silhouette appeared from the distance. It was a little girl, appearing to be no more than 12 or 13 years old wearing two crochets and walking obliviously on the road. The most crucial thing was her eyes, which were red. Jiang Yu. Tracking down Jiang Yu. Why is Jiang Yu here, and what's her situation? Jiang Yu's appearance seemed to have disrupted Jiang Hui's plans as well, and his face was a bit ugly. Under Han Zheng's gaze, he could only say truthfully, Jiang Yu has been parasitized, not simply parasitized, but the abnormality in her body has been activated. But again, because the infection hasn't lasted long enough, it's in a delicate balance stage. This is your real purpose, isn't it, to take the small returning pill from me on the way, and then follow Jiang Yu to discover the deeper secrets behind the infection, you're doing well with your calculations, Matriarch Jiang. Han Zhan wasn't a three-year-old child, refining the small returning Dan, regardless of success or failure, there was absolutely no need to make a trip over here in the middle of the night, this would also be a waste of a small returning Dan for no reason, it would be more than worth it. The only thing that could be explained was that Jiang Hui's purpose was not in himself. Until Jiang Yu appeared, the truth was revealed. Jiang Hui was poked and prodded in his heart, he didn't say much, secretly adorned a short distance behind Jiang Yu and began to follow. Han Zhan did not hesitate and followed Jiang Hui as well. He also wanted to see after being contaminated, Jiang Yu went out at night to see what was going on. Jiang Hui, who was following closely ahead, was not slow-footed and familiar with the path, as if it was not the first time he had followed. 
The Jiang clans was located in a plain next to a deep mountain, and nearby was a large mountain. At night, the mountains were pitch black, looking like a large black rag that blended into the night. Together with them, there were also the three of them, Han Zhan. Jiang Yu, who was at the front, was walking on the ground despite her small figure, giving people an indescribably weird feeling. Jiang Huai, who had been following behind, was the first to lose his support. At night, his strength was worse than an ordinary person, and after walking for more than half an hour up the mountain, he was already panting. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan was a bit surprised and asked, You're so weak, how did you follow before? Won't you lose them due to lack of stamina? Zhang Huai slightly gasped twice. No, because I also only tracked her once before, and she had already returned the same way before she even entered the mountain. Today, I don't know why, but I was able to last this long. Perhaps, something to do with himself? Hearing this, Han Zhan thought somewhat sheepishly. Bio spirit creation, as the divine Nong Ding's talent, it had the effect of healing all damage on the body and restoring it as if it was the first time. So what if the strange diseases that haunted the Jiang clan weren't strange diseases or curses, but rather injuries? Just after the two had spoken, Jiang Yu, who was walking as fast as she could, had already completely disappeared into the night. Not good. We lost her. Jiang Huai exclaimed. He wanted to say something else? He was violently pulled over by Han Zhang. The moment Jiang Huai was just pulled away, a large black shadow fell from the sky and smashed into the place where Jiang Huai was originally standing. It also revealed its original appearance from the blackness. It was a monster. Similar in appearance to a tiger, but with three differently shaped heads, each of which had a bloody mouth open, revealing sharp teeth. The hair on its body was black, and a pair of bone wings appeared on its back, truly like a tiger with wings. What they didn't expect was that Jiang Yu, who was supposed to have disappeared, suddenly appeared in the treetops on the opposite side of the street, staring at the two of them with scarlet eyes, gazing at them silently in a creepy manner. She's not Jiang Yu. Han Zhang said with certainty, from the very beginning, she deliberately mimicked as Jiang Yu to lure us out of the Jiang clan tribe. There have been no attacks inside the Jiang clan tribe, proving that Shen Nong is still blessing the clan after his fall. You are very clever, outsider. Thanks to you, otherwise, it would have taken decades of waiting to activate the seal inside this little girl. It's you who allowed me to mention an early revival, and I want to thank you properly. A morose voice emanated from Jiang Yu's mouth. That body that originally maintained the appearance of Jiang Yu suddenly transformed into a dense fog. This mass of black thick fog, slowly rotated and coalesced without dispersing, as if it was this appearance itself. It is it. That curse. As the patriarch, Jiang Huai naturally recognized that this appearance was clearly the same black mist that appeared when the Jiang clan members were engulfed after they reached the age of 35. How could he not have thought that he would have seen this scene in advance? This black fog was even more aggressive and terrifying than the one that appeared before. Don't confuse yourself, it's deliberately revealing its original form just to make you panic and abandon judgment. The impact of the black fog on Jiang Huai was far greater than Han Zhang, who was still able to calmly think and analyze the other party's reasons for doing so. It's stalling for time little redeemer. A flash of light in Han Zhang's mind broke through to the truth. As one of the Dan formulas left behind by Shen Nong, the little return Dan's effects must not be as simple as the description. Being able to walk at night without being bound by rules was a whole new kind of rule in itself. The power of rules was terrifying and unimaginable. The rule of the lesser returning Dan was to be protected from the erosion of the night, and any threat in the darkness was naturally included. Then the black fog that stood across the room, as well as this bone-winged black tiger it drove, could not harm itself at all right now. With Han Zhang's reminder, Zhang Huai also came to a sudden realization. It's trying to drag out the time for the small returning pill before it strikes at us. Then what are we waiting for? Hurry up and run. Zhang Huai thought here in his heart, he immediately turned around and without saying a word twisted his head to run towards the Zhang clan tribe. But in the next second, the giant black tiger stopped in his path. With Han Zhan's eyesight, he didn't even see clearly how the other party moved. Ninth rank, again. The terrifying strength of the night monsters was just like that of the Jiang clan people during the day, causing a sense of powerlessness to rise in one's heart, with no desire or fighting spirit to resist. So what if you see through it? From the moment you left the Jiang clan tribe you were doomed to end, no need to struggle meaninglessly. In the thick black fog, a morose voice continued to resound with a cold smile. Jiang Huai's expression was no longer calm. This time when he went out, he had only taken a small returning pill, which lasted for three hours, and once that time was exceeded, the encroachment of the darkness would be unstoppable. It was just after nine o'clock now, and there was still a long time until daylight. What to do? It would be a lie to say that one is not afraid of death. Jiang Huai subconsciously turned his gaze for help to his side, the still calm outsider Han Zhuan. You have a way right? You must have a way, outsiders are all very cunning, there's no way you won't leave a backhand. Seemingly being spoken to by Jiang Huai, Han Zhua no longer hid. Only to see him stretching out his hand and spreading his palm, in his palm, seven or eight bejeweled white pills were shining with a faint light, what was it if it wasn't the small returning Dan? Seeing so many small return pills, Jiang Huai's despairing eyes instantly blossomed with hope. 
He was just about to reach out to take one to renew his time, when Han Zhan suddenly jerked his hand back. You, how could you possibly have so many lesser restoration Dan? The lesser returning Dan exchanges lives for Dan, how can it be refined so easily? The voice in the thick black mist also carried a hint of incredulity. Yo, you know quite a lot. Then do you recognize what this is? Han Zhan's words just fell. He pinched his hands together, and a giant tripod silhouette with an ancient aura appeared in the sky above his head. Hanging on for a while is cool, hanging on all the time is cool. This is that guy's Dan Furnace? How could it appear in your hands? The moment he saw the godly farmer's cauldron, a screaming tone emanated from the thick black mist, even more emotionally volatile than just now. It seems like you recognize it, so that's good. Are you going to roll on your own, or am I going to give you a ride? Zhang Hui looked at the scene in front of him somewhat baffled. Originally, the arrogant black fog represented curses and ominousness, and his sight had been forced into a desperate situation. As a result, Han Zhan first pulled out seven or eight Shao Ruden and summoned an inexplicable giant tripod, and the opposite side instantly wimped out. What kind of unfolding was this? Zhang Huai, as the head of the Zhang clan, he couldn't understand it anymore. Without waiting for him to figure it out, Han Zhan had already pressed one hand in vain, gently pressing it that way. The Shin known tripod reversed its mouth, and pressed hard towards the bottom. Han Zhan's prediction was not wrong, the Shin known tripod that could deal with the abnormalities of the small redeeming Dan also had a great restraining effect on the thick black mist condensed by this horrible curse. Almost the instant the tripod fell, the black mist was dispersed and disappeared without a trace, as if it had never existed. The only thing left in the field was a bone-winged black tiger, exuding a terrifying aura, and after losing the black mist it seemed to have lost its activity as well, not moving at all. Is this settled? Han Zhang glanced at the divine farmer's tripod above his head, in this world of the hundred herb sacred heart, it was like a hangman-like existence. Hanging on for a moment, hanging on all the time for a stray time, the ancients honestly don't deceive me. Saint Master, are we going back now? Beside him, Zhang Hui looked like a different person, looking at Han Zhang with a pleasing face. There's no way, the small redeeming Dan is in his hands, he wants to go back alive and still have to look at Han Zhang's face. Go back? No, it's not easy to come out, so of course I have to explore hard. I have limited time, I don't have the time to play so many twists and turns. Han Zhan didn't forget his purpose, entering the hundred herb sacred heart world was to explore the truth. With the boost from the little redeeming pill, he and Jiang Hui both ignored the monsters on the side and continued on their way. Without going far, Han Zhan saw a very obvious ancient tree in the sky. This should be the ancient tree that Jiang Yu hid in when she played hide and seek before. As Han Zhan thought of this, he stepped forward and reached out to touch the ancient tree. Something unexpected happened, his hand unexpectedly passed right through the trunk of the ancient tree and disappeared. The ancient tree is fake? Zhang Hui was also a bit surprised to see this scene, and when he saw Han Zhang looking at him, he hurriedly shook his hand and said, don't look at me, I don't know. The world during the day is very different from the world at night, that little girl from the Zhang Hua family must have hid here after the evening, we have been here during the day and there was no such ancient tree at all. With Zhang Hui's explanation, Han Zhang nodded. He threw out a small returning Dan, which the latter reached out and hastily took, and after both of them swallowed one each, Han War, without saying a word, slammed his entire body into the ancient tree in front of him. There was no imagined collision or sharp pain. Han Zhan only felt an empty space in front of him, and when he opened his eyes again, he had already appeared inside a cave. On the mountain wall on both sides of the cave, each side was hollowed out with depressions, and inside were placed several candlesticks like long lighting lamps, and there was firelight illuminating the entire mountain wall as well as letting Han Zhan and the rest of them see the scene inside the cave clearly. This actually has something inside? If I'm not wrong, this place should also have the blessing of the divine known holy master. You mean we can stay here until dawn without worrying about being swallowed by the darkness? That's right. Han Zhan said as he took a few more steps forward. He saw a clay table inside the cave, and on top of the table was a piece of paper similar to the Dan formula he had seen before. Picking up the paper, it was indeed another new Dan formula. Hybridization Dan. Seeing this Dan formula, Zhang Hui's expression was even more excited than Han Zhan's as he trembled as he picked up the Dan formula and said in an excited tone, a second Dan formula. There really is a second Dan formula. The legend is true. What legend? Without Han Zhan continuing to press, Zhang Hui had already convexly said, legend has it that the Dan formula left behind by the divine known saint master contained a way to save this world, able to free us all from this curse, but the Zhang clan searched for a hundred years and was unable to find any other Dan formula. I didn't expect it to be here. No, it wasn't that they couldn't find it, but that it was impossible for them to find it at all. A small returning dam was able to keep a person from being eroded by threats for three hours in the darkness of the night. But there were other dangers that secretly existed in the darkness of the night, just like the thick black fog that was seen just now. Although it was unable to directly attack the person who had taken the lesser returning pill, it was able to use other means to trap the person until the effect of the lesser returning pill was over. If one wanted to reach this giant tree in the sky, one had to fulfill the requirement of possessing the small returning pill 
as well as a means that could expel or even kill the dense black mist. What was known was that all Jiang clan members were super strong during the day but weaker than ordinary people at night, so the second Dan formula was not prepared for them. Then who was this Dan formula truly prepared for? Han Zhan thought of himself. Having the Divine Farmer's Cauldron was like being hung up in this world, allowing Han Zhan to ignore the dangers and rules of the night, allowing Han Zhan to experience the joys of being hung up. Patriarch Zhang, this Dan formula will be kept by me, you don't have a problem with that, do you? Seeing Han Zhan ask the question, Zhang Hui looked at the young man in front of him with a complicated gaze. At first, he might have been a bit offended, sensing that his clan leader's majesty was being challenged, and thinking of waiting until daylight to get back at Han Zhan and take revenge on him. But as the two of them came into contact for a longer period of time, and explored further and further into the darkness of the night, he felt more and more that Han Zhan, the outsider, was unfathomable. Whether it was the tripod that was capable of shocking and crushing the black fog, or the means by which he could disregard the iron law of one Dan and one life to refine many small reduction dawn. This outsider had also led himself to the second Dan formula that the Jiang clan had not been able to find after searching for a hundred years. Perhaps this young man, could really help himself and his clan to lift the curse. Thinking of this, Zhang Hui immediately shook his head and stated, Saint Master, this Dan formula will be left in your custody. Not only will my Jiang clan not ask for it from you, for those materials in the Dan formula, if the Saint Master has a need for it, just open up to us and I'll do my best to satisfy you. Zhang Hui's attitude satisfied Han Zhang. A man who recognized the times was a wise man. Zhang Hui was capable of flexing and judging the situation, which was the quality that a clan leader should have. As the saying goes, return the favor with a peach, Han Zhang wasn't ambiguous either directly handing over the two small return pills in his hand to Jiang Hui. Plan Chief Jiang, our goals are the same. Searching for the Dan formula, then unlocking the truth of this world and breaking the curse for the Jiang clan, I hope we work well together afterward. Hearing Han Zhan say this, the last stone in Jiang Hui's heart landed at ease, and he nodded without further words. At this time, Han Zhan suddenly realized that on the table underneath the Dan formula, a few words had been carved by someone with a sharp weapon, remaining to this day. The void. Devours the world. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Death is not a curse. Wear down with reincarnation. These were the words left behind by the divine farmer Saint Master? When Han Zhan reached out and touched these words, such a picture suddenly surfaced uncontrollably in his mind. That seemed to be the image that divine known holy master had purposely left behind when he carved the words. Han Zhan's eyes widened in dismay. Looking at that image, it was as if he had received a great shock. Zhang Hui at the side didn't dare to utter a single breath, not knowing exactly what had happened. It wasn't until a long time later that Han Zhan exhaled a mouthful of turbid air and mumbled out two words, insects. Exterminating insect shadow. Yes, the insect race. It was impossible for Han Zhan to be mistaken. The insect shadow that covered the sky swallowed the entire world. The largest of them all was a constantly swirling mass of black fog. That mass of black fog was countless times larger than what he had seen today. If it had to be shaped, only one word surfaced in Han Zhan's mind, black hole. Everywhere it went, it devoured endlessly, annihilating the world like a black hole, and behind it was endless darkness. Han Zhan also saw many magnificent figures standing out of thin air, blocking the forefront of the world, each of them blossoming with a dazzling and incomparable light, like a blazing sun in the sky, resisting the devouring of the endless darkness. But the power of the annihilation black hole is far beyond their imagination, do not know how long the stalemate, these sun one after another, the light dissipated. Engulfed by darkness and then fell silent, the entire world was silent, like a cosmic void. Is that the nothingness that Holy Master Shenong said? An existence beyond the ninth rank, the true culprit behind the destruction of this world, the insect shadow. Han Zhan muttered, and no one was able to give him an answer. So, this world of the hundred herb sacred heart was also destroyed by the insect race? Then wasn't it possible to reason by analogy that all the world fruits on the Bodhi treasure tree were worlds that had been destroyed by the insect race? This would also explain why the insect race was able to use those props. It was because they originally came from those worlds, and what they were about to destroy now was this blue star in front of them. I left a backhand in the heavenly palace, that's our only chance to get together the four Dan formulas and find it, the later. An old voice suddenly sounded in his ears, like a gust of wind whipping through his ears and quickly dissipating. When Han Zhan realized it, it had long since disappeared. These were the last words left to him by the divine peasant Saint Master. Heavenly palace? Where was the so-called heavenly palace again? Was it related to these Dan formulas? Why was the world that should have been annihilated into nothingness now being reshaped? This one mystery plagued Han Zhan, unable to be solved for a moment. Patriarch Zhang, it's getting late, let's spend the night here. Here? Fine. Zhang Hui was about to say to return the same way, but when he saw that Han Zhan's face wasn't an inquiring expression, he immediately recognized the need to stop. As a cave opened by the divine farmer Saint Master, this place was indeed resistant to darkness as Han Zhan had said, and the two of them slept through the night within the cave. When they woke up the next day, they realized that they had unknowingly slept in the mountain countryside. 
The cave mansion had disappeared, along with that ancient tree in the sky without a trace. In the distance, a mottled tiger was staring at them, eyeing them intently, and in the next second it couldn't hold back any longer, growling as it pounced on the two Han warriors. Only a cold snort could be heard from Jiang Huai, finally finding a place to vent his anger after holding it in. Jiang Huai, who had regained his peak strength, sent the spotted tiger flying out several hundred meters away with a single punch, blood soaring all the way, and he didn't know how many trees he had broken. Until the tiger's shadow was completely invisible, the distorted miserable roar still echoed throughout the valley. Jiang Huai twisted his head, and just happened to lock eyes with Han Zhuan behind him. In the next second, Jiang Huai, who was still furious, suddenly bowed and arched his hand, sincerely saying Saint Master. It was only at this point that Jiang Huai's attitude on behalf of the Jiang clan was completely recognized by Han Zhan. The two then stopped testing each other and returned to the village hand in hand. As soon as they returned to the Jiang clan tribe, the two of them were surrounded by Jiang clan members. After not seeing each other for a night, the Jiang clan members already knew about the news of Jiang Huai and Han Zhan's disappearance and were anxious. For Han Zhan, an outsider, missing is missing, they were more concerned about their patriarch Jiang Huai, when they saw the two were safe and sound, the stone in their hearts fell to the ground. Jiang Huai also did not explain more to them, just beckoned to call his own men, will be mixed single dan formula on the medicinal herbs required to order down, with the fastest speed to collect. On Han Zhan's side, he welcomed the concerned inquiries from Jiang Huo and the others. Looking at Jiang Yu, who stood next to Jiang Huo with a clueless look on her face, a trace of guilt flashed within Han Zhan. If he hadn't used the divine farmer's cauldron rashly in order to get out of the situation the fastest, Jiang Yu might be a bit safer right now, and even if she slept for a long time, she would still be in a better state than she was right now. Breaking the curse could not be delayed. This curse might not have come from the divine farmer Saint Master, but rather the curse that the insect race had left behind in this world when they destroyed it. They all had a common enemy. Han Zhan exchanged a few pleasantries with them before returning to his residence. Not long after, Jiang Huai sent someone to deliver the various materials needed for alchemy. Not only was there the small return pill, but there were also the materials needed for the mixed yuan pill, which were all in there. After establishing initial mutual trust, Jiang Huai was also responsive to Han Zhan's requests. It seemed that Jiang Huai's previous words about not having enough materials were just a deliberate attempt to guard against Han Zhan. Now that he didn't have to worry about that, Han Zhan summoned the Shinnong Cauldron again and put in the materials according to the ingredients in the mixed Yuan Dan formula. With the experience of the first alchemy, the second alchemy process was much smoother. It wasn't long before a special halo began to bloom within the Divine Farmer's Cauldron. This time the color of the halo was off-white, and unlike the pure white color of the first time, the mixed Yuan Dan looked to be much larger than the small returning Dan. If the small returning Dan was the size of a pigeon's egg, then the mixed Yuan Dan was almost the size of an egg. In the same way that the small returning Dan had an abnormality, the mixed Yuan Shan was also essential, and its abnormality was even more terrifying than the small returning Dan. Almost at the moment when the Dan pill was molded, the entire Shin Nong Ding began to be filled with horrible carnage, a fist-sized black fog, whistling about to rush out of the Ding. Shinong Ding once again bloomed gorgeous light, the entire top mouth cover, not let the black fog rushed out. The black fog rushed around inside the tripod, hitting the top wall of the Shinong tripod and making a loud noise. Dang 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 dang. Every sound hit hard in Han Zhan's heart, just like the ancient god of war pounding on the war drums to make a huge roar, knocking the entire Shinong Ding to the ground. I don't know how long it took. Only then did the impact calm down, and a dripping round grey white pill tripped out of the tripod. The mixed Yuan Dan was completed. Han Zhan's eyes tightly stared at the mixed Yuan Dan, and very quickly, the talent, divine illumination, acquired all of its information. Name, mixed Yuan Dan. Efficacy, heaven and earth are chaotic, united as Yuan. After taking the mixed Yuan Dan, one is immune to all physical damage. Attention, refining the mixed Yuan pill involves a great risk to your life, one life, one pill, please be careful when refining it. It is also a one life one pill, but the effects of the mixed elemental pill are different from those of the small return pill. The small return pill was able to allow a person to ignore the rules and have the ability to walk at night. The mixed Yuan Dan, on the other hand, was the one that made one immune to physical damage? Could it be that on the path of exploration afterward, there are any difficulties that one must be immune to physical damage in order to get through? Each Dan formula was the key to solving the puzzle. With four Dan formulas, one had already gathered two of them, and facing the truth left behind by Shen Nong, Han Zhan had gotten closer and closer. The Wilderness of Du Guang it was unknown what Jiang Huai had said to the other Jiang clansmen. By the time Han Zhan finished refining the Dan pills and walked out of the house, he seemed to be able to feel something else in the eyes of the surrounding Jiang clansmen as they looked at him. That seemed to be respect. Ignoring all of this, Han Zhan found Jiang Huai and informed him of the functions of the mixed Yuan Dan. Clan Chief Jiang, in this neighborhood, are there any places that can't be passed by relying on an unusual physical body? Places that cannot be passed by an unusual physical body? As Jiang Huai listened to the information Han Zhan described about the hybridization pill, he came to a sudden realization. 
If we really want to talk about it, there is indeed a place where, not to mention any unusual flesh bodies, even if we go there during the day, we won't be able to pass through. A place that even Zhang Hui couldn't pass through. Han Zhan quickly asked, what place is that? The wilderness of Du Guang. Du Hiro's wilderness? Han Zhan had some impression of this name, he seemed to have seen it somewhere, constantly searching his mind, finally, he found the answer from the depths of his memory. It was written in the classic of mountains and seas, between the black water and the southwest, there was Du Guang Ji Yi, where Ho Ji was buried. I have anointed beans, anointed rice, anointed millet, anointed grain, and all the grains are self-generated, and the chin is sown in winter and summer. The lawn bird sings, the phoenix bird sings, the humility is real, and the grass and trees are gathered. I have all kinds of beasts and animals, and they live together. This grass does not die in winter and summer. This Du Guang's field is the holy land that Shen Nong searched for before, and it is also the key to the heavenly palace. In that case, everything makes sense. Saint Master Shen Nong had left his last resort in the heavenly palace, and the ultimate goal he needed to find was also in the heavenly palace. Where is this Du Guang Ji Yi? Patriarch Zhang, I'll go now. This. John Huai was a bit Judas, he looked up at Han Zhan and finally spoke, truth be told, the medicinal ingredients for refining the mixed elemental pill have already been consumed. There are a few of these medicines that no one will cultivate since the death of divine farmer Saint Master, and they have all gone extinct. So, the mixed Yuan Dan in his hand was the only one? Han Zhan knew that this matter wouldn't be resolved so easily. It's just one mixed Yuan Dan, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. No. If you want to enter the wilderness of Du Guang, you need to cross the River of Thorns. The River of Thorns can't be seen at a glance, and no one has ever been able to successfully cross it except for the Divine Farmer Saint Master. There's no turning back from the bow, there's no turning back from crossing the river, and there's no second hybrid elixir after eating this one. There is no way back. Han Zhan heard and understood. But even so, he was still going to take this path. Seeing Han Zhan's determined eyes, Zhang Hui no longer dissuaded him. Moreover, he had a premonition in the dark that if this young man in front of him couldn't solve the curse problem as well, then no one else would be able to do it, and this feeling was especially strong. Since Saint Master's mind is made up, our entire Jiang clan is willing to assist you in the first half of your journey. As soon as Jiang Hua's words fell, a few of the clan's most stout Han stepped forward, and Jiang Hua was among them. Jiang Hua pointed his finger at this group of people and continued to Han Zhan, I don't know how long this trip to the River of Thorns will take, these are the strongest and fiercest men in my clan, so letting them give you a ride will save you a lot of trouble. The only thing I need Saint Master's help with is to refine a few more small return pills for their return trip. Han Zhan originally wanted to refuse. Once he thought about how unfamiliar he was and how he did need a guide, he didn't reject Jiang Hui's good intentions. A few people simply packed up and then grabbed the road. With these Jiang warriors, Han did not encounter any dangers along the way. A few days later, they successfully arrived at the River of Thorns. The River of Thorns, as the name implied, was a river made of densely piled thorns. This river was so endless that it was impossible to see the distant borders, and all the thorns were almost as tall as two people, completely obscuring the scene in front of them. Saint Master, don't underestimate these thorns, they are able to cut through even our skin and have some sort of strange poison. Even a body of the ninth rank couldn't withstand the attack of the thorns, if it were himself, I'm afraid that he would have already been pierced into a sieve. Saint Master, we can only send you here, the road ahead leads to the unknown, and there's nothing we can do to help. Many thanks to all of you. This trip to the field of Dohiro, if everything goes well, the curse that has been passed down from generation to generation on you will be broken, I hope I can succeed. Holy Master, Godspeed. After bidding farewell to a few people, Han Zhan directly took out the mixed Yuan Dan. The moment he swallowed the mixed Yuan Dan, Han Zhan's entire body began to become like a grayish-white mist, shaped like chaos. The fleshly mortal body belonging to a human disappeared and turned into a grayish-white fog, which had the same effect as the black fog seen before. The fog had form but no reality, color but no appearance. Han Zhan tried to maneuver his new body and reached out his hand to probe into the river of thorns, only to see that when the invincible sharp thorns pierced his body, his surface skin transformed into a faint chaotic gas that dissipated and then quickly coalesced again. Physical damage immunity. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan's heart was greatly tranquilized. He immediately took control of his new body and rushed towards the other side of the river of thorns in big strides. There was no indication of how long the hybrid elixir would last, so Han Zhan didn't dare to delay, so he charged through the river of thorns in a stifling manner. Inside the river of thorns, there were no other creatures except thorns, and as far as the eye could see, all the spikes were densely packed with thorns. These spikes are incomparably sharp, and their power is comparable to that of a divine weapon, so if it's not a hybrid dan, it's simply impossible to cross over successfully. Legend has it that Shen Nong eventually found Du Guangji, must also rely on the power of the elixir. Worthy of being a legend of the century, Shen Nong's attainments and pills are far superior to those of others, and no one can outshine his right. Thinking about these things in his heart, Han Zhan's dense thorns around him had already made him completely confused about north, south, east, and west. He didn't know how far he had traveled until at a certain moment, 
the thorn suddenly disappeared in front of his eyes. An empty and bright field appeared in front of him. As described in the Shanghai Jing, the Luan bird sings to itself, the phoenix bird dances to itself, the spirit life is real hua, the grass and trees are gathered, such a beautiful scenery, people cannot help but slurp their tongues, as if walking into the fairyland. In that fairyland, there was a woman in beautiful garments, dancing as if she was tireless. Sensing the gaze coming from behind her, she stopped dancing and did not turn around at first. How many years has it been? How many years have we not seen an outsider enter this place, young boy, where did you come from? A melodious and pleasant voice rang out, like a larking bird, and like the flow of a clear spring, so that one could not help but sketch the appearance of a beautiful young girl in one's mind. This should be that Su Nui who was rumored to reside in the Du Guan's wilderness. I came from the Zhang clan tribe, pursuing the footsteps of Shinnong, and entered the wilderness of Du Guan, and I am honored to see the true face of the vegetarian maiden. You young boy, you speak well, but I have not turned around, so how do you know my true face? As he spoke, the owner of the delicate figure in front of him turned around. A face without five senses appeared in front of Han Zhan. Young man, do I look good? Thank you all for your monthly votes and recommendations, thanks for the support, appreciate it. The dragon's chi gave birth to Jianmu, and the heavenly ladder ascended to the heavenly palace. The vegetarian girl turned around. The face without five senses was indescribably weird. Even in the daytime, under such a fairyland, it was even more sudden and terrifying. Han Zhan's heart thumped, subconsciously about to strike, but he instantly stopped again because it was daytime. How strong was the vegetable lady as a human during the daytime? If she was even stronger than Patriarch Zhang Huai and the others, wouldn't she be hitting a stone with an egg? The only thing that was worth celebrating was that the effects of the mixed elemental pill hadn't completely lifted from Han Zhan's body right now. He was still physically immune. Do I look good? The vegetable woman still persistently asked, seemingly waiting for Han Zhan's answer. Han Zhan didn't dare to answer, he was afraid that if he answered incorrectly, the bizarre human face opposite him, which had no five senses, would split a slit from it and turn into a bloody mouth biting at him. Such an image involuntarily surfaced in his mind. Cluck cluck cluck. The vegetarian lady's laughter rang in his ears, you outsiders are interesting, what strange things are in your head, I've actually never seen them before. As she said that, she casually conjured up an image beside her, which was clearly the exact likeness of the split mouth woman that had just surfaced in Han Zhan's mind. You're much more interesting than Shinon. When he came to the wilderness of Du Guang, I only read countless medicinal herbs and countless Dan formulas from his mind, it was really uninteresting. The vegetarian maiden was able to read other people's memories? Han Zhan was first startled, and he also quickly reacted. Is it an illusion? Han Zhan subconsciously asked, but he didn't expect the faceless maiden across from him to shake her head. No, it's not an illusion. What you see in front of you is real, I've been trapped here for thousands of years, and my face and five senses are no longer meaningful to me. Although there is no meaning, my five senses were not erased by myself, but were devoured by nothingness during that disaster. It was Shinon who saved me and allowed me to stay here, waiting for someone who could solve the riddle. The image Han Zhan saw yesterday quickly surfaced in his mind. Inside that image, in addition to the divine known saint master, there were several people who each emitted a dazzling fiery light, and it turned out that one of these people was the vegetable lady. When Han Zhan thought of this, he became more and more respectful, from the bottom of his heart. They were all heroes who guarded this world, and whether they sacrificed or not, they were all worthy of respect. I'll also ask senior vegetable maiden to teach me. Good. The vegetarian maiden nodded, then took out a zither. My test is very simple, I have always loved sound and rhythm, it's just that I've been trapped here for an unknown number of years. You will play some interesting zither music to me, and I will count it as past if I am satisfied. Han War? This was completely out of character. This is the hundred herbs sacred heart world, and as a result, the test you gave me was to let me play the zither, this is too pitiful. It was hard to imagine that if it wasn't Han Zhan, if it was another person, even if he was proficient in the medical arts, even if he had heavenly medical skills, and it was hard for him to cross the river of thorns to come here, he would have to be dumbfounded when he saw the vegetable maiden pulling out a zither even bigger than himself. But Han Zhan was different. As a spirit contractor who had not only contracted the divine known ding, but also the fushi zither, playing the zither was as simple as eating and drinking water for him. Without saying a word, he took the zither from Su Nu, sat down on his knees, placed the zither horizontally between his knees, and began to twist the strings and play. The many tracks of the fushi zither, even though they couldn't cause any real effect in this world, they were still complete zither tunes. Han Zhan played them without any jitters and very smoothly. Although Su Nu's face was devoid of five senses, from the way she sat there with her head propped up, listening with her ears sideways, it could be seen that she was very satisfied with the zither piece Han Zhan played. Time passed in this way, minute by minute. I don't know how long it passed, but Su Nu wooed and awoke from her sleep as she stretched. It's been a long time since I've slept so comfortably. You are very good, to be able to play such a zither, you are bound to not be a boring person, this level counts as you passing. The vegetarian woman said, changing a Dan formula from her hand, which looked exactly like the two that Han Zhan had seen before, and was obviously also a Dan formula left behind by Shinong. 
In this way, three of the four Dan formulas could be obtained. Only, Han Zhan suddenly thought of a key issue, and the original joy in his heart was certainly non-existent. Received the prescription, five dragon dan three words into the eyes, followed by a dense number of herbs, are necessary to refine the five dragon dan. Just as Han Zhan was frowning, the vegetarian woman on the side suddenly laughed softly, originally, according to the agreement, you needed to collect these herbs alone before you could ask me to help refine the five dragon dan, but I'm very satisfied with the zither piece you just played, I even heard the flavor of another divine weapon from your zither piece. Speaking here, the vegetable lady's voice became meaningful. You are the one chosen by destiny, those meaningless trials can be cancelled appropriately. After saying that, the vegetarian maiden changed into another fist-sized Dan pill in her hand. This Dan pill had five different colors, which evenly coated the entire Dan pill, looking like a colorful ball. Five Dragon Dan. Seeing Hanjan frozen there, the vegetal maiden opened her mouth again and explained, I was really bored, so I refined one by hand. Good lord, this is not just being open-minded, this is simply heaven-defying. Even the refining process was saved, directly obtaining the five dragon dan. After Han Zhan reacted, he hastily accepted it with an arch. When you activate the five dragon dan, dragon chi will nourish the jianmu, and you'll be able to see the stairway to heaven. There is no danger in the heavenly palace, all there is is a truth. Go, destined one. As the vegetarian lady spoke, her body suddenly began to dim. The last wisp of obsession left in this world had completely dissipated because of Han Zhan's appearance. The obsession was gone. Guard this world for us. At this time, Han Zhan raised his head, and he finally got a good look at the appearance of the vegetable lady, a woman who was truly as beautiful as heaven. In the last moment when the smoke disappeared, she left her beauty on earth. Vegetarian lady, immortal. Han Zhan respectfully bowed again towards the place where Su Nue's form had dissipated. Both the vegetarian maiden and Shen Nong were great heroes of this world, and without them, this world would not have a present or a future. Straightening up again, Han Zhan's eyes grew more and more certain. He urged the five dragon Dan in accordance with what the vegetarian maiden had said and the five dragon dan instantly blossomed with a dazzling and incomparable light after it was urged. This light was split into five, transforming into five different colors, and after they were separated, they transformed into five giant dragons that rose up into the sky, the five giant dragons linked heaven and earth, intertwined with each other, and soon intertwined and connected together. A huge amount of majestic dragon chi spilled down into the sky and earth. Soon, an inconspicuous sapling broke out from the ground. It absorbed those dragon chi and surprisingly leapt up to a great height all of a sudden, and it continued to grow upwards frantically, forming a ladder to the heavens. Jian Mu. This was the ladder to heaven. By passing through it, one could reach the final destination of the hundred herb sacred heart world and the end of all the answers and puzzles, the heavenly palace. Han Zhan withdrew his gaze. He lifted his foot and took the first step. Then the second step, three steps, and four steps, step by step. He climbed the ladder of ascension towards the heavenly palace, eventually turning into a ray of light and disappearing into the field of Duguang. Deep Blue City, City Protector Organization. The phone in the reception center was rung, and a panicked voice rang out on the other side of the phone. I, I saw it, I saw the bugs. Alright, this gentleman, please don't get excited, please tell us the exact location where you saw the bug race, and we, the city protectors, will send someone to go and solve it. Traveling to solve it? Ha 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 ha. Traveling, no, no need to travel. They, are already here. Hello? Sir? What did you say, hello? Sir? Russell Russell Russell. Deep Blue's Doom, the beginning of the final big climax. Deep Blue City, inside the villa. Li Shudong was guiding Xia Yue and Li Lingjin in their cultivation. The latter two were sweating, not daring to slack off at all. Their strength breakthroughs were not slow, both of them were already at the peak of the fourth rank, with a hidden tendency to break through to the fifth rank. We're cultivating so fast, a battle won't be overtaken by us, right? Wouldn't it be better to counter overtake, in this way, he won't be able to return the favor at night, he can only let us fish and meat. Li Lingjin's words made Xia Yue's eyes light up. After such a long time of indoctrination, Xia Yue had already morphed from a tender and ignorant college student into a qualified old CG. She couldn't help but have a mischievous smile on her face, looking forward to Han Zhan's surprised expression after he came out of the Bodhi treasure tree when he saw that their cultivation realm had overtaken his. I'm going to be on top when the time comes. Xia Yue clenched her fists, this matter seemed to have given her some sort of special motivation. What are you two gossiping about? You can't be lazy during cultivation. Li Shutong's voice rang out, and the two immediately silenced themselves, standing obediently and continuing their cultivation. Right at this moment, Li Shutong suddenly intended to feel something, he raised his head and looked into the distance, as if he sensed something there. His face became extremely ugly, and he immediately took out his contact communicator and dialed the phone. Beep, beep, beep. There was no answer on the other end of the phone. Li Shutong frowned tightly and muttered, a mountain rain is coming. Deep Blue City, Green Ivy Academy. Today, Chen Spectrum led the students to the beach for a one-day fall tour. Behind him was a group of youthful-looking youngsters who were talking and laughing as they followed the large group to the beach in Deep Blue City. 
After the year is over, we'll be able to graduate the awakening exam next year. Yeah, I don't know what kind of talent I'll awaken next year, and what kind of contract spirit I'll sign a contract with. I must awaken an SSS ranked talent and become a great hero just like Senior Han Warrior. Che, just you, save it. Senior Brother Han War is the pride of our Green Vine Academy. To say the proudest person, it should be Principal Chen Spectrum. At first, he was the one who led our entire academy in a desperate attempt to support Senior Brother Han Zhan, and now he can be considered to have raised his eyebrows. Listening to the young students behind him, Chen Spectrum, who was walking at the front of the line, was somewhat energized. In his middle age, his hair was thinning, and the few handfuls of hair swayed against the wind, emphasizing the inner joy of its owner. Han wore this kid, recently also do not know to come to the Green Vine Academy to see me this principal, he more show a few times, the Green Vine Academy enrollment work is good to carry out well. How many students will come to join the Green Ivy Academy next year? Thinking about it makes me happy. Chen Spectrum's mind wandered wildly, and soon thought of his old partner who had lost his life on the battlefield, a relieved smile appeared on his face. Suddenly, the smile on his face disappeared. Chen Spectrum's gaze was alert as he looked towards the sea level, and a strange object suddenly appeared on the originally sparkling sea surface. It was a horn. In the next second, the full appearance of this horn was displayed in Chen Spectrum's eyes. A hideous insect race, which was quite a bit larger than a small ocean house, appeared on the sea level. It walked towards this side of the coastline as if it were walking on a flat surface, one step at a time. All the students of Green Vine Academy, retreat towards Deep Blue City. Chin Spectrum was experienced, having dealt with the insect race on a few occasions, and this was not the first time he had encountered such a situation. He did not panic inside, his expression was serious, and he organized the other students of the Green Vine Academy to retreat in an orderly manner at the first opportunity. But just as he opened his mouth to finish his sentence, the entire sea level, one after another, densely packed with countless horns all surfaced at the same time. One, two, three, countless. Countless insects, they almost filled up the entire sea surface, causing the seawater to be dyed a pitch black color, making one's scalp numb from looking at them. Chen Spectrum's heart thumped. The insect race had invaded, this was the first thought that flashed through his mind. How did they come across the sea? It was impossible. Without waiting for Chen Spectrum to figure it out, the sea lifted up a monstrous wave that lapped over towards the coastline here. The panicked Green Vine Academy students were about to be slapped by this monstrous wave and swept into the sea. Suddenly in front of them, a light green transparent barrier appeared, enveloping everyone in it and blocking this giant wave impact. Poof. Chen Spectrum let out a muffled snort as he pursed his lips hard, not letting blood flow out from the corners of his mouth. Although he was old, he was still a spirit contractor. What are you still waiting for? Hurry up and run. The fastest runners go open their communicators to contact the city protector organization and report the situation here. Principal Chen, what about you? I can still hold out. Hurry up and get out of here before they all come ashore. As Chen Spectrum spoke, he had already braced his light shield to its maximum, stopping wave after wave of waves from lapping at him. He was usually unassuming, even walking with a forehead of sweat, but he didn't realize that the strength he had erupted at this time actually had a fifth rank as well. No, if this goes on, the hatred will still be on this group of children, I must draw their attention away. The highest strength of these insects is only third order, even if the number is huge, it is not impossible to resist, block for a while more, and wait for the city protector organization to react, it will be able to solve the crisis. As Chen Spectrum thought of this, he sighed slightly. Alas, there's no way out, it's going to trouble you once again, old companion. He said as his hands lit up with a green glow, and as the glow continued to coalesce thicker and thicker, Chen Spectrum slammed his head towards the top of his head. A small four-leaf clover grew from the top of his head. I don't know if it was an illusion, when the four-leaf clover grew out of Chen Spectrum's head, the entire sea level was silent for a moment. Then, only Chen Spectrum was seen running in the opposite direction as he stepped on top of the raging waves and rushed deeper into the ocean. Roar, roar, roar. Wherever Chin Spectrum went, all the insect races were attracted to hatred and firmly locked onto him. The four-leaf clover on his head was swaying slightly. Those insect races that were still traveling towards the coastline, one by one, turned their direction and began to chase towards Chin Spectrum. Principal is mighty. Principal Chen is awesome. Some students turned their heads to see the scene, and they shouted loudly to cheer for their principal. Chin Spectrum, alone, had attracted the attention of the insect race for them, giving them time to escape. When I succeed in my awakening next year, I will definitely participate in the major war zones and become a combat spirit contractor to protect humanity. The young people swore secretly in their hearts. The next second they saw. Chin Spectrum, who was running on the sea level, was swallowed by the huge mouth of the abyss that suddenly poked out of the water, and without even waving goodbye, he completely disappeared. On the other side, the sky clouded and darkened, blackened, and densely packed blades fell from the sky, beating those teenage girls who had just made an oath in their hearts and deceives. Blood, staining the entire beach red. Scarlet descended. The city protector organization, the central building. The operator's phone had been blown up. 
More and more people had discovered the abnormality along the coast of Deep Blue City, and they were panicked and terrified. Rest easy, our city protectors have already traveled to the coast to deal with it. Please don't worry, the news has already been passed on to the major war zones, and reinforcements will be coming soon. All right. One of the operators put down the phone in his hand, his face was a bit gloomy, more pathos, but he still held back his emotions and picked up the internal communication phone to convey the news he heard upwards. 362 students of Green Ivy Academy, including 10 teachers, as well as the principal, Chen Spectrum, were killed on the beach. Chen Spectrum used his own strength to hold back the bugs in the sea, creating time for the students to survive, and in the end, he was devoured and killed by the mysterious and powerful bugs. In addition to the sea, there are also enemies above the sky, and the bug race is brewing an all-round attack. Emergency broadcasts also began on all the city's radios. All city protectors of Deep Blue City, immediately put down all other things in your hands right now and head towards the direction of the beach as fast as you can. Close the Deep Blue Gate and activate the shield. Civilians are also going alone, responsible for evacuating people and taking emergency shelter. Everyone hold on. The bug race's sneak attack won't last long, the Great Xia powerhouses and legions will arrive soon. All the citizens of Deep Blue City put down what they were doing and followed the official guidance to the shelter. Spirit Covenanters and Covenanters, consciously abandoning their shelters, one by one headed to the city gates where they would soon meet the insect race in a short encounter, waiting for orders. Ethan, the then captain of the first team of Deep Blue City's city protector organization, was frowning tightly, his gaze fixed on the sea level in the distance. An hour had already passed. The stretch of sea level was already crowded with all sorts of insect races. Most of them were first and second order insect races, with more to follow, surfacing in a steady stream. Gathered on the beach, they did not choose to attack at the first opportunity, as if they were waiting for the call to arms. Captain E, ordinary civilians have been evacuated. All the spirit contractors and deeded spirits in Deep Blue City that are able to be present have arrived at the city walls to wait for their orders. Ifan nodded slightly, he then asked, what about the other cities, any movement? When will the reinforcements arrive? Hearing Ifan's question, the men were silent. Several other cities have already sent reinforcements at the first opportunity when they heard that a large-scale insect race has appeared along the coast of Deep Blue City, but they are all still on their way. As for the headquarters, the headquarters phone has been on a busy line and we can't get through. Busy line? Busy line at this time, isn't the timing a little too coincidental? No one dared to answer this question. Stern, oppressive, even the sea breeze blowing towards Deep Blue City from the coastline carried the smell of blood. The scene of the densely packed coast caused goosebumps to crawl all over their bodies as all the city protectors who had ascended the city walls looked on. It would be a lie to say that they were not afraid, but surprisingly none of them retreated or escaped, guarding Deep Blue, this was the honor that they insisted on in their hearts. At this time, the city protectors made way. The two of them, Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin, appeared on the city wall with grave expressions. Seeing them, Yi Fan nodded as a greeting. Where is that big shot, didn't he join you? The big shot that Yi Fan was talking about was Li Shadon. His identity was no longer a secret, and Li Shudong hadn't deliberately hidden it. Li Lingjin shook his head, Grandpa didn't join us, he said he had more important things to do. Deep in the ocean 10 million nautical miles from the coastline. Above the sea surface, Li Shudong stood with his arms folded, looking down below the sea level, seemingly able to see clearly through the heavy sea surface to the bottom of the sea. He clearly saw that there was a huge whirlpool at the bottom of the sea. It was from this whirlpool that a continuous stream of insects emerged and then rushed to the frontline beaches. If I were you, I wouldn't have come here in the first place, you're in a bit of a hurry. Nightmare's voice rang out from the side. He was still wearing a black coat and a black hat that covered his entire face in it. You really didn't die. A defeated general under your command also dares to show your face. Hey. Nightmare laughed, Li Shadong, it's true that I can't defeat you, but it is also impossible for you to destroy the portal here. With me around, how can you see through the true and false? What's more, I didn't come alone this time. His words had just fallen. The sea level beside him suddenly rose tens of thousands of feet at once. The rushing and violent seawater formed a giant wave as high as the sky, surging towards Li Shudong like a mountain. Li Shudong didn't see how to move, he just swung his fist sideways and dispersed the huge wave with a single punch. The huge wave dissipated, revealing a huge figure inside, which was a flesh and blood puppet. There were countless piles of rotting flesh on its body, and it was overall dark red in color, without a head. Bursting blood vessels were exposed on the surface of the body, beating violently yet quickly and forcefully. From time to time, a small pothole burst open like a sarcoma on such a huge body, and many tiny redworms burrowed out of it, greedily gnawing on the fallen flesh and blood. Berserk Beast Li Shudong looked at the 10,000 feet tall flesh and blood puppet with a somewhat grave expression, another ninth ranked bug emperor. What can the two of you alone do to me? Then what if you add me to it? An old voice rang out, in the direction of Li Shutong's retreat, endless darkness stained this space into black, even the gaze that glanced over would be swallowed into the endless nothingness. Li Shudong fully averted his gaze and stopped looking there, his heart flinched, having completely understood. 
this was a setup against himself. Ninth ranked insect emperor, void. Even you have come, what a masterstroke. Ha ha ha, to be able to kill the number one person in Grandsia, the god of war, Li Shuong, who fought the three great insect emperors alone, how can such a stroke be considered big? The three bug emperors, from three directions, surrounded Li Shuong. None of them made the first move, but chose to watch and test, waiting for the other party to reveal their cracks first, that was the great Xiao war god, no amount of caution was too much. Li Shuong, we can afford to stall, can you? As they spoke, the deep blue sea under their feet suddenly turned into a scarlet red. The scarlet red spread in all directions, and in a few instantaneous moments, the endless seawater was dyed red. In the deepest part of the seabed, next to the teleportation vortex, was an open coffin. Inside the coffin, a young woman slowly paced out. When she stepped down, the surrounding seawater completely turned into blood water, and when she stepped down, the rich smell of blood filled the entire ocean. The ordinary dress on Red Iris' body disappeared, replaced by a scarlet red ornate robe, which set off her entire person with a tall, luxurious, and cold temperament. Her slender fingers slowly grew bright red nails, shaking and pointing in the direction of Deep Blue City. I am resurrected. White Frost is not me, Red Iris is not me. From today onwards, please call me Scarlet Queen. Killing, officially begins. With her order. Those insect clans that were waiting for their chance to strike, one by one, began to overflow with a scarlet red glow. Their eyes also completely turned scarlet, berserk, tyrannical, bloody, killing, all kinds of negative emotions were released through their pupils. Even though they were separated by millions of nautical miles, they still heard the Scarlet Queen's call. Billions of insects roared at the same time, rushing towards deep blue. The truth in the heavenly palace. Han Zhan stepped on Jianmu and climbed up to the sky step by step. After an unknown amount of time, he managed to reach the heavenly palace. The scene of the heavenly palace was very different from what was imagined. There were no jade buildings, no majestic palaces, not even a single immortal, but just a vast expanse of white clouds, barely put together to form an empty island. Han Zhan left the building wood and stepped on it. The soles of his feet fed back a soft touch, allowing him to experience the feeling of flying through the clouds. The entire sky was vast and boundless, with no end in sight, and Han Zhan didn't know exactly where that truth left behind by Shen Nong was. Just as he was aimlessly searching, the sky suddenly lit up with a majestic sword intent. The sword light rose up to the sky, piercing through the dome and slashing towards this place with an unshakable and terrifying aura. Locked by this sword light, Han Zhan couldn't even give birth to the thought of resistance in his heart, standing straight there, watching the sword light swiftly fall towards him. His gaze was stunned until the sword light passed through his body, and only then did that feeling of being on the verge of death disappear. There was no damage? Han Zhan froze for a moment. Just now, that sword light was so powerful that he clearly watched it penetrate his body, yet he was still alive and well. At this time, an ancient horse hissing sound rang out from behind him. Within a large area shrouded in endless darkness, something was being twisted by the sword light, rolling and tumbling, and a vicious voice came out from it. I didn't expect this world to have someone already touched the threshold as well. In the distance, a young man wearing silver-white armor with a jade-like face stood there with an immortal sword in his hand, his eyes blazing with a majestic tone. Who are you? Dare to covet the origin of this world. I'm going to devour it, what can you do to me? You can't stop me. The voice in the black mist clearly did not place him in its eyes. As it spoke, infinite darkness spread instantly, eroding the entire sky into pitch black. Han Zhan saw a bright spot of light glowing in the eroded sky. But just beyond this light, it had been shrouded in a layer of black mist, with starlight constantly being drawn and swallowed, disappearing and shrinking. That should be the origin of the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World. Han Zhan's heart was enlightened, and he also understood that the scene he saw before him was not the current scene, but should be a once upon a time image left behind through some means. This should be the truth left behind by Shen Nong. The battle in the picture continued. Seeing that the other party was unmoved, the Heavenly Palace Immortal Emperor who was enveloped in Immortal Qi was no longer polite, and the immortal swords in his hands transformed into thousands. Each one of them had the might of the sword just now, and the ten million immortal swords pierced through the darkness in the sky, like rain hitting the surface of a lake and causing ripples. It's useless, ha, huh? it's useless. You've only just touched that threshold, there's still a long way to go before you step over it, and after devouring 99 world origins, I'm now only this last one away from breaking through beyond the ninth stage. By now, don't you understand the gap between you and me? Stop now, when I finish devouring this world, I can keep you alive as my sword-wielding child. In the black mist, the ancient voice resounded once again, disdainful and contemptuous with compulsion. At the same time, he increased the speed of the black mist's absorption, and the entire hundred herb sacred heart world began to become bright and dim, like it could shatter at any moment, like an old and dilapidated slide. The world origin was plundered, and the entire world was in turmoil. Deep blue city, the sea. Li Shuang looked at the last ninth order insect emperor to appear, void. There was a searching look in his gaze. I've heard that the ninth ranked bug emperor, void, never participates in battles between the bug race and the human race, and is the most buddhist bug emperor. If I can get you to fight today, I should have something in mind. 
Let me think about what exactly is the target that can attract you to strike against me. There's no need to try, so what if I tell you? The ancient voice came out from the endless darkness, I came here for the origin. A part of the origin that belongs to me was intercepted in another world, and now that world and the Bodhi treasure tree have become one, only the destined person can enter. Counting the time, he should be coming out soon as well. Once I retrieve my origin, I will be able to complete the fusion beyond the ninth stage and reach a higher level. The void really didn't hide anything, because in its view, Li Shudong was already a person who was bound to die, and telling him this wouldn't affect how the outcome would be. Li Shudong suddenly burst out laughing. You're so confident, who was the origin forcefully chopped down and sealed in that world back then? How can you be sure that you won't repeat the same mistake? Li Shutong's provocative words caused the memories of the past unknown number of years in the void's brain to attack it once again, and it was no longer calm and annoyed. You shut up. As it spoke, the area shrouded in endless darkness expanded further, and black fog rushed towards Li Shutong, rushing in. The latter was prepared for this, and as he watched Void being enraged, he instantly released a white mist wrapped around his entire body, and instead of retreating, his entire body advanced, crashing into the black mist at once. Roar! On the other side, without saying a word, the ninth-ranked insect emperor Berserker Beast also entered the area enveloped by the black mist with Li Shutong at the second time of his action. The ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare let out a hay, only to see its only pair of exposed pupils staring tightly at the black fog, and its natural illusion technique was instantly unleashed. The battle was imminent. Heavenly Palace. The image in front of Han Zhan's eyes was still changing. At this time, the screen was already pitch black, this horrible monster nothingness, is madly devouring the entire world, wherever it goes or swallowed up, turned into darkness, endless darkness, and then returned to nothingness. Just like its name. This process could not be resisted. Even Han Zhan's pupils looking at the image became pitch black, on the verge of passing through this historical image and eroding into his reality. Suddenly, a radiance as bright as the blazing sun lit up in the endless darkness, and a familiar voice sounded simultaneously in Han Zhan's ears. Want to devour this world, have you asked us? It was the divine farmer Saint Master. He had finally appeared, and there was more than one of him. It was just like that image left behind in the cave. After his words rang out, one light after another pierced the darkness. Shin Nong, the vegetarian lady, the immortal emperor, and a few other fiery sons whose figures Han Zhan couldn't see. They appeared in nine special locations, as if forming some peculiar formation, and at the center of this formation was clearly the origin that was being devoured. At this moment, the origin had already been invaded by nothingness and was about to be devoured, and as long as the fusion was completed, it would be able to break through the ninth order. This process was irreversible. But even it hadn't expected that within such a short period of time, these mole crickets of this world had actually thought of a way to restrain him. Void, which was invincible, suffered a huge heavy blow here. Using the heavens as the formation map, the earth as the formation base, and the nine rounds of blazing sun as the formation eyes, drawing the biggest formation in heaven and earth. Such a masterstroke, burning the lives of nine ninth-ranked supreme beings at the same time. It's a unique formation in heaven and earth. Congratulations to Scene Dota. Happy that T12 made it to the final day. Above the ninth order, the transcendent realm. The great formation of heaven and earth takes shape. All the darkness and nothingness in the formation actually began to be refined under the burning sun, curling up and coalescing into the world essence. If light couldn't illuminate the darkness, then use fire. The nothingness felt an unprecedented crisis, and its voice was no longer calm. Under the fierce scorching, it was as if it felt a constantly burning sun wrapped within its body. No, it was nine. You guys are crazy, to come up with this method, you must be insane. Crazy? So what if I'm crazy? As long as I can take a bite out of you, the intruder, what does it matter if all of them are crazy? Seek death. The void was also enraged, it began to attack these nine rounds of blazing suns indiscriminately, each round of blazing suns was a formation eye, as long as it was able to erode one of them, it would be able to destroy this heaven and earth grand formation and prevent it from being refined and killed. Among the array eyes were the nine strongest people of the hundred herb sacred heart world. In the face of the devouring, they all actually did not say a word and were not moved in the slightest. The moment the formation was formed, they had already had the realization of sacrifice. The five senses of the vegetarian maiden were devoured by nothingness, turning into a terrifying monster with no five senses. The immortal emperor's head was decapitated, leaving only half of his body still standing there, holding his immortal sword in his hand, still not retreating. Shin Nong was already dying, sensing that he was about to come to the end of his life, he very simply swallowed a strain of heaven and earth's strange poison, broken intestine, that he hadn't long discovered. The ferocity of the poison was so strong that even he, a ninth order powerhouse, did not dare to try it easily. Devouring was a two-way street, able to devour the good as well as the bad. A second before Shin Nong was completely devoured by Void, all of these virulent poisons he had taken also spread into Void. In the endless darkness, a hint of panic and exasperation actually appeared within Void's frightened and angry voice. Since I saw that threshold, you should know that I can comprehend means that target the origin. Everyone chooses to cross the threshold in a different way, 
but its essence does not change, so I will use this array to chop off half of your origin, so that you won't be able to break through to the ninth rank for all these endless years. The voice of the immortal emperor who had lost half of his body still rang out clearly. In the next second, the nine blazing suns erupted with the hottest and brightest light, burning out the darkness of the entire sky. Li Shadong, you have indeed grown old. The darkness dispersed, and the one man and three insects once again resumed their stations. The voice in the endless darkness revealed a bit of exhaustion. The blood puppet berserkers had lost an arm. Nightmare's left eye was swollen and squinted into a slit, never able to open again. Li Shadong, who was surrounded, stumbled a little, he was silent and made no sound, the only thing that seemed to be getting even thicker was the white mist that could no longer be described as how thick it was. You have also glimpsed that threshold. Truly worthy of being the strongest combat genius of the human race for thousands of years, even after losing the deeded spirit, you are still the no. One battle god of the great Xia. In that case, being able to kill you makes me even more excited. The one who spoke was the berserk beast. Ninth-ranked insect emperors, as the overlord of a party, easily did not join hands with each other, and there were also wars between the insect races, which were not much different from humans. They all had their own interests if they could choose to join forces. The Ninth Order Insect Emperor Void, what it wanted was to reclaim its lost origin from the Bodhi treasure tree. The flesh puppet Maniac Beast, on the other hand, was aiming for Li Shutong's fleshly shell, and once it was able to devour Li Shutong's fleshly shell, it would surely be able to become a transcendent ninth-ranked existence, just like Void. Under such temptation, who could not be moved? Nightmare, you've already been paid in advance, how much longer are you going to hold back? Being named by Void, Nightmare let out another light laugh, only to see him pull out a crystal clear luscious treasure pearl from his bosom. The treasure pearl emitted a pale white halo of light, looking ethereal and misty, illusory yet real. This was the mirage pearl that he had agreed to use and had intentionally gifted the Bodhi treasure tree to Han Zhan, a top quality treasure that worked well with its illusionist talent. With this treasure, it would be able to take its ninth order strength to the next level, and as long as it continued to comprehend, with the help of the Mirage Pearl, it would definitely be able to see the threshold and walk out on its own path to the superorder. Under Nightmare's urging, the Mirage Pearl rose to the top of its head. The dense and misty light enveloped the entire sea, illusory and real, with shape and image. As long as it was illusory in Nightmare's illusion, it was completely transformed into reality within the Mirage Bead's shroud. In an instant, several more terrifying auras appeared in the battlefield, these were all the auras of the Ninth Order Insect Emperors that Nightmare had once seen recorded. The original 1v3 situation had instantly turned into 1v many. The situation was precarious. Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World, Heavenly Palace. Hanjan was like finishing a big movie, still in Blu-ray HD. The ending was magnificent and heartening. The powerhouses of this world had successfully guarded the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World, not only preserving the origin, but also chopping away half of the Void's own origin, decimating its realm by a lot. Voidless left in a sorry state, and the nine rounds of blazing suns dissipated into the sky. Only that soul origin remained to merge into one, transforming into a new round of sun hanging high in the sky. So this is the truth of the world, the world isn't destroyed, the strong disappear, the strong enemies retreat, this is perhaps the best ending. Han Zhan muttered. Up until this point, he hadn't seen the parts related to the curse and the disease. At this time, raising his head to look at the blazing sun high in the sky, Han Zhan narrowed his eyes slightly. Because he was in the heavenly palace, he looked against the light and vaguely saw a miniature version of the heaven and earth grand formation from this round of blazing sun. The formation hasn't disappeared yet? Han Zhan was dismayed, so the formation of the nine suns is still continuously enveloping this world. For what? As Han Zhan muttered to himself, a sudden aura appeared. At the same time, the three Dan formulas he was carrying left his body and floated into the air one by one. The three Dan formulas melted and merged into one under the shroud of the blazing sun, turning into a completely new Dan formulation, the rumored fourth Dan formulation, the Nine Revolutions Dan. There were nine suns in the heavens, and nine revolutions in a wheel. The nine revolutions returned to one, creating and transforming living beings. The ingredients for the nine revolutions pill, the souls of nine ninth-ranked powerhouses, and a copy of the purified world origin. Later on, this is our final gift to you. Looking at this Dan formula, Han Zhang completely understood what death is not a curse, and reincarnation is not the end. The portion of the origin of nothingness that had been chopped away rose into the sky along with the blazing sun, it came from nothingness and was filled with the aura of evil and damnation. With the nine suns as a formation, refining it required a long process, and to shorten that process, they chose the entire world. So the world is sick. Those who lived in this world bore a share of the curse. They kept being born and kept dying. With billions of births and deaths, such a handful of people to purify the void origin. Those mole crickets that nothingness wouldn't even look at eventually succeeded in purifying its origin, such an ironic and dramatic scene was the truth about the curse. Han Zhan knew this truth, and he was deeply shocked. Now that the nine revolutions pill had been finalized, the truth and secrets were revealed, and after refining and taking the pill, he could leave this world and return to reality. 
Whether it was the immortal emperor or the divine farmer, they both had the talent to navigate the heavens and the earth, and were top-notch existences when placed in any world. Their minds, means, and talents far exceeded those of ordinary people by far too much. It's just a pity that the sky is so long, why is it so thin on me? Knowing the truth makes people stifle their wrists, but they, successfully guarded the world they love. Playing against the game, the falling son of Tian Yuan. Little captain, we can't hold them off. Hold on a little longer, reinforcements will be here soon. Reinforcements, where are there any reinforcements? If there really are reinforcements, they should have arrived long ago. A deep blue city protector slowly collapsed with his back against the city wall of deep blue city, sliding a bloody scar down the wall. He was extremely injured, but he was waiting for help for a long time. The spirit contractors in charge of healing were already busy. Being in a large backwater city, they had first experienced the tragedy of a frontline battlefield. Not far away, humans and insects were fighting together, almost a one-sided situation. The tens of thousands of deep blue city protectors were simply no match for the insect race that outnumbered them 10 million to 1. Not to mention, the fighting strength of the spirit contractors who stayed in deep blue city was nowhere near as strong as the frontline combat spirit contractors. Being able to hold on until now was still the result of their indignation and self-training after the incident of Han War. But even so, they were already on the verge of not being able to hold on anymore. Standing on the city wall, from afar, one could see the densely packed insect race, the sea of insects surging over seemed endless. It wasn't just the spirit contractors. Cannon fire pouring from the city walls, heavy firepower covering a large area of the insect race, under the cover of these cannons, the human race was able to hold on for a long time. The few nearby cities that were able to send reinforcements were all in place, but they were only a drop in the bucket. The reinforcement troops from the war zone were nowhere to be found so far, giving people a vague bad feeling in their hearts. Go, retreat back to the city. I'll take the top here, go. The junior captain yanked up the fallen team member and forcefully pulled him to be sent back inside the walls of Deep Blue City. A third-ranked insect race was on him. It was a gigantic wasp beast with strange spikes all over its body, and it vibrated its wings, slicing through the air with a residual shadow, so fast that no one could react at all. From its tail, a poisonous sting shot out. These poisonous thorns easily pierced through that squad leader's body. His face twisted up from the pain and poison, but he still braced himself, wanting to save his brother back. However, the insect race that killed mercilessly, that third-ranked wasp beast had already brewed up its next round of attacks. Despair spread at this moment. Suddenly a clanging, ringing sound scraped past their ears. A zither air blade cut through the sky. The bee beast high in the air was split in half, blood foam scattering and exploding everywhere. You guys quickly leave. A pretty looking woman came from behind them, holding an ancient zither in her hands, and had already stood in front of them as she spoke, only to see her continuously plucking the strings of the zither. Pieces and pieces of third rank bee beasts in the sky, like mowing rice, died of violent blood, this scene looked silly to the two of them. Without waiting for them to react, Two more spiritual energies were injected into their bodies, and the originally dying squad leader and his team members were instantly revived with full blood. Another beautiful woman appeared. It's Han War's two contracted spirits. As a member of the city protectors organization under Ethan's command, the junior captain was aware of Han War, and also knew that Han War possessed two very powerful deeded spirits, having seen their pictures. He pressed down the excitement in his heart and didn't talk more nonsense with them, nor did he return within the deep blue city, instead, the two of them looked at each other and after nodding their heads in thanks, they flew into other battlefields again. If even they retreated, then who else would be able to stand in the way? Relying on those innocent people of deep blue city? Seeing the scene, Xia Yue pursed her lips. She didn't say anything more and didn't try to stop them. Fighting or retreating was everyone's own choice, and others had no right to ask. The casualties are too great, Ling Jin, is there any news from the teacher's side yet? No, Grandpa said he had something to take care of and couldn't be contacted after that, now that Deep Blue City is in an insect plague crisis, why is the assistance from the major battlefield so slow? It's been three hours and it still hasn't arrived? I'm afraid that we alone are no longer enough, right now the battlefield is still only one, two or three orders of insect cannon fodder, it's already such a tough fight, after this once the fourth, fifth, or even sixth and seventh orders of insects appear, how can we withstand it? Luckily, after teacher's special training, we've already managed to break through the fifth rank, otherwise we wouldn't even be able to defend ourselves. Xia Yue still pinched her killing move, but she couldn't cast it at this time. The situation on the battlefield was changing rapidly, and one needed to wait for the most appropriate moment. Where's our battle? Hasn't he come out from inside the Bodhi treasure tree world yet? Li Lingjin glanced at the well-protected sapling in the divine peasant tripod and shook her head. On the surface of the sea, a silhouette slammed down heavily and the seawater in the surrounding 10 million meter area all seemed to boil, instantly evaporating. Soon, new seawater surged in to fill the void. Li Shutong wiped the blood that spilled from the corner of his mouth, and by now there were already dozens of wounds, either light or heavy, on his body. In the distance, the shadows of insects blocked. 
A dozen or so insect emperors emanating a ninth order aura appeared in all directions in the misty fog, and a few of them had already been broken apart and could not be seen in their original form. There were still six or seven channels left that were barely holding on. In addition to them, the Void Berserk Beast and the other four appeared in turn. They knew that Li Shudong was good at melee combat, and being strong in melee combat often meant an unusually astonishing abundance of physical strength, an ability to recover beyond the norm, resistance to being beaten up, and a strong attacking force, among many other traits, and for this reason, they had specially prepared for this will battle. Hey, Li Shudong. After fighting these Mirage Bead simulated bug emperors, how is your stamina consumption? Looking at you, even if you're still swimming with ease, you must have lost quite a bit. This was a nakedly masculine plot. Li Shudong knew of the existence of the undersea teleportation vortex, and if he wanted to completely stop this insect plague, he had to destroy the teleportation vortex. They bet that Li Shudong would not retreat at this time, and if Li Shudong had the same intention of escaping, they could only attack the entire Deep Blue City, including the dozens of cities near Deep Blue City, and sacrifice the blood of these humans. Li Shudong also knew that. He was the only ninth rank human powerhouse sitting in Deep Blue City right now, and if he left at this time, it would be an unimaginable disaster. He could not retreat. With just this group of dirtbags, I can fight dozens more. Li Shudong stood straight again. He took a deep breath, and the spiritual energy around him surged towards him with the naked eye, and almost instantly, the area around his body was wrapped in a white mist that was thick to the extreme, and within the white mist, Li Shutong's calm voice rang out, the seventh much-needed lock, open. Outside the white mist, Nightmare looked at Li Shudong, who had regained his battle power in the mirage bead and even raised it again, and the corner of his mouth twitched. It doesn't matter, attacking Deep Blue is just part of the plan. We are not the only ones playing this game. Now that Tian Yuan has already made a move, its sincerity has arrived. Everywhere else, they should have started to move as well. Amidst the endless darkness, a void voice rang out, in this game of chess, what we really want to eat is the entire mansion. Step by step, we're going to kill. Why haven't the reinforcements arrived yet? Why are there no reinforcements? Where are the people from the war zone? Not a single troop carrier in sight. Are they going to abandon the city? Fighting spirit was wearing thin, panic and fear were spreading. Real deaths and the corpses of countless victims were silently telling of the cruelty of the battlefield, and more and more spirit contractors and deeded spirits were despairingly realizing the fact that it seemed as if humans really couldn't defeat the bug race. Ifan's body was enveloped in golden light as he hammered the insect race in front of him with a single punch and met up with Xia Yue and Li Lingjin on the battlefield. Is there still no news from the protectorate officials? The phone can't be reached. Can't get through? Are you kidding me? There are still communication calls that don't get through. I'd rather believe this is a joke. Ifan looked at the battlefield ahead with a cold expression, which was like a large meat grinder. There were already too many spirit fellowship masters and fellowship spirits who had died in this battle, but he could do nothing about it. It was as it was back then. Captain there are too many bugs outside, we are surrounded. You have to go. Go? I can't leave. What will you do if I leave? What's more, we are the combat spirit contractors of the war zone, if even we retreat, what about Dasha? But over there in the war zone, it's clear that they're using us as bait. Thousands of combat spirit contractors, that's thousands of living human lives. To be discarded as bait just like that. Alright, you cut the crap. Big brothery, our lives are all given to us by you, if we have to die, we'll die together. Little Fan. A woman dressed in red with bright colors appeared behind E Fan, seeing his sad face, she raised her hand and rubbed his brows. Iris, we might really die this time. No, you'll be fine. Have you forgotten? My natural ability is SS ranked immortality. Immortality, ha ha ha, yeah, how could I forget? They must have deliberately put us deep in jail because of this ability. These high and mighty powers that be, they don't even consider the lives of us bottom level combat spirit contractors as lives. These cynical assholes. E Fan's voice gritted his teeth. On what grounds? Why were they the ones who died, and why were those incompetents sitting on the sidelines? He looked down at his hands and clenched his fists in resignation. The scene shifted again. The brothers around him who said that they swore to serve and die together had all been killed by the insects. Red Iris also fell in a pool of blood. E Fan couldn't stop trembling as he held her tightly. Why are you still dead when you clearly have the gift of immortality? Red Iris looked at the disoriented E Fan, she reached out her hand to gently stroke E Fan's face. Fool. Immortality is transferable, with the intensity of this attack, I'm afraid that a single layer of immortality wouldn't be able to survive. From the moment I became your contracted spirit, I knew that such a day would come. Take my share and live well for me, little fan. Red Iris died, and she bestowed her immortality on E Fan. In that tragic battle, only E Fan, the only survivor, was left. It was also from that time that E Fan gave up his honor and his status as a combat spirit contractor to return to Deep Blue City. What are you thinking about? Xiaoyue's voice pulled E Fan back from his thoughts, he shook his head and asked rhetorically, Where's Han Zhan? Hasn't that kid returned from the Bodhi treasure tree yet? He told you about it? Xiaoyue shook her head, Not yet. E Fan sighed and asked again, Where is the Bodhi treasure tree now? 
Here in my place, with the protection of the Shinnong tripod, he is absolutely safe. Li Lingjun replied. The conversation ended. I'm going to dial the communicator one last time, if we can't get in contact, then it proves that we can really only fend for ourselves. Commander Lin, a quick report from the rear. Deep Blue City has suffered a major insect infestation, a large force of the insect race has appeared on the outer banks of Deep Blue City by unknown means, and is now launching a large-scale attack on the city, the situation is precarious. Immediately deploy manpower and notify the other major war zones to go back for reinforcements. Lin Jingxuan's gaze condensed. As a strategist, he tasted what was wrong with this at the first moment. What kind of strategic significance did a major rear city, Deep Blue City, have that warranted the insect race going to such lengths? A silhouette quickly flashed through his mind, the teacher who was now in Deep Blue City, Li Shudong, the number one war god of the Grand Xia, if that's really the case. Without saying a word, Lin Jingxian used his communicator to start contacting his brothers and sisters in the several war zones. As soon as they heard that their teacher's city was in trouble, the heads of the major war zones all acted at once and decided to head to reinforce them. With the speed of Dixia's troop reinforcements nowadays, the first war zone had just won a great victory, the last major battle before the end of the year. There was no pressure on the front line, and the rear was mobilized extremely quickly, only needing to give them half an hour to an hour to form a continuous chain of reinforcements. These insect clans choosing to make their move in the large rear was like landing Tian Yuan on a chessboard. Giving up an absolute advantage and choosing an area that was incomparably chicken-ribbed, there was no chance of winning. It was because of this reason that Lin Jingxian had a vague uneasiness in his heart. The elusive unknown was the most terrifying. Just five minutes after he completed his liaison, his men suddenly ran over with anxious faces and looked at Lin Jingxian, Commander Lin. We, all of our troop carriers are out of control. What did you say? Say it again. Our troop transport ships. All the troop transport ships moored in the harbor. They're all out of commission. Not only that, all of our comms are out of contact. All war zones are out of contact. Troop carriers don't have problems for no reason, they have specialized personnel to maintain them every day and are always on standby. Not to mention the communicators, as communication facilities capable of contacting various places, what did losing contact mean? Lin Jingxian had an unfavorable guess in his heart, and this unfavorable guess caused his face to become more and more ugly. If the one who chose to backstab Grand Xiao was that person, then this time it was truly dangerous. Even for a wise general like Lin Jingxian who was not surprised by changes, a sense of powerlessness welled up in his heart at this thought. The Senate Merchant Company. As one of the five major corporations independent of the forces of two nations that have been at peace for so many years, what exactly do you want to do now? That's right. With the troop carrying ships grounded and the comms out of communication, the only person who could have such a stroke was one of the five major corporations, the tech company responsible for the entire Blue Planet and providing high-end equipment and weapons, the Sunshine Company. As a solid partner and ally of Dasha's cooperation for thousands of years, if the Sunshine Company backstabs Dasha, it will be, if you don't make a move, once you make a move, it will definitely hurt your bones. Like now. Just as Senate Merchant Company? Lin Jingxian looked grave, he turned his head to look at his men, gather everyone who can be contacted, verbal notification if the communicator can't make contact, pass on the order to move immediately now. Commander Lin, we can't make it back to Deep Blue City without a troop carrier. Who says we're going to Deep Blue City, to the third war zone? We're in the light and the enemy is in the dark, they must still have a backhand. The chess player isn't us, the pawn should have the awareness of pawns. The only thing we can do now is to make our pawns stronger and not be broken one by one. Yes. The entire world is an enemy. First war zone. Having just ended his call with Lin Jingxian, Wei Qing looked grave. He recruited his men without saying a word. Notify them, cancel the temporary leave and have everyone rally to support Deep Blue City. A vicious battle in the first battle zone had just ended, and the combat spirit contractors who had survived the meat grinder were on vacation or in deep recuperation. It wasn't unheard of for them to cancel their vacations at short notice like this, and everyone was used to it. After Wei Qing's notice was passed down, most of the combat spirit contractors who had not chosen to return to their hometowns finished assembling as quickly as possible. However, just at this time, news came from the harbor side that the troop transport ships had stopped. Not only that, but the contact with Lin Jingxian had also been interrupted. The first war region that had lost contact was like losing its eyes, now completely blind. Faced with such a situation, Wei Qing snorted coldly, that's why I hate smart people, the hearts and minds of those who play tactics are dirty, even the insects are worse. After a pause, Wei Qing then proceeded to bellow, the troop transport ships are grounded, and the transportation vehicles are not available. Where are those spirit contractors and spirit contractors with the ability to speed up the march? All of them should be more skillful. If we can't make it today, we can make it tomorrow, if we can't make it tomorrow, we can make it the day after tomorrow, sooner or later we can make it to the battlefield. Wei Qing's brain might not be smart enough, but his idea was indeed pragmatic. 
The people under his command had prepared themselves, and after the vast first battle area had finished assembling, they really gave up the troop carriers and chose a good route to drive towards Deep Blue City, just as Wei Qing had said. Three hours after losing communication, the large force of the First War Region led by Wei Qing was already close to a canyon in the territory of Dasha. Suddenly, Wei Qing looked up as if he had discovered something, only to see that the canyon was already densely filled with people. These people weren't like ordinary humans, each of them was two to three meters tall, looking lanky and terrifying. Hideous veins protruded on the surface of their skin, and their fangs were exposed like beasts, huffing and puffing. The head of a person even has 8 or 9 meters tall, can maintain the human form, dark body, like the meteorite iron in the sky with a gloss. On his neck, a special tool was used to carve the word 01. Wei Qing's eyes narrowed slightly. A biochemist? It's a biochemical human warrior from the Everlasting Company? What are you guys stopping here for? Wei Qing, I apologize. I've heard for a long time that you are unrivaled in battle and valiant in killing the enemy, I've always wanted to have a fight with a character like you, but I've just been suffering from a lack of opportunity, and today I'm finally able to get what I want. Speaking of the leader of the biochemical warrior, voice like a flood bell, shocked his psi combat spirit master's eardrums buzzing. The slightly weaker ones were even directly starry-eyed and bleeding from their seven orifices. Just by you? Biochemical warrior no. Zero one, as the top combatant of the Everlasting Company, the body had perfectly fused more than 100 kinds of agents developed by the Everlasting Company, which had various functions, and being able to perfectly fuse them could no longer belong to the category of human beings, even if it was the bug race, there were very few of them who were able to do so. It was not an exaggeration to say that the number zero one biochemical warrior might even have had the strength of the ninth order. It was just that the Everlasting Company had always kept the biochemical warriors up to number 10 very secret, and there was no chance for them to strike. So no one was able to know how their battle strength really was. But today, facing off with the first war region in the canyon, the Eternal Life Corporation had finally bared its fangs. Just as Lin Jingxian had predicted, the bug race had landed on Tian Yuan, and the pieces on the other battlefields had all begun to make their mark, and a great chess game of heaven and earth had unfolded. Wei Qing wore his scarlet gloves in silence. This time, he used a special rope to securely tie himself to the gloves. As belligerent as he was, his eyes were frantic with gravity. All generals of the first war zone, listen to the order. There is a rebellion in the everlasting company, and it will no longer be an alliance from now on. This battle is divided into life and death, Dasha generals. Fight to the death and do not retreat. Kill. As Wei Qing's words fell, the combat spirit contractors in the first battle zone and the biochemical warriors who had been guarding the canyon for a long time, turned into two torrents of different camps and rushed to kill each other. Third battle zone. Yi Chou also received a notification from Lin Jingxian. As the main force of the siege, the third battle zone that Yi Chiu was in was one of the two battle zones closest to the rear cities of Dixia. They completed their assembly at the first opportunity and prepared to support Deep Blue City. But at that moment, nine figures in strange costumes suddenly appeared at the assembly location. These people's costumes didn't look like those worn by Dixia and resembled ascetics. Each person was shrouded under a gray and linen robe, making it impossible to see their faces. However, even Yi Chiu, who rarely dealt with other camps, could tell their identities at a glance. The twelve apostles of the old holy covenant? What are you guys doing here? This is great Xia territory. Not anytime soon. We have collected an unrefusable payment and are responsible for leaving you here forever. What a big deal. The old holy covenant, aside from the bishops, were the twelve apostles, who were strong and powerful. Even to pacify the insect plague, only two to three apostles were needed at most to accomplish it. As a result, now, in order to deal with the third war zone, nine apostles were deployed at once. It was really looking down on itself. Are you guys determined to go against Grand Xia and tear up the alliance treaty? After this battle, Grand Xia will exist in name only, so what's the point of the alliance treaty breaking or not now? The twelve apostles' words caused Yi Chou's heart to thump, but soon, his mind adjusted. How could there be a weak person who was also a student of Li Shadong? In that case, then let's touch base and see if you guys stay here or I do. Facing nine eighth-ranked powerhouses of the same realm as himself, or the long-famous old holy covenant twelve apostles, Yi Chou spared a smile. The first battle area where that Wei Qing kid is from should have encountered great trouble and obstacles as well, tell me. The one responsible for targeting the first war zone and striking out is the Everlasting Company's biochemical core. The old saint's packed visitor answered truthfully. Yi Chio surprisingly nodded with satisfaction. Very well, the biochemical core and the nine apostles of the old saint's pack should be indistinguishable from each other, this time I'm going to have another match with that Wei Qing kid to separate the strengths from the weaknesses, the last time I was in the deep blue city, I still haven't had a good fight yet. As soon as Yi Chou's words fell, the nine apostle figures disappeared. Only to see Yi Chou wave his hand, hold a tiger symbol in his hand, and call out, all combatants in the third war zone, prepare to form up to meet the enemy. Almost instantly, a spirit contractor formation consisting of hundreds of thousands of people took shape, and a dense killing aura enveloped the entire battlefield. 
As the third battle zone with the strongest positional battles, it was responsible for uprooting the battles occupied by those powerful insect races, this was the backbone of the third battle zone, and it was also the backbone of Yichio who dared to compete with nine eighth-ranked powerhouses. The nine transformation dan was completed, and Han War returned to the hundred herbs sacred heart world. Han Zhan was in the heavenly palace and summoned the divine farmer's cauldron. Without him having to do anything, nine miniature suns wrapped in a dark fog slowly descended from the blazing sun opposite the heavenly palace and fell into the tripod. In an instant, the Shinnone tripod exploded with a dazzling light. Within the light, there was a ball of pills that was coalescing and molding. After the curse had been wiped out by the power of reincarnation of hundreds of millions of living beings in the hundred herbs sacred heart world, the void origin had now completed its purification. Without too many twists and turns, a complete Dan pill was refined. There were nine special Tao texts on this pill, each of which was incredibly complex, and they blocked the origin from nine directions. The successfully refined Dan pill slowly floated out of the cauldron and floated in front of Han Zhan. Name, Nine Revolutions Pill. Efficacy, capable of allowing the taker to gain the power of the void origin. The power of the nine turns is capable of healing all injuries. Attention, the power of the void origin is owned by the ninth ranked bug emperor void. If you swallow it, you will be endlessly hunted by the bug emperor void, without end. The effects were simple and crude. The content of the note, however, made Han Zhan's heart thump. That was a ninth order bug emperor, anyone would have to weigh whether it was worth it, but recalling what he had seen and learned before, the origin was a precious thing that even the ninth order had only just touched. Its rarity even exceeded that of the ninth rank. Even if it was only half of the void origin, I'm afraid that the benefits it could bring to Han Zhan would be unimaginable. What's more, humans and the insect race were already immortal, and a hundred barges were competing with each other. Thinking of this, Han Zhan no longer hesitated and swallowed the nine revolutions Dan in one gulp. The nine revolutions Dan melted in his mouth after he swallowed it, and soon nine strands of power swarmed that origin, arriving at the deepest part of Han Zhan's body. The void origin began to devour the other spiritual energies within Han Zhan's body, using all spiritual energies as nutrients to nourish itself as it transformed into a microscopic black hole within Han Zhan's body. At this moment, Han Zhan's spiritual contractor's talent also changed drastically. Aside from those three talents related to the ancient divine soldier that couldn't be shaken, ninth ranked talents like the heavenly serpent's body were actually directly devoured to nothing. An entirely new talent appeared in his eyes. Endless devouring, crippled. Description, the power of origin. Ability, able to devour everything and turn it into its own spiritual energy. When the devouring is completed one can permanently inherit its special talent. Current number of talents that can be inherited, 1, name of talent inherited, heavenly serpent's body. This talent, it's something. Han Zhan tried to raise his hand to catalyze the talent, and a small black hole vortex appeared in the center of his palm. The powerful suction directly engulfed a large piece of the cloud at his feet, and in the next second, a few more strands of spiritual energy appeared within his body. Han Zhan hurriedly terminated the devouring, forcibly holding back the desire to devour everything, otherwise, he would immediately become the first person to fall to his death from the sky in possession of the origin. That would simply be a loss. The moment Han Zhan took the Nine Revolutions Dan, all the Jiang clan members seemed to feel something as they raised their heads to look in the direction of the sun above their heads. They didn't know what had happened, they just vaguely realized that the curse in the underworld seemed to have completely disappeared. They didn't have to suffer the torment and distress of the curse for generations anymore. Patriarch Zhang Hui was filled with tears, and he was the first to kneel down towards the direction facing the sun. Seeing this action of the patriarch, all the Jiang clan members behind him also followed along and knelt down through and through. He succeeded, that outsider he really succeeded. The curse on us is gone, he did it. I knew he would be able to. More and more Jiang clan members knelt down and made the most respectful pilgrimage towards the direction of the sun. They were worshipping Holy Master Shinnone, as well as Holy Master Han Zhan. At this moment, what Shinnone was to Han Zhan, completed a perfect inheritance. This inheritance, not knowing exactly what benefits it could bring, Han Zhan only felt that he and the divine known tripod were becoming more and more attuned to each other, originally it seemed as if there was still a layer of 001 film separating them, but now this layer of film had also been pierced through. Deep blue, the insect battlefield. The frantic killing continued. On the human side, the casualties of the city protector organization had come to a great number. Not only that, deep blue city's reserve of ammunition firepower was about to run out. The city's collapse could be in the next second. On the battlefield today, the cannon fodder insect races had already completed their mission, and patches and patches of 4th order and 5th order insect races were constantly surfacing from under the surface of the sea and surging towards the shore. This scene was desperate. The zither sound chi blades, which were countless times more powerful than during the battle examination, cut through a battlefield. The vertical and horizontal zither sound chi blades continued to collect, and large swaths of insect races were killed, but soon enough, some high-ranked insect races noticed this scene, and they began to lock onto the owner of the zither sound chi blades, Xiaoyue. First, there was a sixth-ranked insect race, then two, three, until finally, 
it was ten sixth-ranked insect races that surrounded them together. As a fifth rank, Xiaoyue was in a precarious position. Just then, a light enveloped her. Li Lingjin's assistants had arrived in time, and with the Divine Nong Ding's reinforcement, along with the fact that Xiaoyue had grown into a qualified battle-compatible spirit, she was barely able to fight one against ten. But what the insect race lacked the most was cannon fodder. If ten sixth-order insect clans were not enough, then twenty, and if twenty was not enough, then thirty. Faced with such a rogue method of fighting, the humans were soon stretched to the limit. It wasn't just Xiaoyue, even Li Lingjin and Yifan suffered the same situation. In the dozens of cities close to Deep Blue City, all of the high-level city protectors were facing the same attack method, being broken down one by one. Once these high-end combatants were dead or wounded, then the only end for Deep Blue City was for the city to break down. Yu Wei, be careful. Li Lingjin's reminder just rang out behind her, and an illusory insect shadow coalesced and molded on the left side behind Xiaoyue. That was a void spirit assassin lurking on the battlefield, a seventh-ranked insect race. A true battlefield assassin. In the face of its assassination, a large number of high-end human combatants had already died under its decapitation, unable to defend against it. This time, its target was locked onto Xiaoyue. Its speed was too fast and it was not perceived at all, as if it had appeared out of nowhere. Xiaoyue heard Li Lingjin's reminder, but it was already too late. She could only watch as the Void Spirit Assassin's bone blade pierced through to her heart. A look of reluctance passed through Xiaoyue's eyes. In a trance, she seemed to see a familiar and unforgettable silhouette. Ah battle, it's a pity that I'm not strong enough. If there is an afterlife, I still want to continue fighting side by side with you. As a person was about to die, the images of a walking lantern began to flash by, and Xiaoyue seemed to see Han Zhan standing right in front of her. She closed her eyes and quietly waited for death to come with her heart pierced through. After another three seconds, suddenly a familiar and exciting voice rang in her ears. I'm sorry, I came back a little late. In the next second, Xiaoyue was wrapped in a warm embrace. Han War, return. The power to save the world. Han Zhan opened his hand. It completely absorbed the seventh-ranked Void Spirit Assassin and returned it to nothingness. Seeing the scene, not only Xiaoyue, but even he himself was shocked. The endless devouring talent was simply too heaven-defying. Han Zhan could clearly feel that his cultivation, which had originally broken through the fifth rank, had surged upwards after devouring the seventh-rank Void Spirit Assassin. It was like taking some kind of tonic pill, instantly recognizable. Ah Zhuan, it's really you. You came out of the Bodhi treasure tree? Great. When Li Lingjin and Xia Yue saw Han Zhan, they couldn't contain the joyful smiles on their faces, but soon the smiles tightened and they became grave again. This isn't the time to catch up. What happened in the outside world during these days of my absence? This is Deep Blue City, how come there are so many insects? Han Zhan was puzzled in his heart, he still didn't know about the insect race launching an attack on the big backwater city, Deep Blue. Soon, Li Lingjin and Xia Yue quickly told Han Zhan about the reality of the situation, and Han Zhan's expression changed slightly after hearing it. Sixth and seventh order bugs have started to appear on the battlefield now, we're about to be unable to hold on. Ah Zhan, what should we do after that? It's not that pessimistic, I've dealt with the insect race, low ranked insect race can be mass produced as cannon fodder, billions of numbers are not surprising, but it's not that easy for a high ranking insect race to be born. And haven't you guys noticed? On the entire battlefield, why are there only a few sporadic 6th order 7th order, if my expectation is not wrong, this should be teacher's handiwork. Han Zhan's words made both Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, who were originally in a fickle mood, eat a tranquilizing pill, and his appearance also made the entire battlefield seem like it had a backbone. Without further ado, Han Zhan released endless devouring with both hands. Only two one-person tall black hole vortexes appeared on his left and right sides. All the bug races that approached flew towards the black holes uncontrollably. This hand Han Zhan revealed caused the pressure of the entire battlefield to plummet. Once upon a time, he was just a small character who could only 1v1 with low-ranked bug races, but under the rapid growth in the past few months, he was already able to eliminate thousands of low-ranked bug cannon fodder at every turn, and was still unafraid of high-ranked bug races as well. He had completely grown up. It's Han Zhan. He's finally made a move. Great, with him here, we still have hope of defeating the insect race. Quickly see what's going on with those two black whirlpools around him? It's too terrifying. Under the swallowing of the vortexes, all of the insect race around him have disappeared. What kind of ability is this? Shouting sounds of astonishment continued to ring out. The city protectors who saw Han Zhan strike were all inspired like chicken blood. A silhouette began to rampage. Wherever he went, all the insect races disappeared as if they had been sucked clean by a vacuum cleaner. Such an outrageous purging speed, not to mention the 5th rank, even a senior awakened person with 7th and 8th rank strength might not be able to achieve it. Han Zhan's appearance saved the day, instantly reversing the situation, and many people cheered from the bottom of their hearts. The humans, who had originally been suppressed, also formally blew the horn of the counterattack under Han Zhan's leadership. Han War killed the bug tide alone and rushed against it to the edge of the bund. 
The huge black hole vortexes on his left and right sides were like two mouths that could never get full, and the endless insects were all sucked into them, leaving the entire bund empty by at least one half in an instant. Li Shutong, who had opened the seventh much-needed lock, was still continuing to fight bitterly. Only, from time to time, he would swing his fist below the surface of the sea, which was more or less inexplicable in the midst of a melee. Li Shutong, heroes aren't this good, if you throw away those so-called false benevolence and forget the moral bottom line, then even if we double the number of bug emperors, we can't do anything about you. The injuries on your body are mostly from the sneak attack when you struck out against those high-level bug races coming over from the teleportation vortex, is it really worth it to do so? Nightmare's voice rang in Li Shutong's ears. Of course it wasn't that kind, and saying all this was just to shake Li Shutong's will to fight. But it was destined to be disappointed, Li Shutong's will was tougher than steel, and would not be shaken by its words. Right at this moment, the void that had been in charge of suppressing the formation suddenly felt something in his heart. Amidst the endless darkness, a gaze suddenly fell towards the distant deep blue city. It's appeared. Sure enough, it has appeared. How many years, how many years of waiting, just for today, finally let me wait. The void's tone carried unrivaled excitement. It was because it sensed the aura that belonged to its own origin. That origin that had been half severed by the powerhouses of a certain world when it devoured that world countless years ago, had finally appeared in its own perception again. By retrieving this part of the origin, it would be able to complete its transcendence, surpassing the ninth rank and becoming a truly supreme existence, how could it not be excited? Li Shutong also noticed Void's reaction. He immediately let out a cold snort and shook out both fists, shattering the four insect emperors that dared to get close. As the insect emperors returned to nothingness, all the insect emperors' breath within the mirage pearl finally ran out and was not attacked. With the same vertical step, Li Shu crossed over to the void and stopped it, which was foolishly trying to move. With me here, there's no way you can get close to the coast. What responded to it was a pair of iron fists. In the state of the seventh urgent lock release, Li Shu Tong's strength had already broken through the threshold of the ninth order by half a step, and he was completely able to press against these bug emperors. The endless darkness represented by the nothingness was shattered and quickly coalesced in another place. But no matter what, no matter how it moved, it could not get rid of Li Shutong's pair of iron fists. Li Shutong, do you really think you're going to win? Void pale voice resounded in the endless darkness, then you have looked down on our determination too much. Scarlet Queen, what's the time to wait if you don't make a move now? The time has come to let that concubine of yours do it. As he spoke, a scarlet figure surfaced from the bottom of the sea. Upon seeing her appearance, Li Shutong had a bad feeling in his heart. You're the already dead White Frost? White Frost is dead, now, please call me Scarlet Queen. As soon as the Scarlet Queen's words left her mouth, she stretched out her finger and just casually snapped her fingers. Yi Fan, who was far away on the beach, suddenly appeared behind Han Zhan. Still getting it done? Easily, give me another half an hour, I can clear the beach of these insect cannon fodder. Han Zhan's words hadn't quite finished. He suddenly felt a cracking sound coming from behind him. The sharp sound made the cold hairs on his back stand up straight, but the distance between the two was just too close, plus under the fact that he wasn't in the least bit prepared, Ifan still stabbed his dagger deeply on Han Zhan's shoulder blade. Why? Han Zhan turned his head incredulously to look behind him. Ifan was standing right there, no expression visible on his face. Answer me, why? I had advised you. But at that time, it was your own choice to stay. As Ifan spoke, he jerked his body backward, and a scarlet silhouette appeared beside him, holding him in place. At the same time, an unimaginably evil aura appeared behind Han Zhan with the precise positioning of that dagger. Ninth-ranked insect emperor, void. Grass ashes, snake threads, ambush threads of a thousand miles. This was a conspiracy without compromise. And what Han Zhan didn't know was just how long had this conspiracy been brewing? It might have begun the moment he awakened his spirit contractor talent. This was a very terrifying thing. The longer the premeditation, the lower the likelihood of it being reversed if they struck at this time. This was because they were secure in their victory. Han Zhan looked at Ifan on the opposite side in White Frost, who had inexplicably resurrected over, and a scene from the past flashed through his mind. He couldn't have imagined in any way that these two people would join forces with the insect race? Why? Han Zhan still asked. Faced with such persistent questioning, Ifan gave his answer, because I want to resurrect her. Because Dashia is not worth my life. What I want to do is to completely destroy this Dashia that has long been rotten. I want revenge. Now, everything was explained. How did the worm of erosion enter deep blue? Why did Ifan change from his usual tiredness after that and take the initiative to petition for the position of captain of the city protector organization? By what means did the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare silently sneak into Deep Blue City to complete his trial against Li Shutong, and then deliver the Bodhi treasure tree as a matter of course? Why did Ifan take the initiative to propose a sea burial, deliberately using it to cover up the purpose of building an undersea teleportation vortex? All of this, this person in front of him, was the initiator. So your ability is not immortality, but should be a lie. Immortality is the gift of your contracted spirit, the Red Iris. Han Zhan finally understood, 
but even if he knew this, it was already too late. The Void appeared in completely controlled Han Zhan, even though he possessed half of the Void Origin, and as the true owner of the Void Origin, the Void's manipulation of it was even more refined. Under its extraction, the Soon, the Void Origin was completely extracted from Han Zhan's body and then incorporated into Void's own body. When this was all done, Li Shudong appeared on the sea. All he could hear was Void's unrestrained laughter ringing out. Ha 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 ha, the origin is united, from now on beyond the ninth stage, who else is my opponent? Li Shudong. Even if it's you, so what? Void surged with a terrifying strength that surpassed the ninth rank, and at this moment, he was already completely unafraid of Li Shudong. Still blasting with a fist, without seeing Voidless make any movements, the fist's strength and power all disappeared into thin air. In Void's laughter, the surrounding darkness began to spread, eroding half of the sky in an instant. The familiar scene in front of him reminded Han Zhan of the image he had seen in the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart World, the image of annihilation. The nothingness was going to swallow up the entire blue star. He was powerless in the face of this level of power. No, it wasn't right. Endless years ago, hadn't the Divine Farmer Sacred Master and the Immortal Emperor expected this image today? How could they ensure that their chosen later successor, returning to reality after obtaining the origin of nothingness, would not be hunted down and devoured by nothingness? It was impossible not to predict this situation. What about the backhanders they left behind? Han Zhan's mind recalled the last words left for him by the Divine Farmer Saint Master again. Backhand? What was a backhand? Just then, Han Zhan only felt a rolling sensation in his chest. The Nine Red Suns reappeared. That number one formation in the heavens and the earth that had made Void scornful actually reappeared in front of its eyes. Not only that, they had directly disappeared into Voidless, locking his origin firmly in place. Nothing this originally rising aura came to an abrupt halt at this moment. It had completed its fusion, but it had not completed its evolutionary transcendence, and now Voidless had already surpassed the ninth rank, but had not completely surpassed it, and was in the middle of a process. It's you again? Spoiling my good deed three times, with this broken formation of yours, you still want to trap me. Void's indignant voice rang out. It didn't talk big, with its current fused origin, it was only a matter of time before it broke through the formation of the Nine Suns. But right now, what the human side needed most was time. Li Shudong reacted instantly, and he immediately used his full strength to grab and attack Void. On the other side, the Scarlet Queen and Ifan, who saw the scene, had their gazes fall on Han Zhan at the side. No one can intervene in the battlefield between Li Shudong and Void anymore, but as his student, by killing you, you will definitely be able to influence Li Shutong's will to fight. As she spoke the Scarlet Queen had already attacked towards Han Zhan. She was originally of the 8th rank, but after sacrificing the lives of hundreds of millions of bugs and humans, Scarlet Slaying was nourished by feedback and directly managed to advance to the 9th rank. This was also her reward for agreeing to strike. Facing a 9th ranked bug emperor, alongside a human traitor who specialized in using the power of lies, Han Zhan was slapped out of the room in the next second. This palm, however, did not have the expected effect of accomplishing a one-hit kill. The crisp sound of a sword, the burst of fire, illuminated the Scarlet Queen's disbelieving eyes. In the distance, a never-before-seen peerless beauty protected Han Zhan's body. She held her sword, her phoenix eyes slightly raised as she looked across the room in a domineering manner, the aura on her body not inferior to the Scarlet Queen's. The female martial god of the city of extreme evil. The queen of extreme evil, Gong Yang Jin. The gift of the nine revolutions Dan did not only just allow Han Zhan to gain the gift of endless devouring, but it also allowed him and all the contracted deeded spirits he had contracted to be completely restored, which was a gift from Shen Nong. This rule also applied to the 8th ranked contracted spirit, Gong Yang Jin, who had been injured by the sword intent of the Xian Yuan sword and had fallen into a deep sleep. Only, after successfully fusing the Xian Yuan sword's soul, Gong Yang Jin also managed to break through into the 9th rank. With this, the battle power of the humans and the insect race was once again balanced. You really did give us a lot of surprises, but fortunately, we are equally prepared. This surefire battle will show you what it means to be, the world's enemy. The berserkers and nightmares that had arrived from the sea looked at the scorching battlefield, and their gazes were grim as they said. In the fourth battle zone, the person in charge, Shinjichi, completed his assembly and prepared to rush to aid Deep Blue City. Suddenly, a large number of Lee Spirit contractors in his team had turned against him and activated a relic while the large team of the fourth war zone was completing their assembly. The special rules of the relic caused this fourth war region team to completely disappear into the relic. Shinjichi looked incredulously at these brothers under his hand who had been born and died with him, what are you doing? You guys want to betray? Commander Shin, we have never betrayed anyone, we are only loyal to the Li family, that's all. Hearing these words, Shinjichi understood. The Li family they were talking about was the one that didn't include the great Xia war god, Li Shadong. Unexpectedly, even the internal de Xia had chosen to backstab at this critical point. The 5th, 6th, and 7th war zones were all healing direction spirit contractors, who couldn't change much of the battle situation and couldn't arrive at the battlefield in the first place due to the stoppage of the troop transport ships. 
Now the only thing left that could change the battle situation was the most mysterious 8th warzone, on a nameless island shrouded in fog. All the battle spirit masters of the 8th battle area are waiting for the command of the leader nothing. Behind nothing, a special portal was built and erected, inside the door was dense white light, the target led to the deep blue. Just at the moment he was about to enter, a thunderbolt suddenly struck, shattering the portal to pieces. I have long heard that there is that most mysterious 8th war zone under the command of Li Shudong of Dasha, and we have been trying to investigate, but we have not been able to find any traces of it. However, a few months ago, you made a strike in Deep Blue City in order to save that young man called Hanwar, and it was that strike that allowed us to lock onto your location. As they spoke, a group of people appeared on the nameless island. As a senior expert in espionage, none called out their identities. The Empire's Slaughterers, the Iron Blood Society Alliance. Misery. A certain canyon near the territory of Grand Xia. At this point, the original shape of the canyon was completely gone, instead, it had turned into a sunken depression, and countless gullies. Wei Cheng stood in the middle of it, his head hanging low. Only his left arm was still hanging there, and the place where his right arm had originally been was already empty. Despite this, he exuded a rich blood aura, looking like an awakened blood beast that made people look away. Opposite him was a giant who had completely collapsed and lost his life, and on his neck the word zero one had begun to blur. Wei Qing had one, but miserably. He, who had lost his right hand, raised his head at this moment and looked in the direction of Dixia's deep blue city. He raised his footsteps, one bloody step at a time, wanting to continue leading his fellow surviving first battle area soldiers to support. Just then, a note suddenly floated out from his arms. There were only two words written on the note. Go north. Wei Qing looked at it in silence for a long time, and as he crushed the note, he roared without looking back in an incomparably bad mood, those who were still alive, follow me northward. The third battlefield station. It was as if it had suffered countless natural disasters and was full of holes. Yi Chiu sat on the ground with his head cloaked, and in front of him was a blood-stained martial seal. His expression was stagnant, and suddenly he tilted his head back and laughed crazily, then he lowered his head and fell into tears, and finally, he simply hugged the seal of handsomeness and slumped down on the ground, hissing at the ground. On the opposite side, only five of the nine apostles of the old holy covenant remained, and the bodies of the other four were scattered all over the battle zone. This battle was extremely tragic, but in the end, they were the ones who won. This person has gone mad, the remaining great summer spirit contractor is not enough to worry about. I didn't expect to have four people spelled to death by him, the old holy pack suffered heavy losses this time. But with the payoff of that item, the loss is still within the acceptable range. Let's kill all these Dasha people to eliminate future troubles. Just as they were about to make their move, a violent fluctuation suddenly came from the sky. The special fluctuation in space caused them to raise their heads in unison as a man appeared from the air. He glanced at the crying Ichio and his gaze became unprecedentedly cold. Losses are acceptable? Very well, then let you all lose until it's unacceptable. Lin Jingxian murmured an apology in his heart. He had already arrived as fast as he could, but he was still a step too late. Yi Chiu had gone mad. What Lin Jingxian wanted to do now was to avenge him. I know a little bit about arranging troops and formations. Let me learn from the old Holy Testament Apostles Masterstroke. After saying that, Lin Jingxian beckoned, and the seal of awesome in Yi Chiu's hand flew out of his hand and landed in his hand. The combat spirit fellowship masters that had arrived from the second battle zone followed along, appearing in various positions in the battle zone like a starburst. Right at this moment, a note flew out of Lin Jingxuan's arms. After taking revenge, go north. Lin Jingxian crushed the note with inexplicable sadness and waved his big hand out. This revenge, it will not end. The fourth war zone, within the ruins. As an unexplored region on the blue planet, every relic had its own special rules, and once one entered a relic, it represented complete isolation from the outside world. Shinjichi led his men to fight with the Li clan rebels, exchanging casualties. However, just as the battle was about to reach a white-hot stage, many more people within the Li clan's rebel army suddenly turned against them and joined them in killing the rest of the rebels. Compared to the other war zones, Shinjichi's fourth war zone was instead the most well-preserved with the fewest casualties. In the face of Shinjichi's disbelief, one person came out from the crowd of people who had fallen to the side, and he was also a Li family member. Wood shows in the forest wind will destroy it. A hundred years ago, his old man understood this truth and from that time onwards, he and the two brothers of the family had officially broke off explicitly. As the battles between the Grand Xia and the foreign races tended to become more and more victorious, over the years, there were more and more people from all the major powers secretly contacting the Li family, and there were more and more traitors within the Li family who had been bribed. The foreign races are not the only enemies, for those who are ambitious, there are no eternal enemies. Dasha is not the Li family's Dasha, it's just that his old man stood up a hundred years ago and persevered until today, that's all. His old man has long since known that the great power is irreversible. This feeling was especially obvious after that genius Han War came out of nowhere. The drama of sibling rivalry, although it can trick out those dark filth, but the filth in the future, we have to rely on ourselves to eradicate it. He pulled out a note and handed it to Shinjichi. 
On top of the note was the familiar handwriting of his teacher, Li Shudong. Lead the fourth war region, preserve your strength, pass through this relic, and teleport north. Nameless isolated island. Corpses strewn across the land. Each of the selected battle spirit contractors of the eighth region, their faces were covered by a layer of blurred light, even after death, it was impossible for people to see his true face clearly. This was a kind of determination and protection for his family members and relatives. At the forefront, the head of the 8th sector, Nun, was stepping on the head of the assailant who had spoken so loudly before. The 8th region had suffered great losses, but the elite force sent by the empire had been completely annihilated, so compared to them, such losses were acceptable. Chieftain, do we still need to continue building the portal? Nun a foot stomped on the head under his foot and he shook his head as he listened to his men's words. The portal to Deep Blue City doesn't need to continue to be built, enable another portal. We'll start now and head north. Deep Blue City Battlefield. Li Shudong and Void exchanged countless hands in midair, pulling back into position. Gong Yang Jin and the Scarlet Queen exchanged blows with each other, and neither was able to help the other. In terms of paper strength, the insect race's side still had Nightmare and Berserker Beast watching over them, making them appear superior. You finished playing all your chess, haven't you? This was the first time Li Shudong had taken the initiative to speak from the start of the engagement until now, the Senate Company, the Everlasting Life Company, the Old Holy Pact, the Empire, and those greedy and corrupt old men within the Great Xia. This is all of your bottom cards. You guessed all of them? In the vortex of endless darkness, the voice of nothingness resounded as it asked with some surprise. No, there is no need to guess. When you all struck out at me, I assumed from the beginning that everyone was my enemy. Li Shutong's words stunned everyone, how they had never imagined that Li Shutong had held such thoughts from the very beginning. What kind of character was this to be able to think so profoundly, and what kind of vigor was it that made him dare to think this way? This was simply making an enemy of all the forces of the entire Blue Star, a true enemy of the world. You know, but you didn't do anything. Saying this now, don't you think it's too late? You're saying I didn't do anything? Or do you think that with all the students I've taught, the eight war zones that were built from a hundred years of Dixia's foundation would be no match for your temporary alliances of hooking up with the dirt? Li Shudong blandly said. They won't do their best, and that's the biggest break. If Eternal Life sends out all the biochemical warriors in the top ten of the number. If the senator technology doesn't just cut off the liaison and troop carriers, but chooses to encircle the second war zone. If all twelve apostles of the old covenant had been deployed. If the empire is not so arrogant and sends its main knights to surround the eighth war zone. Then I, Li Shudong, wouldn't be standing here, directly choosing to bow my head. But it was impossible. Just as Li Shudong had said, these temporary allies, no matter what purpose or benefit they were working for, it was impossible for them to truly be united in their cooperation with the insect race, and they would inevitably be wary of each other. Costs and benefits would always be the first thing they would weigh. This was why Li Shudong had the courage to dare to make an enemy of the world. Hey, even if what you're saying is true, then have you thought about how you're going to solve me? As he spoke, the figure of nothingness expanded once again. This time it was no longer half of the sky, but all of the sky was shrouded and swallowed by darkness. It broke through the Nine Sun Seal and successfully fused the Void Origin. Transcending the Ninth Order. Everyone, including all the insect races, subconsciously wanted to kneel down and worship. In the face of such a terrifying pressure, it was as if they had seen a true god. And now, the gods were going to kill them all. More. The Eighth Urgent Lock, open. In front of absolute strength, all schemes became pale and powerless. Even though the eight war zones under Li Shutong's command were able to defeat those allied ones one by one. But the Void's true purpose had already been achieved, as long as it surpassed the Ninth Order, then nothing mattered anymore. It would personally overthrow all humans, all living beings on the Blue Planet, destroying the entire Blue Planet. The Void had already transformed into endless darkness, and now the darkness was indiscriminately devouring everything it could. At this time, Li Shudong suddenly looked at Han Zhuan behind him. Old Nine, it's your turn. Li Shutong's words caused everyone to freeze for a moment. They didn't feel that Han Zhan could save the day in this situation. How could Han Zhan do something that even Li Shudong couldn't do? The location of the Eighth Urgent Lock, tell me, teacher you? Han Zhan lifted his head violently and looked at his teacher as if he was recognizing him for the first time. He had always thought that Li Shudong had accepted him as a student because of his talent or some other reasons, but Han Zhan had never thought about one thing, Li Shudong knew about his identity as a traveler. This was something that had never occurred to Han. This feeling intensified when Li Shudong asked him about the location of the 8th Urgent Lock. That's right, I know all about it. As if Li Shudong could tell what was on Han War's mind, he didn't deny it and nodded his head in affirmation, over the millennia, Grand Xia has explored tens of thousands of relics, and amongst these relics, there have been myths and historical records about something that didn't belong to the Blue Star Civilization. I have seen in them, Fushi Qin, Shen Nong Ding, Regulus Sword. The Ten Divine Soldiers of the Ancient World, if I don't remember wrongly, that should be how they are called. Li Shutong's words made Han Zhan completely understand one thing. That was, this situation today was something that his own teacher, Li Shudong, had foreseen from the very beginning. 
he had never been passive into the situation, but had taken the initiative to enter it himself. On the surface, it was the bug race that had joined forces with the other allies to scheme against Li Shudong. In reality, it was Li Shudong who had them all dead to rights. For some reason, what Li Shudong once said to himself came to Han Zhan's mind, the roots of Dashia have completely rotted away, and removing them won't cure them, so we need a fire to give it a new lease on life. Once upon a time, Han Zhan had always thought that Li Shudong was expecting himself to be that fire. He had never imagined that there would be a day when Li Shudong would use his body as bait to become the flame that would ignite all the decay in this world. Han Zhan opened his mouth, it wasn't that he didn't want to tell Li Shudong the location of the Eighth Urgent Lock, but in his memories, if once the Eighth Urgent Lock was opened, it would completely consume his own life. If Li Shudong had planned all of this from the start, then he must have planned his own death as well. This was something Han Zhan could not accept. Lao Jiu, you said that you wanted to become a hero and guard those you wanted to guard. Becoming a hero comes with a price, and sometimes, that price can be your own life. Face it openly and accept the reality, this is where I belong. Li Shudong said in a calm tone. Han Zhang raised his head to look at the sky, which at this point was already engulfed by endless darkness, and was still devouring more places as far as the eye could see. It wouldn't take long for the nothingness to swallow everything. Han Zhan knew that his teacher was right. Since he had decided to use his life as a fire to burn out the darkness, let this fire burn a little brighter. Burn so that those people would know pain. Burn it so that they can hardly forget it, so that it penetrates deep into their bones. As Han Zhan thought of this, he no longer hesitated and raised his hand to point at the location of Li Shutong's heart. There, the location of the eighth urgent lock is there. After hearing Han Zhan's words, a pleased smile appeared on Li Shutong's face. He looked at Han Zhan with a gentle gaze, like an elder looking at his juniors, your other senior brothers have been studying behind me for a long time, the only thing that I feel guilty about is you, so I've been staying in Deep Blue City for the past few months, and I've enjoyed these days with you. From the moment we learned that you had awakened your spirit fellowship master talent, we have all been in a game. This game was the optimal solution I could think of, and I'm sorry for those who sacrificed their lives as a chess player. Didn't you tell me that you wanted to be the chess player next time? Next, it's all yours. Your senior brothers, and those Dasha people who survived, I've already made the arrangements, and they'll be waiting for you in the north. As Li Shudong finished his last sentence, he smiled at Han Zhan and nodded. Then, the endless white mist behind him, as if it had found some point of catharsis, began to frantically drill into the location of Li Shutong's heart from all directions. 100 years of accumulation, 100 years between life and death. At this moment, it helped Li Shudong finally open the last of the eight urgent fists. In the next instant, all the white mist disappeared. The aura on Li Shutong's body steeply and dramatically climbed until it climbed to the same level as nothingness. On his body, dense cracks had begun to appear. Li Shudong, who had compared himself to a god with a mortal body, was unable to carry the power of a god, and his physical body was already showing signs of collapsing. But he was already unconcerned and righteous, swinging his fist with extreme recklessness. This fist, impacting in the endless darkness of the sky, directly blasted an immense hole in the sky. Void's unbelievable voice came out from within, how is this possible? How is this possible? What makes you able to transcend the ninth rank? How can you be compared to a god when you're just an ant human? What responded to him was Li Shutong's second punch. This punch not only shattered the darkness of the sky, but also exposed the origin that was originally fused with nothingness to the crowd. With the third punch, the origin of nothingness was knocked down by Li Shudong, clutched into his hand, and forced into Han Zhan's body. In the fourth punch, the void panicked and tried to escape, and was completely shattered in its consciousness by Li Shutong's backhanded fist. It was also in the transcendent realm, but it couldn't even receive four punches from Li Shudong. In the fifth punch, Li Shudong swung at the berserkers and the nightmare, and they were unable to resist at all, and all of them were directly dispersed and killed on the spot. In the sixth punch, Li Shudong swung in the direction of the Scarlet Queen and Yifan, but it only shattered the two insect clans that had been replaced by lies. Seeing that things were going badly, Yifan had already replaced his real body with a lie, and withdrew from the battlefield with the Scarlet Queen. Seventh fist, fist power across 10,000 miles of sea, blasted the teleportation vortex located in the deep sea, cut off the plot of the insect race to continue teleportation. With the eighth punch, the entire deep blue was swept away by this punch, returning a clear and peaceful heaven and earth. After wielding these eight punches, Li Shudong had already reached the end of his life. He had burned out his entire life, carrying the power of a transcendent mortal. After the eight punches, Li Shudong completely lost his breath. Han Zhan lifted his head. He saw Li Shudong standing there silently, standing with his arms folded, looking away to the north. In the next second, he completely dissipated between heaven and earth. The real yellow bird. Li Shudong, dead. The great Xia's number one god of war, dissipated into the heavens and earth. Li Lingjin covered her mouth to prevent herself from crying out, and Xia Yue hugged her, gently patting her back. Han Zhan's eyes were tightly closed, and the void origin that had been forced into his body by Li Shudong, complete with its origin rampaging across the board, had the momentum to break through the confinement and rejoin heaven and earth. 
He couldn't even mourn Li Shutong's death before he had to start concentrating fully on suppressing the Void Origin. He was already the chess executor. There were still surviving spirit contractors around, and as they saw the scene of Li Shutong and the insect race dying together, various reactions appeared on their faces. Someone whimpered softly, it was a young man who had half of his leg bitten off by the insect race. The loss of his leg hadn't even managed to make him shed half a tear, but at this moment he was already crying into tears. Someone else knelt on the ground and pounded the ground with both hands, a rather old city protector. He used to be a combat spirit contractor, and was on the same battlefield as Li Shutong, but later, because of his age, he was discharged from the army to work as a city protector in Deep Blue City. Some people looked at the place where Li Shutong had disappeared in a daze, expecting that he had never left. In such a depressing and low atmosphere, a discordant light laughter suddenly rang out. The sound was first very small, then gradually increased, so loud that everyone turned their heads to look in the direction of the laughter. That was a middle-aged man wearing only a plaid shirt and tan shorts, he stepped on a pair of beach slippers, and his whole person looked with a strong West Coast style. At this moment, he was walking from a distance, the corners of his mouth unable to suppress a giggle. Someone stared at him angrily and swung his fist to punch him, and before his fist landed on the other person, he himself turned into a cloud of blood mist and exploded. This scene shocked everyone. Tisk, seeing me, you foolish populace don't even kneel down? Dasha, from now on it will all be history, this is already my empire's territory. Imperial Knights, Head, Louis the Seventeenth. His strength and influence in the empire was the same as Li Shutong's image in the hearts of the people of Dasha. His appearance also represented the true entrance of those yellow birds behind this whole thing, to ingest the fruits of victory. Louis the Seventeenth had just taken two steps forward. A violent roar had already resounded from 10,000 miles above his head. A giant war fortress, comparable to a small mountain, appeared on the coast. Louis the Seventeenth, your empire's pay is not here, don't break the rules. Oh, we imperial knights enjoy freedom, no one can bind us with rules. All that I see with my gaze is imperial. The lazy tone carried unquestionable and extremely powerful confidence. As soon as Louis XVII's words fell, another silhouette appeared on the left side of his body. It was an ordinary little boy. Played inch head, casual sportswear, hands in his pockets, expressionless face looking at the other two sides. No one knew when he appeared. Only on his neck, the words zero zero were engraved. Eternal Life Corporation, experiment no. One. No one knew just how much medicine had been injected into the Eternal Life Corporation's experiment no. One, who was himself an SSS class special talent possessor, but had been made into a biochemical warrior by the Eternal Life Corporation. Although he still maintained the appearance of an eight or nine year old boy, no one present dared to ignore him. Not even Louis the Seventeenth could. Well, as Imperial Knights, we also have the freedom not to go out of our way to establish a strong enemy. He spread his hands and paused. According to our pre-negotiated agreement, the territory of Dasha, the Empire occupies half, and the Senate Company occupies half. The Everlasting Company takes away the Shinnong Tripod, and the Old Covenant takes away Han War and the other deeded spirits. A mechanical, electronically synthesized voice came out from the Fortress of Doom. But now, there is a change in plan. According to the news coming from the various war zones, Li Shudong has left a backhand, and although the strength of Dasha has been drastically reduced, the survivors have all moved north to occupy the heavenly dangers. Only two-thirds of the territory that can actually be divided by Dasha remains. The twelve apostles of the Old Covenant died eight deaths in this operation, leaving only one person seriously injured and escaping, and their vitality has been greatly wounded. The Pope didn't choose this time to appear, and I think he's also afraid of being attacked by our group. To summarize, so the Pope's original loot will be split equally between us, the Senate Corporation, and the Empire. Pa pa pa. Louis the Seventeenth was the first to applaud. A very reasonable distribution, Chamber Leader, your distribution is very liberal. The silent biochemical warrior 00, successively sized up the two opposite sides, and after silently assessing the possibility of fighting one against two in his mind, he chose to remain silent. It didn't matter, anyway, he only came this time for the Shinnong tripod. Head Louis the Seventeenth. Fushi Chin and Regulus Sword, you can take them away. This spirit contractor himself, we, the Senate Company, will take it. The electronic voice added. Louis XVII's eyes narrowed slightly, and he still maintained the smile on his face. The head of the Chamber of Commerce is indeed greedy, it wouldn't be for your daughter, would it? I heard that she awakened E. On the opposite side of the Fortress of Doom, a dense and many pitch black holes suddenly appeared, aimed at the front. Louis the Seventeenth stopped talking. They just talk like this without anyone else, as if they were talking about a very ordinary thing. Obviously Li Shutong had just died, obviously Dasha had killed and injured countless people, obviously everyone was human. They, by what right? Dong Yang Jin protected Li Lingjin and Xia Yue behind her. As the same Qi spirit, although they were technically only meeting for the first time, but now that Han Zhan hadn't woken up and was surrounded by strong enemies, she had to stand out. With just you alone, are you sure you can protect them? Louis the Seventeenth finally took another step forward, his tone relaxed and his eyes flirty. What a beauty, why did you choose to follow him? 
Come with me, I'm the right match for you, you should belong to the strong. The little boy in Fortress of Doom followed suit and stepped forward, surrounding the four of them in Han War. The way they looked at themselves was like they were looking at trophies. With Li Shudong dead and the Great Xia's first god of war gone, who else could shelter them? It hadn't occurred to me that the crisis would come so quickly. In the nick of time, a hoarse voice rang out, accompanied by a black hole suddenly exploding in their eyes, wrapping the three women in an instant. So it was you guys, who forced the teacher to die. In the endless darkness, Han Zhan's cold voice rang out. When the bigwigs from several parties saw the scene, their hearts trembled in fear for a moment. The scene of Void transcending the ninth rank just now was still fresh in their minds, and they subconsciously wanted to back away to avoid being sucked in themselves. Don't be fooled by him. In the Fortress of Doom, a cold electronic synthesized voice reminded, this black hole of his, the psychic energy threshold is not right. Several people were all human, and they instantly heard the strings and stopped their retreating steps. At this time, Han Zhan, who had regained his consciousness, also had his character panel appear in front of him. Character, Han Zhan, 5th Order, 87%. Spirit Contract Talents, Divine Origin, 3 tenths, Void Origin. Abilities, Divine Illumination, Observe Me, Cosmos of Heavenly Tao, Endless Devouring. Add more. Jade Shatters. They had guessed correctly. Although Han Zhan had completely mastered the origin of nothingness and was able to replicate the black hole and devouring abilities. However, he was ultimately limited by his realm and the power he could exert was incomparable. The three people present all had the strength of the ninth rank, and even though they were not as good as Li Shudong, they were still of the ninth rank. The void black hole has the ability to tear through space, be careful of them using this opportunity to escape. In the Fortress of Doom, the synthesized electronic voice reminded once again. As soon as his words fell, dozens of square-sized special instruments shot out from his body. These special together, one by one, pierced into the soil or floated in the air, completely covering and enveloping this area. This is a space stabilizer. The synthesized electronic voice explained. The reason why he carried this with him was to deal with Void's special innate ability, and secondly, because Lin Jing Xian, the commander of the second war zone, was similarly gifted in space. In order to prevent accidents, he had specially prepared a space stabilizer to keep this space stable. After doing so, sure enough, the torn space around Han Zhan once again leveled out once again, and although there were still wrinkles, it was no longer able to be destroyed and torn apart. You can't escape, Han Zhua. You are a smart person and the only best choice for you in the current situation is to leave with me and return to the Senate company together. This time, it was no longer a synthesized electronic voice that rang out from the Fortress of Doom, but the voice of a middle-aged man. With the friendship between the merchants and the Li family, we won't make things difficult for you, quite the contrary, we will arrange for you to complete the contract with Shang Siding. She has awakened an E-ranked talent, the Nuwa Stone. She has also always been very fond of you and wants to marry you. The tone of this sudden outburst from the Senate Merchant Company was very sincere and didn't seem to be hypocritical. However, Han Zhan pressed on with no intention of agreeing. What do you take us for? Goods, or valuable commodities? Pick and choose at will, not even as good as livestock, is this the arrogance of you higher-ups? The weak are the strong, this world is like that. Otherwise as strong as Li Shudong, he would still be dead here, what's the use of being a hero? Yes, what's the use of being a hero? If all the people you save as a hero are such a bunch of white-eyed wolves, it's better not to be a hero before it's too late. The other party has three ninth ranks, and all of them are above me in strength. The space has been stabilized, and it's impossible to leave by unusual methods. Gong Yang Jin's voice rang out next to Han Zhan. In such a situation, only she could possibly be able to step forward. I have a way. After fusing with the sword soul of the Xian Yuan sword, I've comprehended a new sword skill, but I just haven't had the chance to perform it yet. If I use it, I will be able to solve today's predicament. What's the cost? Han Zhan didn't agree at first, but asked in return. Han Zhan's question warmed Gong Yang Jin's heart, it seemed that he still cared about himself and didn't ignore his feelings just because of the two beautiful ladies around him. Thinking of this, Gong Yang Jin's heart was a few points happier. It will fall down the realm. I haven't used it, I just roughly know its cost. The cost of using it is to fall in the realm, and I'm not sure exactly how many ranks it will fall to. Gong Yang Jin answered truthfully. Can the fallen realm still be recovered? It can be restored. After a long time, Han Zhan made up his mind to speak, since that's the case I'll have to please you one more time. LOL, what's please or not? Ah Juan, keep your eyes open for this sword. This sword, named Jade Shatter. The void black hole that Han Zhan had executed cut through the dimensional space, and the conversation between them couldn't be heard in the outside world. Louis the Seventeenth and the other three only saw Han Zhan suddenly fall silent and stop talking. After a long time, they gradually lost their patience as well, although they didn't know how they were going to break the state of the void black hole, but with the means of the three of them at the ninth rank, it might not be that difficult, and the three of them decided to make a move after looking at each other. Just at this moment, a sword light lit up from within the endless nothingness. The skyrocketing sword aura caused heaven and earth to lose color, and all those who saw this sword had their eyes whitened, completely losing the ability to think. 
This sword was more than ninth rank, the strength of this sword was unparalleled, it is better to be broken for the sake of jade than to be broken for the sake of tile. In the face of such a sword, they only hated that they were too close, and even if they had already responded to it to the best of their ability, it was still difficult to completely get rid of it. The spatial stabilizers were all blotted out in the sword light, and the moment the stabilizers were reduced to pieces, the black hole suddenly collapsed and shrunk. It eventually turned into a singularity and disappeared in place. Seeing this scene, the faces of the three big brothers were not good. It was just that they had no time to care at this time. The primordial biochemical warrior and Lewis period were fighting the remaining sword intent on their bodies with all their might. Fortress of Doom simply let that sword chi destroy all the electronic components, countless electronic components and mechanical armor fell off and were scrapped, and in the end, only a one person tall anthropomorphic robot was left, stepping out from the ruins. The capture failed. His tone still couldn't hear any emotion, it was only something that was done in passing, taking over a third of Dixia's territory at once, the Senate Corporation still has a lot of things to do, so I won't continue to stay here to accompany the two of you. I will report what happened here to the master, regarding the agreed upon payment for the Shinnong tripod, you have not completed the payment, this matter will not be settled by the Eternal Life Company. The second one to stand up was Biochemical Warrior 00. Filthy broken flesh that had been churned up by the sword intent continued to fall from his body, and newborn limbs quickly grew out again. After he said this, he very dryly turned around and left. Originally, the yellow bird that should have earned a lot of money was forced to lose its style by the sudden accident, Louis the Seventeenth grinned. The rich sword intent on his body was bright and uncertain, never able to be completely weeded out. He was almost certain that at least 50% of the sword wielded by the woman called Gong Yang Jin had landed on him, which belonged to communicating a personal vendetta. That's really strong enough, if I can refine you to become my contracted spirit, I will definitely be able to take that step faster. Looking forward to our next goodbye. Louis the Seventeenth mumbled to himself as he finished speaking, he covered the narrow sword mark on his chest, slowly stood up, and walked towards the distance with a swinging step. Not far away, the clamor resounded once again. A group of silhouettes rushed here, and when they saw Louis the Seventeenth, they all respectfully stood and saluted, Lord Head. Louis the Seventeenth waved his hand. Pacify those injured people, and immediately carry out the city takeover. As soon as possible, grab an extra piece of this cake of Dasha down for me before those idiots who only know how to develop high technology. Speaking here, Louis the Seventeenth paused for a moment as he opened his mouth to add, those who encounter resistance, kill without amnesty. There is no need to be too polite in the face of these inferior people. With the entrance and exit of the three forces, the entire deep blue doom gradually came to a close. This tumultuous beginning that changed the pattern of the world was later enshrined in history. Someone had tallied all the casualty figures of this great battle, and it was shocking to the eye. On the Grand Xia side, Grand Xia War Godly Shutong died in battle, Wei Qing, the head of the first war zone, and Lin Jingxian, the head of the second war zone, were seriously injured, Yi Chou, the head of the third war zone, went insane, the major war zone suffered a large number of casualties from Spirit Deeds Masters, and the country lost two-thirds of its landmass and was nearly annihilated. The survivors and remnants of the force, under Li Shutong's advance signal, all went north to defend the remaining one-third of the territory. For the insect race, the transcendent realm insect race Void fell, and the origin of Void was seized. Ninth-ranked Bug Emperor Berserker and Ninth-ranked Bug Emperor Nightmare were killed. A large number of high-ranking and low-ranking bugs were killed and injured. Queen Scarlet was ranked as a ninth-ranking bug queen and returned with the human traitory fan to rule the Blood Sea. For the everlasting company, BioWarrior 001 was killed, a large number of BioWarriors were wiped out, and their vitality was greatly injured. On the part of the Senator Company, no losses for now, but the country's trust in the Senator Company has greatly diminished, their purchasing efforts and dependence have weakened, and they have harvested one-third of Dasha's territory. On the side of the empire, all the dark sons of Dasha were uprooted, the Iron Blood Society was wiped out, and they were unable to cultivate another intelligence organization of equal strength in a short period of time, and they similarly reaped a third of Dasha's territory. On the side of the Old Covenant, of the nine apostles that were deployed, only one escaped with serious injuries, the Pope was enraged and truly felt the feeling of the price of flesh. The twelve apostles are now left with only two, almost close to existing in name only, and have completely fallen silent to recuperate. After this battle, in addition to the god of war Li Shutong's shocking battle performance, there was another person whose name was remembered by most of the world. His name was Han Zhan, a student of Li Shutong, who nearly changed the outcome of the battle twice, and in the end escaped from the hands of three ninth-ranked powerhouses on his own. Such a battle record made Han War famous. Recommend a friend's new book on the subject of black science and technology, 30,000 tons of destroyers, you say it's a fishing boat? The old author's new book, interested readers can move to read, but a little wind in frost. North County, refused to jail pass. Near the end of the year, the snow fell earlier in the north. A few tiny silhouettes stood on the lofty city walls as fine snow drifted from the sky, covering everything in a light white makeup. Wei Chung, go back and rest, ahem, I'll wait here. 
Lin Jingxian, with this nagging ghostly appearance of yours, it's better for you to go back and rest first. I'm only suffering from a loss of heart power, I can always recover, it's better than some people breaking an arm. Hey, let's compare and contrast? Wei Qing's originally aroused battle spirit suddenly became subdued again. Lin Jingxian followed suit and fell silent. In the past, when the two of us followed our teacher to seek education, every time, he would be the one to pull the two of us apart and then beat you up once and me twice. Only now, that person was no longer there. According to the backhand left behind by teacher, the North County area has been covered by thousands of special formations taken from the relics, which have combined with each other to form a large formation that helped us block three attempts by the Eternal Life Company. The Senator Company's side has been dealt with properly, completely severing the contact network, but with our current technology, trying to reactivate those wartime equipments is not up to the task. The bugs in the Old Covenant have gone into hiding after this battle, and won't reappear anytime soon. The bug race and the Empire on the Imperial side are holding each other back. The situation had re-stabilized. Lin Jingxian was not good at expressing himself, he could only use this way to convey the positive side of the stabilization and pull away from Wei Qing. Is there still no news of Old Nine? It is only known that he escaped from the combined siege of three ninth ranks, and is currently being hunted down by the Everlasting Company and the Senate Merchant Company. What about the follow-up? Has he been captured? There is no follow-up, our current contact network has completely stopped and no other news can be learned. Then let Old Eight investigate, don't they have the best information channels? If the 8th war zone had to be mobilized for this kind of matter, then we would have already been removed by the Empire for good. As he spoke, a blurry silhouette gradually gazed up, revealing the appearance of nothing. Without waiting for Wei Qing to speak, none continued, they have already arrived at the rejecting firmament pass. As his words fell, several silhouettes appeared in the snowy path in the distance. Han Zhan, Xia Yue, Li Lingjin, and Gong Yang Jin. One and not less, they had successfully escaped the pursuit and arrived in the northern county, meeting up with the Grand Xia survivors in triumph. Seeing one familiar figure after another, in the next second, Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian appeared in front of them. After traveling a long distance and dodging pursuers, and being on edge all the way, Han Zhan and the few others had fatigue written on their faces. At the sight of Wei Qing, who only had one arm left, Han Zhan froze for a moment. Eldest senior brother. You kid, what kind of look is that? I can still beat up five of you like this now, believe it or not. Wei Qing cursed and raised his hand, just wanting to give Han Zhan that, seeing him like that, he resentfully put his hand down again. Let's go, go into the city. You guys managed to get away from the pursuit, and teacher's final goal has been accomplished, so there are no more regrets. What about the other few senior brothers? Han Zhan suddenly opened his mouth and asked. Wei Qing's turning footsteps lurched. Lin Jingxian held up his glasses and spoke, Old 3 is crazy, Old 4 is busy running around within the northern county, Old 5's 5th warzone was taken over by the Senate Merchant Company, and Old 6 and Old 7 were taken away by the Everlasting Company, along with the Healing Spirit contractors under their command. As for Old 8, Old 8 is here, you just can't see him. Healing Spirit contractors were strategic materials, and their importance was self-evident. This was also the reason why only the 5, 6, and 7 warzones were the best preserved. They lacked battle power and couldn't escape, so they could only be controlled by the Eternal Life Company and the Senate Merchant Company, but luckily, their lives were not in danger. Han War nodded and fell silent. Without Li Shutong, their sky had collapsed, and everyone had grown and matured a lot overnight. There was no anger, no resentment, or maybe it was just like this sheer snow that was buried in their hearts. Entering the Northern County, Han Zhan and the others felt that the wind and snow above their heads had gotten much smaller. It's the four seasons of spring formation, the ancient formation that teacher obtained at the relics. There are more than a thousand other formations like this in the entire northern county, and, they continue to increase. Fourth senior brother Shin Zhuqi? As soon as he heard the news related to the relics, the appearance and name of a person flashed through Han Zhan's mind. Lin Jingxian nodded. That's right, Old Fourth was the first to arrive here through the interconnected special relics. Among the descendants left behind by his teacher, he is mainly responsible for the jobs of activating spell formations, maintaining them, and engraving them. This is their new job description for the fourth war zone. Teacher is truly calculating, he even thought of the back roads for us. Han Zhan sighed. Unexpectedly, at these words, Wei Chang and Lin Jingxian subconsciously glanced at each other. Not all. Lin Jingxuan's words afterward caused Han Zhan to be very surprised upon hearing them. Teacher didn't have a good idea of how you were going to withdraw, so he left each of us a note to go north, except for you. He also didn't dare to be sure that you would be able to escape from the three ninth steps, and the first task left for me, Wei Chang, and Old Eight was to figure out how to rescue you with all our might. Han Zhan didn't know what to say. After a moment of scrutiny, it seemed like that was indeed the case. When Li Shutong had struck the Void Origin into himself, he should have expected that he wouldn't be killed, but he might not be able to escape. If there were no later variables, it was also true that he had a high probability of following the merchant away and becoming a flunky. At this time, Wei Cheng patted his shoulder and added, I have to say, you kid is capable enough, 
From the first moment I saw you at the Green Vine Academy I knew that you would definitely become a fierce man. Being able to escape from three ninth steps saved us a big problem. Then again, how did you escape? Hearing Wei Qing's inquiry, Han Zhan told the story of how Gong Yang Jin executed the sword technique Jade Shattering, picking off three of them in one go, and how he himself took the opportunity to unleash the void black hole and spatial transfer. Now that Xiao Jin's cultivation realm has fallen to the fifth rank, I was able to escape with at least 90% of her credit. A few people shared the same affliction, and their feelings quickly warmed up, and Han Zhan's name for Gong Yang Jin changed again. Gong Yang Jin's hand was held on one side by Li Lingjin and Xia Yue, and the three were very affectionate. I used to call people Gong Yang Jin seniors when I was at the ninth rank, but now that I've fallen off the realm and only have the strength of the fifth rank left, I call people Xiao Jin. Gong Yang Jin's grudging voice rang out, livening up the originally dull atmosphere. Han Zhan awkwardly laughed and rubbed his head. Don't underestimate yourself and be presumptuous. Being able to possess a ninth order contract spirit is a very powerful thing in itself. Lin Jingxian suddenly reached out, pointing towards the many Dixia survivors who had sniffed in the distance. Look at them, they are all those who heard of your arrival in the northern county and have specially come over to take a look at you, your, admirers. Battling hand in hand with the great Xiao War God, as his youngest student, he turned the tide twice, helped his teacher comprehend the breakthrough limits, and killed powerful enemies, and escaping with his life at the hands of three ninth rank powerhouses. With such a battle record, you are no longer an ordinary person. We're all old, and the current Grand Xia needs a new faith. Lin Jingxuan's words caused Han Zhan to raise his head brightly as he looked towards the excited and eager people, feeling the unyielding and stubbornness in their eyes as they expected him to say something. So this was the chess executor? Teacher. Something struck a chord in Han Zhan's heart, and he simply raised his hand violently. There was no sensationalism, no encouragement, no impassioned speech. It's just some frost. Year's end, plus more, thanks for the recommendations. Monthly tickets. Rewards. Li Shutong's funeral was arranged on the day of the New Year's Eve. In the old days of business contacts, the end of the year must settle the outstanding accounts, the debtor of the difficult new year, as if the past, so called the New Year's Eve. Dasha's situation today, will only be more difficult than the customs. So Han and a few brothers discussed, the funeral arrangements in the New Year's Eve, so that all the grief stay in this year, so that hope to stay in the new year tomorrow. On the day of the New Year's pass, goose feather snow fell. The four seasons like spring spell only covered the main living areas, while the rest of the area was still snowy and thickly covered in a layer of snow and silver. The four of them, Han Zhan, Wei Qing, Lin Jingxian, and Xin Zhichi, were carrying a coffin like this, walking through the snow with one foot deep and one foot shallow. Behind them, followed by a vast procession, no one made a sound. Like a silent march. The coffin was empty, Li Shutong's body had long since annihilated and dissipated because it couldn't carry the power of a transcendent mortal. Empty coffin pressed on the shoulders of four people, but as heavy as a thousand pounds. The place of burial was chosen at the rejecting firmament pass, the heavenly danger of the northern county and the closest to the south. A statue of Li Shutong was carved vividly, and the direction it faces is the south. In the south, there is our lost land. In the south, there are our captured compatriots. To the south, there is the hatred we must remember, and the enemy. Densely packed heads, snow pouring down, everyone is snow full of white heads, some people are frozen cheeks red, some people limbs cold, no one left. Li Shutong's coffin was buried, the snow accompanied by soil to cover it. All the people solemnly observed a moment of silence to complete the final farewell ceremony. The epitaph belonging to Li Shutong was erected in front of the tomb, just like those combat spirit masters Han Zhan had seen. Go Li national life and death, not because of disaster and happiness to avoid it. This was the epitaph that Han Zhan had written for Li Shutong, and he felt that it was the most apt phrase to describe Li Shutong's life. A hundred years ago, he was the one who pulled back the tide, saved Dasha from falling, continued the century-old foundation, created eight war zones, opened up new frontiers, and spared no effort. A hundred years later, he died as a game, will be rotten Dasha uprooted, with the burning of their own fire, burned out the filth, but also a clear sky and earth. Li Shutong is the great Xiao war god, the name of hero, deserved. Compared to his teacher, he still has a long way to go. But at the gesture of his senior brothers, he still took one step at a time, and walked to the forefront of all. The wind and snow grew stronger. Under the snow and wind, Han Zhan walked to the statue of Li Shutong, he turned around and looked at the group behind him. In this group of people, there was his senior brother, his partner, his compatriots, elders and children. They were all looking at themselves in unison, and this feeling gave Han Zhan the illusion that he was still in the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World. In the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World, he had broken the curse, won the hearts of the people, and completed the divine knowing inheritance to become the new sacred master. Here, he assistedly shut on in his fight against the bug race, using his fifth-ranked body to take on three ninth-ranked supreme powers, and he was also Li Shutong's student, another inheritance. Han Zhan let out a deep breath. All the people of Dasha, all the fellow soldiers who fought together, the pillar belonging to the top of our Dasha has fallen. He didn't fall in the battle against the bug race, he fell in greed, selfishness, desire, and unbearable plotting and scheming. 
but we will always remember his name, always remember this man, the great Xiao War God, Li Shudong. I am not a hero, nor do I want to be one. I'm just a small person who was greedy and afraid of death, compared to my teacher, I'm ashamed of myself. Once upon a time, all I wanted was to keep my own acre of land and be with my beloved, thinking that my talent was still pretty good, and with a big shot like teacher covering me, I would be able to give me a long time to grow up. I've had good luck, and I've had bad luck. But friends, this is life. Just because we lost a great Xiao War God doesn't mean complete and utter failure, because each and every one of us, can become our own great Xiao War God. Let's bury our hatred and pain deeply here, and let's take every step forward with determination even if we know we'll be doomed to failure. In this end of the insect plague, everyone's body is like a feather and their lives are like weeds. We've already seen the blackest night, and the hot, bright flame in our hearts will not falter. As Han Zhan said this, he violently summoned his regular sword, turned around and swung his sword, carving two large characters on the walls of the rejecting pass. Nan. Down. This is my promise, and my oath to my teacher. Sometime in the future, I'm going to lead everyone, southward, and take back everything that belonged to us originally. Southward. At this moment, the crowd erupted in enthusiastic cries, as they cried out from the bottom of their hearts, roaring with indignation. They were like rats fleeing in haste, hurrying northward to escape the villains who stole the fruits of victory. Their god of war had fallen, and their future life was like floating weeds, with no hope in sight. But now, the word southward that Han carved on the city wall was like a bright red flag, erected in the hearts of every wandering Dasha people. After going north, there is going south. Defeat is not terrible, as long as you are still alive, there is a possibility of victory. Even if they couldn't overcome, they had to bite off a piece of meat from those people. Northward, southward. Wei Qing looked at Han Zhan, who was standing in the snow and wind, and watched him use the Xian Yuan sword to carve the majestic word southward on the city wall, his fists involuntarily clenched, his entire body trembling with exhilaration. The lenses of Lin Jingxuan's eyeglasses blurred a little, he took off his glasses and lowered his head to gently wipe them. Nanxia, Nanxia, teacher, you really didn't look at the wrong person. Shinjichi's gaze revealed a strange color, the fatigue from running around for days swept away at this moment, and from the bottom of his heart, it was as if an endless amount of new strength had surged out. In the convalescent home, the spirit contractors and deed spirits who were injured and recuperating could only hear an imposing clamor coming from far away, but with their ears, they couldn't hear what it was about at all. Inside one of the innermost convalescent rooms, a crazy, cloaked man leapt out from inside the room. Lord Yi. Behind him, the nurse who saw this scene hurriedly caught up and tried to pull back. Yi Cho easily got rid of their capture, he laughed loudly, and then suddenly listened with his ears, and then suddenly continued to laugh loudly. Southward. They're talking about going south. Southward. Ha 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 ha. Southward? There was a momentary silence in the sanatorium, followed by a flood of loud and passionate cries that erupted one by one from everyone in dismay. That's right, south. Fuck him, that's the way to fuck back. Southward. Go south. This day. Within the northern county, the two words that echoed throughout were, go south. On this day. It was the day of Li Shutong's burial. It's the last day of the old year. Continue to add more, thank you for your favorites, recommendations, monthly votes, bounty support, thank you readers greatly. Deep Blue Volume officially ended, the next volume, Scarlet, New Year, plus more, please collect. Catch up on reading. Recommendation. Moon Vote, thank you. A year is a year, a year is a year. New Year is a brand new start. The new year in North County was not as lively as previous years, because of the Senator Corporation, the entire power system of North County lost its energy supply, and the satellite network was also cancelled, signal coverage. The ancient spell formation is only capable of maintaining the climate resisting foreign invasion, and enhancing the effect of spirit gathering, but does not have the ability to provide energy and other kinds of cutting-edge technology. The entire northern county territory was pitch black at night, making it impossible to see anything. Ah! A scream comparable to that of a groundhog rang out from within the room. Han Zhan and the others, who ran in with candles lit, saw Li Lingjin, who was squatting on a chair, looking ahead with a lifeless face, or a computer that had run out of power with a black screen and automatically shut down. I coded 5,000 words of the deposit, did not save, the computer has no electricity automatically shut down. Li Lingjin cried with a small face, said. It's okay, it's okay, it's only 5,000 words. Han Zhan comforted. But those 5,000 words are the essence of my brain that has been accumulated for a long time. Li Lingjin struggled to retort. Essence? That would be even more fine. If those 5,000 words really spread out, God knows how many people's brains would be yellowed, Amitba. Damn the Senate Merchant Company, damn it. The power outage has hampered us too much. My readers have been scolding me in the comment section for breaking my shift for 10 days now, and when I told them that I was fighting the bugs, they actually mocked me for bragging about it. Li Lingjin's cell phone still had a drop of power left, and with her signal that only had one frame left, she was barely able to surf. Sure enough, on top of her cell phone, the comments with the highest number of likes were all urging for more work, as well as cursing her for being a dead eunuch who sucked. 
Han Zhan glanced at Li Lingjin. The eunuch is not wrong, but unfortunately not much lethality. In the highest top message in the comment section, Li Lingjin really did leave a message explaining her broken shift, and the firepower output of the following comments was much fiercer. Just you, a banned book author, you went to fight the bugs, why don't you say that you're an SSS ranked deed spirit? The author wouldn't be in Deep Blue City, right, I heard that an insect plague broke out there, silent condolences. I bought, break the shift to eunuch no reason, no inspiration to hurry to find inspiration for master. I wanna see an update today, believe it or not I'll chop my head off and show you. Give me your address, I'll send you some souvenirs. Densely packed with comments, I can't imagine that Li Ling is really adept at this, and it's developing quite well. Most of these people in the comments section were Dasha people, except that the large swath of land they were currently living in had already changed hands. For ordinary people, the change of ownership of the territory did not have the slightest feeling, it was just a change in the person who ruled over them, that was all. There were not a few people who held such thoughts. Li Lingjin looked at these gloomy comments, and even gritted her teeth, her hands pressed the keyboard up, it could simply be described as ten fingers flying, as the tapping even appeared as a stump. Xia Yue had to cough and reminded, Ling Jin, today there is new material and new inspiration, are you going to continue to play against these people until dawn? I'm going to play against them. New material, new inspiration? When Li Lingjin heard this, she suddenly raised her head, her eyes burning as she looked toward Han Zhan, and the stunningly beautiful, tall Ram Jin standing next to him. It dawned on her. Ever since Gong Yang Jin had awakened, they had been uprooted, and it wasn't easy for them to come to North County to settle down. As the latest addition to the Xian Yuan Swords contracted spirits, before Gong Yang Jin could figure out the situation, she saw Xia Yue and Li Lingjin together and couldn't wait to pull her, the three of them muttering in whispers. Xia Yue, grumble grumble grumble. Li Lingjin, quack 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 quack. Gong Yang Jin, mayfly chrysalis mayfly chrysalis mayfly chrysalis. Han Zhan looked at these three guys who were communicating an encrypted language in front of him with a head full of black lines and was speechless. After a while, they didn't know what they had discussed, and raised their heads at the same time to look at Han Zhan again. That look made Han Zhan's heart stutter. The three people paced forward and surrounded Han Zhan, and under their torture, Han Zhan could only give in and confess. In the latter half of the night, Gong Yang Jin woke up from his sleep. Beside her, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin were still sleeping deeply. Don't look at the two of them as apparently heartless, but in fact, what they had just discussed with themselves was to find a way to let Han Zhan relax a bit, not wanting him to be so tense every day. That was why Gong Yang Jin finally gritted his teeth and agreed to their excessive suggestions. Gong Yang Jin wasn't originally from Dasha, and wouldn't have the same depth of grief as Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, so she was the one who was doing her best to cooperate with the other three. Apart from the sleeping two, there was no sign of Han Zhan around. Gong Yang Jin put on his jacket and pushed the door out, just to see Han Zhan alone, standing on the balcony, staring blankly. It's so late, aren't you sleeping yet? Little brother. Gong Yang Jin said in a flirty manner. Hearing her voice, Han Zhan twisted his head to look over, and his gaze lingered on Gong Yang Jin's body, which was only covered in a jacket, with some undertones of fire in his eyes. Woman, you're provoking me. Little or not, don't you know? Cluck cluck cluck. Gong Yang Jin laughed a few times, sort of acquiescing to Han Zhan's retort. After teasing for a couple sentences, the conversation returned to the topic. Han Zhan looked into the distance, feeling the faint chill that passed through the wind that blew over. Ancient formations, in the end, are only means left behind by the teacher for emergencies, they can be used for a while, but not for a lifetime. Why do you say that? You should also feel it, right? For example, this four seasons like spring spell formation, its spell power is weakening. There's a chill in the air, that's the temperature of the outside world, and the formation is becoming weakened. It may not be obvious now, but the process of weakening will definitely continue. I have heard something about this. After getting serious, Gong Yang Jin also gave his judgment, ancient spell formations aren't something new, they were all unearthed within the ruins. But since they originated from the ancient times, for thousands of years, no one has been able to study and understand the principles of these formations. One can only watch their energy gradually weaken until the core energy of the formation is exhausted and the formation is completely inoperable. A person without far-flung worries must have near worries, and I'm just worried about such a situation. Han Zhang sighed and admitted. Gong Yang Jin stepped forward and stroked Han Zhan's brow with some heartache. You're in a fast state, starting to worry about the country so soon. Don't worry, there will be a solution, don't forget, you still have a few other senior brothers, their insights are broader than yours, there will always be a solution. It's just a pity that my strength is greatly reduced nowadays, it's hard for me to help you much anymore. Gong Yang Jin sighed and said. Han Zhan walked to her side and gently pulled her crispy hand. Everything will be fine. I know a method that can quickly raise your cultivation, do you want to try it? Gong Yang Jin's rusty change of subject was about as lame as my cat can backflip. Han Zhan, however, nodded with interest, try it then? Three questions and a decision, plus more, please everything. The everlasting company attempted to attack another city in the southern part of North County yesterday. They made a sneak attack by taking a long way around, and we were undermanned and didn't notice at first. 
Fortunately, the ancient turtle origin formation helped us block this attack. Listening to the reports from the people under his hand, on the first day of the new year, Lin Jingxuan's tightly frowning brows had never loosened. Ever since they had solidified their position in the northern county, executing turtle tactics to recuperate, the everlasting company's tentative attacks on them had never stopped. Compared to the other big powers that had rested their heads, the everlasting company gave off a feeling that it seemed to be jumping over the wall in a hurry. It's not a solution to go on like this, the ancient spell formations all have spell cores, once the energy within the spell core is depleted, we who don't know how to replenish the energy will only be able to stare at it and watch it stop functioning. Although there are tens of thousands of spell formations left to us by our teacher, they were deliberately accumulated by our teacher over the past hundred years. If it's just squandered away, there won't be a second hundred years left for us. What's more, nowadays, those relics that originally belonged to the Grand Xia are now controlled in the hands of the Senate Corporation and the Empire, and it's simply impossible to continue exploring them. Ancient spell formations were used one less than the other. The Everlasting Company seemed to have anticipated this, and had been persistent in their harassment. To them, the price they paid was just some biochemical warriors that could be created at their fingertips, and using them to consume the energy of the ancient phalanx was the most cost-effective thing to do. This was a problem. Soon, a second report was sent up. This time, it was about the city's energy supply. There was no doubt that those who chose to go north with the large army had their hearts set on Great Xia. The people embraced you, so you had to do something to respond to them. Like now, for example, more and more complaints are coming in about the city's energy supply. Having lost the energy provided by the participating companies, the city is running out of energy, and in order to keep the normal livelihood programs running, energy has been tightly controlled and most of the city's energy supply has been truncated and withheld. This was something that was extremely inconvenient for a highly urbanized city. It was also a problem that Lin Jingxian and the others were currently having a headache and urgently needed to solve. On the Senate Merchant Company's side, they did take the initiative to propose to us. The merchant family had said that as long as we can cede Han War to them, the merchants can provide all of Northern County's energy for free. Oomph, it's just playing that sausage slicing trick. Lin Jingxian could tell what these people were thinking with a single glance. Or in other words, he understood this group of people's thoughts very well. Han Zhan represented the future, he was able to grant new life to the deity spirit through divine awakening, how terrifying was such an ability, and if it was supplemented by the samsara technology, then Han Zhan's future achievements would be unlimited. But in doing so, Dashia lost their new spiritual pillar, and their belief in the future collapsed. The loss was far more serious than energy. This was a young conspiracy, the young conspiracy of the senator technology, and Lin Jingxian did not intend to pay attention to it. At this time, his men hurried over and reported the third problem. Great Xia's awakening stones have been destroyed in large quantities by a combination of major organizations. The third issue not only caused Lin Jingxian to frown, even Wei Qing, who was off to the side, followed suit. Even a simple mind like Wei Qing understood what the awakening stone meant. It was the root of the Great Xia spirit contractors, without the awakening stone, the Great Xia lineage would not be able to complete their awakening at the age of 18 when they reached adulthood and become spirit contractors or contract spirits. This was pulling the rug out from under Great Xia. Lin Jingxuan's frown deepened. Faced with these three problems, even as he was, it was difficult for him to give a solution in the first place. Yawning, Han Zhang walked in through the door, last night he had wasted a lot of energy helping Gong Yang Jin raise his cultivation, the female goblins he needed to deal with had become more numerous, and the teacher who had prepared the four great tonic soups for himself was no longer there. Han Zhang pressed down the flash of loss in his heart and greeted Lin Jingxian and Wei Qing. Why the sad face, did something happen? Han Zhang asked, so Lin Jingxian relayed to him all the news he had just learned. Hearing these three questions, Han Zhan was not surprised at all. It was pretty much the same as what he had expected. I have solutions to all three of these problems. Han Zhan suddenly spoke. The moment he said this, everyone in the room stopped moving and looked at him in unison. This is no joke. Lin Jingxian subconsciously reminded, and after a pause, he tentatively asked, You really have a solution? Of course. Han Zhan had pondered for a long time on the balcony yesterday, and it wasn't as if he hadn't gained anything at all. These three problems, I think that since I want to solve them, I should prioritize them. I thought that the city supply involves people's livelihood, so it's the most urgent, the ancient spell formation involves security, so it's the second most important, and the awakening stone is the last. For the solution to the city's energy supply, the answer is simple, Rob. Han Zhang's finger pointed to those areas on the battle map that originally belonged to the territory of Grand Xia, the energy in all of these places, we can go and snatch them to supply the northern county. Even, if we can find the energy preparation plant of the Senate Corporation, we can directly bring the plant in one pot, and be able to supply North County with it for a very long time. Han Zhang's words caused Lin Jingxian and the others to ponder. Indeed, he and the others still maintained their inherent thinking that those cities around them were all Grand Xia territories, all Grand Xia people, and hadn't considered the matter of plundering the energy of the cities. Han Zhang's words opened their minds. What about the other two? 
The other two, about the ancient spell formation and the core of the spell formation, although we can no longer explore the ruins, don't forget that I still have a Bodhi treasure tree. Within the Bodhi treasure tree may not only be a method that can solve the ancient spell formation, but there may even be a solution to the awakening stone. Hanjan didn't fill his mouth with words, but he was 90% certain that regarding the Bodhi treasure tree, the fruit of the world, what it represented must be the world of the Fushi Zither. Fushi Chin, why is it called Fushi Chin? That's because the person who made it is called Fushi. Just like Shin Nong is good at pharmacology and medicine, so what is Fushi good at? Fushi Gossip. The trigrams, the beginning of the array also, the ancient array cannot be difficult to defeat Fushi? As for the awakening stone cannot be solved, this problem is not critical. The North County is already in turmoil, most of them are surviving spirit contractors and contract spirits, the real people account for very little, and will not be able to form a fighting force and go into battle for a while. Instead of letting them awaken and then send them to their deaths like cannon fodder, it would be better not to awaken them. After Han Zhan and Lin Jingxian spoke clearly to them about all this, he finally concluded. That's why I've decided to go ahead and grab the city's energy under the dominion of the Senate Merchant Company. This will also be the first southward move on our behalf. Han Zhan heavily slapped his hand on the map, decisively confident and decisive. When Han Zhan finished speaking, the entire room went silent. This plan was too crazy. Amidst the madness, it seemed to fit their current situation. If you're not crazy, you can't live. It wasn't that they hadn't thought of these methods, only that they hadn't considered them that way for the time being due to too many concerns and some old-fashioned ways of handling things. But Han War was different. After hearing this plan, Lin Jingxian thought briefly, and his brain spun rapidly, already giving several suitable options. The first optional location is Chun Rao City. It has a vertical distance of only a thousand kilometers from the rejecting firmament pass. It is the fastest city we can reach. If we choose Chun Rao City, the danger factor is the smallest, and even if we wait until the Senate Corporation reacts, we will have already retreated back to the pass, which is the safest. Han Zhan looked at the map on the table, and Chun Rao City and the Refusal Pass were indeed very close to each other. But he shook his head after thinking about it. A single city alone can provide too few energy cube bricks, there are a total of 32 cities in North County, large and small, and each city needs 10 energy cube bricks a month, relying on a single Chun Rao City alone is a drop in the bucket. Moreover, something like this looting of energy square bricks can be done once but not twice, wait until the second time, when the Senate company is on the defensive, and it will be even more difficult to loot again. Han Zhan analyzed. Lin Jingxian nodded after hearing this, agreeing with this judgment of his. He then spoke the second location in his mind, the one he preferred. Then choose Wuchu City. Wuchu City is about 5,000 kilometers away from North County, and this has always been the big head of energy consumption in Great Xia. There must be quite a few energy square bricks hoarded. If we plunder this place, for at least half a year, tightening our belts in terms of energy is not a problem at all if we save a bit. Hearing Lin Jingxuan's words, Wei Qing immediately slammed his hand on the table. Then here it is. Dry up. I'll go and notify down, have all the brothers with good arms and legs in the first war zone assemble, and set off as soon as it gets dark. Lin Jingxian ignored him, his gaze continuing to look at Han Zhan, wanting to hear his opinion. Han Zhan propped his chin on one hand and mused slightly. From what I've seen so far, this is indeed a more secure location. But there are still two problems. The first problem, everyone knows that Wuchu City is an energy city, and so does the Senator Corporation. So Wuchu City's defense force will definitely be higher than other cities, it's not difficult to want a night attack and once it's dragged into a protracted battle, enemy reinforcements will soon arrive. The second problem, the distance. 5,000 kilometers, with us traveling at full speed, it will take quite a bit of time. You guys look here, here, and here. Han Zhan pointed out three areas on the map with his hand, if I were someone from the Senate Corporation and set up a pursuit force at these three locations, with the Senate Corporation's level of motorization, they would be able to catch up with us very quickly. Wei Qing was usually the most annoyed to hear all this analyzing stuff, in his opinion, all of them were too many concerns and not pure enough thoughts. Neither this nor that, name a location. Wei Qing slammed the table and cursed, since you're going south, show a little pizzazz. Didn't you say something imposing in your impassioned speech at your teacher's funeral? Wei Qing. Lin Jingxian held up his glasses and reminded him. Han Zhan knew his own eldest senior brother's temper, so he didn't think anything of it. He glanced around. Lin Jingxian put down the cup in his hand, and as the ripples in the cup rippled away, the surrounding room had been replaced with a pure white space from the tacit understanding between master and brother. This is my pure white space, speak your true thoughts. Lin Jingxian paused, since you proposed this idea, you must also have a location of your own choosing. Sure enough, he still couldn't hide it from second senior brother Lin Jingxian. A smile appeared on Han Zhan's face, only within this smile, there were a few hints of madness. His hand gently pointed to a certain area on the map. When Han Zhan pointed to that area, Lin Jingxian subconsciously held his glasses and Wei Qing stopped his cursing. They both raised their heads and looked at Han Zhan with an expression of are you crazy? Expression as they looked at Han Zhan. You guys, you've heard of Titan City. Titan City, how could one not have heard of it? 
As the main city of the Senator Corporation, it was a city with the highest degree of technologization in all of Blue Star, and it was also the Senator Corporation's home base. There was the most advanced technology, the most powerful armaments, the most terrifying firepower, and even the name Titan City represented the Senate Merchant Company's most pinnacle war fortress, the Strategic Terminal Arms Titan Fortress. That was an existence that even a Ninth Order Supreme Powerhouse would have to weigh, and it was also the root of the Senate Business Company's foothold in this pest end world. But now, Han John pointed his finger at the location of Titan City on the map, his eyes showing madness, but he was incomparably certain. This time, it was Wei Qing's turn to be dumbfounded. Although he was a battle maniac, he wasn't a fool, even during the heyday of Grand Xia, he hadn't thought of fighting Titan City, let alone now. He had just screamed that Han War was a wimp, but he didn't expect that this junior apprentice brother had given himself a big job to do, and directly the whole thing wouldn't work out. Are you serious? Lin Jingxian though the first time he felt ridiculous if the other party wasn't Han Zhan, and it was Wei Qing instead, he would have kicked the person out long ago. Since it was Han Zhan, he reconfirmed. Yes, I'm serious, and more serious than ever. Since we're going to rob, let's rob a big wave. Don't they like to rob things from my disya? Don't they think that they killed their teacher by counting and are still smug about it? Eldest senior brother is right. Since we're going south, we should make a big one. Hearing this, Lin Jingxian took his eyes and looked at his big senior brother Wei Qing who was staring blankly at the side. Wei Chang almost choked to death on Han Zhan's words. Never had he envisioned a day when someone would take the words he spoke and dislike them to his face. I wasn't. I'm not. Don't you talk nonsense. Ahem, that, Lao Jiu Ah, we know your eagerness to avenge your teacher, but that's Titan City. Since we're going south, let's show some swagger. Han Zhan slapped the table, but it was exquisite, and Wei Qing's face was black. Returning to the topic. Han Zhan's gaze turned to Lin Jingxian as he continued to speak and explained, there are also three reasons why I chose Titan City. The first reason, Titan City is the main city of the Senate Merchant Company, there isn't any other place that has as many energy square tiles as Titan City. The second reason, even you all find it unbelievable, and the Senate Merchant Company will definitely not think that we would go to Titan City to plunder the energy square bricks, this kind of moth-eaten behavior does have the possibility of success. As for the third reason, although I've been generous with my words before, my prestige is only temporary. If I can't do anything to solidify it, the faith that the people of North County expect from me will collapse. In any case, Han War had reasons why he had to go. And it's better to go to Titan City with a small number of people than a large one. It's rather less risky for me to sneak in alone. Han Zhan's analysis rendered them speechless. Recommending a good book, live streaming, shock the world by playing as Monster Kid. Interested readers can move to read it. Under Han Zhan's reasoned argument. In the end, Lin Jingxian and Wei Qing agreed to his plan. This plan couldn't be publicized, not even Li Lingjin, Xia Yue, or Gong Yang Jin knew about it. It wasn't for fear of them leaking secrets, but also for fear that they would be confused if they were concerned. At the same time, in order for them all to accelerate their growth and become unique, Lin Jingxian had arranged new jobs for them all. Li Lingjin is a SSS grade Qi Ling Shen Nong Ding, specializes in healing, is a scarce talent, directly became the largest therapist in the entire North County, responsible for the large-scale treatment of seriously ill patients. Xiao Yue was the SSS grade Qi spirit Fuxican, offensive and defensive, plus she possessed the ancient intent of the remnant sun and billions of battle spirits, it was more suitable to be a female marshal in charge of the 10,000 spirits. Therefore, Lin Jingxian gave her the seal of command, and allowed Xiao Yue to follow him, learning to refine and mastering the way of the imperial army as soon as possible. Gong Yang Jin was an SSS grade deeded spirit regulator, and the arrangements for him were even simpler. The two of them competing in force with Wei Qing every day was the best hammering for her. Don't underestimate Wei Qing, as he himself said, although he had broken an arm, after that fight, Wei Qing's overall strength had improved instead of retreated. This also confirmed the words of his teacher, Li Shadong, who said, My generation of martial artists will only be able to move forward when they are sharpened between life and death. After arranging all the personnel, Han Zhan and the others began to collect all the information about Titan City, as well as planning how to enter Titan City unknowingly, all of which was handled by Lin Jingxian. Another week passed like this. After knowing almost everything about Titan City, Han Zhan also finally waited for a way to enter Titan City. According to the latest news poked around over at the 8th War Zone, there will be a batch of De Xia's awakened slaves being escorted to the city of Titans recently. A large-scale escort like this only happens once a year in Titan City. As Lin Jingxian said this, he wanted to speak. You might as well be straightforward about what's going on, second senior brother. Han Zhan saw the difficulty on Lin Jingxuan's face and took the initiative to speak. There's no problem with the method of entry but for this batch of people entering Titan City, their ultimate end will be death. It is because of this reason that the City of Titans is not so strict in screening them. Come to think of it, once inside, they would be strictly controlled and then end up losing their lives, even if it was a darksider from another organization, infiltrating in through this way would have no effect whatsoever. 
It would be fine if it was an ordinary undercover agent, sacrifices were inevitable, but this time, the one who wanted to infiltrate the city of Titans was Han War, the new spiritual flag of North County. If he died in the city of Titans, it would cause an unimaginable blow to Grand Xia, which was why Lin Jingxian was hesitant. After entering the city of Titans, where will these slaves be distributed? I don't know. By what means does the Senate Merchant Company control these slaves? Is it true that none of them can walk out of the city of Titans alive? Truly none. Lin Jingxian answered truthfully. Then I will be that first person. Han Zhan said without hesitation. His mind was made up, and the conversation was over. Seeing that he couldn't be argued with, Lin Jingxian didn't say anything more. Everyone had their own path. It was a choice that belonged to them. The path of a strong person where there is no smooth sailing. Moreover, Han War has the means of black hole nothingness, Titan City can't use space stabilizers to stabilize the entire space all the time, in that case, their airships won't be able to operate normally. Han War's trip to the city of Titans was risky, but there was still a chance. The two of them discussed some more details, and Han War then managed to infiltrate the slave core of the Senate Merchant Company through layers of connections under the leadership of 8th Brother Nun. The current Han Zhan had transformed into the appearance of a strange young man. This was also 8th Senior Brother's tactic, as experts in espionage organizations, changing appearances wasn't difficult for them. But at the same time, Nun also told Han Zhan that his blood could not be collected by the people of Senator Technology. Because once a blood test was conducted, then his identity would not be able to remain concealed. The code name of this mission, Dodo. This name was Han Zhan's own idea, and in the legend, the Dodo was a bird that traveled to and from the Yellow Springs River. Like Han Zhan's mission this time, he was on the brink of death, and if he wasn't careful, he would be killed in the Yellow Springs. It's apt. The old mansion territory, now belonging to the jurisdiction of the Senate Business Corporation, Green Sea City. The city is already crowded with people, these are all Disya awakened people who were escorted from various cities. Once upon a time, whether they went to the front line to become combat spirit contractors, or in the back to serve the people to become the city protector, they were the pride of Dasha. However, after the fall of Grand Xia, they all became prisoners, and were even inferior to those civilians. Because they were awakened, awakened means risk, risk means uncontrollable. No power dared to let them continue with their original jobs. Coinciding with the Senator Corporation's Titan City's annual day of absorbing slaves, all the cities were happy to go along with it, gathering them together in a unified manner and sending them here to wait for the Senator Technology's troop carriers to transport them all to the Titan City. Hey, newcomer? Just as Han Zhan was looking around, his shoulder was tapped, and a young man with a childish appearance came over from the side. When you get on the troop carrier in a while, follow me. The young man said while nudging his mouth back, see? These people following behind me are all those who hang out with me, trust me, there's nothing wrong. Why should I trust you? Han Zhan looked up at him and said in a puzzled manner, anyone who enters the city of Titans can't escape death, is there any point in mixing with whoever is behind them? At this moment, Han Zhan did not show much desire to survive, and the role he played was in line with the mentality of most slaves. Not picking fights, not getting into trouble, not drawing attention to himself. This is what you don't understand, even if it's death, there are comfortable deaths and painful deaths, which one are you willing to choose? I can hear that in the city of Titans, the Senator Company will take the Spirit Fellowship Master and the Fellowship Spirit to do all sorts of experiments, that process has to be as painful as possible, some people have been tortured alive for more than a year before they finally die, entering the city of Titans, death might also be a kind of liberation. Looking at the eloquent young man in front of him, Han Zhan was somewhat surprised. He had repeatedly confirmed with Lin Jingxian before that clearly no one had been able to leave alive from the city of Titans, so why did this young man in front of him have a face as if he knew everything? Han Zhan was a bit curious. So he followed the young man's words and asked, do you have a way? Naturally, all told you, a moment to follow me quasi no error, live on better than a good death, guaranteed to give you a pain in the ass, rather a fresh statement. Han Zhan thought about it and didn't refuse, he also wanted to see what tactics the other party would have. I almost forgot to introduce myself, my name is Wang Chunyu, I'm the captain of the first squad of city protectors in the Green Sea city of Dasha. Wang Chunyu? There were still people who would call themselves this kind of name? Han Zhan looked at him one more time. My name is Dupress, the city of Titans, bearing southwest. Rumor had it that the city of Titans was stationed in the endless desert all year round, and was the head of the Senator Corporation's strategic terminal Marshall Titan Fortress. Its complete body was the size of an asteroid, and with a single punch, it could shatter the Earth's surface and reach the Earth's core. Of course, these are all rumors, and it's been far, far too long since anyone has seen the Titan Bastion strike. The last time it had struck was still in the historical records from the previous era. However, as the main city of the Senate Merchant Company, the Titan Fortress alone looked majestic and imposing. It was more than a hundred times more spectacular than the Jade Gate Pass that Han Zhan had seen. Countless super-advanced firepower covered the entire city wall, and futuristic silver shuttles transformed into streams of light, constantly shuttling across the sky and ground. The entire city was brightly lit with neon colors. 
Outside the city of Titans was a huge transparent barrier made of densely packed hexagons pieced together like a beehive. The troop transport ship that Han Zhan and the others were on was flying towards the city of Titans at an extremely fast speed, and although it could already be seen with the naked eye, it would actually take at least a quarter of an hour to arrive at the city of Titans from where they were. Most of the people in the troop carrier had chosen to follow Wang Chinyu at his call. Han Zhan noticed that although these people were both male and female, they were all generally on the younger side of the age scale, that is, under 30 years old, but not too young, that is, over 18 years old. With such an age group coming together in one boat, I wondered if it had anything to do with Wang Chunyu's intentions afterward. Hey, why don't you say anything? Like a mope, which city are you from? Songhai City? It sounds familiar. Isn't that the one, the city near Deep Blue City? Upon hearing this name, Wang Chunyu was suddenly a bit excited. Have you heard of Han War? Suddenly hearing his name from a stranger, Han Zhan first froze. He quickly gathered his emotions and nodded, I've heard of him, he's very famous in our area. The reason why Han Zhan said he was from Tsanghai City was because he had only traveled to Deep Blue City and nearby cities. In order to keep himself from being exposed, lying also needed to bring a bit of skill to it, falsehoods and truths. As for the name Han Zhan, people in Tsanghai City would definitely not be unfamiliar with it. That's for sure, he's my idol. Wang Chunyu said excitedly, can you tell me more about him? You know, it's just information you get from the internet, and it's easy to get distorted when it's passed around. Han Zhan subconsciously touched his face to confirm that the other party was indeed not recognizing him. There was such a coincidence? Happening to meet one of his loyal fans on a troop carrier heading to Titan City? Han Zhan hadn't yet spoken, but it was another young man on the side who heard Wang Chinyu's words and laughed coldly, idol? That Han War deserves to be called an idol? Just as well, it's better than some people calling him a hero. Hey, what do you mean? Why are you speaking in a conspiratorial manner? It's so hard to hear. Wang Chunyu was unhappy. Hard to hear? I have something even harder to listen to, he, Han War, is so awesome, why did he leave us behind and run off to North County by himself? Isn't he a great hero? What's the point of running away with his tail between his legs in ashes? That's right, they abandoned us and hunkered down in North County. Letting us awaken people be imprisoned as slaves, such a person deserves to be called a hero, I shucks. Someone followed and chimed in. Han Zhan's eyes and nose did not respond. In fact, from the moment he left Deep Blue, he knew that someone would say this. After all, the name of hero, though not something he boasted about, had already been placed on his head. If you want to wear a crown, you have to bear the weight of it. It was normal for these abandoned awakened to have grievances as their lives were precarious. It was only that they were complaining to the wrong people. In Han Zhan's opinion, if they really wanted to, they should complain about the insect race, the everlasting company, the senate company, the old covenant, and the empire. The ones who should be the least complained about were those who had fought and killed in the main battlefield, as they had fought their hardest, and some had even paid with their lives. Without Han Zhan opening his mouth, Wang Chunyu had already taken the first step to fire back, what are you guys talking about here? If you really want to be capable, why don't you go to Deep Blue City yourselves, or are you guys able to do better than him? Can you fight alongside the Great Xia God of War, turn the tide and save the day? Besides, when Great Xia's territory was seized, instead of looking for trouble from those who seized the territory, you instead scold those who defended the territory and retreated to the last third of the territory. Is there really nothing wrong with your brains? Han Zhanmo scolded these people severely on behalf of Wang Chunyu. He was as good as three or five of them on his own, and he could speak well, quickly rendering those who were disgruntled with Han Zhan speechless. Returning from his victory, Wang Chunyu looked at Han Zhan, who was silent, and continued to ask, What's wrong? Say something. Tell me about what happened before Han War, I really want to know. Seeing as he had cursed so vigorously just now, Han Zhan told him about his previous affairs. Most of these things were things that had been rumored in Deep Blue City and nearby between several cities that everyone was familiar with. It was just that it was a lot more vivid and graphic when told by the man himself. Wang Chunyu's eyes glistened as he listened, and when Han Zhan said some of the behaviors that met his mental expectations, Wang Chunyu even clapped his hands in excitement. To be honest, such a way of self-reporting made Han Zhan feel awkward. Fortunately, this embarrassment didn't last long. A quarter of an hour later, as the troop carrier slammed to complete its mooring, the door of the troop carrier was opened. One after another, a group of figures walked in. Upon closer inspection, all of them were robots. One by one, they were turning on facial recognition, scanning and registering, and entering and verifying the personal information inside the troop carrier. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan secretly scared his tongue. The news Lin Jingxian had gotten also said that the Senate Merchant Company didn't care if there were any darkies mixed in, but the truth was that this was clearly a smokescreen. The Senate Merchant Company had deliberately released such news and then activated the face recognition entry system the first time the troop carrier landed down, so its purpose was self-evident. But fortunately, Eighth Brother had prevented this situation in advance, and the identity he used to infiltrate Titan City this time was indeed the spirit contractor of Tsanghai City. However, this spirit contractor himself had already died, and his identity had been impersonated by Han Zhan, and his looks and name were correct, 
so there was no danger of his identity being exposed. After completing the facial recognition and entry confirmation, the robot in the lead suddenly began to glow red, detected that all the personnel on this ship are between the ages of 18 and 30, meeting the screening requirements, beginning to distribute the distribution area. Automatic distribution is complete, distribution area confirmed, Mechanical Research Institute. Upon hearing that they were assigned to the Mechanical Research Institute as slaves, Han Zhan keenly perceived a slight, unnoticeable brightening in Wang Chunyu's eyes. Mechanical Research Institute, this was his destination? Without waiting for Han Zhan to ask for clarification, they were bound by robots with a special device that carried the effect of an inhibitor, specially developed for awakened people. Not only that, a capsule chip was injected into each of their necks at the same time. After the capsule chip was injected, they were loaded onto a black maglev transportation vehicle and transported to the Mechanical Research Institute at an extremely fast speed. The interior of Titan City was even more prosperous than what they had seen on the troop transport ship. It was like a true city of technology and cyber city, out of place in the end of the insect plague. Illuminated by blue and purple neon lights, most of the people walking on the road were robots. They had different shapes, representing different types of work. They were responsible for transportation, guards, security, and all other activities. Few of them looked like humans, but their bodies were equipped with mechanical prosthetics, which was very strange in terms of human aesthetics. Without giving Han Zhan a chance to look around for too long, the black maglev transportation vehicle carried them to the Mechanical Research Institute. The sensory gate immediately opened and they were sent to the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. Han Zhan noticed that Wang Chunyu slowly retreated backwards as the black maglev transportation vehicle arrived. The tiny move was not noticeable, and everyone's eyes were firmly locked outside. Han Zhan also followed him and took a few steps backward slightly, and just then, the door of the vehicle was opened and an octopus-like mechanical arm surged in from outside. They nimbly grabbed the slaves being transported over. Accompanied by a scream, these mechanical arms violently retracted again, not knowing where to go. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan was more and more certain in his heart that Wang Chunyu must have come to the Mechanical Research Institute, otherwise how could he explain it? Could it be that he had the ability to see things before they happen? Wang Chunyu didn't know that Han Zhan had already suspected himself at this time. He only promised to lead the crowd to a place of death without pain, other things were not within his promise. The mechanical arms were still grasping, and the commotion continued for a while until most of the people around them had already been taken, leaving a few standing alone and surviving. Go! Wang Chunyu suddenly turned his head and said to Han Zhan, and immediately afterward, he quickly rushed towards the car. Reacting, Han Zhan hurriedly followed, and the two of them shook off those unknown people behind them and began to rush towards the deeper section of the Mechanical Research Institute. When did you find out? During the quick run, Wang Chunyu asked without looking back. I'm a person who isn't very happy to trust people, and those who are solicitous for nothing are always treated as if they don't have a good heart. Han Zhang's words caused Wang Chunyu to freeze for a moment. He could only say inarticulately, what a good habit. Going from this side, those mechanical arms all have a grabbing range, radiating from the black maglev transport vehicle, within a thousand meters around is their grabbing range, after leaving this grabbing range, it will be temporarily safe. Why do you know all this? Who exactly are you? Wang Chunyu didn't answer Han Zhang's question as the two of them quickly walked through the passageway. Sure enough, after they ran out of the 1000 meter range, those mechanical arms stopped treating them as targets. New mechanical arms slowly came out from one of the doors again, twisting and probing like huge, thick pythons, and they very accurately grabbed the few survivors from before. It was only at this time that Han Zhang had the chance to take a closer look, only to see that the places where these mechanical arms were sticking out were all silver white doors, which were scattered around like a honeycomb. Looking upwards, there were at least a dozen of these doors on each floor, and the higher up they went, the fewer they were, like an inverted cone. Higher up, because of the strong light, it was no longer clear to see. The first mechanical arms that appeared just now were all high up, before going to the next level, and so on down. It seemed that there was a sequence for these mechanical arms to grab the experiments. We must leave the fishing area before the last layer of mechanical arms finish grabbing people, Wang Chunyu reminded. Fishing area? Haven't we already gotten out of the thousand meter range? The thousand meter range is just the cordon, when there are no slaves within the cordon, the program will release the poisonous fog by default, and conduct a thorough purification of the entire fishing area, not even the tiny dust cells will be spared. As he spoke Wang Chunyu's footsteps did not stop and he had already arrived in front of a special door. The color of this door was different from all the ones seen earlier, the other doors were silver white, only this one was gray. At this moment, this door was tightly closed, and if it wasn't for the fact that one could see traces of tight seams, it was generally the same color as the surrounding walls. Only to see Wang Chunyu familiarly touch this door, awakening a translucent electronic code, he quickly entered the code to show that it was correct, the gray door instantly opened. Quickly come up, this door's opening time is only 10 seconds, it's an emergency escape door. Wang Chunyu said, beckoning to Han Zhan behind him. When Han Zhan saw this scene, the suspicion in his heart became even stronger. Are you someone from the senator company? 
Otherwise, how would you know about this emergency escape door, and how could you possibly know the password? I am not. It's too late to explain to you now, you get on the elevator first, and when you get to your destination, you'll know. Wang Chinyu's tone was urgent and did not seem fake. Han Zhan pondered for a few seconds before taking a step to follow. He had just entered the escape door with his front foot when it instantly closed, and immediately afterward, through the perspective inside the escape door, he saw many deep purple mists erupting from the entire area all at once, and these mists shrouded almost the entire fishing area. Seeing this, Han Zhan already believed that all of what Wang Chinyu said was true, but there was still a great deal of confusion regarding his true identity. When the elevator doors opened again, there were no longer grey walls in front of them, but instead silver-white passages. These passages were connected in all directions, and all areas could be reached. If it was someone who had never been here before, facing such a complex to the extreme labyrinth of the lair, I'm afraid it would be very difficult to find a way out. Without seeing how Wang Chunyu recognized it, he had already led Han Zhan to the doorway of a special room in seven turns. Han Zhan looked up and saw the description of this room on the doorway, Research Program Mechanical Ascension. Seeing this name, Han Zhan suddenly had a bad feeling in his heart. But Wang Chunyu had already skillfully opened the door to the lab once again. The expected ambush did not happen. Only the instruments made a slight ticking sound, and the entire inside of the room was very quiet. Han Zhan dropped his guard and followed behind Wang Chunyu into this lab. That group of dog shit from the Senate Business Corporation are all absolutely confident in their own technology. The Mechanical Research Institute is their key head project, so there are relatively few guards here, and the only way to get in here is to become a slave research subject. Wang Chunyu did not turn around and explained directly behind him. This is your destination? Han Zhan looked around and quickly locked onto a target. It was a huge transparent water tank. Inside the cylindrical transparent water tank, it was currently filled with some sort of light green unknown liquid. In this cylindrical water tank, there was also a young girl who was filled with tubes. Her eyes were tightly closed, and countless tubes were connected from her body to the opposite side, a huge electronic equipment. At this moment, a special line like an electrocardiogram was slowly pulsing on the electronic instrumentation. When Wang Chunyu followed suit and looked up here, the young girl in the cylindrical transparent water tank suddenly opened her eyes unexpectedly and strangely looked at each other in all directions. You're here. A mechanical electronic synthesized tone suddenly came out from the huge electronic instrumentation device. The induction line diagram representing the electrocardiogram left and changed drastically. I'm coming. Wang Chunyu responded with a hoarse voice. Watching these two people as if they were in a secret code, the alarm bells went off in Han Zhan's heart. He subconsciously pulled away to prevent a sudden possible attack. Wang Chunyu pointed at the woman in the cylindrical water tank and spoke, You're right, she, is the purpose of my trip. Who is she? Shang Xiaoyun, and also my contracted spirit. Wang Chunyu's reply caught people off guard. Shang Xiaoyun? Her last name was Shang, could she be a merchant? The Senate Merchant Company was a family business, and as the merchant was at the helm of controlling this aircraft carrier, how could its people be used as test subjects and flourished here? It always felt like there was something wrong. There was no need for Han Zhan to voice his doubts, as Wang Chunyu seemed particularly agitated and had already told everything in full. Shang Xiaoyun and I, we met because of a chance encounter, and the merchants don't allow family members to use the Awakening Stone because in their opinion, it's the wrong path. The only path revered within the merchants is mechanical ascension. Xiaoyun was very curious about everything in the outside world because she was able to break away from that kind of environment of the merchants once in a while, so she just happened to touch the Awakening Stone and completed her awakening to become a contracted spirit. After becoming a contracted spirit, Shang Xiaoyun met Wang Chunyu and concluded a contract after developing mutual feelings for each other, and originally everything was fine. Until the merchants came and forced Shang Xiaoyun to take her back. Wang Chunyu originally thought, this is just a short parting, but never thought, this has become the last side of the two of them. Wang Chunyu frantically inquired, looking for relations, want to see Shang Xiaoyun, but all to no avail. In the beginning, he thought it was because his status was not worthy of Shang Xiaoyun, so he had also worked hard, and eventually climbed to the position of captain of the first squad of city protectors, finally having some power. But even so, the merchant still didn't intend to release Shang Xiaoyun so that she could be reunited with Wang Xunyu. The merchants thought that they did it without God knowing it, and within this city of titans, all the places are dotted with the merchant's high-tech eyes, and there is no way for all the Minutemen to hide. But what they didn't expect was that the natural ability that Xiaoyun awakened was an S-ranked flux sense. S-class talent empathy, two people with empathy are able to share their vision with each other, which means that everything that happened to Shang Xiaoyun and the merchant, Wang Chunyu had already known clearly through empathy. Because she awakened to become a deeded spirit and has the merchant bloodline, she is the best carrier for experimentation. The merchants have been researching things related to mechanical ascension, they first experimented with ordinary people, and then realized that awakened people have a higher degree of fitness for machinery, so they tried to do everything they could to experiment with awakened people. 
waiting until after the experiments reached a certain level, in order to verify the feasibility of the experiments, so they used awakened people with merchant bloodline to do the final experiment. In the eyes of the merchant people, everything would serve the experiment. And the ultimate goal of the experiment was to upload one's spiritual consciousness to the terminal through the machine, and then realize immortality and mechanical ascension. Such a crazy experiment, such a crazy idea, had gone through many generations. Looking at the Shang Xiaoyun in front of him was the result of the experiment a few versions ago. Xiaoyun's experiment failed, she became a failure. Yet it was still placed here, and every day, someone would come over and record the experimental data, while restoring her bodily functions for her and completing the renewal of her life. Was this what was called, living was more painful than dying? Han Zhan suddenly had some understanding of what made Wang Chunyu so empathetic. Through the talent, Tong Sense, Wang Chunyu experienced all of this that Shang Xiaoyun had gone through one by one, and it was only through Tong Sense, borrowing Wang Chunyu to feel the outside world, that Shang Xiaoyun stayed awake and didn't die out of her humanity, becoming a numb test prop. This makes sense. Wang Chunyu was familiar with everything in the Mechanical Research Institute, not because he was a merchant, but because he had a merchant deed spirit right here. So what's your plan? By all means enter here by becoming a slave, and then use the summoned young man as a shield for you, so that you yourself can take the opportunity to get rid of the mechanical arm and leave from the escape elevator, all of this is within your plan, right? For this plan today, Wang Chunyu didn't know how many times he had simulated it in his head. He did not deny Han Zhan's words. We were all injected with a capsule bomb in our necks, a special bomb developed specifically for awakened people, as long as there is a fluctuation of spiritual energy in the body, it will immediately explode. Once this kind of bomb is injected into the body, it will break down into the bloodstream and then flow throughout the body, unusual means can't weed it out at all, and it's extremely powerful. Once it explodes, one will be blown to pieces, with no bones left. As Wang Chunyi spoke, he had already walked over to the cylindrical transparent water tank, only to see that those metal tubes that were originally inserted into the giant mechanical apparatus, as if they had come to life one by one, had connected to his body. What are you doing? Han War asked. As you can see, blood exchange. Drawing out the blood that contains the fiery bombs in your body and replacing it with pure blood to re-inject into your body. The process was quick, and in less than a moment, a small capsule was re-extracted and placed in Wang Chunyu's hand. You try it too? He didn't intend to leave his own blood here, not to mention, after figuring out the explosion principle of the capsule bomb, it really wouldn't necessarily be able to injure himself. Once Han Zhan activated his, endless devouring, talent, he would be able to devour all of the microcapsule bombs within his blood, and he wouldn't be scared at all. Seeing Han Zhan's refusal, Wang Chunyu shrugged and didn't say anything more. He pinched the bomb and turned toward the door. Where are you going again? I'm going to give the merchants a little firework shock. Wang Chunyu said, raising the capsule bomb in his hand, and Han Zhan seemed to understand his thoughts a bit. From becoming a slave, to injecting the bomb, to entering the Mechanical Research Institute and extracting the bomb, the chain of events was intertwined. What did Wang Chunyu want to do with this weapon that the enemy had taken the initiative to send up? Soon, Han Zhan knew the answer only to see that Wang Chunyu passed through the complicated bug nest type maze to a hidden elevator, and after successfully entering the password again, he chose the topmost area. On the other side, Han Zhan did not follow Wang Chunyu. Because in his opinion, this was a personal vendetta between Wang Chunyu and the merchants, he hadn't forgotten the purpose of his trip, which was to quietly sneak into the city of Titans, then find the storage location of the energy cubes and loot the energy cubes. What Han Zhan should do more than anything else right now was to quietly disappear, preferably an unexpected fake death to get away. Only then would it be convenient for him to continue acting. Just then, an electronic synthesized voice suddenly rang in his ears. Please, can you, save him? Don't let him, go and do what moths do. Merchant, it's not something he can shake, don't take revenge for me, don't take revenge for me. Drip drip drip. A series of beeps rang out from the huge mechanical instrument, and the frequency on the EKG grew faster and faster. I refuse, Han Zhan said without hesitation. Not to mention that they were not relatives, even if they were related, he could still tell the difference between choosing between plundering the energy cube and risking the exposure of his identity to save a person. As if he hadn't expected Han Zhan to refuse so decisively, the owner of the electromechanical synthesized voice froze for a moment. What will it take for you to be willing to help me? I can tell you where the merchant's treasure is hidden, I can tell you all the progress of the development of the most advanced technology, I can. Even in the most emotionless electronic voice, Han Zhan heard a hint of urgency. Wait, interrupt. You're saying that you know the merchant's treasure location and know the progress of the development of state-of-the-art technology? Are you sure you're not talking nonsense? What a joke! Weren't these all top secrets of the merchants? Shang Xiaoyun was just an experiment, what made her able to know all this? This was just as outrageous as walking down the street and having an old man suddenly mysteriously come up to you and tell you that he was the first emperor of Qin and beat the money to seal you as a great general. It's true. Although the experiment of mechanical ascension on me ultimately failed, part of my consciousness was still uploaded into the terminal. 
The merchant's special core terminal, that contains the consciousness of successive generations of merchants, many of the secret secrets are in there, and were read a lot by me. You forgot why Wang Chunyu knew the secret passageway, the unlocking code. That's true. Shang Xiaoyun was trapped in the water tank and couldn't get out at all, so if there wasn't any special reason, how did Wang Chunyu know so many access codes? Han Zhan had already had this doubt in his heart, and hearing Shang Xiaoyun's explanation about this, he was already halfway convinced. I'm willing to pass these secret secrets to you by way of consciousness airwaves, so that you can know the information that I know. It's just consciousness airwaves, if there's really any danger, could I still drill out of the tank and hurt you? Shang Xiaoyun's words caused Han Zhan to hesitate. From the looks of things it was indeed as she had said, and he hadn't been able to find the location where the energy cube was stored since he had entered the city of Titans. If Shang Xiaoyun had read the conscious memory that contained the location of the energy cube, wouldn't that be a waste of effort? After weighing the benefits and risks in his mind, Han Zhan agreed. You don't have to get close to me. Shang Xiaoyun seemed to be afraid that Han Zhan didn't trust himself and took the initiative, I only need a conductor wire. Consciousness conduction is very convenient for experimental bodies like us, and theoretically speaking, this direction of merchants' research would also be an extremely pinnacle technological breakthrough in a sense if it really succeeded. Imagine if consciousness was immortal and was able to transmit knowledge through simple conduction of consciousness, how rapidly should knowledge be accumulated? Mad scientists, mad experiments. Han Zhan didn't play coy, nor did he pretend to be any kind of big head, stopping in place as he was told. A metal tube slowly probed out from inside the large mechanical device. The tube had a smooth surface, and the joint was a special material that was round and crystalline. Han Zhan was on guard and waited until the tube approached him. It didn't change its form, it just moved in an unusual motion to approach Han War against his forehead. A cold touch came from his forehead. In the next second, a large amount of information transmitted by the consciousness instantly exploded inside Han Zhan's brain. This sensation made it too late for Han Zhan to even react, and he just opened his mouth before his entire body blacked out and fainted. It's finally done. Wang Chunyu, who saw the scene through the shared vision, pushed his way in through the door. This guy, he's really overly cautious, I swiped so much goodwill along the way, and he didn't even take it lightly at all. Luckily you bluffed him in the end. Wang Chunyu said as he quickly lifted up Han Zhan and carried him towards the water tank. By the way, this guy's mouth rattled a bit before he passed out just now, what did he say? He said, grass, infinite empty place. What the hell? Forget it, don't bother with him, Xiaoyun, wait for me for a while, wait for me to transfer all the neural pathway tubes in your body to his, so that you can stay out of the way of the merchants group. Wait for me, little cloud. Soon we can replace you with this scapegoat, and we'll then follow the plan to escape Titan City, find a place where they can't find us, and never be separated again for the rest of our lives. Wang Chunyu was still chattering away. The movements in his hands were skillful and swift, as if he had rehearsed them countless times beforehand. No, not as if, he had rehearsed it countless times. Rescuing Shang Xiaoyun, this matter, was the only meaning for him, Wang Chunyu, to still endeavor to live. Shun, Chunyu. Shang Xiaoyun's electronic voice suddenly rang out, can you wait a moment first? Wait? Wait for what, Xiaoyun, don't worry, I've practiced countless times, nothing will go wrong, I'll be quick, trust me. Aha. Uh -huh. Chunyu, I remember your idol correctly, it should be Han Battle right, it's that Dashia hero, New Hope, Han Battle. That's right. Han War is my idol. Wang Chunyu replied without stopping in his hands, he's the hero of Dixia, and I've dreamed since I was a child that I could one day be a hero as well. He did what I didn't do. By the way, after we escape the city of Titans, we can also go to the northern county. But if we go to the north county, we can't both get bored every day, as a Dashia person, we still have to contribute something. Why don't you say anything, Xiaoyun? In the midst of the silence, Shang Xiaoyun's electronic voice rang out intermittently. What if, let me tell you, the person you're tying up right now is Han War. Wang Chunyu's hand, which was rapidly pulling out and inserting the neuron catheter, lurched. He lowered his head and didn't speak. You lie to me, you're lying to me, aren't you, Xiaoyun? Chunyu, consciousness conduction is a two-way street. It is not only capable of inputting consciousness to the other party, it can also obtain part of the consciousness from the other party, you know that. Shang Xiaoyun paused, just now, in the fragment of consciousness that came back from his mind, it was the likeness of another person. And that person is your idol, Han War. Chunyu, Wang Chunyu squatted there motionlessly, listening to Shang Xiaoyun's words as if he had become a statue. In order to save his beloved, he could be a dog, betray his compatriots, and count others as scapegoats, doing everything. But why was it like this? Why was it that when he was about to succeed, the man in front of him was the person he admired the most, the spiritual leader of the Grand Xia, Han War? Wang Chunyu's shoulders began to shrug violently, he subconsciously turned his back, but he had never thought that Shang Xiaoyun, who was in a state of flux, would still be able to see that he was already in tears, or else, forget it. Shang Xiaoyun slowly said, although I'm not from Dixia, I know how much he means to your Dixia. The way we are now, it's quite good. Where is it good? Wang Chunyu turned his head and roared lowly in a hoarse tone. Love and righteousness are worth a thousand words. 
What if it's one or the other? When Han Zhan Ri awoke, there was still some swelling and pain in his head that hadn't receded. He subconsciously reached out and rubbed his temples before reacting to what was wrong and looking violently to the side. Not far away, Wang Chunyu dropped down to sit there, his face looking as if he had aged much more than a moment ago. Tell us the purpose of your trip, and we will provide all the help we can. Shang Xiaoyun's Meccano electronic synthesized voice sounded once again. Just now, it was this electronic synthesized voice that didn't sound like it had any emotional fluctuations that deceived Han Zhan's judgment, causing his entire mind to instantly explode with knowledge and faint. But it seemed like they didn't take the opportunity to do anything. Hearing Shang Xiaoyun's words, Han Zhan understood. You guys already know my identity? It's the two-way nature that consciousness conduction has? This wave was his carelessness. However, it wasn't completely unproductive, and from the massive amount of memorized consciousness information that Shang Xiaoyun had stuffed into his brain, Han Zhan had managed to find the location of the large warehouse regarding the storage of the energy cubes. With the location, there was a target, no need to scurry around like a headless fly. In the face of the goodwill released by Shang Xiaoyun, Han Zhan fought for a moment and answered truthfully, I infiltrated Titan City this time for the energy cube bricks. Upon hearing Han Zhan's answer, Wang Chunyu, who had been sitting disheveled on the ground, suddenly raised his head. True enough, this is the choice you should have. When Wang Chunyu said this, he suddenly stopped again, as if he had thought of something sad, and the entire person fell silent once again. You quickly leave from here. Every 24 hours, someone will come over on a regular basis to check my vital state and restore my vitality. It will be difficult for you guys to leave again by then. Shang Xiaoyun urged. Wang Chunyu exhaled a deep breath of turbid air. He stood up again and patted his clothes vigorously. Let's go, follow me, I know an escape route that can go straight out from here and arrive outside the Mechanical Research Institute. What about her? What about him? Han Zhan pointed at Shang Xiaoyun and asked, if possible, the three of us will escape together. It's useless, those tubes on her body, all of them are used to absorb transmitting neuron signals. These signals are connected to the terminals, once the signals are broken, the merchant will immediately realize it, and no one will be able to run away at that time. So, Wang Chunyu's original plan was to trick himself into following him here, and then act as a scapegoat to save Shang Xiaoyun by switching him out. What changed this idea of his? Is it because they know that I'm Han Zhan? Thinking about this, Han Zhan fell silent. He didn't know how to comment or what to say. Let's go, you're not to blame for this. Wang Chunyu suddenly pulled out a smile, returning to his original, more familiar appearance. Originally, I also had the selfishness to lie to you, and now that I've successfully sent you out again, the two of us are even. Saying this, he turned his head again to look at the young girl in the water tank behind him, his eyes filled with reluctance and unwillingness within them, but soon, he withdrew his gaze. Xiaoyun, if you miss this opportunity, there will definitely be another one, I will never give up. After saying that, he turned around and firmly walked towards the door. Regret? It's not too late to regret, we can think of other ways. On the way, Han Zhan asked Wang Chunyu. Regret, of course I regret it, regretting how I didn't realize that it was actually you when I chose the person in the first place. If it was someone else, I would have already fled Titan City with Xiao Yun by now. Speaking here, Wang Chunyu smiled miserably. Maybe this is fate, it's destined that I won't succeed this time. But being able to help my idol, this visit to Titan City wasn't in vain. Wang Chunyu braced his optimistic tone as the two of them quickened their pace and traveled through the hive labyrinth. Drip drip drip. A sharp alarm was pulled. At the center of Skynet, an expressionless human face silhouette appeared on the large screen. Looking closely, it was a lifelike digital human face composed of a string of zeros and ones. It looked at the staff below and spoke, sounding the level 3 alarm, two rats escaped from the Mechanical Research Institute. The number of people who ended up uploading the experimental data does not match the number of people who entered the Mechanical Research Institute. After saying that, the big screen began to constantly change pictures. Soon, Wang Chunyu's picture, as well as the picture of the person that Han War had impersonated, appeared on the big screen. It's these two, catch them. Roger. After the highest order was given, the Skynet staff quickly took action as they began to access all the surveillance cameras throughout the Mechanical Research Institute, looking for where these two people might appear. Not a moment later, they saw the figures of these two people again from the surveillance cameras. How did they know the access code? Watching these two people walk through the complicated maze as if they were in no man's land, they familiarized themselves with the pathway code and opened it time and time again to enter the next area. Many question marks popped up above their heads, could it be that there was a mole? Apply to raise the state of affairs level to the second level, contact the security team immediately now and have them head to the Mechanical Research Institute to surround the perimeter. Capture these two people, they must be captured alive, I want to know where they obtained the coded information from. One order after another was given. At this moment, Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu were still unaware of the impending danger. The entire Mechanical Research Institute was just too big, like a hive maze, and the major areas made them consume a lot of time. In that case, the capsule bomb in my body has also been extracted by you guys using the same method? Then where is the bomb? Where is the bomb? The bomb. Bomb is in. 
Finished, why didn't I think of this? After the bomb was extracted, it was left in the research room. It's too late to go back and retrieve it now, the time consumed in going back and forth is enough for the security team to react. Muttering to himself, Wang Chunyu gritted his teeth and could only continue walking forward with Han Zhan with a stiff upper lip. Not waiting for them to go far, suddenly the alarm bells rang loudly throughout the Mechanical Research Institute. In an instant, the lights above all the pathways turned an alert red color. The pathways that had originally been opened also began to reclose at this moment, and the thick gates began to fall, completely blocking off each area. Seeing this scene in front of him, Wang Chunyu's face suddenly turned ugly. It's not good, it looks like they've already discovered us. I knew the Skynet mastermind wasn't that easy to fool. Wang Chunyu cursed as he quickened his pace and rushed towards the final destination of their trip. A vertical downward escape shaft. Through this escape well, they would be able to come to the underground of the Mechanical Research Institute and leave from the underground, which was Wang Chunyu's plan from the very beginning. Only, when they arrived at the site of the escape well and looked down, a large number of security robots had been densely assembled below the escape well. They possessed a pure silver metallic luster that was very conspicuous. Wang Chunyu retracted his gaze as he looked behind him at Han Zhan. There's a change in plan, looks like we'll have to change paths. In Wang Chunyu's escape plan, there were a total of three routes prepared. He had really prepared for too long for this rescue. Wang Chunyu hastily discarded other thoughts and continued to focus on running. The security team robots of the participant company were extremely fast, and the distance between the two sides was shrinking at a rate visible to the naked eye. Fortunately, those slowly closing regional access gates gave them the opportunity to distance themselves again. They only saw Wang Chunyu and Han Zhan slip on their knees and managed to pass under the doors, stopping the robots chasing them outside. Why aren't we fighting back? Han Zhan asked with some puzzlement as he looked at the door closing behind him. He was now at the sixth rank, and the young man beside him named Wang Chunyu looked like he had at least third rank strength as well. Facing those super alloy robots, it wouldn't take much for them to kill back. But Wang Chunyu didn't even think about it, didn't even look at it, and didn't even have the thought of fighting them, which made Han Zhan strange. It's the rule set by the Skynet brain, as long as one doesn't display the strength of an awakened against the vigilante group, then the state of affairs level will be at the third level. At the third level, the Senate Corporation is limited in the amount of manpower it can deploy. But if one reveals the strength of an awakened, or kills a robot of the vigilante group, then the Skynet brain will reassess and raise the state of affairs level. When it really comes to that time, the sky will be covered with all the super warriors and armored battleships of the Senate Corporation, so there's no way to run. Wang Chunyu explained. He hadn't expected that the highest authority within the Sunshine Company would be given to a Skynet brain. Han War had thought that the Senate Merchant Company was always dominated and controlled by merchants, but it turned out that this was not the case. Seemingly guessing what Han War had in mind, Wang Chunyu went on to explain, the merchants feel that humans tend to favor sensibility not enough rationality, whereas the Skynet brain represents absolute rationality, its judgments can't be wrong, and at least in 99, 99% of things, it's able to make the most correct judgments. Even if someone exploits the rules to drill a hole, there will soon be an inspection team to manually report and make up for the shortcomings. This mode of handling, with the Skynet smart brain as the main focus and the inspector group of the participating merchant company as a supplement, is the most suitable way for merchants that they have constantly worked out. These were all things that Shang Xiaoyun told Wang Chunyu, and as he spoke, the surrounding sirens suddenly raised their pitch and became high-pitched. Hearing this sound, Wang Chunyu's face revealed an anxious look, damn it, why is the response speed of the inspection team so fast this time? How long has it been since the manpower report was approved, damn it? Outside the Mechanical Research Institute, in the air. A silver-colored shuttle came cutting through the sky. In these shuttles, heavily armed merchant alien wreck warriors were ready to go. Unlike the super-alloy robots of the vigilante group, these alien skeleton warriors were cutting-edge forces that the merchants had spent a huge amount of money to cultivate. Their body parts would be remodeled with special weapons and materials, and after the remodeling, they would gain strength and abilities beyond normal people. This type of remodeling was similar to the Changeling Company's alteration, but not exactly the same, going in two different directions. Without having to be instructed, after the alien wreck warriors finished assembling, they acted in unison, coincidentally choosing to break the window and quickly burst into the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. Hold your breath and hold on for another two minutes. Han Zhan's whispering voice rang in his ears. The two of them were now covered by a special camouflage cloth. The two of them who had retraced their steps back to the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute were already surrounded by super alloy robots, as well as the alien skeleton warriors that kept joining in. If they wanted to break out from the encirclement, the difficulty would increase geometrically. This piece of camouflage cloth was carried by Han Zhang, a prop from the 8th war zone. Its function was also very simple, that is, it was able to help with concealment, and the process of concealment could cover up multiple aspects such as body shape, odor, and body temperature. It was most suitable to be used against these robots and alien skeleton warriors that were extremely dependent on high-tech products. However, the camouflage cloth also had a drawback, that is, it could not be moved. 
and once the camouflage was cast it had to remain in place. Fortunately, although Wang Chunyu and the others couldn't see outside, utilizing his S-class talent of empathic senses, Wang Chunyu was able to see the situation outside through Shang Xiaoyun's perspective. Beside them, a small team of ten alien wreck warriors had already walked over, only that in the scanning of their vision, it was empty in front of them, with no one in sight. Sector F detected, no anomalies found. The alien skeleton warriors reported to the command center. Suddenly one of them raised his head and looked keenly a hundred meters above his head. What have we got? Visual detectors sense someone peering this way, exact bearing coordinates. X423, Y611, Z779. All alien wreck warriors in the communication channel quickly approach this coordinate. After hearing the coordinates, the leader of the alien wreck warriors made an immediate decision and shouted into the communicator channel. They quickly left this area and rushed towards the bearing where they had just sensed someone spying on them. Oh no, it's Xiaoyun who's been discovered. Through Shang Xiaoyun's perspective, he saw a team of alien skeleton warriors, including super alloy robots, rushing in his direction. No, I'm going to save her. Wang Chunyu said and lifted the camouflage cloth, about to rush in that direction. Han Zhan didn't stop him. But in the very next second, he suddenly stopped in his tracks, his face showing bitterness. Does it have to be like this? Wang Chunyu muttered as he looked at the air in front of him. Only Han Zhan knew that he should be communicating with Shang Xiaoyun through his S-class talent of empathy. Chunyu, don't come over. If you come over now, I'll detonate it immediately. Shang Xiaoyun pinched a tiny capsule with his electronic tentacles in his empathic state. Capsule bomb. It was Shang Xiaoyun who had secretly left the capsule bomb behind herself after helping Han Zhan take it out and hadn't alerted the others. Xiaoyun. Only after seeing this scene did Wang Chunyu stop in his tracks. Chunyu, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm a merchant. I'm sorry that I couldn't be by your side for so many years and brought you so much stress and negativity. I'm sorry you wasted so much energy and youth on me. Actually, I wanted to die a long time ago, Junyu. I'm too tired of living, and I chose to be timid when facing the future. Go on, go escape from here with your idol and help him complete this mission, haven't you always wanted to be a hero? Now the chance has come. Our family, Chunyu, in my heart, you've always been my hero. Go for it, Chunyu. Wang Chunyu listened to Shang Xiaoyun's broken thoughts like he was listening to a dying farewell. The straight line distance between them was no more than 500 meters, but at this point, it was like the distance between life and death. He knelt on the ground, holding his head in agony. At this time, the security team and the alien wreck warriors had already arrived at the target room, pushed open the door and walked in. They heard a cold, mechanically synthesized voice, farewell, my love. There was a loud explosion, accompanied by metal debris and shredded limbs flying in all directions. The capsule bomb, as the senator corporation's means of controlling slaves, its power could not be underestimated, and could even be said to be beyond imagination. The super alloy robots and alien skeleton warriors responsible for the pursuit were cleared out. Han Zhan grabbed Wang Chunyu, who was still kneeling on the ground, and rushed towards the second escape location in the target. The second escape location was a research cabin, and because of the nature of the research, this research cabin was able to lead directly to an external water source, and thus was chosen by Wang Chunyu as the second escape location. When the two of them sped up and arrived here, the newly reinforced super alloy robots and alien skeleton warriors had not arrived. Seeing this scene, their lifted hearts relaxed a little. Cheer up! Shang Xiaoyun used her own life to create this opportunity for us, do you want her efforts to go to waste? No, you don't understand, you won't understand this feeling at all. Xiaoyun is dead. She's dead. I don't understand? Then you think, when I personally told my teacher the way to take death, and then watched him walk step by step towards death, that feeling of being powerless do you think I wouldn't understand? This feeling, it's like killing him with your own hands ah. Han Zhang's words caused Wang Chunyu to regain his composure. So, the dead are gone, and it's the ones who survived that should try even harder to live. After Han Zhan finished speaking, he didn't wait for Wang Chunyu to reply and pushed open the door of the research module one step ahead of him. When they pushed open the door and walked in, the scene in front of them made them stop violently. Only to see that inside the research module, a person was sitting there with his eyes closed. When he heard the pod door being opened, he opened his eyes wide. State of affairs level elevated, current state of affairs level, level 2. Casualties to the vigilante group and alien skeleton warriors have occurred, additional manpower is permitted. Hazard assessment of the other party, currently unable to assess, only able to determine that the dangerous target still has a NA-29 capsule bomb in his hands, the explosion killing power is extremely high, recommend dispatching 5-star alien wreckage warriors to suppress it. Skynet Brain gave the latest instruction. 5-star alien skeleton warriors were similar in strength to the building's 5th order spirit fellowship masters, and as the state of affairs rose in rank, more and more eyes were cast on the Mechanical Research Institute. This night was destined to be unsettled. In the sky, an extremely special craft traced across the sky, its crimson tail flame made it look like a rapidly falling red comet. When the smoke cleared, a silhouette slowly walked out of the red comet. The five-star alien wreck warrior, who was also the head of security in this area, Shang Lin. 
Upon seeing him, the other alien skeleton warriors in charge of surrounding the Mechanical Research Institute all made way. Shang Lin had just received the new alien rec transformation program today and felt like his body was filled with brand new power. The transformation wasn't completely free, in order to be able to continue with the transformation, he needed to keep earning merits and rewards to pay for it. As soon as he heard that there was a mission over here, he had rushed here as fast as he could. There's no need to even talk about the situation, the brain has already shared it with us, now tell us where the people are. According to our speculation, there should still be one escapee left nowadays, and one capsule bomb is still left to be detonated. Part of the area has had its surveillance destroyed because of the explosion. According to the last surveillance location, the area he entered should be the research capsule in area B. Immediately head to area B with me. No, wait, use the astral shuttle function directly. Shang Lin waved his hand, only to see him press a certain button on his arm, and in the next second his entire body transformed into a ball of starlight, quickly merging into the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. The astral body shuttle function was extremely loaded on the body, and one would normally not use it in normal times. Shang Lin had already given the word, and the other several alien skeleton warriors could only use this astral body shuttling function, which could only be used after being transformed by a special alien skeleton, with a stiff upper lip. Several channels of starlight converged at the same time, coalescing in front of the door of the research module in Area B at an extremely fast speed. Shang Lin coldly examined it, and in his pupil scan, there were indeed traces left on the hatch. Not only that, he also saw a standing figure inside the research pod through his pupil scan. Break the door. With his command, his men took the lead and directly smashed the door open. An image of a scientific researcher in a white coat appeared inside. Assistant Lu, why are you here? Joke, this is a scientific research cabin, if I'm not here, am I in your Senate business company's cage? Humph, it seems that the people of the fifth war zone don't have such hard bones as imagined. Are you here to argue with me? Shang Lin stopped talking nonsense with him and instead looked around, surveying the room. This assistant Lu in front of him was a Dasha captive, and it was only because he was good at healing and was an expert spirit contractor in healing that the senator company had left him behind to be specially hired as an assistant to assist in the research. Shang Lin didn't quite believe what he said. This room was definitely still hiding someone. The reason why he was so sure was because from the time they realized that the other party had entered this place until the arrival of his own party's personnel, the difference in time was no more than two minutes. In such a short period of time, the other party would definitely not have time to escape or move. Assistant Lu are you sure you want to help him? Don't forget that the other spirit contractors in your 5th district are all still staying inside the prison. Being threatened by Shang Lin, the assistant Lu in front of him suddenly glanced to his right side with a veiled expression, his left hand slowly raised, his finger pointing to the pile of boxes on his right side. On the surface he still said in a very arrogant tone, what the hell are you guys talking about? I have no idea at all, I'm the only one here, please get out. Seeing such a knowledgeable assistant Lu, Shang Lin nodded his head. He signaled his left and right with his eyes, and the barrels of everyone's guns were raised in unison, aiming at the pile of boxes on the right. Right at this moment, someone in the pile of boxes suddenly lifted the hidden camouflage cloth, then violently rushed towards them. In the next second, an intense flash of light caused everyone's eyes to go white, temporarily blinding them. Taking advantage of this gap, the other party had already broken out of the encirclement and ran in another direction. The target has escaped. Assistant Lu, thank you for your cooperation. After greeting the other party unhurriedly, Shang Lin turned around and chased after the target in the direction he had fled. In his opinion, this was nothing more than a game of cat and mouse. The only thing he needed to beware of was that capsule bomb. Wait, capsule bomb? Suddenly, Shang Lin seemed to have sensed something, and he looked violently at his feet. At some point, there were already many densely packed tiny particles sprinkled underneath their feet, and these particles were precisely the ingredients that made up the capsule bomb. When? Why was the other party able to take out the capsule bombs? A loud explosive sound rang out. Shang Lin, Assistant Lu, were all blown out by this explosive shockwave, and the others were even directly blown to smithereens. Damn it! Amidst the rumbling flames, Shang Lin rescued Assistant Lu, who was about to be engulfed in flames, and threw him to the side before his gaze looked ferociously in the direction where the rat had fled. Having been teased repeatedly, he was already completely angry. At this moment, Shang Lin's clothes had already been burned empty, revealing 80% of his bones in a bare state, which were surprisingly all made of special metals. He violently stomped his foot, and his entire body was like a discharged cannonball, shooting in the direction where his eyes were locked. Time traveled back to three minutes ago. When Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu pushed the door into the research module, they saw the person sitting in the research module. The other party opened his eyes and saw them as well. Wang Chunyu subconsciously tried to turn around and run, but Han Zhan reached out and yanked him back. Wang Chunyu was unsure, and saw Han Zhan suddenly step forward and take the initiative to speak, Nine Palace Hot Pot, it tastes good. The person on the opposite side froze for a moment. But soon, all sorts of complex emotions erupted within his eyes, and in the end, he just gave this stranger in front of him a deep look. 
Not bad indeed. Lu Jingchen nodded and responded. He sat down again. Seeing the scene, Wang Chunyu was a bit puzzled, not knowing what kind of code words these two people were saying. But at least it could be confirmed that this person across from him was not an enemy. Suddenly, Lu Jingchen looked at Wang Chunyu behind Han Zhan again and spoke, I'm the head of the fifth war zone, Lu Jingchen. Wang Chunyu was violently startled, looking up at this unassuming man in front of him. He was actually the head of a major war zone? Yes, I had long heard that the fifth war zone had been taken over and controlled by the Senate Merchant Company in advance after the outbreak of the Deep Blue Doom, and as a stronghold of the Great Xia for the treatment of spirit fellowship masters, their combat tactics were not outstanding. After the end of the chaotic war, the fifth war zone was taken over by the Samsara Corporation and began to recruit this part of the spirit contractors and spirits. The people from the participant company used the lives of the other people in the fifth war zone as a threat to get me to help them with their auxiliary healing work. This was said to Wang Chunyu, but anyone with a discerning eye knew that he was explaining to Han Zhan. Our time is limited, so to make a long story short, we need to escape from here. You guys are talking about the external water source that this research module leads to, right? It could be, but Titan City just recently made waterway changes and has completely moved the end of this passageway to the outside. You guys went through all the trouble of sneaking in, so you shouldn't be doing it just to visit here, right? Lu Jingchuan's news caused both Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu to freeze for a moment. If it was just Wang Chunyu's original plan to flee after rescuing Shang Xiaoyun, he hadn't given it much thought at all. Now after Lu Jingchun reminded him of this, he realized that there was a big problem. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. Wang Chunyu had just opened his mouth when Han Zhan raised his hand to interrupt. Now is not the time to pursue who's right and who's wrong, the pursuers from the Senate Merchant Company outside are almost here, we only have a very short time left, we have to come up with a way. Since this one escape location won't work, we'll head to the next one. The main problem now is how to deal with this wave of pursuers. Lu Jingchen bowed his head in deep thought and did not make a sound. Suddenly, Wang Chunyu snapped his head up and voiced his idea. I can be responsible for luring away the pursuers, don't forget that we now have an information gap, they may not know that there are two of us. In the eyes of those dead brains who completely believe in machine calculations, a capsule bomb exploding means that only one person is left. So, as long as I expose myself early, then draw them away and attract heading in the opposite direction. As long as I stall for time, you can reach the third escape location and leave the Mechanical Research Institute. After Wang Chunyu finished speaking, he realized that both Lu Jingchun and Han Zhan looked at him. The method is good, only, in that case, how are you going to escape the pursuit? I naturally have my methods, don't forget that I know quite a lot of things in my head. Wang Chunyu said, pointing a finger at his head. Shang Lin, a five-star alien wreck warrior, pointed his finger at Wang Chunyu's head. In the next second, gushing tongues of fire erupted from Shang Lin's fingertips. It was clearly an extremely lethal flame-tipped bullet. As if he had eyes behind his head, Wang Chunyu quickly lowered his head, rolled on the ground on the spot, and then directly rolled into another path on the side. This slippery stinking rat. When Shang Lin saw that he had missed a blow, he let out a low roar of indignation. The internal roads of the Mechanical Research Institute were as complicated as a labyrinth, and even the people of the institute could get lost occasionally, not to mention alien wreck warriors like him who had never been here a few times. Originally, they were two professions that could not be connected, and would not have any intersections. As a result, this Dasha rat called Wang Chunyu in front of him had utilized the advantages of the terrain and road several times to throw himself off. This kind of feeling was very upsetting. Wang Chunyu felt the flaming spike bullets that flew through his hair, even though he had dodged very quickly, the scorching air waves still caused a line of his hair to be burnt, and the smell of rotten eggs filled the air. The overall map about the Mechanical Research Institute was being presented in his head in its entirety like a labyrinth that was countless times more complicated. It had taken him five years to memorize all the details on this map. Five years, five years on this day, he thought it would be the day he reunited with his beloved and escaped with his life. He never thought that he would be caught in this life and death chase. I never wanted to be any kind of hero. I'm just a small person who wanted to save my beloved and escape the chaos of the end of the insect plague. But now, my lover is dead. She was killed by you people. Rats? Ha, huh, even if I'm a rat, I'll still bite off a piece of meat from you all. Wang Chunyu muttered to himself, he had already run into a dead end without realizing it, behind him, Shang Lin, who was in hot pursuit, and the new robots of the security group that had been reinforced, had already swarmed over one after another. Run ah, why don't you keep running? Aren't you very capable of running? Behind him, Shang Lin's mocking voice rang out as he came out that this was a dead end. A dead end meant that this person in front of him, couldn't run away. Ha 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 ha, Shang Lin laughed somewhat triumphantly. Suddenly, Wang Chunyu on the opposite side followed suit and laughed even louder than Shang Lin. Shang Lin stopped laughing. I'm going to capture you alive, send you to that group of scientific research maniacs for a living brain slice, dig out who actually betrayed the Senate Merchant Company, and then make both you and that person's life worse than death. The threatening words, unfortunately, could no longer threaten Wang Chunyu. He hung his head low and leaned his back against the wall at the end, panting slightly. 
That's why I've always felt that all the people in the Senate Merchant Company are idiots. Relying so much on high technology and relying on computational analysis for everything has made you lose the most basic ability to judge conspiracies. Is it true that a capsule bomb must only explode once? Take a look at the map, if you have one, and see who this dead end is actually a burial place for. And, I'll say one more thing. Merit doesn't have to be mine. In my life, I've always bent the rules and not had enough fun. My favorite woman was trapped in an unreachable place, in order to save her I used every means, years of preparation, plotting and calculating dirty tricks to betray my compatriots. But she still died, and I chose to be a hero. Why would I want to be a hero? Laughing, you do not want to awe? When I say no, I'm just lying to you. Shang Xiaoyun, I can finally be a hero. Shang Xiaoyun, I'm coming for you. It was night, and a bright and dazzling golden spark suddenly bloomed in the sky above the entire Titan city. The rumbling explosion collapsed half of the Mechanical Research Institute. It looked like, a prison cell that had been bitten down hard by someone. Super threshold energy fluctuation detected. Explosion analysis, the Mechanical Research Institute primary energy power reserve center has been ignited, generating a serial explosion. Current area head, 5-star alien skeleton warrior Shine Lin has been lost. The state of affairs is upgraded, current level, first level. As the lines appeared on the big screen, the Skynet Center was now operating at high speed, and they had all seriously underestimated the harm that the rat could bring. The Mechanical Research Institute, no, now it should be called, half within mechanical research. Looking up at the dazzling and incomparable flames in the distance, reflected in Han Zhan's eyes, his eyes also reflected the blazing fire. Wang Chunyu. Han War silently whispered his name, congratulations, you're a hero too. After he said this, he stopped stopping and rushed towards the third escape location without looking back. Wang Chunyu had bought him enough time, but this way was likewise a double-edged sword, because the commotion made was too great. Although a wave of pursuers had been purged, the Skynet brain must have raised the risk level of this place once again, so that next time, it might not just be five-star alien skeleton warriors that came. At that time, if one wanted to escape from this place again, it would be extremely difficult. The third escape location was the garbage warehouse of the Mechanical Research Institute. Inside, all of them were piled up with all kinds of research garbage, and every night at a fixed time period, a garbage cleanup discharge would be conducted. This was also his chance to escape from here. As soon as Han Zhan entered the garbage warehouse, he was shocked by the densely packed garbage scene in front of him. It was hard to imagine that just a mechanical research institute would be able to create and produce so much garbage in a day's time. He continued to walk inside, and in the mountain of garbage, he saw severed limbs and arms belonging to human beings, with half of their palms exposed and their middle fingers erected. On the other side of the mountain of garbage, there were a few severed heads, and they were the same young men who had been escorted here at the same time as Han Zhan and the others, the ones who had cursed at Han Zhan. Their bodies had gone to who knows where, and their heads had been split open, with all sorts of red and white things flowing and mixing, making the entire air filled with a strong smell of blood. There were many more such images. The cruelty and insanity of the Senate Merchant Company was visible in this place. Han Zhan frowned as he continued to walk towards the interior, the fixed time for the garbage discharge was 1 a.m. M. Based on those messages that Shang Xiaoyun transmitted to him in his brain, he quickened his pace. Just then, he suddenly sensed a hint of something strange. There was a feeling of being secretly spied on. Someone? Han Zhan suddenly stopped in his tracks. As a martial artist who was stronger than an ordinary person, he possessed an extremely sharp six senses. Once a gaze lingered on him for more than three seconds, he would be able to detect it. This feeling of being sized up and gazed it could not be wrong. Just as Han Zhan stopped walking, that prying feeling immediately disappeared as well. He didn't believe it and resumed walking forward again, and before he took two steps, that prying feeling fell back onto his body. Han Zhan closed his eyes and carefully recalled the vague direction when the peeping sensation appeared just now, he violently opened his eyes and turned around to rush towards a garbage heap. The trash heap in front of him had been piled up into a small mountain, which was not conspicuous in the vast number of trash mountains. When Han Zhan turned over the pile of garbage, he saw a strange iron lump. Robot? Han War warned carefully, see this iron pimple robot has never moved, as if completely scrapped. He lifted the entire thing out of the mountain of garbage. It was indeed a small robot without a doubt. Only this robot was very tattered, with two crude arms and two legs that were only connected with worn-out hydraulic connecting rods, and a square rounded head that only barely showed the robot's appearance. It was only as tall as Han Zhan's calf, and it was the first time Han Zhan had seen such a crude robot. Stop pretending and say it, who the hell are you? Han Zhan looked at the small robot in front of him and said in a bad tone. The little robot didn't make any movement. Still pretending? Which robot have you seen with its eyes closed? Scrapped robots have their eyes open. Upon hearing this, the little robot opened its eyes in a submissive manner. Really? An electronic synthesized voice sounded, a little hoarse and silky, apparently its vocal mechanism had also rusted. False. Han Zhan answered honestly. Who would be fine with paying attention to whether a robot closed its eyes or not? Wouldn't that be idle? Little robot. Now you can tell me who you really are. 
Han Zhan opened his mouth again and asked, Duling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The little robot replied very mechanically, I know you're a robot, but you shouldn't belong to the Senator Corporation, at least not right now. Judging by these old rusty parts on you, you've been here for at least a hundred years. Only the mechanical parts of the Samson Corporation could be only rotten and still work for a hundred years. At this time, it must be complimented that this group of scientific lunatics still had a bit of craftsmanship. Duling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The little robot mechanically repeated this sentence as if it only knew this one sentence. Han Zhan's face darkened. He knew that this was the other party retaliating against him, but it was certain that this robot wouldn't be an enemy. The conversation just now was just a test, as long as the robot acted hostile or contacted the Skynet brain to pass on the news that he was in the garbage bin. Then by now, there should have been pursuers arriving outside the garbage silo. But there weren't. Tell you what, make a deal, you give me a frank explanation, I'll consider it and take you out of here. Han Zhan put forward his conditions. Dueling, Bulong. And then I'll give you a body in exchange for the best materials. Really? The little robot tilted its head and asked. This time it's true. Han Zhan replied with great certainty. Sure enough, for this kind of robot, improving the appearance and performance of the shell had an irresistible appeal. The inside of a novel is true. Han Zhan and the little robot quickly reached an agreement, and the little robot stopped pretending to be naive, revealing its rather humanized side, only to see it sit down cross-legged like a human, and wait for the arrival of 1 a.m. M. Together with Han War. Who the hell are you? Who am I? I don't know who I am either. I've been in this garbage bin since I woke up. Then why don't you get out? Get out? You mean get out of here? But what's the point of going out after I'm alone? I'm a robot, it's not like I need to eat, drink, or have any entertainment, I just need to stay here. Such an answer made Han Zhan not know how to respond well for a while. A hundred years of loneliness, if it was a human being, he must have been unable to stand it long ago. He nodded and subconsciously asked again, then do you have a name? I can. My name is October. The little robot snatched at the question and answered quickly. Why do you have a name? Han War seemed to have that little loss. Because there's always Shavi who likes to give people all sorts of strange names, the little robot paused and continued, the system time when I awakened showed that it was October, so my name is October. Having been spat at by the little robot, Han War snorted. So, hello, October. Hello, spam. Clunk. Where they were sitting, the garbage bin door was opened, the little robot's words came to an abrupt end, and the two of them whooshed down. Mechanical Institute, successful escape. City of Titans, streets. I must explain that when I said trash earlier, I wasn't shouting at you. The little robot October walked behind Han War and spoke, what I originally wanted to say was, the garbage bin door will be opening soon. Then why do you still look so upset? I just don't want to talk. Han War replied sullenly. He indeed just didn't want to talk. Just a little bit short, Han Zhan was about to become the first 6th rank spirit contractor to be buried alive in a garbage heap, which made people feel fearful just thinking about it. After climbing out with great difficulty, his body was covered in the smell of being pickled and flavored, making him feel that life was boring. After walking for a long time and waiting for the smell to dissipate slightly, Han Zhan raised his head to look at the sky before speaking. We have to go get a Skynet chip, otherwise, Titan City's Skynet defense system will still lock onto me very quickly. You mean this kind of chip? October stretched out his mechanical arm, pinching a shiny object on his pincer-like arm, which was clearly the Skynet chip that Han Zhan wanted. How did you get this kind of thing? Han Zhan reached out and took the chip, asking with some curiosity. The Skynet chip was an important tool used by the Senator technology to mark its own people and maintain order and stability in the city, and in layman's terms, you could call it a dog chain. Each Skynet chip corresponded to a resident of Titan City, and this method was very effective in preventing enemy infiltration. This kind of stuff, you can find it everywhere in the garbage bin, and since it's shiny, I collected a little bit of it by hand. I have a lot more if you want. October said, both of its mechanical claws spread out toward Han Zhan at the same time, and sure enough, there was a bunch of Skynet chips in its hands, a dozen or so at a rough estimate. Rather, I had forgotten about this one. The crazy family that was able to experiment on even merchant bloodlines as test subjects, how could there be fewer ordinary human corpses in a place like that? These Skynet chips wouldn't be specially recycled, they would just be directly logged off after death, and there was no significance in utilizing them twice. I have activated this Skynet chip through the background, now you can use it normally. A question mark appeared on Han Zhan's head. To be able to activate it so casually, he thought that messing with the chip would be a big problem, but he didn't think that it would be solved in three or two sentences. The next step was to implant the chip. Injecting the activated Skynet chip into the brain area, it would automatically integrate into the neural network, connecting the neuron information, and at the same time, Han Zhan also obtained the relevant information of the original host, completing the activation. Only, after completing the activation, Han Zhan's mouth couldn't stop twitching. Human body manifests twitching corners of the mouth, 60% possibility of chip incompatibility, 33% possibility of epilepsy, 17% possibility of other unknowns. 
Activate emergency program, physical therapy, knockout. October's hands were raised high, about to give Han Zhan a blow to the back of his head. It was dodged by Han Zhan's panic dodging. What the hell are you up to? You backslider. Han Zhan looked at the little robot that dared to devour its master and raised his hand to block its painless hammer blow. Everything is detected as normal, cancel the emergency program. October stopped talking to herself again. Why isn't this robot's brain working too well? Han Zhan thought, and then thought of the real reason why the corners of his mouth twitched just now, and couldn't help but almost twitch once more. It was because this Skynet chip that he had incorporated into his activation was originally owned by a man named Bob, who was 82 years old and still a black man. Can I change the chip? Han Zhan opened his mouth and asked. Yes, but the original chip needs to be removed first, the chip is currently integrated into the brain's neural network, and the probability of forcibly removing it and turning it into an idiot without brain surgery is 99. 9999%. For decimal places, you're quite strict. Hearing October's words, Han Zhang temporarily gave up the idea of removing the chip. Forget it, let's just leave it at that, although it was a bit strange, but in the city of Titans, within the group of lunatics who advocated replacing prosthetic limbs and pursuing mechanical ascension, he shouldn't be considered the strangest. Han Zhang glanced down at his right arm, where there was a light blue stripe that looked like it was tattooed from his skin. This was actually an extension of the Skynet chip, and through the extension one could network as well as gain more handy functions, for example. Han Zhan spread out his right hand, and a translucent interface appeared in his palm. City of Titan's ordinary resident, Bob. Gender, male. Credit rating, excellent. Wealth value, 50, 000 Titan coins. There were also some more detailed features, so I won't go into them all. Han Zhan slightly scared his tongue, the Senate Merchants Company was quite principled in their work, although they used people as experimental materials, but at least after so many years, they didn't even bother touching people's wealth. I'll kill you, but I don't want your money, really principled. With Bob's Skynet chip, Han Zhan better summarized and sorted out all the information that Shang Shouyan's consciousness had conducted over before. Because it was a random transmission, the purpose of which was just to make Han War's brain domain faint from not being able to handle such a huge amount of information, the information was all over the place, and there were all sorts of things. Information like the city defense layout of Titan City and the design drawings of the ultra-strategic weapons research City of Annihilation belonged to the SSS grade and needed to be specially screened out. Things like the City of Titan's cultural history, customs, and knowledge of prosthetics belonged to A-rank information, helping Han War to better disguise himself. Cold gossips that were not known to be true or false, the sordid histories of business executives, and the locations and prices of certain special entertainment venues definitely belonged to Class D information, and Han War would not even bother to look at them. After sorting out all the information and categorizing it, the bloated feeling in his head finally eased completely. Han Zhan first utilized the deranked information and went to a nearby bathing center to clean up all the filth on his body, change his clothes again, and spend 10,000 titanic coins. Only then did he take October with him to the most famous Don Long Street in Titan City. In the Don Long Street, there were all sorts of prosthetic modification services, as well as prosthetic maintenance and prosthetic upgrades, as well as some other programs. For example, robot remodeling could also be done here. Of course, Han Zhan didn't choose to go to this place in order to fulfill the conditions he promised October. He had another purpose for traveling to Dawn Street, and that was to completely prepare himself for his goal-plundering energy cubes. Having just arrived at Dawn Street, Han Zhan was frequently being looked back at, and with the addition of a small robot that was broken and leaking motor oil, he realized with a jolt of shock that he had actually and truly become the strangest person in the entire Dawn Street. Ahead, two people dressed as landlubbers and hooligans walked over. One of them, their right arm was replaced with a solid silver bazooka. The other one was one-eyed, with a scarlet electronic glow coming from one eye. Hey kid, are you a titan? The other clasped his arms and scowled suspiciously. How come there's not a single spot on your entire body that's been modified with prosthetics? Hoof. Han Zhan sneered. Who says there isn't? Mine is wrapped around my waist. Hearing Han Zhan's words, the two street skaters ate a pound. What kind of tiger and wolf words were these? Everyone is too, but you're wood? You're really a fierce man, are you still happy like this? One I asked with respect and some curiosity. Han War glanced at him disdainfully, returning what he had just said. Are you a titan? All prosthetically modified, dare you be a little more daring? Open your head and think about it, put realistic sensors on the prosthetic limbs, even the hands can be eliminated without using them, convenient, hygienic and healthy. The two street skaters were shocked. Ignoring these two winded guys, Han Zhan took the little robot October and walked towards the Dawn Street again. There were a lot of stores within the Dawn Street, a wide array of them, most of which were technology-oriented, which was in line with the overall preference of the people of Titan City, under the banner of the Senator Corporation. Han Zhan picked a store at random and replaced the old and damaged parts for the little robot. The store owner was an old grandfather with gray hair, he wore coffee-colored presbyopia glasses, and the old man pulled out a monocle from his pocket and clipped it to his right eye. 
This robot of yours, the parts on it are pretty worn out, many of them are crafted centuries ago. Tisk, look at this gear, it should be one of the simple gears that was pushed for release by the Senator Corporation in the last century, and then abandoned for reasons of adaptability. There is also this hydraulic lever, this is still a subsidiary of the Sinshang Company, don't you and technology production, don't you and technology closed down or closed down for more than 200 years. The owner of the store is a bit like a family treasure, he primed almost, came to say, you this robot is not from the garbage heap, right? Your old man has a vision, really. Han Zhang thought in his heart. But well, the overall assembly method is very old-fashioned, looks like the work of a connoisseur, great, great ah. This wiring, this detailing, it takes a deep mechanical understanding to be able to maximize the power of these worn-out old things, not simple, not simple. The shopkeeper it sked again while replacing the parts. He looked up at Han Zhan. Han Zhan hurriedly denied, it wasn't me, I just picked it up, it wasn't assembled by me. Of course I know it wasn't you. The old shopkeeper rolled his eyes, you don't even have hair on your mouth, how can you still have this ability? I just think that your kid is really lucky. More than an hour later, the old shopkeeper wiped the sweat from his forehead and put down the tools in his hands. Alright, the parts have all been replaced with brand new ones, are you really not going to replace this tin shell with another one, I have the most up-to-date ones here, priced at 30W Titan coins. No need for that one, I love this retro style. Han Zhan waved his hand back and forth, refusing without hesitation. Then forget it. Total charge, 1W2 Titans. After the old shopkeeper finished speaking, a payment interface appeared on his hand. Han War extended his hand and the two shook hands skillfully. The payment was completed. Eh? Looking at Han Zhan's departing figure, the old shopkeeper was suddenly a bit confused. He rubbed his eyes again and said blankly, strange thing, did I blink my eyes? Why did the photo show an old black man when I was prompted to collect the money successfully just now? MDZZ, the Skynet system is bugged again. Skynet Center. Densely packed information meta symbols flashed from the screen, countless information was being processed at the same time, this was the big manager of the Senate merchant company, the Skynet brain. Underneath, thousands of professional analysts were helping Skynet with manual screening and information analysis, assisting it in its work. Just two hours ago, no one noticed that a strange string of characters flashed across the screen at an extremely fast speed. It seemed to be a string of numbers consisting of a middle finger. Regarding the matter of the Mechanical Research Institute, it has caused an extremely bad impact, the leaders of the company's upper echelons have cast their concern, and they have signaled that they can awaken the Skynet thinking brain at the appropriate time to carry out a fine-grained investigation of the entire Titan city. The reason why I say this is because the main purpose of the Skynet brain being researched by the Senator Corporation was to be used for future derivations regarding mechanical ascension. So most of the time, it only used a mere 1% of its arithmetic power to support the city and other aspects. Waking up the Skynet brain meant full power mode, and only in some special cases, with authorization, could it be woken up. Did the top agree? The investigator in charge of the Mechanical Research Institute incident asked with an excited face. Because of this mess, he had been so busy that he had worked overtime for three consecutive days without any extra pay. Not only no, if the investigation didn't produce results, or if the leaders weren't satisfied after the results were reported, they might have to deduct their performance. Just thinking about this, his head was two big heads. Not yet. His colleague looked at him sympathetically, then shook his head, only one leader agrees, the other leaders feel that it's a small matter. This is still a small matter? This is still a small matter. A five-star alien wreckage warrior was killed, hundreds of alien wreckage warriors and thousands of super alloy robots were damaged, half of the Mechanical Research Institute was blown up, and the entire population of Titan City saw the fireworks in the sky. And that's a small thing? Yes, you know, to them, no, or in other words, to the entire Senator Corporation, anything other than a mechanical ascension is trivial. This was true. The investigator dropped into a disheveled position and collapsed into his workstation with a lifeless look on his face. However, I've gotten you a list of slaves who have entered the Mechanical Institute, and there may be clues in there that you want. Also, we investigated that there is a person named Wang Chunyu inside this slave, the one who ended up blowing up the Mechanical Research Institute's primordial energy power reserve center, and had once been in a relationship with a certain daughter of a merchant. This information is all here. Han War took the refreshed little robot October and walked down Don Street. There were currently two W7 Titan coins left on his body, and with such a sum of money, it seemed that it was only enough to buy a small pistol with decent performance. It had never been envisioned that one day, Han War would be worried about money. Just as he was thinking about how he was going to make money, all of a sudden, a woman came walking towards him. It was a young woman with a beautiful appearance. On her body, she carried a certain mature flavor all her own. Her features were three-dimensional, the corners of her mouth held a smile, and her autumn watershire pupils were filled with waterlight. She was about 175 centimeters tall, with a pair of long legs comparable to a model, wearing a lazy and sexy blue sweater on top, outlining a slender waist and bulging breasts, wearing black fishing net stockings on her lower body, and overall looking sensual and dusty. Little handsome, come over to play alone? 
When she opened her mouth, it was a magnetic and nice female voice. The person's looks are not bad, the body is okay, it's just that the person is not honest enough. I look like this now, and you call me handsome? What aesthetic? Han Zhan did not intend to deal with dishonest people, and he was just about to turn around and leave when he was suddenly hit by the other party with a ball that knocked him off his feet. 5,000 Titans. Han War turned his face with an excited expression and asked, You're giving it to me? It's not impossible. Thank you all for your rewards, monthly votes, and recommendations. Giggle, you're such a funny guy. The woman on the opposite side laughed softly a few times. Really, I also think I'm interesting. Han War nodded in agreement. My name is Jody, I live here, interested in going up and sitting? Just to sit? It could also be doing. Judy, as an unapologetic old CG, said dirty jokes without changing her face. Han Zhan had no interest in being a fellow traveler with another strange man, and he was just about to turn around and leave. Suddenly, October, the little robot who had been ignored for so long on the side, took a step and walked straight toward the upstairs of the small alleyway on Don Street. Buling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The mechanized voice resounded clearly throughout the building. Han Zhan and Jody looked at each other, and Han Zhan could only follow helplessly. Inside the streets of Dawn, there were many aborigines like this, and because of the inches of land, the houses in Titan City were built very high. Jody's residence was on the 27th floor, a very simple and narrow hotel-style apartment. The inside of the room was cleaned up very well, not quite the same as the inherent impression in Han Zhan's memory. There was also a faint scent of warmth in the air, the unique body odor of a mature woman, which made people smell a bit mesmerized. Something to drink? Judy entertained with a light smile. Guests are welcome. Then let's have some Spirit Boy. Spirit Boy was a drink that had become popular in Titan City decades ago, and it seemed to have some specially developed ingredients added to it, so that when people drank it, they could become very spirited, but of course, if they drank too much of it, they could also become very nervous. Judy only took two very small wine goblets, it seemed that she had no intention of becoming very nervous. Pouring the light blue color of the drink, Han Zhan took a sip curiously, the entrance was slightly sweet and a bit acidic, and with just one sip, the fatigue he had felt in the past few hours seemed to have been swept away. Han War drank it with a light in his eyes. It seems to be your first time on the streets of dawn, I haven't seen you before. Judy propped her head up and spoke to Han War. Her high heels hooked Han War's pants leg, and there was a charming magnetism in her eyes. I haven't seen you either, MS. Judy, that's normal. Han Zhan put down his wine goblet and rubbed it on the wall of the glass, my workplace is on the south side of Kaibri Street, responsible for the dismantling and recycling of robots, and places like Dong Long Street rarely come, Han Zhan said casually. Colorberry Street was a remote street in Titan City, and those who didn't live here year-round might not have heard of it at all. Judy picked up her wine goblet, her thin red lips taking a slight sip along the wall of the cup, and after listening to Han Zhan's words, she pressed her slender left thigh onto her right leg, changing her sitting position. How about we play a game? Each person asks the other a question, no lying, no non-answers, and no irrelevant content. Otherwise, one drink, and vice versa for the other. Great. Han Zhan agreed with alacrity. Judy was the first to speak. What's your name? Bob. Han War replied without changing his face. Are you really a young lady? That's a rude question to ask. Judy gave him a flirtatious white look, but didn't get angry. What, don't I look like one? You haven't answered my question. Yes, I am. Judy said, leaning her body over, her fragrance spit spraying on Han's face. My turn, what are you doing on Don Street? Replacing old parts for October, oh, for my robot. Speaking of October, the little robot had burrowed inside the room since entering here, not knowing what it was doing. Seemingly hearing Han Zhan calling his name, a small figure suddenly walked out from inside the room. On its head, it was topped with a lavender lace hood, half in the front and half in the back. Put. Han Zhan was drinking water, and when he saw the scene, he almost choked himself to death with a mouthful of water. This pitiful little robot, what the hell was it doing? Without waiting for Han Zhan to have a fit, October had already turned around and returned to the bedroom again, and Jody swept him away calmly. I can see that your robot parts replacement was successful. It's not usually like this. Han Zhan wasn't too sure to give himself a defense, and in return, Judy had a look that said I believe you, so she can only give up. For the first time in his life, his wind rating was jeopardized, Han War hastily changed the topic and asked his question, I'm a bit short of money, is there anywhere I can earn more Titan coins? Go to the Mechanical Research Institute as an experiment, go as a duck, and go to Rob but only if you're not discovered by the vigilante group in Skynet. The three answers that Judy gave were one more unreliable than the other. Looking at the eyes Han Zhan cast over, Judy helplessly spread her hands, come on, I'm just a lady, if I know how to make money, why don't I go and make it? You have a point, I'm speechless. It's been a pleasure talking to you, 3000 titans at a discounted price, sure you don't want to think about it? Judy asked as she drained her drink from the goblet. No consideration. I'm a clean man. Han Zhan categorically refused. Just as he finished speaking, the little robot October once again walked out from inside Judy's bedroom, this time with a pair of chaps replaced on its head. 
Judy laughed softly, I can see that mister. Bob is indeed very clean, it's your little robot that might have some other ideas. October. Hanwar gave a low gulp, and the little robot bumbled over. Hanwar was just about to press its head to control it when October suddenly raised her hand and showed him something in a showy manner. It was a roll of film-like stuff that was very old and looked dated. The reason October had to come up was because of this thing? Hanjan thought in his mind, and before he could say anything, October had already opened her mouth and swallowed that roll of film. What is that film roll? Hanwar asked Judy with some curiosity. Judy shook her head. I don't know, this is just the house I rented, this house is an old house in Titan City, it should be at least a few hundred years old. Hundreds of years old? Wouldn't that be a dangerous house? Hanjan spat in his heart, and at this time, from inside October's body, a strange rattling suddenly began to emanate. It was a kind of sound, as if gears were turning, and with the sound of turning, the little robot emitted a different sound. It was a slightly older male voice. I am old. Aging makes me feel like all of my bodily functions are fading. Why, humans can't fight the years. Why? Immediately afterward, a ragged gasp came from the loudspeaker. A woman's gasp. The gasps were interspersed with agonizing moans, as if the owner of the voice was enduring great torment. Han War and Judy looked at each other once again. Good lord, I'm all ready to hear some secret story, and you're giving me this, aren't you? Good good good. The old man was old in heart, and Han John and Judy listened hard like this for almost half an hour. The sound of gears turning stopped, October humanely burped, it patted its stomach. And it was gone? Looks like Mr. Bob's little robot has quite a few more secrets in it. Judy pursed her lips slightly, her wonderful eyes bright. She lowered her body, and her deep mountains came to her face, looking at Hanwar subconsciously tactically leaning back. A thousand titans, mister. Bob, am I not even worth a thousand titans? Judy bit her lips lightly, with a watering, I see you expression. Hanwar hesitated. No, he didn't hesitate, and just as he was about to open his mouth to answer, suddenly the door of the apartment was roughly tapped on. Open the door. Open the door for me, you bitch. I heard it all, half an hour, half an hour. You bitch. Don't open the door, right, if you don't open the door, I'll smash the door, I'd like to see, which little white boy dares to touch my woman. Outside the door, the sound of clanging and smashing resounded. This old brother actually eavesdropped right outside the door for half an hour? What absolute good man. Han John sighed in his heart. Then he looked across the room at Jody, who still maintained her smile and didn't change her face. M.S. Judy, those in your line of work should understand better that whoring for nothing is not a good habit. Han John said and raised a finger, 10,000 titans. I don't have that much money. Judy lowered her head and fiddled with her fingers. We're all raw and cooked anyway. Before Judy could finish her words, the door was slammed open. A middle-aged man came in aggressively. Well, are you that little white boy? Judy you bitch, labor has spent money to raise you for so many years, and you say you won't do it, where is such a good thing? Today, I'm going to beat you to death in front of you, you little white boy. Without saying a word, he swung his fist toward Han John's face. Fighting was allowed in the city of Titans, as long as you didn't damage public property, cause panic, cause adverse effects, or use lethal weapons. The middle-aged man looked to be at least 160 pounds in size, using lanky wasn't quite appropriate, but at least it stood up to the word fat. When he rushed towards Han John, the entire floor was slightly shaken by his stomping. Judy, the scourge of a woman, had already slipped inside her bedroom, and Han John watched as the opposite fist came crashing down on his face. Then what's the point of being polite? The man in charge of the night shift suddenly looked at the computer screen and sked. A co-worker eating a snack on the side saw him like this and curiously came over and asked, What are you looking at? Oh, nothing, there's a commoner brawl on Dawn Street. Ordinary people fighting? What's there to see then? He gave a cut and was going to withdraw his gaze. Ordinary people brawling, even the security team didn't need to be mobilized, as long as no one was killed, basically there wouldn't be any problems. The two people who fought, according to the Skynet chip, one is called Zhang Lifu, 32 years old, and one is called Bob, 82 years old. That Bob is pitiful. Pitiful? Judging from the current feedback from the Skynet chip, the health values of the two people, Zhang Lifu was about to be beaten into shock by Bob. The co-worker next to him was dumbfounded as he listened. Crap, what's the situation? What did I see? It's starting to get fierce. I see 82-year-old Bob hitting Lifu. Tisk, black people are really still fierce. At 82 years old, they can still press others to fight, can't afford to mess with them. They couldn't see the real-time picture at the Skynet Center, and can only rely on the data transmitted back from the Skynet chip, and then add some of their own brainstorming. In the image they brainstormed, an old black man with white hair was riding on top of a 32-year-old man, continuously throwing ordinary punches. Such an image made the two of them uncharacteristically wince. In fact, it was not far off. Come on out, MS. Judy. I've solved your problem for you as payment for a drink of spirit boy. Hanjan looked at Jun Laifu, who was lying there on the floor, in a coma, as he stood up, walked to the bedroom door, and knocked on it. Judy didn't open the door. 
The little robot October hummed and hawed and walked over, raised its brand new mechanical arm, and a key pinched in its hand at some unknown time, inserted it into the door lock, and with a snap, the door was opened. Judy looked at Hanj was standing in the doorway with a stunned expression. M.S. Judy, can you tell me now, what's going on? You went out on the street to find a man, just to try to trick the other person into coming here and then help you carry a beating? Judy didn't open her mouth to speak, looking like she was at the mercy of the king. Unexpectedly, Han War did not step into the bedroom. He threw the key to the bedroom door onto Judy's bed and then turned away without looking back. M.S. Judy, remember, you owe me a meal. Judy watched incredulously as Han War left through the bedroom door, she had been prepared to pay her reward in kind. The gentleman named Bob seemed unexpectedly decent. You're a good man, mister. Bob. Judy, barefoot, walked quickly to the window opening, her long, white, full legs, bright and inviting in the light. Within moments, she saw that Bob led his little robot out of this side of the building, rejoined the throngs of people on Dawn Street, and then slowly walked away and disappeared. Sorry. Why didn't you go in just now? According to my system's observation, your physiological index has soared to 208, seven times higher than usual. In your human words, it should be, in heat. Animals in heat want a mate, and mating is reproducing offspring. So why would you actively resist this instinctive behavior? The little robot October followed behind Han Zhan with some curiosity. That's not called rutting, that's called lust. Han Zhan corrected, it's normal to have lust, Judy is a tantalizingly beautiful thing. However, that's not what I intend to do. Controlling one's lust is what makes a successful person. Besides, I've already been paid. He said looking over to October, from the moment he first started, he always felt that something was wrong, and now he finally realized what the problem was. On the small robot October's mechanical arm, unexpectedly, he didn't know when, there was an extra light blue stripe. This stripe, and the one on Han Zhan's arm, were almost exactly the same. What did this prove? This proved that little robot October, it actually possessed the handy function of a resident of Titan City as well. That's okay? Is it because of swallowing that film? Han Zhan thought in his heart. He wasn't too sure. Just as Jody had said, there seemed to be a not-so-small secret in this little robot that just couldn't be unraveled for a while now. But at least, it had been unraveled a little now. You have the identity of a resident of Titan City now? Han Zhan asked October. October shook her head, I don't know. No? Light blue lines have appeared on your arm, you can already activate the convenience system, and you still don't have the aboriginal identity? Han Zhan was puzzled. It's fine, let's find a store and buy something to try and we'll know. Han Zhan brought October with him and continued walking down the long Dawn Street. When they passed a convenient supermarket, they went in and bought a bottle of mineral water. I installed affinity payment on its arm, so you can just scan it directly. Han Zhan pointed to the electronic lines on the arm of the little robot and said. The salesman was also knowledgeable and didn't say much, directly completing the payment transaction with the little robot. Looking at their backs as they left, the sales clerk swept a glance at the name of the person who paid with some surprise, Business CX? How is this name so familiar? Quickly look at how much wealth value is left after you complete the payment. After leaving the supermarket, Han Zhan urged with some impatience. He was now like opening a blind box lottery, looking forward to the feeling of becoming rich overnight one day. When it heard Han Zhan's inquiry in October, it seemed to be on the spot for a moment before it began to mechanically say, my current wealth value balance is, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. After saying 11 zeros, it stopped. Han Zhan, who was walking in front of it, also stopped. Rating less? He was a bit disbelieving, thinking that there was something wrong with his ears. It can't be that the language system is stuck, can it? No, I have to go and settle the score with that old man who changed the parts. This isn't even out of warranty yet. The language system is normal. October replied. So there really is a 1 followed by 11 zeros? How much was that, 100 billion titans? As long as Han Zhan wanted to right now, he could buy an entire civilian annihilator ship at full price and go racing through the star ocean with those merchant dudes. This is outrageous. Inside the little robot's account, why was there so much money? Could it be that it swallowed that film? That old man, it couldn't be some unimaginably big person, right? Han Zhan muttered to himself. However, in that case, the money would be there. With money, Han Zhan could also start to let go of his hands and go on a purchasing spree in the market. Soldiers were precious and quick. It was important to get the energy square tiles before the Senate Merchant Company had a chance to react, and then get out of here. Steinet Center, Main Control Room. The results of the investigation about the Mechanical Research Institute hadn't come out yet, and the higher-ups were very angry, deducting the investigator in charge of this matter from all of his performance for that month. Not only that, but they also sent out the direct line of merchants from the Senate Merchant Company to intervene in this incident. Not all merchants are brainless mechanical madness, there are always a few business-minded madness, they sniff out this matter inside, unusual place. It's been investigated, that Wang Chunyu, who was previously a guardian of Dixia, fell in love with Shang Xiaoyun of the merchants and then concluded a contract. Shang Xiaoyun was later caught back in the city of Titans, 
and was used as a mechanical ascension no. 289 experimental material for an ascension experiment. After the experiment failed, she didn't die completely, so she was placed in the Mechanical Research Institute's nutrient tank for subsequent observation and research. According to the analysis of the experimental data report at the time, during the process of Shang Xiaoyan's mechanical ascension, the degree of completion of her fit with the terminal was 56%, which was higher than half, and it was likely that she had a partial fusion with the terminal, and glimpsed the merchant's secret secrets. This report was exhaustively written and analyzed. Merchant Okur Hyun, a direct descendant of the merchant, flipped through this report, pondering. Behind him, were several investigative commissioners in charge of the entire incident, who carefully followed behind, not daring to utter a single breath. What a joke, this was Shang Okur Xian, the next hand-picked successor of the merchants, the real direct line of direct lineage, I didn't expect that this matter would have alarmed this big brother. Anything related to Dixia cannot be taken lightly. I'm not my foolish, love-brained waste of a sister. Shan Achixian opened his mouth and the people behind him immediately nodded and responded. Has the Mechanical Research Institute's surveillance not been repaired yet? Since Shang Xiaoyun and Wang Chunyu are lovers and contractors, then Wang Chunyu's motive must be to save Shang Xiaoyun. But then, why wasn't Shang Xiaoyun the one who escaped with him? Who was he protecting? Or is it that who was more important than Shang Xiaoyun, than Shang Xiaoyun? Shang Achixian raised his fingers and gently tapped on the desktop, his thoughts turning so fast that the others hadn't quite caught up. No, it's not right. Logically incorrect. Wang Chunyu had already met with Shang Xiaoyun, and as a result, Shang Xiaoyun did not leave the research lab, Wang Chunyu left with another person, and according to the feedback reports from the alien wreck warriors and super alloy robots at the scene, both people had already been killed and ambushed. However, there has never been anyone's reasoning that two capsule bombs exploding means two people were ambushed. Because the entire mechanical research institute at that time, there were a total of three people. Sean Okershin's words gave the investigators who only knew about scientific research a feeling of sudden realization. The proposal that was applied for last time, to awaken the Skynet intelligence brain for an in-depth screening, has it not been approved yet? No, everyone other than you voted against it. This group of idiots. Sean Okershin cursed in anger. The others lowered their heads as if they hadn't heard. Right at this moment, the Skynet brain suddenly ticked. What's going on? The staff at the scene instantly tensed up, the Skynet brain alarming the police, always only big things happened. Right now, the merchant's future helmsman, Shang Okarin, was still here, it was like a leader inspecting his work when suddenly his instruments malfunctioned, panic was inevitable. I'm Shang Okarin, tell me what's going on. Shang Okarin said to the large screen in front of him. Special personnel detected, personnel confirmation in progress, confirmation complete. Subject, Shang Okarin, identity level, highest, usage privileges unlocked. Starting to summarize the cause of the alarm. The Skynet brain finished talking to itself and after another moment, its voice sounded again. The cause of this anomaly report has been collated, your wife, Mrs. 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 Ancestor, just bought a bottle of mineral water. It wasn't just Sean Achixian, those staff members present, one by one, were also dumbfounded. NDZZ, this crappy Skynet brain won't bug out again. A staff member muttered in a low voice. Work number 9527, I don't have a bug, the brain suddenly responded by name. That employee silently removed his work badge and stuffed it inside his pants pocket. This Skynet brain is sometimes like this, you should be able to understand, it handles billions of things every day, and it only puts out 1% of its arithmetic power, occasionally it will have a bug, we. The Skynet center staff was still explaining to Shang Achixian. Inside Shang Achixian's head, he had already projected who his missus, Mrs. Ancestor was. It was the founder of the Senate Merchant Company, the old ancestor of the merchants, Shang Siwe. Shang Siwe. Upon hearing this name, the entire Skynet center went silent. Everyone subconsciously raised their heads and looked at Shang Akrexian in the center of the field, thinking that he had said it wrong. How long had Shang Jianyue been dead? Even the ashes were long gone. You're telling me he's actually alive and bought a bottle of mineral water? MDZZ, Skynet brain is buggy again. Now, not just one analyst flashed this thought in his mind. Only, given the previous experience of work number 9527, they did not utter a sound. Merchant Okrahian's face didn't seem too good. As a direct descendant of a merchant, he seemed to know something about the inner workings, and when he uttered the three words Merchant Siax, he turned around and walked towards the independent office. Dialed the phone, on the other side was a careless man's voice. Shan Uyaxian, you don't have the right to order me right now. You should know that Skynet Brain's deduction of the mechanical ascension is proceeding to a critical period, and any other reason cannot be used as a reason to interrupt its deduction. I didn't call here to get involved with you. Shang Akrexian paused and spoke in a grave tone, Shang Jianyue, resurrected. On the other end of the phone, the man who was still scattered, suddenly fell silent. After the silence, a heavy gasp came from the other end of the phone, and the other party seemed to be very agitated. Soon, the man's voice sounded again, alright, I know, I'll convene an emergency meeting right now and let everyone vote. 
Suspend the deduction command for mechanical ascension, let the Skynet brain awaken and conduct a full Skynet network screening. After the phone call, the merchant executives attached great importance to this matter, and the emergency meeting only took 10 minutes before agreeing to the decision with a 100% approval rate. Don't alarm the people at the bottom, this time, let the Skynet brain pinpoint the location, led by the 8-star alien wreck warrior, and take the people away under secret control. Shanga Chixian, those old guys are very satisfied with the information you've provided this time, after this matter is over, they'll vote in advance to let you inherit the Senate Merchant Company. Heh, there's no need to promise me such a blank check. I understand. Shanga Kungsian hung up the phone. He walked out of the independent office and quickly walked to the center control room, entering the core secret key for activation and awakening into Skynet. Skynet activation awakening, officially complete. As a mechanical electronic voice rang out, then the electronic data flow, which was originally flowing in an orderly manner, suddenly began to become disorganized. The disorderly data turbulence continued to converge on the large screen, and eventually transformed into an even older and more lifelike human face. Speak, what is the reason for waking me up this time? It was no longer an electronic synthesized voice, but a calm old man's voice rang out. Merchant latecomer Shang Akrexian, meet Lord Skynet Wisdom. The high cold male merchant Okrahian, who was a dick when he got along with everyone else, also respectfully bowed after Skynet Wisdom brain awakened. Oh, it's you. I didn't think that you were already this big. The last time I saw you, you were still a fertilized egg. Skynet Brain's words caused the corners of Shang Achixian's mouth to twitch. You really know how to chat, can't you just say that the last time you saw me, I was still in my mom's stomach? Saying that, there was always a feeling of being provoked and insulted. Shang Achixian put aside his other thoughts and hurriedly stated his business, this time, we woke you up because according to our observations, we found that Shang Jianyue has been resurrected. We would like to ask for your help to sift through the entire Titan city and locate the current position of Shang Siyue. Shang Siyue, resurrected? Even the all-knowing Skynet brain seemed to carry a hint of confusion within its tone when it heard this news. However, soon after, it agreed. It's very simple, with 100% arithmetic support, it only takes 5 seconds for me to be able to sift through the chip data of the entire Titan city. After saying that, it stopped speaking. Once the 5 seconds were up, it opened its eyes again and said, it has been found, I will give you its location. Alright, it's done, I'm going to continue my slumber. After the Skynet brain finished speaking, the disorderly data turbulence disappeared, and all the zeros and ones became orderly once again. Titan City, Dawn Street. A large force of special alien skeleton warriors opened up and allocated here. On the periphery of Dawn Street, a transparent invisible barrier was slowly raised, this was a special particle isolation shield, capable of carrying the full force of a ninth-ranked powerhouse. In silence, led by eight-star alien wreck warriors, divided into a total of ten squads, they began to surround a certain place on the street from 10 different directions. Target location is moving. Attention squad 3, the target location is approaching you. Don't hold back, use all means to control the other party first. Be careful. Team 3 has found the target, do it. With a loud shout within the channel, an 8-star alien wreck warrior rushed out from within the alleyway, he exuded a terrifying aura, the strength of an 8th-ranked powerhouse coupled with the alien wreck transformation made his battle power close to the peak of the 8th rank. His speed was so fast that it didn't even leave behind any residual shadows, the silhouette was only seen blurring for a moment, and then in the blink of an eye, he was already a thousand meters away. The commotion caused by this attack was heard in all channels. Squad 3, how's it going? Squad 3, did you catch it? Team 3, caught. The captain of Squad 3 spoke into the contact, but it seems like, something is wrong. Chief Captain, you'd better come over and take a look yourself. Two minutes later, the chief captain in charge of this capture operation came to the ambush site, and he looked at the young man lying on the ground like a dead fish, his pants soaked from the puddle of urine from the huge shock. He frowned. There's a file on him inside the Skynet file information base. His name is Zhang Lifu, 33 years old, just an ordinary Titan City resident. It's not a Shang Nian battle axe. Confirmed not? Confirmed not. When the chief captain heard this, he frowned and glanced at Zhang Lifu, who was paralyzed on the ground and should have already been completely paralyzed into an invalid due to the alien wreck warrior's excessive force. Dispose of him secretly, and then, report to headquarters that the capture mission, failed. A thousand meters away from the Dawn Long Street in a straight line from the Yangon Long Street, the small robot October sat on a bench, it touched its flat metal stomach and gently patted it twice. It made a bang-bang metallic sound. Then it burped. How is it, the second ancient gumdrop has also been swallowed, is there any new reaction? On the side, Han Zhan, who saw the scene, came over and asked with some curiosity. The little robot glanced at him in October. Yes, just glancing. Little Robot October's originally wooden electronic eyes became strange all of a sudden. Ha 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 ha. An obscene voice slowly came out from the Little Robot's megaphone. The abnormality of the Little Robot startled Han War. Just as he was about to slap it flat, the laughter disappeared. Immediately after it came, there was another familiar recording. 
Only this time, the voice of the recording seemed to be quite a bit younger than last time. I finally researched something that can counteract the Skynet brain, reverse invaded the Skynet brain, and was not detected by it. I named it Deep Dive. This Skynet fellow's self-learning ability is too strong, and its theoretical growth has almost no upper limit. If I don't leave it with countermeasures, what will I do in the future when I'm not around? My businessman sees the battle axe, it really is a genius. Ha ha ha. Alas, it's just a pity that heaven envies a genius, how can I live forever? Damn it. Is it really necessary to take the path that I theoretically calculated? Listening to the recordings, Han Zhan finally realized who the person who left these ancient films behind was. Shang Miao Yue. He had heard of this person in Shang Xiaoyan's memories, and he was the first generation of merchant family heads and the true founder of the Senate Merchant Company. It was under his leadership that the Sunshine Company had, step by step, slowly grown from a small company into a giant, huge company that spanned across countries. It could be said that without Shang Jianyue, there would be no Sunshine Company. Shang Jianyue's achievements in science and technology were unlimited, he was a born genius, no matter which aspect of research, it was deduced by him to the extreme. If it wasn't for the fact that the years were unforgiving, and Shang Jianyue eventually died of old age, he would still be able to lead the Sunshine Company and cross a few more steps. You, are Shang Jianyue? Han Zhan asked with some uncertainty as he looked at the little robot October whose eyes had become humanized. No, I'm not. October shook its head. It was much more flexible and spiritual again than before. I gained the gift of the mind of the Shangmi battle axe from the second ancient film. It answered truthfully. Shang Si Axe's talent can still be passed on? Han Zhan was shocked, he had never heard of it before. It can be, and to describe it in layman's terms, it's the engraving of a soul topography inside an ancient film, which was left behind by Shang Si Axe. However, this technique has been lost, or rather, there is no second person who knows how to do it other than Shang Siyue. The soul topography gave the little robot October the exact same thinking talent as Shang Siyue, and coupled with its own strong learning ability, how strong was it under the combination of the two? Let's say, based on the known construction techniques and material prices right now, plus Shang Siyue's mind talent. I can use the cost of 100 million Titan coins to help you build a 100 billion dollar price annihilator, with a 5 times increase in power a 10 times increase in speed, and a 50% reduction in energy consumption. I can build an upgrade to a stellar grade energy cube based on a single energy cube, with a 500% increase in energy utilization. I can. Han Zhan knew that he had really picked up a treasure, as the old grandpa repairing the robot had said. However, Han War didn't wait too long to be happy before October told him grim news. The Senator Corporation has already discovered us. Although this time, I carried out an early countermeasure, using Zhang Lifu as a virtual target and misleading Skynet brain once. But with Skynet Brain's ability to learn and comprehend, as long as it is awakened one more time, it will be able to discover the ends, and then reposition itself through those ends to find our location. Time, all of a sudden, became tight. How much time do we have left? Han Zhan asked after he calmed down. Half an hour. The time for the Skynet Brain to reawaken is half an hour, and after half an hour, it will awaken again. Half an hour. Raise the event level of Titan City to the highest level, all combatants are on standby. Alien wreck fighters that have already been deployed don't need to return, cancel all vacations, have those that are undergoing alien wreck transformation also suspend, all deploy. Quickly, search the entire city, line up suspicious people, and once they are found afterward, arrest them immediately. At the Skynet Center, Shang Achixian quickly gave out a new command. After hearing the report from the chief leader of the arrest operation team, Shang Achixian immediately reacted. He first immediately contacted the other merchant executives and opened an emergency meeting once again, then immediately arranged for it to go down and the entire defense force of Titan City, under a single directive, all of them moved into action. The entire city was on alert. The people of Titan City could only see the alien wreck warriors shuttling through the streets and alleys, as well as the security group robots with searchlights, patrolling at a rapid pace. They had no idea what was really going on. At this time, Jody heard a knock on the door, and she immediately came to her senses, not caring about getting dressed, she excitedly ran out of the bedroom and opened the door. What stood outside the door was not Hanjun. Judy was a little disappointed in her heart. Seeing Judy who opened the door, the alien skeleton warrior raised his hand and showed the electronic file in his hand. You are Jody, right? Yes, I am. Judy looked at the other side a little blankly, wondering what was going on. According to Skynet's information investigation, Zhang Lifu was your gold master's father, and he has been harboring you for 15 years since after your mother's death, when you were still a minor, right? Sir? It's not illegal to keep a mistress, right? Judy frowned, she didn't like hearing about her deceased mother, and her past. I'm sorry MS. Judy, we just wanted to ask, have you encountered anything strange in the recent past? The alien wreck warrior said here while presenting another document. As long as you are able to provide us with any useful clues, you will be rewarded with 100 million titanic coins from us. If the clues prove to be useful, the reward amount will be increased by 10 times, which is 1 billion titan coins. 
you should be short of money. One billion titan coins. Judy's heart skipped a beat when she heard this figure. With one billion titan coins, she could say goodbye to her past and transform into a noble lady, entering high society. Strange things. In her mind, the Mr. Bob, who was not close to women and claimed to be a righteous man, and the weird little robot next to him quickly came to mind. M.S. Judy? The alien skeleton warrior across from her inquired again. Judy shook her head with a blank expression. I'm sorry, as much as I want the money, I really haven't encountered anything strange. Is that so? Well, excuse me. The alien wreck warrior nodded, and Judy sniffed as she closed the door to the room. Just the moment the door to the room closed, the... The alien wreck warrior outside the door pressed one hand on his earpiece, which was carrying the commanding voice of Shang Oker Hyun. She's lying, 82-year-old Bob punched out 33-year-old Zhang Laifu, although the surveillance of the entire Don Long Street has been artificially deleted, according to our inquiries and eliminations, we haven't seen any old black men appear at all. This one, Bob, must have a problem, follow this line of investigation. Take course of measures to control her. Judy closed the door and had just not taken two steps when she suddenly heard a loud bang coming from behind her. Immediately afterward, her eyes went black and she completely lost consciousness. Half an hour was enough time to do what? Enough for Han Zhan and October to use the fastest speed to buy all the tools and materials they needed, and then find an inconspicuous small warehouse to hide in, and officially start assembling the special invention of the Shangyan Battle Axe Deep Dive. The deep diving device was even more complicated than they had imagined. Don't look at it as just a palm sized small object, but its degree of precision far exceeded all of today's high end technology. It was hard to imagine that this was something invented by someone how many years ago. It was never his talent that limited Shang Mai's battle axe, but the era he was in. In October of the small robot, the two mechanical arms were constantly polishing, piecing together and assembling at an extremely fast speed, with a flexible and orderly approach. Time passed minute by minute. Over at the Skynet Center, as soon as half an hour had passed, Shang Achixian immediately woke up the Skynet brain once again, informing him of what had happened. The other party is very cunning, and this time, after the unanimous agreement of all the business executives, the derivation project will be suspended, and the pursuit activities will be conducted without any time limit. This was the decision of the top management of the Senate Merchant Company. They had already made up their minds to find the Merchant Seeing Axe, and it seemed that the Merchant Seeing Axe was more important to them than the mechanical ascension itself. I see. Skynet Brain said, I'll start reverse reconnaissance now to find out its location. As soon as the words fell, on the entire large screen, dense red dots began to appear, these red dots were the camouflage used by the other party, and with the intervention of the Skynet brain, these simulated camouflages were disappearing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Inside the warehouse, the little robot October suddenly raised his head and looked at Hanjan at the side. Skynet brain has awakened once again. The deep diving device isn't completely finished yet. What do you need me to do? Hanjan immediately understood what it meant and moved closer over to say. The parts of the deep dive device have all been machined and half of the assembly has been carried out, so I'll use my consciousness to conduct the other half to you. You are responsible for putting it together and activating it. October said in a very quick tone, I'm going to start engaging that big guy officially, I won't be doing anything else next. Saying this, it poked its mechanical arm in front of Han's forehead, just like Shang Xiaoyan before, and soon, a huge stream of knowledge flooded into Han's brain. Luckily, with the experience of the last time, and the fact that the knowledge this time wasn't as huge as the last time, Han Zhan was only slightly dizzy as a person, and he quickly recovered. He nodded and took over the job of assembling the deep diving device from October. October, on the other hand, formally began to fight with the Skynet brain. On the big screen, the red dot area was dissipating at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the target's location gradually began to become accurate. But at this time, the red dots suddenly stopped dissipating. Not only that, but their fixed positions also began to flicker and change in a disorderly and chaotic manner on the big screen. Such a scene left the personnel present dumbfounded. What kind of operation was this? Heh, that little guy on the opposite side, made a move. As the Skynet brain, its old and mature tone rang out. With October's intervention, the speed at which the red dots on the screen dissipated plummeted, and it took almost 30 seconds before one of them could be eliminated. Looking at the red dots that kept scurrying about, the staff was a little messed up. What is this doing? Why does it give me the feeling as if I'm playing gopher? M, this description of yours is very apt. You quickly shut up, especially you, job number 9527, how come there are you everywhere? Can't you see that one's face doesn't look too good? Shanya Kungsian coldly stared at the big screen, not knowing what he was thinking. Your skills are indeed magnificent, and I can be certain that you are undoubtedly Shang Miax himself. Although I don't know how you survived the long years and resurrected yourself, but times are different now. I've also grown from the little dot created by you to the old man I am now. So, to paraphrase an old saying of you humans, in the face of absolute power, all tricks are just fancy. 
As the Skynet brain's self-talking voice rang out, it called upon all of the Skynet networks in the entire Titan city, using the massive data streams as a means of offense, pouring in all the way into the confrontation between the two. This hand of the Skynet brain directly caused the entire Titan city to briefly black out. A piece of darkness. One must know that ever since Skynet brain had covered the entire city of Titans, there had never been such a situation. All of the residents of Titan City were a bit on edge, not knowing what was going on. Skynet brain's means were fruitful. Under the huge flood of data, those red dots that were still bouncing and prancing around with skill began to disappear in pieces as if they were washed away by a flood. As the red dots on the big screen became less and less, everyone in the entire Skynet center held their breath. Until finally, the flood of data completely submerged all, eliminating all of those false simulated targets that were covering up, and the only thing left was that one red dot that brightly appeared on the map of the big screen. Yangon Longstreet. Sean Okershin saw the location clearly, and he immediately picked up his communicator and contacted the searchers throughout the city. On the big screen, just as the Skynet brain completed its attack and found out where the other party was hiding in the shadows, suddenly, the red dot strangely disappeared. Just like that, bright and clear, it completely disappeared from the big screen. When the Skynet brain saw the scene, it let out a soft eep rather humanely, surprised. Skynet chip, can't monitor him anymore. Sean Miax, you're really, really, an uncompromising genius. Han Zhan fiercely wiped a handful of sweat from his forehead. For a raw hand like him, assembling such a complex device for the first time even allowed him to directly save enough white mist, and the eight urgent fists, which was originally on the verge of breaking through, directly broke through to the fourth urgent fist. Minute by minute, this was considered between life and death. He raised his head and looked towards the light blue light shield that wrapped around them, and it was by relying on this light shield that helped them completely disappear under the Skynet. Now is not the time to relax, the Skynet brain has broken through my camouflage defenses with the help of its vast data stream underpinnings, and has already obtained the coordinates of this location. We must shift now. October reminded. Without needing it to speak, Han Zhan had already picked it up in one hand and darted up. Since he had the deep diving device as a camouflage cover that wouldn't be detected by the Senator Corporation's Skynet, he no longer had any qualms about directly unlocking the fourth much needed lock. Han Zhan's entire body transformed into a residual shadow and violently rushed out of the warehouse, and within a few leaps, he completely disappeared. The little robot that was being carried by him looked at the scene in front of him, revealing a humanized and thoughtful expression. Spirit contractor fluctuation detected, accuracy 99. 9999%, 9 human identity judgment in progress. Judgment is, Dasha spirit contractor. Identity confirmed, changing from neutral to indifferent, can open up more permissions. Inside the body of the little robot October, an ancient film reel slowly rotated, and in a very faint voice, it muttered. Failed again? It only took three minutes to get there, and as a result of blocking off the surrounding area of 5,000 meters and carpet searching, we couldn't even find him? How is this possible? Shanya Kungsian hung up the phone somewhat grumpily. Why was it that every single time it was just a little bit closer, every single time? This feeling of frustration was extremely difficult for a high-minded person. Unluckily, Shang Weixian was such a person. Ever since he was a child, he had left his peers far behind with his brains and talent, and there was one and only one person who steadily pushed him down. That was his older sister, Shang Siding. But now, because Shang Siding had awakened her spirit, the merchants had other arrangements for her, and he had logically become the next successor of the merchants. It did not occur to him that in the matter at hand, he had been defeated several times in a row. And it was still with the assistance of the Skynet brain, which made him feel like all the people on his side were idiots. It's not surprising that the opponent was able to perform a miracle to get the Shang Mi battle axe. The Skynet brain didn't seem to be discouraged by one or two failures, or perhaps it couldn't feel what discouragement was at all. In the eyes of a machine, anything was just a probabilistic event, with a higher probability or a lower probability, and variables were always present. For him, there should be something else you haven't told me. Shang Akungsian screened off all the staff in the Skynet center, leaving only himself and the Skynet smart brain behind, and looked at the old man's face on the big screen and asked. It's impossible for Merchant Siax to be resurrected for no reason. But all of them, including you, including those executives of the merchants, don't seem to be surprised. Moreover, they even agreed to suspend the deduction of the mechanical ascension and let you go all out to capture Shang Jianyue, which shows the importance they place on this matter. Tell me, why? With Shang Okerhian's current authority, there wasn't much that could be hidden from him, and sure enough, the Skynet thinking brainside before opening its mouth to explain. Because it was Shang Miax who proposed the mechanical ascension. What? This explosive news caused Shang Okerhian's brain to briefly go on the spot. It was Shang Jianyue who proposed mechanical ascension. He had originally thought that mechanical ascension was only a project that had only begun in the last hundred years, no more than three hundred years at most. And I, who have been in a state of slumber, deduce not something else, but a formula about mechanical ascension that Shang Siyue left behind before he died back then. 
Inside the top echelons of the Sunshine Company, those of the older generation, are convinced that as long as they are able to derive this formula, they will be able to peek through the secrets of mechanical ascension. But after so many years, it has never been possible to complete the derivation. Even Skynet Intelligence Brain was unable to derive the formula, back then, relying on the human brain's business insight battle axe, how on earth did he create something out of nothing and come up with this formula? Could it be that he was even stronger than Skynet Brain? For a time, the entire Skynet Center fell silent. However, this question of yours reminds me of one thing. The Skynet Brain suddenly spoke. Regarding the derivation of this formula, over so many long years, I've already had some eyebrows, and the merchants are also relying on what they've deduced to synchronize their physical experiments and corroborate each other with their theories. Merchant Siax, when he was dying, once bragged with his bedmate who was 50 years younger than himself, saying that he had already glimpsed the secret of longevity, but it was hidden by him in four places, and by finding these, one would be able to truly live forever. The merchants have been searching for it all these years, but have never found it. They don't even know what the so-called things are. The ancient film that hides the secret of the merchant Siax longevity. It was hidden in four places, and by finding them, they will be able to solve the ultimate mystery. Han and October were hiding in an inconspicuous place under the shelter of the deep dive device. October spoke. Han Zhan was not very interested in this topic. People are bound to die, what's the point of pursuing immortality? If the merchant executives had your idea, a lot less people should be able to die every year. October had improved so rapidly during this period of time that even the tone of his spitting began to become subtle, no different from a real person. So, the reason why they're frantically looking for us, to be exact, is because they're looking for you. Because on you, you're harboring the little secret of the Shangni battle axe. It's the big secret. October emphasized in a serious tone. It's not like it's a big boob, so what's the attraction? Han Zhan cut in. The little robot October couldn't catch the dirty jokes and froze with her head smoking a little. Look, you haven't learned in place, about the language piece, I can only say that learning is never ending. Han Zhan said in a serious tone. There's no way I'm going to help you get the next two ancient gumdrops. Han Zhan directly refused, I'm not interested in the secret of immortality, and I don't want to dig it out, once this kind of thing is out in the world, there's bound to be a bloody storm. Moreover, the most crucial thing was, little robot October was now becoming more and more humanized, it possessed the gifted mind of a Shangmi battle axe, and had an extremely strong learning ability. Who could ensure what it would become if it found another two ancient film strips? Han Zhan hadn't been arrogant enough to think that he possessed the aura of a king's hegemony and was able to make the liver and brain of a little robot that he had never met before. Then what are your next plans? As planned, heading to the East Lake District's Heavenly Museum. Han Zhan said. According to the memories in his head, the Tianbo Museum, as the largest museum in the city of Titans, it contained many, many strange things, mostly the history of the Senator Corporation. However, underneath it was one of the largest storage warehouses for energy square bricks. The energy square bricks inside were imperative for Han War. Still refusing to open up? Looking at the somewhat wretched Jody in front of him, whose appearance was indeed something special, Shang Akungsian withdrew his gaze and said in a flat tone, Your insistence is meaningless in my opinion. You should know that I can protect you for a moment, but I can't protect you for a lifetime. If I can't come up with an answer from the interrogation, someone from above will be sent to take over me, those old men from the merchants. Imagine the image of a bunch of people old enough to be your grandfather's generation, lying on top of you. I'm not going to tell. Judy's eyes were lightless and her head hung low, you guys kill me, I don't know anything. You love him very much? Shanya Kungsian seemed to have read the thoughts in Judy's mind, then do you know what the entire Senate business company is looking for after expending so much effort? A person who came back from the dead, a person who is, extremely terrifying. The one you love, if he is with this person, what do you think, what will happen to him? Who am I to believe what you say? Hearing Shang Akungsian's words, Jody snapped her head up and looked at him. Shang Akungsian didn't say anything, he didn't care to open his mouth to prove anything. It's an ancient film. Judy completely loosened his mouth and replied. An ancient film? The first place that came to Shang Akungsian's mind was a place. It was his favorite place to go when he was a child. East Lake District's Tianbo Pavilion. East Lake District, Tianbo Museum. As the largest museum in the city of Titans, the Tianbo Pavilion was visited by many people every day. Today was no exception. At this time, a young man wearing a black trench coat was suddenly stopped by the security guard at the entrance with his hand outstretched, this gentleman, I'm sorry, electronic pets are not allowed to be brought in. As he said that, he pointed his finger at the small robot on the ground next to him. It won't hurt anyone. I'm sorry, the museum is full of precious collections from all generations, and if any machinery goes out of control, the problem will be serious, so it's expressly forbidden. The young man shrugged helplessly and turned away. Well. Scanning and remodeling has been completed, the entire structure of the museum has been analyzed and is being modeled. Very well, we'll move this evening. Looking at the opposite side of the man and his pet who were slowly walking away, the security guard at the entrance suddenly picked up the communicator in his hand. 
Suspicious personnel detected, one person and one robot, did not enter the Heavenly Museum. Is it necessary to send additional personnel for tracking? No need for now. If they want to seek the ancient film, they will definitely enter the museum, at that time, we just need to catch them in a jar. It's daytime now, and there are many people, so in case it's not them, we'll be spooking the snakes instead. The security guard sniffed and put down the communicator in his hand again, continuing to maintain order in the Heavenly Museum. Titan City, the sewers. The sewers were known as the everlasting company's fixed resurrection point. Nowadays, there was also a line of people walking among them, and it was clearly the aberration walkers of the everlasting company. Their company seemed to have some sort of fan-like obsession with the sewers. Just like Dasha's were called Spirit Contractor and Spirit Contractor, and the Seneschal companies were called Alien Wreck Warrior, the Eternal Life companies were called Aberration Walker. Aberration, as the name suggests, also means that the body has undergone some kind of change, a change that comes from the inside out. Aberration was often a derogatory term, but the people of the Everlasting Company didn't feel it, and they kinda liked the name. Just like if you talk to someone from the Senator Company, they would think that prosthetics were cool, same thing. The few people who were previously sent to Deep Blue City to be in charge of exploring the path could not yet be considered aberration walkers, only those who exceeded the strength of the fifth rank or above could have such a title. Every aberration walker would have a special aberration potion injected into their body, and this was the warrior that the Everlasting Company had cultivated themselves. The aberration walker at the front, with the word 003 engraved on her neck, was a tall woman. The mutagen injected into her body was the Yi-Bee Calamity, refined from the spiritual remains of the Ninth Order insect race Bloodstinger Bee. Behind her, there were two other aberration walkers, a man and a woman, with the numbers 018 and 029 on their necks, which were, cryptic insect, and, poisonous error, respectively. An 8th order and 2 7th order, such a configuration was not low anywhere. Luck is good, originally these days have been suffering from not having a way to sneak into Titan City, I didn't expect it to directly cut off the power, giving us a chance to take advantage of it. All keep your voices down, even though we are in a state of concealment, it's hard to guarantee that there won't be other traps placed by Skynet in the sewers. Don't forget our purpose this time. The taller woman spoke. The purpose of their trip was to infiltrate the city of Titans and then steal out one thing from the Heavenly Museum. That item was a very crucial flavor of material. With it, the Everlasting Company could configure 10 brand new aberration potions to make up for the recent loss of high-end battle power. If you ask me, 001 is really too trashy, just getting fucked over by that Wei Qing guy like that, even dragging us into this risk. As a result, we didn't even get that godly gnome ding or whatever it is, and the several recent attempts at the North County have all come to nothing. Those guys are like shrunken turtles, cowering inside that ancient formation turtle shell of theirs, what a nuisance. Man number 018 was a bit broken-mouthed, and because of the cryptic insect talent, he spoke with impunity. Near them, there was a faint veil that enveloped them. This was the cryptic insect's talent, the veil of spiritual concealment. It was by relying on this talent that they hadn't been discovered all the way. It's going to be nighttime in a little while, so we'll enter again when there's no one in the Heavenly Museum. No. 003 glanced down at the time and barked with them. After waiting for another hour or so, the sky finally darkened. No. 003 and the other two exchanged glances, then topped off with the veil of spirit hiddenness and slowly moved the manhole cover of the sewer away. In the East Lake District, on the ground of the Heavenly Museum, the alien wreck warrior disguised as a security guard during the day was hiding inside a hidden street alley, quietly waiting for tonight's prey. Because he hadn't eaten anything for a day, he took the time to buy three pieces of corn and was gnawing on them. Suddenly, he saw that not far in front of him, the manhole cover connected to the sewer was suddenly being slowly moved away. But apart from the movement of being moved away, there was no one to be seen. He watched the scene with dumbfounded amazement, even forgetting to continue gnawing on the corn. Hello? Command? I think, I found them. It was said in the investigation report that they have props to conceal their appearance, and I can see now that they're coming out of the manhole cover. Yes, I can't see their people, they should have their concealment on, I'll request for a special flair. After receiving an affirmative reply, he didn't even want the corn anymore, he directly threw it on the ground and pulled out a small cylindrical item from within his prepared tactical backpack. This was a special flare developed by the Senator Corporation, possessing a special light source that could illuminate all stealthy units. The opportunity to take credit had arrived. He only saw him violently throw the special flare towards the sky, then raised his own right hand, and a pitch-black circular cylinder appeared in his modified prosthetic limb. Eat me. The three aberration walkers of the Everlasting Company had only just crawled out from inside the sewers, and then they saw. The sky dawned. Immediately afterward, a rocket was fired from a distance, carrying rolling waves of heat. Grass. There's an ambush. No. 003 yelled, she then raised her hand, squeezed the incoming rocket, and then twisted it so hard that it was detonated in her hand. It was unharmed. Oh no, the point is sticking. This alien wreck warrior panicked and opened his communicator, calling, quickly all come to me, they have accomplices. 
In an instant, the inside of the alleyway became lively. In the distance, listening to the not-so-small commotion emanating from there, looking at the alien skeleton warriors that rushed out of the night one by one, Han Zhan and October looked at each other in dismay. The commotion isn't small, what's going on? Han Ah. October, who had just learned some newfangled vocabulary, lived and breathed it. The senator company actually did an ambush here, how did they know I was going to steal the energy cube? Han Zhan inexplicably muttered to himself. The opportunity is fleeting, do it. After saying that, Han Zhan and the little robot took advantage of the night and quickly sneaked into the Tianbo Pavilion from another direction. Inside the Tianbo Pavilion, it was empty. Han Zhan and October easily sneaked in. Under its leadership, they quickly traveled through the large Tianbo Pavilion and soon arrived at the target location. This is it? Han Zhan glanced around, where's the entrance? October ignored him and walked towards the front as it raised its mechanical arm and smashed through one of the Tianbo Pavilion's display cases. As the glass shattered in response, alarm bells rang throughout the Tianbo Pavilion, and Han Zhan saw it quickly grab something to swallow, crushing the outer packaging before swallowing it in his mouth. You're lying to me? He clearly saw that what October had just swallowed was precisely an ancient film. The third ancient film reel, surprisingly, was located inside the Tianbo Pavilion. That's right, he's lying to you. Right at this moment, the entire Tianbo Pavilion was suddenly lit up. The alien wreck warriors who had already ambushed the place surrounded them. We finally meet, Shang Niax, and, Bob. Shang Okarak said. You don't look like an 82-year-old black man, no wonder how we couldn't investigate your information, it seems that he helped you with the disguise. While speaking, the small robot October suddenly had one more thing in its hand, it was a dark blue disc, only the size of a palm. It seemed to have anticipated this situation. Under its rotation, the disc released an eerie blue light. Deep diving device. As the deep diving device was activated, its entire body disappeared from plain sight like a fading movie screen. When did the deep diving device possess a teleportation function? Its disappearance caused Shang Weixian to briefly lose the ability to manage his expression. The cooked duck had actually flown? You stay and watch over him, the rest of you follow me in pursuit. Shang Okershin said on the spot. He stopped looking at Han Zhan, who was on the side, and led the large force to track out. Only one seven-star alien skeleton warrior was left behind. In their opinion, a seven-star alien skeleton warrior was enough to deal with a bob. Nowadays, the Tianbo Pavilion battlefield was split into three pieces. The aberrant walkers sent by the Everlasting Company this time were extremely powerful, and the number of eight-star alien skeleton warriors dealing with them had increased to three, with the rest of the alien skeleton warriors standing by to support them. The fleeing Shang Siwa attracted the most firepower, he was the one who had implicated the entire Senate Corporation's top brass, Shang Okershin had called in three eight-star altered wreck warriors, and a dozen more seven-star altered wreck warriors to lead the way, chasing and intercepting them from all over the place. Without utilizing strategic level weapons such as war fortresses, this was almost all the top forces that Titan City could call upon. As for the synergized low end warrior power, not much more to say, it couldn't affect too much of the battlefield. Looking at the seven star alien skeleton warriors in front of him, Han Zhan raised his hand and sheathed his regular sword. Faced with an enemy two steps higher than himself, and is known for its resistance to beating the alien skeleton warrior, Shinong Ding or Fuxikin, may not be able to break its defense. Only with the demon slaying sword, which was known for its sharpness, would he have a chance to defeat the opponent. Han Zhan's judgment of the battle situation had become more and more mature, and this was precisely the transformation of his identity from a chess piece to a chess player. The seven star alien skeleton warrior on the opposite side revealed a cold smile at the corner of his mouth when he saw that Han War actually wanted to fight back. In his eyes, this young man called Bob would only end up becoming his meritocracy. This alien wreck warrior's transformation was mainly focused on his arms, which were wrapped in thick mechanical skeletons. The mechanical skeleton granted him more characteristics, strength, defense, and fist gang. As a fist was swung out, a huge fist wind enveloped the entire pavilion, and both fists came in like cannonballs. Facing the attack, Han War's fourth urgent lock instantly unlocked. The entire person's speed, defense, and strength all doubled dozens of times, barely rising to the peak level of the sixth rank. He dodged the opponent's inevitable fist dipper attack. The fist dipper slammed into the display case behind Han Zhan, and the objects that were originally in the display case were swept by the dipper and instantly turned into pieces. You're finished, you destroyed the museum's precious artifacts. No, that's what you destroyed. The alien skeleton warrior planted his face without changing his color. Seeing that Han Zhan actually dodged his attack, his heart was in awe. It wasn't over yet. Han Zhan found an opportunity to raise his hand and raise his sword, and ritually stabbed the opposite side when his opponent's punch offering was not strong enough. The alien wreck warrior subconsciously raised his hands to block, relying on the fact that his hands had been remodeled by the mechanical skeleton. I didn't expect that the long sword waved out from the other party's hand, but it was wrapped in terrifying sword chi. These sword chi were pervasive, penetrating the defense of the skeleton on both fists. In just an instant, countless blood flowed out of his hands. 
The alien skeleton warrior wanted to retreat from the pain, but Han Zhan gained momentum and gripped the Xian Yuan sword and flipped it over and over again. The powerful and sharp sword Qi ran across, intersecting with the fist dangles in midair, and then smashing down and scattering separately, plowing countless traces on the wall and ground. The alien wreck warrior who was forced into a corner, for the first time, looked squarely at the enemy in front of him, and he suddenly used both of his fists against his chest. As he completed this action, the white skeletons on his original fists all fell off in this instant, piecing together a mechanical python. This was the result of the second stage of the alien skeleton transformation. The mechanical python's strength was above the seventh stage, and because of its lack of flesh and blood, it was even less afraid of unusual injuries. The mechanical python instantly took shape, and it didn't give Han Zhan a chance to react, its tail was a sweeping blow. Han Zhan fiercely leapt up high. The mechanical python's tail crushed the Tian Bo Pavilion's display cabinets to smithereens and fell to the ground. Smoke and dust obscured the line of sight. In midair, Han Zhan realized something was wrong, but it was too late. Only to see the mechanical python open its huge mouth, densely densely packed snake teeth paved the sky and hit Han Zhan. In a stagnant state, Han Zhan rolled. There were still a few snake teeth that penetrated his body, causing him to feel a piercing pain. The seven-star alien skeleton warriors really weren't all easy to deal with. Han Zhan sighed in his heart. He didn't stop on his feet and dodged yet another attack. The pythons open, bloody mouth swooped down with one blow, biting down hard on the floor of the Tian Bo Pavilion, directly biting out a hole in the ground. A hole? Han Zhan looked at the eerie blue light that lit up below through this hole, and had the feeling that he had stepped through the iron shoes without finding a place. He quickly probed his hand and grabbed a piece of, into the hand so cool, through the refreshing fluctuations of spiritual energy, is the energy square brick is no mistake. Han looked up at the hole, his eyes colliding in midair with the alien wreck warrior who was controlling the white bone giant snake. He suddenly made a move that left the alien skeleton warrior dumbfounded. Only to see Han Zhan take a hard bite towards the energy cube in his hand. Are you kidding me? That was an energy cube. Inside each energy cube was spiritual energy concentrated to the extreme, and it simply wasn't meant for human consumption. He just took a bite? No, more than one bite. Han Zhan took one bite after another, swallowing an entire energy cube, and immediately afterward, the surging spiritual energy within his body directly exceeded what his body could withstand. It was as if his entire body was about to explode. Han Zhan's gaze was grave, only to see him use all his strength to maneuver all the riotous spiritual energy within his body, all of which was injected into the Xian Yuan sword in his hand. This is a move I've comprehended from the Jade Shattering Sword, and I would call him, Chopping Star. As a large amount of spiritual energy was injected into the Xian Yuan sword, the engraved patterns of birds, beasts, insects, and fish, mountains, rivers, lakes and seas lit up one by one. As if it had completed its energization, it bloomed with a blinding and incomparable white light. Like a dazzling white star. In the next second, the star shattered. A bit of sword light pierced through the mechanical giant snake, and together with the seventh rank alien skeleton warrior behind it, it was knocked out. Chopping star. Shang Zhixian was still pursuing Shang Jianyue's trail. The prop used by the opponent must have been the masterpiece of Shang Si was vomit. Merchant, who was known for his technology, was helpless against this kind of prop. Skynet Brain was still deducing the means to counteract this prop of his, but it needed time, and it was by no means today. In the sky, if Merchant Oker Hyun could have seen it, he would have realized that a small robot was strolling in the void like a ghost. The deep diving device had many functions, how could there be only one to shield the signal? He had purposely said this before just to confuse Han Zhuan. Shang Siax looked down at the crowd below who were like headless flies, and his heart gave a cold smile. Just then, an accident happened. Only a clear click suddenly came from the blue disc in his hand. In the expression of the little robot's pupils that shook tremendously, it fell apart in pieces. In the next second, it directly fell from the sky. Grass. Shang Miaoyue's exasperated voice resounded from within the little robot. Regarding the ancient cells and soul topographies, it had actually spilled the beans. The four ancient films really corresponded to Shang Jianyue's memory, talent, consciousness, and most importantly, soul. After swallowing to three ancient cells, his character gradually recovered, and even his voice and tone of voice were changing. The sudden collapse of the deep diving device made him think of someone directly. The second half of the assembly of the deep diving device was completed by Han War. So from that time, Han Zhan had tampered with it. This treacherous brat. Shang Siwa's side had just pitted Han War and was backstabbed by Han War. Soon, Shang Okerhian and the others who rushed up surrounded him. Old ancestor, it's only just been a while, why have you changed your pull? Shang Siak snorted coldly. Without any nonsense, he only saw his arm slightly vibrate, and a small miniature marble, just like mercury cascading to the ground, fell down from the small robot through and through. After these marbles fell to the ground, they even directly transformed into a miniature spider and rushed towards the surroundings. Be careful, it's a mimic robot. Shang Akrexian waved his hand, and the three eight-star alien skeleton warriors blocked the front. In the next second, boom boom boom. One after another explosion blew the entire street to smithereens. 
terrifying energy rushed over, and Shang Okershin's pupils shrunk slightly. The damage was not right. Mimic robots, the crisis created by self-detonation, was at most at the fifth rank level, but the power caused by this explosion in front of him had exceeded the seventh rank. Was this the strength of the merchant's first genius? No wonder today, the merchant higher-ups wanted to take him down no matter what the cost, no matter what. There's no need to retreat. He's only just awakened not long ago, there must not be many as powerful as this. Are you sure? Sean Miax maneuvered the little robot and snapped his fingers. Only a rumbling sound could be heard. The ground directly under his feet cracked open, and two terrifying red lights slowly stood up from the underground smoke. Huge, war-type robots. Titan of destruction? Sean Achixian called out the name of this robot at once. No matter, once upon a time, Sean Okershin was also an avid technology geek, but reality dealt him a heavy blow. The high cost of materials, the high cost of maintenance, and the unaffordable battle damage ratio had put these designs on the back burner. Compared to it, the alien skeleton transformation was not only inexpensive, but also only required ordinary people to carry out the transformation, the cost was extremely low. Letting these cannon fodder spend their own money on maintenance and upgrades, and establishing a merit system, and not even needing to issue a pension when they died, the cost effectiveness was extremely high. Gradually, there were more and more alien skeleton fighters in the senator company, and fewer and fewer battle mechs. Yo, it seems you're familiar with my earlier works, still? On the destruction titan, the little robot sat on its incredibly tall shoulders and looked towards Shang Achixian. But how could it be? How long had Shang Miaoyue been resurrected, and what ability did he have to build such a destruction titan that was comparable to an 8-star alien wreck warrior? Sean Okershin couldn't figure it out until he saw the black color that receded like a tidal wave on the destruction titan, which was a robot as tiny as a nanoscale, falling back into the ground. It reminded Sean Okershin of what was said about the old ancestor in the ancient history textbooks of the Senate Commerce Corporation. One man made an army. The three eight-star alien skeleton warriors, and the large army that kept arriving, but the little robot didn't care about them, his gaze looking far in the direction of the Sky Expo Hall. Damn kid, the family belongings that I saved with great difficulty, it looks like I'll be squandering it all again today. Another battlefield. The three aberration walkers from the Everlasting Company and the two eight-star alien skeleton warriors from the Senator Company fought to one place. No. 003 fought one against two without losing the slightest bit of ground. Her ability was, the calamity, and the main body of the aberration was the cells within her body. Each cell was capable of aberration to become a red-blooded bee, and with each aberration of a red-blooded bee, she was able to gain one more power increase. Now within her body, hundreds of millions of cells had successfully deformed into red blood bees, and her increase had reached an extremely terrifying height. Every punch slammed out was a sensation of destroying the heavens and destroying the earth. Even the alien wreck warriors, who were known for their defense and resistance to punching, didn't dare to go straight for their fronts. In addition to this, Bug Hidden and Poison Doom were also two very disgusting aberrations in the right direction. One could make 003's movements more erratic, striking at any time, anywhere. One noiselessly erodes the body, poisonous invasion, making the body more fragile and shriveled. Such a combination of a main front row and two auxiliaries really disgusted the two eight-star alien skeleton warriors of the senator company. They wanted to prioritize the two obscene aides, and every time they did, the other party would stealthily disappear into thin air. Where's the flare? Flares. It's already used up. Damn it. Why isn't the support here yet? Inside the communication, it says that the support was split by the battlefield on Lord Shang Okershin's side. On Lord Shang Okershin's side, there seems to be a legion-level melee going on. The 8-star alien skeleton warrior who spoke was just about to say something when a palm had already passed through his chest. Plop, plop. The bloodied heart was brought out and grasped in his hand. 003's indifferent tone rang in his ears. Next time, don't get distracted while fighting. The heart was directly pinched and burst. The balance of the battle instantly tilted. After another moment, there were many more corpses in the alleyway of the Tianbo Pavilion, including two eight-star alien skeleton warriors. Let's go, let's enter the Heavenly Museum. The three silhouettes were lost in the night, walking towards the Tianbo Pavilion. At this moment, inside the Tianbo Pavilion, Han Zhan finally pocketed all of the energy tiles, and the purpose of his trip was accomplished. Just as he catalyzed the void black hole, intending to leave with ease, the black hole annihilated moments after it appeared. The teleportation failed. The entire underground of the City of Titans was constructed with a single space stabilizer at some unknown time. They appeared as if they were springing up, and after they appeared, the black tide receded in all directions. In the other battlefield, Shang Miak sneered at the battle-damaged and destroyed machinery, and the dead bodies of the alien warriors. Don't wait, the space has been stabilized by me, you can't wait for reinforcements. If you want to capture me, you have to pay the price. Han Zhan decided to find out after refining this small return dan first. He immediately spoke, Please also ask the clan leader to prepare these herbs for me. I would like to open the furnace to refine the elixir. Zhang Hui and Zhang Hua glanced at each other and didn't reject this request from Han Zhan. 
The medicinal herbs are kept in that warehouse in the east, it will take some time to send someone to fetch them, so you can stay here for now, Zhang Hua, since this outsider is your family's savior, you and prepare a place for him to stay, and make the rules clear to him. Yes, Zhang Hua agreed. After leaving from the patriarch's residence, Zhang Hua led Han Zhan to an empty room, which was at least quite a bit more refined than the rough room he had slept in when he first entered this world. Just as Han Zhan was feeling sentimental in his heart, Zhang Hua sighed. Alas, little brother Han, you shouldn't have taken this matter, you're my family's Zhang Yu savior, yet I don't want to return the favor. How do you say that? Seeing that the expression on Zhang Hua's face didn't look like a fake, Han Zhan was a bit puzzled. As far as I know, it's not as if there are no pill masters in this world, there are many newborns born every year, so how could it be possible that there aren't so many one or two who possess the talent of a pill master? Indeed, Zhang Hua's words were logical, and this was also a small confusion in Han Zhan's mind, only just now, when he was facing Zhang Huai, because of the absolutely crushing strength gap, he subconsciously ignored this point. Being reminded by Zhang Hua at this time, Han Zhan nodded. They're all dead. Zhang Hua's next sentence directly triggered the emotions in Han Zhan's heart. Dead? What died? How did they die? Who died? Without Han Zhan pursuing, Zhang Hua had already spoken again, those pill masters, those who possess the talent of pill masters, they're all dead. The divine known saint master left more than one Dan formula in this world, and all those who obtained the formula and tried to study its mysteries ended up dying. We refer to these Dan formulas as the divine farmer saint master's curse. So patriarch Zhang Hua knew about the curse, yet he still gave the Dan formula to himself? Zhang Hua had told himself the truth because he couldn't bear to do so. Without Zhang Hua, he might have faced a different ending. It was only at this point that Han Zhan profoundly realized that this fruit world was more than a hundred times more terrifying than imagined. The only way I can crack the ultimate mystery is to be careful and cautious. I understand, thank you for passing it on, I'll be careful. Han Zhan did not return the Dan formula to Zhang, which already indicated his inner choice. Seeing Han Zhan so Zhang Hua, he was not in a position to say anything else. After this, Zhang Hua said to Han Zhan that he had to close the door to his room tightly and not go out after 6 o'clock in the evening before bidding farewell and leaving. Han Zhan closed the door and sat back down at the table. He placed the Dan formula on the table, lost in thought. The healers who had studied the formula were all dead. Was this really a curse? If it really was a curse, how would it be broken? These Dan formulas left in the world by Shen Nong must have some sort of clues. If one gave up these clues, how would one explore the truth? Han Zhan was internally torn, and for a moment, he couldn't think of a way to break the curse. No. No. All puzzles are left for those who come after them to solve, and if the puzzles left behind can't be solved, it would be meaningless. Thinking of this, Han Zhan had a preliminary judgment within his heart. The curse ritual should be viewed in two ways. First, there was a problem with the Dan formula, and researching the formula would result in a backlash. Second, there was a problem with the person researching it, and researchers who didn't fulfill the conditions would be subjected to a backlash. Shen Nong, as a human being, tasted all kinds of herbs in the legend and benefited the world, he shouldn't be able to curse future generations of humans. And if there really was a problem with the Dan formula, with his own strength of a mere fourth rank, it would be a completely certain death. After going through that Dan formula over and over again and studying it, Han Zhan still couldn't come to a conclusion, so he decided to go out and ask around about healers and Dan formulas. As he pushed open the door, Han Zhan was keenly aware of the gazes that were cast all around him to gauge surveillance, and then quickly moved away. Looking at the significantly more passers-by at the door, Han Zhan's heart thumped. Were these the people Jiang Huai had sent? What is he worried about? He's spying on me. Han Zhan's face didn't move as he quickly walked towards the crowd. Soldiers came to stop the water and water to cover the earth. He wanted to see what Jiang Huai had in mind. Little redeeming pill. The first stop Han chose was the home of the young man who delivered the food. It is not difficult to find out where he lives. When the food delivery youth saw Han Zhan appear at his door, he was also a bit surprised. Saint Master? Han Zhan waved his hand, you should just call me Han Zhan. The news that Han Zhan had saved Jiang Yu's life had already spread throughout the Jiang clan tribe. For this outsider who was proficient in the art of healing, everyone in the tribe addressed him as Saint Master as a sign of respect. Giving up on pleasantries. Han Zhan continued, Today, I obtained an elixir formula from Patriarch Zhang Huai, which is said to have been left behind by the Shinnong Saint Master. As payment for you saving me from prison, I'm willing to share it with you. The rice delivery youth stared at Han Zhan with wide eyes, incredulously. How can you, this person, be so gracious? His tone was urgent, and he shook his hand repeatedly, fearing that Han Zhan would really pull out an elixir formula. It seemed like he also knew that there was something wrong with the Dan formula. Han Zhan speculated in his heart when he saw the expression on the rice delivery youth's face. He cooperated by making a confused expression on his face and asked rhetorically, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with this Dan formula? The rice delivery youth hesitated for a moment, but still answered truthfully, I don't know, I only know that the people who studied the Dan formula ended up dying. Patriarch Jiang Huai then stopped allowing people from our clan to continue researching this Dan formula. 
He probably agreed to give this Dan formula to you only after seeing that you are an outsider who might not be cursed. An outsider? Yeah, that's right, I'm an outsider. That's what makes me different from those healers. I didn't belong to this world in the first place, and if I follow this understanding, this Dan formula really does have a curse, it might also have no effect on me. Han Zhan's heart was enlightened by the food delivery youth's point. The two of them said a few more words, and Han Zhan waved goodbye. For his second stop, he chose the Jianghua home. When he arrived at Jianghua's house, Jianghua and Jianyu were preparing dinner. Seeing Han Zhan arrive, Jianghua was a bit surprised. It's going to be dark soon, why are you still hanging around outside, didn't I instruct you never to go out after dark, something bad will happen to you. I just came out to take a look, I'll be right back, Han Zhan said, turning his gaze to Jianyu. He hadn't come into contact with many people now, and he might not be trustworthy with Patriarch Jiang Huai, so he can only start with the few people he knew and get information. Regarding Jiang Yu, Han Zhan also had doubts in his heart. Sister Jiang Yu, why did your disease break out early, did you visit any special places before the outbreak? Facing the inquiry, Jiang Yu first glanced at Jiang Huo and saw that he didn't react before answering. I was just playing hide and seek with the big guys, I didn't realize that I forgot the time for a moment, and by the time I came out from my hiding spot, it was already late. At that time, I knew it was bad and rushed back home as fast as I could, and I don't remember anything after that. Let me add to that. Seeing that Han Zhan had the intention to investigate this matter, Zhang Hua very cooperated and said, Xiaoyu came home late from hide and seek that day, I was so anxious at home that I could hardly wait for her to come home, and it had already exceeded the prescribed time by half an hour. Just after she returned home, a strange change occurred in her body. It was like something was trying to burrow out of her body, and the eerie feeling was creepy. But the good thing is, it didn't come out completely. As you know from the aftermath, Koyuki fell into a coma and slept for a long time until you woke her up. Can you tell me about that place you hide in hide and seek? Where is it? Han Zhan asked immediately afterward. I, I can't remember, I only know that there is a very large tree there, in the woods just outside of our clan, which is far away from the clan. I was thinking that they couldn't find me in hide and seek and deliberately hid that far away. Han Zhan nodded, indicating that he was clear. It was already getting late, so Zhang Hua didn't keep Han Zhan in his house for dinner for his safety. Han Zhan accelerated his pace and finally rushed back home within the allotted time. The night gradually deepened. Outside the tightly closed door, a whimpering wind began to sound. The doors and windows were blowing and whistling. With Han Zhan's hearing, he distinctly heard some kind of special footsteps in the whistling wind. Was there something walking at night? Han Zhan glanced at the window, where it was dark and nothing could be seen clearly. The temperature of the entire room plummeted a lot at once, and he subconsciously wrapped his entire body tightly. He didn't know how long it took for the noisy voices to drift away from him. Han Zhan's curiosity prompted him to stand up and walk close to the door, wanting to look out through the doorway. When he had just lowered his head and looked out through the doorway, the next second, he jerked back a few steps as if he had been startled. He saw something through the door crack. It was a pair of scarlet eyes, and the owner of those eyes was none other than Zhang Yu. Didn't they say you can't go out after 6 o'clock? Zhang Yu, why was she outside? Han Zhan knew only a few people in total, and he definitely couldn't be wrong that it was undoubtedly Zhang Yu. It was just that her eyes were scarlet, and she was sticking to the doorway to look inside, and Han Zhan just happened to meet Han Zhan's eyes. Being suddenly startled, Han Zhan decided not to explore any further. He leaned his back against the mud wall, facing the direction of the door, and went to sleep with careful vigilance. The next morning, he was awakened by a knock on the door. The herbs that Patriarch Zhang Huai had instructed people to fetch had already been delivered to Han Battle's doorstep, seemingly with some impatience. Zhang Huai's abnormality was evident to Han Zhan, who received the herbs in silence and said nothing. The person sent by Jiang Huai, however, repeatedly urged, Saint Master, these herbs are all very precious, and the Patriarch has instructed you to make sure that you refine the pills as soon as possible, or else I fear there will be a major change. Was this a threat? Han Zhan glanced at them and nodded. The other party didn't say anything else and bowed to leave. After matching the herbs with the names on the Dan formula, Han Zhan was certain that these herbs were the materials needed to refine the small return pill. Patriarch Jiang Huai had clearly prepared all of them, but never refined them, or was the refining unsuccessful? Returning to the house, after yesterday's thinking, Han Zhan decided to try refining the elixir. For one thing, the clues were broken here now, and without refining the elixir, no further clues could be obtained. Secondly, if the curse really only targeted people in this world and had no effect on outsiders, then the process of refining the elixir would be without danger. Thus, Han Zhan summoned the Shinon Cauldron and began to add herbs to it according to the dosage and steps on the elixir formula. As the last of the herbs was added, the entire tripod began to glow with a light splendor. This Dan formula was extremely extraordinary, and the refined pills looked round and jade-like, white jade like China, which seemed to be a superior product. Just when Han Zhan thought that the refining was successful, he breathed a sigh of relief. A bizarre human face suddenly appeared on top of the pill. The entire white pill was even shrouded in a layer of dense black mist. The human face on the Dan pill looked towards Han Zhan and cracked its mouth, 
revealing a bizarre smile. In the next second, these black mists opened their teeth and claws and lunged at Han Zhan before he could react. There really was something wrong with the Dan Pill. Jiang Huai must know some information that the others didn't know, and he deliberately didn't tell himself. It was only now that Han Zhan woke up, and it was too late. The cauldron lights up and the Dan is complete, day and night. As the strange pill was about to break out of the cauldron, the entire Shinnong tripod suddenly lit up with a light golden light, enveloping the entire tripod. The weird human face seemed to be overcome by this golden light, let out a sharp scream, and within a few moments it flew away. After a while, after confirming that there was no more abnormality in the tripod, Han Zhan took out the pill. Looking at the pearlized pill in his hand, Han Zhan's eyes involuntarily burned slightly. Divine illumination was once again activated, and the information of the elixir pill came into view. Name, small return pill. Efficacy, able to resist erosion in the darkness of the night, inhibit mutations within the body, and break the rules to gain permission to travel at night for three hours. Attention, refining Zio Yuyudin carries a risk to your life, one life, one Dan, please be careful when refining it. Seeing all the introductions of the small return Dan, Han Zhan then came to his senses. It turned out that it wasn't that the Dan formula had a curse, but that refining the small return Dan required one life for one Dan. With such a pitiful setting, it was fortunate that he was using the Shinnon cauldron for refining, which, as the furnace cauldron used by Shinnon for refining pills, had a restraining effect on the Dan pill alteration, which allowed him to escape. That Jiang clan chief, Jiang Huai, must have also known the restrictions of refining the small return Dan. That's why he didn't allow his clan members to refine it, but instead surrendered the Dan formula to me, an outsider, with extremely sinister intentions. Although Han Zhan had successfully refined the small return Dan, he chose to remain inside the house and wait for night to fall. Since the small returning pill was able to grant the taker the ability to walk at night for a short period of time, according to the rules, after taking the small returning pill, Han Zhan would be able to ignore the prohibition and search for more clues at night. Intuition told him that the outside world would be more exciting at night. Refining the elixir had consumed a lot of energy, so Han Zhan decided to take a nap first and wait for the night to fall. When Han Zhan woke up again, it was already dark outside. The familiar sound of the whistling wind rang out once again. This time Han Zhan no longer hesitated and swallowed the small return pill in one gulp. After swallowing the small returning Dan, Han Zhan felt as if there was an extra special force in his body out of nowhere, which wrapped his entire body and formed a natural barrier. Han Zhan pushed open the door and walked out. The Jiang clan tribe was quiet at night, not a soul in sight, and the moment he pushed open the door, even the sound of the whistling wind came to a screeching halt, as if what he had heard before was all an illusion. There were neither scary ghosts nor scarlet eyes as imagined, but only empty streets. Han Zhan's six senses were too good, he vaguely heard footsteps coming from not far away, and hurriedly took a step ahead to hide around the houses, waiting to see what would happen. Not long after, a sneaky figure appeared at the end of the street. The silhouette seemed to expect that no one else would appear, and did not do much to cover up, just walked out in a dignified manner. When he saw the silhouette revealed from the shadows, Han Zhan was a bit surprised. Jiang Huai, he was actually able to walk at night as well. Yes, he had given him the formula for the small return pill. Zhang himself must have a surplus of little returning Dan. Han Zhan pondered in his heart as he held his breath and didn't move. Soon Zhang Huai arrived at the door of Han War's residence. He first pressed his side ear against the door to listen, and after not hearing a sound for a long time, he grunted and sneered twice, muttering to himself, this outsider is also considered to have died a good death, letting me get a small returning Dan for nothing. After saying that, Zhang Huai pushed the door open with force. The door opened with a squeak, and it was empty, with no sign of Han Zhan. Seeing this scene, Zhang Huai was dumbfounded when a familiar voice suddenly sounded behind him, Patriarch Zhang, are you looking for me this late? Hearing Han Zhan's voice resounding behind him, Zhang Huai turned his head unthinkingly, his dismayed gaze fixed on Han Zhan, his tone filled with suspicion, this is impossible. You, you refined the small return pill, why are you still able to remain unharmed? This is by no means possible. There's nothing impossible, Matriarch Zhang. Han Zhan said as he stepped forward and blocked Zhang Huai's path. The reason he dared to do so was because he had discovered yet another even greater secret. This Jiang Huai clan chief in front of him, the terrifying aura he had during the day had disappeared, and the current Jiang Huai gave himself the feeling of being an ordinary person with no cultivation at all. It was because of this discovery that Han Zhan had the strength to intercept the other party's path. Jiang Huai's face was unsightly. He tried to squeeze out a smile and tried to negotiate with Han Zhan, outsider, I have no intention of making things difficult for you, how about we just let this matter go? No intention to make things difficult? Deliberately shoving the small return pill formula at me and tricking me into refining it, just to use my life in exchange for the pill, is this considered unintentionally making things difficult? Ha ha. Han Zhan's sneering words caused Zhang Huai's face to turn green and white. Seeing the right moment, he took an arrow step and scurried out towards the side path, only to be slapped on the ground by the faster reacting Han Zhan. He loved the feeling of slapping someone on the ground. How he was slapped during the day, how he was going to slap back at night. What exactly do you want? 
Jiang Huai said viciously, Tell me all the information you know, don't play any tricks, we still have plenty of time, I can afford to spend it. Hearing Han Zhan's words, Patriarch Jiang Huai was also honorable, and very simply spilled out all the information he knew. The small return Dan was indeed the formula left behind by Shen Nong. Ever since Shen Nong's death, this formula had been left in the Jiang clan for safekeeping. Only pharmacists were able to refine the small return Dan, but because of the characteristics of the small return Dan of one life, the pharmacists of the Jiang clan could not afford to consume lives. It was only later that the Jiang clan's patriarch sealed the small return Dan formula and stopped refining it. The rule of not being allowed to go out after 6 o'clock at night was real, and it wasn't just for Han Zhan alone. The night air was filled with some kind of unknown and treacherous pollution, which accelerated the outbreak of diseases in their bodies when walking at night. This kind of weirdness plagued every generation of the Jiang clan. And then there was the secret that Han Zhan had sensed in advance. This world was odd, not only was it sick, but it was also very sick. During the day, everyone living in this world had a dramatic increase in strength and hunted those birds and beasts effortlessly. But once night came, the world outside became exceptionally dangerous. The more powerful a person was during the day, the weaker they were at night, not even as good as an ordinary person, and those originally weak flying birds and beasts would alienate and become incredibly terrifying once the night came. The reason why Jiang Huai wanted to refine the lesser returning Dan through Han Zhan was simply to think of making the best use of what he had, utilizing his identity as an outsider to stockpile an extra lesser returning Dan for the Jiang clan, just in case of emergencies. Listening to Jiang Huai's explanation, Han Zhan was half convinced. But in the end, he didn't strike out at him again and put him to death. The two were silent once again. Just then, a light and swift footstep echoed in the distant streets. A petite black silhouette appeared from the distance. It was a little girl, appearing to be no more than 12 or 13 years old wearing two crochets and walking obliviously on the road. The most crucial thing was her eyes, which were red. Jiang Yu. Tracking down Jiang Yu. Why is Jiang Yu here, and what's her situation? Jiang Yu's appearance seemed to have disrupted Jiang Hui's plans as well, and his face was a bit ugly. Under Han Zheng's gaze, he could only say truthfully, Jiang Yu has been parasitized, not simply parasitized, but the abnormality in her body has been activated. But again, because the infection hasn't lasted long enough, it's in a delicate balance stage. This is your real purpose, isn't it, to take the small returning pill from me on the way, and then follow Jiang Yu to discover the deeper secrets behind the infection, you're doing well with your calculations, Matriarch Jiang. Han Zhan wasn't a three-year-old child, refining the small returning Dan, regardless of success or failure, there was absolutely no need to make a trip over here in the middle of the night, this would also be a waste of a small returning Dan for no reason, it would be more than worth it. The only thing that could be explained was that Jiang Hui's purpose was not in himself. Until Jiang Yu appeared, the truth was revealed. Jiang Huai was poked and prodded in his heart, he didn't say much, secretly adorned a short distance behind Jiang Yu and began to follow. Han Zhan did not hesitate and followed Jiang Huai as well. He also wanted to see after being contaminated, Jiang Yu went out at night to see what was going on. Jiang Huai, who was following closely ahead, was not slow-footed and familiar with the path, as if it was not the first time he had followed. The Jiang clans was located in a plain next to a deep mountain, and nearby was a large mountain. At night, the mountains were pitch black, looking like a large black rag that blended into the night. Together with them, there were also the three of them, Han Zhan. Zhang Yu, who was at the front, was walking on the ground despite her small figure, giving people an indescribably weird feeling. Zhang Huai, who had been following behind, was the first to lose his support. At night, his strength was worse than an ordinary person, and after walking for more than half an hour up the mountain, he was already panting. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan was a bit surprised and asked, You're so weak, how did you follow before? Won't you lose them due to lack of stamina? Zhang Huai slightly gasped twice. No because I also only tracked her once before, and she had already returned the same way before she even entered the mountain. Today, I don't know why, but I was able to last this long. Perhaps, something to do with himself? Hearing this, Han Zhan thought somewhat sheepishly. Bio-spirit creation, as the divine known Ding's talent, it had the effect of healing all damage on the body and restoring it as if it was the first time. So what if the strange diseases that haunted the Jiang clan weren't strange diseases or curses, but rather injuries? Just after the two had spoken, Jiang Yu, who was walking as fast as she could, had already completely disappeared into the night. Not good. We lost her. Jiang Huai exclaimed. He wanted to say something else? He was violently pulled over by Han Zhang. The moment Jiang Huai was just pulled away, a large black shadow fell from the sky and smashed into the place where Jiang Huai was originally standing. It also revealed its original appearance from the blackness. It was a monster. Similar in appearance to a tiger, but with three differently shaped heads, each of which had a bloody mouth open, revealing sharp teeth. The hair on its body was black, and a pair of bone wings appeared on its back, truly like a tiger with wings. What they didn't expect was that Jiang Yu, who was supposed to have disappeared, suddenly appeared in the treetops on the opposite side of the street, staring at the two of them with scarlet eyes, gazing at them silently in a creepy manner. She's not Jiang Yu. 
Han Zhang said with certainty, from the very beginning, she deliberately mimicked as Jiang Yu to lure us out of the Jiang clan tribe. There have been no attacks inside the Jiang clan tribe, proving that Shen Nong is still blessing the clan after his fall. You are very clever, outsider. Thanks to you, otherwise, it would have taken decades of waiting to activate the seal inside this little girl. It's you who allowed me to mention an early revival, and I want to thank you properly. A morose voice emanated from Jiang Yu's mouth. That body that originally maintained the appearance of Jiang Yu suddenly transformed into a dense fog. This mass of black thick fog, slowly rotated and coalesced without dispersing, as if it was this appearance itself. It is it. That curse. As the patriarch, Jiang Hui naturally recognized that this appearance was clearly the same black mist that appeared when the Jiang clan members were engulfed after they reached the age of 35. How could he not have thought that he would have seen this scene in advance? This black fog was even more aggressive and terrifying than the one that appeared before. Don't confuse yourself, it's deliberately revealing its original form just to make you panic and abandon judgment. The impact of the black fog on Jiang Hui was far greater than Han Zhang, who was still able to calmly think and analyze the other party's reasons for doing so. It's stalling for time little redeemer. A flash of light in Han Zhang's mind broke through to the truth. As one of the Dan formulas left behind by Shen Nong, the little return Dan's effects must not be as simple as the description. Being able to walk at night without being bound by rules was a whole new kind of rule in itself. The power of rules was terrifying and unimaginable. The rule of the lesser returning Dan was to be protected from the erosion of the night, and any threat in the darkness was naturally included. Then the black fog that stood across the room, as well as this bone-winged black tiger it drove, could not harm itself at all right now. With Han Zhang's reminder, Zhang Hui also came to a sudden realization. It's trying to drag out the time for the small returning pill before it strikes at us. Then what are we waiting for? Hurry up and run. Zhang Hui thought here in his heart, he immediately turned around and without saying a word twisted his head to run towards the Zhang clan tribe. But in the next second, the giant black tiger stopped in his path. With Han Zhang's eyesight, he didn't even see clearly how the other party moved. Ninth rank, again. The terrifying strength of the night monsters was just like that of the Zhang clan people during the day, causing a sense of powerlessness to rise in one's heart, with no desire or fighting spirit to resist. So what if you see through it? From the moment you left the Zhang clan tribe you were doomed to end, no need to struggle meaninglessly. In the thick black fog, a morose voice continued to resound with a cold smile. Zhang Hui's expression was no longer calm. This time when he went out, he had only taken a small returning pill, which lasted for three hours, and once that time was exceeded, the encroachment of the darkness would be unstoppable. It was just after nine o'clock now, and there was still a long time until daylight. What to do? It would be a lie to say that one is not afraid of death. Zhang Hui subconsciously turned his gaze for help to his side, the still calm outsider Han Zhuan. You have a way right? You must have a way, outsiders are all very cunning, there's no way you won't leave a backhand. Seemingly being spoken to by Jiang Hui, Han Zhuan no longer hid. Only to see him stretching out his hand and spreading his palm, in his palm, seven or eight bejeweled white pills were shining with a faint light, what was it if it wasn't the small returning Dan? Seeing so many small return pills, Jiang Hui's despairing eyes instantly blossomed with hope. He was just about to reach out to take one to renew his time, when Han Zhuan suddenly jerked his hand back. You, how could you possibly have so many lesser restoration Dan? The lesser returning Dan exchanges lives for Dan, how can it be refined so easily? The voice in the thick black mist also carried a hint of incredulity. Yo, you know quite a lot. Then do you recognize what this is? Han Zhang's words just fell. He pinched his hands together, and a giant tripod silhouette with an ancient aura appeared in the sky above his head. Hanging on for a while is cool, hanging on all the time is cool. This is that guy's Dan Furnace? How could it appear in your hands? The moment he saw the godly farmer's cauldron, a screaming tone emanated from the thick black mist, even more emotionally volatile than just now. It seems like you recognize it, so that's good. Are you going to roll on your own, or am I going to give you a ride? Zhang Hui looked at the scene in front of him somewhat baffled. Originally, the arrogant black fog represented curses and ominousness, and his sight had been forced into a desperate situation. As a result, Han Zhang first pulled out seven or eight Xiao Ruden and summoned an inexplicable giant tripod, and the opposite side instantly wimped out. What kind of unfolding was this? Zhang Hui, as the head of the Zhang clan, he couldn't understand it anymore. Without waiting for him to figure it out, Han Zhang had already pressed one hand in vain, gently pressing it that way. The Xin Nong tripod reversed its mouth, and pressed hard towards the bottom. Han Zhang's prediction was not wrong, the Xin Nong tripod that could deal with the abnormalities of the small redeeming Dan also had a great restraining effect on the thick black mist condensed by this horrible curse. Almost the instant the tripod fell, the black mist was dispersed and disappeared without a trace, as if it had never existed. The only thing left in the field was a bone-winged black tiger, exuding a terrifying aura, and after losing the black mist it seemed to have lost its activity as well, not moving at all. Is this settled? Han Zhang glanced at the divine farmer's tripod above his head, in this world of the hundred herb sacred heart, it was like a hangman-like existence. Hanging on for a moment, hanging on all the time for a stray time, the ancients honestly don't deceive me. 
Saint Master, are we going back now? Beside him, Jiang Hui looked like a different person, looking at Han Zhan with a pleasing face. There's no way, the small redeeming Dan is in his hands, he wants to go back alive and still have to look at Han Zhan's face. Go back? No, it's not easy to come out, so of course I have to explore hard. I have limited time, I don't have the time to play so many twists and turns. Han Zhan didn't forget his purpose, entering the hundred herb sacred heart world was to explore the truth. With the boost from the little redeeming pill, he and Jiang Hui both ignored the monsters on the side and continued on their way. Without going far, Han Zhan saw a very obvious ancient tree in the sky. This should be the ancient tree that Zhang Yu hid in when she played hide and seek before. As Han Zhan thought of this, he stepped forward and reached out to touch the ancient tree. Something unexpected happened, his hand unexpectedly passed right through the trunk of the ancient tree and disappeared. The ancient tree is fake? Zhang Hui was also a bit surprised to see this scene, and when he saw Han Zhan looking at him, he hurriedly shook his hand and said, don't look at me, I don't know. The world during the day is very different from the world at night, that little girl from the Jiang Hua family must have hid here after the evening, we have been here during the day and there was no such ancient tree at all. With Jiang Hua's explanation, Han Zhan nodded. He threw out a small returning Dan, which the latter reached out and hastily took, and after both of them swallowed one each, Han War, without saying a word, slammed his entire body into the ancient tree in front of him. There was no imagined collision or sharp pain. Han Zhan only felt an empty space in front of him, and when he opened his eyes again, he had already appeared inside a cave. On the mountain wall on both sides of the cave, each side was hollowed out with depressions, and inside were placed several candlesticks like long lighting lamps, and there was firelight illuminating the entire mountain wall, as well as letting Han Zhan and the rest of them see the scene inside the cave clearly. This actually has something inside? If I'm not wrong, this place should also have the blessing of the divine known holy master. You mean we can stay here until dawn without worrying about being swallowed by the darkness? That's right. Han Zhan said as he took a few more steps forward. He saw a clay table inside the cave, and on top of the table was a piece of paper similar to the Dan formula he had seen before. Picking up the paper, it was indeed another new Dan formula. Hybridization Dan. Seeing this Dan formula, Zhang Hui's expression was even more excited than Han Zhan's as he trembled as he picked up the Dan formula and said in an excited tone, a second Dan formula. There really is a second Dan formula. The legend is true. What legend? Without Han Zhan continuing to press, Zhang Hui had already convexly said, legend has it that the Dan formula left behind by the divine known saint master contained a way to save this world, able to free us all from this curse, but the Zhang clan searched for a hundred years and was unable to find any other Dan formula. I didn't expect it to be here. No, it wasn't that they couldn't find it, but that it was impossible for them to find it at all. A small returning Dan was able to keep a person from being eroded by threats for three hours in the darkness of the night. But there were other dangers that secretly existed in the darkness of the night, just like the thick black fog that was seen just now. Although it was unable to directly attack the person who had taken the lesser returning pill, it was able to use other means to trap the person until the effect of the lesser returning pill was over. If one wanted to reach this giant tree in the sky, one had to fulfill the requirement of possessing the small returning pill, as well as a means that could expel or even kill the dense black mist. What was known was that all Jiang clan members were super strong during the day but weaker than ordinary people at night, so the second Dan formula was not prepared for them. Then who was this Dan formula truly prepared for? Han Zhan thought of himself. Having the Divine Farmer's Cauldron was like being hung up in this world, allowing Han Zhan to ignore the dangers and rules of the night, allowing Han Zhan to experience the joys of being hung up. Patriarch Zhang, this Dan formula will be kept by me, you don't have a problem with that, do you? Seeing Han Zhan ask the question, Zhang Hui looked at the young man in front of him with a complicated gaze. At first, he might have been a bit offended, sensing that his clan leader's majesty was being challenged, and thinking of waiting until daylight to get back at Han Zhan and take revenge on him. But as the two of them came into contact for a longer period of time, and explored further and further into the darkness of the night, he felt more and more that Han Zhan, the outsider, was unfathomable. Whether it was the tripod that was capable of shocking and crushing the black fog, or the means by which he could disregard the iron law of one Dan and one life to refine many small reduction dawn. This outsider had also led himself to the second Dan formula that the Jiang clan had not been able to find after searching for a hundred years. Perhaps this young man, could really help himself and his clan to lift the curse. Thinking of this, Jiang Hui immediately shook his head and stated, Saint Master, this Dan formula will be left in your custody. Not only will my Jiang clan not ask for it from you, for those materials in the Dan formula, if the Saint Master has a need for it, just open up to us and I'll do my best to satisfy you. Jiang Hui's attitude satisfied Han Zhan. A man who recognized the times was a wise man. Jiang Hui was capable of flexing and judging the situation, which was the quality that a clan leader should have. As the saying goes, return the favor with a peach, Han Zhan wasn't ambiguous either, directly handing over the two small return pills in his hand to Jiang Hui. Clan Chief Jiang, our goals are the same. Searching for the Dan formula, then unlocking the truth of this world and breaking the curse for the Jiang clan, I hope we work well together afterward. Hearing Han Zhan say this, the last stone in Jiang Hui's heart landed at ease, and he nodded without further words. 
At this time, Han Zhan suddenly realized that on the table underneath the Dan formula, a few words had been carved by someone with a sharp weapon, remaining to this day. The void devours the world. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Death is not a curse. Wear down with reincarnation. These were the words left behind by the divine farmer Saint Master? When Han Zhan reached out and touched these words, such a picture suddenly surfaced uncontrollably in his mind. That seemed to be the image that divine known holy master had purposely left behind when he carved the words. Han Zhan's eyes widened in dismay. Looking at that image, it was as if he had received a great shock. Zhang Hui at the side didn't dare to utter a single breath, not knowing exactly what had happened. It wasn't until a long time later that Han Zhan exhaled a mouthful of turbid air and mumbled out two words, insects. Exterminating insect shadow. Yes, the insect race. It was impossible for Han Zhan to be mistaken. The insect shadow that covered the sky swallowed the entire world. The largest of them all was a constantly swirling mass of black fog. That mass of black fog was countless times larger than what he had seen today. If it had to be shaped, only one word surfaced in Han Zhan's mind, black hole. Everywhere it went, it devoured endlessly, annihilating the world like a black hole, and behind it was endless darkness. Han Zhan also saw many magnificent figures standing out of thin air, blocking the forefront of the world, each of them blossoming with a dazzling and incomparable light, like a blazing sun in the sky, resisting the devouring of the endless darkness. But the power of the annihilation black hole is far beyond their imagination, do not know how long the stalemate, these sun one after another, the light dissipated. Engulfed by darkness and then fell silent, the entire world was silent, like a cosmic void. Is that the nothingness that Holy Master Shenong said? An existence beyond the ninth rank, the true culprit behind the destruction of this world, the insect shadow. Han Zhan muttered, and no one was able to give him an answer. So, this world of the hundred herb sacred heart was also destroyed by the insect race? Then wasn't it possible to reason by analogy that all the world fruits on the Bodhi treasure tree were worlds that had been destroyed by the insect race? This would also explain why the insect race was able to use those props. It was because they originally came from those worlds, and what they were about to destroy now was this blue star in front of them. I left a backhand in the heavenly palace, that's our only chance to get together the four Dan formulas and find it, the later. An old voice suddenly sounded in his ears, like a gust of wind whipping through his ears and quickly dissipating. When Han Zhan realized it, it had long since disappeared. These were the last words left to him by the divine peasant Saint Master. Heavenly palace? Where was the so-called heavenly palace again? Was it related to these Dan formulas? Why was the world that should have been annihilated into nothingness now being reshaped? This one mystery plagued Han Zhan, unable to be solved for a moment. Patriarch Zhang, it's getting late, let's spend the night here. Here? Fine. Zhang Huai was about to say to return the same way, but when he saw that Han Zhan's face wasn't an inquiring expression, he immediately recognized the need to stop. As a cave opened by the divine farmer Saint Master, this place was indeed resistant to darkness as Han Zhan had said, and the two of them slept through the night within the cave. When they woke up the next day, they realized that they had unknowingly slept in the mountain countryside. The cave mansion had disappeared, along with that ancient tree in the sky without a trace. In the distance, a mottled tiger was staring at them, eyeing them intently, and in the next second it couldn't hold back any longer, growling as it pounced on the two Han warriors. Only a cold snort could be heard from Jiang Huai, finally finding a place to vent his anger after holding it in. Jiang Huai, who had regained his peak strength, sent the spotted tiger flying out several hundred meters away with a single punch, blood soaring all the way and he didn't know how many trees he had broken. Until the tiger's shadow was completely invisible, the distorted miserable roar still echoed throughout the valley. Zhang Huai twisted his head, and just happened to lock eyes with Han Zhuan behind him. In the next second, Zhang Huai, who was still furious, suddenly bowed and arched his hand, sincerely saying Saint Master. It was only at this point that Zhang Huai's attitude on behalf of the Zhang clan was completely recognized by Han Zhan. The two then stopped testing each other and returned to the village hand in hand. As soon as they returned to the Jiang clan tribe, the two of them were surrounded by Jiang clan members. After not seeing each other for a night, the Jiang clan members already knew about the news of Jiang Hui and Han Zhan's disappearance and were anxious. For Han Zhan, an outsider, missing is missing, they were more concerned about their patriarch Jiang Hui, when they saw the two were safe and sound, the stone in their hearts fell to the ground. Jiang Hui also did not explain more to them, just beckoned to call his own men, will be mixed single dan formula on the medicinal herbs required to order down, with the fastest speed to collect. On Han Zhang's side, he welcomed the concerned inquiries from Jiang Huo and the others. Looking at Jiang Yu, who stood next to Jiang Huo with a clueless look on her face, a trace of guilt flashed within Han Zhang. If he hadn't used the divine farmer's cauldron rashly in order to get out of the situation the fastest, Jiang Yu might be a bit safer right now, and even if she slept for a long time, she would still be in a better state than she was right now. Breaking the curse could not be delayed. This curse might not have come from the divine farmer Saint Master, but rather the curse that the insect race had left behind in this world when they destroyed it. They all had a common enemy. 
Hanjian exchanged a few pleasantries with them before returning to his residence. Not long after, Jiang Hui sent someone to deliver the various materials needed for alchemy. Not only was there the small return pill, but there were also the materials needed for the mixed yuan pill, which were all in there. After establishing initial mutual trust, Jiang Hui was also responsive to Han Zhan's requests. It seemed that Jiang Hui's previous words about not having enough materials were just a deliberate attempt to guard against Han Zhan. Now that he didn't have to worry about that, Han Zhan summoned the Shinnong Cauldron again and put in the materials according to the ingredients in the mixed Yuan Dan formula. With the experience of the first alchemy, the second alchemy process was much smoother. It wasn't long before a special halo began to bloom within the Divine Farmer's Cauldron. This time the color of the halo was off-white, and unlike the pure white color of the first time, the mixed Yuan Dan looked to be much larger than the small returning Dan. If the small returning Dan was the size of a pigeon's egg, then the mixed Yuan Dan was almost the size of an egg. In the same way that the small returning Dan had an abnormality, the mixed Yuan Shan was also essential, and its abnormality was even more terrifying than the small returning Dan. Almost at the moment when the Dan pill was molded, the entire Shinnong Ding began to be filled with horrible carnage, a fist-sized black fog, whistling about to rush out of the Ding. Shinnong Ding once again bloomed gorgeous light, the entire top mouth cover, not let the black fog rushed out. The black fog rushed around inside the tripod, hitting the top wall of the Shinnong tripod and making a loud noise. Dang 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 dang. Every sound hit hard in Han Zhan's heart, just like the ancient god of war pounding on the war drums to make a huge roar, knocking the entire Shinnong Ding to the ground. I don't know how long it took. Only then did the impact calm down, and a dripping round grey white pill tripped out of the tripod. The mixed Yuan Dan was completed. Han Zhan's eyes tightly stared at the mixed Yuan Dan, and very quickly, the talent, divine illumination, acquired all of its information. Name, mixed Yuan Dan. Efficacy, heaven and earth are chaotic, united as Yuan. After taking the mixed Yuan Dan, one is immune to all physical damage. Attention, refining the mixed Yuan pill involves a great risk to your life, one life, one pill, please be careful when refining it. It is also a one life one pill, but the effects of the mixed elemental pill are different from those of the small return pill. The small return pill was able to allow a person to ignore the rules and have the ability to walk at night. The mixed Yuan Dan, on the other hand, was the one that made one immune to physical damage? Could it be that on the path of exploration afterward, there are any difficulties that one must be immune to physical damage in order to get through? Each Dan formula was the key to solving the puzzle. With four Dan formulas, one had already gathered two of them, and facing the truth left behind by Shen Nong, Han Zhan had gotten closer and closer. The wilderness of Du Guang. It was unknown what Jiang Huai had said to the other Jiang clansmen. By the time Han Zhan finished refining the Dan pills and walked out of the house, he seemed to be able to feel something else in the eyes of the surrounding Jiang clansmen as they looked at him. That seemed to be respect? Ignoring all of this, Han Zhan found Jiang Huai and informed him of the functions of the mixed Yuan Dan. Clan Chief Jiang, in this neighborhood, are there any places that can't be passed by relying on an unusual physical body? Places that cannot be passed by an unusual physical body? As Jiang Huai listened to the information Han Zhan described about the hybridization pill, he came to a sudden realization. If we really want to talk about it, there is indeed a place where, not to mention any unusual flesh bodies, even if we go there during the day, we won't be able to pass through. A place that even Jiang Huai couldn't pass through. Han Zhan quickly asked, what place is that? The wilderness of Du Guang. Du Hairo's wilderness? Han Zhan had some impression of this name, he seemed to have seen it somewhere, constantly searching his mind, finally, he found the answer from the depths of his memory. It was written in the classic of mountains and seas, between the black water in the southwest, there was Du Guang Ji Yi, where Ho Ji was buried. I have anointed beans, anointed rice, anointed millet, anointed grain, and all the grains are self-generated, and the chin is sown in winter and summer. The lawn bird sings, the phoenix bird sings, the humility is real, and the grass and trees are gathered. I have all kinds of beasts and animals, and they live together. This grass does not die in winter and summer. This Du Guang's field is the holy land that Shen Nong searched for before, and it is also the key to the heavenly palace. In that case, everything makes sense. Saint Master Shen Nong had left his last resort in the heavenly palace, and the ultimate goal he needed to find was also in the heavenly palace. Where is this Du Guang Ji Yi? Patriarch Jiang, I'll go now. This. Zhang Huai was a bit Judas, he looked up at Han Zhan and finally spoke, truth be told, the medicinal ingredients for refining the mixed elemental pill have already been consumed. There are a few of these medicines that no one will cultivate since the death of divine farmer Saint Master, and they have all gone extinct. So, the mixed Yuan Dan in his hand was the only one? Han Zhan knew that this matter wouldn't be resolved so easily. It's just one mixed Yuan Dan, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. No. If you want to enter the wilderness of Du Guang, you need to cross the River of Thorns. The river of thorns can't be seen at a glance, and no one has ever been able to successfully cross it except for the divine farmer Saint Master. There's no turning back from the bow, there's no turning back from crossing the river, and there's no second hybrid elixir after eating this one. There is no way back. Han Zhan heard and understood. 
But even so, he was still going to take this path. Seeing Han Zhang's determined eyes, Zhang Huai no longer dissuaded him. Moreover, he had a premonition in the dark that if this young man in front of him couldn't solve the curse problem as well, then no one else would be able to do it, and this feeling was especially strong. Since Saint Master's mind is made up, our entire Jiang clan is willing to assist you in the first half of your journey. As soon as Jiang Hua's words fell, a few of the clan's most stout Han stepped forward, and Jiang Hua was among them. Jiang Hua pointed his finger at this group of people and continued to Han Zhan, I don't know how long this trip to the River of Thorns will take, these are the strongest and fiercest men in my clan, so letting them give you a ride will save you a lot of trouble. The only thing I need Saint Master's help with is to refine a few more small return pills for their return trip. Han Zhan originally wanted to refuse. Once he thought about how unfamiliar he was and how he did need a guide, he didn't reject Jiang Huai's good intentions. A few people simply packed up and then grabbed the road. With these Jiang warriors, Han did not encounter any dangers along the way. A few days later, they successfully arrived at the River of Thorns. The River of Thorns, as the name implied, was a river made of densely piled thorns. This river was so endless that it was impossible to see the distant borders, and all the thorns were almost as tall as two people, completely obscuring the scene in front of them. Saint Master, don't underestimate these thorns, they are able to cut through even our skin and have some sort of strange poison. Even a body of the ninth rank couldn't withstand the attack of the thorns, if it were himself, I'm afraid that he would have already been pierced into a sieve. Saint Master, we can only send you here, the road ahead leads to the unknown, and there's nothing we can do to help. Many thanks to all of you. This trip to the field of Dohiro, if everything goes well, the curse that has been passed down from generation to generation on you will be broken, I hope I can succeed. Holy Master, Godspeed. After bidding farewell to a few people, Han Zhan directly took out the mixed Yuan Dan. The moment he swallowed the mixed Yuan Dan, Han Zhan's entire body began to become like a grayish-white mist, shaped like chaos. The fleshly mortal body belonging to a human disappeared and turned into a grayish-white fog, which had the same effect as the black fog seen before. The fog had form but no reality, color but no appearance. Han Zhan tried to maneuver his new body and reached out his hand to probe into the river of thorns, only to see that when the invincible sharp thorns pierced his body, his surface skin transformed into a faint chaotic gas that dissipated and then quickly coalesced again. Physical damage immunity. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan's heart was greatly tranquilized. He immediately took control of his new body and rushed towards the other side of the river of thorns in big strides. There was no indication of how long the hybrid elixir would last, so Han Zhan didn't dare to delay, so he charged through the river of thorns in a stifling manner. Inside the river of thorns, there were no other creatures except thorns, and as far as the eye could see, all the spikes were densely packed with thorns. These spikes are incomparably sharp, and their power is comparable to that of a divine weapon, so if it's not a hybrid dan, it's simply impossible to cross over successfully. Legend has it that Shen Nong eventually found Du Guangji, must also rely on the power of the elixir. Worthy of being a legend of the century, Shen Nong's attainments and pills are far superior to those of others, and no one can outshine his right. Thinking about these things in his heart, Han Zhan's dense thorns around him had already made him completely confused about north, south, east, and west. He didn't know how far he had traveled until at a certain moment, the thorns suddenly disappeared in front of his eyes. An empty and bright field appeared in front of him. As described in the Shanghai Jing, the Luan bird sings to itself, the phoenix bird dances to itself, the spirit life is real hua, the grass and trees are gathered, such a beautiful scenery, people cannot help but slurp their tongues, as if walking into the fairyland. In that fairyland, there was a woman in beautiful garments, dancing as if she was tireless. Sensing the gaze coming from behind her, she stopped dancing and did not turn around at first. How many years has it been? How many years have we not seen an outsider enter this place, young boy, where did you come from? A melodious and pleasant voice rang out, like a larking bird, and like the flow of a clear spring, so that one could not help but sketch the appearance of a beautiful young girl in one's mind. This should be that Su Nui who was rumored to reside in the Du Guan's wilderness. I came from the Zhang clan tribe, pursuing the footsteps of Shen Nong, and entered the wilderness of Du Guan, and I am honored to see the true face of the vegetarian maiden. You young boy, you speak well, but I have not turned around, so how do you know my true face? As he spoke, the owner of the delicate figure in front of him turned around. A face without five senses appeared in front of Han Zhan. Young man, do I look good? Thank you all for your monthly votes and recommendations, thanks for the support, appreciate it. The dragon's chi gave birth to Jianmu, and the heavenly ladder ascended to the heavenly palace. The vegetarian girl turned around. The face without five senses was indescribably weird. Even in the daytime, under such a fairyland, it was even more sudden and terrifying. Han Zhan's heart thumped, subconsciously about to strike, but he instantly stopped again because it was daytime. How strong was the vegetable lady as a human during the daytime? If she was even stronger than Patriarch Zhang Hui and the others, wouldn't she be hitting a stone with an egg? The only thing that was worth celebrating was that the effects of the mixed elemental pill hadn't completely lifted from Han Zhan's body right now. He was still physically immune. Do I look good? The vegetable woman still persistently asked, seemingly waiting for Han Zhan's answer. 
Han Zhan didn't dare to answer, he was afraid that if he answered incorrectly, the bizarre human face opposite him, which had no five senses, would split a slit from it and turn into a bloody mouth biting at him. Such an image involuntarily surfaced in his mind. Cluck cluck cluck. The vegetarian lady's laughter rang in his ears, you outsiders are interesting, what strange things are in your head, I've actually never seen them before. As she said that, she casually conjured up an image beside her, which was clearly the exact likeness of the split mouth woman that had just surfaced in Han Zhan's mind. You're much more interesting than Shinong, when he came to the wilderness of Du Guang, I only read countless medicinal herbs, and countless Dan formulas from his mind, it was really uninteresting. The vegetarian maiden was able to read other people's memories? Han Zhan was first startled, and he also quickly reacted. Is it an illusion? Han Zhan subconsciously asked, but he didn't expect the faceless maiden across from him to shake her head. No, it's not an illusion. What you see in front of you is real, I've been trapped here for thousands of years, and my face and five senses are no longer meaningful to me. Although there is no meaning, my five senses were not erased by myself, but were devoured by nothingness during that disaster. It was Shinon who saved me and allowed me to stay here, waiting for someone who could solve the riddle. The image Han Zhan saw yesterday quickly surfaced in his mind. Inside that image, in addition to the divine known saint master, there were several people who each emitted a dazzling fiery light, and it turned out that one of these people was the vegetable lady. When Han Zhan thought of this, he became more and more respectful, from the bottom of his heart. They were all heroes who guarded this world, and whether they sacrificed or not, they were all worthy of respect. I'll also ask senior vegetable maiden to teach me. Good. The vegetarian maiden nodded, then took out a zither. My test is very simple, I have always loved sound and rhythm, it's just that I've been trapped here for an unknown number of years. You will play some interesting zither music to me, and I will count it as past if I am satisfied. Han War? This was completely out of character. This is the hundred herb sacred heart world, and as a result, the test you gave me was to let me play the zither, this is too pitiful. It was hard to imagine that if it wasn't Han Zhan, if it was another person, even if he was proficient in the medical arts, even if he had heavily medical skills, and it was hard for him to cross the river of thorns to come here, he would have to be dumbfounded when he saw the vegetable maiden pulling out a zither even bigger than himself. But Han Zhan was different. As a spirit contractor who had not only contracted the divine known Ding, but also the Fushi zither, playing the zither was as simple as eating and drinking water for him. Without saying a word, he took the zither from Su Nu, sat down on his knees, placed the zither horizontally between his knees, and began to twist the strings and play. The many tracks of the Fushi zither, even though they couldn't cause any real effect in this world, they were still complete zither tunes. Han Zhan played them without any jitters and very smoothly. Although Su Nu's face was devoid of five senses, from the way she sat there with her head propped up, listening with her ears sideways, it could be seen that she was very satisfied with the zither piece Han Zhan played. Time passed in this way, minute by minute. I don't know how long it passed, but Su Nu wooed and awoke from her sleep as she stretched. It's been a long time since I've slept so comfortably. You are very good, to be able to play such a zither, you are bound to not be a boring person, this level counts as you passing. The vegetarian woman said, changing a Dan formula from her hand, which looked exactly like the two that Han Zhan had seen before, and was obviously also a Dan formula left behind by Shinong. In this way, three of the four Dan formulas could be obtained. Only, Han Zhan suddenly thought of a key issue, and the original joy in his heart was certainly non-existent. Received the prescription, five dragon dan three words into the eyes, followed by a dense number of herbs, are necessary to refine the five dragon dan. Just as Han Zhan was frowning, the vegetarian woman on the side suddenly laughed softly, originally, according to the agreement, you needed to collect these herbs alone before you could ask me to help refine the five dragon dan, but I'm very satisfied with the zither piece you just played, I even heard the flavor of another divine weapon from your zither piece. Speaking here, the vegetable lady's voice became meaningful. You are the one chosen by destiny, those meaningless trials can be cancelled appropriately. After saying that, the vegetarian maiden changed into another fist-sized Dan pill in her hand. This Dan pill had five different colors, which evenly coated the entire Dan pill, looking like a colorful ball. Five Dragon Dan. Seeing Hanjan frozen there, the vegetal maiden opened her mouth again and explained, I was really bored, so I refined one by hand. Good lord, this is not just being open-minded, this is simply heaven-defying. Even the refining process was saved, directly obtaining the five dragon dan. After Han Zhan reacted, he hastily accepted it with an arch. When you activate the five dragon dan, dragon chi will nourish the jianmu, and you'll be able to see the stairway to heaven. There is no danger in the heavenly palace, all there is is a truth. Go, destined one. As the vegetarian lady spoke, her body suddenly began to dim. The last wisp of obsession left in this world had completely dissipated because of Han Zhan's appearance. The obsession was gone. Guard this world for us. At this time, Han Zhan raised his head, and he finally got a good look at the appearance of the vegetable lady, a woman who was truly as beautiful as heaven. In the last moment when the smoke disappeared, she left her beauty on earth. Vegetarian lady, immortal. Han Zhan respectfully bowed again towards the place where Su Nu's form had dissipated. 
both the vegetarian maiden and Shinnong were great heroes of this world, and without them, this world would not have a present or a future. Straightening up again, Han Zhan's eyes grew more and more certain. He urged the five dragon Dan in accordance with what the vegetarian maiden had said, and the five dragon Dan instantly blossomed with a dazzling and incomparable light after it was urged. This light was split into five, transforming into five different colors, and after they were separated, they transformed into five giant dragons that rose up into the sky, the five giant dragons linked heaven and earth, intertwined with each other, and soon intertwined and connected together. A huge amount of majestic dragon chi spilled down into the sky and earth. Soon, an inconspicuous sapling broke out from the ground. It absorbed those dragon chi and surprisingly leapt up to a great height all of a sudden, and it continued to grow upwards frantically, forming a ladder to the heavens. Jian Mu. This was the ladder to heaven. By passing through it, one could reach the final destination of the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World and the end of all the answers and puzzles, the Heavenly Palace. Han Zhan withdrew his gaze. He lifted his foot and took the first step, then the second step, three steps, and four steps, step by step, he climbed the ladder of ascension towards the Heavenly Palace, eventually turning into a ray of light and disappearing into the field of Duguang. Deep Blue City, City Protector Organization. The phone in the reception center was rung, and a panicked voice rang out on the other side of the phone. I, I saw it, I saw the bugs. Alright, this gentleman, please don't get excited, please tell us the exact location where you saw the bug race, and we, the city protectors, will send someone to go and solve it. Traveling to solve it? Ha 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 ha. Traveling, no, no need to travel. They, are already here. Hello? Sir? What did you say, hello? Sir? Russell Russell Russell. Deep Blue's Doom, the beginning of the final big climax. Deep Blue City, inside the villa. Li Shudong was guiding Xia Yuwei and Li Lingjin in their cultivation. The latter two were sweating, not daring to slack off at all. Their strength breakthroughs were not slow, both of them were already at the peak of the fourth rank, with a hidden tendency to break through to the fifth rank. We're cultivating so fast, a battle won't be overtaken by us, right? Wouldn't it be better to counter overtake, in this way, he won't be able to return the favor at night, he can only let us fish and meat. Li Lingjin's words made Xia Youwei's eyes light up. After such a long time of indoctrination, Xia Youwei had already morphed from a tender and ignorant college student into a qualified old CG. She couldn't help but have a mischievous smile on her face, looking forward to Han Zhan's surprised expression after he came out of the Bodhi treasure tree when he saw that their cultivation realm had overtaken his. I'm going to be on top when the time comes. Xia Yue clenched her fists, this matter seemed to have given her some sort of special motivation. What are you two gossiping about? You can't be lazy during cultivation. Li Shutong's voice rang out, and the two immediately silenced themselves, standing obediently and continuing their cultivation. Right at this moment, Li Shudong suddenly intended to feel something, he raised his head and looked into the distance, as if he sensed something there. His face became extremely ugly, and he immediately took out his contact communicator and dialed the phone. Beep, beep, beep. There was no answer on the other end of the phone. Li Shudong frowned tightly and muttered, a mountain rain is coming. Deep Blue City, Green Ivy Academy. Today, Chen Spectrum led the students to the beach for a one-day fall tour. Behind him was a group of youthful-looking youngsters who were talking and laughing as they followed the large group to the beach in Deep Blue City. After the year is over, we'll be able to graduate the awakening exam next year. Yeah, I don't know what kind of talent I'll awaken next year, and what kind of contract spirit I'll sign a contract with. I must awaken an SSS rank talent and become a great hero just like Senior Han Warrior. Che, just you, save it. Senior Brother Han War is the pride of our Green Vine Academy. To say the proudest person, it should be Principal Chen Spectrum. At first, he was the one who led our entire academy in a desperate attempt to support senior brother Han Zhan, and now he can be considered to have raised his eyebrows. Listening to the young students behind him, Chen Spectrum, who was walking at the front of the line, was somewhat energized. In his middle age, his hair was thinning, and the few handfuls of hair swayed against the wind, emphasizing the inner joy of its owner. Han wore this kid, recently also do not know to come to the Green Vine Academy to see me this principal, he more show a few times, the Green Vine Academy enrollment work is good to carry out well. How many students will come to join the Green Ivy Academy next year? Thinking about it makes me happy. Chen Spectrum's mind wandered wildly, and soon thought of his old partner who had lost his life on the battlefield, a relieved smile appeared on his face. Suddenly, the smile on his face disappeared. Chen Spectrum's gaze was alert as he looked towards the sea level, and a strange object suddenly appeared on the originally sparkling sea surface. It was a horn. In the next second, the full appearance of this horn was displayed in Chen Spectrum's eyes. A hideous insect race, which was quite a bit larger than a small ocean house, appeared on the sea level. It walked towards this side of the coastline as if it were walking on a flat surface, one step at a time. All the students of Green Vine Academy, retreat towards Deep Blue City. Chin Spectrum was experienced, having dealt with the insect race on a few occasions, and this was not the first time he had encountered such a situation. He did not panic inside, his expression was serious, and he organized the other students of the Green Vine Academy to retreat in an orderly manner at the first opportunity. 
But just as he opened his mouth to finish his sentence, the entire sea level, one after another, densely packed with countless horns all surfaced at the same time. One, two, three, countless. Countless insects, they almost filled up the entire sea surface, causing the seawater to be dyed a pitch black color, making one's scalp numb from looking at them. Chen Spectrum's heart thumped. The insect race had invaded, this was the first thought that flashed through his mind. How did they come across the sea? It was impossible. Without waiting for Chin Spectrum to figure it out, the sea lifted up a monstrous wave that lapped over towards the coastline here. The panicked Green Vine Academy students were about to be slapped by this monstrous wave and swept into the sea. Suddenly in front of them, a light green transparent barrier appeared, enveloping everyone in it and blocking this giant wave impact. Hoof. Chin Spectrum let out a muffled snort as he pursed his lips hard, not letting blood flow out from the corners of his mouth. Although he was old, he was still a spirit contractor. What are you still waiting for? Hurry up and run. The fastest runners go open their communicators to contact the city protector organization and report the situation here. Principal Chen, what about you? I can still hold out. Hurry up and get out of here before they all come ashore. As Chen Spectrum spoke, he had already braced his light shield to its maximum, stopping wave after wave of waves from lapping at him. He was usually unassuming, even walking with a forehead of sweat, but he didn't realize that the strength he had erupted at this time actually had a fifth rank as well. No, if this goes on, the hatred will still be on this group of children, I must draw their attention away. The highest strength of these insects is only third order, even if the number is huge, it is not impossible to resist, block for a while more, and wait for the city protector organization to react, it will be able to solve the crisis. As Chen Spectrum thought of this, he sighed slightly. Alas, there's no way out, it's going to trouble you once again, old companion. He said as his hands lit up with a green glow, and as the glow continued to coalesce thicker and thicker, Chin Spectrum slammed his head towards the top of his head. A small four-leaf clover grew from the top of his head. I don't know if it was an illusion, when the four-leaf clover grew out of Chin Spectrum's head, the entire sea level was silent for a moment. Then, only Chen Spectrum was seen running in the opposite direction as he stepped on top of the raging waves and rushed deeper into the ocean. Roar, roar, roar. Wherever Chin Spectrum went, all the insect races were attracted to hatred and firmly locked onto him. The four-leaf clover on his head was swaying slightly. Those insect races that were still traveling towards the coastline, one by one, turned their direction and began to chase towards Chen Spectrum. Principal is mighty. Principal Chen is awesome. Some students turned their heads to see the scene, and they shouted loudly to cheer for their principal. Chen Spectrum, alone, had attracted the attention of the insect race for them, giving them time to escape. When I succeed in my awakening next year, I will definitely participate in the major war zones and become a combat spirit contractor to protect humanity. The young people swore secretly in their hearts. The next second they saw. Chin Spectrum, who was running on the sea level, was swallowed by the huge mouth of the abyss that suddenly poked out of the water, and without even waving goodbye, he completely disappeared. On the other side, the sky clouded and darkened, blackened, and densely packed blades fell from the sky, beating those teenage girls who had just made an oath in their hearts and deceives. Blood, staining the entire beach red. Scarlet descended. The city protector organization, the central building. The operator's phone had been blown up. More and more people had discovered the abnormality along the coast of Deep Blue City, and they were panicked and terrified. Rest easy, our city protectors have already traveled to the coast to deal with it. Please don't worry, the news has already been passed on to the major war zones, and reinforcements will be coming soon. All right. One of the operators put down the phone in his hand, his face was a bit gloomy, more pathos, but he still held back his emotions and picked up the internal communication phone to convey the news he heard upwards. 362 students of Green Ivy Academy, including 10 teachers, as well as the principal, Chen Spectrum, were killed on the beach. Chen Spectrum used his own strength to hold back the bugs in the sea, creating time for the students to survive, and in the end, he was devoured and killed by the mysterious and powerful bugs. In addition to the sea, there are also enemies above the sky, and the bug race is brewing an all-round attack. Emergency broadcasts also began on all the city's radios. All city protectors of Deep Blue City, immediately put down all other things in your hands right now and head towards the direction of the beach as fast as you can. Close the Deep Blue Gate and activate the shield. Civilians are also going alone, responsible for evacuating people and taking emergency shelter. Everyone hold on. The bug race's sneak attack won't last long, the great Xia powerhouses and legions will arrive soon. All the citizens of Deep Blue City put down what they were doing and followed the official guidance to the shelter. Spirit Covenanters and Covenanters, consciously abandoning their shelters, one by one headed to the city gates where they would soon meet the insect race in a short encounter, waiting for orders. Ifan, the then captain of the first team of Deep Blue City's city protector organization, was frowning tightly, his gaze fixed on the sea level in the distance. An hour had already passed. The stretch of sea level was already crowded with all sorts of insect races. Most of them were first and second order insect races, with more to follow, surfacing in a steady stream. Gathered on the beach, they did not choose to attack at the first opportunity, as if they were waiting for the call to arms. 
Captain E, ordinary civilians have been evacuated. All the spirit contractors and deeded spirits in Deep Blue City that are able to be present have arrived at the city walls to wait for their orders. Ifan nodded slightly, he then asked, what about the other cities, any movement? When will the reinforcements arrive? Hearing Ifan's question, the men were silent. Several other cities have already sent reinforcements at the first opportunity when they heard that a large-scale insect race has appeared along the coast of Deep Blue City, but they are all still on their way. As for the headquarters, the headquarters phone has been on a busy line and we can't get through. Busy line? Busy line at this time, isn't the timing a little too coincidental? No one dared to answer this question. Stern, oppressive, even the sea breeze blowing towards Deep Blue City from the coastline carried the smell of blood. The scene of the densely packed coast caused goosebumps to crawl all over their bodies as all the city protectors who had ascended the city walls looked on. It would be a lie to say that they were not afraid, but surprisingly none of them retreated or escaped, guarding Deep Blue, this was the honor that they insisted on in their hearts. At this time, the city protectors made way. The two of them, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, appeared on the city wall with grave expressions. Seeing them, Yi Fan nodded as a greeting. Where is that big shot, didn't he join you? The big shot that Yi Fan was talking about was Li Shutong. His identity was no longer a secret, and Li Shutong hadn't deliberately hidden it. Li Lingjin shook his head, Grandpa didn't join us, he said he had more important things to do. Deep in the ocean 10 million nautical miles from the coastline. Above the sea surface, Li Shutong stood with his arms folded, looking down below the sea level, seemingly able to see clearly through the heavy sea surface to the bottom of the sea. He clearly saw that there was a huge whirlpool at the bottom of the sea. It was from this whirlpool that a continuous stream of insects emerged and then rushed to the frontline beaches. If I were you, I wouldn't have come here in the first place, you're in a bit of a hurry. Nightmare's voice rang out from the side. He was still wearing a black coat and a black hat that covered his entire face in it. You really didn't die. A defeated general under your command also dares to show your face. Hey. Nightmare laughed, Li Shutong, it's true that I can't defeat you, but it is also impossible for you to destroy the portal here. With me around, how can you see through the true and false? What's more, I didn't come alone this time. His words had just fallen. The sea level beside him suddenly rose tens of thousands of feet at once. The rushing and violent seawater formed a giant wave as high as the sky, surging towards Li Shutong like a mountain. Li Shutong didn't see how to move, he just swung his fist sideways and dispersed the huge wave with a single punch. The huge wave dissipated, revealing a huge figure inside, which was a flesh and blood puppet. There were countless piles of rotting flesh on its body, and it was overall dark red in color, without a head. Bursting blood vessels were exposed on the surface of the body, beating violently yet quickly and forcefully. From time to time, a small pothole burst open like a sarcoma on such a huge body, and many tiny redworms burrowed out of it, greedily gnawing on the fallen flesh and blood. Berserk Beast Li Shutong looked at the 10,000 feet tall flesh and blood puppet with a somewhat grave expression, another ninth ranked bug emperor. What can the two of you alone do to me? Then what if you add me to it? An old voice rang out, in the direction of Li Shutong's retreat, endless darkness stained this space into black, even the gaze that glanced over would be swallowed into the endless nothingness. Li Shutong fully averted his gaze and stopped looking there, his heart flinched, having completely understood. This was a setup against himself. Ninth ranked insect emperor, void. Even you have come, what a masterstroke. Ha ha ha, to be able to kill the number one person in Grand Xia, the god of war, Li Shutong, who fought the three great insect emperors alone, how can such a stroke be considered big? The three bug emperors, from three directions, surrounded Li Shutong. None of them made the first move, but chose to watch and test, waiting for the other party to reveal their cracks first, that was the great Xiao war god, no amount of caution was too much. Li Shutong, we can afford to stall, can you? As they spoke, the deep blue sea under their feet suddenly turned into a scarlet red. The scarlet red spread in all directions, and in a few instantaneous moments, the endless seawater was dyed red. In the deepest part of the seabed, next to the teleportation vortex, was an open coffin. Inside the coffin, a young woman slowly paced out. When she stepped down, the surrounding seawater completely turned into blood water, and when she stepped down, the rich smell of blood filled the entire ocean. The ordinary dress on Red Iris' body disappeared, replaced by a scarlet red ornate robe, which set off her entire person with a tall, luxurious, and cold temperament. Her slender fingers slowly grew bright red nails, shaking and pointing in the direction of Deep Blue City. I am resurrected. White Frost is not me, Red Iris is not me. From today onwards, please call me Scarlet Queen. Killing, officially begins. With her order. Those insect clans that were waiting for their chance to strike, one by one, began to overflow with a scarlet red glow. Their eyes also completely turned scarlet, berserk, tyrannical, bloody, killing, all kinds of negative emotions were released through their pupils. Even though they were separated by millions of nautical miles, they still heard the Scarlet Queen's call. Billions of insects roared at the same time. Rushing towards Deep Blue. The truth in the heavenly palace. Hanjan stepped on Jianmu and climbed up to the sky step by step. After an unknown amount of time, he managed to reach the heavenly palace. The scene of the heavenly palace was very different from what was imagined. 
There were no jade buildings, no majestic palaces, not even a single immortal, but just a vast expanse of white clouds, barely put together to form an empty island. Han Zhan left the building wood and stepped on it. The soles of his feet fed back a soft touch, allowing him to experience the feeling of flying through the clouds. The entire sky was vast and boundless, with no end in sight, and Han Zhan didn't know exactly where that truth left behind by Shen Nong was. Just as he was aimlessly searching, the sky suddenly lit up with a majestic sword intent. The sword light rose up to the sky, piercing through the dome and slashing towards this place with an unshakable and terrifying aura. Locked by this sword light, Han Zhan couldn't even give birth to the thought of resistance in his heart, standing straight there, watching the sword light swiftly fall towards him. His gaze was stunned until the sword light passed through his body, and only then did that feeling of being on the verge of death disappear. There was no damage? Han Zhan froze for a moment. Just now, that sword light was so powerful that he clearly watched it penetrate his body, yet he was still alive and well. At this time, an ancient hoarse hissing sound rang out from behind him. Within a large area shrouded in endless darkness, something was being twisted by the sword light, rolling and tumbling, and a vicious voice came out from it. I didn't expect this world to have someone already touched the threshold as well. In the distance, a young man wearing silver-white armor with a jade-like face stood there with an immortal sword in his hand, his eyes blazing with a majestic tone. Who are you? Dare to covet the origin of this world. I'm going to devour it, what can you do to me? You can't stop me. The voice in the black mist clearly did not place him in its eyes. As it spoke, infinite darkness spread instantly, eroding the entire sky into pitch black. Han Zhan saw a bright spot of light glowing in the eroded sky. But just beyond this light, it had been shrouded in a layer of black mist, with starlight constantly being drawn and swallowed, disappearing and shrinking. That should be the origin of the hundred herb sacred heart world. Han Zhan's heart was enlightened, and he also understood that the scene he saw before him was not the current scene, but should be a once upon a time image left behind through some means. This should be the truth left behind by Shen Nong. The battle in the picture continued. Seeing that the other party was unmoved, the heavenly palace immortal emperor who was enveloped in immortal chi was no longer polite, and the immortal swords in his hands transformed into thousands. Each one of them had the might of the sword just now, and the ten million immortal swords pierced through the darkness in the sky, like rain hitting the surface of a lake and causing ripples. It's useless, ha, huh? it's useless. You've only just touched that threshold, there's still a long way to go before you step over it, and after devouring 99 world origins, I'm now only this last one away from breaking through beyond the ninth stage. By now, don't you understand the gap between you and me? Stop now, when I finish devouring this world, I can keep you alive as my sword-wielding child. In the black mist, the ancient voice resounded once again, disdainful and contemptuous with compulsion. At the same time, he increased the speed of the black mist's absorption, and the entire hundred herb sacred heart world began to become bright and dim, like it could shatter at any moment, like an old and dilapidated slide. The world origin was plundered, and the entire world was in turmoil. Deep blue city, the sea. Li Shudong looked at the last ninth order insect emperor to appear, Void. There was a searching look in his gaze. I've heard that the ninth ranked bug emperor, Void, never participates in battles between the bug race and the human race, and is the most Buddhist bug emperor. If I can get you to fight today, I should have something in mind. Let me think about what exactly is the target that can attract you to strike against me. There's no need to try, so what if I tell you? The ancient voice came out from the endless darkness, I came here for the origin. A part of the origin that belongs to me was intercepted in another world, and now that world and the Bodhi treasure tree have become one, only the destined person can enter. Counting the time, he should be coming out soon as well. Once I retrieve my origin, I will be able to complete the fusion beyond the ninth stage and reach a higher level. The void really didn't hide anything, because in its view, Li Shudong was already a person who was bound to die, and telling him this wouldn't affect how the outcome would be. Li Shudong suddenly burst out laughing. You're so confident, who was the origin forcefully chopped down and sealed in that world back then? How can you be sure that you won't repeat the same mistake? Li Shutong's provocative words caused the memories of the past unknown number of years in the void's brain to attack it once again, and it was no longer calm and annoyed. You shut up! As it spoke, the area shrouded in endless darkness expanded further, and black fog rushed towards Li Shutong, rushing in. The latter was prepared for this, and as he watched Void being enraged, he instantly released a white mist wrapped around his entire body, and instead of retreating, his entire body advanced, crashing into the black mist at once. Roar! On the other side, without saying a word, the ninth-ranked insect emperor Berserker Beast also entered the area enveloped by the black mist with Li Shutong at the second time of his action. The ninth-ranked insect emperor Nightmare let out a hay, only to see its only pair of exposed pupils staring tightly at the black fog, and its natural illusion technique was instantly unleashed. The battle was imminent. Heavenly Palace. The image in front of Han Zhan's eyes was still changing. At this time, the screen was already pitch black, this horrible monster nothingness, is madly devouring the entire world, wherever it goes are swallowed up, turned into darkness, endless darkness, and then returned to nothingness. Just like its name. This process could not be resisted. Even Han Zhan's pupils looking at the image became pitch black, on the verge of passing through this historical image and eroding into his reality. 
Suddenly, a radiance as bright as the blazing sun lit up in the endless darkness, and a familiar voice sounded simultaneously in Han Zhan's ears. Want to devour this world, have you asked us? It was the divine farmer Saint Master. He had finally appeared, and there was more than one of him. It was just like that image left behind in the cave. After his words rang out, one light after another pierced the darkness. Shin Nong, the vegetarian lady, the immortal emperor, and a few other fiery sons whose figures Han Zhan couldn't see. They appeared in nine special locations, as if forming some peculiar formation, and at the center of this formation was clearly the origin that was being devoured. At this moment, the origin had already been invaded by nothingness and was about to be devoured, and as long as the fusion was completed, it would be able to break through the Ninth Order. This process was irreversible. But even it hadn't expected that within such a short period of time, these mole crickets of this world had actually thought of a way to restrain him. Void, which was invincible, suffered a huge heavy blow here. Using the heavens as the formation map, the earth as the formation base, and the nine rounds of blazing sun as the formation eyes, drawing the biggest formation in heaven and earth. Such a masterstroke, burning the lives of nine ninth-ranked supreme beings at the same time. It's a unique formation in heaven and earth. Congratulations to Seen Dota. Happy that T12 made it to the final day. Above the ninth order, the transcendent realm. The great formation of heaven and earth takes shape. All the darkness and nothingness in the formation actually began to be refined under the burning sun, curling up and coalescing into the world essence. If light couldn't illuminate the darkness, then use fire. The nothingness felt an unprecedented crisis, and its voice was no longer calm. Under the fierce scorching, it was as if it felt a constantly burning sun wrapped within its body. No, it was nine. You guys are crazy, to come up with this method, you must be insane. Crazy? So what if I'm crazy? As long as I can take a bite out of you, the intruder, what does it matter if all of them are crazy? Seek death. The void was also enraged, it began to attack these nine rounds of blazing suns indiscriminately, each round of blazing suns was a formation eye, as long as it was able to erode one of them, it would be able to destroy this heaven and earth grand formation and prevent it from being refined and killed. Among the array eyes were the nine strongest people of the hundred herb sacred heart world. In the face of the devouring, they all actually did not say a word and were not moved in the slightest. The moment the formation was formed, they had already had the realization of sacrifice. The five senses of the vegetarian maiden were devoured by nothingness, turning into a terrifying monster with no five senses. The immortal emperor's head was decapitated, leaving only half of his body still standing there, holding his immortal sword in his hand, still not retreating. Shin Nong was already dying, sensing that he was about to come to the end of his life, he very simply swallowed a strain of heaven and earth's strange poison, broken intestine, that he hadn't long discovered. The ferocity of the poison was so strong that even he, a ninth order powerhouse, did not dare to try it easily. Devouring was a two-way street, able to devour the good as well as the bad. A second before Shin Nong was completely devoured by Void, all of these virulent poisons he had taken also spread into Void. In the endless darkness, a hint of panic and exasperation actually appeared within Void's frightened and angry voice. Since I saw that threshold, you should know that I can comprehend means that target the origin. Everyone chooses to cross the threshold in a different way, but its essence does not change, so I will use this array to chop off half of your origin, so that you won't be able to break through to the ninth rank for all these endless years. The voice of the immortal emperor who had lost half of his body still rang out clearly. In the next second, the nine blazing suns erupted with the hottest and brightest light, burning out the darkness of the entire sky. Li Shutong, you have indeed grown old. The darkness dispersed, and the one man and three insects once again resumed their stations. The voice in the endless darkness revealed a bit of exhaustion. The blood puppet berserkers had lost an arm. Nightmare's left eye was swollen and squinted into a slit, never able to open again. Li Shadong, who was surrounded, stumbled a little, he was silent and made no sound, the only thing that seemed to be getting even thicker was the white mist that could no longer be described as how thick it was. You have also glimpsed that threshold. Truly worthy of being the strongest combat genius of the human race for thousands of years, even after losing the deeded spirit, you are still the no. One battle god of the great Xia. In that case, being able to kill you makes me even more excited. The one who spoke was the berserk beast. Ninth-ranked insect emperors, as the overlord of a party, easily did not join hands with each other, and there were also wars between the insect races, which were not much different from humans. They all had their own interests if they could choose to join forces. The Ninth Order insect emperor Void, what it wanted was to reclaim its lost origin from the Bodhi treasure tree. The flesh puppet maniac beast, on the other hand, was aiming for Li Shutong's fleshly shell, and once it was able to devour Li Shutong's fleshly shell, it would surely be able to become a transcendent ninth-ranked existence, just like Void. Under such temptation, who could not be moved? Nightmare, you've already been paid in advance, how much longer are you going to hold back? Being named by Void, Nightmare let out another light laugh. Only to see him pull out a crystal clear luscious treasure pearl from his bosom. The treasure pearl emitted a pale white halo of light, looking ethereal and misty, illusory yet real. This was the mirage pearl that he had agreed to use and had intentionally gifted the Bodhi treasure tree to Hanjan. 
A top quality treasure that worked well with its illusionist talent. With this treasure, it would be able to take its ninth order strength to the next level, and as long as it continued to comprehend, with the help of the Mirage Pearl, it would definitely be able to see the threshold and walk out on its own path to the superorder. Under Nightmare's urging, the Mirage Pearl rose to the top of its head. The dense and misty light enveloped the entire sea, illusory and real, with shape and image. As long as it was illusory in Nightmare's illusion, it was completely transformed into reality within the Mirage Bead's shroud. In an instant, several more terrifying auras appeared in the battlefield, these were all the auras of the Ninth Order insect emperors that Nightmare had once seen recorded. The original 1v3 situation had instantly turned into 1v many. The situation was precarious. 100 Herb Sacred Heart World, Heavenly Palace. Hanjan was like finishing a big movie, still in Blu-ray HD. The ending was magnificent and heartening. The powerhouses of this world had successfully guarded the 100 Herb Sacred Heart World, not only preserving the origin, but also chopping away half of the Void Zone origin, decimating its realm by a lot. Voidless left in a sorry state, and the nine rounds of blazing suns dissipated into the sky. Only that soul origin remained to merge into one, transforming into a new round of sun hanging high in the sky. So this is the truth of the world, the world isn't destroyed, the strong disappear, the strong enemies retreat, this is perhaps the best ending. Han Zhan muttered. Up until this point, he hadn't seen the parts related to the curse and the disease. At this time, raising his head to look at the blazing sun high in the sky, Han Zhan narrowed his eyes slightly. Because he was in the heavenly palace, he looked against the light and vaguely saw a miniature version of the heaven and earth grand formation from this round of blazing sun. The formation hasn't disappeared yet? Han Zhan was dismayed, so the formation of the nine suns is still continuously enveloping this world. For what? As Han Zhan muttered to himself, a sudden aura appeared. At the same time, the three Dan formulas he was carrying left his body and floated into the air one by one. The three Dan formulas melted and merged into one under the shroud of the blazing sun, turning into a completely new Dan formulation, the rumored fourth Dan formulation, the Nine Revolutions Dan. There were nine suns in the heavens, and nine revolutions in a wheel. The nine revolutions returned to one, creating and transforming living beings. The ingredients for the nine revolutions pill, the souls of nine ninth-ranked powerhouses, and a copy of the purified world origin. Later on, this is our final gift to you. Looking at this Dan formula, Han Zhang completely understood what death is not a curse, and reincarnation is not the end. The portion of the origin of nothingness that had been chopped away rose into the sky along with the blazing sun, it came from nothingness and was filled with the aura of evil and damnation. With the nine suns as a formation, refining it required a long process, and to shorten that process, they chose the entire world. So the world is sick. Those who lived in this world bore a share of the curse. They kept being born and kept dying. With billions of births and deaths, such a handful of people to purify the void origin. Those mole crickets that nothingness wouldn't even look at eventually succeeded in purifying its origin, such an ironic and dramatic scene was the truth about the curse. Han Zhan knew this truth, and he was deeply shocked. Now that the nine revolutions pill had been finalized, the truth and secrets were revealed, and after refining and taking the pill, he could leave this world and return to reality. Whether it was the immortal emperor or the divine farmer, they both had the talent to navigate the heavens and the earth, and were top-notch existences when placed in any world. Their minds, means, and talents far exceeded those of ordinary people by far too much. It's just a pity that the sky is so long, why is it so thin on me? Knowing the truth makes people stifle their wrists. But they, successfully guarded the world they love. Playing against the game, the falling son of Tian Yuan. Little captain, we can't hold them off. Hold on a little longer, reinforcements will be here soon. Reinforcements, where are there any reinforcements? If there really are reinforcements, they should have arrived long ago. A deep blue city protector slowly collapsed with his back against the city wall of deep blue city, sliding a bloody scar down the wall. He was extremely injured, but he was waiting for help for a long time. The spirit contractors in charge of healing were already busy. Being in a large backwater city, they had first experienced the tragedy of a frontline battlefield. Not far away, humans and insects were fighting together, almost a one-sided situation. The tens of thousands of deep blue city protectors were simply no match for the insect race that outnumbered them 10 million to 1. Not to mention, the fighting strength of the spirit contractors who stayed in Deep Blue City was nowhere near as strong as the frontline combat spirit contractors. Being able to hold on until now was still the result of their indignation and self-training after the incident of Han War. But even so, they were already on the verge of not being able to hold on anymore. Standing on the city wall, from afar, one could see the densely packed insect race, the sea of insects surging over seemed endless. It wasn't just the spirit contractors. Cannon fire pouring from the city walls, heavy firepower covering a large area of the insect race, under the cover of these cannons, the human race was able to hold on for a long time. The few nearby cities that were able to send reinforcements were all in place, but they were only a drop in the bucket. The reinforcement troops from the war zone were nowhere to be found so far, giving people a vague bad feeling in their hearts. Go, retreat back to the city. I'll take the top here, go. 
The junior captain yanked up the fallen team member and forcefully pulled him to be sent back inside the walls of Deep Blue City. A third-ranked insect race was on him. It was a gigantic wasp beast with strange spikes all over its body, and it vibrated its wings, slicing through the air with a residual shadow, so fast that no one could react at all. From its tail, a poisonous sting shot out. These poisonous thorns easily pierced through that squad leader's body. His face twisted up from the pain and poison, but he still braced himself, wanting to save his brother back. However, the insect race that killed mercilessly, that third-ranked wasp beast had already brewed up its next round of attacks. Despair spread at this moment. Suddenly a clanging, ringing sound scraped past their ears. A zither air blade cut through the sky. The bee beast high in the air was split in half, blood foam scattering and exploding everywhere. You guys quickly leave. A pretty looking woman came from behind them, holding an ancient zither in her hands, and had already stood in front of them as she spoke, only to see her continuously plucking the strings of the zither. Pieces and pieces of third rank bee beasts in the sky, like mowing rice, died of violent blood, this scene looked silly to the two of them. Without waiting for them to react, two more spiritual energies were injected into their bodies, and the originally dying squad leader and his team members were instantly revived with full blood. Another beautiful woman appeared. It's Han War's two contracted spirits. As a member of the City Protectors Organization under Ethan's command, the junior captain was aware of Han War, and also knew that Han War possessed two very powerful deeded spirits, having seen their pictures. He pressed down the excitement in his heart and didn't talk more nonsense with them, nor did he return within the deep blue city, instead, the two of them looked at each other and after nodding their heads in thanks, they flew into other battlefields again. If even they retreated, then who else would be able to stand in the way? Relying on those innocent people of deep blue city? Seeing the scene, Xia Yue pursed her lips. She didn't say anything more and didn't try to stop them. Fighting or retreating was everyone's own choice, and others had no right to ask. The casualties are too great, Ling Jin. is there any news from the teacher's side yet? No, Grandpa said he had something to take care of and couldn't be contacted after that. Now that Deep Blue City is in an insect plague crisis, why is the assistance from the major battlefield so slow? It's been three hours and it still hasn't arrived? I'm afraid that we alone are no longer enough. Right now the battlefield is still only one, two or three orders of insect cannon fodder. It's already such a tough fight. After this once the fourth, fifth, or even sixth and seventh orders of insects appear, how can we withstand it? Luckily, after teacher's special training, we've already managed to break through the fifth rank, otherwise we wouldn't even be able to defend ourselves. Xiaoyue still pinched her killing move, but she couldn't cast it at this time. The situation on the battlefield was changing rapidly, and one needed to wait for the most appropriate moment. Where's our battle? Hasn't he come out from inside the Bodhi treasure tree world yet? Li Lingjin glanced at the well-protected sapling in the divine peasant tripod and shook her head. On the surface of the sea, a silhouette slammed down heavily, and the seawater in the surrounding 10 million meter area all seemed to boil, instantly evaporating. Soon, new seawater surged in to fill the void. Li Shudong wiped the blood that spilled from the corner of his mouth, and by now there were already dozens of wounds, either light or heavy, on his body. In the distance, the shadows of insects blocked. A dozen or so insect emperors emanating a ninth order aura appeared in all directions in the misty fog, and a few of them had already been broken apart and could not be seen in their original form. There were still six or seven channels left that were barely holding on. In addition to them, the Void Berserk Beast and the other four appeared in turn. They knew that Li Shudong was good at melee combat, and being strong in melee combat often meant an unusually astonishing abundance of physical strength, an ability to recover beyond the norm, resistance to being beaten up, and a strong attacking force, among many other traits, and for this reason, they had specially prepared for this will battle. Hey, Li Shudong. After fighting these Mirage Bead simulated bug emperors, how is your stamina consumption? Looking at you, even if you're still swimming with ease, you must have lost quite a bit. This was a nakedly masculine plot. Li Shudong knew of the existence of the undersea teleportation vortex, and if he wanted to completely stop this insect plague, he had to destroy the teleportation vortex. They bet that Li Shudong would not retreat at this time, and if Li Shudong had the same intention of escaping, they could only attack the entire Deep Blue City, including the dozens of cities near Deep Blue City, and sacrifice the blood of these humans. Li Shudong also knew that. He was the only ninth rank human powerhouse sitting in Deep Blue City right now, and if he left at this time, it would be an unimaginable disaster. He could not retreat. With just this group of dirtbags, I can fight dozens more. Li Shudong stood straight again. He took a deep breath, and the spiritual energy around him surged towards him with the naked eye, and almost instantly, the area around his body was wrapped in a white mist that was thick to the extreme, and within the white mist, Li Shutong's calm voice rang out, the seventh much-needed lock, open. Outside the white mist, Nightmare looked at Li Shudong, who had regained his battle power in the Mirage Bead and even raised it again, and the corner of his mouth twitched. It doesn't matter, attacking Deep Blue is just part of the plan. We are not the only ones playing this game. Now that Tian Yuan has already made a move, its sincerity has arrived. Everywhere else, they should have started to move as well. Amidst the endless darkness, a void voice rang out, in this game of chess, what we really want to eat is the entire mansion. 
Step by step, we're going to kill. Why haven't the reinforcements arrived yet? Why are there no reinforcements? Where are the people from the war zone? Not a single troop carrier in sight. Are they going to abandon the city? Fighting spirit was wearing thin, panic and fear were spreading. Real deaths and the corpses of countless victims were silently telling of the cruelty of the battlefield, and more and more spirit contractors and deeded spirits were despairingly realizing the fact that it seemed as if humans really couldn't defeat the bug race. Ifan's body was enveloped in golden light as he hammered the insect race in front of him with a single punch and met up with Xia Yue and Li Lingjin on the battlefield. Is there still no news from the protectorate officials? The phone can't be reached. Can't get through? Are you kidding me? There are still communication calls that don't get through. I'd rather believe this is a joke. Yi Fan looked at the battlefield ahead with a cold expression, which was like a large meat grinder. There were already too many spirit fellowship masters and fellowship spirits who had died in this battle, but he could do nothing about it. It was as it was back then. Captain there are too many bugs outside, we are surrounded. You have to go. Go? I can't leave. What will you do if I leave? What's more, we are the combat spirit contractors of the war zone, if even we retreat, what about Dasha? But over there in the war zone, it's clear that they're using us as bait. Thousands of combat spirit contractors, that's thousands of living human lives. To be discarded as bait just like that. Alright, you cut the crap. Big brothery, our lives are all given to us by you, if we have to die, we'll die together. Little Fan. A woman dressed in red with bright colors appeared behind Yi Fan, seeing his sad face, she raised her hand and rubbed his brows. Iris, we might really die this time. No, you'll be fine. Have you forgotten? My natural ability is SS ranked immortality. Immortality, ha ha ha, yeah, how could I forget? They must have deliberately put us deep in jail because of this ability. These high and mighty powers that be, they don't even consider the lives of us bottom level combat spirit contractors as lives. These cynical assholes. Yi Fan's voice gritted his teeth. On what grounds? Why were they the ones who died, and why were those incompetents sitting on the sidelines? He looked down at his hands and clenched his fists in resignation. The scene shifted again. The brothers around him who said that they swore to serve and die together had all been killed by the insects. Red Iris also fell in a pool of blood. Yi Fan couldn't stop trembling as he held her tightly. Why are you still dead when you clearly have the gift of immortality? Red Iris looked at the disoriented Yi Fan, she reached out her hand to gently stroke Yi Fan's face. Fool. Immortality is transferable, with the intensity of this attack, I'm afraid that a single layer of immortality wouldn't be able to survive. From the moment I became your contracted spirit, I knew that such a day would come. Take my share and live well for me, little Fan. Red Iris died, and she bestowed her immortality on Yi Fan. In that tragic battle, only Yi Fan, the only survivor, was left. It was also from that time that Yi Fan gave up his honor and his status as a combat spirit contractor to return to Deep Blue City. What are you thinking about? Xiaoyue's voice pulled Yi Fan back from his thoughts, he shook his head and asked rhetorically, where's Han Zhan, hasn't that kid returned from the Bodhi treasure tree yet? He told you about it? Xiaoyue shook her head, not yet. Yi Fan sighed and asked again, where is the Bodhi treasure tree now? Here in my place, with the protection of the Shinnong tripod, he is absolutely safe. Li Lingjin replied. The conversation ended. I'm going to dial the communicator one last time, if we can't get in contact, then it proves that we can really only fend for ourselves. Commander Lin, a quick report from the rear. Deep Blue City has suffered a major insect infestation, a large force of the insect race has appeared on the outer banks of Deep Blue City by unknown means, and is now launching a large-scale attack on the city, the situation is precarious. Immediately deploy manpower and notify the other major war zones to go back for reinforcements. Lin Jingxuan's gaze condensed. As a strategist, he tasted what was wrong with this at the first moment. What kind of strategic significance did a major rear city, Deep Blue City, have that warranted the insect race going to such lengths? A silhouette quickly flashed through his mind, the teacher who was now in Deep Blue City, Li Shudong, the number one war god of the Grand Xia, if that's really the case. Without saying a word, Lin Jingxian used his communicator to start contacting his brothers and sisters in the several war zones. As soon as they heard that their teacher's city was in trouble, the heads of the major war zones all acted at once and decided to head to reinforce them. With the speed of Dixia's troop reinforcements nowadays, the first war zone had just won a great victory, the last major battle before the end of the year. There was no pressure on the front line, and the rear was mobilized extremely quickly, only needing to give them half an hour to an hour to form a continuous chain of reinforcements. These insect clans choosing to make their move in the large rear was like landing Tian Yuan on a chessboard. Giving up an absolute advantage and choosing an area that was incomparably chicken-ribbed, there was no chance of winning. It was because of this reason that Lin Jingxian had a vague uneasiness in his heart. The elusive unknown was the most terrifying. Just five minutes after he completed his liaison, his men suddenly ran over with anxious faces and looked at Lin Jingxian, Commander Lin. We, all of our troop carriers are out of control. What did you say? Say it again. Our troop transport ships. All the troop transport ships moored in the harbor. They're all out of commission. Not only that, all of our comms are out of contact. 
All war zones are out of contact. Troop carriers don't have problems for no reason, they have specialized personnel to maintain them every day and are always on standby. Not to mention the communicators, as communication facilities capable of contacting various places, what did losing contact mean? Lin Jingxian had an unfavorable guess in his heart, and this unfavorable guess caused his face to become more and more ugly. If the one who chose to backstab Grand Xiao was that person, then this time it was truly dangerous. Even for a wise general like Lin Jingxian who was not surprised by changes, a sense of powerlessness welled up in his heart at this thought. The Senate Merchant Company. As one of the five major corporations independent of the forces of two nations that have been at peace for so many years, what exactly do you want to do now? That's right. With the troop carrying ships grounded and the comms out of communication, the only person who could have such a stroke was one of the five major corporations, the tech company responsible for the entire blue planet and providing high-end equipment and weapons, the Sunshine Company. As a solid partner and ally of Dasha's cooperation for thousands of years, if the Sunshine Company backstabs Dasha, it will be, if you don't make a move, once you make a move, it will definitely hurt your bones. Like now. Just as Senate Merchant Company? Lin Jingxian looked grave, he turned his head to look at his men, gather everyone who can be contacted, verbal notification if the communicator can't make contact, pass on the order to move immediately now. Commander Lin, we can't make it back to Deep Blue City without a troop carrier. Who says we're going to Deep Blue City, to the third war zone? We're in the light and the enemy is in the dark, they must still have a backhand. The chess player isn't us, the pawn should have the awareness of pawns. The only thing we can do now is to make our pawn stronger and not be broken one by one. Yes. The entire world is an enemy. First war zone. Having just ended his call with Lin Jingxian, Wei Qing looked grave. He recruited his men without saying a word. Notify them, cancel the temporary leave and have everyone rally to support Deep Blue City. A vicious battle in the first battle zone had just ended, and the combat spirit contractors who had survived the meat grinder were on vacation or in deep recuperation. It wasn't unheard of for them to cancel their vacations at short notice like this, and everyone was used to it. After Wei Qing's notice was passed down, most of the combat spirit contractors who had not chosen to return to their hometowns finished assembling as quickly as possible. However, just at this time, news came from the harbor side that the troop transport ships had stopped. Not only that, but the contact with Lin Jingxian had also been interrupted. The first war region that had lost contact was like losing its eyes, now completely blind. Faced with such a situation, Wei Qing snorted coldly, that's why I hate smart people, the hearts and minds of those who play tactics are dirty, even the insects are worse. After a pause, Wei Qing then proceeded to bellow, the troop transport ships are grounded, and the transportation vehicles are not available. Where are those spirit contractors and spirit contractors with the ability to speed up the march? All of them should be more skillful. If we can't make it today, we can make it tomorrow, if we can't make it tomorrow, we can make it the day after tomorrow, sooner or later we can make it to the battlefield. Wei Qing's brain might not be smart enough, but his idea was indeed pragmatic. The people under his command had prepared themselves, and after the vast first battle area had finished assembling, they really gave up the troop carriers and chose a good route to drive towards Deep Blue City, just as Wei Qing had said. Three hours after losing communication, the large force of the First War Region led by Wei Qing was already close to a canyon in the territory of Dasha. Suddenly, Wei Qing looked up as if he had discovered something, only to see that the canyon was already densely filled with people. These people weren't like ordinary humans, each of them was two to three meters tall, looking lanky and terrifying. Hideous veins protruded on the surface of their skin, and their fangs were exposed like beasts, huffing and puffing. The head of a person even has 8 or 9 meters tall, can maintain the human form, dark body, like the meteorite iron in the sky with a gloss. On his neck, a special tool was used to carve the word 01. Wei Qing's eyes narrowed slightly. A biochemist? It's a biochemical human warrior from the Everlasting Company? What are you guys stopping here for? Wei Qing, I apologize. I've heard for a long time that you are unrivaled in battle and valiant in killing the enemy, I've always wanted to have a fight with a character like you, but I've just been suffering from a lack of opportunity, and today I'm finally able to get what I want. Speaking of the leader of the biochemical warrior, voice like a flood bell, shocked his psi combat spirit master's eardrums buzzing. The slightly weaker ones were even directly starry-eyed and bleeding from their seven orifices. Just by you? Biochemical warrior no. Zero one, as the top combatant of the Everlasting Company, the body had perfectly fused more than 100 kinds of agents developed by the Everlasting Company, which had various functions, and being able to perfectly fuse them could no longer belong to the category of human beings, even if it was the bug race, there were very few of them who were able to do so. It was not an exaggeration to say that the number zero one biochemical warrior might even have had the strength of the ninth order. It was just that the Everlasting Company had always kept the biochemical warriors up to number 10 very secret, and there was no chance for them to strike so no one was able to know how their battle strength really was. But today, facing off with the first war region in the canyon, the Eternal Life Corporation had finally bared its fangs. Just as Lin Jingxian had predicted, the bug race had landed on Tian Yuan, and the pieces on the other battlefields had all begun to make their mark, 
and a great chess game of heaven and earth had unfolded. Wei Qing wore his scarlet gloves in silence. This time, he used a special rope to securely tie himself to the gloves. As belligerent as he was, his eyes were frantic with gravity. All generals of the first war zone, listen to the order. There is a rebellion in the everlasting company, and it will no longer be an alliance from now on. This battle is divided into life and death, Dasha generals. Fight to the death and do not retreat. Kill. As Wei Qing's words fell, the combat spirit contractors in the first battle zone and the biochemical warriors who had been guarding the canyon for a long time, turned into two torrents of different camps and rushed to kill each other. Third battle zone. Yi Cho also received a notification from Lin Jingxian. As the main force of the siege, the third battle zone that Yi Qiu was in was one of the two battle zones closest to the rear cities of Dixia. They completed their assembly at the first opportunity and prepared to support Deep Blue City. But at that moment, nine figures in strange costumes suddenly appeared at the assembly location. These people's costumes didn't look like those worn by Dixia and resembled ascetics. Each person was shrouded under a gray and linen robe, making it impossible to see their faces. However, even Yi Qiu, who rarely dealt with other camps, could tell their identities at a glance. The twelve apostles of the old holy covenant? What are you guys doing here? This is great Xia territory. Not anytime soon. We have collected an unrefusable payment and are responsible for leaving you here forever. What a big deal. The old holy covenant, aside from the bishops, were the twelve apostles, who were strong and powerful. Even to pacify the insect plague, only two to three apostles were needed at most to accomplish it. As a result, now, in order to deal with the third war zone, nine apostles were deployed at once. It was really looking down on itself. Are you guys determined to go against Grand Xia and tear up the alliance treaty? After this battle, Grand Xia will exist in name only, so what's the point of the alliance treaty breaking or not now? The twelve apostles' words caused Yi Cho's heart to thump, but soon, his mind adjusted. How could there be a weak person who was also a student of Li Shadong? In that case, then let's touch base and see if you guys stay here or I do. Facing nine eighth-ranked powerhouses of the same realm as himself, or the long-famous old holy covenant twelve apostles, Yi Cho spared a smile. The first battle area where that Wei Qing kid is from should have encountered great trouble and obstacles as well, tell me. The one responsible for targeting the first war zone and striking out is the Everlasting Company's biochemical core. The old saint's packed visitor answered truthfully. Yi Chou surprisingly nodded with satisfaction. Very well, the biochemical core and the nine apostles of the old saint's pack should be indistinguishable from each other, this time I'm going to have another match with that Wei Qing kid to separate the strengths from the weaknesses, the last time I was in the deep blue city, I still haven't had a good fight yet. As soon as Yi Cho's words fell, the nine apostle figures disappeared. Only to see Yi Cho wave his hand, hold a tiger symbol in his hand, and call out, all combatants in the third war zone, prepare to form up to meet the enemy. Almost instantly, a spirit contractor formation consisting of hundreds of thousands of people took shape, and a dense killing aura enveloped the entire battlefield. As the third battle zone with the strongest positional battles, it was responsible for uprooting the battles occupied by those powerful insect races, this was the backbone of the third battle zone, and it was also the backbone of Yi Chiu who dared to compete with nine eighth-ranked powerhouses. The nine transformation dan was completed, and Han War returned to the hundred herbs sacred heart world. Han Zhan was in the heavenly palace and summoned the divine farmer's cauldron. Without him having to do anything, nine miniature suns wrapped in a dark fog slowly descended from the blazing sun opposite the heavenly palace and fell into the tripod. In an instant, the Shinnon tripod exploded with a dazzling light. Within the light, there was a ball of pills that was coalescing and molding. After the curse had been wiped out by the power of reincarnation of hundreds of millions of living beings in the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart World, the Void Origin had now completed its purification. Without too many twists and turns, a complete Dan pill was refined. There were nine special Tao texts on this pill, each of which was incredibly complex, and they blocked the origin from nine directions. The successfully refined Dan pill slowly floated out of the cauldron and floated in front of Han Zhan. Name, Nine Revolutions Pill. Efficacy, capable of allowing the taker to gain the power of the Void Origin. The power of the Nine Turns is capable of healing all injuries. Attention, the power of the Void Origin is owned by the Ninth-Ranked Bug Emperor Void. If you swallow it, you will be endlessly hunted by the Bug Emperor Void, without end. The effects were simple and crude. The content of the note, however, made Han Zhan's heart thump. That was a ninth order bug emperor, anyone would have to weigh whether it was worth it, but recalling what he had seen and learned before, the origin was a precious thing that even the ninth order had only just touched. Its rarity even exceeded that of the ninth rank. Even if it was only half of the void origin, I'm afraid that the benefits it could bring to Han Zhan would be unimaginable. What's more, humans and the insect race were already immortal, and a hundred barges were competing with each other. Thinking of this, Han Zhan no longer hesitated and swallowed the nine revolutions Dan in one gulp. The nine revolutions Dan melted in his mouth after he swallowed it, and soon nine strands of power swarmed that origin, arriving at the deepest part of Han Zhan's body. 
The void origin began to devour the other spiritual energies within Han Zhan's body, using all spiritual energies as nutrients to nourish itself as it transformed into a microscopic black hole within Han Zhan's body. At this moment, Han Zhan's spiritual contractor's talent also changed drastically. Aside from those three talents related to the ancient divine soldier that couldn't be shaken, ninth-ranked talents like the heavenly serpent's body were actually directly devoured to nothing. An entirely new talent appeared in his eyes. Endless devouring, crippled. Description, the power of origin. Ability, able to devour everything and turn it into its own spiritual energy. When the devouring is completed one can permanently inherit its special talent. Current number of talents that can be inherited, 1, name of talent inherited, heavenly serpent's body. This talent, it's something. Han Zhan tried to raise his hand to catalyze the talent, and a small black hole vortex appeared in the center of his palm. The powerful suction directly engulfed a large piece of the cloud at his feet, and in the next second, a few more strands of spiritual energy appeared within his body. Han Zhan hurriedly terminated the devouring, forcibly holding back that desire to devour everything, otherwise, he would immediately become the first person to fall to his death from the sky in possession of the origin. That would simply be a loss. The moment Han Zhan took the nine revolutions Dan, all the Jiang clan members seemed to feel something as they raised their heads to look in the direction of the sun above their heads. They didn't know what had happened, they just vaguely realized that the curse in the underworld seemed to have completely disappeared. They didn't have to suffer the torment and distress of the curse for generations anymore. Patriarch Zhang Hui was filled with tears, and he was the first to kneel down towards the direction facing the sun. Seeing this action of the patriarch, all the Jiang clan members behind him also followed along and knelt down through and through. He succeeded, that outsider he really succeeded. The curse on us is gone, he did it. I knew he would be able to. More and more Jiang clan members knelt down and made the most respectful pilgrimage towards the direction of the sun. They were worshipping Holy Master Shinnon, as well as Holy Master Han Zhan. At this moment, what Shinnon was to Han Zhan, completed a perfect inheritance. This inheritance, not knowing exactly what benefits it could bring, Han Zhan only felt that he and the divine known tripod were becoming more and more attuned to each other, originally it seemed as if there was still a layer of 001 film separating them, but now this layer of film had also been pierced through. Deep blue, the insect battlefield. The frantic killing continued. On the human side, the casualties of the city protector organization had come to a great number. Not only that, Deep Blue City's reserve of ammunition firepower was about to run out. The city's collapse could be in the next second. On the battlefield today, the cannon fodder insect races had already completed their mission, and patches and patches of fourth order and fifth order insect races were constantly surfacing from under the surface of the sea and surging towards the shore. This scene was desperate. The Zither Soundchi blades, which were countless times more powerful than during the battle examination, cut through a battlefield. The vertical and horizontal Zither Soundchi blades continued to collect, and large swaths of insect races were killed, but soon enough, some high-ranked insect races noticed this scene, and they began to lock onto the owner of the Zither Soundchi blades, Xiaoyue. First, there was a sixth-ranked insect race, then two, three, until finally, it was ten sixth-ranked insect races that surrounded them together. As a fifth rank, Xiaoyue was in a precarious position. Just then, a light enveloped her. Li Lingjin's assistants had arrived in time, and with the divine known Ding's reinforcement, along with the fact that Xia Yue had grown into a qualified battle-compatible spirit, she was barely able to fight one against ten, but what the insect race lacked the most was cannon fodder. If ten sixth-order insect clans were not enough, then twenty, and if twenty was not enough, then thirty. Faced with such a rogue method of fighting, the humans were soon stretched to the limit. It wasn't just Xia Yue, even Li Lingjin and Yifan suffered the same situation. In the dozens of cities close to Deep Blue City, all of the high-level city protectors were facing the same attack method, being broken down one by one. Once these high-end combatants were dead or wounded, then the only end for Deep Blue City was for the city to break down. You way. Be careful. Li Lingjin's reminder just rang out behind her, and an illusory insect shadow coalesced and molded on the left side behind Xia Yue. That was a void spirit assassin lurking on the battlefield, a seventh-ranked insect race. A true battlefield assassin. In the face of its assassination, a large number of high-end human combatants had already died under its decapitation, unable to defend against it. This time, its target was locked onto Xia Yue. Its speed was too fast and it was not perceived at all, as if it had appeared out of nowhere. Xia Yue heard Li Lingjin's reminder, but it was already too late. She could only watch as the Void Spirit Assassin's bone blade pierced through to her heart. A look of reluctance passed through Xia Yue's eyes. In a trance, she seemed to see a familiar and unforgettable silhouette. Ah battle, it's a pity that I'm not strong enough. If there is an afterlife, I still want to continue fighting side by side with you. As a person was about to die, the images of a walking lantern began to flash by, and Xia Yue seemed to see Han Zhan standing right in front of her. She closed her eyes and quietly waited for death to come with her heart pierced through. After another three seconds, suddenly a familiar and exciting voice rang in her ears. I'm sorry, I came back a little late. In the next second, Xia Yue was wrapped in a warm embrace. Han War, return. The power to save the world. 
Han Zhan opened his hand. It completely absorbed the seventh-ranked Void Spirit Assassin and returned it to nothingness. Seeing the scene, not only Xia Yue, but even he himself was shocked. The endless devouring talent was simply too heaven-defying. Han Zhan could clearly feel that his cultivation, which had originally broken through the fifth rank, had surged upwards after devouring the seventh-rank Void Spirit Assassin. It was like taking some kind of tonic pill, instantly recognizable. Ah Zhuan, it's really you. You came out of the Bodhi treasure tree? Great. When Li Lingjin and Xia Yue saw Han Zhan, they couldn't contain the joyful smiles on their faces, but soon the smiles tightened and they became grave again. This isn't the time to catch up. What happened in the outside world during these days of my absence? This is Deep Blue City. How come there are so many insects? Han Zhan was puzzled in his heart. He still didn't know about the insect race launching an attack on the big backwater city, Deep Blue. Soon, Li Lingjin and Xia Yue quickly told Han Zhan about the reality of the situation, and Han Zhan's expression changed slightly after hearing it. Sixth and seventh order bugs have started to appear on the battlefield now, we're about to be unable to hold on. Ah Zhan, what should we do after that? It's not that pessimistic, I've dealt with the insect race, low-ranked insect race can be mass-produced as cannon fodder, billions of numbers are not surprising, but it's not that easy for a high-ranking insect race to be born. And haven't you guys noticed? On the entire battlefield, why are there only a few sporadic 6th order 7th order? If my expectation is not wrong, this should be teacher's handiwork. Han Zhan's words made both Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, who were originally in a fickle mood, eat a tranquilizing pill, and his appearance also made the entire battlefield seem like it had a backbone. Without further ado, Han Zhan released Endless Devouring with both hands. Only two one-person tall black hole vortexes appeared on his left and right sides. All the bug races that approached flew towards the black holes uncontrollably. This hand Han Zhan revealed caused the pressure of the entire battlefield to plummet. Once upon a time, he was just a small character who could only 1v1 with low-ranked bug races, but under the rapid growth in the past few months, he was already able to eliminate thousands of low-ranked bug cannon fodder at every turn, and was still unafraid of high-ranked bug races as well. He had completely grown up. It's Han Zhan. He's finally made a move. Great, with him here, we still have hope of defeating the insect race. Quickly see what's going on with those two black whirlpools around him? It's too terrifying. Under the swallowing of the vortexes, all of the insect race around him have disappeared. What kind of ability is this? Shouting sounds of astonishment continued to ring out. The city protectors who saw Han Zhan strike were all inspired like chicken blood. A silhouette began to rampage. Wherever he went, all the insect races disappeared as if they had been sucked clean by a vacuum cleaner. Such an outrageous purging speed, not to mention the 5th rank, even a senior awakened person with 7th and 8th rank strength might not be able to achieve it. Han Zhan's appearance saved the day, instantly reversing the situation, and many people cheered from the bottom of their hearts. The humans, who had originally been suppressed, also formally blew the horn of the counterattack under Han Zhan's leadership. Han War killed the bug tide alone and rushed against it to the edge of the bund. The huge black hole vortexes on his left and right sides were like two mouths that could never get full, and the endless insects were all sucked into them, leaving the entire bund empty by at least one half in an instant. Li Shadong, who had opened the seventh much-needed lock, was still continuing to fight bitterly. Only, from time to time, he would swing his fist below the surface of the sea, which was more or less inexplicable in the midst of a melee. Li Shadong, heroes aren't this good, if you throw away those so-called false benevolence and forget the moral bottom line, then even if we double the number of bug emperors, we can't do anything about you. The injuries on your body are mostly from the sneak attack when you struck out against those high-level bug races coming over from the teleportation vortex, is it really worth it to do so? Nightmare's voice rang in Li Shutong's ears. Of course it wasn't that kind, and saying all this was just to shake Li Shutong's will to fight. But it was destined to be disappointed, Li Shutong's will was tougher than steel, and would not be shaken by its words. Right at this moment, the void that had been in charge of suppressing the formation suddenly felt something in his heart. Amidst the endless darkness, a gaze suddenly fell towards the distant deep blue city. It's appeared. Sure enough, it has appeared. How many years, how many years of waiting, just for today, finally let me wait. The void's tone carried unrivaled excitement. It was because it sensed the aura that belonged to its own origin. That origin that had been half severed by the powerhouses of a certain world when it devoured that world countless years ago, had finally appeared in its own perception again. By retrieving this part of the origin, it would be able to complete its transcendence, surpassing the ninth rank and becoming a truly supreme existence, how could it not be excited? Li Shadong also noticed Void's reaction. He immediately let out a cold snort and shook out both fists, shattering the four insect emperors that dared to get close. As the insect emperors returned to nothingness, all the insect emperors' breath within the mirage pearl finally ran out and was not attacked. With the same vertical step, Li Shu crossed over to the Void and stopped it, which was foolishly trying to move. With me here, there's no way you can get close to the coast. What responded to it was a pair of iron fists. In the state of the seventh urgent lock release, Li Shutong's strength had already broken through the threshold of the ninth order by half a step, and he was completely able to press against these bug emperors. 
The endless darkness represented by the nothingness was shattered and quickly coalesced in another place. But no matter what, no matter how it moved, it could not get rid of Li Shutong's pair of iron fists. Li Shutong, do you really think you're going to win? Void pale voice resounded in the endless darkness, then you have looked down on our determination too much. Scarlet Queen, what's the time to wait if you don't make a move now? The time has come to let that concubine of yours do it. As he spoke, a scarlet figure surfaced from the bottom of the sea. Upon seeing her appearance, Li Shutong had a bad feeling in his heart. You're the already dead White Frost? White Frost is dead, now, please call me Scarlet Queen. As soon as the Scarlet Queen's words left her mouth, she stretched out her finger and just casually snapped her fingers. Yi Fan, who was far away on the beach, suddenly appeared behind Han Zhan. Still getting it done? Easily, give me another half an hour, I can clear the beach of these insect cannon fodder. Han Zhan's words hadn't quite finished. He suddenly felt a cracking sound coming from behind him. The sharp sound made the cold hairs on his back stand up straight, but the distance between the two was just too close, plus under the fact that he wasn't in the least bit prepared, Ifan still stabbed his dagger deeply on Han Zhan's shoulder blade. Why? Han Zhan turned his head incredulously to look behind him. Ifan was standing right there, no expression visible on his face. Answer me, why? I had advised you. But at that time, it was your own choice to stay. As Ifan spoke, he jerked his body backward, and a scarlet silhouette appeared beside him, holding him in place. At the same time, an unimaginably evil aura appeared behind Han Zhan with the precise positioning of that dagger. Ninth-ranked insect emperor, void. Grass ashes, snake threads, ambush threads of a thousand miles. This was a conspiracy without compromise. And what Han Zhan didn't know was just how long had this conspiracy been brewing? It might have begun the moment he awakened his spirit contractor talent. This was a very terrifying thing. The longer the premeditation, the lower the likelihood of it being reversed if they struck at this time. This was because they were secure in their victory. Han Zhan looked at Ifan on the opposite side and White Frost, who had inexplicably resurrected over, and a scene from the past flashed through his mind. He couldn't have imagined in any way that these two people would join forces with the insect race? Why? Han Zhan still asked. Faced with such persistent questioning, Ifan gave his answer, because I want to resurrect her. Because Dashia is not worth my life. What I want to do is to completely destroy this Dashia that has long been rotten. I want revenge. Now, everything was explained. How did the worm of erosion enter deep blue? Why did Ifan change from his usual tiredness after that and take the initiative to petition for the position of captain of the city protector organization? By what means did the Ninth Order Insect Emperor Nightmare silently sneak into Deep Blue City to complete his trial against Li Shutong, and then deliver the Bodhi treasure tree as a matter of course? Why did Ifan take the initiative to propose a sea burial, deliberately using it to cover up the purpose of building an undersea teleportation vortex? All of this, this person in front of him, was the initiator. So your ability is not immortality, but should be a lie. Immortality is the gift of your contracted spirit, the Red Iris. Han Zhan finally understood, but even if he knew this, it was already too late. The Void appeared in completely controlled Han Zhan, even though he possessed half of the Void origin, and as the true owner of the Void origin, the Void's manipulation of it was even more refined. Under its extraction, the... Soon, the Void origin was completely extracted from Han Zhan's body and then incorporated into Void's own body. When this was all done, Li Shutong appeared on the sea. All he could hear was Void's unrestrained laughter ringing out. Ha 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 ha, the origin is united, from now on beyond the ninth stage, who else is my opponent? Li Shutong, even if it's you, so what? Void surged with a terrifying strength that surpassed the ninth rank, and at this moment, he was already completely unafraid of Li Shutong. Still blasting with a fist, without seeing Voidless make any movements, the fist's strength and power all disappeared into thin air. In Void's laughter, the surrounding darkness began to spread, eroding half of the sky in an instant. The familiar scene in front of him reminded Han Zhan of the image he had seen in the Hundred Herbs Sacred Heart World, the image of annihilation. The nothingness was going to swallow up the entire blue star. He was powerless in the face of this level of power. No, it wasn't right. Endless years ago, hadn't the Divine Farmer Sacred Master and the Immortal Emperor expected this image today? How could they ensure that their chosen later successor, returning to reality after obtaining the origin of nothingness, would not be hunted down and devoured by nothingness? It was impossible not to predict this situation. What about the backhanders they left behind? Han Zhan's mind recalled the last words left for him by the divine farmer Saint Master again. Backhand? What was a backhand? Just then, Han Zhan only felt a rolling sensation in his chest. The nine red suns reappeared. That number one formation in the heavens and the earth that had made Void scornful actually reappeared in front of its eyes. Not only that, they had directly disappeared into Voidless, locking his origin firmly in place. Nothing this originally rising aura came to an abrupt halt at this moment. It had completed its fusion, but it had not completed its evolutionary transcendence, and now Voidless had already surpassed the ninth rank, but had not completely surpassed it, and was in the middle of a process. It's you again? 
spoiling my good deed three times, with this broken formation of yours, you still want to trap me. Void's indignant voice rang out. It didn't talk big, with its current fused origin, it was only a matter of time before it broke through the formation of the Nine Suns. But right now, what the human side needed most was time. Li Shudong reacted instantly, and he immediately used his full strength to grab and attack Void. On the other side, the Scarlet Queen and Ifan, who saw the scene, had their gazes fall on Hanjan at the side. No one can intervene in the battlefield between Li Shudong and Void anymore, but as his student, by killing you, you will definitely be able to influence Li Shutong's will to fight. As she spoke the Scarlet Queen had already attacked towards Han Zhan. She was originally of the 8th rank, but after sacrificing the lives of hundreds of millions of bugs and humans, Scarlet Slaying was nourished by feedback and directly managed to advance to the 9th rank. This was also her reward for agreeing to strike. Facing a 9th ranked bug emperor, alongside a human traitor who specialized in using the power of lies, Han Zhan was slapped out of the room in the next second. This palm, however, did not have the expected effect of accomplishing a one-hit kill. The crisp sound of a sword, the burst of fire, illuminated the Scarlet Queen's disbelieving eyes. In the distance, a never-before-seen peerless beauty protected Han Zhan's body. She held her sword, her phoenix eyes slightly raised as she looked across the room in a domineering manner, the aura on her body not inferior to the Scarlet Queen's. The female martial god of the city of extreme evil. The queen of extreme evil, Gong Yang Jin. The gift of the nine revolutions Dan did not only just allow Han Zhan to gain the gift of endless devouring, but it also allowed him and all the contracted deeded spirits he had contracted to be completely restored, which was a gift from Shen Nong. This rule also applied to the 8th ranked contracted spirit, Gong Yang Jin, who had been injured by the sword intent of the Xian Yuan sword and had fallen into a deep sleep. Only, after successfully fusing the Xian Yuan sword's soul, Gong Yang Jin also managed to break through into the 9th rank. With this, the battle power of the humans and the insect race was once again balanced. You really did give us a lot of surprises, but fortunately, we are equally prepared. This surefire battle will show you what it means to be, the world's enemy. The berserkers and nightmares that had arrived from the sea looked at the scorching battlefield, and their gazes were grim as they said. In the fourth battle zone, the person in charge, Shinjichi, completed his assembly and prepared to rush to aid Deep Blue City. Suddenly, a large number of Lee Spirit contractors and his team had turned against him and activated a relic while the large team of the fourth war zone was completing their assembly. The special rules of the relic caused this fourth war region team to completely disappear into the relic. Shinjichi looked incredulously at these brothers under his hand who had been born and died with him, what are you doing? You guys want to betray? Commander Shin, we have never betrayed anyone, we are only loyal to the Li family, that's all. Hearing these words, Shinjichi understood. The Li family they were talking about was the one that didn't include the great Xia war god, Li Shadong. Unexpectedly, even the internal de Xia had chosen to backstab at this critical point. The 5th, 6th, and 7th war zones were all healing direction spirit contractors, who couldn't change much of the battle situation and couldn't arrive at the battlefield in the first place due to the stoppage of the troop transport ships. Now the only thing left that could change the battle situation was the most mysterious 8th war zone, on the nameless island shrouded in fog. All the battle spirit masters of the 8th battle area are waiting for the command of the leader nothing. Behind nothing, a special portal was built and erected, inside the door was dense white light, the target led to the deep blue. Just at the moment he was about to enter, a thunderbolt suddenly struck, shattering the portal to pieces. I have long heard that there is that most mysterious 8th war zone under the command of Li Shudong of Dasha, and we have been trying to investigate, but we have not been able to find any traces of it. However, a few months ago, you made a strike in Deep Blue City in order to save that young man called Hanwar, and it was that strike that allowed us to lock onto your location. As they spoke, a group of people appeared on the nameless island. As a senior expert in espionage, none called out their identities. The Empire Slaughterers, the Iron Blood Society Alliance. Misery. A certain canyon near the territory of Grand Xia. At this point, the original shape of the canyon was completely gone, instead, it had turned into a sunken depression, and countless gullies. Wei Cheng stood in the middle of it, his head hanging low. Only his left arm was still hanging there, and the place where his right arm had originally been was already empty. Despite this, he exuded a rich blood aura, looking like an awakened blood beast that made people look away. Opposite him was a giant who had completely collapsed and lost his life and on his neck the word zero one had begun to blur. Wei Qing had won, but miserably. He, who had lost his right hand, raised his head at this moment and looked in the direction of De Xia's deep blue city. He raised his footsteps, one bloody step at a time, wanting to continue leading his fellow surviving first battle area soldiers to support. Just then, a note suddenly floated out from his arms. There were only two words written on the note. Go north. Wei Qing looked at it in silence for a long time, and as he crushed the note, he roared without looking back in an incomparably bad mood, those who were still alive, follow me northward. The third battlefield station. It was as if it had suffered countless natural disasters and was full of holes. Yichio sat on the ground with his head cloaked, and in front of him was a blood-stained martial seal. 
His expression was stagnant, and suddenly he tilted his head back and laughed crazily, then he lowered his head and fell into tears, and finally, he simply hugged the seal of handsomeness and slumped down on the ground, hissing at the ground. On the opposite side, only five of the nine apostles of the old holy covenant remained, and the bodies of the other four were scattered all over the battle zone. This battle was extremely tragic, but in the end, they were the ones who won. This person has gone mad, the remaining great summer spirit contractor is not enough to worry about. I didn't expect to have four people spelled to death by him, the old holy pack suffered heavy losses this time, but with the payoff of that item, the loss is still within the acceptable range. Let's kill all these Dasha people to eliminate future troubles. Just as they were about to make their move, a violent fluctuation suddenly came from the sky. The special fluctuation in space caused them to raise their heads in unison as a man appeared from the air. He glanced at the crying Ichyo, and his gaze became unprecedentedly cold. Losses are acceptable? Very well, then let you all lose until it's unacceptable. Lin Jingxian murmured an apology in his heart. He had already arrived as fast as he could, but he was still a step too late. Yi Chiu had gone mad. What Lin Jingxian wanted to do now was to avenge him. I know a little bit about arranging troops and formations. Let me learn from the old Holy Testament Apostle's masterstroke. After saying that, Lin Jingxian beckoned, and the seal of awesome in Yi Chiu's hand flew out of his hand and landed in his hand. The combat spirit fellowship masters that had arrived from the second battle zone followed along, appearing in various positions in the battle zone like a starburst. Right at this moment, a note flew out of Lin Jingxuan's arms. After taking revenge, go north. Lin Jingxian crushed the note with inexplicable sadness and waved his big hand out. This revenge, it will not end. The fourth war zone, within the ruins. As an unexplored region on the blue planet, every relic had its own special rules, and once one entered a relic, it represented complete isolation from the outside world. Shinjichi led his men to fight with the Li clan rebels, exchanging casualties. However, just as the battle was about to reach a white-hot stage, many more people within the Li clan's rebel army suddenly turned against them and joined them in killing the rest of the rebels. Compared to the other war zones, Shinjichi's fourth war zone was instead the most well-preserved with the fewest casualties. In the face of Shinjichi's disbelief, one person came out from the crowd of people who had fallen to the side, and he was also a Li family member. Wood shows in the forest wind will destroy it. A hundred years ago, his old man understood this truth and from that time onwards, he and the two brothers of the family had officially broke off explicitly. As the battles between the Grand Xia and the foreign races tended to become more and more victorious, over the years, there were more and more people from all the major powers secretly contacting the Li family, and there were more and more traitors within the Li family who had been bribed. The foreign races are not the only enemies, for those who are ambitious, there are no eternal enemies. Dasha is not the Li family's Dasha, it's just that his old man stood up a hundred years ago and persevered until today, that's all. His old man has long since known that the great power is irreversible. This feeling was especially obvious after that genius Han War came out of nowhere. The drama of sibling rivalry, although it can trick out those dark filth, but the filth in the future, we have to rely on ourselves to eradicate it. He pulled out a note and handed it to Shinjichi. On top of the note was the familiar handwriting of his teacher, Li Shutong. Lead the fourth war region, preserve your strength, pass through this relic, and teleport north. Nameless isolated island. Corpses strewn across the land. Each of the selected battle spirit contractors of the 8th region, their faces were covered by a layer of blurred light, even after death, it was impossible for people to see his true face clearly. This was a kind of determination and protection for his family members and relatives. At the forefront, the head of the 8th sector, Nun, was stepping on the head of the assailant who had spoken so loudly before. The 8th region had suffered great losses, but the elite force sent by the empire had been completely annihilated, so compared to them, such losses were acceptable. Chieftain, do we still need to continue building the portal? None of foot stomped on the head under his foot and he shook his head as he listened to his men's words. The portal to Deep Blue City doesn't need to continue to be built, enable another portal. We'll start now and head north. Deep Blue City Battlefield. Li Shutong and Void exchanged countless hands in midair, pulling back into position. Gong Yang Jin and the Scarlet Queen exchanged blows with each other, and neither was able to help the other. In terms of paper strength, the insect race's side still had Nightmare and Berserker Beast watching over them, making them appear superior. You finished playing all your chess, haven't you? This was the first time Li Shutong had taken the initiative to speak from the start of the engagement until now, the Senate Company, the Everlasting Life Company, the Old Holy Pact, the Empire, and those greedy and corrupt old men within the Great Xia. This is all of your bottom cards. You guessed all of them? In the vortex of endless darkness, the voice of nothingness resounded as it asked with some surprise. No, there is no need to guess. When you all struck out at me, I assumed from the beginning that everyone was my enemy. Li Shutong's words stunned everyone, how they had never imagined that Li Shutong had held such thoughts from the very beginning. What kind of character was this to be able to think so profoundly, and what kind of vigor was it that made him dare to think this way? This was simply making an enemy of all the forces of the entire Blue Star, a true enemy of the world. You know, but you didn't do anything. Saying this now, don't you think it's too late? 
You're saying I didn't do anything? Or do you think that with all the students I've taught, the eight war zones that were built from a hundred years of Dixia's foundation would be no match for your temporary alliances of hooking up with the dirt? Li Shutong blandly said. They won't do their best, and that's the biggest break. If Eternal Life sends out all the biochemical warriors in the top ten of the number. If the senator technology doesn't just cut off the liaison and troop carriers, but chooses to encircle the second war zone. If all twelve apostles of the old covenant had been deployed. If the empire is not so arrogant and sends its main knights to surround the eighth war zone. Then I, Li Shutong, wouldn't be standing here, directly choosing to bow my head. But it was impossible. Just as Li Shutong had said, these temporary allies, no matter what purpose or benefit they were working for, it was impossible for them to truly be united in their cooperation with the insect race, and they would inevitably be wary of each other. Costs and benefits would always be the first thing they would weigh. This was why Li Shutong had the courage to dare to make an enemy of the world. Hey, even if what you're saying is true, then have you thought about how you're going to solve me? As he spoke, the figure of nothingness expanded once again. This time it was no longer half of the sky, but all of the sky was shrouded and swallowed by darkness. It broke through the Nine Sun Seal and successfully fused the Void Origin, transcending the Ninth Order. Everyone, including all the insect races, subconsciously wanted to kneel down and worship. In the face of such a terrifying pressure, it was as if they had seen a true god. And now, the gods were going to kill them all. More. The Eighth Urgent Lock, open. In front of absolute strength, all schemes became pale and powerless. Even though the eight war zones under Li Shutong's command were able to defeat those allied ones one by one, but the void's true purpose had already been achieved, as long as it surpassed the ninth order, then nothing mattered anymore. It would personally overthrow all humans, all living beings on the blue planet, destroying the entire blue planet. The void had already transformed into endless darkness, and now the darkness was indiscriminately devouring everything it could. At this time, Li Shutong suddenly looked at Han Zhuan behind him. Old Nine, it's your turn. Li Shutong's words caused everyone to freeze for a moment. They didn't feel that Han Zhan could save the day in this situation. How could Han Zhan do something that even Li Shutong couldn't do? The location of the 8th urgent lock, tell me, teacher you? Han Zhan lifted his head violently and looked at his teacher as if he was recognizing him for the first time. He had always thought that Li Shutong had accepted him as a student because of his talent or some other reasons, but Han Zhan had never thought about one thing, Li Shutong knew about his identity as a traveler. This was something that had never occurred to Han. This feeling intensified when Li Shutong asked him about the location of the 8th urgent lock. That's right, I know all about it. As if Li Shutong could tell what was on Han War's mind, he didn't deny it and nodded his head in affirmation, over the millennia, Grand Xia has explored tens of thousands of relics, and amongst these relics, there have been myths and historical records about something that didn't belong to the Blue Star Civilization. I have seen in them, Fu Shichin, Shen Nong Ding, Regular Sword. The Ten Divine Soldiers of the Ancient World, if I don't remember wrongly, that should be how they are called. Li Shutong's words made Han Zhan completely understand one thing. That was, this situation today was something that his own teacher, Li Shutong, had foreseen from the very beginning. He had never been passive into the situation, but had taken the initiative to enter it himself. On the surface, it was the bug race that had joined forces with the other allies to scheme against Li Shutong. In reality, it was Li Shutong who had them all dead to rights. For some reason, what Li Shutong once said to himself came to Han Zhan's mind, the roots of Dashia have completely rotted away, and removing them won't cure them, so we need a fire to give it a new lease on life. Once upon a time, Han Zhan had always thought that Li Shutong was expecting himself to be that fire. He had never imagined that there would be a day when Li Shutong would use his body as bait to become the flame that would ignite all the decay in this world. Han Zhan opened his mouth, it wasn't that he didn't want to tell Li Shutong the location of the 8th urgent lock, but in his memories, if once the 8th urgent lock was opened, it would completely consume his own life. If Li Shutong had planned all of this from the start, then he must have planned his own death as well. This was something Han Zhan could not accept. Lao Jiu, you said that you wanted to become a hero and guard those you wanted to guard. Becoming a hero comes with a price, and sometimes, that price can be your own life. Face it openly and accept the reality, this is where I belong. Li Shutong said in a calm tone. Han Zhang raised his head to look at the sky, which at this point was already engulfed by endless darkness, and was still devouring more places as far as the eye could see. It wouldn't take long for the nothingness to swallow everything. Han Zhan knew that his teacher was right. Since he had decided to use his life as a fire to burn out the darkness, let this fire burn a little brighter. Burn so that those people would know pain. Burn it so that they can hardly forget it, so that it penetrates deep into their bones. As Han Zhan thought of this, he no longer hesitated and raised his hand to point at the location of Li Shutong's heart. There, the location of the eighth urgent lock is there. After hearing Han Zhan's words, a pleased smile appeared on Li Shutong's face. He looked at Han Zhan with a gentle gaze, like an elder looking at his juniors, your other senior brothers have been studying behind me for a long time, the only thing that I feel guilty about is you, so I've been staying in Deep Blue City for the past few months, and I've enjoyed these days with you. From the moment we learned that you had awakened your spirit fellowship master talent, we have all been in a game. 
This game was the optimal solution I could think of, and I'm sorry for those who sacrificed their lives as a chess player. Didn't you tell me that you wanted to be the chess player next time? Next, it's all yours. Your senior brothers, and those Dasha people who survived, I've already made the arrangements, and they'll be waiting for you in the north. As Li Shudong finished his last sentence, he smiled at Han Zhan and nodded. Then, the endless white mist behind him, as if it had found some point of catharsis, began to frantically drill into the location of Li Shutong's heart from all directions. 100 years of accumulation, 100 years between life and death. At this moment, it helped Li Shudong finally open the last of the eight urgent fists. In the next instant, all the white mist disappeared. The aura on Li Shutong's body steeply and dramatically climbed until it climbed to the same level as nothingness. On his body, dense cracks had begun to appear. Li Shutong, who had compared himself to a god with a mortal body, was unable to carry the power of a god, and his physical body was already showing signs of collapsing. But he was already unconcerned and righteous, swinging his fist with extreme recklessness. This fist, impacting in the endless darkness of the sky, directly blasted an immense hole in the sky. Void's unbelievable voice came out from within, how is this possible? How is this possible? What makes you able to transcend the ninth rank? How can you be compared to a god when you're just an ant human? What responded to him was Li Shu Tong's second punch. This punch not only shattered the darkness of the sky, but also exposed the origin that was originally fused with nothingness to the crowd. With the third punch, the origin of nothingness was knocked down by Li Shutong, clutched into his hand, and forced into Han Zhan's body. In the fourth punch, the void panicked and tried to escape, and was completely shattered in its consciousness by Li Shutong's backhanded fist. It was also in the transcendent realm, but it couldn't even receive four punches from Li Shutong. In the fifth punch, Li Shutong swung at the berserkers and the nightmare, and they were unable to resist at all, and all of them were directly dispersed and killed on the spot. In the sixth punch, Li Shutong swung in the direction of the Scarlet Queen and Ifan, but it only shattered the two insect clans that had been replaced by lies. Seeing that things were going badly, Ifan had already replaced his real body with a lie, and withdrew from the battlefield with the Scarlet Queen. Seventh fist, fist power across 10,000 miles of sea, blasted the teleportation vortex located in the deep sea, cut off the plot of the insect race to continue teleportation. With the eighth punch, the entire deep blue was swept away by this punch, returning a clear and peaceful heaven and earth. After wielding these eight punches, Li Shutong had already reached the end of his life. He had burned out his entire life, carrying the power of a transcendent mortal. After the eight punches, Li Shutong completely lost his breath. Han Zhan lifted his head. He saw Li Shutong standing there silently, standing with his arms folded, looking away to the north. In the next second, he completely dissipated between heaven and earth. The real yellow bird. Li Shutong, dead. The great Xia's number one god of war, dissipated into the heavens and earth. Li Lingjin covered her mouth to prevent herself from crying out, and Xia Yue hugged her, gently patting her back. Han Zhan's eyes were tightly closed, and the void origin that had been forced into his body by Li Shutong, complete with its origin rampaging across the board, had the momentum to break through the confinement and rejoin heaven and earth. He couldn't even mourn Li Shutong's death before he had to start concentrating fully on suppressing the void origin. He was already the chess executor. There were still surviving spirit contractors around, and as they saw the scene of Li Shutong and the insect race dying together, various reactions appeared on their faces. Someone whimpered softly, it was a young man who had half of his leg bitten off by the insect race. The loss of his leg hadn't even managed to make him shed half a tear, but at this moment he was already crying into tears. Someone else knelt on the ground and pounded the ground with both hands, a rather old city protector. He used to be a combat spirit contractor, and was on the same battlefield as Li Shutong, but later, because of his age, he was discharged from the army to work as a city protector in Deep Blue City. Some people looked at the place where Li Shutong had disappeared in a daze, expecting that he had never left. In such a depressing and low atmosphere, a discordant light laughter suddenly rang out. The sound was first very small, then gradually increased, so loud that everyone turned their heads to look in the direction of the laughter. That was a middle-aged man wearing only a plaid shirt and tan shorts, he stepped on a pair of beach slippers, and his whole person looked with a strong West Coast style. At this moment, he was walking from a distance, the corners of his mouth unable to suppress a giggle. Someone stared at him angrily and swung his fist to punch him, and before his fist landed on the other person, he himself turned into a cloud of blood mist and exploded. This scene shocked everyone. Tisk, seeing me, you foolish populace don't even kneel down? Dasha, from now on it will all be history, this is already my empire's territory. Imperial Knights, Head, Louis the Seventeenth. His strength and influence in the empire was the same as Li Shutong's image in the hearts of the people of Dasha. His appearance also represented the true entrance of those yellow birds behind this whole thing, to ingest the fruits of victory. Louis the Seventeenth had just taken two steps forward. A violent roar had already resounded from 10,000 miles above his head. A giant war fortress, comparable to a small mountain, appeared on the coast. Louis the Seventeenth, your empire's pay is not here, don't break the rules. Oh, we imperial knights enjoy freedom, no one can bind us with rules. All that I see with my gaze is imperial. 
the lazy tone carried unquestionable and extremely powerful confidence. As soon as Louis XVII's words fell, another silhouette appeared on the left side of his body. It was an ordinary little boy. Plate inch head, casual sportswear, hands in his pockets, expressionless face looking at the other two sides. No one knew when he appeared. Only on his neck, the words zero zero were engraved. Eternal Life Corporation, experiment no. 1. No one knew just how much medicine had been injected into the Eternal Life Corporation's experiment no. 1. Who was himself an SSS class special talent possessor, but had been made into a biochemical warrior by the Eternal Life Corporation. Although he still maintained the appearance of an 8 or 9 year old boy, no one present dared to ignore him. Not even Louis XVII could. Well, as Imperial Knights, we also have the freedom not to go out of our way to establish a strong enemy. He spread his hands and paused. According to our pre-negotiated agreement, the territory of Dasha, the Empire occupies half, and the Senate Company occupies half. The Everlasting Company takes away the Shinnong Tripod, and the Old Covenant takes away Han War and the other deeded spirits. A mechanical, electronically synthesized voice came out from the Fortress of Doom. But now, there is a change in plan. According to the news coming from the various war zones, Li Shudong has left a backhand, and although the strength of Dasha has been drastically reduced, the survivors have all moved north to occupy the heavenly dangers. Only two-thirds of the territory that can actually be divided by Dasha remains. The twelve apostles of the Old Covenant died eight deaths in this operation, leaving only one person seriously injured and escaping, and their vitality has been greatly wounded. The Pope didn't choose this time to appear, and I think he's also afraid of being attacked by our group. To summarize, so the Pope's original loot will be split equally between us, the Senate Corporation, and the Empire. Pa pa pa. Louis XVII was the first to applaud. A very reasonable distribution, Chamber Leader, your distribution is very liberal. The silent biochemical warrior 00, successively sized up the two opposite sides, and after silently assessing the possibility of fighting one against two in his mind, he chose to remain silent. It didn't matter, anyway, he only came this time for the Shinnong tripod. Head Louis XVII, Fushi Chin and Regulus Sword, you can take them away. This spirit contractor himself, we, the Senate Company, will take it. The electronic voice added. Louis XVII's eyes narrowed slightly, and he still maintained the smile on his face. The head of the Chamber of Commerce is indeed greedy, it wouldn't be for your daughter, would it? I heard that she awakened E. On the opposite side of the Fortress of Doom, a dense and many pitch black holes suddenly appeared, aimed at the front. Louis XVII stopped talking. They just talk like this without anyone else, as if they were talking about a very ordinary thing. Obviously Li Shudong had just died, obviously Dasha had killed and injured countless people, obviously everyone was human. They, by what right? Dong Yang Jin protected Li Lingjin and Xia Yue behind her. As the same Qi spirit, although they were technically only meeting for the first time, but now that Han Zhan hadn't woken up and was surrounded by strong enemies, she had to stand out. With just you alone, are you sure you can protect them? Louis XVII finally took another step forward, his tone relaxed and his eyes flirty. What a beauty, why did you choose to follow him? Come with me, I'm the right match for you, you should belong to the strong. The little boy in Fortress of Doom followed suit and stepped forward, surrounding the four of them in Han War. The way they looked at themselves was like they were looking at trophies. With Li Shudong dead and the Great Xia's first god of war gone, who else could shelter them? It hadn't occurred to me that the crisis would come so quickly. In the nick of time, a hoarse voice rang out, accompanied by a black hole suddenly exploding in their eyes, wrapping the three women in an instant. So it was you guys, who forced the teacher to die. In the endless darkness, Han Zhan's cold voice rang out. When the bigwigs from several parties saw the scene, their hearts trembled in fear for a moment. The scene of Void transcending the ninth rank just now was still fresh in their minds, and they subconsciously wanted to back away to avoid being sucked in themselves. Don't be fooled by him. In the Fortress of Doom, a cold electronic synthesized voice reminded, this black hole of his, the psychic energy threshold is not right. Several people were all human, and they instantly heard the strings and stopped their retreating steps. At this time, Han Zhan, who had regained his consciousness, also had his character panel appear in front of him. Character, Han Zhan, 5th Order, 87%. Spirit Contract Talents, Divine Origin, 3 tenths, Void Origin. Abilities, Divine Illumination, Observe Me, Cosmos of Heavenly Tao, Endless Devouring. Add more. Jade Shatters. They had guessed correctly. Although Han Zhan had completely mastered the origin of nothingness and was able to replicate the black hole and devouring abilities. However, he was ultimately limited by his realm and the power he could exert was incomparable. The three people present all had the strength of the ninth rank, and even though they were not as good as Li Shudong, they were still of the ninth rank. The void black hole has the ability to tear through space, be careful of them using this opportunity to escape. In the Fortress of Doom, the synthesized electronic voice reminded once again. As soon as his words fell, dozens of square-sized special instruments shot out from his body. These special together, one by one, pierced into the soil or floated in the air, completely covering and enveloping this area. This is a space stabilizer. The synthesized electronic voice explained. 
The reason why he carried this with him was to deal with Void's special innate ability, and secondly, because Lin Jingxian, the commander of the second war zone, was similarly gifted in space. In order to prevent accidents, he had specially prepared a space stabilizer to keep this space stable. After doing so, sure enough, the torn space around Han Zhan once again leveled out once again, and although there were still wrinkles, it was no longer able to be destroyed and torn apart. You can't escape, Han Zhua. You are a smart person, and the only best choice for you in the current situation is to leave with me and return to the Senate company together. This time, it was no longer a synthesized electronic voice that rang out from the Fortress of Doom, but the voice of a middle-aged man. With the friendship between the merchants and the Li family, we won't make things difficult for you, quite the contrary, we will arrange for you to complete the contract with Shang Siding. She has awakened an earring talent, the Nuwa Stone. She has also always been very fond of you and wants to marry you. The tone of this sudden outburst from the Senate Merchant Company was very sincere and didn't seem to be hypocritical. However, Han Zhan pressed on with no intention of agreeing. What do you take us for? Goods, or valuable commodities? Pick and choose at will, not even as good as livestock, is this the arrogance of you higher-ups? The weak are the strong, this world is like that. Otherwise as strong as Li Shutong, he would still be dead here, what's the use of being a hero? Yes, what's the use of being a hero? If all the people you save as a hero are such a bunch of white-eyed wolves, it's better not to be a hero before it's too late. The other party has three ninth ranks, and all of them are above me in strength. The space has been stabilized, and it's impossible to leave by unusual methods. Gong Yang Jin's voice rang out next to Han Zhan. In such a situation, only she could possibly be able to step forward. I have a way. After fusing with the sword soul of the Xian Yuan sword, I've comprehended a new sword skill, but I just haven't had the chance to perform it yet. If I use it, I will be able to solve today's predicament. What's the cost? Han Zhan didn't agree at first, but asked in return. Han Zhan's question warmed Gong Yang Jin's heart, it seemed that he still cared about himself and didn't ignore his feelings just because of the two beautiful ladies around him. Thinking of this, Gong Yang Jin's heart was a few points happier. It will fall down the realm. I haven't used it, I just roughly know its cost. The cost of using it is to fall in the realm, and I'm not sure exactly how many ranks it will fall to. Gong Yang Jin answered truthfully. Can the fallen realm still be recovered? It can be restored. After a long time, Han Zhan made up his mind to speak, since that's the case I'll have to please you one more time. LOL, what's please or not? Ah Juan, keep your eyes open for this sword. This sword, named Jade Shatter. The void black hole that Han Zhan had executed cut through the dimensional space, and the conversation between them couldn't be heard in the outside world. Louis XVII and the other three only saw Han Zhan suddenly fall silent and stop talking. After a long time, they gradually lost their patience as well, although they didn't know how they were going to break the state of the void black hole, but with the means of the three of them at the ninth rank, it might not be that difficult, and the three of them decided to make a move after looking at each other. Just at this moment, a sword light lit up from within the endless nothingness. The skyrocketing sword aura caused heaven and earth to lose color, and all those who saw this sword had their eyes whitened, completely losing the ability to think. This sword was more than ninth rank. The strength of this sword was unparalleled. It is better to be broken for the sake of jade than to be broken for the sake of tile. In the face of such a sword, they only hated that they were too close, and even if they had already responded to it to the best of their ability, it was still difficult to completely get rid of it. The spatial stabilizers were all blotted out in the sword light, and the moment the stabilizers were reduced to pieces, the black hole suddenly collapsed and shrunk. It eventually turned into a singularity and disappeared in place. Seeing this scene, the faces of the three big brothers were not good. It was just that they had no time to care at this time. The primordial biochemical warrior and Lewis period were fighting the remaining sword intent on their bodies with all their might. Fortress of Doom simply let that sword chi destroy all the electronic components, countless electronic components and mechanical armor fell off and were scrapped, and in the end, only a one person tall anthropomorphic robot was left, stepping out from the ruins. The capture failed. His tone still couldn't hear any emotion, it was only something that was done in passing, taking over a third of Dixia's territory at once, the Senate Corporation still has a lot of things to do, so I won't continue to stay here to accompany the two of you. I will report what happened here to the master, regarding the agreed upon payment for the Shinnong tripod, you have not completed the payment, this matter will not be settled by the Eternal Life Company. The second one to stand up was Biochemical Warrior 00. Filthy broken flesh that had been churned up by the sword intent continued to fall from his body, and newborn limbs quickly grew out again. After he said this, he very dryly turned around and left. Originally, the yellow bird that should have earned a lot of money was forced to lose its style by the sudden accident, Louis the Seventeenth grinned. The rich sword intent on his body was bright and uncertain, never able to be completely weeded out. He was almost certain that at least 50% of the sword wielded by the woman called Gong Yang Jin had landed on him, which belonged to communicating a personal vendetta. That's really strong enough, if I can refine you to become my contracted spirit, I will definitely be able to take that step faster. Looking forward to our next goodbye.
Louis XVII mumbled to himself as he finished speaking, he covered the narrow sword mark on his chest, slowly stood up, and walked towards the distance with a swinging step. Not far away, the clamor resounded once again. A group of silhouettes rushed here, and when they saw Louis XVII, they all respectfully stood and saluted, Lord Head. Louis XVII waved his hand, pacify those injured people, and immediately carry out the city takeover. As soon as possible, grab an extra piece of this cake of dasha down for me before those idiots who only know how to develop high technology. Speaking here, Louis XVII paused for a moment as he opened his mouth to add, those who encounter resistance, kill without amnesty. There is no need to be too polite in the face of these inferior people. With the entrance and exit of the three forces, the entire deep blue doom gradually came to a close. This tumultuous beginning that changed the pattern of the world was later enshrined in history. Someone had tallied all the casualty figures of this great battle, and it was shocking to the eye. On the Grand Xia side, Grand Xia war godly Shudong died in battle, Wei Qing, the head of the first war zone, and Lin Jingxian, the head of the second war zone, were seriously injured, Yi Chou, the head of the third war zone, went insane, the major war zone suffered a large number of casualties from spirit deeds masters, and the country lost two-thirds of its landmass and was nearly annihilated. The survivors and remnants of the force, under Li Shutong's advance signal, all went north to defend the remaining one-third of the territory. For the insect race, the transcendent realm insect race void fell, and the origin of void was seized. Ninth-ranked Bug Emperor Berserker and Ninth-ranked Bug Emperor Nightmare were killed. A large number of high-ranking and low-ranking bugs were killed and injured. Queen Scarlet was ranked as a ninth-ranking bug queen and returned with the human traitory fan to rule the Blood Sea. For the Everlasting Company, BioWarrior 001 was killed, a large number of BioWarriors were wiped out, and their vitality was greatly injured. On the part of the Senator Company, no losses for now, but the country's trust in the Senator Company has greatly diminished, their purchasing efforts and dependence have weakened, and they have harvested one-third of Dasha's territory. On the side of the empire, all the dark sons of Dasha were uprooted, the Iron Blood Society was wiped out, and they were unable to cultivate another intelligence organization of equal strength in a short period of time, and they similarly reaped a third of Dasha's territory. On the side of the Old Covenant, of the nine apostles that were deployed, only one escaped with serious injuries, the Pope was enraged and truly felt the feeling of the price of flesh. The twelve apostles are now left with only two, almost close to existing in name only, and have completely fallen silent to recuperate. After this battle, in addition to the god of Warly Shutong's shocking battle performance, there was another person whose name was remembered by most of the world. His name was Han Zhan, a student of Li Shutong, who nearly changed the outcome of the battle twice, and in the end escaped from the hands of three ninth-ranked powerhouses on his own. Such a battle record made Han War famous. Recommend a friend's new book on the subject of black science and technology, 30,000 tons of destroyers, you say it's a fishing boat? The old author's new book, interested readers can move to read. But a little wind and frost. North County, refused to jail pass. Near the end of the year, the snow fell earlier in the north. A few tiny silhouettes stood on the lofty city walls as fine snow drifted from the sky, covering everything in a light white makeup. Wei Chung, go back and rest, ahem, I'll wait here. Lin Jingxian, with this nagging ghostly appearance of yours, it's better for you to go back and rest first. I'm only suffering from a loss of heart power, I can always recover, it's better than some people breaking an arm. Hey, let's compare and contrast? Wei Qing's originally aroused battle spirit suddenly became subdued again. Lin Jingxian followed suit and fell silent. In the past, when the two of us followed our teacher to seek education, every time, he would be the one to pull the two of us apart and then beat you up once and me twice. Only now, that person was no longer there. According to the backhand left behind by teacher, the North County area has been covered by thousands of special formations taken from the relics, which have combined with each other to form a large formation that helped us block three attempts by the Eternal Life Company. The Senator Company's side has been dealt with properly, completely severing the contact network, but with our current technology, trying to reactivate those wartime equipments is not up to the task. The bugs in the Old Covenant have gone into hiding after this battle, and won't reappear anytime soon. The bug race and the Empire on the Imperial side are holding each other back. The situation had re-stabilized. Lin Jingxian was not good at expressing himself, he could only use this way to convey the positive side of the stabilization and pull away from Wei Qing. Is there still no news of Old Nine? It is only known that he escaped from the combined siege of three ninth ranks, and is currently being hunted down by the Everlasting Company and the Senate Merchant Company. What about the follow-up? Has he been captured? There is no follow-up, our current contact network has completely stopped and no other news can be learned. Then let Old Eight investigate, don't they have the best information channels? If the Eighth War Zone had to be mobilized for this kind of matter, then we would have already been removed by the Empire for good. As he spoke, a blurry silhouette gradually gazed up, revealing the appearance of nothing. Without waiting for Wei Qing to speak, none continued, they have already arrived at the rejecting firmament pass. As his words fell, several silhouettes appeared in the snowy path in the distance. Han Zhan, Xia Yue, Li Lingjin, and Gong Yang Jin. 
One and not less, they had successfully escaped the pursuit and arrived in the northern county, meeting up with the Grand Xia survivors in triumph. Seeing one familiar figure after another, in the next second, Wei Qing and Lin Jingxian appeared in front of them. After traveling a long distance and dodging pursuers, and being on edge all the way, Han Zhan and the few others had fatigue written on their faces. At the sight of Wei Qing, who only had one arm left, Han Zhan froze for a moment. Eldest senior brother. You kid, what kind of look is that? I can still beat up five of you like this now, believe it or not. Wei Qing cursed and raised his hand, just wanting to give Han Zhan that, seeing him like that, he resentfully put his hand down again. Let's go, go into the city. You guys managed to get away from the pursuit, and teacher's final goal has been accomplished, so there are no more regrets. What about the other few senior brothers? Han Zhan suddenly opened his mouth and asked. Wei Qing's turning footsteps lurched. Lin Jingxian held up his glasses and spoke, Old 3 is crazy, Old 4 is busy running around within the northern county, Old 5's 5th war zone was taken over by the Senate Merchant Company, and Old 6 and Old 7 were taken away by the Everlasting Company, along with the Healing Spirit contractors under their command. As for Old 8, Old 8 is here, you just can't see him. Healing Spirit contractors were strategic materials, and their importance was self-evident. This was also the reason why only the 5, 6, and 7 war zones were the best preserved. They lacked battle power and couldn't escape, so they could only be controlled by the Eternal Life Company and the Senate Merchant Company, but luckily, their lives were not in danger. Han War nodded and fell silent. Without Li Shutong, their sky had collapsed, and everyone had grown and matured a lot overnight. There was no anger, no resentment, or maybe it was just like this sheer snow that was buried in their hearts. Entering the Northern County Han Zhan and the others felt that the wind and snow above their heads had gotten much smaller. It's the four seasons of spring formation, the ancient formation that teacher obtained at the relics. There are more than a thousand other formations like this in the entire northern county, and, they continue to increase. Fourth senior brother Shin Zhuqi? As soon as he heard the news related to the relics, the appearance and name of a person flashed through Han Zhan's mind. Lin Jingxian nodded. That's right, Old Fourth was the first to arrive here through the interconnected special relics. Among the descendants left behind by his teacher, he is mainly responsible for the jobs of activating spell formations, maintaining them, and engraving them. This is their new job description for the fourth war zone. Teacher is truly calculating, he even thought of the back roads for us. Han Zhan sighed. Unexpectedly, at these words, Wei Chang and Lin Jingxian subconsciously glanced at each other. Not all. Lin Jingxuan's words afterward caused Han Zhan to be very surprised upon hearing them. Teacher didn't have a good idea of how you were going to withdraw, so he left each of us a note to go north, except for you. He also didn't dare to be sure that you would be able to escape from the three ninth steps, and the first task left for me, Wei Chang, and Old Eight was to figure out how to rescue you with all our might. Han Zhan didn't know what to say. After a moment of scrutiny, it seemed like that was indeed the case. When Li Shutong had struck the Void Origin into himself, he should have expected that he wouldn't be killed, but he might not be able to escape. If there were no later variables, it was also true that he had a high probability of following the merchant away and becoming a flunky. At this time, Wei Cheng patted his shoulder and added, I have to say, you kid is capable enough, from the first moment I saw you at the Green Vine Academy I knew that you would definitely become a fierce man. Being able to escape from three ninth steps saved us a big problem. Then again, how did you escape? Hearing Wei Qing's inquiry, Han Zhan told the story of how Gong Yang Jin executed the sword technique Jade Shattering, picking off three of them in one go, and how he himself took the opportunity to unleash the void black hole and spatial transfer. Now that Xiao Jin's cultivation realm has fallen to the fifth rank, I was able to escape with at least 90% of her credit. A few people shared the same affliction, and their feelings quickly warmed up, and Han Zhan's name for Gong Yang Jin changed again. Gong Yang Jin's hand was held on one side by Li Lingjin and Xia Yue, and the three were very affectionate. I used to call people Gong Yang Jin seniors when I was at the ninth rank, but now that I've fallen off the realm and only have the strength of the fifth rank left, I call people Xiao Jin. Gong Yang Jin's grudging voice rang out, livening up the originally dull atmosphere. Han Zhan awkwardly laughed and rubbed his head. Don't underestimate yourself and be presumptuous. Being able to possess a ninth order contract spirit is a very powerful thing in itself. Lin Jingxian suddenly reached out, pointing towards the many Dixia survivors who had sniffed in the distance. Look at them, they are all those who heard of your arrival in the northern county and have specially come over to take a look at you, your admirers. Battling hand in hand with the great Xiao War God, as his youngest student, he turned the tide twice, helped his teacher comprehend the breakthrough limits, and killed powerful enemies, and escaping with his life at the hands of three ninth rank powerhouses. With such a battle record, you are no longer an ordinary person. We're all old, and the current Grand Xia needs a new faith. Lin Jingxuan's words caused Han Zhan to raise his head brightly as he looked towards the excited and eager people, feeling the unyielding and stubbornness in their eyes as they expected him to say something. So this was the chess executor? Teacher. Something struck a chord in Han Zhan's heart, and he simply raised his hand violently. There was no sensationalism, no encouragement, no impassioned speech. It's just some frost. Year's end, plus more, thanks for the recommendations. 
monthly tickets, rewards, Li Shutong's funeral was arranged on the day of the New Year's Eve. In the old days of business contacts, the end of the year must settle the outstanding accounts, the debtor of the difficult New Year, as if the past, so called the New Year's Eve. Dasha's situation today, will only be more difficult than the customs. So Han and a few brothers discussed, the funeral arrangements in the New Year's Eve, so that all the grief stay in this year, so that hope to stay in the New Year tomorrow. On the day of the New Year's pass, goose feather snow fell. The four seasons like spring spell only covered the main living areas, while the rest of the area was still snowy and thickly covered in a layer of snow and silver. The four of them, Han Zhan, Wei Qing, Lin Jingxian, and Xin Zhiqi, were carrying a coffin like this, walking through the snow with one foot deep and one foot shallow. Behind them, followed by a vast procession, no one made a sound. Like a silent march. The coffin was empty, Li Shutong's body had long since annihilated and dissipated because it couldn't carry the power of a transcendent mortal. Empty coffin pressed on the shoulders of four people, but as heavy as a thousand pounds. The place of burial was chosen at the rejecting firmament pass, the heavenly danger of the northern county and the closest to the south. A statue of Li Shutong was carved vividly, and the direction it faces is the south. In the south, there is our lost land. In the south, there are our captured compatriots. To the south, there is the hatred we must remember, and the enemy. Densely packed heads, snow pouring down, everyone is snow full of white heads, some people are frozen cheeks red, some people limbs cold, no one left. Li Shutong's coffin was buried, the snow accompanied by soil to cover it. All the people solemnly observed a moment of silence to complete the final farewell ceremony. The epitaph belonging to Li Shutong was erected in front of the tomb, just like those combat spirit masters Han Zhan had seen. Go Li national life and death, not because of disaster and happiness to avoid it. This was the epitaph that Han Zhan had written for Li Shutong and he felt that it was the most apt phrase to describe Li Shutong's life. A hundred years ago, he was the one who pulled back the tide, saved Dasha from falling, continued the century-old foundation, created eight war zones, opened up new frontiers, and spared no effort. A hundred years later, he died as a game, will be rotten Dasha uprooted, with the burning of their own fire, burned out the filth, but also a clear sky and earth. Li Shutong is the great Xiao war god, the name of hero, deserved. Compared to his teacher, he still has a long way to go. But at the gesture of his senior brothers, he still took one step at a time, and walked to the forefront of all. The wind and snow grew stronger. Under the snow and wind, Han Zhan walked to the statue of Li Shutong, he turned around and looked at the group behind him. In this group of people, there was his senior brother, his partner, his compatriots, elders and children. They were all looking at themselves in unison, and this feeling gave Han Zhan the illusion that he was still in the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart World. In the Hundred Herb Sacred Heart world, he had broken the curse, won the hearts of the people, and completed the divine knowing inheritance to become the new sacred master. Here, he assisted Li Shutong in his fight against the bug race, using his fifth-ranked body to take on three ninth-ranked supreme powers, and he was also Li Shutong's student, another inheritance. Han Zhan let out a deep breath. All the people of Dasha, all the fellow soldiers who fought together, the pillar belonging to the top of our Dasha has fallen. He didn't fall in the battle against the bug race, he fell in greed, selfishness, desire, and unbearable plotting and scheming. But we will always remember his name, always remember this man, the great Xiao War God, Li Shutong. I am not a hero, nor do I want to be one. I'm just a small person who was greedy and afraid of death, compared to my teacher, I'm ashamed of myself. Once upon a time, all I wanted was to keep my own acre of land and be with my beloved, thinking that my talent was still pretty good, and with a big shot like teacher covering me, I would be able to give me a long time to grow up. I've had good luck, and I've had bad luck. But friends, this is life. Just because we lost a great Xiao War God doesn't mean complete and utter failure, because each and every one of us, can become our own great Xiao War God. Let's bury our hatred and pain deeply here, and let's take every step forward with determination even if we know we'll be doomed to failure. In this end of the insect plague, everyone's body is like a feather and their lives are like weeds. We've already seen the blackest night, and the hot, bright flame in our hearts will not falter. As Han Zhan said this, he violently summoned his regular sword, turned around and swung his sword, carving two large characters on the walls of the rejecting pass. Nan. Down. This is my promise, and my oath to my teacher. Sometime in the future, I'm going to lead everyone, southward, and take back everything that belonged to us originally. Southward. At this moment, the crowd erupted in enthusiastic cries, as they cried out from the bottom of their hearts, roaring with indignation. They were like rats fleeing in haste, hurrying northward to escape the villains who stole the fruits of victory. Their god of war had fallen, and their future life was like floating weeds, with no hope in sight. But now, the word southward that Han carved on the city wall was like a bright red flag, erected in the hearts of every wandering Dasha people. After going north, there is going south. Defeat is not terrible, as long as you are still alive, there is a possibility of victory. Even if they couldn't overcome, they had to bite off a piece of meat from those people. Northward, southward. Wei Qing looked at Han Zhan, who was standing in the snow and wind, and watched him use the Xian Yuan sword to carve the majestic word southward on the city wall, his fists involuntarily clenched, his entire body trembling with exhilaration. 
The lenses of Lin Jingxuan's eyeglasses blurred a little, he took off his glasses and lowered his head to gently wipe them. Nanxia, Nanxia, teacher, you really didn't look at the wrong person. Shinjichi's gaze revealed a strange color, the fatigue from running around for days swept away at this moment, and from the bottom of his heart, it was as if an endless amount of new strength had surged out. In the convalescent home, the spirit contractors and deed spirits who were injured and recuperating could only hear an imposing clamor coming from far away, but with their ears, they couldn't hear what it was about at all. Inside one of the innermost convalescent rooms, a crazy, cloaked man leapt out from inside the room. Lord Yi. Behind him, the nurse who saw this scene hurriedly caught up and tried to pull back. Yi Cho easily got rid of their capture, he laughed loudly, and then suddenly listened with his ears, and then suddenly continued to laugh loudly. Southward. They're talking about going south. Southward. Ha 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 ha. Southward? There was a momentary silence in the sanatorium, followed by a flood of loud and passionate cries that erupted one by one from everyone in dismay. That's right, south. Fuck him, that's the way to fuck back. Southward. Go south. This day. Within the northern county, the two words that echoed throughout were, go south. On this day. It was the day of Li Xu Tong's burial. It's the last day of the old year. Continue to add more, thank you for your favorites, recommendations, monthly votes, bounty support, thank you readers greatly. Deep Blue Volume officially ended, the next volume, Scarlet, New Year, plus more, please collect. Catch up on reading. Recommendation. Moon Vote, thank you. A year is a year, a year is a year. New Year is a brand new start. The new year in North County was not as lively as previous years, because of the Senator Corporation, the entire power system of North County lost its energy supply, and the satellite network was also cancelled, signal coverage. The ancient spell formation is only capable of maintaining the climate, resisting foreign invasion, and enhancing the effect of spirit gathering, but does not have the ability to provide energy and other kinds of cutting-edge technology. The entire Northern County territory was pitch black at night, making it impossible to see anything. Ah! A scream comparable to that of a groundhog rang out from within the room. Han Zhan and the others, who ran in with candles lit, saw Li Lingjin, who was squatting on a chair, looking ahead with a lifeless face, or a computer that had run out of power with a black screen and automatically shut down. I coded 5,000 words of the deposit, did not save, the computer has no electricity automatically shut down. Li Lingjin cried with a small face, said. It's okay, it's okay, it's only 5,000 words. Han Zhan comforted. But those 5,000 words are the essence of my brain that has been accumulated for a long time. Li Lingjin struggled to retort. Essence? That would be even more fine. If those 5,000 words really spread out, God knows how many people's brains would be yellowed, Amitba. Damn the Senate Merchant Company, damn it. The power outage has hampered us too much. My readers have been scolding me in the comment section for breaking my shift for 10 days now, and when I told them that I was fighting the bugs, they actually mocked me for bragging about it. Li Lingjin's cell phone still had a drop of power left and with her signal that only had one frame left, she was barely able to surf. Sure enough, on top of her cell phone, the comments with the highest number of likes were all urging for more work, as well as cursing her for being a dead eunuch who sucked. Han Zhan glanced at Li Lingjin, the eunuch is not wrong, but unfortunately not much lethality. In the highest top message in the comments section, Li Lingjin really did leave a message explaining her broken shift, and the firepower output of the following comments was much fiercer. Just you, a banned book author, you went to fight the bugs, why don't you say that you're an SSS ranked deed spirit? The author wouldn't be in Deep Blue City, right, I heard that an insect plague broke out there, silent condolences. I bah, break the shift to eunuch no reason, no inspiration to hurry to find inspiration for master. I wanna see an update today, believe it or not I'll chop my head off and show you. Give me your address, I'll send you some souvenirs. Densely packed with comments, I can't imagine that Li Ling is really adept at this, and it's developing quite well. Most of these people in the comments section were Dasha people, except that the large swath of land they were currently living in had already changed hands. For ordinary people, the change of ownership of the territory did not have the slightest feeling, it was just a change in the person who ruled over them, that was all. There were not a few people who held such thoughts. Li Lingjin looked at these gloomy comments, and even gritted her teeth, her hands pressed the keyboard up, it could simply be described as ten fingers flying, as the tapping even appeared as a stump. Xia Yue had to cough and reminded, Lingjin, today there is new material and new inspiration, are you going to continue to play against these people until dawn? I'm going to play against them. New material, new inspiration? When Li Lingjin heard this, she suddenly raised her head, her eyes burning as she looked toward Han Zhan, and the stunningly beautiful, tall Ram Jin standing next to him. It dawned on her. Ever since Gong Yang Jin had awakened, they had been uprooted, and it wasn't easy for them to come to North County to settle down. As the latest addition to the Xian Yuan Swords contracted spirits, before Gong Yang Jin could figure out the situation, she saw Xia Yue and Li Lingjin together and couldn't wait to pull her, the three of them muttering in whispers. Xia Yue, grumble grumble grumble. Li Lingjin, quack 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 quack. Dong Yang Jin, Mayfly Chrysalis Mayfly Chrysalis Mayfly Chrysalis. 
Han Zhan looked at these three guys who were communicating an encrypted language in front of him with a head full of black lines and was speechless. After a while, they didn't know what they had discussed, and raised their heads at the same time to look at Han Zhan again. That look made Han Zhan's heart stutter. The three people paced forward and surrounded Han Zhan, and under their torture, Han Zhan could only give in and confess. In the latter half of the night, Gong Yang Jin woke up from his sleep. Beside her, Xia Yue and Li Lingjin were still sleeping deeply. Don't look at the two of them as apparently heartless, but in fact, what they had just discussed with themselves was to find a way to let Han Zhan relax a bit, not wanting him to be so tense every day. That was why Gong Yang Jin finally gritted his teeth and agreed to their excessive suggestions. Gong Yang Jin wasn't originally from Dasha, and wouldn't have the same depth of grief as Xia Yue and Li Lingjin, so she was the one who was doing her best to cooperate with the other three. Apart from the sleeping two, there was no sign of Han Zhan around. Gong Yang Jin put on his jacket and pushed the door out, just to see Han Zhan alone, standing on the balcony, staring blankly. It's so late, aren't you sleeping yet? Little brother. Gong Yang Jin said in a flirty manner. Hearing her voice, Han Zhan twisted his head to look over, and his gaze lingered on Gong Yang Jin's body, which was only covered in a jacket, with some undertones of fire in his eyes. Woman, you're provoking me. Little or not, don't you know? Cluck cluck cluck. Gong Yang Jin laughed a few times, sort of acquiescing to Han Zhan's retort. After teasing for a couple sentences, the conversation returned to the topic. Han Zhan looked into the distance, feeling the faint chill that passed through the wind that blew over. Ancient formations, in the end, are only means left behind by the teacher for emergencies, they can be used for a while, but not for a lifetime. Why do you say that? You should also feel it, right? For example, this four seasons like spring spell formation, its spell power is weakening. There's a chill in the air, that's the temperature of the outside world, and the formation is becoming weakened. It may not be obvious now, but the process of weakening will definitely continue. I have heard something about this. After getting serious, Gong Yang Jin also gave his judgment, ancient spell formations aren't something new, they were all unearthed within the ruins. But since they originated from the ancient times, for thousands of years, no one has been able to study and understand the principles of these formations. One can only watch their energy gradually weaken until the core energy of the formation is exhausted and the formation is completely inoperable. A person without far-flung worries must have near worries, and I'm just worried about such a situation. Han Zhan sighed and admitted. Gong Yang Jin stepped forward and stroked Han Zhan's brow with some heartache. You're in a fast state, starting to worry about the country so soon. Don't worry, there will be a solution, don't forget, you still have a few other senior brothers, their insights are broader than yours, there will always be a solution. It's just a pity that my strength is greatly reduced nowadays, it's hard for me to help you much anymore. Gong Yang Jin sighed and said. Han Zhan walked to her side and gently pulled her crispy hand. Everything will be fine. I know a method that can quickly raise your cultivation, do you want to try it? Gong Yang Jin's rusty change of subject was about as lame as my cat can backflip. Han Zhan, however, nodded with interest, try it then? Three questions and a decision, plus more, please everything. The everlasting company attempted to attack another city in the southern part of North County yesterday. They made a sneak attack by taking a long way around, and we were undermanned and didn't notice at first. Fortunately, the ancient turtle origin formation helped us block this attack. Listening to the reports from the people under his hand, on the first day of the new year, Lin Jingxuan's tightly frowning brows had never loosened. Ever since they had solidified their position in the northern county, executing turtle tactics to recuperate, the everlasting company's tentative attacks on them had never stopped. Compared to the other big powers that had rested their heads, the everlasting company gave off a feeling that it seemed to be jumping over the wall in a hurry. It's not a solution to go on like this, the ancient spell formations all have spell cores, once the energy within the spell core is depleted, we who don't know how to replenish the energy will only be able to stare at it and watch it stop functioning. Although there are tens of thousands of spell formations left to us by our teacher, they were deliberately accumulated by our teacher over the past hundred years. If it's just squandered away, there won't be a second hundred years left for us. What's more, nowadays, those relics that originally belonged to the Grand Xia are now controlled in the hands of the Senate Corporation and the Empire, and it's simply impossible to continue exploring them. Ancient spell formations were used one less than the other. The Everlasting Company seemed to have anticipated this, and had been persistent in their harassment. To them, the price they paid was just some biochemical warriors that could be created at their fingertips, and using them to consume the energy of the ancient phalanx was the most cost-effective thing to do. This was a problem. Soon, a second report was sent up. This time, it was about the city's energy supply. There was no doubt that those who chose to go north with the large army had their hearts set on Great Xia. The people embraced you, so you had to do something to respond to them. Like now, for example, more and more complaints are coming in about the city's energy supply. Having lost the energy provided by the participating companies, the city is running out of energy, and in order to keep the normal livelihood programs running, energy has been tightly controlled and most of the city's energy supply has been truncated and withheld. This was something that was extremely inconvenient for a highly urbanized city. 
It was also a problem that Ling Jingxian and the others were currently having a headache and urgently needed to solve. On the Senate Merchant Company side, they did take the initiative to propose to us. The merchant family had said that as long as we can cede Han War to them, the merchants can provide all of Northern County's energy for free. Oof, it's just playing that sausage slicing trick. Lin Jingxian could tell what these people were thinking with a single glance. Or in other words, he understood this group of people's thoughts very well. Han Zhan represented the future, he was able to grant new life to the deity spirit through divine awakening, how terrifying was such an ability, and if it was supplemented by the samsara technology, then Han Zhan's future achievements would be unlimited. But in doing so, Dashia lost their new spiritual pillar, and their belief in the future collapsed. The loss was far more serious than energy. This was a young conspiracy, the young conspiracy of the senator technology, and Lin Jingxian did not intend to pay attention to it. At this time, his men hurried over and reported the third problem. Great Xia's awakening stones have been destroyed in large quantities by a combination of major organizations. The third issue not only caused Lin Jingxian to frown, even Wei Qing, who was off to the side, followed suit. Even a simple mind like Wei Qing understood what the awakening stone meant. It was the root of the Great Xia spirit contractors, without the awakening stone, the Great Xia lineage would not be able to complete their awakening at the age of 18 when they reached adulthood and become spirit contractors or contract spirits. This was pulling the rug out from under Great Xia. Lin Jingxuan's frown deepened. Faced with these three problems, even as he was, it was difficult for him to give a solution in the first place. Yawning, Han Zhan walked in through the door, last night he had wasted a lot of energy helping Gong Yang Jin raise his cultivation, the female goblins he needed to deal with had become more numerous, and the teacher who had prepared the four great tonic soups for himself was no longer there. Han Zhan pressed down the flash of loss in his heart and greeted Lin Jingxian and Wei Qing. Why the sad face, did something happen? Han Zhan asked, so Lin Jingxian relayed to him all the news he had just learned. Hearing these three questions, Han Zhan was not surprised at all. It was pretty much the same as what he had expected. I have solutions to all three of these problems. Han Zhan suddenly spoke. The moment he said this, everyone in the room stopped moving and looked at him in unison. This is no joke. Lin Jingxian subconsciously reminded, and after a pause, he tentatively asked, You really have a solution? Of course. Han Zhan had pondered for a long time on the balcony yesterday, and it wasn't as if he hadn't gained anything at all. These three problems, I think that since I want to solve them, I should prioritize them. I thought that the city supply involves people's livelihood, so it's the most urgent, the ancient spell formation involves security, so it's the second most important, and the awakening stone is the last. For the solution to the city's energy supply, the answer is simple, Rob. Han Zhan's finger pointed to those areas on the battle map that originally belonged to the territory of Grancia, the energy in all of these places, we can go and snatch them to supply the northern county. Even, if we can find the energy preparation plant of the Senate Corporation, we can directly bring the plant in one pot, and be able to supply North County with it for a very long time. Han Zhang's words caused Lin Jingxian and the others to ponder. Indeed, he and the others still maintained their inherent thinking that those cities around them were all Grand Xia territories, all Grand Xia people, and hadn't considered the matter of plundering the energy of the cities. Han Zhang's words opened their minds. What about the other two? The other two, about the ancient spell formation and the core of the spell formation, although we can no longer explore the ruins, don't forget that I still have a Bodhi treasure tree. Within the Bodhi treasure tree may not only be a method that can solve the ancient spell formation, but there may even be a solution to the awakening stone. Han Zhan didn't fill his mouth with words, but he was 90% certain that regarding the Bodhi treasure tree, the fruit of the world, what it represented must be the world of the Fushi Zither. Fushi Qin, why is it called Fushi Qin? That's because the person who made it is called Fushi. Just like Shen Nong is good at pharmacology and medicine, so what is Fushi good at? Fushi gossip. The trigrams, the beginning of the array also, the ancient array cannot be difficult to defeat Fushi? As for the awakening stone cannot be solved, this problem is not critical. The North County is already in turmoil, most of them are surviving spirit contractors and contract spirits, the real people account for very little, and will not be able to form a fighting force and go into battle for a while. Instead of letting them awaken and then send them to their deaths like cannon fodder, it would be better not to awaken them. After Han Zhan and Lin Jingxian spoke clearly to them about all this, he finally concluded. That's why I've decided to go ahead and grab the city's energy under the dominion of the Senate Merchant Company. This will also be the first southward move on our behalf. Han Zhan heavily slapped his hand on the map, decisively confident and decisive. When Han Zhan finished speaking, the entire room went silent. This plan was too crazy. Amidst the madness, it seemed to fit their current situation. If you're not crazy, you can't live. It wasn't that they hadn't thought of these methods, only that they hadn't considered them that way for the time being due to too many concerns and some old-fashioned ways of handling things. But Han War was different. After hearing this plan, Lin Jingxian thought briefly, and his brain spun rapidly, already giving several suitable options. The first optional location is Chun Rao City. It has a vertical distance of only a thousand kilometers from the rejecting firmament pass. It is the fastest city we can reach. 
If we choose Chunrao City, the danger factor is the smallest, and even if we wait until the Senate Corporation reacts, we will have already retreated back to the pass, which is the safest. Han Zhan looked at the map on the table, and Chunrao City and the Refusal Pass were indeed very close to each other. But he shook his head after thinking about it. A single city alone can provide too few energy cube bricks, there are a total of 32 cities in North County, large and small, and each city needs 10 energy cube bricks a month, relying on a single Chunrao City alone is a drop in the bucket. Moreover, something like this looting of energy square bricks can be done once but not twice, wait until the second time, when the Senate company is on the defensive, and it will be even more difficult to loot again. Han Zhan analyzed. Lin Jingxian nodded after hearing this, agreeing with this judgment of his. He then spoke the second location in his mind, the one he preferred. Then choose Wuchu City. Wuchu City is about 5,000 kilometers away from North County, and this has always been the big head of energy consumption in Great Xia. There must be quite a few energy square bricks hoarded. If we plunder this place, for at least half a year, tightening our belts in terms of energy is not a problem at all if we save a bit. Hearing Lin Jingxuan's words, Wei Qing immediately slammed his hand on the table. Then here it is. Dry up. I'll go and notify down, have all the brothers with good arms and legs in the first war zone assemble, and set off as soon as it gets dark. Lin Jingxian ignored him, his gaze continuing to look at Han Zhan, wanting to hear his opinion. Han Zhan propped his chin on one hand and mused slightly. From what I've seen so far, this is indeed a more secure location. But there are still two problems. The first problem, everyone knows that Wuchu City is an energy city, and so does the Senator Corporation. So Wuchu City's defense force will definitely be higher than other cities, it's not difficult to want a night attack, and once it's dragged into a protracted battle, enemy reinforcements will soon arrive. The second problem, the distance. 5,000 kilometers, with us traveling at full speed, it will take quite a bit of time. You guys look here, here, and here. Han Zhan pointed out three areas on the map with his hand, if I were someone from the Senate Corporation and set up a pursuit force at these three locations, with the Senate Corporation's level of motorization, they would be able to catch up with us very quickly. Wei Qing was usually the most annoyed to hear all this analyzing stuff, in his opinion, all of them were too many concerns and not pure enough thoughts. Neither this nor that, name a location. Wei Qing slammed the table and cursed, since you're going south, show a little pizzazz. Didn't you say something imposing in your impassioned speech at your teacher's funeral? Wei Qing. Lin Jingxian held up his glasses and reminded him. Han Zhan knew his own eldest senior brother's temper, so he didn't think anything of it. He glanced around. Lin Jingxian put down the cup in his hand, and as the ripples in the cup rippled away, the surrounding room had been replaced with a pure white space, from the tacit understanding between master and brother. This is my pure white space, speak your true thoughts. Lin Jingxian paused, since you proposed this idea, you must also have a location of your own choosing. Sure enough, he still couldn't hide it from second senior brother Lin Jingxian. A smile appeared on Han Zhan's face, only within this smile, there were a few hints of madness. His hand gently pointed to a certain area on the map. When Han Zhan pointed to that area, Lin Jingxian subconsciously held his glasses and Wei Qing stopped his cursing. They both raised their heads and looked at Han Zhan with an expression of are you crazy? Expression as they looked at Han Zhan. You guys, you've heard of Titan City. Titan City, how could one not have heard of it? As the main city of the Senator Corporation, it was a city with the highest degree of technologization in all of Blue Star, and it was also the Senator Corporation's home base. There was the most advanced technology, the most powerful armaments, the most terrifying firepower, and even the name Titan City represented the Senate Merchant Company's most pinnacle war fortress, the Strategic Terminal Arms Titan Fortress. That was an existence that even a Ninth Order Supreme Powerhouse would have to weigh, and it was also the root of the Senate Business Company's foothold in this pest end world. But now, Han Zhan pointed his finger at the location of Titan City on the map, his eyes showing madness, but he was incomparably certain. This time, it was Wei Qing's turn to be dumbfounded. Although he was a battle maniac, he wasn't a fool, even during the heyday of Grand Xia, he hadn't thought of fighting Titan City, let alone now. He had just screamed that Han War was a wimp, but he didn't expect that this junior apprentice brother had given himself a big job to do, and directly the whole thing wouldn't work out. Are you serious? Lin Jingxian though the first time he felt ridiculous if the other party wasn't Han Zhan, and it was Wei Qing instead, he would have kicked the person out long ago. Since it was Han Zhan, he reconfirmed. Yes, I'm serious, and more serious than ever. Since we're going to rob, let's rob a big wave. Don't they like to rob things from my disya? Don't they think that they killed their teacher by counting and are still smug about it? Eldest senior brother is right. Since we're going south, we should make a big one. Hearing this, Lin Jingxian took his eyes and looked at his big senior brother Wei Qing who was staring blankly at the side. Wei Chang almost choked to death on Han Zhan's words. Never had he envisioned a day when someone would take the words he spoke and dislike them to his face. I wasn't. I'm not. Don't you talk nonsense. Ahem, that, Lao Jiu Ah, we know your eagerness to avenge your teacher, but that's Titan City. Since we're going south, let's show some swagger. Han Zhan slapped the table, but it was exquisite, and Wei Qing's face was black. Returning to the topic. 
Han Zhang's gaze turned to Lin Jingxian as he continued to speak and explained, There are also three reasons why I chose Titan City. The first reason, Titan City is the main city of the Senate Merchant Company. There isn't any other place that has as many energy square tiles as Titan City. The second reason, even you all find it unbelievable, and the Senate Merchant Company will definitely not think that we would go to Titan City to plunder the energy square bricks, this kind of moth-eaten behavior does have the possibility of success. As for the third reason, although I've been generous with my words before, my prestige is only temporary. If I can't do anything to solidify it, the faith that the people of North County expect from me will collapse. In any case, Han War had reasons why he had to go. And it's better to go to Titan City with a small number of people than a large one. It's rather less risky for me to sneak in alone. Han Zhan's analysis rendered them speechless. Recommending a good book, live streaming, shock the world by playing as Monster Kid. Interested readers can move to read it. Under Han Zhan's reasoned argument. In the end, Lin Jingxian and Wei Qing agreed to his plan. This plan couldn't be publicized, not even Li Lingjin, Xia Yue, or Gong Yang Jin knew about it. It wasn't for fear of them leaking secrets, but also for fear that they would be confused if they were concerned. At the same time, in order for them all to accelerate their growth and become unique, Lin Jingxian had arranged new jobs for them all. Li Lingjin is a SSS grade Qi Ling Shen Nong Ding, specializes in healing, is a scarce talent, directly became the largest therapist in the entire North County, responsible for the large-scale treatment of seriously ill patients. Xia Yue was the SSS grade Qi Spirit Fuxican, offensive and defensive, plus she possessed the ancient intent of the remnant sun and billions of battle spirits, it was more suitable to be a female marshal in charge of the 10,000 spirits. Therefore, Lin Jingxian gave her the seal of command, and allowed Xia Yue to follow him, learning to refine and mastering the way of the imperial army as soon as possible. Dong Yang Jin was an SSS grade deeded spirit regulator, and the arrangements for him were even simpler. The two of them competing in force with Wei Qing every day was the best hammering for her. Don't underestimate Wei Qing, as he himself said, although he had broken an arm, after that fight, Wei Qing's overall strength had improved instead of retreated. This also confirmed the words of his teacher, Li Shadong, who said, My generation of martial artists will only be able to move forward when they are sharpened between life and death. After arranging all the personnel, Han Zhan and the others began to collect all the information about Titan City, as well as planning how to enter Titan City unknowingly, all of which was handled by Lin Jingxian. Another week passed like this. After knowing almost everything about Titan City, Han Zhan also finally waited for a way to enter Titan City. According to the latest news poked around over at the 8th War Zone, there will be a batch of Dixia's awakened slaves being escorted to the city of Titans recently. A large-scale escort like this only happens once a year in Titan City. As Lin Jingxian said this, he wanted to speak. You might as well be straightforward about what's going on, second senior brother. Han Zhan saw the difficulty on Lin Jingxuan's face and took the initiative to speak. There's no problem with the method of entry, but for this batch of people entering Titan City, their ultimate end will be death. It is because of this reason that the city of Titans is not so strict in screening them. Come to think of it, once inside, they would be strictly controlled and then end up losing their lives, even if it was a darksider from another organization, infiltrating in through this way would have no effect whatsoever. It would be fine if it was an ordinary undercover agent, sacrifices were inevitable, but this time, the one who wanted to infiltrate the city of Titans was Han War. The new spiritual flag of North County. If he died in the city of Titans, it would cause an unimaginable blow to Grand Xia, which was why Lin Jingxian was hesitant. After entering the city of Titans, where will these slaves be distributed? I don't know. By what means does the Senate Merchant Company control these slaves? Is it true that none of them can walk out of the city of Titans alive? Truly none. Lin Jingxian answered truthfully. Then I will be that first person. Han Zhan said without hesitation. His mind was made up, and the conversation was over. Seeing that he couldn't be argued with, Lin Jingxian didn't say anything more, everyone had their own path, it was a choice that belonged to them. The path of a strong person where there is no smooth sailing. Moreover, Han War has the means of black hole nothingness, Titan City can't use space stabilizers to stabilize the entire space all the time, in that case, their airships won't be able to operate normally. Han War's trip to the city of Titans was risky, but there was still a chance. The two of them discussed some more details, and Han War then managed to infiltrate the slave corps of the Senate Merchant Company through layers of connections under the leadership of 8th Brother Nun. The current Han Zhan had transformed into the appearance of a strange young man. This was also 8th Senior Brother's tactic, as experts in espionage organizations, changing appearances wasn't difficult for them. But at the same time, Nun also told Han Zhan that his blood could not be collected by the people of Senator Technology. Because once a blood test was conducted, then his identity would not be able to remain concealed. The code name of this mission, Dodo. This name was Han Zhan's own idea, and in the legend, the Dodo was a bird that traveled to and from the Yellow Springs River. Like Han Zhan's mission this time, he was on the brink of death, and if he wasn't careful, he would be killed in the Yellow Springs. It's apt. The old mansion territory, now belonging to the jurisdiction of the Senate Business Corporation, Green Sea City. 
The city is already crowded with people, these are all Disya awakened people who were escorted from various cities. Once upon a time, whether they went to the front line to become combat spirit contractors, or in the back to serve the people to become the city protector, they were the pride of Dasha. However, after the fall of Grand Xia, they all became prisoners, and were even inferior to those civilians. Because they were awakened, awakened means risk, risk means uncontrollable. No power dared to let them continue with their original jobs. Coinciding with the Senator Corporation's Titan City's annual day of absorbing slaves, all the cities were happy to go along with it, gathering them together in a unified manner and sending them here to wait for the Senator Technologies troop carriers to transport them all to the Titan City. Hey, newcomer? Just as Han Zhan was looking around, his shoulder was tapped, and a young man with a childish appearance came over from the side. When you get on the troop carrier in a while, follow me. The young man said while nudging his mouth back, see? These people following behind me are all those who hang out with me, trust me, there's nothing wrong. Why should I trust you? Han Zhan looked up at him and said in a puzzled manner, anyone who enters the city of titans can't escape death, is there any point in mixing with whoever is behind them? At this moment, Han Zhan did not show much desire to survive, and the role he played was in line with the mentality of most slaves. Not picking fights, not getting into trouble, not drawing attention to himself. This is what you don't understand, even if it's death, there are comfortable deaths and painful deaths, which one are you willing to choose? I can hear that in the city of titans, the senator company will take the spirit fellowship master and the fellowship spirit to do all sorts of experiments, that process has to be as painful as possible, some people have been tortured alive for more than a year before they finally die, entering the city of titans, death might also be a kind of liberation. Looking at the eloquent young man in front of him, Han Zhan was somewhat surprised. He had repeatedly confirmed with Lin Jingxian before that clearly no one had been able to leave alive from the city of titans, so why did this young man in front of him have a face as if he knew everything? Han Zhan was a bit curious. So he followed the young man's words and asked, do you have a way? Naturally, all told you, a moment to follow me quasi no error, live on better than a good death, guaranteed to give you a pain in the ass, rather a fresh statement. Han Zhan thought about it and didn't refuse, he also wanted to see what tactics the other party would have. I almost forgot to introduce myself, my name is Wang Chunyu, I'm the captain of the first squad of city protectors in the green sea city of Dasha. Wang Chunyu? There were still people who would call themselves this kind of name? Han Zhan looked at him one more time. My name is Dupress, the city of Titans, bearing southwest. Rumor had it that the city of Titans was stationed in the endless desert all year round, and was the head of the Senator Corporation's strategic terminal Marshall Titan Fortress. Its complete body was the size of an asteroid, and with a single punch, it could shatter the Earth's surface and reach the Earth's core. Of course, these are all rumors, and it's been far, far too long since anyone has seen the Titan Bastion strike. The last time it had struck was still in the historical records from the previous era. However, as the main city of the Senate Merchant Company, the Titan Fortress alone looked majestic and imposing. It was more than a hundred times more spectacular than the Jade Gate Pass that Han Zhan had seen. Countless super-advanced firepower covered the entire city wall, and futuristic silver shuttles transformed into streams of light, constantly shuttling across the sky and ground. The entire city was brightly lit with neon colors. Outside the city of Titans was a huge transparent barrier made of densely packed hexagons pieced together like a beehive. The troop transport ship that Han Zhan and the others were on was flying towards the city of Titans at an extremely fast speed, and although it could already be seen with the naked eye, it would actually take at least a quarter of an hour to arrive at the city of Titans from where they were. Most of the people in the troop carrier had chosen to follow Wang Chunyu at his call. Han Zhan noticed that although these people were both male and female, they were all generally on the younger side of the age scale, that is, under 30 years old, but not too young, that is, over 18 years old. With such an age group coming together in one boat, I wondered if it had anything to do with Wang Chunyu's intentions afterward. Hey, why don't you say anything? Like a mope. Which city are you from? Songhai City? It sounds familiar. Isn't that the one, the city near Deep Blue City? Upon hearing this name, Wang Chunyu was suddenly a bit excited. Have you heard of Han War? Suddenly hearing his name from a stranger, Han Zhan first froze. He quickly gathered his emotions and nodded. I've heard of him, he's very famous in our area. The reason why Han Zhan said he was from Tsanghai City was because he had only traveled to Deep Blue City and nearby cities. In order to keep himself from being exposed, lying also needed to bring a bit of skill to it, falsehoods and truths. As for the name Han Zhan, people in Tsanghai City would definitely not be unfamiliar with it. That's for sure, he's my idol. Wang Chunyu said excitedly, can you tell me more about him? You know, it's just information you get from the internet, and it's easy to get distorted when it's passed around. Han Zhan subconsciously touched his face to confirm that the other party was indeed not recognizing him. There was such a coincidence? Happening to meet one of his loyal fans on a troop carrier heading to Titan City? Han Zhan hadn't yet spoken, but it was another young man on the side who heard Wang Chinyu's words and laughed coldly, idol? That Han War deserves to be called an idol? Just as well, it's better than some people calling him a hero. Hey, what do you mean? Why are you speaking in a conspiratorial manner? It's so hard to hear. 
Wang Chunyu was unhappy. Hard to hear? I have something even harder to listen to, he, Han War, is so awesome, why did he leave us behind and run off to North County by himself? Isn't he a great hero? What's the point of running away with his tail between his legs in ashes? That's right, they abandoned us and hunkered down in North County. Letting us awaken people be imprisoned as slaves, such a person deserves to be called a hero, I shucks. Someone followed and chimed in. Han Zhan's eyes and nose did not respond. In fact, from the moment he left Deep Blue, he knew that someone would say this. After all, the name of hero, though not something he boasted about, had already been placed on his head. If you want to wear a crown, you have to bear the weight of it. It was normal for these abandoned awakened to have grievances as their lives were precarious. It was only that they were complaining to the wrong people. In Han Zhan's opinion, if they really wanted to, they should complain about the insect race, the everlasting company, the senate company, the old covenant, and the empire. The ones who should be the least complained about were those who had fought and killed in the main battlefield, as they had fought their hardest, and some had even paid with their lives. Without Han Zhan opening his mouth, Wang Chunyu had already taken the first step to fire back, what are you guys talking about here? If you really want to be capable, why don't you go to Deep Blue City yourselves, or are you guys able to do better than him? Can you fight alongside the Great Xia God of War, turn the tide and save the day? Besides, when Great Xia's territory was seized, instead of looking for trouble from those who seized the territory, you instead scold those who defended the territory and retreated to the last third of the territory. Is there really nothing wrong with your brains? Han Zhanmo scolded these people severely on behalf of Wang Chunyu. He was as good as three or five of them on his own, and he could speak well, quickly rendering those who were disgruntled with Han Zhan speechless. Returning from his victory, Wang Chunyu looked at Han Zhan, who was silent, and continued to ask, What's wrong? Say something. Tell me about what happened before Han War, I really want to know. Seeing as he had cursed so vigorously just now, Han Zhan told him about his previous affairs. Most of these things were things that had been rumored in Deep Blue City and nearby, between several cities that everyone was familiar with. It was just that it was a lot more vivid and graphic when told by the man himself. Wang Chunyu's eyes glistened as he listened, and when Han Zhan said some of the behaviors that met his mental expectations, Wang Chunyu even clapped his hands in excitement. To be honest, such a way of self-reporting made Han Zhan feel awkward. Fortunately, this embarrassment didn't last long. A quarter of an hour later, as the troop carrier slammed to complete its mooring, the door of the troop carrier was opened. One after another, a group of figures walked in. Upon closer inspection, all of them were robots. One by one, they were turning on facial recognition, scanning and registering, and entering and verifying the personal information inside the troop carrier. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan secretly scared his tongue. The news Lin Jingxian had gotten also said that the Senate Merchant Company didn't care if there were any darkies mixed in, but the truth was that this was clearly a smokescreen. The Senate Merchant Company had deliberately released such news and then activated the face recognition entry system the first time the troop carrier landed down, so its purpose was self-evident. But fortunately, Eighth Brother had prevented this situation in advance, and the identity he used to infiltrate Titan City this time was indeed the spirit contractor of Tsanghai City. However, this spirit contractor himself had already died, and his identity had been impersonated by Han Zhan, and his looks and name were correct, so there was no danger of his identity being exposed. After completing the facial recognition and entry confirmation, the robot in the lead suddenly began to glow red, detected that all the personnel on this ship are between the ages of 18 and 30, meeting the screening requirements, beginning to distribute the distribution area. Automatic distribution is complete, distribution area confirmed, Mechanical Research Institute. Upon hearing that they were assigned to the Mechanical Research Institute as slaves, Han Zhan keenly perceived a slight, unnoticeable brightening in Wang Chunyu's eyes. Mechanical Research Institute, this was his destination? Without waiting for Han Zhan to ask for clarification, they were bound by robots with a special device that carried the effect of an inhibitor, specially developed for awakened people. Not only that, a capsule chip was injected into each of their necks at the same time. After the capsule chip was injected, they were loaded onto a black maglev transportation vehicle and transported to the Mechanical Research Institute at an extremely fast speed. The interior of Titan City was even more prosperous than what they had seen on the troop transport ship. It was like a true city of technology and cyber city, out of place in the end of the insect plague. Illuminated by blue and purple neon lights, most of the people walking on the road were robots. They had different shapes, representing different types of work. They were responsible for transportation, guards, security, and all other activities. Few of them looked like humans, but their bodies were equipped with mechanical prosthetics, which was very strange in terms of human aesthetics. Without giving Han Zhan a chance to look around for too long, the Black Maglev Transportation Vehicle carried them to the Mechanical Research Institute. The sensory gate immediately opened and they were sent to the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. Han Zhan noticed that Wang Chunyu slowly retreated backwards as the Black Maglev Transportation Vehicle arrived. The tiny move was not noticeable, and everyone's eyes were firmly locked outside. Han Zhan also followed him and took a few steps backwards slightly, and just then, the door of the vehicle was opened and an octopus-like mechanical arm surged in from outside. 
They nimbly grabbed the slaves being transported over. Accompanied by a scream, these mechanical arms violently retracted again, not knowing where to go. Seeing this scene, Han Zhan was more and more certain in his heart that Wang Chunyu must have come to the Mechanical Research Institute, otherwise how could he explain it? Could it be that he had the ability to see things before they happened? Wang Chunyu didn't know that Han Zhan had already suspected himself at this time. He only promised to lead the crowd to a place of death without pain, other things were not within his promise. The mechanical arms were still grasping, and the commotion continued for a while until most of the people around them had already been taken, leaving a few standing alone and surviving. Go! Wang Chunyu suddenly turned his head and said to Han Zhan, and immediately afterward, he quickly rushed towards the car. Reacting, Han Zhan hurriedly followed, and the two of them shook off those unknown people behind them and began to rush towards the deeper section of the Mechanical Research Institute. When did you find out? During the quick run, Wang Chunyu asked without looking back. I'm a person who isn't very happy to trust people, and those who are solicitous for nothing are always treated as if they don't have a good heart. Han Zhan's words caused Wang Chunyu to freeze for a moment. He could only say inarticulately, what a good habit. Going from this side, those mechanical arms all have a grabbing range, radiating from the black maglev transport vehicle, within a thousand meters around is their grabbing range, after leaving this grabbing range, it will be temporarily safe. Why do you know all this? Who exactly are you? Wang Chunyu didn't answer Han Zhan's question as the two of them quickly walked through the passageway. Sure enough, after they ran out of the 1000 meter range, those mechanical arms stopped treating them as targets. New mechanical arms slowly came out from one of the doors again, twisting and probing like huge, thick pythons, and they very accurately grabbed the few survivors from before. It was only at this time that Han Zhan had the chance to take a closer look, only to see that the places where these mechanical arms were sticking out were all silver white doors, which were scattered around like a honeycomb. Looking upwards, there were at least a dozen of these doors on each floor, and the higher up they went, the fewer they were, like an inverted cone. Higher up, because of the strong light, it was no longer clear to see. The first mechanical arms that appeared just now were all high up, before going to the next level, and so on down. It seemed that there was a sequence for these mechanical arms to grab the experiments. We must leave the fishing area before the last layer of mechanical arms finish grabbing people. Wang Chunyu reminded. Fishing area? Haven't we already gotten out of the thousand meter range? The thousand meter range is just the cordon, when there are no slaves within the cordon, the program will release the poisonous fog by default, and conduct a thorough purification of the entire fishing area, not even the tiny dust cells will be spared. As he spoke Wang Chunyu's footsteps did not stop and he had already arrived in front of a special door. The color of this door was different from all the ones seen earlier, the other doors were silver white, only this one was gray. At this moment, this door was tightly closed, and if it wasn't for the fact that one could see traces of tight seams, it was generally the same color as the surrounding walls. Only to see Wang Chunyu familiarly touch this door, awakening a translucent electronic code, he quickly entered the code to show that it was correct, the gray door instantly opened. Quickly come up, this door's opening time is only 10 seconds, it's an emergency escape door. Wang Chunyu said, beckoning to Han Zhan behind him. When Han Zhan saw this scene, the suspicion in his heart became even stronger. Are you someone from the senator company? Otherwise, how would you know about this emergency escape door, and how could you possibly know the password? I am not. It's too late to explain to you now, you get on the elevator first, and when you get to your destination, you'll know. Wang Chunyu's tone was urgent and did not seem fake. Han Zhan pondered for a few seconds before taking a step to follow. He had just entered the escape door with his front foot when it instantly closed, and immediately afterward, through the perspective inside the escape door, he saw many deep purple mists erupting from the entire area all at once, and these mists shrouded almost the entire fishing area. Seeing this, Han Zhan already believed that all of what Wang Chunyu said was true but there was still a great deal of confusion regarding his true identity. When the elevator doors opened again, there were no longer gray walls in front of them, but instead silver-white passages. These passages were connected in all directions, and all areas could be reached. If it was someone who had never been here before, facing such a complex to the extreme labyrinth of the lair, I'm afraid it would be very difficult to find a way out. Without seeing how Wang Chunyu recognized it, he had already led Han Zhan to the doorway of a special room in seven turns. Han Zhan looked up and saw the description of this room on the doorway, Research Program Mechanical Ascension. Seeing this name, Han Zhan suddenly had a bad feeling in his heart. But Wang Chunyu had already skillfully opened the door to the lab once again. The expected ambush did not happen. Only the instruments made a slight ticking sound, and the entire inside of the room was very quiet. Han Zhan dropped his guard and followed behind Wang Chunyu into this lab. That group of dog shit from the Senate Business Corporation are all absolutely confident in their own technology. The Mechanical Research Institute is their key head project, so there are relatively few guards here, and the only way to get in here is to become a slave research subject. Wang Chunyu did not turn around and explain directly behind him. This is your destination? Han Zhan looked around and quickly locked onto a target. It was a huge transparent water tank. Inside the cylindrical transparent water tank, 
it was currently filled with some sort of light green unknown liquid. In this cylindrical water tank, there was also a young girl who was filled with tubes. Her eyes were tightly closed, and countless tubes were connected from her body to the opposite side, a huge electronic equipment. At this moment, a special line like an electrocardiogram was slowly pulsing on the electronic instrumentation. When Wang Chunyu followed suit and looked up here, the young girl in the cylindrical transparent water tank suddenly opened her eyes unexpectedly and strangely looked at each other in all directions. You're here. A mechanical electronic synthesized tone suddenly came out from the huge electronic instrumentation device. The induction line diagram representing the electrocardiogram left and changed drastically. I'm coming. Wang Chunyu responded with a hoarse voice. Watching these two people as if they were in a secret code, the alarm bells went off in Han Zhang's heart. He subconsciously pulled away to prevent a sudden possible attack. Wang Chunyu pointed at the woman in the cylindrical water tank and spoke, You're right, she, is the purpose of my trip. Who is she? Shang Xiaoyun, and also my contracted spirit. Wang Chunyu's reply caught people off guard. Shang Xiaoyun? Her last name was Shang, could she be a merchant? The Senate Merchant Company was a family business, and as the merchant was at the helm of controlling this aircraft carrier, how could its people be used as test subjects and flourished here? It always felt like there was something wrong. There was no need for Han Zhan to voice his doubts, as Wang Chunyu seemed particularly agitated and had already told everything in full. Shang Xiaoyun and I, we met because of a chance encounter, and the merchants don't allow family members to use the Awakening Stone because in their opinion, it's the wrong path. The only path revered within the merchants is mechanical ascension. Xiaoyun was very curious about everything in the outside world because she was able to break away from that kind of environment of the merchants once in a while, so she just happened to touch the Awakening Stone and completed her awakening to become a contracted spirit. After becoming a contracted spirit, Shang Xiaoyun met Wang Chunyu and concluded a contract after developing mutual feelings for each other, and originally everything was fine. Until the merchants came and forced Shang Xiaoyun to take her back. Wang Chunyu originally thought, this is just a short parting, but never thought, this has become the last side of the two of them. Wang Chunyu frantically inquired, looking for relations, want to see Shang Xiaoyun, but all to no avail. In the beginning, he thought it was because his status was not worthy of Shang Xiaoyun, so he had also worked hard, and eventually climbed to the position of captain of the first squad of city protectors, finally having some power. But even so, the merchants still didn't intend to release Shang Xiaoyun so that she could be reunited with Wang Xunyu. The merchants thought that they did it without God knowing it, and within this city of titans, all the places are dotted with the merchants' high-tech eyes, and there is no way for all the Minutemen to hide. But what they didn't expect was that the natural ability that Xiaoyun awakened was an S-ranked flux sense. S-class talent empathy, two people with empathy are able to share their vision with each other, which means that everything that happened to Shang Xiaoyun and the merchant, Wang Chunyu had already known clearly through empathy. Because she awakened to become a deeded spirit and has the merchant bloodline, she is the best carrier for experimentation. The merchants have been researching things related to mechanical ascension, they first experimented with ordinary people, and then realized that awakened people have a higher degree of fitness for machinery, so they tried to do everything they could to experiment with awakened people. Waiting until after the experiments reached a certain level, in order to verify the feasibility of the experiments, so they used awakened people with merchant bloodline to do the final experiment. In the eyes of the merchant people, everything would serve the experiment. And the ultimate goal of the experiment was to upload one's spiritual consciousness to the terminal through the machine, and then realize immortality and mechanical ascension. Such a crazy experiment, such a crazy idea, had gone through many generations. Looking at the Shang Xiaoyun in front of him was the result of the experiment a few versions ago. Xiaoyun's experiment failed, she became a failure. Yet it was still placed here, and every day, someone would come over and record the experimental data, while restoring her bodily functions for her and completing the renewal of her life. Was this what was called, living was more painful than dying? Han Zhan suddenly had some understanding of what made Wang Chunyu so empathetic. Through the talent, Tong Sense, Wang Chunyu experienced all of this that Shang Xiaoyun had gone through one by one, and it was only through Tong Sense, borrowing Wang Chunyu to feel the outside world, that Shang Xiaoyun stayed awake and didn't die out of her humanity, becoming a numb test prop. This makes sense. Wang Chunyu was familiar with everything in the Mechanical Research Institute, not because he was a merchant, but because he had a merchant deed spirit right here. So what's your plan? By all means enter here by becoming a slave, and then use the summoned young man as a shield for you, so that you yourself can take the opportunity to get rid of the mechanical arm and leave from the escape elevator, all of this is within your plan, right? For this plan today, Wang Chunyu didn't know how many times he had simulated it in his head. He did not deny Han Zhan's words. We were all injected with a capsule bomb in our necks, a special bomb developed specifically for awakened people, as long as there is a fluctuation of spiritual energy in the body, it will immediately explode. Once this kind of bomb is injected into the body, it will break down into the bloodstream and then flow throughout the body, unusual means can't weed it out at all, and it's extremely powerful. Once it explodes, one will be blown to pieces, with no bones left. 
As Wang Chunyi spoke, he had already walked over to the cylindrical transparent water tank, only to see that those metal tubes that were originally inserted into the giant mechanical apparatus, as if they had come to life one by one, had connected to his body. What are you doing? Han War asked. As you can see, blood exchange. Drawing out the blood that contains the fiery bombs in your body and replacing it with pure blood to re-inject into your body. The process was quick, and in less than a moment, a small capsule was re-extracted and placed in Wang Chunyu's hand. You try it too? He didn't intend to leave his own blood here, not to mention, after figuring out the explosion principle of the capsule bomb, it really wouldn't necessarily be able to injure himself. Once Han Zhan activated his, endless devouring, talent, he would be able to devour all of the microcapsule bombs within his blood, and he wouldn't be scared at all. Seeing Han Zhan's refusal, Wang Chunyu shrugged and didn't say anything more. He pinched the bomb and turned toward the door. Where are you going again? I'm going to give the merchants a little firework shock. Wang Chunyu said, raising the capsule bomb in his hand, and Han Zhan seemed to understand his thoughts a bit. From becoming a slave, to injecting the bomb, to entering the mechanical research institute and extracting the bomb, the chain of events was intertwined. What did Wang Chunyu want to do with this weapon that the enemy had taken the initiative to send up? Soon, Han Zhan knew the answer. Only to see that Wang Chunyu passed through the complicated bug nest type maze to a hidden elevator, and after successfully entering the password again, he chose the topmost area. On the other side, Han Zhan did not follow Wang Chunyu. Because in his opinion, this was a personal vendetta between Wang Chunyu and the merchants, he hadn't forgotten the purpose of his trip, which was to quietly sneak into the city of Titans, then find the storage location of the energy cubes and loot the energy cubes. What Han Zhan should do more than anything else right now was to quietly disappear, preferably an unexpected fake death to get away. Only then would it be convenient for him to continue acting. Just then, an electronic synthesized voice suddenly rang in his ears. Please, can you, save him? Don't let him, go and do what moths do. Merchant, it's not something he can shake, don't take revenge for me, don't take revenge for me. Drip drip drip. A series of beeps rang out from the huge mechanical instrument, and the frequency on the EKG grew faster and faster. I refuse, Han Zhan said without hesitation. Not to mention that they were not relatives, even if they were related, he could still tell the difference between choosing between plundering the energy cube and risking the exposure of his identity to save a person. As if he hadn't expected Han Zhan to refuse so decisively, the owner of the electromechanical synthesized voice froze for a moment. What will it take for you to be willing to help me? I can tell you where the merchant's treasure is hidden, I can tell you all the progress of the development of the most advanced technology, I can. Even in the most emotionless electronic voice, Han Zhan heard a hint of urgency. Wait, interrupt. You're saying that you know the merchant's treasure location and know the progress of the development of state-of-the-art technology? Are you sure you're not talking nonsense? What a joke, weren't these all top secrets of the merchants? Shan Xiaoyun was just an experiment, what made her able to know all this? This was just as outrageous as walking down the street and having an old man suddenly mysteriously come up to you and tell you that he was the first emperor of Qin and beat the money to seal you as a great general. It's true. Although the experiment of mechanical ascension on me ultimately failed, part of my consciousness was still uploaded into the terminal. The merchant's special core terminal, that contains the consciousness of successive generations of merchants, many of the secret secrets are in there, and were read a lot by me. You forgot why Wang Chunyu knew the secret passageway, the unlocking code. That's true. Shang Xiaoyun was trapped in the water tank and couldn't get out at all, so if there wasn't any special reason, how did Wang Chunyu know so many access codes? Han Zhan had already had this doubt in his heart, and hearing Shang Xiaoyun's explanation about this, he was already halfway convinced. I'm willing to pass these secret secrets to you by way of consciousness airwaves, so that you can know the information that I know. It's just consciousness airwaves, if there's really any danger, could I still drill out of the tank and hurt you? Shang Xiaoyun's words caused Han Zhan to hesitate. From the looks of things it was indeed as she had said, and he hadn't been able to find the location where the energy cube was stored since he had entered the city of Titans. If Shang Xiaoyun had read the conscious memory that contained the location of the energy cube, wouldn't that be a waste of effort? After weighing the benefits and risks in his mind, Han Zhan agreed. You don't have to get close to me. Shang Xiaoyun seemed to be afraid that Han Zhan didn't trust himself and took the initiative, I only need a conductor wire. Consciousness conduction is very convenient for experimental bodies like us, and theoretically speaking, this direction of merchants' research would also be an extremely pinnacle technological breakthrough in a sense if it really succeeded. Imagine if consciousness was immortal and was able to transmit knowledge through simple conduction of consciousness, how rapidly should knowledge be accumulated? Mad scientists, mad experiments. Han Zhan didn't play coy, nor did he pretend to be any kind of big head, stopping in place as he was told. A metal tube slowly probed out from inside the large mechanical device. The tube had a smooth surface, and the joint was a special material that was round and crystalline. Han Zhan was on guard and waited until the tube approached him. It didn't change its form, it just moved in an unusual motion to approach Han War against his forehead. A cold touch came from his forehead. 
In the next second, a large amount of information transmitted by the consciousness instantly exploded inside Han Zhan's brain. This sensation made it too late for Han Zhan to even react, and he just opened his mouth before his entire body blacked out and fainted. It's finally done. Wang Chunyu, who saw the scene through the shared vision, pushed his way in through the door. This guy, he's really overly cautious, I swiped so much goodwill along the way, and he didn't even take it lightly at all. Luckily you bluffed him in the end. Wang Chunyu said as he quickly lifted up Han Zhan and carried him towards the water tank. By the way, this guy's mouth rattled a bit before he passed out just now, what did he say? He said, grass, infinite empty place. What the hell? Forget it, don't bother with him, Shaoyun, wait for me for a while, wait for me to transfer all the neural pathway tubes in your body to his, so that you can stay out of the way of the merchants group. Wait for me, little cloud. Soon we can replace you with this scapegoat, and we'll then follow the plan to escape Titan City, find a place where they can't find us, and never be separated again for the rest of our lives. Wang Chunyu was still chattering away. The movements in his hands were skillful and swift, as if he had rehearsed them countless times beforehand. No, not as if, he had rehearsed it countless times. Rescuing Shang Xiaoyun, this matter, was the only meaning for him, Wang Chunyu, to still endeavor to live. Shun, Chunyu. Shang Xiaoyun's electronic voice suddenly rang out, can you wait a moment first? Wait? Wait for what, Xiaoyun, don't worry, I've practiced countless times, nothing will go wrong, I'll be quick, trust me. Aha. Uh -huh. Chunyu, I remember your idol correctly, it should be Han Battle right, it's that Dashia hero, New Hope, Han Battle. That's right, Han War is my idol. Wang Chunyu replied without stopping in his hands, he's the hero of Dixia, and I've dreamed since I was a child that I could one day be a hero as well. He did what I didn't do. By the way, after we escape the city of Titans, we can also go to the northern county. But if we go to the north county, we can't both get bored every day, as a Dashia person, we still have to contribute something. Why don't you say anything, Xiaoyun? In the midst of the silence, Shang Xiaoyun's electronic voice rang out intermittently. What if, let me tell you, the person you're tying up right now is Han War. Wang Chunyu's hand, which was rapidly pulling out and inserting the neuron catheter, lurched. He lowered his head and didn't speak. You lie to me, you're lying to me, aren't you, Xiaoyun? Chunyu, consciousness conduction is a two-way street. It is not only capable of inputting consciousness to the other party, it can also obtain part of the consciousness from the other party, you know that. Shang Xiaoyun paused, just now, in the fragment of consciousness that came back from his mind, it was the likeness of another person. And that person is your idol, Han War. Chun Yu, Wang Chun Yu squatted there motionlessly, listening to Shang Xiaoyun's words as if he had become a statue. In order to save his beloved, he could be a dog, betray his compatriots, and count others as scapegoats, doing everything. But why was it like this? Why was it that when he was about to succeed, the man in front of him was the person he admired the most, the spiritual leader of the Grand Xia, Han War? Wang Chunyu's shoulders began to shrug violently, he subconsciously turned his back, but he had never thought that Shang Xiaoyun, who was in a state of flux, would still be able to see that he was already in tears, or else, forget it. Shang Xiaoyun slowly said, although I'm not from Dixia, I know how much he means to your Dixia. The way we are now, it's quite good. Where is it good? Wang Chunyu turned his head and roared lowly in a hoarse tone. Love and righteousness are worth a thousand words. What if it's one or the other? When Han Zhan reawoke, there was still some swelling and pain in his head that hadn't receded. He subconsciously reached out and rubbed his temples before reacting to what was wrong and looking violently to the side. Not far away, Wang Chunyu dropped down to sit there, his face looking as if he had aged much more than a moment ago. Tell us the purpose of your trip, and we will provide all the help we can. Shang Xiaoyun's Meccano electronic synthesized voice sounded once again. Just now, it was this electronic synthesized voice that didn't sound like it had any emotional fluctuations that deceived Han Zhan's judgment causing his entire mind to instantly explode with knowledge and faint. But it seemed like they didn't take the opportunity to do anything. Hearing Shang Xiaoyun's words, Han Zhan understood. You guys already know my identity? It's the two-way nature that consciousness conduction has? This wave was his carelessness. However, it wasn't completely unproductive, and from the massive amount of memorized consciousness information that Shang Xiaoyun had stuffed into his brain, Han Zhan had managed to find the location of the large warehouse regarding the storage of the energy cubes. With the location, there was a target, no need to scurry around like a headless fly. In the face of the goodwill released by Shang Xiaoyun, Han Zhan fought for a moment and answered truthfully, I infiltrated Titan City this time for the energy cube bricks. Upon hearing Han Zhan's answer, Wang Chunyu, who had been sitting disheveled on the ground, suddenly raised his head. True enough, this is the choice you should have. When Wang Chunyu said this, he suddenly stopped again, as if he had thought of something sad, and the entire person fell silent once again. You quickly leave from here. Every 24 hours, someone will come over on a regular basis to check my vital state and restore my vitality. It will be difficult for you guys to leave again by then. Shang Xiaoyun urged. Wang Chunyu exhaled a deep breath of turbid air. He stood up again and patted his clothes vigorously. Let's go, follow me. I know an escape route that can go straight out from here and arrive outside the Mechanical Research Institute. What about her? What about him? 
Han Zhan pointed at Shang Xiaoyun and asked, if possible, the three of us will escape together. It's useless, those tubes on her body, all of them are used to absorb transmitting neuron signals. These signals are connected to the terminals, once the signals are broken, the merchant will immediately realize it, and no one will be able to run away at that time. So, Wang Chunyu's original plan was to trick himself into following him here, and then act as a scapegoat to save Shang Xiaoyun by switching him out. What changed this idea of his? Is it because they know that I'm Han Zhan? Thinking about this, Han Zhan fell silent. He didn't know how to comment or what to say. Let's go, you're not to blame for this. Wang Chunyu suddenly pulled out a smile, returning to his original, more familiar appearance. Originally, I also had the selfishness to lie to you, and now that I've successfully sent you out again, the two of us are even. Saying this, he turned his head again to look at the young girl in the water tank behind him, his eyes filled with reluctance and unwillingness within them, but soon, he withdrew his gaze. Xiaoyun, if you miss this opportunity, there will definitely be another one, I will never give up. After saying that, he turned around and firmly walked towards the door. Regret? It's not too late to regret, we can think of other ways. On the way, Han Zhan asked Wang Chunyu. Regret, of course I regret it, regretting how I didn't realize that it was actually you when I chose the person in the first place. If it was someone else, I would have already fled Titan City with Xiao Yun by now. Speaking here, Wang Chunyu smiled miserably. Maybe this is fate, it's destined that I won't succeed this time. But being able to help my idol, this visit to Titan City wasn't in vain. Wang Chunyu braced his optimistic tone as the two of them quickened their pace and traveled through the hive labyrinth. Drip drip drip. A sharp alarm was pulled. At the center of Skynet, an expressionless human face silhouette appeared on the large screen. Looking closely, it was a lifelike digital human face composed of a string of zeros and ones. It looked at the staff below and spoke, sounding the level 3 alarm. Two rats escaped from the Mechanical Research Institute. The number of people who ended up uploading the experimental data does not match the number of people who entered the Mechanical Research Institute. After saying that, the big screen began to constantly change pictures. Soon, Wang Chunyu's picture, as well as the picture of the person that Han War had impersonated, appeared on the big screen. It's these two, catch them. Roger. After the highest order was given, the Skynet staff quickly took action as they began to access all the surveillance cameras throughout the Mechanical Research Institute, looking for where these two people might appear. Not a moment later, they saw the figures of these two people again from the surveillance cameras. How did they know the access code? Watching these two people walk through the complicated maze as if they were in no man's land, they familiarized themselves with the pathway code and opened it time and time again to enter the next area. Many question marks popped up above their heads, could it be that there was a mole? Apply to raise the state of affairs level to the second level, contact the security team immediately now and have them head to the Mechanical Research Institute to surround the perimeter. Capture these two people, they must be captured alive, I want to know where they obtained the coded information from. One order after another was given. At this moment, Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu were still unaware of the impending danger. The entire Mechanical Research Institute was just too big, like a hive maze, and the major areas made them consume a lot of time. In that case, the capsule bomb in my body has also been extracted by you guys using the same method? Then where is the bomb? Where is the bomb? The bomb. Bomb is in. Finished, why didn't I think of this? After the bomb was extracted, it was left in the research room. It's too late to go back and retrieve it now, the time consumed in going back and forth is enough for the security team to react. Muttering to himself, Wang Chunyu gritted his teeth and could only continue walking forward with Han Zhan with a stiff upper lip. Not waiting for them to go far, suddenly the alarm bells rang loudly throughout the Mechanical Research Institute. In an instant, the lights above all the pathways turned an alert red color. The pathways that had originally been opened also began to reclose at this moment, and the thick gates began to fall, completely blocking off each area. Seeing this scene in front of him, Wang Chunyu's face suddenly turned ugly. It's not good, it looks like they've already discovered us. I knew the Skynet mastermind wasn't that easy to fool. Wang Chunyu cursed as he quickened his pace and rushed towards the final destination of their trip. A vertical downward escape shaft. Through this escape well, they would be able to come to the underground of the Mechanical Research Institute and leave from the underground, which was Wang Chunyu's plan from the very beginning. Only, when they arrived at the site of the escape well and looked down, a large number of security robots had been densely assembled below the escape well. They possessed a pure silver metallic luster that was very conspicuous. Wang Chunyu retracted his gaze as he looked behind him at Han Zhan. There's a change in plan, looks like we'll have to change paths. In Wang Chunyu's escape plan, there were a total of three routes prepared. He had really prepared for too long for this rescue. Wang Chunyu hastily discarded other thoughts and continued to focus on running. The security team robots of the participant company were extremely fast, and the distance between the two sides was shrinking at a rate visible to the naked eye. Fortunately, those slowly closing regional access gates gave them the opportunity to distance themselves again. They only saw Wang Chunyu and Han Zhan slip on their knees and managed to pass under the doors, stopping the robots chasing them outside. Why aren't we fighting back? Han Zhan asked with some puzzlement as he looked at the door closing behind him. 
He was now at the sixth rank, and the young man beside him named Wang Chunyu looked like he had at least third rank strength as well. Facing those super alloy robots, it wouldn't take much for them to kill back. But Wang Chunyu didn't even think about it, didn't even look at it, and didn't even have the thought of fighting them, which made Han Zhan strange. It's the rule set by the Skynet brain, as long as one doesn't display the strength of an awakened against the vigilante group, then the state of affairs level will be at the third level. At the third level, the Senate Corporation is limited in the amount of manpower it can deploy. But if one reveals the strength of an awakened, or kills a robot of the vigilante group, then the Skynet brain will reassess and raise the state of affairs level. When it really comes to that time, the sky will be covered with all the super warriors and armored battleships of the Senate Corporation, so there's no way to run, Wang Chunyu explained. He hadn't expected that the highest authority within the Sunshine Company would be given to a Skynet brain. Han War had thought that the Senate Merchant Company was always dominated and controlled by merchants, but it turned out that this was not the case. Seemingly guessing what Han War had in mind, Wang Chunyu went on to explain, the merchants feel that humans tend to favor sensibility not enough rationality, whereas the Skynet brain represents absolute rationality, its judgments can't be wrong, and at least in 99, 99% of things, it's able to make the most correct judgments. Even if someone exploits the rules to drill a hole, there will soon be an inspection team to manually report and make up for the shortcomings. This mode of handling, with the Skynet smart brain as the main focus and the inspector group of the participating merchant company as a supplement, is the most suitable way for merchants that they have constantly worked out. These were all things that Shang Xiangyun told Wang Chunyu, and as he spoke, the surrounding sirens suddenly raised their pitch and became high-pitched. Hearing this sound, Wang Chunyu's face revealed an anxious look, damn it, why is the response speed of the inspection team so fast this time? How long has it been since the manpower report was approved, damn it? Outside the Mechanical Research Institute, in the air, a silver-colored shuttle came cutting through the sky. In these shuttles, heavily armed merchant alien wreck warriors were ready to go. Unlike the super-alloy robots of the vigilante group, these alien skeleton warriors were cutting-edge forces that the merchants had spent a huge amount of money to cultivate. Their body parts would be remodeled with special weapons and materials, and after the remodeling, they would gain strength and abilities beyond normal people. This type of remodeling was similar to the changeling company's alteration, but not exactly the same, going in two different directions. Without having to be instructed, after the alien wreck warriors finished assembling, they acted in unison, coincidentally choosing to break the window and quickly burst into the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. Hold your breath and hold on for another two minutes. Han Zhan's whispering voice rang in his ears. The two of them were now covered by a special camouflage cloth. The two of them who had retraced their steps back to the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute were already surrounded by super alloy robots, as well as the alien skeleton warriors that kept joining in. If they wanted to break out from the encirclement, the difficulty would increase geometrically. This piece of camouflage cloth was carried by Han Zhang, a prop from the 8th war zone. Its function was also very simple, that is, it was able to help with concealment, and the process of concealment could cover up multiple aspects such as body shape, odor, and body temperature. It was most suitable to be used against these robots and alien skeleton warriors that were extremely dependent on high-tech products. However, the camouflage cloth also had a drawback, that is, it could not be moved, and once the camouflage was cast it had to remain in place. Fortunately, although Wang Chunyu and the others couldn't see outside, utilizing his S-class talent of empathic senses, Wang Chunyu was able to see the situation outside through Shang Xiaoyun's perspective. Beside them, a small team of 10 alien wreck warriors had already walked over, only that in the scanning of their vision, it was empty in front of them, with no one in sight. Sector F detected, no anomalies found. The alien skeleton warriors reported to the command center. Suddenly one of them raised his head and looked keenly a hundred meters above his head. What have we got? Visual detectors sensed someone peering this way, exact bearing coordinates. X423, Y611, Z779. All alien wreck warriors in the communication channel quickly approached this coordinate. After hearing the coordinates, the leader of the alien wreck warriors made an immediate decision and shouted into the communicator channel. They quickly left this area and rushed towards the bearing where they had just sensed someone spying on them. Oh no, it's Xiaoyun who's been discovered. Through Shang Xiaoyun's perspective, he saw a team of alien skeleton warriors, including super alloy robots, rushing in his direction. No, I'm going to save her. Wang Chunyu said and lifted the camouflage cloth, about to rush in that direction. Han Zhan didn't stop him. But in the very next second, he suddenly stopped in his tracks, his face showing bitterness. Does it have to be like this? Wang Chunyu muttered as he looked at the air in front of him. Only Han Zhan knew that he should be communicating with Shang Xiaoyun through his S-class talent of empathy. Chunyu, don't come over. If you come over now, I'll detonate it immediately. Shang Xiaoyun pinched a tiny capsule with his electronic tentacles in his empathic state. Capsule bomb. It was Shang Xiaoyun who had secretly left the capsule bomb behind herself after helping Han Zhan take it out and hadn't alerted the others. Xiao Yun. Only after seeing this scene did Wang Chunyu stop in his tracks. Chunyu, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm a merchant. 
I'm sorry that I couldn't be by your side for so many years and brought you so much stress and negativity. I'm sorry you wasted so much energy and youth on me. Actually, I wanted to die a long time ago, Junyu. I'm too tired of living, and I chose to be timid when facing the future. Go on, go escape from here with your idol and help him complete this mission, haven't you always wanted to be a hero? Now the chance has come. Our family, Chunyu, in my heart, you've always been my hero. Go for it, Chunyu. Wang Chunyu listened to Shang Xiaoyun's broken thoughts like he was listening to a dying farewell. The straight line distance between them was no more than 500 meters, but at this point, it was like the distance between life and death. He knelt on the ground, holding his head in agony. At this time, the security team and the alien wreck warriors had already arrived at the target room, pushed open the door and walked in. They heard a cold, mechanically synthesized voice, farewell, my love. There was a loud explosion, accompanied by metal debris and shredded limbs flying in all directions. The capsule bomb, as the senator corporation's means of controlling slaves, its power could not be underestimated, and could even be said to be beyond imagination. The super alloy robots and alien skeleton warriors responsible for the pursuit were cleared out. Han Zhang grabbed Wang Chunyu, who was still kneeling on the ground, and rushed towards the second escape location in the target. The second escape location was a research cabin, and because of the nature of the research, this research cabin was able to lead directly to an external water source, and thus was chosen by Wang Chunyu as the second escape location. When the two of them sped up and arrived here, the newly reinforced super alloy robots and alien skeleton warriors had not arrived. Seeing this scene, their lifted hearts relaxed a little. Cheer up! Shang Xiaoyun used her own life to create this opportunity for us, do you want her efforts to go to waste? No, you don't understand, you won't understand this feeling at all. Xiao Yun is dead. She's dead. I don't understand? Then you think, when I personally told my teacher the way to take death, and then watched him walk step by step towards death, that feeling of being powerless do you think I wouldn't understand? This feeling, it's like killing him with your own hands off. Han Zhang's words caused Wang Chunyu to regain his composure. So, the dead are gone, and it's the ones who survived that should try even harder to live. After Han Zhan finished speaking, he didn't wait for Wang Chunyu to reply and pushed open the door of the research module one step ahead of him. When they pushed open the door and walked in, the scene in front of them made them stop violently. Only to see that inside the research module, a person was sitting there with his eyes closed. When he heard the pod door being opened, he opened his eyes wide. State of affairs level elevated, current state of affairs level, level 2. Casualties to the vigilante group and alien skeleton warriors have occurred, additional manpower is permitted. Hazard assessment of the other party, currently unable to assess, only able to determine that the dangerous target still has a NA-29 capsule bomb in his hands, the explosion killing power is extremely high, recommend dispatching 5-star alien wreckage warriors to suppress it. Skynet Brain gave the latest instruction. 5-star alien skeleton warriors were similar in strength to the building's 5th order spirit fellowship masters, and as the state of affairs rose in rank, more and more eyes were cast on the Mechanical Research Institute. This night was destined to be unsettled. In the sky, an extremely special craft traced across the sky, its crimson tail flame made it look like a rapidly falling red comet. When the smoke cleared, a silhouette slowly walked out of the red comet. The five-star alien wreck warrior, who was also the head of security in this area, Shang Lin. Upon seeing him, the other alien skeleton warriors in charge of surrounding the Mechanical Research Institute all made way. Shang Lin had just received the new alien wreck transformation program today and felt like his body was filled with brand new power. The transformation wasn't completely free, in order to be able to continue with the transformation, he needed to keep earning merits and rewards to pay for it. As soon as he heard that there was a mission over here, he had rushed here as fast as he could. There's no need to even talk about the situation, the brain has already shared it with us, now tell us where the people are. According to our speculation, there should still be one escapee left nowadays, and one capsule bomb is still left to be detonated. Part of the area has had its surveillance destroyed because of the explosion. According to the last surveillance location, the area he entered should be the research capsule in Area B. Immediately head to Area B with me. No, wait, use the astral shuttle function directly. Shang Lin waved his hand, only to see him press a certain button on his arm, and in the next second his entire body transformed into a ball of starlight, quickly merging into the interior of the Mechanical Research Institute. The astral body shuttle function was extremely loaded on the body, and one would normally not use it in normal times. Shang Lin had already given the word, and the other several alien skeleton warriors could only use this astral body shuttling function, which could only be used after being transformed by a special alien skeleton, with a stiff upper lip. Several channels of starlight converged at the same time, coalescing in front of the door of the research module in Area B at an extremely fast speed. Shang Lin coldly examined it, and in his pupil scan, there were indeed traces left on the hatch. Not only that, he also saw a standing figure inside the research pod through his pupil scan. Break the door. With his command, his men took the lead and directly smashed the door open. An image of a scientific researcher in a white coat appeared inside. Assistant Lu? Why are you here? Joke, 
This is a scientific research cabin, if I'm not here, am I in your Senate business company's cage? Hmph. It seems that the people of the fifth war zone don't have such hard bones as imagined. Are you here to argue with me? Sean Lin stopped talking nonsense with him and instead looked around, surveying the room. This assistant Lu in front of him was a Dasha captive, and it was only because he was good at healing and was an expert spirit contractor in healing that the senator company had left him behind to be specially hired as an assistant to assist in the research. Sean Lin didn't quite believe what he said. This room was definitely still hiding someone. The reason why he was so sure was because from the time they realized that the other party had entered this place until the arrival of his own party's personnel, the difference in time was no more than two minutes. In such a short period of time, the other party would definitely not have time to escape or move. Assistant Lu are you sure you want to help him? Don't forget that the other spirit contractors in your 5th district are all still staying inside the prison. Being threatened by Shang Lin, the assistant Lu in front of him suddenly glanced to his right side with a veiled expression, his left hand slowly raised, his finger pointing to the pile of boxes on his right side. On the surface he still said in a very arrogant tone, What the hell are you guys talking about? I have no idea at all, I'm the only one here, please get out. Seeing such a knowledgeable assistant Lu, Shang Lin nodded his head. He signaled his left and right with his eyes, and the barrels of everyone's guns were raised in unison, aiming at the pile of boxes on the right. Right at this moment, someone in the pile of boxes suddenly lifted the hidden camouflage cloth, then violently rushed towards them. In the next second, an intense flash of light caused everyone's eyes to go white, temporarily blinding them. Taking advantage of this gap, the other party had already broken out of the encirclement and ran in another direction. The target has escaped. Assistant Lu, thank you for your cooperation. After greeting the other party unhurriedly, Shang Lin turned around and chased after the target in the direction he had fled. In his opinion, this was nothing more than a game of cat and mouse. The only thing he needed to beware of was that capsule bomb. Wait, capsule bomb? Suddenly, Shang Lin seemed to have sensed something, and he looked violently at his feet. At some point, there were already many densely packed tiny particles sprinkled underneath their feet, and these particles were precisely the ingredients that made up the capsule bomb. When? Why was the other party able to take out the capsule bombs? A loud explosive sound rang out. Shang Lin, Assistant Lu, were all blown out by this explosive shockwave, and the others were even directly blown to smithereens. Damn it! Amidst the rumbling flames, Shang Lin rescued Assistant Lu, who was about to be engulfed in flames, and threw him to the side before his gaze looked ferociously in the direction where the rat had fled. Having been teased repeatedly, he was already completely angry. At this moment, Shang Lin's clothes had already been burned empty, revealing 80% of his bones in a bare state, which were surprisingly all made of special metals. He violently stomped his foot, and his entire body was like a discharged cannonball, shooting in the direction where his eyes were locked. Time traveled back to three minutes ago. When Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu pushed the door into the research module, they saw the person sitting in the research module. The other party opened his eyes and saw them as well. Wang Chunyu subconsciously tried to turn around and run, but Han Zhan reached out and yanked him back. Wang Chunyu was unsure, and saw Han Zhan suddenly step forward and take the initiative to speak, Nine Palace Hot Pot, it tastes good. The person on the opposite side froze for a moment. But soon, all sorts of complex emotions erupted within his eyes, and in the end, he just gave this stranger in front of him a deep look. Not bad indeed. Lu Jingchen nodded and responded. He sat down again. Seeing the scene, Wang Chunyu was a bit puzzled, not knowing what kind of code words these two people were saying. But at least it could be confirmed that this person across from him was not an enemy. Suddenly, Lu Jingchen looked at Wang Chunyu behind Han Zhan again and spoke, I'm the head of the fifth war zone, Lu Jingchen. Wang Chunyu was violently startled, looking up at this unassuming man in front of him. He was actually the head of a major war zone? Yes, I had long heard that the fifth war zone had been taken over and controlled by the Senate Merchant Company in advance after the outbreak of the Deep Blue Doom, and as a stronghold of the Great Xia for the treatment of spirit fellowship masters, their combat tactics were not outstanding. After the end of the chaotic war, the fifth war zone was taken over by the Samsara Corporation and began to recruit this part of the spirit contractors and spirits. The people from the participant company used the lives of the other people in the fifth war zone as a threat to get me to help them with their auxiliary healing work. This was said to Wang Chunyu, but anyone with a discerning eye knew that he was explaining to Han Zhan. Our time is limited, so to make a long story short, we need to escape from here. You guys are talking about the external water source that this research module leads to, right? It could be, but Titan City just recently made waterway changes and has completely moved the end of this passageway to the outside. You guys went through all the trouble of sneaking in, so you shouldn't be doing it just to visit here, right? Lu Jingchuan's news caused both Han Zhan and Wang Chunyu to freeze for a moment. If it was just Wang Chunyu's original plan to flee after rescuing Shang Xiaoyun, he hadn't given it much thought at all. Now after Lu Jingchun reminded him of this, he realized that there was a big problem. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. Wang Chunyu had just opened his mouth when Han Zhan raised his hand to interrupt. Now is not the time to pursue who's right and who's wrong, the pursuers from the Senate Merchant Company outside are almost here, we only have a very short time left, 
We have to come up with a way. Since this one escape location won't work, we'll head to the next one. The main problem now is how to deal with this wave of pursuers. Lu Jingchen bowed his head in deep thought and did not make a sound. Suddenly, Wang Chunyu snapped his head up and voiced his idea. I can be responsible for luring away the pursuers, don't forget that we now have an information gap, they may not know that there are two of us. In the eyes of those dead brains who completely believe in machine calculations, a capsule bomb exploding means that only one person is left. So, as long as I expose myself early, then draw them away and attract heading in the opposite direction. As long as I stall for time, you can reach the third escape location and leave the Mechanical Research Institute. After Wang Chunyu finished speaking, he realized that both Lu Jingchun and Han Zhan looked at him. The method is good, only, in that case, how are you going to escape the pursuit? I naturally have my methods, don't forget that I know quite a lot of things in my head. Wang Chunyu said, pointing a finger at his head. Shang Lin, a five-star alien wreck warrior, pointed his finger at Wang Chunyu's head. In the next second, gushing tongues of fire erupted from Shang Lin's fingertips. It was clearly an extremely lethal flame-tip bullet. As if he had eyes behind his head, Wang Chunyu quickly lowered his head, rolled on the ground on the spot, and then directly rolled into another path on the side. This slippery stinking rat. When Shang Lin saw that he had missed a blow, he let out a low roar of indignation. The internal roads of the Mechanical Research Institute were as complicated as a labyrinth, and even the people of the institute could get lost occasionally, not to mention alien wreck warriors like him who had never been here a few times. Originally, they were two professions that could not be connected, and would not have any intersections. As a result, this Dasha rat called Wang Chunyu in front of him had utilized the advantages of the terrain and rode several times to throw himself off. This kind of feeling was very upsetting. Wang Chunyu felt the flaming spike bullets that flew through his hair. Even though he had dodged very quickly, the scorching air waves still caused a line of his hair to be burnt, and the smell of rotten eggs filled the air. The overall map about the Mechanical Research Institute was being presented in his head in its entirety like a labyrinth that was countless times more complicated. It had taken him five years to memorize all the details on this map. Five years, five years on this day, he thought it would be the day he reunited with his beloved and escaped with his life. He never thought that he would be caught in this life and death chase. I never wanted to be any kind of hero. I'm just a small person who wanted to save my beloved and escape the chaos of the end of the insect plague. But now, my lover is dead. She was killed by you people. Rats? Ha, huh, even if I'm a rat, I'll still bite off a piece of meat from you all. Wang Chunyu muttered to himself, he had already run into a dead end without realizing it, behind him, Shang Lin, who was in hot pursuit, and the new robots of the security group that had been reinforced, had already swarmed over one after another. Run ah, why don't you keep running? Aren't you very capable of running? Behind him, Shang Lin's mocking voice rang out as he came out that this was a dead end. A dead end meant that this person in front of him, couldn't run away. Ha 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 ha, Shang Lin laughed somewhat triumphantly. Suddenly, Wang Chunyu on the opposite side followed suit and laughed even louder than Shang Lin. Shang Lin stopped laughing. I'm going to capture you alive, send you to that group of scientific research maniacs for a living brain slice, dig out who actually betrayed the Senate Merchant Company, and then make both you and that person's life worse than death. The threatening words, unfortunately, could no longer threaten Wang Chunyu. He hung his head low and leaned his back against the wall at the end, panting slightly. That's why I've always felt that all the people in the Senate Merchant Company are idiots. Relying so much on high technology and relying on computational analysis for everything has made you lose the most basic ability to judge conspiracies. Is it true that a capsule bomb must only explode once? Take a look at the map, if you have one, and see who this dead end is actually a burial place for. And, I'll say one more thing. Merit doesn't have to be mine. In my life, I've always bent the rules and not had enough fun. My favorite woman was trapped in an unreachable place, in order to save her I used every means, years of preparation, plotting and calculating dirty tricks to betray my compatriots. But she still died, and I chose to be a hero. Why would I want to be a hero? Laughing, you do not want to ah? When I say no, I'm just lying to you. Shang Xiaoyun, I can finally be a hero. Shang Xiaoyun, I'm coming for you. It was night, and a bright and dazzling golden spark suddenly bloomed in the sky above the entire Titan city. The rumbling explosion collapsed half of the Mechanical Research Institute. It looked like, a prison cell that had been bitten down hard by someone. Super threshold energy fluctuation detected. Explosion analysis, the Mechanical Research Institute primary energy power reserve center has been ignited, generating a serial explosion. Current area head, 5-star alien skeleton warrior Shine Lin has been lost. The state of affairs is upgraded, current level, first level. As the lines appeared on the big screen, the Skynet Center was now operating at high speed, and they had all seriously underestimated the harm that the rat could bring. The Mechanical Research Institute, no, now it should be called, half within mechanical research. Looking up at the dazzling and incomparable flames in the distance, reflected in Han Zhan's eyes, his eyes also reflected the blazing fire. Wang Chunyu. Han War silently whispered his name, congratulations, you're a hero too. After he said this, he stopped stopping and rushed towards the third escape location without looking back. 
Wang Chunyu had bought him enough time, but this way was likewise a double-edged sword, because the commotion made was too great. Although a wave of pursuers had been purged, the Skynet brain must have raised the risk level of this place once again, so that next time, it might not just be five-star alien skeleton warriors that came. At that time, if one wanted to escape from this place again, it would be extremely difficult. The third escape location was the garbage warehouse of the Mechanical Research Institute. Inside, all of them were piled up with all kinds of research garbage, and every night at a fixed time period, a garbage cleanup discharge would be conducted. This was also his chance to escape from here. As soon as Han Zhan entered the garbage warehouse, he was shocked by the densely packed garbage scene in front of him. It was hard to imagine that just a mechanical research institute would be able to create and produce so much garbage in a day's time. He continued to walk inside, and in the mountain of garbage, he saw severed limbs and arms belonging to human beings, with half of their palms exposed and their middle fingers erected. On the other side of the mountain of garbage, there were a few severed heads, and they were the same young men who had been escorted here at the same time as Han Zhan and the others, the ones who had cursed at Han Zhan. Their bodies had gone to who knows where, and their heads had been split open, with all sorts of red and white things flowing and mixing, making the entire air filled with a strong smell of blood. There were many more such images. The cruelty and insanity of the Senate Merchant Company was visible in this place. Han Zhan frowned as he continued to walk towards the interior, the fixed time for the garbage discharge was 1 a.m. M. Based on those messages that Shang Xiaoyun transmitted to him in his brain, he quickened his pace. Just then, he suddenly sensed a hint of something strange. There was a feeling of being secretly spied on. Someone? Han Zhan suddenly stopped in his tracks. As a martial artist who was stronger than an ordinary person, he possessed an extremely sharp six senses. Once a gaze lingered on him for more than three seconds, he would be able to detect it. This feeling of being sized up and gazed it could not be wrong. Just as Han Zhan stopped walking, that prying feeling immediately disappeared as well. He didn't believe it and resumed walking forward again, and before he took two steps, that prying feeling fell back onto his body. Han Zhan closed his eyes and carefully recalled the vague direction when the peeping sensation appeared just now, he violently opened his eyes and turned around to rush towards a garbage heap. The trash heap in front of him had been piled up into a small mountain, which was not conspicuous in the vast number of trash mountains. When Han Zhan turned over the pile of garbage, he saw a strange iron lump. Robot? Han War warned carefully, see this iron pimple robot has never moved, as if completely scrapped. He lifted the entire thing out of the mountain of garbage. It was indeed a small robot without a doubt. Only this robot was very tattered, with two crude arms and two legs that were only connected with worn-out hydraulic connecting rods, and a square rounded head that only barely showed the robot's appearance. It was only as tall as Han Zhan's calf, and it was the first time Han Zhan had seen such a crude robot. Stop pretending and say it, who the hell are you? Han Zhan looked at the small robot in front of him and said in a bad tone. The little robot didn't make any movement. Still pretending? Which robot have you seen with its eyes closed? Scrapped robots have their eyes open. Upon hearing this, the little robot opened its eyes in a submissive manner. Really? An electronic synthesized voice sounded, a little hoarse and silky, apparently its vocal mechanism had also rusted. False. Han Zhan answered honestly. Who would be fine with paying attention to whether a robot closed its eyes or not? Wouldn't that be idle? Little robot. Now you can tell me who you really are. Han Zhan opened his mouth again and asked. Buling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The little robot replied very mechanically. I know you're a robot, but you shouldn't belong to the Senator Corporation, at least not right now. Judging by these old rusty parts on you, you've been here for at least a hundred years. Only the mechanical parts of the Samson Corporation could be only rotten and still work for a hundred years. At this time, it must be complimented that this group of scientific lunatics still had a bit of craftsmanship. Buling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The little robot mechanically repeated this sentence as if it only knew this one sentence. Han Zhan's face darkened. He knew that this was the other party retaliating against him but it was certain that this robot wouldn't be an enemy. The conversation just now was just a test, as long as the robot acted hostile or contacted the Skynet brain to pass on the news that he was in the garbage bin. Then by now, there should have been pursuers arriving outside the garbage silo. But there weren't. Tell you what, make a deal, you give me a frank explanation, I'll consider it and take you out of here. Han Zhan put forward his conditions. Dueling, Bulong. And then I'll give you a body in exchange for the best materials. Really? The little robot tilted its head and asked. This time it's true. Han Zhan replied with great certainty. Sure enough, for this kind of robot, improving the appearance and performance of the shell had an irresistible appeal. The inside of a novel is true. Han Zhan and the little robot quickly reached an agreement, and the little robot stopped pretending to be naive, revealing its rather humanized side, only to see it sit down cross-legged like a human, and wait for the arrival of 1 a.m. M. Together with Han War. Who the hell are you? Who am I? I don't know who I am either. I've been in this garbage bin since I woke up then why don't you get out? Get out? You mean get out of here? But what's the point of going out after I'm alone? 
I'm a robot, it's not like I need to eat, drink, or have any entertainment, I just need to stay here. Such an answer made Han Zhan not know how to respond well for a while. A hundred years of loneliness, if it was a human being, he must have been unable to stand it long ago. He nodded and subconsciously asked again, then do you have a name, I can. My name is October. The little robot snatched up the question and answered quickly. Why do you have a name? Han War seemed to have that little loss. Because there's always Shavi who likes to give people all sorts of strange names, the little robot paused and continued, the system time when I awakened showed that it was October, so my name is October. Having been spatted by the little robot, Han War snorted. So, hello, October. Hello, spam. Clunk. Where they were sitting, the garbage bin door was opened, the little robot's words came to an abrupt end, and the two of them washed down. Mechanical Institute, Successful Escape. City of Titans, Streets. I must explain that when I said trash earlier, I wasn't shouting at you. The little robot October walked behind Han War and spoke, what I originally wanted to say was, the garbage bin door will be opening soon. Then why do you still look so upset? I just don't want to talk. Han War replied sullenly. He indeed just didn't want to talk. Just a little bit short, Han Zhan was about to become the first sixth rank spirit contractor to be buried alive in a garbage heap, which made people feel fearful just thinking about it. After climbing out with great difficulty, his body was covered in the smell of being pickled and flavored, making him feel that life was boring. After walking for a long time and waiting for the smell to dissipate slightly, Han Zhan raised his head to look at the sky before speaking. We have to go get a Skynet chip, otherwise, Titan City's Skynet defense system will still lock onto me very quickly. You mean this kind of chip? October stretched out his mechanical arm, pinching a shiny object on his pincer-like arm, which was clearly the Skynet chip that Han Zhan wanted. How did you get this kind of thing? Han Zhan reached out and took the chip, asking with some curiosity. The Skynet chip was an important tool used by the Senator Technology to mark its own people and maintain order and stability in the city, and in layman's terms, you could call it a dog chain. Each Skynet chip corresponded to a resident of Titan City, and this method was very effective in preventing enemy infiltration. This kind of stuff, you can find it everywhere in the garbage bin, and since it's shiny, I collected a little bit of it by hand. I have a lot more if you want. October said, both of its mechanical claws spread out toward Han Zhan at the same time, and sure enough, there was a bunch of Skynet chips in its hands, a dozen or so at a rough estimate. Rather, I had forgotten about this one. The crazy family that was able to experiment on even merchant bloodlines as test subjects, how could there be fewer ordinary human corpses in a place like that? These Skynet chips wouldn't be specially recycled, they would just be directly logged off after death, and there was no significance in utilizing them twice. I have activated this Skynet chip through the background, now you can use it normally. A question mark appeared on Han Zhan's head. To be able to activate it so casually, he thought that messing with the chip would be a big problem, but he didn't think that it would be solved in three or two sentences. The next step was to implant the chip. Injecting the activated Skynet chip into the brain area, it would automatically integrate into the neural network, connecting the neuron information, and at the same time, Han Zhan also obtained the relevant information of the original host, completing the activation. Only, after completing the activation, Han Zhan's mouth couldn't stop twitching. Human body manifests twitching corners of the mouth, 60% possibility of chip incompatibility, 33% possibility of epilepsy, 17% possibility of other unknowns. Activate emergency program, physical therapy, knockout. October's hands were raised high, about to give Han Zhan a blow to the back of his head. It was dodged by Han Zhan's panic dodging. What the hell are you up to? You backslider. Han Zhan looked at the little robot that dared to devour its master and raised his hand to block its painless hammer blow. Everything is detected as normal, cancel the emergency program. October stopped talking to herself again. Why isn't this robot's brain working too well? Han Zhan thought, and then thought of the real reason why the corners of his mouth twitched just now, and couldn't help but almost twitch once more. It was because this Skynet chip that he had incorporated into his activation was originally owned by a man named Bob, who was 82 years old and still a black man. Can I change the chip? Han Zhan opened his mouth and asked. Yes, but the original chip needs to be removed first, the chip is currently integrated into the brain's neural network, and the probability of forcibly removing it and turning it into an idiot without brain surgery is 99. 9999%. For decimal places, you're quite strict. Hearing October's words, Han Zhang temporarily gave up the idea of removing the chip. Forget it, let's just leave it at that, although it was a bit strange, but in the city of Titans, within the group of lunatics who advocated replacing prosthetic limbs and pursuing mechanical ascension, he shouldn't be considered the strangest. Han Zhang glanced down at his right arm, where there was a light blue stripe that looked like it was tattooed from his skin. This was actually an extension of the Skynet chip, and through the extension one could network as well as gain more handy functions, for example. Han Zhan spread out his right hand, and a translucent interface appeared in his palm. City of Titan's ordinary resident, Bob. Gender, male. Credit rating, excellent. Wealth value, 50, 000 Titan coins. There were also some more detailed features, so I won't go into them all. 
Han Zhang slightly scared his tongue, the Senate Merchants Company was quite principled in their work, although they used people as experimental materials, but at least after so many years, they didn't even bother touching people's wealth. I'll kill you, but I don't want your money, really principled. With Bob's Skynet chip, Han Zhan better summarized and sorted out all the information that Shang Xiaoyun's consciousness had conducted over before. Because it was a random transmission, the purpose of which was just to make Han War's brain domain faint from not being able to handle such a huge amount of information, the information was all over the place, and there were all sorts of things. Information like the city defense layout of Titan City and the design drawings of the ultra-strategic weapons research City of Annihilation belonged to the SSS grade and needed to be specially screened out. Things like the City of Titan's cultural history, customs, and knowledge of prosthetics belonged to A-rank information, helping Han War to better disguise himself. Cold gossips that were not known to be true or false, the sordid histories of business executives, and the locations and prices of certain special entertainment venues definitely belonged to Class D information, and Han War would not even bother to look at them. After sorting out all the information and categorizing it, the bloated feeling in his head finally eased completely. Han Zhan first utilized the deranked information and went to a nearby bathing center to clean up all the filth on his body, change his clothes again, and spend 10,000 titanic coins. Only then did he take October with him to the most famous Dawn Long Street in Titan City. In the Dawn Long Street, there were all sorts of prosthetic modification services, as well as prosthetic maintenance and prosthetic upgrades, as well as some other programs. For example, robot remodeling could also be done here. Of course, Han Zhan didn't choose to go to this place in order to fulfill the conditions he promised October. He had another purpose for traveling to Dawn Street, and that was to completely prepare himself for his goal-plundering energy cubes. Having just arrived at Dawn Street, Han Zhan was frequently being looked back at, and with the addition of a small robot that was broken and leaking motor oil, he realized with a jolt of shock that he had actually and truly become the strangest person in the entire Dawn Street. Ahead, two people dressed as landlubbers and hooligans walked over. One of them, their right arm was replaced with a solid silver bazooka. The other one was one-eyed, with a scarlet electronic glow coming from one eye. Hey kid, are you a titan? The other clasped his arms and scowled suspiciously. How come there's not a single spot on your entire body that's been modified with prosthetics? Poof. Han Zhan sneered. Who says there isn't? Mine is wrapped around my waist. Hearing Han Zhan's words, the two street skaters ate a pound. What kind of tiger and wolf words were these? Everyone is too, but you're wood? You're really a fierce man, are you still happy like this? One I asked with respect and some curiosity. Han War glanced at him disdainfully, returning what he had just said. Are you a titan? All prosthetically modified, dare you be a little more daring? Open your head and think about it, put realistic sensors on the prosthetic limbs, even the hands can be eliminated without using them, convenient, hygienic and healthy. The two street skaters were shocked. Ignoring these two winded guys, Han Zhan took the little robot October and walked towards the Dawn Street again. There were a lot of stores within the Dawn Street, a wide array of them, most of which were technology-oriented, which was in line with the overall preference of the people of Titan City, under the banner of the Senator Corporation. Han Zhan picked a store at random and replaced the old and damaged parts for the little robot. The store owner was an old grandfather with gray hair, he wore coffee-colored presbyopia glasses, and the old man pulled out a monocle from his pocket and clipped it to his right eye. This robot of yours, the parts on it are pretty worn out, many of them are crafted centuries ago. Tisk, look at this gear, it should be one of the simple gears that was pushed for release by the Senator Corporation in the last century, and then abandoned for reasons of adaptability. There is also this hydraulic lever, this is still a subsidiary of the Xinxiang Company, don't you and technology production, don't you and technology closed down or closed down for more than 200 years. The owner of the store is a bit like a family treasure, he primed almost, came to say, you this robot is not from the garbage heap, right? Your old man has a vision, really? Han Zhang thought in his heart. But well, the overall assembly method is very old-fashioned, looks like the work of a connoisseur, great, great ah. This wiring, this detailing, it takes a deep mechanical understanding to be able to maximize the power of these worn-out old things, not simple, not simple. The shopkeeper had sked again while replacing the parts. He looked up at Han Zhan. Han Zhan hurriedly denied, it wasn't me, I just picked it up, it wasn't assembled by me. Of course I know it wasn't you. The old shopkeeper rolled his eyes, you don't even have hair on your mouth, how can you still have this ability? I just think that your kid is really lucky. More than an hour later, the old shopkeeper wiped the sweat from his forehead and put down the tools in his hands. Alright, the parts have all been replaced with brand new ones, are you really not going to replace this tin shell with another one, I have the most up-to-date ones here, priced at 30 W Titan coins. No need for that one, I love this retro style. Han Zhan waved his hand back and forth, refusing without hesitation. Then forget it. Total charge, 1 W 2 Titans. After the old shopkeeper finished speaking, a payment interface appeared on his hand. Han War extended his hand and the two shook hands skillfully. The payment was completed. Eh? Looking at Han Zhan's departing figure, the old shopkeeper was suddenly a bit confused, he rubbed his eyes again and said blankly, strange thing, did I blink my eyes? 
Why did the photo show an old black man when I was prompted to collect the money successfully just now? MDZZ, the Skynet system is bugged again. Skynet Center. Densely packed information meta symbols flashed from the screen, countless information was being processed at the same time, this was the big manager of the Senate merchant company, the Skynet brain. Underneath, thousands of professional analysts were helping Skynet with manual screening and information analysis, assisting it in its work. Just two hours ago, no one noticed that a strange string of characters flashed across the screen at an extremely fast speed. It seemed to be a string of numbers consisting of a middle finger. Regarding the matter of the Mechanical Research Institute, it has caused an extremely bad impact, the leaders of the company's upper echelons have cast their concern, and they have signaled that they can awaken the Skynet thinking brain at the appropriate time to carry out a fine-grained investigation of the entire Titan city. The reason why I say this is because the main purpose of the Skynet brain being researched by the Senator Corporation was to be used for future derivations regarding mechanical ascension. So most of the time, it only used a mere 1% of its arithmetic power to support the city and other aspects. Waking up the Skynet brain meant full power mode, and only in some special cases, with authorization, could it be woken up. Did the top agree? The investigator in charge of the Mechanical Research Institute incident asked with an excited face. Because of this mess, he had been so busy that he had worked overtime for three consecutive days without any extra pay. Not only no, if the investigation didn't produce results, or if the leaders weren't satisfied after the results were reported, they might have to deduct their performance. Just thinking about this, his head was two big heads. Not yet. His colleague looked at him sympathetically, then shook his head, only one leader agrees, the other leaders feel that it's a small matter. This is still a small matter? This is still a small matter. A five-star alien wreckage warrior was killed, hundreds of alien wreckage warriors and thousands of super alloy robots were damaged, half of the Mechanical Research Institute was blown up, and the entire population of Titan City saw the fireworks in the sky. And that's a small thing? Yes, you know, to them, no, or in other words, to the entire Senator Corporation, anything other than a mechanical ascension is trivial. This was true. The investigator dropped into a disheveled position and collapsed into his workstation with a lifeless look on his face. However, I've gotten you a list of slaves who have entered the Mechanical Institute, and there may be clues in there that you want. Also, we investigated that there is a person named Wang Chunyu inside this slave, the one who ended up blowing up the Mechanical Research Institute's primordial energy power reserve center, and had once been in a relationship with a certain daughter of a merchant. This information is all here. Han War took the refreshed little robot October and walked down Dawn Street. There were currently two W7 Titan coins left on his body, and with such a sum of money, it seemed that it was only enough to buy a small pistol with decent performance. It had never been envisioned that one day, Han War would be worried about money. Just as he was thinking about how he was going to make money, all of a sudden, a woman came walking towards him. It was a young woman with a beautiful appearance. On her body, she carried a certain mature flavor all her own. Her features were three-dimensional, the corners of her mouth held a smile, and her autumn water shear pupils were filled with water light. She was about 175 centimeters tall, with a pair of long legs comparable to a model, wearing a lazy and sexy blue sweater on top, outlining a slender waist and bulging breasts, wearing black fishing net stockings on her lower body, and overall looking sensual and dusty. Little handsome, come over to play alone? When she opened her mouth, it was a magnetic and nice female voice. The person's looks are not bad, the body is okay, it's just that the person is not honest enough. I look like this now, and you call me handsome? What aesthetic? Han Zhan did not intend to deal with dishonest people, and he was just about to turn around and leave when he was suddenly hit by the other party with a ball that knocked him off his feet. 5,000 Titans. Han War turned his face with an excited expression and asked, You're giving it to me? It's not impossible. Thank you all for your rewards, monthly votes, and recommendations. Giggle, you're such a funny guy. The woman on the opposite side laughed softly a few times. Really, I also think I'm interesting. Han War nodded in agreement. My name is Jody, I live here, interested in going up and sitting? Just to sit? It could also be doing. Judy, as an unapologetic old CG, said dirty jokes without changing her face. Han Zhan had no interest in being a fellow traveler with another strange man, and he was just about to turn around and leave. Suddenly, October, the little robot who had been ignored for so long on the side, took a step and walked straight toward the upstairs of the small alleyway on Don Street. Buling, Bulong, I'm a robot. The mechanized voice resounded clearly throughout the building. Han Zhan and Jody looked at each other, and Han Zhan could only follow helplessly. Inside the streets of Dawn, there were many aborigines like this, and because of the inches of land, the houses in Titan City were built very high. Jody's residence was on the 27th floor, a very simple and narrow hotel-style apartment. The inside of the room was cleaned up very well, not quite the same as the inherent impression in Han Zhan's memory. There was also a faint scent of warmth in the air, the unique body odor of a mature woman, which made people smell a bit mesmerized. Something to drink? Judy entertained with a light smile. Guests are welcome. Then let's have some spirit boy. 
Spirit Boy was a drink that had become popular in Titan City decades ago, and it seemed to have some specially developed ingredients added to it, so that when people drank it, they could become very spirited, but of course, if they drank too much of it, they could also become very nervous. Judy only took two very small wine goblets, it seemed that she had no intention of becoming very nervous. Pouring the light blue color of the drink, Han Zhan took a sip curiously, the entrance was slightly sweet and a bit acidic, and with just one sip, the fatigue he had felt in the past few hours seemed to have been swept away. Han War drank it with a light in his eyes. It seems to be your first time on the streets of dawn, I haven't seen you before. Judy propped her head up and spoke to Han War. Her high heels hooked Han War's pants leg, and there was a charming magnetism in her eyes. I haven't seen you either, Emma's. Judy, that's normal. Hanjan put down his wine goblet and rubbed it on the wall of the glass, my workplace is on the south side of Kaibri Street, responsible for the dismantling and recycling of robots, and places like Dong Long Street rarely come, Hanjan said casually. Colorberry Street was a remote street in Titan City, and those who didn't live here year-round might not have heard of it at all. Judy picked up her wine goblet, her thin red lips taking a slight sip along the wall of the cup, and after listening to Hanjan's words, she pressed her slender left thigh onto her right leg, changing her sitting position. How about we play a game? Each person asks the other a question, no lying, no non-answers, and no irrelevant content. Otherwise, one drink, and vice versa for the other. Great. Han Zhan agreed with alacrity. Judy was the first to speak. What's your name? Bob. Han War replied without changing his face. Are you really a young lady? That's a rude question to ask. Judy gave him a flirtatious white look, but didn't get angry. What, don't I look like one? You haven't answered my question. Yes, I am. Judy said, leaning her body over, her fragrance spit spraying on Han's face. My turn, what are you doing on Don Street? Replacing old parts for October, oh, for my robot. Speaking of October, the little robot had burrowed inside the room since entering here, not knowing what it was doing. Seemingly hearing Han Zhan calling his name, a small figure suddenly walked out from inside the room. On its head, it was topped with a lavender lace hood, half in the front and half in the back. Put. Han Zhan was drinking water, and when he saw the scene, he almost choked himself to death with a mouthful of water. This pitiful little robot, what the hell was it doing? Without waiting for Han Zhan to have a fit, October had already turned around and returned to the bedroom again, and Jody swept him away calmly. I can see that your robot parts replacement was successful. It's not usually like this. Han Zhan wasn't too sure to give himself a defense, and in return, Judy had a look that said I believe you, so she could only give up. For the first time in his life, his wind rating was jeopardized, Han War hastily changed the topic and asked his question, I'm a bit short of money, is there anywhere I can earn more Titan coins? Go to the Mechanical Research Institute as an experiment, go as a duck, and go to Rob but only if you're not discovered by the Vigilante Group and Skynet. The three answers that Judy gave were one more unreliable than the other. Looking at the eyes Han Zhan cast over, Judy helplessly spread her hands, come on, I'm just a lady, if I know how to make money, why don't I go and make it? You have a point, I'm speechless. It's been a pleasure talking to you, 3000 titans at a discounted price, sure you don't want to think about it? Judy asked as she drained her drink from the goblet. No consideration. I'm a clean man. Han Zhan categorically refused. Just as he finished speaking, the little robot October once again walked out from inside Judy's bedroom, this time with a pair of chaps replaced on its head. Judy laughed softly, I can see that mister. Bob is indeed very clean, it's your little robot that might have some other ideas. October. Han War gave a low gulp, and the little robot bumbled over. Han War was just about to press its head to control it when October suddenly raised her hand and showed him something in a showy manner. It was a roll of film-like stuff that was very old and looked dated. The reason October had to come up was because of this thing? Han Zhan thought in his mind, and before he could say anything, October had already opened her mouth and swallowed that roll of film. What is that film roll? Han War asked Judy with some curiosity. Judy shook her head. I don't know, this is just the house I rented, this house is an old house in Titan City, it should be at least a few hundred years old. Hundreds of years old? Wouldn't that be a dangerous house? Han Zhan spat in his heart, and at this time, from inside October's body, a strange rattling suddenly began to emanate. It was a kind of sound, as if gears were turning, and with the sound of turning, the little robot emitted a different sound. It was a slightly older male voice. I am old. Aging makes me feel like all of my bodily functions are fading. Why, humans can't fight the years. Why? Immediately afterward, a ragged gasp came from the loudspeaker. A woman's gasp. The gasps were interspersed with agonizing moans, as if the owner of the voice was enduring great torment. Han War and Judy looked at each other once again. Good lord, I'm all ready to hear some secret story, and you're giving me this, aren't you? Good good good. The old man was old in heart, and Han Zhan and Judy listened hard like this for almost half an hour. The sound of gears turning stopped, October humanely burped, it patted its stomach. And it was gone? Looks like Mr. Bob's little robot has quite a few more secrets in it. Judy pursed her lips slightly, her wonderful eyes bright. 
She lowered her body, and her deep mountains came to her face, looking at Han War subconsciously tactically leaning back. A thousand titans, Mr. Bob, am I not even worth a thousand titans? Judy bit her lips lightly, with a watering, I see you expression. Han War hesitated. No, he didn't hesitate, and just as he was about to open his mouth to answer, suddenly the door of the apartment was roughly tapped on. Open the door. Open the door for me, you bitch. I heard it all, half an hour, half an hour. You bitch. Don't open the door, right, if you don't open the door, I'll smash the door, I'd like to see, which little white boy dares to touch my woman. Outside the door, the sound of clanging and smashing resounded. This old brother actually eavesdropped right outside the door for half an hour? What absolute good man. Han John sighed in his heart. Then he looked across the room at Jody, who still maintained her smile and didn't change her face. M.S. Judy, those in your line of work should understand better that whoring for nothing is not a good habit. Han John said and raised a finger, 10,000 titans. I don't have that much money. Judy lowered her head and fiddled with her fingers. We're all raw and cooked anyway. Before Judy could finish her words, the door was slammed open. A middle-aged man came in aggressively. Well, are you that little white boy? Judy you bitch, labor has spent money to raise you for so many years, and you say you won't do it, where is such a good thing? Today, I'm going to beat you to death in front of you, you little white boy. Without saying a word, he swung his fist toward Han John's face. Fighting was allowed in the city of Titans, as long as you didn't damage public property, cause panic, cause adverse effects, or use lethal weapons. The middle-aged man looked to be at least 160 pounds in size, using lanky wasn't quite appropriate, but at least it stood up to the word fat. When he rushed towards Han Zhan, the entire floor was slightly shaken by his stomping. Judy, the scourge of a woman, had already slipped inside her bedroom, and Han Zhan watched as the opposite fist came crashing down on his face. Then what's the point of being polite? The man in charge of the night shift suddenly looked at the computer screen and scared. A co-worker eating a snack on the side saw him like this and curiously came over and asked, What are you looking at? Oh, nothing, there's a commoner brawl on Dawn Street. Ordinary people fighting? What's there to see then? He gave a cut and was going to withdraw his gaze. Ordinary people brawling, even the security team didn't need to be mobilized, as long as no one was killed, basically there wouldn't be any problems. The two people who fought, according to the Skynet chip, one is called Zhang Lifu, 32 years old, and one is called Bob, 82 years old. That Bob is pitiful. Pitiful? Judging from the current feedback from the Skynet chip, the health values of the two people, Zhang Lifu was about to be beaten into shock by Bob. The co-worker next to him was dumbfounded as he listened, crap, what's the situation? What did I see? It's starting to get fierce, I see 82-year-old Bob hitting Lifu? Tisk, black people are really still fierce, at 82 years old, they can still press others to fight, can't afford to mess with them. They couldn't see the real-time picture at the Skynet Center, and can only rely on the data transmitted back from the Skynet chip, and then add some of their own brainstorming. In the image they brainstormed, an old black man with white hair was riding on top of a 32-year-old man, continuously throwing ordinary punches. Such an image made the two of them uncharacteristically wince. In fact, it was not far off. Come on out, MS. Judy. I've solved your problem for you as payment for a drink of spirit boy. Han John looked at Zhang Lifu, who was lying there on the floor, in a coma, as he stood up, walked to the bedroom door, and knocked on it. Judy didn't open the door. The little robot October hummed and hawed and walked over, raised its brand new mechanical arm, and a key pinched in its hand at some unknown time, inserted it into the door lock, and with a snap, the door was opened. Judy looked at Han Zhuo standing in the doorway with a stunned expression. M.S. Judy, can you tell me now, what's going on? You went out on the street to find a man, just to try to trick the other person into coming here and then help you carry a beating? Judy didn't open her mouth to speak, looking like she was at the mercy of the king. Unexpectedly, Han War did not step into the bedroom. He threw the key to the bedroom door onto Judy's bed and then turned away without looking back. M.S. Judy, remember, you owe me a meal. Judy watched incredulously as Han War left through the bedroom door, she had been prepared to pay her reward in kind. The gentleman named Bob seemed unexpectedly decent. You're a good man, mister. Bob. Judy, barefoot, walked quickly to the window opening, her long, white, full legs, bright and inviting in the light. Within moments, she saw that Bob led his little robot out of this side of the building, rejoined the throngs of people on Dawn Street, and then slowly walked away and disappeared. Sorry. Why didn't you go in just now? According to my system's observation, your physiological index has soared to 208, seven times higher than usual. In your human words, it should be, in heat. Animals in heat want a mate, and mating is reproducing offspring. So why would you actively resist this instinctive behavior? The little robot October followed behind Han Zhan with some curiosity. That's not called rutting, that's called lust. Han Zhan corrected, it's normal to have lust, Judy is a tantalizingly beautiful thing. However, that's not what I intend to do. Controlling one's lust is what makes a successful person. Besides, I've already been paid. He said looking over to October, from the moment he first started, he always felt that something was wrong, 
and now he finally realized what the problem was. On the small robot October's mechanical arm, unexpectedly, he didn't know when, there was an extra light blue stripe. This stripe, and the one on Han Zhan's arm, were almost exactly the same. What did this prove? This proved that little robot October, it actually possessed the handy function of a resident of Titan City as well. That's okay? Is it because of swallowing that film? Han Zhan thought in his heart. He wasn't too sure. Just as Jody had said, there seemed to be a not-so-small secret in this little robot that just couldn't be unraveled for a while now. But at least, it had been unraveled a little now. You have the identity of a resident of Titan City now? Han Zhan asked October. October shook her head, I don't know. No? Light blue lines have appeared on your arm, you can already activate the convenience system, and you still don't have the aboriginal identity? Han Zhan was puzzled. It's fine, let's find a store and buy something to try and we'll know. Han Zhan brought October with him and continued walking down the Long Dawn Street. When they passed a convenience supermarket, they went in and bought a bottle of mineral water. I installed affinity payment on its arm, so you can just scan it directly. Han Zhan pointed to the electronic lines on the arm of the little robot and said. The salesman was also knowledgeable and didn't say much, directly completing the payment transaction with the little robot. Looking at their backs as they left, the sales clerk swept a glance at the name of the person who paid with some surprise, Business CX? How is this name so familiar? Quickly look at how much wealth value is left after you complete the payment. After leaving the supermarket, Han Zhan urged with some impatience. He was now like opening a blind box lottery, looking forward to the feeling of becoming rich overnight one day. When it heard Han Zhan's inquiry in October, it seemed to be on the spot for a moment before it began to mechanically say, my current wealth value balance is, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. After saying 11 zeros, it stopped. Han Zhan, who was walking in front of it, also stopped. Rating less? He was a bit disbelieving, thinking that there was something wrong with his ears. It can't be that the language system is stuck, can it? No, I have to go and settle the score with that old man who changed the parts. This isn't even out of warranty yet. The language system is normal. October replied. So there really is a 1 followed by 11 zeros? How much was that? 100 billion titans. As long as Han Zhan wanted to right now, he could buy an entire civilian annihilator ship at full price and go racing through the star ocean with those merchant dudes. This is outrageous. Inside the little robot's account, why was there so much money? Could it be that it swallowed that film? That old man, it couldn't be some unimaginably big person, right? Han Zhan muttered to himself. However, in that case, the money would be there. With money, Han Zhan could also start to let go of his hands and go on a purchasing spree in the market. Soldiers were precious and quick. It was important to get the energy square tiles before the Senate Merchant Company had a chance to react, and then get out of here. Steinet Center, Main Control Room. The results of the investigation about the Mechanical Research Institute hadn't come out yet, and the higher-ups were very angry, deducting the investigator in charge of this matter from all of his performance for that month. Not only that, but they also sent out the direct line of merchants from the Senate Merchant Company to intervene in this incident. Not all merchants are brainless mechanical madness, there are always a few business-minded madness, they sniff out this matter inside, unusual place. It's been investigated, that Wang Chunyu, who was previously a guardian of Dixia, fell in love with Shang Xiaoyun of the merchants and then concluded a contract. Shang Xiaoyun was later caught back in the city of Titans, and was used as a mechanical ascension no. 289 experimental material for an ascension experiment. After the experiment failed, she didn't die completely, so she was placed in the Mechanical Research Institute's nutrient tank for subsequent observation and research. According to the analysis of the experimental data report at the time, during the process of Shang Xiaoyun's mechanical ascension, the degree of completion of her fit with the terminal was 56%, which was higher than half, and it was likely that she had a partial fusion with the terminal, and glimpsed the merchant's secret secrets. This report was exhaustively written and analyzed. Merchant Oker Hyun, a direct descendant of the merchant, flipped through this report, pondering. Behind him, were several investigative commissioners in charge of the entire incident, who carefully followed behind, not daring to utter a single breath. What a joke, this was Shang Oker Xian, the next hand-picked successor of the merchants, the real direct line of direct lineage, I didn't expect that this matter would have alarmed this big brother. Anything related to Dixia cannot be taken lightly. I'm not my foolish, love-brained waste of a sister. Shana Chixian opened his mouth and the people behind him immediately nodded and responded. Has the Mechanical Research Institute's surveillance not been repaired yet? Since Shang Xiaoyun and Wang Chunyu were lovers and contractors, then Wang Chunyu's motive must be to save Shang Xiaoyun. But then, why wasn't Shang Xiaoyun the one who escaped with him? Who was he protecting? Or is it that who was more important than Shang Xiaoyun, than Shang Xiaoyun? Shana Chixian raised his fingers and gently tapped on the desktop, his thoughts turning so fast that the others hadn't quite caught up. No, it's not right. Logically incorrect. Wang Chunyu had already met with Shang Xiaoyun, and as a result, Shang Xiaoyun did not leave the research lab, 
Wang Chunyu left with another person, and according to the feedback reports from the alien wreck warriors and super alloy robots at the scene, both people had already been killed and ambushed. However, there has never been anyone's reasoning that two capsule bombs exploding means two people were ambushed. Because the entire mechanical research institute at that time, there were a total of three people. Sean Okershin's words gave the investigators who only knew about scientific research a feeling of sudden realization. The proposal that was applied for last time, to awaken the Skynet intelligence brain for an in-depth screening, has it not been approved yet? No, everyone other than you voted against it. This group of idiots. Sean Okershin cursed in anger. The others lowered their heads as if they hadn't heard. Right at this moment, the Skynet brain suddenly ticked. What's going on? The staff at the scene instantly tensed up, the Skynet brain alarming the police, always only big things happened. Right now, the merchant's future helmsman, Shang Okarin, was still here, it was like a leader inspecting his work when suddenly his instruments malfunctioned, panic was inevitable. I'm Shang Okershin, tell me what's going on. Shang Okershin said to the large screen in front of him. Special personnel detected, personnel confirmation in progress, confirmation complete. Subject, Shang Okershin, identity level, highest, usage privileges unlocked. Starting to summarize the cause of the alarm. The Skynet brain finished talking to itself and after another moment, its voice sounded again. The cause of this anomaly report has been collated, your wife, Mrs. 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 Ancestor, just bought a bottle of mineral water. It wasn't just Sean Nachixian, those staff members present, one by one, were also dumbfounded. NDZZ, this crappy Skynet brain won't bug out again. A staff member muttered in a low voice. Work number 9527, I don't have a bug, the brain suddenly responded by name. That employee silently removed his work badge and stuffed it inside his pants pocket. This Skynet brain is sometimes like this, you should be able to understand, it handles billions of things every day, and it only puts out 1% of its arithmetic power, occasionally it will have a bug, we. The Skynet center staff was still explaining to Shang Achixian. Inside Shang Achrexian's head, he had already projected who his Mrs. Mrs. Ancestor was. It was the founder of the Senate Merchant Company, the old ancestor of the merchants, Shang Siwe. Shang Siwe. Upon hearing this name, the entire Skynet center went silent. Everyone subconsciously raised their heads and looked at Shang Akrexian in the center of the field, thinking that he had said it wrong. How long had Shang Jianyue been dead? Even the ashes were long gone. You're telling me he's actually alive and bought a bottle of mineral water? MDZZ, Skynet brain is buggy again. Now, not just one analyst flashed this thought in his mind. Only, given the previous experience of work number 9527, they did not utter a sound. Merchant Okrahian's face didn't seem too good. As a direct descendant of a merchant, he seemed to know something about the inner workings, and when he uttered the three words Merchant Siax, he turned around and walked towards the independent office. Dialed the phone, on the other side was a careless man's voice. Sean Uyaxian, you don't have the right to order me right now. You should know that Skynet Brain's deduction of the mechanical ascension is proceeding to a critical period, and any other reason cannot be used as a reason to interrupt its deduction. I didn't call here to get involved with you. Shang Akrexian paused and spoke in a grave tone, Shang Jianyue, resurrected. On the other end of the phone, the man who was still scattered, suddenly fell silent. After the silence, a heavy gasp came from the other end of the phone, and the other party seemed to be very agitated. Soon, the man's voice sounded again, alright, I know, I'll convene an emergency meeting right now and let everyone vote. Suspend the deduction command for mechanical ascension, let the Skynet brain awaken and conduct a full Skynet network screening. After the phone call, the merchant executives attached great importance to this matter, and the emergency meeting only took 10 minutes before agreeing to the decision with a 100% approval rate. Don't alarm the people at the bottom, this time, let the Skynet brain pinpoint the location, led by the 8-star alien wreck warrior, and take the people away under secret control. Shana Chixian, those old guys are very satisfied with the information you've provided this time, after this matter is over, they'll vote in advance to let you inherit the Senate Merchant Company. Heh, there's no need to promise me such a blank check. I understand. Shang Akungsian hung up the phone. He walked out of the independent office and quickly walked to the center control room, entering the core secret key for activation and awakening into Skynet. Skynet activation awakening, officially complete. As a mechanical electronic voice rang out, then the electronic data flow, which was originally flowing in an orderly manner, suddenly began to become disorganized. The disorderly data turbulence continued to converge on the large screen, and eventually transformed into an even older and more lifelike human face. Speak. What is the reason for waking me up this time? It was no longer an electronic synthesized voice, but a calm old man's voice rang out. Merchant latecomer Shang Akrexian, meet Lord Skynet Wisdom. The high cold male merchant Okrahian, who was a dick when he got along with everyone else, also respectfully bowed after Skynet Wisdom brain awakened. Oh, it's you. I didn't think that you were already this big. The last time I saw you, you were still a fertilized egg. Skynet brain's words caused the corners of Shang Akrexian's mouth to twitch. You really know how to chat. 
can't you just say that the last time you saw me, I was still in my mom's stomach? Saying that, there was always a feeling of being provoked and insulted. Shanga Chixian put aside his other thoughts and hurriedly stated his business, this time, we woke you up because according to our observations, we found that Shang Jianyue has been resurrected. We would like to ask for your help to sift through the entire Titan city and locate the current position of Shang Siyue. Shang Siyue, resurrected? Even the all-knowing Skynet brain seemed to carry a hint of confusion within its tone when it heard this news. However, soon after, it agreed. It's very simple, with 100% arithmetic support, it only takes 5 seconds for me to be able to sift through the chip data of the entire Titan city. After saying that, it stopped speaking. Once the 5 seconds were up, it opened its eyes again and said, it has been found, I will give you its location. Alright, it's done, I'm going to continue my slumber. After the Skynet brain finished speaking, the disorderly data turbulence disappeared, and all the zeros and ones became orderly once again. Titan City, Dawn Street. A large force of special alien skeleton warriors opened up and allocated here. On the periphery of Dawn Street, a transparent invisible barrier was slowly raised, this was a special particle isolation shield, capable of carrying the full force of a ninth-ranked powerhouse. In silence, led by eight-star alien wreck warriors, divided into a total of ten squads, they began to surround a certain place on the street from ten different directions. Target location is moving. Attention squad 3, the target location is approaching you. Don't hold back, use all means to control the other party first. Be careful. Team 3 has found the target, do it. With a loud shot within the channel, an 8-star alien wreck warrior rushed out from within the alleyway, he exuded a terrifying aura, the strength of an 8th-ranked powerhouse coupled with the alien wreck transformation made his battle power close to the peak of the 8th rank. His speed was so fast that it didn't even leave behind any residual shadows, the silhouette was only seen blurring for a moment, and then in the blink of an eye, he was already a thousand meters away. The commotion caused by this attack was heard in all channels. Squad 3, how's it going? Squad 3, did you catch it? Team 3, caught. The captain of squad 3 spoke into the contact, but it seems like something is wrong. Chief captain, you'd better come over and take a look yourself. Two minutes later, the chief captain in charge of this capture operation came to the ambush site, and he looked at the young man lying on the ground like a dead fish, his pants soaked from the puddle of urine from the huge shock. He frowned. There's a file on him inside the Skynet file information base. His name is Zhang Lifu, 33 years old, just an ordinary Titan City resident. It's not a Shangnian battle axe. Confirmed not? Confirmed not. When the chief captain heard this, he frowned and glanced at Zhang Lifu, who was paralyzed on the ground and should have already been completely paralyzed into an invalid due to the alien wreck warrior's excessive force. Dispose of him secretly, and then, report to headquarters that the capture mission failed. A thousand meters away from the Dawn Long Street in a straight line from the Yangon Long Street, the small robot October sat on a bench, it touched its flat metal stomach and gently patted it twice. It made a bang-bang metallic sound. Then it burped. How is it, the second ancient gumdrop has also been swallowed, is there any new reaction? On the side, Han Zhan, who saw the scene, came over and asked with some curiosity. The little robot glanced at him in October. Yes, just glancing. Little robot October's originally wooden electronic eyes became strange all of a sudden. Ha 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 ha. An obscene voice slowly came out from the little robot's megaphone. The abnormality of the little robot startled Han War. Just as he was about to slap it flat, the laughter disappeared. Immediately after it came, there was another familiar recording. Only this time, the voice of the recording seemed to be quite a bit younger than last time. I finally researched something that can counteract the Skynet brain, reverse invaded the Skynet brain, and was not detected by it. I named it Deep Dive. This Skynet fellow's self-learning ability is too strong, and its theoretical growth has almost no upper limit. If I don't leave it with countermeasures, what will I do in the future when I'm not around? My businessman sees the battle axe, it really is a genius. Ha ha ha. Alas, it's just a pity that heaven envies a genius, how can I live forever? Damn it! Is it really necessary to take the path that I theoretically calculated? Listening to the recordings, Han Zhan finally realized who the person who left these ancient films behind was. Shang Miao Yue. He had heard of this person in Shang Xiaoyan's memories, and he was the first generation of merchant family heads and the true founder of the Senate Merchant Company. It was under his leadership that the Sunshine Company had, step by step, slowly grown from a small company into a giant, huge company that spanned across countries. It could be said that without Shang Jianyue, there would be no Sunshine Company. Shang Jianyue's achievements in science and technology were unlimited, he was a born genius, no matter which aspect of research, it was deduced by him to the extreme. If it wasn't for the fact that the years were unforgiving, and Shang Jianyue eventually died of old age, he would still be able to lead the Sunshine Company and cross a few more steps. You, are Shang Jianyue? Han Zhan asked with some uncertainty as he looked at the little robot October whose eyes had become humanized. No, I'm not. October shook its head. It was much more flexible and spiritual again than before. I gained the gift of the mind of the Shangni battle axe from the second ancient film. It answered truthfully. 
Shang Cx's talent can still be passed on? Han Zhan was shocked, he had never heard of it before. It can be, and to describe it in layman's terms, it's the engraving of a soul topography inside an ancient film, which was left behind by Shang Cx. However, this technique has been lost, or rather, there is no second person who knows how to do it other than Shang Siyue. The soul topography gave the little robot October the exact same thinking talent as Shang Siyue, and coupled with its own strong learning ability, how strong was it under the combination of the two? Let's say, based on the known construction techniques and material prices right now, plus Shang Siyue's mind talent. I can use the cost of 100 million Titan coins to help you build a 100 billion dollar price annihilator, with a 5 times increase in power, a 10 times increase in speed, and a 50% reduction in energy consumption. I can build an upgrade to a stellar grade energy cube based on a single energy cube, with a 500% increase in energy utilization. I can. Han Zhan knew that he had really picked up a treasure, as the old grandpa repairing the robot had said. However, Han War didn't wait too long to be happy before October told him grim news. The Senator Corporation has already discovered us. Although this time, I carried out an early countermeasure, using Zhang Lifu as a virtual target and misleading Skynet Brain once. But with Skynet Brain's ability to learn and comprehend, as long as it is awakened one more time, it will be able to discover the ends, and then reposition itself through those ends to find our location. Time, all of a sudden, became tight. How much time do we have left? Han Zhan asked after he calmed down. Half an hour. The time for the Skynet Brain to reawaken is half an hour and after half an hour, it will awaken again. Half an hour. Raise the event level of Titan City to the highest level, all combatants are on standby. Alien wreck fighters that have already been deployed don't need to return, cancel all vacations, have those that are undergoing alien wreck transformation also suspend, all deploy. Quickly, search the entire city, line up suspicious people, and once they are found afterward, arrest them immediately. At the Skynet Center, Shang Achixian quickly gave out a new command. After hearing the report from the chief leader of the arrest operation team, Shang Akrexian immediately reacted. He first immediately contacted the other merchant executives and opened an emergency meeting once again, then immediately arranged for it to go down, and the entire defense force of Titan City, under a single directive, all of them moved into action. The entire city was on alert. The people of Titan City could only see the alien wreck warriors shuttling through the streets and alleys, as well as the security group robots with searchlights, patrolling at a rapid pace. They had no idea what was really going on. At this time, Jody heard a knock on the door, and she immediately came to her senses, not caring about getting dressed, she excitedly ran out of the bedroom and opened the door. What stood outside the door was not Hanjun. Judy was a little disappointed in her heart. Seeing Judy who opened the door, the alien skeleton warrior raised his hand and showed the electronic file in his hand. You are Jody, right? Yes, I am. Judy looked at the other side a little blankly, wondering what was going on. According to Skynet's information investigation, Jun Lifu was your gold master's father and he has been harboring you for 15 years since after your mother's death, when you were still a minor, right? Sir, it's not illegal to keep a mistress, right? Judy frowned, she didn't like hearing about her deceased mother and her past. I'm sorry MS. Judy, we just wanted to ask, have you encountered anything strange in the recent past? The alien wreck warrior said here while presenting another document. As long as you are able to provide us with any useful clues, you will be rewarded with 100 million titanic coins from us. If the clues prove to be useful, the reward amount will be increased by 10 times, which is 1 billion titan coins. You should be short of money. 1 billion titan coins. Judy's heart skipped a beat when she heard this figure. With 1 billion titan coins, she could say goodbye to her past and transform into a noble lady, entering high society. Strange things. In her mind, the Mr. Bob, who was not close to women and claimed to be a righteous man, and the weird little robot next to him quickly came to mind. M.S. Judy? The alien skeleton warrior across from her inquired again. Judy shook her head with a blank expression. I'm sorry, as much as I want the money, I really haven't encountered anything strange. Is that so? Well, excuse me. The alien wreck warrior nodded, and Judy sniffed as she closed the door to the room. Just the moment the door to the room closed, the... The alien wreck warrior outside the door pressed one hand on his earpiece, which was carrying the commanding voice of Shang Oker Hyun. She's lying, 82-year-old Bob punched out 33-year-old Zhang Lifu, although the surveillance of the entire Don Long Street has been artificially deleted, according to our inquiries and eliminations, we haven't seen any old black men appear at all. This one, Bob, must have a problem, follow this line of investigation. Take coercive measures to control her. Judy closed the door and had just not taken two steps when she suddenly heard a loud bang coming from behind her. Immediately afterward, her eyes went black and she completely lost consciousness. Half an hour was enough time to do what? Enough for Han Zhan and October to use the fastest speed to buy all the tools and materials they needed, and then find an inconspicuous small warehouse to hide in, and officially start assembling the special invention of the Shangyan Battle Axe Deep Dive. The deep diving device was even more complicated than they had imagined. Don't look at it as just a palm-sized small object, 
but its degree of precision far exceeded all of today's high-end technology. It was hard to imagine that this was something invented by someone how many years ago. It was never his talent that limited Shang Mai's battle axe, but the era he was in. In October of the small robot, the two mechanical arms were constantly polishing, piecing together and assembling at an extremely fast speed, with a flexible and orderly approach. Time passed minute by minute. Over at the Skynet Center, as soon as half an hour had passed, Shang Achixian immediately woke up the Skynet brain once again, informing him of what had happened. The other party is very cunning, and this time, after the unanimous agreement of all the business executives, the derivation project will be suspended, and the pursuit activities will be conducted without any time limit. This was the decision of the top management of the Senate Merchant Company. They had already made up their minds to find the Merchant Seeing Axe, and it seemed that the Merchant Seeing Axe was more important to them than the mechanical ascension itself. I see. Skynet Brain said, I'll start reverse reconnaissance now to find out its location. As soon as the words fell, on the entire large screen, dense red dots began to appear, these red dots were the camouflage used by the other party, and with the intervention of the Skynet brain, these simulated camouflages were disappearing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Inside the warehouse, the little robot October suddenly raised his head and looked at Hanjan at the side. Skynet brain has awakened once again. The deep diving device isn't completely finished yet. What do you need me to do? Hanjan immediately understood what it meant and moved closer over to say. The parts of the deep dive device have all been machined and half of the assembly has been carried out, so I'll use my consciousness to conduct the other half to you. You are responsible for putting it together and activating it. October said in a very quick tone, I'm going to start engaging that big guy officially, I won't be doing anything else next. Saying this, it poked its mechanical arm in front of Han's forehead, just like Shang Xiaoyan before, and soon, a huge stream of knowledge flooded into Han's brain. Luckily, with the experience of the last time, and the fact that the knowledge this time wasn't as huge as the last time, Han Zhan was only slightly dizzy as a person, and he quickly recovered. He nodded and took over the job of assembling the deep diving device from October. October, on the other hand, formally began to fight with the Skynet brain. On the big screen, the red dot area was dissipating at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the target's location gradually began to become accurate. But at this time, the red dots suddenly stopped dissipating. Not only that, but their fixed positions also began to flicker and change in a disorderly and chaotic manner on the big screen. Such a scene left the personnel present dumbfounded. What kind of operation was this? Heh, that little guy on the opposite side, made a move. As the Skynet brain, its old and mature tone rang out. With October's intervention, the speed at which the red dots on the screen dissipated plummeted, and it took almost 30 seconds before one of them could be eliminated. Looking at the red dots that kept scurrying about, the staff was a little messed up. What is this doing? Why does it give me the feeling as if I'm playing gopher? M, this description of yours is very apt. You quickly shut up, especially you, job number 9527, how come there are you everywhere? Can't you see that one's face doesn't look too good? Sean Yakungsi and coldly stared at the big screen, not knowing what he was thinking. Your skills are indeed magnificent, and I can be certain that you are undoubtedly Sean Miax himself. Although I don't know how you survived the long years and resurrected yourself, but times are different now. I've also grown from the little dot created by you to the old man I am now. So, to paraphrase an old saying of you humans, in the face of absolute power, all tricks are just fancy. As the Skynet brain's self-talking voice rang out, it called upon all of the Skynet networks in the entire Titan city, using the massive data streams as a means of offense, pouring in all the way into the confrontation between the two. This hand of the Skynet brain directly caused the entire Titan city to briefly black out. A piece of darkness. One must know that ever since Skynet brain had covered the entire city of Titans, there had never been such a situation. All of the residents of Titan City were a bit on edge, not knowing what was going on. Skynet Brain's means were fruitful. Under the huge flood of data, those red dots that were still bouncing and prancing around with skill began to disappear in pieces as if they were washed away by a flood. As the red dots on the big screen became less and less, everyone in the entire Skynet Center held their breath. Until finally, the flood of data completely submerged all, eliminating all of those false simulated targets that were covering up, and the only thing left was that one red dot that brightly appeared on the map of the big screen. Yangon Longstreet. Sean Okershin saw the location clearly, and he immediately picked up his communicator and contacted the searchers throughout the city. On the big screen, just as the Skynet brain completed its attack and found out where the other party was hiding in the shadows, suddenly, the red dot strangely disappeared. Just like that, bright and clear, it completely disappeared from the big screen. When the Skynet brain saw the scene, it let out a soft eep rather humanely, surprised. Skynet chip, can't monitor him anymore. Shang Miax, you're really, really, an uncompromising genius. Han Zhan fiercely wiped a handful of sweat from his forehead. For a raw hand like him, assembling such a complex device for the first time even allowed him to directly save enough white mist, and the eight urgent fists, which was originally on the verge of breaking through, directly broke through to the fourth urgent fist. Minute by minute, this was considered between life and death. 
He raised his head and looked towards the light blue light shield that wrapped around them, and it was by relying on this light shield that helped them completely disappear under the Skynet. Now is not the time to relax, the Skynet brain has broken through my camouflage defenses with the help of its vast data stream underpinnings, and has already obtained the coordinates of this location. We must shift now. October reminded. Without needing it to speak, Han Zhan had already picked it up in one hand and darted up. Since he had the deep diving device as a camouflage cover that wouldn't be detected by the Senator Corporation's Skynet, he no longer had any qualms about directly unlocking the fourth much-needed lock. Han Zhan's entire body transformed into a residual shadow and violently rushed out of the warehouse, and within a few leaps, he completely disappeared. The little robot that was being carried by him looked at the scene in front of him, revealing a humanized and thoughtful expression. Spirit contractor fluctuation detected, accuracy 99. 9999%, human identity judgment in progress. Judgment is, Dasha spirit contractor. Identity confirmed, changing from neutral to indifferent, can open up more permissions. Inside the body of the little robot October, an ancient film reel slowly rotated, and in a very faint voice, it muttered. Failed again? It only took three minutes to get there, and as a result of blocking off the surrounding area of 5,000 meters and carpet searching, we couldn't even find him? How is this possible? Shanya Kungsian hung up the phone somewhat grumpily. Why was it that every single time it was just a little bit closer, every single time? This feeling of frustration was extremely difficult for a high-minded person. Unluckily, Shang Weixian was such a person. Ever since he was a child, he had left his peers far behind with his brains and talent, and there was one and only one person who steadily pushed him down. That was his older sister, Shang Siding. But now, because Shang Siding had awakened her spirit, the merchants had other arrangements for her, and he had logically become the next successor of the merchants. It did not occur to him that in the matter at hand, he had been defeated several times in a row. And it was still with the assistance of the Skynet brain, which made him feel like all the people on his side were idiots. It's not surprising that the opponent was able to perform a miracle to get the Shangni battle axe. The Skynet brain didn't seem to be discouraged by one or two failures, or perhaps it couldn't feel what discouragement was at all. In the eyes of a machine, anything was just a probabilistic event, with a higher probability or a lower probability, and variables were always present. For him, there should be something else you haven't told me. Shanga Kungsian screened off all the staff in the Skynet center, leaving only himself and the Skynet smart brain behind and looked at the old man's face on the big screen and asked. It's impossible for Merchant Siax to be resurrected for no reason. But all of them, including you, including those executives of the merchants, don't seem to be surprised. Moreover, they even agreed to suspend the deduction of the mechanical ascension and let you go all out to capture Shang Jianyue, which shows the importance they place on this matter. Tell me, why? With Shang Okerhian's current authority, there wasn't much that could be hidden from him, and sure enough, the Skynet thinking brain sighed before opening its mouth to explain because it was Shang Miax who proposed the mechanical ascension. What? This explosive news caused Shang Okerhian's brain to briefly go on the spot. It was Shang Jianyue who proposed mechanical ascension. He had originally thought that mechanical ascension was only a project that had only begun in the last hundred years, no more than three hundred years at most. And I, who have been in a state of slumber, deduce not something else, but a formula about mechanical ascension that Shang Siyue left behind before he died back then. Inside the top echelons of the Sunshine Company, those of the older generation, are convinced that as long as they are able to derive this formula, they will be able to peek through the secrets of mechanical ascension. But after so many years, it has never been possible to complete the derivation. Even Skynet Intelligence Brain was unable to derive the formula, back then, relying on the human brain's business insight battle axe, how on earth did he create something out of nothing and come up with this formula? Could it be that he was even stronger than Skynet Brain? For a time, the entire Skynet Center fell silent. However, this question of yours reminds me of one thing. The Skynet brain suddenly spoke. Regarding the derivation of this formula, over so many long years, I've already had some eyebrows, and the merchants are also relying on what they've deduced to synchronize their physical experiments and corroborate each other with their theories. Merchant Siax, when he was dying, once bragged with his bedmate who was 50 years younger than himself, saying that he had already glimpsed the secret of longevity. But it was hidden by him in four places, and by finding these, one would be able to truly live forever. The merchants have been searching for it all these years, but have never found it. They don't even know what the so-called things are. The ancient film that hides the secret of the merchant Siak's longevity. It was hidden in four places, and by finding them, they will be able to solve the ultimate mystery. Han and October were hiding in an inconspicuous place under the shelter of the deep dive device. October spoke. Han Zhan was not very interested in this topic. People are bound to die, what's the point of pursuing immortality? If the merchant executives had your idea, a lot less people should be able to die every year. October had improved so rapidly during this period of time that even the tone of his spitting began to become subtle, no different from a real person. So, the reason why they're frantically looking for us, to be exact, is because they're looking for you. Because on you, you're harboring the little secret of the Shangni battle axe. It's the big secret. 
October emphasized in a serious tone. It's not like it's a big boob, so what's the attraction? Han Zhan cut in. The little robot October couldn't catch the dirty jokes and froze with her head smoking a little. Look, you haven't learned in place, about the language piece, I can only say that learning is never ending. Han Zhan said in a serious tone. There's no way I'm going to help you get the next two ancient gumdrops. Han Zhan directly refused, I'm not interested in the secret of immortality, and I don't want to dig it out, once this kind of thing is out in the world, there's bound to be a bloody storm. Moreover, the most crucial thing was, little robot October was now becoming more and more humanized, it possessed the gifted mind of a Shangmi battle axe, and had an extremely strong learning ability. Who could ensure what it would become if it found another two ancient film strips? Han Zhan hadn't been arrogant enough to think that he possessed the aura of a king's hegemony and was able to make the liver and brain of a little robot that he had never met before. Then what are your next plans? As planned, heading to the East Lake District's Heavenly Museum. Han Zhan said. According to the memories in his head, the Tianbo Museum, as the largest museum in the city of Titans, it contained many, many strange things, mostly the history of the Senator Corporation. However, underneath it was one of the largest storage warehouses for energy square bricks. The energy square bricks inside were imperative for Han War. Still refusing to open up? Looking at the somewhat wretched Jody in front of him, whose appearance was indeed something special, Shang Akungsian withdrew his gaze and said in a flat tone, Your insistence is meaningless in my opinion. You should know that I can protect you for a moment, but I can't protect you for a lifetime. If I can't come up with an answer from the interrogation, someone from above will be sent to take over me, those old men from the merchants. Imagine the image of a bunch of people old enough to be your grandfather's generation, lying on top of you. I'm not going to tell. Judy's eyes were lightless and her head hung low, you guys kill me, I don't know anything. You love him very much? Shang Akungsian seemed to have read the thoughts in Judy's mind, then do you know what the entire Senate business company is looking for after expending so much effort? A person who came back from the dead, a person who is, extremely terrifying. The one you love, if he is with this person, what do you think, what will happen to him? Who am I to believe what you say? Hearing Shang Akungsian's words, Jody snapped her head up and looked at him. Shang Akungsian didn't say anything, he didn't care to open his mouth to prove anything. It's an ancient film. Judy completely loosened his mouth and replied. An ancient film? The first place that came to Shang Akungsian's mind was a place. It was his favorite place to go when he was a child. East Lake District's Tianbo Pavilion. East Lake District, Tianbo Museum. As the largest museum in the city of Titans, the Tianbo Pavilion was visited by many people every day. Today was no exception. At this time, a young man wearing a black trench coat was suddenly stopped by the security guard at the entrance with his hand outstretched, this gentleman, I'm sorry, electronic pets are not allowed to be brought in. As he said that, he pointed his finger at the small robot on the ground next to him. It won't hurt anyone. I'm sorry, the museum is full of precious collections from all generations, and if any machinery goes out of control, the problem will be serious, so it's expressly forbidden. The young man shrugged helplessly and turned away. Well. Scanning and remodeling has been completed, the entire structure of the museum has been analyzed and is being modeled. Very well, we'll move this evening. Looking at the opposite side of the man and his pet who were slowly walking away, the security guard at the entrance suddenly picked up the communicator in his hand. Suspicious personnel detected, one person and one robot, did not enter the heavenly museum. Is it necessary to send additional personnel for tracking? No need for now. If they want to seek the ancient film, they will definitely enter the museum, at that time, we just need to catch them in a jar. It's daytime now, and there are many people, so in case it's not them, we'll be spooking the snakes instead. The security guard sniffed and put down the communicator in his hand again, continuing to maintain order in the heavenly museum. Titan City, the sewers. The sewers were known as the, everlasting company's fixed resurrection point. Nowadays, there was also a line of people walking among them, and it was clearly the, aberration walkers, of the everlasting company. Their company seemed to have some sort of fan-like obsession with the sewers. Just like Dashiaws were called, Spirit Contractor, and, Spirit Contractor, and the Seneschal companies were called, Alien Wreck Warrior, the Eternal Life companies were called, Aberration Walker. Aberration, as the name suggests, also means that the body has undergone some kind of change, a change that comes from the inside out. Aberration was often a derogatory term, but the people of the Everlasting Company didn't feel it, and they kinda liked the name. Just like if you talk to someone from the senator company, they would think that prosthetics were cool, same thing. The few people who were previously sent to Deep Blue City to be in charge of exploring the path could not yet be considered aberration walkers, only those who exceeded the strength of the fifth rank or above could have such a title. Every aberration walker would have a special aberration potion injected into their body, and this was the warrior that the everlasting company had cultivated themselves. The aberration walker at the front, with the word 003 engraved on her neck, was a tall woman. The mutagen injected into her body was the Yi Bee Calamity, refined from the spiritual remains of the Ninth Order Insect Race Bloodstinger Bee. 
Behind her, there were two other aberration walkers, a man and a woman, with the numbers 018 and 029 on their necks, which were, cryptic insect, and, poisonous error, respectively. An 8th order and 2 7th order, such a configuration was not low anywhere. Luck is good, originally these days have been suffering from not having a way to sneak into Titan City, I didn't expect it to directly cut off the power, giving us a chance to take advantage of it. All keep your voices down, even though we are in a state of concealment, it's hard to guarantee that there won't be other traps placed by Skynet in the sewers. Don't forget our purpose this time. The taller woman spoke. The purpose of their trip was to infiltrate the city of Titans and then steal out one thing from the Heavenly Museum. That item was a very crucial flavor of material, with it, the Everlasting Company could configure 10 brand new aberration potions to make up for the recent loss of high-end battle power. If you ask me, 001 is really too trashy, just getting fucked over by that Wei Ching guy like that, even dragging us into this risk. As a result, we didn't even get that godly gnome ding or whatever it is, and the several recent attempts at the North County have all come to nothing. Those guys are like shrunken turtles, cowering inside that ancient formation turtle shell of theirs, what a nuisance. Man number 018 was a bit broken-mouthed, and because of the cryptic insect talent, he spoke with impunity. Near them, there was a faint veil that enveloped them. This was the cryptic insect's talent, the veil of spiritual concealment. It was by relying on this talent that they hadn't been discovered all the way. It's going to be nighttime in a little while, so we'll enter again when there's no one in the heavenly museum. No. 003 glanced down at the time and barked with them. After waiting for another hour or so, the sky finally darkened. No. 003 and the other two exchanged glances, then topped off with the veil of spirit hiddenness and slowly moved the manhole cover of the sewer away. In the East Lake District, on the ground of the heavenly museum, the alien wreck warrior disguised as a security guard during the day was hiding inside a hidden street alley, quietly waiting for tonight's prey. Because he hadn't eaten anything for a day, he took the time to buy three pieces of corn and was gnawing on them. Suddenly, he saw that not far in front of him, the manhole cover connected to the sewer was suddenly being slowly moved away. But apart from the movement of being moved away, there was no one to be seen. He watched the scene with dumbfounded amazement, even forgetting to continue gnawing on the corn. Hello? Command? I think, I found them. It was said in the investigation report that they have props to conceal their appearance, and I can see now that they're coming out of the manhole cover. Yes, I can't see their people, they should have their concealment on, I'll request for a special flare. After receiving an affirmative reply, he didn't even want the corn anymore, he directly threw it on the ground and pulled out a small cylindrical item from within his prepared tactical backpack. This was a special flare developed by the Senator Corporation, possessing a special light source that could illuminate all stealthy units. The opportunity to take credit had arrived. He only saw him violently throw the special flare towards the sky, then raised his own right hand and a pitch-black circular cylinder appeared in his modified prosthetic limb. Eat me. The three aberration walkers of the Everlasting Company had only just crawled out from inside the sewers, and then they saw. The sky dawned. Immediately afterward, a rocket was fired from a distance, carrying rolling waves of heat. Grass. There's an ambush. No. 003 yelled, she then raised her hand, squeezed the incoming rocket, and then twisted it so hard that it was detonated in her hand. It was unharmed. Oh no, the point is sticking. This alien wreck warrior panicked and opened his communicator, calling, quickly all come to me, they have accomplices. In an instant, the inside of the alleyway became lively. In the distance, listening to the not-so-small commotion emanating from there, looking at the alien skeleton warriors that rushed out of the night one by one, Han Zhan and October looked at each other in dismay. The commotion isn't small, what's going on? Han Ah. October, who had just learned some newfangled vocabulary, lived and breathed it. The senator company actually did an ambush here, how did they know I was going to steal the energy cube? Han Zhan inexplicably muttered to himself. The opportunity is fleeting, do it. After saying that, Han Zhan and the little robot took advantage of the night and quickly sneaked into the Tian Bo pavilion from another direction. Inside the Tian Bo pavilion, it was empty. Han Zhan and October easily sneaked in. Under its leadership, they quickly traveled through the large Tian Bo pavilion and soon arrived at the target location. This is it? Han Zhan glanced around, where's the entrance? October ignored him and walked towards the front as it raised its mechanical arm and smashed through one of the Tian Bo Pavilion's display cases. As the glass shattered in response, alarm bells rang throughout the Tian Bo Pavilion, and Han Zhan saw it quickly grab something to swallow, crushing the outer packaging before swallowing it in his mouth. You're lying to me? He clearly saw that what October had just swallowed was precisely an ancient film. The third ancient film reel, surprisingly, was located inside the Tian Bo Pavilion. That's right, he's lying to you. Right at this moment, the entire Tian Bo pavilion was suddenly lit up. The alien wreck warriors who had already ambushed the place surrounded them. We finally meet, Shang Niax, and, Bob. Shang Okarak said. You don't look like an 82-year-old black man, no wonder how we couldn't investigate your information, it seems that he helped you with the disguise. 
While speaking, the small robot October suddenly had one more thing in its hand, it was a dark blue disc, only the size of a palm. It seemed to have anticipated this situation. Under its rotation, the disc released an eerie blue light. Deep diving device. As the deep diving device was activated, its entire body disappeared from plain sight like a fading movie screen. When did the deep diving device possess a teleportation function? Its disappearance caused Shang Weixian to briefly lose the ability to manage his expression. The cooked duck had actually flown? You stay and watch over him, the rest of you follow me in pursuit. Shang Okershin said on the spot. He stopped looking at Han Zhan, who was on the side, and led the large force to track out. Only one seven-star alien skeleton warrior was left behind. In their opinion, a seven-star alien skeleton warrior was enough to deal with a bob. Nowadays, the Tianbo Pavilion battlefield was split into three pieces. The aberrant walkers sent by the Everlasting Company this time were extremely powerful, and the number of eight-star alien skeleton warriors dealing with them had increased to three, with the rest of the alien skeleton warriors standing by to support them. The fleeing Shang Si what attracted the most firepower, he was the one who had implicated the entire Senate Corporation's top brass, Shang Okershin had called in three eight-star altered wreck warriors, and a dozen more seven-star altered wreck warriors to lead the way, chasing and intercepting them from all over the place. Without utilizing strategic level weapons such as war fortresses, this was almost all the top forces that Titan City could call upon. As for the synergized low-end warrior power, not much more to say, it couldn't affect too much of the battlefield. Looking at the seven-star alien skeleton warriors in front of him, Han Zhan raised his hand and sheathed his regular sword. Faced with an enemy two steps higher than himself, and is known for its resistance to beating the alien skeleton warrior, Shen Nong Ding or Fuxikin, may not be able to break its defense. Only with the demon slaying sword, which was known for its sharpness, would he have a chance to defeat the opponent. Han Zhan's judgment of the battle situation had become more and more mature, and this was precisely the transformation of his identity from a chess piece to a chess player. The seven-star alien skeleton warrior on the opposite side revealed a cold smile at the corner of his mouth when he saw that Han War actually wanted to fight back. In his eyes, this young man called Bob would only end up becoming his meritocracy. This alien wreck warrior's transformation was mainly focused on his arms, which were wrapped in thick mechanical skeletons. The mechanical skeleton granted him more characteristics, strength, defense, and fist gang. As a fist was swung out, a huge fist wind enveloped the entire pavilion, and both fists came in like cannonballs. Facing the attack, Han War's fourth urgent lock instantly unlocked. The entire person's speed, defense, and strength all doubled dozens of times, barely rising to the peak level of the sixth rank. He dodged the opponent's inevitable fist dipper attack. The fist dipper slammed into the display case behind Han Zhan, and the objects that were originally in the display case were swept by the dipper and instantly turned into pieces. You're finished, you destroyed the museum's precious artifacts. No, that's what you destroyed. The alien skeleton warrior planted his face without changing his color. Seeing that Han Zhan actually dodged his attack, his heart was in awe. It wasn't over yet. Han Zhan found an opportunity to raise his hand and raise his sword, and ritually stabbed the opposite side when his opponent's punch offering was not strong enough. The alien wreck warrior subconsciously raised his hands to block, relying on the fact that his hands had been remodeled by the mechanical skeleton. I didn't expect that the long sword waved out from the other party's hand, but it was wrapped in terrifying sword chi. These sword chi were pervasive, penetrating the defense of the skeleton on both fists. In just an instant, countless blood flowed out of his hands. The alien skeleton warrior wanted to retreat from the pain, but Han Zhan gained momentum and gripped the Xian Yuan sword and flipped it over and over again. The powerful and sharp sword chi ran across, intersecting with the fist angles in midair, and then smashing down and scattering separately, plowing countless traces on the wall and ground. The alien wreck warrior who was forced into a corner, for the first time, looked squarely at the enemy in front of him, and he suddenly used both of his fists against his chest. As he completed this action, the white skeletons on his original fists all fell off in this instant, piecing together a mechanical python. This was the result of the second stage of the alien skeleton transformation. The mechanical python's strength was above the seventh stage, and because of its lack of flesh and blood, it was even less afraid of unusual injuries. The mechanical python instantly took shape, and it didn't give Han Zhan a chance to react, its tail was a sweeping blow. Han Zhan fiercely leapt up high. The mechanical python's tail crushed the Tian Bo Pavilion's display cabinets to smithereens and fell to the ground. Smoke and dust obscured the line of sight. In midair, Han Zhan realized something was wrong, but it was too late. Only to see the mechanical python open its huge mouth, densely densely packed snake teeth paved the sky and hit Han Zhan. In a stagnant state, Han Zhan rolled. There were still a few snake teeth that penetrated his body, causing him to feel a piercing pain. The seven-star alien skeleton warriors really weren't all easy to deal with. Han Zhan sighed in his heart. He didn't stop on his feet and dodged yet another attack. The python's open, bloody mouth swooped down with one blow, biting down hard on the floor of the Tianbo pavilion, directly biting out a hole in the ground. A hole? Han Zhan looked at the eerie blue light that lit up below through this hole, and had the feeling that he had stepped through the iron shoes without finding a place. 
He quickly probed his hand and grabbed a piece of, into the hand still cool, through the refreshing fluctuations of spiritual energy, is the energy square brick is no mistake. Han looked up at the hole, his eyes colliding in midair with the alien wreck warrior who was controlling the white bone giant snake. He suddenly made a move that left the alien skeleton warrior dumbfounded. Only to see Han Zhan take a hard bite towards the energy cube in his hand. Are you kidding me? That was an energy cube. Inside each energy cube was spiritual energy concentrated to the extreme, and it simply wasn't meant for human consumption. He just took a bite? No, more than one bite. Han Zhan took one bite after another, swallowing an entire energy cube, and immediately afterward, the surging spiritual energy within his body directly exceeded what his body could withstand. It was as if his entire body was about to explode. Han Zhan's gaze was grave, only to see him use all his strength to maneuver all the riotous spiritual energy within his body, all of which was injected into the Xian Yuan sword in his hand. This is a move I've comprehended from the Jade Shattering Sword, and I would call him, Chopping Star. As a large amount of spiritual energy was injected into the Xian Yuan sword, the engraved patterns of birds, beasts, insects, and fish, mountains, rivers, lakes and seas lit up one by one. As if it had completed its energization, it bloomed with a blinding and incomparable white light. Like a dazzling white star. In the next second, the star shattered. A bit of sword light pierced through the mechanical giant snake, and together with the seventh rank alien skeleton warrior behind it, it was knocked out. Chopping star. Shang Zhixian was still pursuing Shang Jianyue's trail. The prop used by the opponent must have been the masterpiece of Shang Si was vomit. Merchant, who was known for his technology, was helpless against this kind of prop. Skynet Brain was still deducing the means to counteract this prop of his, but it needed time, and it was by no means today. In the sky, if Merchant Oker Hyun could have seen it, he would have realized that a small robot was strolling in the void like a ghost. The deep diving device had many functions, how could there be only one to shield the signal? He had purposely said this before just to confuse Han Zhuan. Shang Siax looked down at the crowd below who were like headless flies, and his heart gave a cold smile. Just then, an accident happened. Only a clear click suddenly came from the blue disc in his hand. In the expression of the little robot's pupils that shook tremendously, it fell apart in pieces. In the next second, it directly fell from the sky. Grass. Shang Miaoyue's exasperated voice resounded from within the little robot. Regarding the ancient cells and soul topographies, it had actually spilled the beans. The four ancient films really corresponded to Shang Jianyue's, memory, talent, consciousness, and most importantly, soul. After swallowing to three ancient cells, his character gradually recovered, and even his voice and tone of voice were changing. The sudden collapse of the deep diving device made him think of someone directly. The second half of the assembly of the deep diving device was completed by Han War. So from that time, Han Zhan had tampered with it. This treacherous brat. Shang Siwa's side had just pitted Han War and was backstabbed by Han War. Soon, Shang Okerhian and the others who rushed up surrounded him. Old ancestor, it's only just been a while, why have you changed your pull? Shang Siak snorted coldly. Without any nonsense, he only saw his arm slightly vibrate, and a small miniature marble, just like mercury cascading to the ground, fell down from the small robot through and through. After these marbles fell to the ground, they even directly transformed into a miniature spider and rushed towards the surroundings. Be careful, it's a mimic robot. Shang Akrexian waved his hand, and the three eight-star alien skeleton warriors blocked the front. In the next second, boom boom boom. One after another explosion blew the entire street to smithereens. Terrifying energy rushed over, and Shang Okershin's pupils shrunk slightly. The damage was not right. Mimic robots, the crisis created by self-detonation, was at most at the fifth rank level, but the power caused by this explosion in front of him had exceeded the seventh rank. Was this the strength of the merchant's first genius? No wonder today, the merchant higher-ups wanted to take him down no matter what the cost, no matter what. There's no need to retreat. He's only just awakened not long ago, there must not be many as powerful as this. Are you sure? Shang Miax maneuvered the little robot and snapped his fingers. Only a rumbling sound could be heard. The ground directly under his feet cracked open, and two terrifying red lights slowly stood up from the underground smoke. Huge, war-type robots. Titan of destruction? Shang Achixian called out the name of this robot at once. No matter, once upon a time, Shang Okershin was also an avid technology geek, but reality dealt him a heavy blow. The high cost of materials, the high cost of maintenance, and the unaffordable battle damage ratio had put these designs on the back burner. Compared to it, the alien skeleton transformation was not only inexpensive, but also only required ordinary people to carry out the transformation, the cost was extremely low. Letting these cannon fodder spend their own money on maintenance and upgrades, and establishing a merit system, and not even needing to issue a pension when they died, the cost effectiveness was extremely high. Gradually, there were more and more alien skeleton fighters in the senator company, and fewer and fewer battle mechs. Yo, it seems you're familiar with my earlier works, still? On the destruction titan, the little robot sat on its incredibly tall shoulders and looked towards Shang Achixian. But how could it be? How long had Shang Miaoyue been resurrected, 
And what ability did he have to build such a destruction titan that was comparable to an 8-star alien wreck warrior? Sean Okershin couldn't figure it out until he saw the black color that receded like a tidal wave on the destruction titan, which was a robot as tiny as a nanoscale, falling back into the ground. It reminded Sean Okershin of what was said about the old ancestor in the ancient history textbooks of the Senate Commerce Corporation. One man made an army, the three eight-star alien skeleton warriors, and the large army that kept arriving, but the little robot didn't care about them, his gaze looking far in the direction of the Sky Expo Hall. Damn kid, the family belongings that I saved with great difficulty, it looks like I'll be squandering it all again today. Another battlefield. The three aberration walkers from the Everlasting Company and the two eight-star alien skeleton warriors from the Senator Company fought to one place. No. 003 fought one against two without losing the slightest bit of ground. Her ability was, the calamity, and the main body of the aberration was the cells within her body. Each cell was capable of aberration to become a red-blooded bee, and with each aberration of a red-blooded bee, she was able to gain one more power increase. Now within her body, hundreds of millions of cells had successfully deformed into red blood bees, and her increase had reached an extremely terrifying height. Every punch slammed out was a sensation of destroying the heavens and destroying the earth. Even the alien wreck warriors, who were known for their defense and resistance to punching, didn't dare to go straight for their fronts. In addition to this, Bug Hidden and Poison Doom were also two very disgusting aberrations in the right direction. One could make 003's movements more erratic, striking at any time, anywhere. One noiselessly erodes the body, poisonous invasion, making the body more fragile and shriveled. Such a combination of a main front row and two auxiliaries really disgusted the two eight-star alien skeleton warriors of the Senator Company. They wanted to prioritize the two obscene aides, and every time they did, the other party would stealthily disappear into thin air. Where's the flare? Flares. It's already used up. Damn it, why isn't the support here yet? Inside the communication, it says that the support was split by the battlefield on Lord Shang Okershin's side. On Lord Shang Okershin's side, there seems to be a legion-level melee going on. The 8-star alien skeleton warrior who spoke was just about to say something when a palm had already passed through his chest. Plop, plop. The bloodied heart was brought out and grasped in his hand. 003's indifferent tone rang in his ears. Next time, don't get distracted while fighting. The heart was directly pinched and burst. The balance of the battle instantly tilted. After another moment, there were many more corpses in the alleyway of the Tianbo Pavilion, including two eight-star alien skeleton warriors. Let's go, let's enter the Heavenly Museum. The three silhouettes were lost in the night, walking towards the Tianbo Pavilion. At this moment, inside the Tianbo Pavilion, Han Zhan finally pocketed all of the energy tiles, and the purpose of his trip was accomplished. Just as he catalyzed the void black hole, intending to leave with ease, the black hole annihilated moments after it appeared. The teleportation failed. The entire underground of the City of Titans was constructed with a single space stabilizer at some unknown time. They appeared as if they were springing up, and after they appeared, the black tide receded in all directions. In the other battlefield, Shang Miak sneered at the battle-damaged and destroyed machinery, and the dead bodies of the alien warriors. Don't wait, the space has been stabilized by me, you can't wait for reinforcements. If you want to capture me, you have to pay the price.